She is the empress of the Great Flame Dynasty, yet she summoned an unskilled Xiao Tian to be her consort. Little did she know, Xiao Tian is an earthling from a higher dimension, in this lower dimensional alternate space. Standing up alone already makes him invincible. One day, Xiao Tian woke up, only to find a woman next to him. This woman, with her exquisite beauty and breathtaking curves, left Xiao Tian utterly stunned. How did this woman end up on his bed? Did he do something inappropriate? After a moment, the woman finally gathered herself, and explained awkwardly, I slept here just to silence the ministers. It turned out, she was the empress of the Great Flame Dynasty. Due to the undercurrents in the court, many ministers advised her to marry. Unwilling to be dictated by the ministers, she used a talisman to summon a servant from another space and time. And Xiao Tian? He was an ace of a 21st century assassination organization. That day, he was about to be ambushed by a rival group. Just as he was about to act, he suddenly found himself in a strange room, with a red cloth covering his head. Empress Zi Ruoyan looked at the summoned Xiao Tian, who had no cultivation and was just an ordinary man. Xiao Tian just stared blankly at the woman in front of him. Her delicate face, her statuesque figure, and that indomitable aura. She was just perfect. The woman let out a soft sigh. Oh well, a mortal will do. It will save a lot of trouble. Xiao Tian, looking confused, asked, Who are you? Where am I? The woman looked down at him and said, I am the Empress of the Great Flame Dynasty. From today, you are the Prince of the Great Flame Dynasty, and thus, my consort. Xiao Tian burst out laughing. Does that mean I can do nothing and just live off you? Empress Zi Ruoyan nodded slightly. Yes. Hearing this, Xiao Tian quickly patted the side of the bed and said, Then what are you waiting for? Let's get started. However, the Empress informed him, As for marital matters, I cannot satisfy you at the moment. Regarding the summoning talisman's contract ring, I will find a way to free you from it. After saying this, the Empress left with her attendants. Seeing the woman leave, Xiao Tian looked at his hand. Is this the contract ring she mentioned? Wearing this, I can't harm the summoner. Ha! Huh. Just then, a voice echoed. Do you wish to activate the supreme system? Xiao Tian smirked. Transmigration in a system? I can't believe I'm experiencing this. In that case, of course, I choose no. Since he was young, he was adopted by an assassin organization. To survive, he became stronger, engaging in countless, senseless killings. All for the so-called missions. The path of the supreme powerhouse? Xiao Tian was already tired of it. What in this world is more pleasing than being a carefree prince without worries? Seeing Xiao Tian's refusal, the system prepared to erase Xiao Tian's memories, and then detach from Xiao Tian to seek a new host. While sipping tea, Xiao Tian remained calm and undisturbed. The next second, the system showed an error. Memory erase failed, unable to detach. The system then tried to bind. Yet again, it showed binding failed. Then, let's try establishing ownership. Still a failure. Suddenly, the system blared, warning, the target is a high-dimensional earthling, activating parasitic slave mode. Still a failure. The system continued to attempt. During these attempts, Xiao Tian was dumbfounded. What's going on? Does this system want to be my slave? After 9,999 failed attempts, the system could only ask Xiao Tian, could I become your auxiliary system to be your slave? Xiao Tian smiled. So, the system wants to be my loyal follower now? Once confirmed, the system requested Xiao Tian to give it a name. Without hesitation, Xiao Tian said, why don't you just be called Puppy then? The system immediately expressed its liking for the name. However, it reminded Xiao Tian to quickly learn how to conceal his aura. Otherwise, he might unintentionally erase system and endanger other lives. Looking at a potted plant beside him that had been half erased, Xiao Tian exclaimed, is this caused by my aura? This won't do. I must suppress it. Following the techniques provided by the system, Xiao Tian quickly learned to conceal his aura. Afterward, he looked at the potted plant and asked the system, Puppy, what's happening to me? Respected master, the system replied, You come from a high dimensional plane, where you have long been suppressed by 490,000 rules. Now that you're in this lower dimensional plane, you're free from the suppression of heavenly rules, and your body is rapidly absorbing the energy between heaven and earth. After some thought, Xiao Tian inquired, So, how many rules govern this world? Respected master, this world is bound by 3,000 rules, the system answered. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian spat out the water he was drinking. The water pierced through the wall. This feeling is indeed peculiar. Soon after, the system sent over Xiao Tian's status information. Xiao Tian. Realm. None. Traits. Unknown. Bloodline. Earthling. Potential. After unlocking. Unknown. Can ignore any rule or law. Has a suppressive ability over all beast-type creatures. And these abilities were only what could currently be detected. A moment later, Xiao Tian strolled around and arrived at a martial arts arena. Picking up a long knife, he easily snapped it with a slight bend. This empress really skimps on quality, Xiao Tian muttered. Puppy quickly interjected, respected master, spiritual weapons are graded in nine tiers, each tier further categorized as high, mid, low, and extreme. That knife was a tier six extreme quality, which is considered top notch in the Great Flame Dynasty. Hearing this, Xiao Tian grabbed another sword, which obviously looked of even higher quality. He tried to slash his palm with the blade. His hand was unharmed, but the sword cracked. Casually tossing the broken blade back, Xiao Tian gained a rough understanding of his capabilities. As for the weapons, he no longer wished 
wish to touch or partake in any violence. On the third morning, Xiao Tian woke up to find the Empress in his bed. Sensing Xiao Tian's movement, the Empress slowly opened her eyes. Startled, Xiao Tian exclaimed, What happened last night? Am I tainted? Seeing her puzzled expression, Xiao Tian reached out and gently patted her face, asking, Did you, with me? Upon hearing his words, the Empress finally snapped back to her senses, clearing her throat and feigning an authoritative tone. She inquired, How did you sleep last night? Feeling embarrassed, Xiao Tian replied, I slept quite well. Did I sleep in the wrong place? The Empress shook her head and explained, I slept here merely to silence the gossip. If we were to sleep separately on our wedding night, it would give rise to unnecessary rumors. In the future, I might occasionally stay here. I will assign some people to assist you. If you need anything, just ask. With that, the Empress prepared to leave. But just as she reached the door, she turned to say, I'm sorry for summoning you here for my own benefit. Watching her leave, Xiao Tian reminisced about the warmth of the previous night and couldn't help but laugh out loud, thinking, truly a great Empress. The woman who supports me is indeed extraordinary. My wonderful days are about to begin. That night, inside the royal study, Empress Zi Ruoyan was reviewing reports when she exclaimed, as the situation in the north deteriorated to this extent, a female general named Zhong Li Huang quickly explained, the barbarians are acting more frequently. It seems there might be someone behind the scenes. According to our intelligence, the barbarian sage has left their royal court. Upon hearing this, the empress slammed the report on the table, declaring, I will lead the troops personally to cut off the hand that dares to stretch towards us. Relay my orders. In three days, General Zhong, you will accompany me as we march northward. Zhong Li Huang was overjoyed and responded, Yes, your majesty. Three days later, the empress was mounted on a majestic horse, asking Zhong Li Huang beside her, Is everything arranged properly? Ling is secretly following him. There won't be any problems. But your majesty, why are you so concerned about a man without any cultivation? The empress smiled lightly. After marrying him, the fate of the Great Flame Dynasty has become more stable, and even my strength has improved. Now, let's set out. The soldiers immediately acknowledged her command, and began their journey northward. Not far away, a proud figure looked at the departing army. It was Zhong Li Shuang's daughter, Zhong Ling. She sighed deeply, mother is really something. Not only did she go to war with the empress without taking me, but she even assigned me to secretly protect this useless prince. While the empress goes to war for the Great Flame Dynasty, this guy goes to the mountains for his cravings. I really don't understand why the empress would marry such a man. At that moment, a shadowy figure suddenly emerged and abducted Xiao Tian. Zhong Ling witnessed the scene, but did not intervene, thinking to herself, he's really asking for trouble. I wonder if that useless prince is scared now. Unbeknownst to her, Xiao Tian was happily munching on a leg of pork, remarking, this tastes so good. Too bad, puppy, you can't taste it. Soon after, Xiao Tian was thrown in front of a group. A scar-faced man took one look at him and quickly asked, fourth brother, are you sure you got the right person? Can the empress's husband really be such a simpleton? Xiao Tian continued to enjoy his pork leg, seemingly unfazed by the situation. Zhong Ling, hiding in a tree, silently judged this useless prince. However, she realized that these people must be from the Blood Cloud Tower's Great Flame Dynasty branch. Thinking that it was best to retrieve Xiao Tian while they were distracted, she transformed into a shadowy figure and darted towards him, gesturing for him to grasp her hand. But just then, something unexpected happened. Zhong Ling instantly realized she had fallen into a trap. This is the sixth rank ceiling formation, the soul chain formation. Bound by the formation, Zhong Ling couldn't move. Scarfaced laughed heartily, a prodigy who reached the fifth rank at the age of 16. It's nice to meet you. In this world, cultivation is divided into ten ranks, each with nine levels. As he spoke, Zhong Ling struggled to draw her sword to break the formation. Scarface chuckled. Don't waste your energy. This formation specifically counters your break defense slash. Zhong Ling was taken aback. Who are you? How do you know about it? He smirked. How do I know? How should I know? Slowly, Scarface removed his mask, revealing a sinister face. Moments later, the duo was dragged into a cave. Furious, Zhong Ling shouted, Liang Shou, so, you're still alive. Meanwhile, Xiao Tian nonchalant wiped his hands and stood up. Since we all know each other, we'll be on our way. Liang Shou grabbed Xiao Tian's shoulder, leaving. We're not done yet, pretty boy. Xiao Tian responded with indifference. Is that so? Okay then. Impressed, Liang Shou commented. You're indeed worthy of being the Empress's husband. You've got guts. Suddenly, he produced a cloth pouch. Dissolve this in water and splash it onto the Empress's martial arts arena. Not only will it save your life, but also, he he. Without hesitation, Xiao Tian grabbed the pouch. No problem. Liang Shou, slightly stunned by Xiao Tian's boldness took out a small bottle. Merely giving your word won't suffice. You also have to. Before he could finish, Xiao Tian swiftly took the bottle and downed its contents. This left Liang Shou utterly shocked. Are there still people who willingly seek death in this age? Wiping his mouth, Xiao Tian handed back the empty bottle. Can I go now? If I take too long, it might arouse suspicion from the female guards. That wouldn't be conducive for carrying out your task. Liang Shou stared at the empty bottle, feeling uneasy. What should I do next? This situation is way beyond what I expected. Xiao Tian was equally exasperated. 
stated. I've been so cooperative. Why won't he let me go? Witnessing the situation, Zhong Ling couldn't help but lash out in anger. Despicable. The Empress must be blind to have chosen a spineless man like you. Liang Shou, on the other hand, was hoping for a rift between the two. Idiot. Only those who understand the current situation are the real heroes. Do you really think everyone is as naive as you and your mother, unable to see the bigger picture? Of course. Zhong Ling was aware of the internal and external challenges facing the Great Flame Dynasty. Growing tired of their bickering, Xiao Tian pointed at Zhong Ling and asked, Can I take her and leave now? Liang Shou refused. No, I have some scores to settle with her. That won't work. We came out together. If she doesn't leave with me, I'm as good as dead. At this point, one of Liang Shou's subordinates shouted, Shut up if you don't know how to talk. Seeing Xiao Tian's unyielding stance, the henchman angrily charged at him. Just as Xiao Tian's hair was being grabbed, Zhong Ling cried out in concern, Xiao Tian. After all, the prince was just a regular person with no cultivation. How could he withstand such an attack? But to everyone's surprise, Xiao Tian, looking rather bored, merely yawned, leaving them all dumbstruck. How can he be so nonchalant? A second later, Xiao Tian's face changed. Do you really have to be so handsy? I absolutely despise people touching my hair. With a swift punch, the assailant was instantly vaporized. Everyone present was in shock. That man was a fifth rank expert. As the smoke cleared, there was now a large hole blasted through the cave. With a casual wave of his hand, Xiao Tian unleashed a torrent of fierce energy, vaporizing everyone it touched on the spot. Liang Shou was thrown to the ground by the residual force. Xiao Tian approached, his face expressionless, staring down at him. All I wanted was to be a leisurely prince, to enjoy the simple days. Why wouldn't you let me be? Didn't I cooperate enough? Why did you force me to act? Terrified, Liang Shou dropped to his knees, kowtowing repeatedly. But in the next moment, his form began to disintegrate, turning into ash bit by bit. After settling the matter, Xiao Tian turned to face Zhong Ling, who was already stunned by the scene before her. In a panic, she pleaded, Prince, I realize my mistake. I promise it won't happen again. Before she could finish, Xiao Tian effortlessly shattered the formation with his hand. He then joked, Are you an idiot? Stay here and don't move. I'll cover our tracks. With that, Xiao Tian vanished. Relieved, Zhong Ling thought to herself, At least I'm still alive. But her relief was short-lived when she saw a mountain suddenly rise into the air in the distance. She tried to comfort herself, thinking, At least it's not the prince coming back. Just a hopping and jumping mountain. Wait, since when do mountains hop and jump? Taking a closer look, she was shocked to see that it was Xiao Tian holding the mountain. What kind of creature is he? She thought, stunned. Could the prince be a legendary being beyond the 10th rank? As Zhong Ling was lost in thought, the massive mountain crashed down, covering the entire cave behind her. No one would ever guess that there once was a cave beneath that mountain. Dusting off his hands, Xiao Tian grinned, done. No traces of my actions left. Zhong Ling felt as if her soul had left her body. At that moment, all she could think of was how grateful she was to Prince Xiao Tian for showing her what it meant to leave no traces behind. As Xiao Tian turned to leave, he said, little girl, just say you saved me later. Zhong Ling wanted to say something in protest, but before she could, Xiao Tian turned back with a cold glare. Didn't your mother ever tell you to listen carefully to your elders? Like a cat whose tail had been stepped on. Zhong Ling shivered. The next moment, she knelt and kowtowed, I promise. I won't say a word out of place. Xiao Tian then helped her up, saying, let's go. Just then, the sound of footsteps emerged from the nearby jungle. The approaching party was the female soldiers from the Great Flame Dynasty. Prince, General Zhong, are you both alright? Xiao Tian yawned in response. Zhong Ling immediately caught on and informed the group, the bandits have been taken care of by me, rest assured. With a wave, Xiao Tian added, everyone's worked hard, let's go back and continue our barbecue. The lead soldier, named Lu Yan, informed Xiao Tian, Prince, bandits in this mountain, it might not be safe. Xiao Tian dismissed her concerns, it's okay, this young lady took care of all the bandits. Upon hearing this, the female soldiers exchanged worried glances. The young general despises those who indulge in pleasure like Prince Xiao Tian, and now he's even calling her little girl. We should try to stop the general from hitting the prince later. To their surprise, Zhong Ling had no reaction and obediently followed Xiao Tian without a word. Seeing the soldiers still in shock, she turned and urged them, what are you waiting for? Hurry up! Everyone was stunned, wondering when the young general had become so agreeable. Soon after, a bonfire was lit, and a pig was set up for roasting. Xiao Tian beckoned, little girl, do you have a knife? Without hesitation, Zhong Ling handed over a short knife. Xiao Tian cut a piece of meat and tasted it, commenting on its tenderness and juiciness. All the while, Zhong Ling attentively stayed by his side with a smile. Several female soldiers behind the two were mentally collapsing. It's over, it's over. The young general's mind must have broken. Not long after, Xiao Tian suddenly turned to Zhong Ling. Little girl, those people who took me earlier, are they acquaintances of yours? Zhong Ling's face immediately became serious. Yes. The leader is named Liang Shou. He used to be the bandit leader of Smoke Wolf Stronghold. He was a challenge set by my mother before my coming of age ceremony. He was supposed to be publicly executed a year ago, but somehow became an assassin for Blood Cloud Tower. Hearing about the coming of age ceremony, Xiao Tian looked surprised. How old are you? Zhong Ling blushed slightly and looked 
down. I'm 16. 16? I must criticize your mother for this. You're so young, and she's having you do these things. Zhong Ling nodded obediently, not adding any more. The female soldiers nearby were discussing. Their goal this time by kidnapping the prince was the empress. We don't know who's behind this. They failed this mission, but within seven days, they'll surely send more people. Hearing this, Xiao Tian was taken aback. They'll come again in seven days? One of the soldiers quickly suggested, Prince, why don't you temporarily stay in the palace? The palace's protective array is very powerful. The Blood Cloud Tower assassins wouldn't dare to break in. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian immediately decided, I'll stay in the palace. The soldiers were rendered speechless, wondering just how afraid of death the prince really was. However, Zhong Ling was pondering just how reluctant the prince was to get involved. After their barbecue on the mountain, Xiao Tian proposed a walk elsewhere to help digest their meal. As they walked further away, two imperial guards began whispering among themselves, Do you think the young general likes the pretty boy type? Why is she so patient with the prince? Don't gossip. We can't fathom the young general's thoughts. I understand. But with what's happening now, I wonder how many more commoners will suffer. Standing on the edge of a cliff, Xiao Tian looked into the distance. He then turned to Zhong Ling and asked, What were those imperial guards discussing earlier about the commoners suffering? What's that about? Zhong Ling glanced at the group of imperial guards with an expressionless face before explaining, With Blood Cloud Tower failing their mission this time, they might proceed as they usually do, slaughtering the commoners to force the Great Flame Dynasty to pay protection money. Xiao Tian looked puzzled. Protection money? What do you mean? She continued, In the past, some upright officials in the dynasty would interfere with the interests of powerful local families. These families would then place bounties on them through Blood Cloud Tower. The dynasty would protect these officials, and when the Blood Cloud Tower couldn't get to them, they'd slaughter the commoners to force the dynasty to yield. The dynasty would then have to pay protection money to the Blood Cloud Tower to get them to cancel their assignment. Now that their mission to capture you failed, they will certainly try again, and if they continue to fail, they'll resort to massacring the commoners for the protection money. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian was furious. He originally came from an assassin background, but he would never harm innocent civilians. He asked Zhong Ling, Given what you know about our empress, if she thinks my abilities are decent enough, would she ask me to take action? She probably would. Zhong Ling responded, looking taken aback. I think you might have a misconception about the word decent. Feeling frustrated, Xiao Tian thought about the dilemma he was facing. If he took action, he'd reveal his true strength. But if he didn't, the civilians would be slaughtered. This issue arose because of him. If Zi Ruoyan decides to dismiss him, his comfortable life of being provided for would be over. This was a terrifying thought. I must defeat every single member of the Blood Cloud Tower. Zhong Ling was speechless. Was the prince trying to eliminate the problem entirely since he couldn't find a solution to it? Then, Xiao Tian glanced around and, seeing no one nearby, suddenly wrapped an arm around Zhong Ling's slender waist. With a slight exertion of his feet, they shot into the sky with a booming sound. Zhong Ling was utterly shocked. The prince was able to fly so swiftly without using a hint of spiritual energy, relying only on his physical strength. But soon, she couldn't even think, her mouth emitting only hysterical screams. A system prompt quickly warned Xiao Tian that Zhong Ling's body was reaching a critical point and advised him to slow down. Shortly after, Xiao Tian stopped. We're here. Zhong Ling, looking at the empty space in front of her, asked with confusion, where are we? The next moment, Xiao Tian clenched his fist and slammed it into the space in front of them. An explosion of intense energy erupted, followed by the sound of shattering. A barrier was broken, revealing an island floating in the sky. Zhong Ling couldn't help but exclaim, it's a flying spiritual artifact. No wonder the Empress couldn't find it. It was in the sky. What do we do next? Do we sneak in? Xiao Tian smirked slightly. Sneak in? That's not possible. He then leaped high and burst directly through the entrance. The hall inside was immediately filled with the aura of the Blood Cloud Tower's entourage. Zhong Ling felt numb. The weakest here is at the fifth rank. A woman, with a seductive smile on her face, said, Such a strange face is rare to see. Who are you? Why have you come to our Blood Cloud Tower? Before she could finish, a raging energy surged, engulfing the entire hall. Witnessing the scenes of blood splattering, Zhong Ling's eyes widened. The prince had truly shown through action the meaning of act rather than talk. At that moment, three more figures appeared in the hall. Who dares to act recklessly in front of the empress? Zhong Ling couldn't help but shout, There are two silver assassins and a gold assassin here. The system puppy also provided information. Silver assassins are qualified only at the seventh rank, while gold assassins require a 100% mission completion rate. The gold assassin, rubbing his wrist, chuckled. Zhong Ling, the legitimate daughter of Zhong Li Huang and the prince of the Great Flame Dynasty? Impressive. You seem quite capable. It seems you're forcing my hand. He instructed the two beside him. Don't kill him. The prince still has value to us. Send the head of the one named Zhong Ling to the northern front lines. I imagine Zhong Li Huang will go mad. It'll be beneficial for our war strategy. Listening to his arrogant words, Zhong Ling could only grit her teeth. Xiao Tian smiled slightly. Such detailed intelligence. You have insiders in the Great Flame Dynasty, don't you? Your ambitions seem quite large. The gold assassin pulled out a dagger. Our headquarters has had its eye 
eyes on the Great Flame Dynasty for a while now. Come on, let me see just how useless this prince really is. Before he could finish, the gold assassin's face froze. Xiao Tian had made his move, or more accurately, exerted his power. The entire Blood Cloud Tower division was enveloped in his imposing presence. The three assassins felt dizzy and overwhelmed, and even Zhong Ling couldn't hold on. The gold assassin fell to his knees. Sir, perhaps there has been a misunderstanding. I only wanted to live a peaceful, righteous life. Yet you sent people to bother me. Aren't you just forcing me to destroy your headquarters? As he spoke, Xiao Tian clenched his fist and threw a punch, blasting a hole through the main hall. Seeing the massive hole in the hall, the two silver assassins silently cursed their intelligence department. You call this monster useless? Xiao Tian didn't even bother dealing with the remaining two. He simply withdrew his overwhelming aura and then helped the stunned Zhong Ling to her feet. Staring blankly, Zhong Ling asked Xiao Tian, are you still going to their headquarters? Yes, it's necessary to remove this malignant tumor. Following that, with a punch, he smashed open a wall revealing a stash of gold and silver treasures that the Blood Cloud Tower had hoarded. He instructed the system puppy to gather all of it, commenting, after all the harm they've done to me, asking for some compensation for mental damages isn't too much, is it? Zhong Ling was in shock and replied, not at all. Who would dare say you're overstepping? Once finished, Xiao Tian suddenly crushed a stone talisman and transformed its formation, offering it to Zhong Ling. She recognized it and exclaimed, this is the Mountain Guardian Talisman? Prince, you shouldn't. This seventh level defensive talisman is too precious. Xiao Tian explained, the Blood Cloud Tower headquarters is quite far. I need to travel fast to get there before dinner and I'm concerned about your safety. With this talisman, there shouldn't be a problem. Before Zhong Ling could process this, Xiao Tian had already hoisted her onto his shoulder. He shot up into the sky. Once again, the air was filled with Zhong Ling's screams. She hadn't expected Xiao Tian's speed to be so intense that even the seventh level defensive talisman was struggling to handle it. Shortly after, they arrived at the Blood Cloud Tower headquarters. As Xiao Tian landed, the protective formation of the Blood Cloud Tower shattered like an eggshell. He remarked, as expected of the top assassin organization, the scent of blood here is thick. Moments later, a group of people surrounded them, shouting, how audacious, how dare you intrude into the Blood Cloud Tower. Then, a man and a woman slowly approached. The man smirked, seems there's no shortage of people seeking death these days. Zhong Ling recognized the powerful aura of the two gold assassins, but was soon distracted by a voice from the rooftop. I had wondered who would suddenly visit, but never expected the Prince of the Great Flame Dynasty and General Zhong. Finishing his statement, the figure jumped down, and upon landing, everyone immediately knelt and proclaimed, Greetings, Tower Master. Zhong Ling whispered to Xiao Tian, That's the Tower Master of the Blood Cloud Tower, the King of Assassins in the Southern Wilderness, Yun Zunlai. Xiao Tian nonchalantly inquired, Is the Blood Cloud Tower particularly interested in the Great Flame Dynasty? Yun Zunlai responded with a slight smile, Yes, but I am more interested in you right now. The useless prince mentioned in our intelligence has come knocking so quickly. Perhaps you're closer to the secret of the Great Flame Dynasty. Men, seize him, but be gentle, don't harm him. Unexpectedly, the burly man from earlier motioned for everyone to hold back. Wait, let me have some fun with him first. Facing the provocation, Xiao Tian was deep in thought, considering the over a hundred people present. When it's time to act, I must not let any of them escape to avoid information leak. Seeing Xiao Tian's silence, Wang Gang stepped forward to taunt him further. Look at this pretty boy. Seems like the Empress of the Great Flame Dynasty has a thing for young, pretty faces. What do you think? Will he cry if I land a punch on him? Several subordinates laughed uproariously. However, Xiao Tian, with a defiant face, pointed to his own head and challenged, Come on, aim here. Everyone present was stunned by his audacity. He continued, What's the matter? Afraid? Chicken? Huang Gang, enraged, retorted, Who are you calling chicken? With that, he delivered a fierce punch straight to Xiao Tian's face. A loud thud echoed, leaving two of the underlings and even the tower master Yun Zunlai looking worried, fearing that Huang Gang might have killed Xiao Tian with that single punch. However, as the dust settled, they discovered that Huang Gang's punch had been blocked, and to everyone's astonishment, Xiao Tian had stopped the powerful blow using just one finger. Xiao Tian quipped, didn't you have your breakfast? Can you put in some effort, please? Huang Gang was infuriated. He gathered all his strength and threw another punch, but the result remained the same. Xiao Tian blocked it effortlessly with just a single finger. Waving his finger dismissively, Xiao Tian taunted, come on, what's this? Give it some effort. Blinded by rage, Huang Gang swung wildly, punch after punch. In desperation, he even burned his essence blood, concentrating its power in his fist. With a thunderous crash, he threw his most powerful punch yet. A golden aura enveloped Xiao Tian, and to everyone's shock, Wang Gang was sent flying, embedding him into a distant wall. His body was tattered, and blood dripped from his wounds. With a stern face, Xiao Tian mockingly said, That's an interesting technique. Almost got yourself killed there. Hearing this, tears streamed down Wang Gang's face. He angrily shouted, Those damn fools in the intelligence department, are they all brainless? What kind of rubbish information did they gather? Watching the tears in Huang Gang's eyes, Xiao Tian was somewhat speechless. Don't they think things through? If I could find this place, what
What did they think it implied? Puppy then explained that because Xiao Tian's body was still strengthening and couldn't cultivate, he was perceived as a regular person with no realm, leading to these misjudgments. Just then, other islands belonging to Blood Cloud Tower emerged. Xiao Tian thought, it's time to take action. In an instant, multiple attacks targeted the newly appeared islands. Before they could even stabilize, they were blasted into nothingness. The scene left everyone present stunned. Is this even human? Immediately, everyone began deploying their magical concealment techniques. They believed that by splitting up and fleeing, they might have a chance to escape. Huang Gang, though injured, was determined that if even one of them could escape, they needed to spread the news about this monstrous being. He refused to believe that among the dozens of assassins present, not a single one could get away. With a cold expression, Xiao Tian remained silent. He instantly appeared in front of one person, pushing him away with a palm strike. Then, in a blink, he was behind another, swiftly taking him down. A series of rapid explosions ensued. Left in utter disbelief, Wang Gang was paralyzed in shock, thinking, how? How is this possible? The woman who was previously by Yun Zunlai's side now approached Xiao Tian. Your Excellency is truly unparalleled in might. Could you spare me so I can serve you? Zhong Ling, observing from a distance, recognized the woman as Yu Yan, who was especially adept at seducing her targets. Once they were completely entranced by her, she would turn on them, eating their hearts. Could Xiao Tian resist such temptation? As Zhong Ling pondered, she was shocked by what she witnessed next. Xiao Tian, furious, reprimanded Yu Yan. Such a wicked mind you have. Yu Yan, taken aback, asked, My lord, what are you talking about? Xiao Tian replied, You offering your service is one thing, but how would the Empress view me? If she misunderstands and thinks I've been disloyal, what will become of my laid-back prince life? Labeling her intentions as malicious, Xiao Tian struck her down. To her last breath, Yu Yan didn't understand her absurd demise. Managing the curse, you idiot. Only Yun Zunlai remained, hiding under the bed, hoping that the treasure vault upstairs would divert Xiao Tian's attention. He had thought Xiao Tian was the secret of the Great Flame Dynasty, as all intelligence had pegged him as an ordinary man, not this invincible force. The floating islands, which Yun Zunlai had chanced upon in his younger days, were sturdy enough to withstand even a tier 10 force, but Xiao Tian destroyed them with ease. From the texts inside the relics where Yun Zunlai had found these treasures, they belonged to the ancient Great Flame Dynasty. Hence, every faction was eyeing the dynasty, especially secrets from that long-lost era. Feeling a sudden quiet outside, Yun Zunlai sighed in relief, thinking Xiao Tian had left. But in the next moment, Xiao Tian appeared before him, waving in greeting. Stunned, Yun Zunlai blurted out an expletive. Amused, Xiao Tian said, What are you, a child, hiding under a bed? Just as Xiao Tian reached to grab him, Yun Zunlai used a secret technique to transform into smoke and flee. Upon escaping the floating island, he detonated it, thinking, Now, let's see how you get out. But to his dismay, Xiao Tian soon appeared, grabbing him by the neck. Where do you think you're going? Xiao Tian, holding Yun Zunlai like a small chicken, brought him back to the floating island. With a bewildered expression, Yun Zunlai knelt on the ground. The scene was almost comical. This powerful individual was found hiding under a bed. Zhong Ling was completely flabbergasted by the turn of events. It felt so surreal. If she hadn't witnessed it herself, who would believe that the renowned assassin king of the southern wilderness was defeated so easily? Yun Zunlai was equally baffled. I had concealed my aura, held my breath, and even stopped my heartbeat. How did you find me? Xiao Tian replied with a smile. Simple. I heard the sound of your blood flowing. Both of them were stunned. Before Yun Zunlai could recover, Xiao Tian questioned him about his interest in the Great Flame Dynasty. Sweating profusely, Yun Zunlai bargained, If you spare my life, I'll provide you with the information. Without waiting for a response, Xiao Tian swiftly snapped Yun Zunlai's neck. Never mind, no need to ask anymore. Zhong Ling stared at Yun Zunlai's lifeless body. This prince is terrifying. I want to go home. Soon after, a stone tablet descended from the sky, landing in a lake. Inscribed on it were the bold words, acting on heaven's behalf, King of Hell. Xiao Tian, with Zhong Ling in tow, gracefully landed beside the stone tablet. Feeling pleased after resolving the issue, he cheerfully suggested, let's go home and have a meal. Curiously, Zhong Ling asked about the name King of Hell. It's just a moniker I used back home, Xiao Tian replied nonchalantly. There's a saying there, the King of Hell claims souls at the third watch of the night. Who dares to keep them till the fifth? Oh, and by the way, don't talk recklessly when we return, okay? Startled, Zhong Ling nodded hastily. Seeing her obedient response, Xiao Tian affectionately ruffled her hair, saying, little ones should listen to adults. Blushing, Zhong Ling tidied her hair and retorted, I'm not that young, you know. Without looking back, Xiao Tian dismissed her comment with a wave of his hand. Okay, okay, you're very grown up. Hearing this, Zhong Ling became even more embarrassed. A moment later, the duo returned to where the Imperial Guard was stationed. Xiao Tian, pretending to be relieved, patted his chest and exclaimed, I found it. That was close. It's the token of love given to me by the Emperor. Zhong Ling was speechless, thinking, typical prince, lying without batting an eyelid. Shortly after, the group lined up, and Xiao Tian loudly announced, All right, let's head home. The head of the Imperial Guard, Lu Yan, looked displeased. This prince is so frivolous. We don't even know if the scum from the Blood Cloud Tower have left yet. Young general, you were reckless.
us just now. This isn't like you. Why did you indulge the prince's whims today? Zhong Ling, facing Lu Yan, someone who had watched her grow up, could only smile and remain silent. Suddenly, she seemed to recall something and asked, Sister Lu, did you think of him because of our encounter with the Blood Cloud Tower assassins? Lu Yan looked down, not responding, but her face showed clear anguish. Zhong Ling sighed deeply, if it weren't for your fiancé holding back the assassins from the Blood Cloud Tower all by himself, that village would have been completely wiped out. She had heard her mother recount how, when Lu Yan led the rescue party, they found a blood-covered man at the entrance of the village who had seemingly passed on, but still stood firm. Even the emperor once said, he was the backbone of the Great Flame. By the time Zhong Ling finished her story, tears streamed down Lu Yan's face. It's in the past, let's not talk about it, she murmured. Ahead, Xiao Tian suddenly smiled. One of the imperial guards curiously asked, Prince, did something good happen? Xiao Tian turned his head, not really, I just felt that I did something meaningful earlier. So, rest in peace. One day, as Zhong Ling was getting ready to leave the house in a hurry, her father, Zhong Yang Ming, couldn't help but ask where she was headed. She candidly replied, I'm going to the palace to take care of Prince Xiao Tian. Zhong Yang Ming looked puzzled. That prince is known for his indulgence and idleness. Besides, he has the imperial guard to protect him in the palace. Why are you so concerned about him? To his surprise, Zhong Ling seemed rather upset. You've never spent time with Prince Xiao Tian. How can you judge him without knowing him? Without another word, she left, leaving Zhong Yang Ming completely baffled. Just yesterday, she seemed to dislike the prince. What changed overnight? This doesn't bode well. At this very moment, Prince Xiao Tian was leisurely enjoying his afternoon. Not only did he have maidens feeding him fruits, but he also used a system to watch Ultraman fight monsters. Such a life of luxury was more than just delightful. Unfortunately, the head of the Imperial Guard, Lu Yan, didn't appreciate this sight. The Emperor is on the front line battling, and yet her prince indulges in such pleasures? It's infuriating. Just then, young General Zhong Ling arrived, but she looked different from what Lu Yan remembered. Zhong Ling, with her blushing face and a brilliant red dress, looked more radiant than ever. Xiao Tian was taken aback. Little girl, what are you doing here? With a serious expression, Zhong Ling responded, I'm here to protect Prince. Waving his hands in refusal, Xiao Tian retorted, Go where you please. Who asked you to guard anything? What if you accidentally reveal my secret? The room fell silent. Everyone looked at Xiao Tian, thinking, Is the prince courting death? With young general's temperament, who will be able to stop her later? Unexpectedly, Zhong Ling, with her face flushed, firmly said, I won't leave. I will stay right here. This is the emperor's order, she added. The imperial guards behind her looked at her in disbelief. Is young general out of her mind? Come to think of it, Prince Xiao Tian is indeed handsome. Not only did he bewitch the emperor, but now even young general seems to have fallen for him. Just then, someone reported from the doorway that a floating island bearing the insignia of Blood Cloud Tower had fallen from the sky. Could it be the main headquarters of Blood Cloud Tower that the emperor has been desperately searching for? Zhong Ling rushed over to inquire. What happened? Lu Yan's face was aghast. Young general, one of the branch towers of Blood Cloud Tower has been destroyed. Zhong Ling responded nonchalantly. I see. What else? Seeing her so unconcerned, Lu Yan was at a loss for words. Isn't this significant? Young general, aren't you even a little surprised? Realizing she might have appeared too calm, Zhong Ling awkwardly replied with a chuckle. The destruction of a Blood Cloud Tower branch is good news. Xiao Tian watched this exchange and thought to himself, she's overdoing it. That act might give her away any moment now. Lu Yan, with a serious expression, remarked, under normal circumstances, it would indeed be good news. But now that one of Blood Cloud Tower's branches was destroyed within the Great Flame Dynasty, what if their main force decides to attack us? Moreover, what if their leader, known as the King of Assassins, causes trouble for the Emperor in the northern border? Xiao Tian and Zhong Ling had to stifle their laughter. Is she talking about that King of Assassins who hides under the bed? Lu Yan was flabbergasted. Young General is laughing? Shouldn't she be more concerned? Unable to contain her curiosity, she asked Zhong Ling, Young General, why are you laughing? In such a critical time, have you lost your sense of duty? Realizing her lapse, and noticing the disapproving looks from both of them, Zhong Ling began to stutter, struggling for an explanation. Just then, Xiao Tian stepped in, tapping her lightly on the head. I heard everything. The nation is in crisis, and you're laughing and joking? What kind of behavior is that? Relieved, Zhong Ling thought. That was close. Almost gave everything away. Xiao Tian then addressed Lu Yan. Commander Lu, she's still young and doesn't understand the gravity of the situation. Please don't hold it against her. Moreover, the Great Flame Dynasty is in its prime. Don't worry too much. Now, you can get back to your duties. I'll make sure to teach this little one a lesson. Subsequently, Xiao Tian took Zhong Ling away, leaving a group of imperial guards discussing amongst themselves. Commander, if I recall correctly, you watched the young general grow up, didn't you? Why does it seem like you're the outsider now? They've only known each other for less than two days. Lu Yan replied gravely, it seems the situation is more serious than I thought. Quickly, write a letter to the general and inform Minister Zhong as well. That morning, Zhong Ling almost gave herself away and was reprimanded by Xiao Tian. However, However, in a surprising move, she suddenly knelt before him, asking him to take her as his disciple. Unfortunately, Xiao Tian's 
power wasn't cultivated traditionally and he couldn't teach her his abilities. Time passed leisurely. Half a month later, Xiao Tian was once again roasting wild boar on a mountain with Zhong Ling by his side. Suddenly, an imperial guard rushed towards them, excitedly announcing to Lu Yan, Commander, the latest news from Astral Pavilion is that Blood Cloud Tower has been destroyed. All their powerful members were executed, and we have their bodies as evidence. Lu Yan was in shock. For the past half month, she'd been worried about an attack from Blood Cloud Tower, and now she's being told they're gone? Tears filled her eyes, realizing someone had avenged her fiancé. Beside her, Zhong Ling also thanked Xiao Tian sincerely. However, chewing on his wild boar meat, Xiao Tian replied, It has nothing to do with me. If you have nothing to do, help me cut the meat. Zhong Ling murmured something about him being uninteresting, but still obediently took up a knife to assist. Elsewhere, at the northern border, Empress was chatting with General Zhong Li Huang. That old man is really stubborn. The last time I injured him with my sword energy, if he comes again, I'll finish him off. Zhong Li Huang affirmed, Of course, your majesty is unparalleled in the world. A mere old man is no match for you. Just then, a soldier presented two letters. These were from Lu Yan and Zhong Yang Ming, sent half a month ago. As Zhong Li Huang opened the letters, she was taken aback. The Blood Cloud Tower's branch had been destroyed within the Great Flame Dynasty. Empress immediately looked concerned. This isn't good. The main headquarters of the Blood Cloud Tower might take action. But in the next second, Zhong Li Huang's face turned furious. Empress took the other letter and read, Zhong Ling is infatuated with the prince's looks and dresses up meticulously every day to accompany him. Empress knew that Xiao Tian was indeed handsome, but no matter how handsome, this shouldn't happen, right? Zhong Li Huang, in his anger, slammed a fist into the stone pillar in front of him. That damn girl. If I don't spank her so hard that she blossoms when I get back, then I'm not her mother. But suddenly, a loud noise came from afar. Zhong Li Huang was puzzled. Did his punch really have such power? Everyone looked up to see that the southern barbarians were launching another attack. An old man wearing a mask led the charge, proclaiming, With my power, I transform into divine light. Let my soldiers march, straight into enemy territory. As soon as he finished speaking, a horde of barbarian soldiers roared and charged forward. Zhong Li Huang quickly told the empress, Your majesty, leave the defense of the city to me. You should deal with that old man. Without hesitation, empress approached the barbarian elder and shouted, Jia Su, do you truly wish for death? The elder replied, I'm merely trying to secure a future for our barbarian kingdom. I won't die until I succeed. Empress swiftly thrust her sword at the elder, proclaiming, The future of the barbarian kingdom will be ruined by your hands. The elder struggled to defend himself and was clearly outmatched. He spat out a mouthful of blood. Seeing this, Empress confidently said, You shouldn't have left the barbarian kingdom. Without the protection of the nation's grand formation, you're no match for me. But to her surprise, the elder suddenly smirked, truly worthy of being the great flame empress, unmatched in grace and power. Just then, something unexpected happened. A formation began to emerge between them. From the elder's palms, a blood-red power continuously emanated, and in an instant, the formation surrounded the empress. Is this a ceiling formation? Empress questioned. So you spat out blood earlier to inscribe this formation in the air? The elder's face lit up with satisfaction. Exactly. With me anchoring this formation, it will trap you for at least several days. Black Soul Hall has paid a handsome sum to hold you back. By now, the poisonous marsh elder from Black Soul Hall must have entered the Great Flame region. What a pity for the innocent citizens of the Great Flame Imperial City. Empress's aura exploded with rage. Jia Su, if the lives in Great Flame are lost, I will make your entire barbarian kingdom pay for it. On the ground, Zhong Li Huang was fighting valiantly, attempting to rush towards Empress. However, Empress suddenly shouted, Don't come closer. Defend the border at all costs and prevent the barbarians from breaking through. At this moment, Empress was seated, pondering, I don't understand. Is it worth it for you? By using this blood-burning ceiling spirit formation, you won't have the chance to progress further in your cultivation. It's absolutely worth it. The elder responded, The waters of the Great Flame Dynasty run too deep. Our barbarian kingdom just wants to keep our distance. The reward we received is our capital to do so. Hearing this, Empress took a deep breath. The vengeance from Blood Cloud Tower's headquarters and the threat of Black Soul Hall were indeed disturbing. However, she needed to stay calm, think clearly, and find a way out to aid the Imperial City. The elder remarked, slightly surprised, indeed worthy of being the empress. You managed to calm down and strategize so quickly. It's a pity for the innocent citizens, but I have no choice. Everything I do is for the barbarian kingdom. Elsewhere, atop the ruins of Blood Cloud Tower, a teleportation array was activated. A young man said to the elderly man next to him, Master, do you think this was done by the Great Flame Dynasty? No, they lack the capability. Let's go. With Empress held back by our old friend, this is our golden opportunity. We head to Green Flame Mountain. Unbeknownst to them, Xiao Tian was already there there, living a relaxed and luxurious life. That day, as Xiao Tian was barbecuing on the mountain, he consumed an entire wild boar. Zhong Ling and the group of imperial guards watched in amazement. He can eat so much, they didn't know that due to Xiao Tian's immense power, he needed to eat continuously to maintain his energy levels. Thankfully, Empress was providing for him. Otherwise, he would have been 
so broke that he'd resort to eating dirt. At that moment, Xiao Tian suddenly realized that the leader of the Imperial Guard, Lu Yan, was missing. Zhong Ling quickly explained. She went to Green Flame Town to get wine. Green Flame Town? Isn't that the town where her fiancé defended to his death? I believe she wants to convey the good news of Blood Cloud Tower's destruction to her deceased fiancé. After a moment of thought, he said, let's go there together. We can take a look around Green Flame Town. Zhong Ling expressed her concern. What if Lu Yan returns and we miss each other? Pointing to the group of Imperial Guards, Xiao Tian replied, it's simple. You all stay here. If you don't see us within half an hour, pack up and head back to the palace. The Imperial Guards wanted to object, but Xiao Tian cut them off. Don't worry. With Zhong Ling by my side, everything will be all right. Elsewhere, at the entrance of Green Flame Town, a statue had been activated, forming a protective barrier around the town. The leader of the Imperial Guard, Lu Yan, was violently thrown against the statue by someone. Struggling to her feet, she fixed a fierce gaze on the two individuals standing before her. The two cloaked figures spoke with disdain. We've long heard that the Imperial Guards of the Great Flame Dynasty are seasoned warriors who have been through countless battles. But from what we see now, they seem rather unimpressive. The two individuals were none other than Poisonous Marsh Elder from Black Soul Hall and his disciple. Lu Yan instantly understood the situation. Black Soul Hall had collaborated with Barbarian Kingdom to force Empress into a direct confrontation, and then they would take advantage of her absence to slaughter the people of Great Flame. The Poisonous Marsh Elder was named Xiang Yuan Bai, while his disciple was called Guang Mao. Xiang Yuan Bai instructed his disciple, dispose of her quickly. We'll use the people of Green Flame Town for a blood sacrifice, and we mustn't alert anyone else. Rest assured, Master, I will ensure she departs comfortably. Gu Hong Mao replied confidently. With a swift motion, he drew a long sword and lunged directly at Lu Yan, aiming for her throat. In a desperate move, Lu Yan quickly drew her sword to block, but she was still struck on the shoulder. Gu Hong Mao took advantage of the situation and lifted his leg, kicking Lu Yan with great force. She flew back, slamming hard into the statue, blood filling her mouth. Gu Hong Mao stepped forward, raising his hand to deliver the final blow. Lu Yan could only helplessly close her eyes, silently thinking of her late husband, reassuring herself that as his wife, she had not shamed him. Fortunately, at that moment, Xiao Tian arrived. He flicked a stone towards Gu Hong Mao, who sensed the danger and tried to retreat. However, the force from the stone still sent him flying a good distance away. Lu Yan, eyes still closed, wondered why the fatal strike hadn't come yet. To her surprise, she heard a voice beside her. What do you intend to do with the head of my Imperial Guard? Stunned, Lu Yan murmured, Prince. Xiao Tian looked furious. Young lady, slice him up. Zhong Ling unsheathed her sword and stepped forward. Leave it to me. Without hesitation, she swung her sword directly at Gu Hong Mao, who barely managed to raise his hand to block her attack. As Lu Yan observed the situation, she wondered how she had mistakenly thought that it was the prince who saved her. It should have been the young general. When Xiao Tian called out to her and got no response, he directly reached out, pinching her chin. From a system, he took out a pill and shoved it into Lu Yan's mouth, ordering, swallow the pill. Lu Yan covered her mouth, thinking that the prince wasn't as annoying as she had initially thought. She then stood up, urging Xiao Tian, Prince, have the young general take you away quickly. That poisonous marsh elder is a seventh tier expert. You'll be in grave danger. Xiao Tian consulted his system, asking, Puppy, is this old guy really that strong? The system replied, Target is at the seventh tier, eightfold peak, and is proficient in poison techniques. Confused, Xiao Tian remarked, But in my perception, all three of them seem nearly the same strength. How is that possible? The system explained, To you, their strength is inconsequential. In front of you, they are just frail and pitiable beings. Hearing this, Xiao Tian became slightly concerned. With Zhong Ling only at the fifth tier, she definitely couldn't win. What to do? Lu Yan observed from the side. If she discovered my abilities and told the Empress, the Empress would undoubtedly seek my assistance. If I were to decline, I would certainly face punishment. Seeing Xiao Tian lost in thought, Lu Yan comforted, Prince, there's no need to worry. I'll protect you, even if it costs me my life. Xiao Tian laughed. You just took a pill to heal, and now you're eager to sacrifice yourself? What for? Before Lu Yan could reply, she noticed that her arm was healed. She thought, this must be a life-saving pill the Empress gave to the prince. It seemed the prince wasn't so useless after all. Realizing the situation, Lu Yan told Xiao Tian, Prince, the young general cannot be harmed in a place like this. I will help you buy some time to escape. The royal city has protective formations. Even the poisonous marsh elder cannot break through. As long as we wait for the Empress to return, she will surely avenge us. At that moment, Zhong Ling suddenly unleashed her sword intent prototype, sparks ignite the planes. Once this sword intent prototype is formed, it means invincibility at the same level. Gu Hong Mao found it hard to accept. She's younger than me. I can accept her being of a higher realm, but she has understood the sword intent prototype. Why? Why is this? As he spoke, he thrust his sword at Zhong Ling. But Zhong Ling clearly saw that Gu Hong Mao's sword technique was messy. With one swing of her sword, a radiant arc of light struck Gu Hong Mao directly. He immediately lost his resistance and knelt on the ground. Zhong Ling approached him slowly and told
taunted. Someone of your caliber dares to run wild in great flame? Surrender your life. As she raised her hand to deliver the final blow, a small portal suddenly opened in front of her. Several venomous snakes lunged out with their mouths wide open, aiming for Zhongling. She hastily dropped her sword and retreated, narrowly avoiding their bites. The sword clattered to the ground, emitting wisps of green smoke, a clear sign of deadly poison. If her reaction had been even a tad slower, her hand might have been lost. Gu Hongmao returned to the side of the poisonous marsh elder. There's always someone better. Do you see it now? Gu Hongmao bowed slightly, replying, I see it now, master. The poisonous marsh elder then turned his gaze to Zhong Ling. Little girl, you're quite brave, daring not to flee in my presence. As for this great flame prince, although he's a weakling, he does have a handsome face. No wonder the empress chose him as her consort. Zhong Ling, with a hint of schadenfreude, commented, this pitiful fellow, even facing death, continues to babble. You all have no idea how terrifying the prince truly is. However, when she turned around, she was shocked to see Xiao Tian casually drinking wine. Xiao Tian then feigned a cowardly demeanor and pleaded, Poisonous Marsh Elder, I've long heard of your renowned reputation. I'm well aware today doesn't bode well for me. So, I would like to offer a secret of the Empress in exchange for my life. Hearing this, the leader of the Imperial Guard, Lu Yan, looked at him incredulously. Prince, you. Only Zhong Ling was aware of Xiao Tian's penchant for mischief. She thought, it seems like Sister Lu really believed him. I must reassure her, or she might get hurt by Prince's antics. Approaching Lu Yan, Zhong Ling grabbed her wrist and whispered, Sister Lu, the prince has his own considerations. Do not act rashly. There are certain things I can't tell you now. Lu Yan was bewildered, thinking, when did the young general become so irrational? The poisonous marsh elder watched the scene unfold, finding it amusing. The empress's secret? I can agree to that. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian continued, then, allow the two of them to leave first. This way, even if you decide to kill me, at least the two of them will survive. Lu Yan was taken aback, overwhelmed by emotions. He's trying to save us first. How can I agree to this? Prince, Lu Yan interjected. Why don't you tell me the secret, and I'll stay behind on your behalf? Xiao Tian cut her off sharply. Nonsense. Do you think the elder here is not sharp-witted? I'm afraid of death and would spill the secret if left behind. You're not afraid, but what use are you if you stay behind? Why can't this brainless person just stick to the script? How am I supposed to make my move if you don't leave? At this moment, the poisonous marsh elder spoke. It's not up to you here. You have no choice. The only option in front of you is to spill everything you know. If I'm pleased with what I hear, I might just spare your life. Zhong Ling felt a headache coming on, thinking, this old geezer must be tired of living. Lu Yan, angered, shouted, Xiao Yuan Bai, do not push us too far. Suddenly, Xiao Tian burst out laughing. You really, leave me speechless. With that, Xiao Tian unleashed a surge of power, causing the surrounding space to warp. Sensing this horrifying energy, the poisonous marsh elder began to stutter, unable to form words. Xiao Tian's aura grew increasingly fierce, causing the ground to crack. Even nearby mountains began to tremble and shake. The poisonous marsh elder, in his fear, fell to the ground, staring in terror as Xiao Tian approached step by step. Each step he took echoed with a deafening boom. From his elevated position, Xiao Tian looked down at the elder and said, I truly don't understand. Why won't people like you ever listen to reason? I really didn't want to reveal my true power. All I wanted was to divert this Imperial Guard commander. Is that too much to ask? Having said that, Xiao Tian sighed deeply and, in the next moment, slapped the poisonous marsh elder across the face. I'm talking to you. Answer me. The poisonous marsh elder trembled uncontrollably, managing to stutter. I, I, elder, it was a misunderstanding. Another slap rang out. What elder? I'm barely in my twenties. Can't you speak properly? I'm sorry, sir. Speak up. I can't hear you. Listening to their conversation and the repeated slaps, both Zhong Ling and Lu Yan were in shock. The poisonous marsh elder seemed to have lost his mind, suddenly shouting loudly, sir. Xiao Tian landed several more slaps, yelling, why are you screaming so loudly? You scared me, you know? Lu Yan, dumbfounded, asked, young general, what on earth is happening? Am I dreaming? As you can see, prince is invincible, so you must never tell the emperor. Otherwise, you'll be ungrateful, Zhong Ling explained. Only then did Lu Yan realize that the drastic change in Zhong Ling's attitude, obeying every command from the prince, was because the prince was so fearsome. Suddenly, a thought struck Lu Yan, young general, the Blood Cloud Tower, did he? Exactly. The one who obliterated the powerhouses of the Blood Cloud Tower was none other than the prince himself. Zhong Ling confirmed. Lu Yan felt like everything that had happened today had turned her world upside down. Looking at Xiao Tian's silhouette, her eyes were filled with admiration. Suddenly, she noticed something amiss. A dark formation started to appear beneath the poisonous marsh elder. Lu Yan shouted urgently, Prince, get out of the way. With a sinister smile on his face, the poisonous marsh elder declared, too late. An eerie purple marsh suddenly formed right under Xiao Tian's feet. The elder jumped back. How about that? This is my lifespan burning dark swamp, crafted by burning 30 years of my life. Relish it. As it engulfs you, your skin will start to rot, your flesh will corrode, and your bones will become as brittle as charcoal, easily crushed. The more you struggle, the deeper you'll sink, and the faster the poison will seep into your body, regardless of how powerful you might be.
be, you've still fallen into my trap. Even a tenth level being cannot escape the poison from this swamp. On the side, Lu Yan was frantic. Young general, save him quickly. Zhong Ling, however, was calm. There's no need. All we have to do is stay out of the way. You're underestimating the prince. He's not just strong. He's insanely strong. Lu Yan fell silent at that. But soon, her jaw dropped in shock. And she wasn't the only one. Everyone present, except for Zhong Ling, was utterly astonished by what they were witnessing. It was beyond comprehension. The elder had sacrificed 30 years of his life to summon the deadly swamp that could corrode both the body and soul. Yet, Xiao Tian seemed unfazed after being submerged in it, even going as far as to give the poisonous marsh elder a thumbs up. Nice move. It's like a natural exfoliation. But seriously, is this thing supposed to be this powerful? After saying that, he set his sights on the poisonous marsh elder's disciple, Gu Hong Mao, who immediately fell on his backside, begging Xiao Tian to stay away. Without hesitation, Xiao Tian grabbed him by the collar and threw him into the swamp. Gu Hong Mao screamed in agony, and in a matter of moments, sank and ceased to breathe. As Xiao Tian curiously played with the poisonous liquid, the poisonous marsh elder was utterly flabbergasted. Who, who are you? Ignoring the question, Xiao Tian applied the liquid as if it was a face mask. The elder trembled in fear, lost for words. After a while, Xiao Tian removed the mask and turned to Zhong Ling. Little girl, how is it? Do I look fairer? Zhong Ling was speechless. Since when did Prince become so vain? Shrugging, Xiao Tian responded, You know nothing, kid. I need to look more handsome to charm the Empress. He then faced the poisonous marsh elder. May I ask, how much lifespan do you have left? The elder was horrified. What do you mean? Oh, nothing really. I just think your swamp is quite impressive. How many more times can you use it? If I gave you a pill to extend your life, could you keep providing skincare for me? The elder was a mix of embarrassment and fury. You're a beast. One might kill a man, but not insult him. This old man, this old man. With that, the poisonous marsh elder smacked his own forehead with his palm, ending his own life on the spot. Zhong Ling and Lu Yan were utterly stunned. One of the six evil kings of the Black Soul Hall was actually driven to suicide by the prince. Xiao Tian, however, looked genuinely puzzled and asked, why did he kill himself? I was being so sincere and even wanted to spare him. Both of them couldn't help but internally comment, prince, please be more humane. Zhong Ling then advised Xiao Tian, prince, you should consider how to cover up this mess. Looking at the massive rift in the ground, Xiao Tian remarked, this is quite a disturbance. If I'm not mistaken, continuing in this direction would lead us to the Great Flame Dynasty, right? As Zhong Ling was nodding, Xiao Tian's aura erupted again, startling her. What are you trying to do? She hurriedly inquired. To get rid of the evidence, Xiao Tian exclaimed. With that, he delivered a punch, releasing a force so powerful it seemed to pierce through the heavens and earth. Both Zhong Ling and Lu Yan raised their arms to shield themselves from the raging wind. Moments later, Xiao Tian exhaled deeply, sending forth a tornado that seemed to connect the earth to the sky. Zhong Ling was in disbelief. Is this how you interpret disposing of the evidence? Xiao Tian smiled faintly. As long as the landscape changes and no traces of the past remain, that's considered disposing of the evidence. Once the dust settled, everything in sight was tranquil and calm. Zhong Ling held back her comments, thinking, this is more like reshaping the entire world. At that moment, Xiao Tian suddenly recalled something. The villagers in the town didn't see all this, did they? Lu Yan smiled and explained, don't worry, prince, there's a defensive array around the town that obstructs the view from the outside. Xiao Tian sighed in relief, you scared me. I thought our peaceful days were over. All right, I'll be waiting in the nearby woods. Once you're done, remember to bring some wine. Watching Xiao Tian's retreating figure, Lu Yan couldn't help but reflect. The prince truly is one of a kind. Despite his immense power, he's content to live off others and be this carefree and heartless prince. She patted the sculpture beside her and mused, isn't it wonderful? Just then, the townspeople, late to the scene and armed with hoes, rushed out only to find that the two huge mountains they were familiar with had vanished. Lu Yan chuckled and addressed the villagers. Elder town chief, it's safe now. Let's go back. The mountains just went for a walk and haven't returned yet. A young woman was animatedly recounting tales of Xiao Tian. The head of the imperial guard suddenly had a thought. Could it be that all the bad things we secretly said about him behind his back? He heard all of them. Hearing this, Xiao Tian, who was walking ahead, suddenly spoke. Of course, I did. You went home and criticized me for being a disaster for the nation, accused me of seducing the emperor with my looks, and said that I was too timing enjoying what I have while coveting something else, referring to me messing with the young Zhong Ling. Zhong Ling looked at Lu Yan with suspicion. Sister Lu Yan, what have you been imagining? Lu Yan immediately knelt down. I'm so sorry, prince. I apologize. Young general, Xiao Tian waved his hand dismissively. It's fine, just a minor misunderstanding. Zhong Ling, with a cheeky grin, said, who would have thought that big sister Lu Yan, who seems so mature, would be such a gossip monger at home. Wait, at home? She suddenly realized something amiss. Prince, you could hear what Lu Yan said in her own house from the prince's residence? Of course. Xiao Tian smirked. Our dear Lu Yan here turns into quite the chatterbox at home, always mumbling nonstop. Lu Yan was left dumbfounded. It was clear Xiao Tian was doing this on purpose, thinking, you gossip about me? I'll embarrass you. Soon after, the group returned to the Zhou
Zhong residence. Xiao Tian pointed irritably at the gate. Go back. Prince, I want to dine in the palace too, pleaded Zhong Ling. No, you've been in the palace these past few days. Your father scolds me every night because of it. It's so annoying. Lu Yan sighed in exasperation, thinking, if anything secret were done at night, wouldn't it be heard clearly? Zhong Ling, with a hopeful look, begged Xiao Tian. Prince, please let me go to the palace. Don't be so stingy. No, stop this act. You have parents and yet you don't appreciate them. I grew up without parents. You don't know how blessed you are. Upon hearing this, both Zhong Ling and Lu Yan were taken aback. They hadn't expected the prince to have such a tragic past. Xiao Tian waved it off. It's all in the past. I'm happy now. Resigned. Zhong Ling agreed to go home. Xiao Tian affectionately ruffled her hair. Good girl. Go home. Just then, Zhong Ling's father, Zhong Yang Ming, appeared and angrily questioned. What are you doing? Prince, you are the emperor's consort. Are you treating her right? Lu Yan, hearing this, immediately retorted. Lord Zhong, how can you say such things? How can you tarnish someone's reputation without knowing the truth? Zhong Yang Ming, taken aback, waved his hands defensively. But Lu Yan continued, her anger growing. You hold such a high position, and yet you judge so blindly. I I am disappointed in you. Zhong Yang Ming was taken aback and fell to the ground. He thought, such a righteous and loyal woman, and she too fell for the prince's charms? Zhong Ling chimed in. The prince was kind enough to let me go home to have dinner with you, and you behave like this? Linger, I. Zhong Yang Ming stuttered, at a loss for words. Zhong Ling grabbed Lu Yan and said, Dad, you can eat dinner by yourself tonight. Zhong Yang Ming muttered in frustration, What has the world come to? The issue with the refugees in the south hasn't been resolved, and now my daughter is being so disobedient. After a moment, he got up and prepared to returned to his residence. Unexpectedly, the trio returned to him. Shortly after, inside a pavilion in the Zhong residence, Xiao Tian stared at a table full of delicious dishes, unable to prevent his mouth from watering. Zhong Yang Ming served the last dish, saying, please, everyone, eat. Zhong Ling giggled behind her hand. Prince, it's this dish. My dad once used it to win my mom's heart. Xiao Tian gave her a playful tap on the head. Show some respect. How can you talk about your father like that? Zhong Ling nodded with a smile. Zhong Yang Ming looked on in confusion. Why is my daughter so afraid? afraid of the prince. He thought, I better apologize and eat. He raised his glass. Prince, I apologize to you. Xiao Tian also lifted his glass and took a hearty drink. After taking a bite of the food and savoring the taste, he gave a thumbs up. The taste is truly amazing. As Xiao Tian continued to eat, Zhong Yang Ming was a bit bewildered. One shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but the prince's obsession with enjoying life's pleasures is strange. At that moment, Xiao Tian muttered something. Zhong Yang Ming asked, Prince, if you have something to say, please speak up. Xiao Tian hesitated. Can I? Come over to eat regularly, to taste the dishes you personally make. Your culinary skills are outstanding. Zhong Yang Ming didn't respond verbally, but thought to himself, does he expect me, the Minister of Revenue, to be his personal chef? Impossible. Absolutely impossible. The next second, Xiao Tian slammed a ring onto the table. I'll personally donate one million spirit stones for the relief of the southern refugees. Zhong Yang Ming's face changed instantly. Prince, what would you like to eat tomorrow? I'm free, so I'll personally choose the ingredients to ensure you have a delightful meal. Linger, can you help buy a chef's robe for me? We can't be careless with the prince's meals. Zhong Ling and Lu Yan stared in disbelief. That was a quick change of heart. Holding the spirit stones tightly, Zhong Yang Ming caught his daughter's puzzled look. He wanted to retort, You don't understand anything. The refugees can neither be ignored nor easily settled. Now that we have funds, I'd even call him dad if needed. By the way, prince, are these spirit stones legitimate? I hope they weren't sneaked out from the palace. Xiao Tian waved dismissively. Don't worry, these spirit stones were compensation for an apology someone owed me. Make sure you don't mention it came from me. This is my private stash. The emperor can't know. Feeling reassured, Zhong Yang Ming said, I promise I'll keep it secret. Xiao Tian sighed in relief. You have no idea how hard it was to get this money and what those people did to me. Hearing Xiao Tian's indignant tone, Zhong Yang Ming's imagination ran wild, picturing him suffering some severe torture. He quickly comforted, Thank you for your generosity. On the side, Zhong Ling and Lu Yan were even more shocked. Did the Blood Cloud Tower force you to wipe out their entire clan and you emptied their treasury? Suddenly, Xiao Tian asked, Minister Zhong, how do you plan to use these funds. I intend to purchase relief supplies and send them, as well as fund the construction of temporary shelters until they can harvest their crops. Xiao Tian shook his head. That's not efficient, and it might lead to problems. Why not try a work for relief approach? Zhong Yang Ming was taken aback. What do you mean by work for relief? Xiao Tian explained. Look at the refugees in the south. They lack everything but manpower, right? Why not use this money to employ them? This, we're providing relief. How can we employ them? Why not? Instead of letting a large group of people sit idle and cause trouble, use the money to buy food and goods as wages, employ them to repair bridges, roads, and cultivate wastelands, let them fill their bellies and help build the great flame, and with no extra energy for mischief, why not? This method can also scatter the refugees, avoiding the gathering of acquaintances who might muster courage together to cause trouble. Think about it. Zhong Yang Ming had a sudden realization. This is killing multiple birds with one stone. Brilliant. Prince, whenever you crave
crave for food in the future, just let me know. I might not be confident about other things, but when it comes to culinary skills in the entire Great Flame Dynasty, I consider myself second to none. He patted his chest with pride. Xiao Tian smirked. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. I'd like a midnight snack later, alright? The two exchanged amused glances. The two girls felt something was off about the situation. Until that day, Zhong Li Huang stood atop the city walls, gazing at the empress who had been trapped. After being calm for half a month, the time for her breakthrough was near. The barbarian kingdom's grand elder urgently ordered the soldiers to retreat, realizing that the empress was about to advance to the ninth rank. Soon, the empress opened her eyes with a cold hum. Her aura surged out like a landslide or a tsunami, causing the barbarian soldiers to flee in panic, fearing they would be left behind as fodder. The next moment, the ceiling formation was shattered with a loud bang by the empress. Holding her sword majestically, she remarked, Old man, you sure ran fast. But no matter how fast you run, can you escape the sword energy from a ninth rank? The empress swung her sword, and the chilling sword energy instantly froze the soldiers running behind. The elder from the barbarian tribe gritted his teeth and sprinted at full speed, suddenly feeling a chill from behind. He was taken aback, never expecting the might of a ninth rank practitioner to be so terrifying. Hastily, he turned around and employed his life's most formidable skill, conjuring a giant illusionary figure to block the attack. But the giant figure, fragile as foam, was effortlessly torn apart by the sword energy. The elder, like a kite with a broken string, plummeted to the ground, creating a massive crater. Moments later, he struggled to his feet, his facial mask shattered, realizing the true terror of a ninth rank expert. On the other hand, the empress chose not to pursue further. She returned to the city walls, ordered the deputy general to stay behind and take care of the aftermath, and to lead the army back once everything was settled. She decided to leave early with Zhong Li Huang to prepare for the impending turmoil. Along the way, Zhong Li Huang tried to comfort her, Your Majesty, don't worry too much. There are formations everywhere now that can delay the poisonous marsh elders' actions for a bit. The empress, however, was still concerned. The poisonous marsh elders in eighth rank, these formations won't hold him for long. I just hope that the great flame hasn't suffered significant damage. Soon after, the duo reached the town where two large mountains were previously located, only to find them gone. Zhong Li Suang was dumbfounded. The empress observed for a while and speculated, there's no accumulated dirt nearby, but there's a layer of dust on the distant mountains. I suspect someone pulverized these two mountains into dust with a single strike. A single strike? Your majesty, now that you're a ninth rank, how do you measure up against this person? The empress gave a bitter smile. You're overestimating me. I couldn't even gauge his strength. How could I possibly be his match? Your majesty, could the person responsible be a tenth rank? No, that's the most terrifying part. If he was tenth rank, I'd be able to recognize it. Whose power could surpass the tenth rank? When she returned victorious from the northern expedition, she discovered that Xiao Tian had grown surprisingly close to the head of her imperial guard and Zhong Li Shuang's daughter. Both seemed to hold this freeloading man in high regard, showing him much respect. Xiao Tian was trying to distance himself from their fervent attention when he suddenly sensed a murderous intent nearby. Taking a closer look, he realized it was his wife, the Empress, returning. Standing by the Empress, Zhong Li Suang was pointing at her daughter, scolding, Zhong Ling, how many days has it been since you last got a beating? You're itching for another one, huh? The three who were in the middle of their banter were dumbfounded. Zhong Ling, startled, dropped her bun. Oh no, how did mother return so soon? And if I'm not mistaken, that's her majesty beside her. The head of the Imperial Guard, Lu Yen, whispered, I once misunderstood your relationship with Prince Xiao Tian, just like your father did. I even wrote a letter to the general about it. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian was horrified. What the heck, Commander Lu, are you trying to get me in trouble? Zhong Li Suan, noticing them whispering, approached with evident anger, clearly ready to mete out some punishment. Zhong Ling, terrified, hid behind Xiao Tian. In his panic, Xiao Tian exclaimed, Kid, why are you hiding behind me? Hide behind your sister Lu. Are you trying to make things even worse? Zhong Ling meekly replied, Prince, please just block for a moment. With her majesty here, mother won't lay a hand on you. Are you sure about that? Looking at the furious Zhong Li Suang standing in front of him, she sternly told him, Prince, move aside. Staring at the nearly two meter tall, muscle bound figure, Xiao Tian couldn't help think, Minister Zhong, you're the real man. He tried to mediate, General Zhong, beating a child in public might traumatize her. Zhong Li Suang, without hesitation and clenching her fist threateningly, said, Prince, I'm trying to reason with you out of respect for her majesty, but that doesn't mean I won't act. Hearing this, Zhong Ling quickly threw herself into her mother's embrace, exclaiming, No, mother, you absolutely cannot lay a hand on Prince. If you must hit someone, hit your daughter. Lu Yan also stepped in to mediate. General Zhong, please, let's stay calm and think this through. Zhong Li Suang, taken aback by their attitudes, responded, You silly girl, this, this is Her Majesty Xiao Tian. He's not someone you should be concerned about. Little did she know that what Zhong Ling was actually thinking was, What if Prince retaliates? What will Dad and I do? At this moment, a few robust young men stepped forward, asking, Prince, is there a problem? Xiao Tian quickly tried to reassure everyone, everyone, this is a friend of mine. There's
there's no need to be alarmed. Disperse now. Since that's the case, I'll be leaving first. A villager responded, Prince, if you ever need anything, just give us a shout. Sir, it's getting late. Why not come to my home and rest? Xiao Tian politely declined. I appreciate the offer, but I have a banquet to attend. I must leave now. Seeing how warmly the villagers interacted with Xiao Tian, Zhong Li Huang was left in shock. Is Prince's allure really that strong? All of these villagers are men. Xiao Tian, gazing at the figure of his empress wife, mused, my wife is truly beautiful. Admiring her graceful silhouette, suddenly, the empress turned and gave him a deep look. Captivated, Xiao Tian thought, look at those eyes, they're like shimmering stars. Suddenly, the empress approached and inquired, I'm very curious, what did you do to earn such adoration from the people of Green Flame Town? Xiao Tian grinned slightly, when a woman starts to become curious about a man, it signifies, she's lost to him. The empress looked at him with confusion, what's he so happy about? I asked him a question, and instead of answering, he's laughing? In response to the empress's query, Xiao Tian told her, just throw money at the problem. I simply funded the construction of roads for them. She raised an eyebrow. Where did you get the money from? If I recall correctly, you don't have that much to spend. Xiao Tian burst into laughter. Your majesty, don't forget that I'm now your husband. I've been showered with gifts recently. It seems there are quite a few wealthy individuals in our court, but merely funding road construction wouldn't make the citizens so grateful. Zhong Li Huang felt the same, wondering how a seemingly frivolous prince could gain such adoration from the people. At this point, Zhong Ling chimed in. It's because the prince has brought prosperity to the people of Green Flame Town. Upon hearing this, both the Empress and Zhong Li Huang looked at her questioningly. Zhong Ling quickly explained, Green Flame Town is known for its delicious wine, which was previously only available in the capital. While it improved the lives of the citizens, it didn't make a massive difference. The prince then came up with branding strategies. Lu Yan then recited a promotional slogan, Water from Green Flame Mountain, the essence of fine wine, great flame quality, the centennial vintage town of Green Flame Wine. Even the Empress approves of the Great Flame's wine. With the endorsement of the Empress and the guarantee from the Minister of Revenue, Sir Zhong, the Green Flame wine was renamed Green Flame Empress Wine and became the most premium liquor in the capital. Now, a jar of this wine is worth a fortune. Xiao Tian continued, I had to use your name for the wine, Your Majesty. After all, I'm just a powerless and useless person. Zhong Ling and Lu Yan rolled their eyes. In their minds, they sarcastically thought, Yes, yes, you're useless. All you did was scare the poisonous Marsh Elder into taking his own life and destroy a few mountains with a single punch. The Empress's displeasure was evident. What do you mean useless? You are my man, the Great Flame Prince. No one has the right to call you useless. If anyone dares to bully you, I'll slay them for you with my sword. Xiao Tian was smitten. Damn it, she's flirting with me again. Someone, replace my bowl for eating soft rice with a metal one. Then, with utmost sincerity, Xiao Tian told the Empress, you, who makes fish sink and birds fall, outshining the moon and flowers, unparalleled in beauty and grace. My lady, your majesty, Empress responded with a calm face. Flattery will get you nowhere. I've never been a fan of sweet talk. But then, a faint smile on her lips betrayed her true feelings. Zhong Li Huang patted Xiao Tian on the shoulder and advised, Prince, the Empress has always been strong-willed since she was young. Trying to woo her with tactics suitable for young girls won't work, understand? Xiao Tian didn't reply, just gazed at the Empress's silhouette. You think I can't see through that veil? What works and what doesn't? That's just my wife Empress being Sundara. She might not say it, but she likes it. Pausing for a moment, he suddenly told Zhong Ling, your mother knows nothing, leaving Zhong Ling bewildered. Up ahead, Zhong Li Huang suggested to the Empress, Your Majesty, when we return to the city, why not dine at my place? Sounds good. I'm looking forward to experiencing Minister Zhong's culinary skills, replied the Empress. Soon, the group arrived at the Zhong residence. Xiao Tian, looking at his wife's back, suddenly felt her power had grown. Puppy, what's the current level of Empress Zi Ruoyan? Respected master, Empress Zi Ruoyan is now at the first level of the ninth rank, responded Puppy. Xiao Tian smiled. During her trip, not only did her level increase, but she also resolved the northern border conflict. My wife is truly amazing. As female general Zhong Li Huang led the empress to dine in her home, the delicious aroma of food welcomed them. She assumed her husband had personally prepared the meal, knowing she'd be returning. Behind her, Zhong Ling remained silent, realizing sometimes it's better not to know certain things. Zhong Yang Ming sensed someone entering the room and without looking up, he cheerfully remarked, Prince, you're in for a treat today. I've prepared a golden-tailed white jade fish and some of your favorite side dishes. We won't stop drinking until we're both completely drunk. Only then did the Empress and Zhong Li Huang realize that the meal had been specially prepared for the prince. This was unexpected. How did even Zhong Yangming become charmed by the prince? As Zhong Yangming turned around and saw that it was the empress herself, he immediately and awkwardly bowed in greeting. The empress showed no sign of displeasure, saying, this time, as in the past, Uncle Zhong, just treat me as the young girl who used to freeload food and drink at the Zhong residence. Scratching his head in embarrassment, Zhong Yangming stuttered, I'll, I'll get more bowls and chopsticks. Your Majesty. Majesty, please take a seat. He then quickly excused himself. Zhong Li Huang turned and demanded, What exactly 
happened while the Empress and I were away. Xiao Tian sighed with resignation. If the Empress found out he had been giving advice to Zhong Yangming, discovering his talents, and asking him to help with state affairs, what should I do? Moments later, as everyone settled at the table, Zhong Li Huang teased. Zhong Yangming, you've prepared this meal with such care and finesse. The Empress picked up a cup and asked, Is this the famous green flame wine? Yes, your majesty, it indeed is the green flame wine. The Empress smiled, I've had it before, but this, it's truly delightful. I understand now why it's said to be worth its weight in gold, not only because of its reputation, but also due to its inherent quality. Your Majesty speaks the truth. Not only did Prince fund the construction of a distillery in Green Flame Town and employ the locals, he also improved the brewing techniques of Green Flame Town, revitalizing the entire area, and even volunteered to pay taxes, setting an example for the imperial merchants. Xiao Tian covered his face in exasperation, thinking, this is exactly what I was afraid of. Someone, please knock me out. I just wanted to live a simple life without any responsibilities. Misinterpreting Xiao Tian's reaction, Zhong Yangming assumed the prince was being modest and continued to sing his praises. If it were just that, it still wouldn't do justice to the prince's excellence. Xiao Tian was taken aback, thinking, is he really going to say more? Zhong Yangming continued, in the matter of the refugees from the southern border, the prince not only provided strategies, but also funded the project himself. The only thing he asked in return was for me to satisfy his culinary desires, which is nothing in comparison. By now, Xiao Tian was completely stiff, unable to even muster a smile. However, the empress had a look of admiration on her face. Seeing this, Zhong Yangming smiled faintly and said, Prince, this is as much as I can help. Xiao Tian understood Zhong Yangming's intentions all too well. He had always intended to live a leisurely life, not wanting to work at all. As expected, the empress asked, With such talent, why do you keep calling yourself useless? Caught in a difficult spot, Xiao Tian wondered, How should I explain? Can I just say I want to be lazy? If he admitted that, he imagined the empress would assign him loads of work, and if he refused, she'd probably whip him. His dream life seemed to be slipping away. To his dismay, during this simple dinner, his true nature had been exposed by Minister Zhong. Xiao Tian was immensely embarrassed, while Zhong Yangming looked quite proud. The Empress poured herself another drink and remarked, I didn't expect you to know about brewing. Hastily, Xiao Tian replied, Not really, I just have a slight understanding. I'm mostly good at enjoying the finer things in life. However, the Empress responded directly, Not many people earn praises from Uncle Zhong. Why do you look so worried? If I'm not mistaken, you just want to enjoy life without responsibilities. You're afraid I'll ask you to take up an official position and work hard for the Great Flame, aren't you? Xiao Tian was momentarily at a loss for words. The Empress reassured him, I promised you a life of luxury and comfort, where you could live carefree as a relaxed prince. When I summoned you with the talisman, I already owed you. I don't need you to do anything, just be happy. Xiao Tian blushed, thinking to himself, oh my goodness, stop flirting with me. Suddenly, the Empress's expression turned fierce. If anyone dares to gossip and call you useless, I wouldn't mind playing the tyrant for once. I'd be had a few to strike fear into the court and silence these demons. Feeling elated, Xiao Tian thought, is this what it feels like to be pampered by the Empress? It's amazing. Changing the subject, she asked, speaking of which, when the poisonous Marsh Elder, one of the six evils of Black Soul Hall, died at the entrance of Green Flame Town, you were present, right? Tell me the details. Yes, your majesty. After some time, Lu Yan finished recounting the events. Zhong Li Huang, a female general, jumped up excitedly and asked, was it truly just one punch? Did this unparalleled warrior leave a name? Lu Yan replied with a grave face, he left the name, King of Hell. Moreover, he also destroyed the headquarters of Blood Cloud Tower. It has been confirmed by Astral Pavilion that the King of Assassins, Yun Zunlai, has perished. The Empress struggled to believe the news. Are you certain this is true? Lu Yan, remembering her fiancé who was killed by Blood Cloud Tower, responded, Your Majesty, you're well aware of my vendetta against Blood Cloud Tower. I wouldn't make a mistake about this. The Empress mused, If I ever have the chance, I must personally thank the King of Hell for his righteous act on behalf of the heavens. Solving the major problems for the Great Flame Dynasty, whether King of Hell is a friend or foe, the benefits outweigh the drawbacks for Great Flame. Everyone present is enthusiastic. Enthusiastic. Only Xiao Tian looks guilty. King of Hell is actually his old alias on Earth. He just reused it. Zhong Yangming analyzes that King of Hell's actions have made him seem closely related to Great Flame. Zhong Ling and Lu Yan both agree that his presence will make others hesitant to attack Great Flame. In the meantime, Xiao Tian and Empress have been affectionately interacting. You really spoil Prince. Someone comments. Will you hold court the day after tomorrow? Of course. What's the matter? Then you need to protect Prince. The Northern War is settled. You have no excuse to delay. You must introduce
introduce Prince to the ministers. Xiao Tian is confused. What does it mean to meet the ministers? Zhong Yangming explains that according to Great Flame Dynasty tradition, the Empress must introduce her spouse to the ministers. In simple terms, it's like meeting the in-laws. Will I be in trouble? Xiao Tian asks. Empress sincerely explains that she married him to give herself closure, not just as a shield. She mentions Luo Yin, a name that brings a murderous look to her face. The Prime Minister of the Great Flame Dynasty is named Luo Yin. Before my father disappeared, he held this position. He is both my teacher and my father's close advisor. The year my father went missing, my eldest brother ascended to the throne. The barbarian kingdom moved from the north. He led the troops personally and died in battle in the north. My second brother took the throne and the Black Soul Hall in the southern border erupted in chaos. It affected the Great Flame Dynasty. He went south to quell the unrest and expand the territories but was poisoned and passed away in the end. With Lu Yin's assistance, I ascended the throne. I was 16 that year. Lu Yin promised to return the power to me when I turned 18. However, Lu Yin pursued his private interests, gaining immense influence in the court. If not for my secret strategizing and a decent natural talent in cultivation, progressing from nothing to the seventh rank in just two years, it would be very difficult to reclaim the power. On her 18th birthday, Lu Yin came to talk about an arranged marriage between me and his son, telling me it's time to consider having an heir. I kept delaying until I learned the summoning symbols that brought you to the Great Flame Dynasty. So, Lu Yin will definitely give you a hard time, says Empress. Xiao Tian ponders. No wonder she clarified that she didn't marry me as a shield. If she wanted to, she could have thrown me out by now. Seeing Xiao Tian's silence, Empress thinks he's afraid. Don't worry, even though I'm wary of Lu Yin, if you don't want to face him, I'll protect you. Xiao Tian reassures her. No need, I'll go. Besides, with you protecting me, what can Lu Yin do? Execute me in court? Zhong Ling and Lu Yan almost burst out laughing. You worry about him executing you? Just make sure you don't lose your temper and completely obliterate Prime Minister Lu. Empress, unaware of Xiao Tian's capabilities, cautions, you don't need to go that far. Especially if Lu Yin gets the upper hand. I worry. My adoptive father is not only a scholar, but also difficult to read in terms of power. I don't want to confront him unless absolutely necessary. Zhong Yangming interjects. Your Majesty, I believe in Prince. He may look like a pleasure seeker, but he's incredibly tough to deal with. Xiao Tian wonders, is he praising or insulting me? Zhong Ling and Lu Yan also chime in. Don't worry, Your Majesty. Prince won't be at a disadvantage. Since Prince has made up his mind, why not let him do it? Empress, not knowing Xiao Tian's full capabilities, can only sigh. You two are really confident in him. Zhong Ling and Lu Yan insist that their father is right and that Prince is not to be underestimated. Finally, female General Zhong Li Huang speaks up. Your Majesty, this is an opportunity to confront Lu Yin. With your increased power, you have more confidence. You don't have to be afraid of that old man. Empress still looks worried. I really am concerned about what might happen in court. Xiao Tian cuts her off. I trust you. Empress falls silent for a long time. You're not afraid? Xiao Tian bursts into laughter. My wife is the one who secured the northern border with a single sword, a peerless beauty who rules the world. What's there to be afraid of? Hearing this, Empress smiles, a radiant, blushing smile. She stands and heads towards the door. If you're so determined, I won't persuade you anymore. There are piles of memorials to review. I need to go back to the palace. Xiao Tian knows what she's feeling. It's a two-way street. I can't let her flirt with me and not flirt back. All this talk about urgent work. She's not being sincere. Ah, women. As Zhong Ling and Lu Yan prepare to follow him back to the palace, Xiao Tian senses someone following them. This person is adorably clueless. Doesn't even know they've been spotted. Is this someone from the prime minister? Never mind. Let's not make a move if they don't. Suddenly, Xiao Tian takes off his contract ring from his left wrist. Zhong Ling and Lu Yan are stunned. Contract rings are bonds left by powerful realms to summon weaker ones. They are both laws and customs. Only entities of the 10th rank can break them. What are you doing? Zhong Ling finally asks. Sometimes it's uncomfortable. I'm just switching it, answers Xiao Tian. Zhong Ling is utterly bewildered. That's not what I meant. How could you talk so lightly about such a shocking act? Lu Yan clarifies. Young general is curious how you managed to remove the contract ring and switch its position. Xiao Tian, unconcerned, removes it again. Didn't you see how I did it? Here, I've switched hands. It's that simple. Simple. Just pull it off and put it back on. Both are rendered speechless. What's a major deal to others seems like a trivial matter to Prince. At that moment, Xiao Tian glances at the person in black still following them. When he sees Xiao Tian approaching his sleeping quarters, the figure darts off in another direction. When you're strong enough, you won't care about threats from ants. Zhong Ling suddenly whispers, Prince, are you planning to kill Lu Yan outright? Wow, you're pretty savage for a kid. Why would I kill him for no reason? But Lu Yan will definitely try to corner you in court. You'll have to show your hand then, revealing your strength.
strength. How about we just raid the Prime Minister's residence then? Before Zhong Ling finishes, Xiao Tian bonks her on the head, holding her head. Zhong Ling complains, Prince, you'll break my brain like this. Your head's already full of water. Were we not just talking about Lu Yin targeting me? Now you're suggesting I kill him. Do you think Empress would agree? Zhong Ling mutters, just say so. No need to hit me on the head all the time. Lu Yan chuckles silently. The once arrogant young general is now completely subdued by Prince. Xiao Tian ignores them. If I talk nicely, you won't listen. What can I do? Soon after, Xiao Tian lies down in his sleeping quarters. Puppy, let's watch a blockbuster. All right, master, he tells the two women the usual rules. Train for an hour, then go home. As he speaks, electrical sparks fly around them. I've put pressure on your surrounding space. Start training as I taught you. Zhong Ling and Lu Yan assume positions for the body cultivating technique, designed specifically for them by Xiao Tian. There's no ulterior motive. After an hour, Xiao Tian can finally train himself. Just then, he senses Empress approaching, and she's brought a crowd. Walking out, he's astonished to see Empress with hundreds of beautiful attendants waiting in the courtyard. Prince, what are you waiting for? Come, follow me to the palace for rest. All this just to get me to go to sleep? Empress leads him into the room. She spots two puddles of water on the floor, thinking it's his sweat. People think you're all about leisure, but they don't see the hard work you put in. Have you managed to cultivate? Feeling guilty, Xiao Tian feigns exhaustion. Still can't cultivate, just stretching my muscles. Lost in her own imagination, Empress thinks he's just being modest. No worries, take your time. With me here, nothing will go wrong. Xiao Tian is captivated by Empress's smiling face. Wow, is she leveling up her flirting skills or what? Moments later, Empress is half lying on the bed reading. She glances at Xiao Tian, who's standing still. What are you waiting for? Don't you want to rest? Finally, Xiao Tian decisively removes his outer garment and joins Empress on the bed, lying down stiffly like a fish. Empress chuckles. This guy is really interesting. In the night, Empress extinguishes the candle, removes her outer garment, and lies at the opposite end of the bed. Don't be so rigid. To dispel suspicions, I'll often spend the night here. You act as if I'll eat you. It's just my second time sharing a bed with a girl, so I'm a bit nervous, Xiao Tian explains. His foster father always taught him that women would only slow down his sore draw. Suddenly, Empress asks, somewhat displeased, second time? Who was the first? It was you, your majesty, before the expedition to the northern frontier. Don't you remember? Empress replies, both my first and second times were with you too, you know. Empress then asks, I wanna know, why did you go to court? I won't force you if you don't want to. Xiao Tian's face turns serene as he blurts out, loneliness. Empress frowns, what do you mean? Before I was summoned here, I was often alone. From a young age, I was too gifted, too strong, no one could be my partner. I had to complete missions alone. Now in this different world, I'm the only earthling left. It's like level 10 loneliness, times 2. Empress can't help but feel the same. Yes, I'm alone too. Hearing this, Xiao Tian turns his head and says, even if it's inexplicable, we're now husband and wife. Perhaps it's not entirely true in some ways, but in a sense, I have a family member, and that's you. At the very least, we're not alone anymore. Though I can't be of much help, if you want that position, I'll face it with you. Instantly, Empress's eyes fill with emotion and a sense of connection. Let's get to know each other again. Hi, my name is Zi Ruoyan. Hello, I'm Xiao Tian. Let's start, shall we? On that day, all the officials are waiting outside the Xuanwu gate for the morning court session. A few officials discuss amongst themselves. I heard that the northern frontier has been pacified, and that his majesty has returned. Prince will also meet the ministers this time, but I heard that the prime minister has always wanted his son to be with his majesty. Shush, lower your voice. The prime minister is coming. The man in charge of the government, Prime Minister Lu Outian, arrives and silences them with a glare. His son, Lu Shermei, angrily looks at the seat next to Empress's throne. That should have been my seat. Just then, a sharp voice announces, the emperor arrives. The prince arrives. Empress takes her seat on the throne. Xiao Tian, however, looks puzzled at the phoenix chair next to her. To sit or not to sit? I'm not a woman. Sitting there would be embarrassing. Noticing his hesitation, Empress quickly asks, what's wrong? It's just this chair. Before he can finish, Empress commands, bring another chair. A man can't sit on a phoenix chair. Two eunuchs hastily bring over a snake chair and place it beside her. Once that's done, Empress gives Xiao Tian a flirtatious glance. Xiao Tian pauses, realizing that this was intentional on Empress's part. It's her way of signaling to the ministers how much she favors him. So, with a sweep of his robe, Xiao Tian sits down gracefully, a triumphant smile on his face. The ministers all bow their heads in silence. Zhong Li Suang covers his face. At that moment, Empress coughs slightly, and the eunuch beside her immediately announces, those with petitions, speak. Those without court is dismissed. Seizing the opportunity, the Prime Minister Lu Outian immediately says, Your Majesty, I have a matter to present. Empress glances at him, granted, speak. The Prime Minister starts talking, and Xiao Tian silently chuckles as he listens. This is interesting. I never knew the Prime Minister was such a capable man. He has solutions to all the issues Zi Ruoyan has raised, and even provides comprehensive insights into the affairs of the southern frontier. It's clear that the Great Flame Dynasty owes much of its prosperity to him. 
Unfortunately, ambition paired with capability makes taking back control very challenging for Zi Ruan. Just then, Lu Aoyan suddenly says, Your Majesty, Prince Xiao Tian has disrupted the rules of the court and seduced you. His virtue is not worthy of his position. I implore you to strip him of his title and execute him. With those words, the ministers instantly divide into two clear factions, one supporting the Prime Minister and the other supporting Empress. Both sides are at a standoff. Xiao Tian smiles slightly. The main act has begun. How entertaining. Zhong Ling whispers to Lu Yan, Look, Lu, Prince is really something. People want to execute him, and he's still happy. Lu Yan gestures for her to be quiet. The worst that could happen is that Prince will reveal his true power and kill the Prime Minister with a single slap. Let him have his fun. Both of us are well aware of how terrifying Xiao Tian is. Empress then speaks up, glaring at Lu Yan, Prime Minister, Xiao Tian is my husband. You want to execute him on a whim? This is absurd. As she speaks, Empress releases her aura, sweeping over the ministers, who are all stunned and awestruck. She's only 20 and already at the ninth level. Truly unparalleled. Lu Yan, however, merely smiles, thinking to himself, just the ninth level. How overconfident. Though thinking this, he still bows slightly. Old servant congratulates your majesty on your progress. The people behind him are utterly surprised. Is the prime minister planning to concede? But regardless, now that the prime minister has spoken, they have no choice but to join in congratulating Empress. At this moment, Empress is not entirely calm within. I can't even discern his realm at my ninth level, and he can effortlessly resist my pressure. His strength is deeper than I imagined. Sure enough, Lu Yan lifts his head and coldly says, Your Majesty, it's a good thing to advance in cultivation, but the Great Flame Dynasty depends not only on strength, but also on ability and principles. Prince Xiao Tian, as Your Majesty's consort, should possess talent that can span heaven and earth. Instead, he's engaging in dirty deeds that exploit the people. You are honorable, and the Great Flame is supreme. How can someone who tarnishes your name and reeks of vulgar commerce be fit to be your consort? Therefore, I request that we remove the prince. He continues, Moreover, General Zhong's legitimate daughter, Zhong Ling, is always around the prince, not understanding the differences between men and women or distinctions in rank. And Commander Lu Yan, neglecting her duties, indulges in nonsensical activities with Xiao Tian. There's also the Minister of Revenue, Zhong Yang Ming, who has degraded himself to being the prince's cook. This makes us a laughing stock. Aren't these actions undermining the established norms of the court? Given how you're favoring the prince, will there come a time when the monarch no longer holds court? Therefore, I again request the execution of the prince. Zhong Li Suang, the female general, is furious. What's wrong with this old geezer, bringing up my daughter out of nowhere? She has done nothing inappropriate with the prince. At this point, her husband, Zhong Yang Ming, speaks up. Your Majesty, the Prime Minister is talking nonsense. The prince established a brewery and modified green flame wine for the sake of building bridges and roads. This is about taking from the people to serve the people. How can you say he is exploiting them? Moreover, you may not know, but the southern frontier plan that you've been praising was actually Prince's idea. I am merely executing it on his behalf. Lu Yan and his people are stunned, so that's why Zhong Yangming was so elusive about taking credit for the plan. Zhong Yangming continues, You all know my daughter is fiery-tempered. It's only through her association with the prince that she has improved. Commander Lu Yan is from Green Flame Town, and under the orders of your majesty, she's been assigned to guard and serve the prince. What's the issue? So I would like to ask the prime minister, how can you say the prince is not virtuous enough for his position and is undermining the norms of the court? Empress laughs, and Xiao Tian can't help but give a thumbs up. Old Zhong sure knows how to speak. However, Lu Yan coldly snorts. Is that so? Minister Zhong, do you have evidence? Zhong Yangming is stunned. What do you mean? What evidence? Lu Yan continues. How could the prince possibly have such ability? Minister Zhong, I have every reason to suspect that you are attributing your own deeds to him. As soon as these words come out, the court bursts into murmurs. Do you think Minister Zhong can provide evidence? Probably not. I didn't expect Minister Zhong would go to such lengths for the Empress. What's so good about that prince? Is he worth it, Minister Zhong? Zhong Yangming is shocked. He had only verbally agreed with the prince, and now he can't actually produce any evidence. Just then, a voice suddenly rings out. You say Minister Zhong has no evidence to prove these are my deeds? The one speaking is Xiao Tian. He looks at Lu Yan with interest and continues, Do you, Prime Minister, have any evidence to prove these deeds are not related to me? The Prime Minister doesn't know how to respond, so he pulls out an ancient book, hoping that Xiao Tian will take a look. Seeing this, Empress bursts out angrily, Prime Minister Lu, what are you trying to do? Xiao Tian is a bit surprised. Why is my wife, the Empress, reacting so strongly? It's just a book. Can a book kill me? I don't believe it. So he smiles and says to him, if you want me to read it, sure, no problem. Empress is terrified. No, you can't read that book. Xiao Tian seems unconcerned. Whether I should read the book or not is beside the point. Prime Minister Lu, what gives you the right to demand that I read it? You're not the Emperor of the Great Flame Dynasty, are you? Hearing this, Lu Yan's face turns serious. I am fiercely loyal to Great Flame, and I am the Empress's teacher. Of course, I have to be careful in what I do. Are you, a scholarly and talented prince, unable to withstand 
and evenness test? Or are you saying that you're all show and no substance, conspiring with Minister Zhong to deceive and mislead us? Xiao Tian is speechless. This guy is really good at making accusations. If I weren't the protagonist, I might even believe his twisted logic. Don't read that book, Prince. This is a legacy book written in a different script. If you can't understand it, you'll die instantly. Seventeen people have already died trying to decipher it. Xiao Tian still maintains his smile. Prime Minister, you said earlier that reason should prevail in great flame, but the test you're now suggesting is entirely unreasonable. Lu Yin doesn't explain but tries to provoke him instead. So you're afraid, Prince? Of course not. It's just that using this ancient book to test whether I am worthy of the Empress or am learned makes no sense. If I fail to understand it, I lose my life. But you, Prime Minister, lose nothing. Isn't that unreasonable? As he speaks, Xiao Tian walks directly up to the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister's son, Lu Shermei, suddenly interrupts. Xiao Tian, don't try to muddy the waters or dodge the issue. Before he can finish, Xiao Tian slaps him. Adults are speaking. Children should not interrupt. That's rude. Turning his gaze back to Lu Outyin, he adds, Prime Minister Lu, how do you educate your son? Hearing this, Lu Outyin glares at Lu Shermei, who immediately understands, and kneels down. Your Majesty, I behaved improperly in front of the court. Please punish me. Lu Shermei, you've acted inappropriately. Half a year's salary will be deducted as punishment. You may rise. Thank you, Your Majesty. Xiao Tian glances at him silently. I thought he would be easy to provoke. A weak point for Lu Outyin. I didn't expect him to calm down so quickly. Both father and son are difficult to deal with. At this point, Lu Outyin continues to speak. All right then, when Her Majesty ascended to the throne, I acted as the regent. When I returned the power back to her, I had concerns about her potential recklessness. So, I did not fully return the keys to the secret treasury left by the late emperor. He then takes out a key. If you, prince, are truly exceptional and will assist the empress, then I don't need to worry anymore. This key should be returned to its rightful owner. In addition, I will offer three million spirit stones as a wedding gift to congratulate the empress on her marriage. What do you think of this offer, Prince Xiao? Xiao Tian laughs outright. Not enough. I want five million spirit stones. Without that amount, I won't agree. Ha ha. Since Prince Xiao has such a good appetite, I can't be stingy either. Six million spirit stones. Please, Prince Xiao. Saying this, he hands the ancient book to Xiao Tian. Xiao Tian takes the ancient book and smiles. Chancellor Lu, I'll thank you in advance for your generous gift of six million spirit stones. Just then, the Empress suddenly speaks up to intervene. Prince, don't be reckless. If you can't understand this ancient text, it could be fatal. However, Xiao Tian seems to pay no attention and has already opened the ancient book to read. Just then, Xiao Tian suddenly closes the book. The Empress is instantly shocked as if struck by lightning, and she can't help but exclaim, Xiao Tian. The Chancellor and other ministers also chime in. Prince, it looks like you won't be able to enjoy my gift after all. It's over. The Prince is really decisive about committing suicide. Once you open this book, you have to read it through. If you don't understand it by the last page, you'll die. If you give up halfway and close the book, you'll also die. But not only is Xiao Tian fine, he also pretends not to hear the questions. Why? The Chancellor is immediately stunned. What the hell? You're actually fine. Xiao Tian nonchalantly turns around and says, while looking at the book, I'm just tired of standing. I'll go back and read it slowly while sitting down. Do you have a problem with that? Then, Xiao Tian sits next to the Empress and starts reading the book. The ministers below are all confused. What are you all looking at me for? The court meeting isn't over yet, right? You go on with your business, and I'll go on with mine. Empress is still a bit uneasy. Prince, do you feel unwell anywhere? Xiao Tian gives a slight smile. Thank you for your concern, your majesty. I'm fine. I assure you, I'll get hold of the chancellor's congratulatory gift. Not far away, Zhong Ling and Lu Yan look at each other speechlessly. We knew it would be like this. How could anything happen to Prince? That monster. The chancellor looks at Xiao Tian, who is engrossed in the book and can't help but think, how is this useless guy unaffected by the ancient text? Could it be that ordinary people without cultivation are not affected by it? Just then, Xiao Tian suddenly closes the book and holds his head, silent, as if lost in thought. The empress glances at him, thinking that being an ordinary person without cultivation does have its advantages. At this moment, she wants to tell everyone, look, my husband may be ordinary, but he's extraordinarily unique. Little does she know that Xiao Tian is on the verge of erupting. What on earth is this ancient text? It's like some kind of gibberish. Are we sure a human wrote this? He directly consults his system. Puppy, what kind of power is in this book? Respected master, this book is an ancient text passed down from the ancient god race. Its protective spells are powerful enough to annihilate beings of 10th level. Of course, it poses no threat to you, Puppy responds. Xiao Tian bursts into laughter. An ancient text from the ancient god race? So it really wasn't written by humans. This world seems more interesting than I thought, filled with non-human entities. Can you translate it for me? Puppy indicates. To translate this text from the ancient god race, you will need 3,000 mission points. You can obtain mission points by completing tasks set by the system. Xiao Tian's face turns cold. Can't you just translate it directly for me? I am extremely sorry, master. According to my system settings, I need. Shut up. I've already made a 
promise. If you make me lose face, you know the consequences. Puppy goes silent for a moment, then announces, mission assigned. Sit in the chair for one second to complete the mission. Congratulations. Master, your mission is complete. You've earned 99,999,999 mission points. The ancient text from the god race is now being translated. Xiao Tian can't help but want to laugh at Puppy's antics. Looks like I need to put some pressure on you to get things done. Improve next time. Got it. Apologies. Master, I will continue to improve. Down below, Prime Minister Lu Outian has no idea what's going on. Seeing Xiao Tian continuously flipping through the ancient book, he becomes irritated. Is this guy mocking me right in front of my face? The Prime Minister can only sarcastically ask, Prince Xiao, have you understood the book? I hope you won't make some ridiculous excuse, saying it might be a fake or something. Xiao Tian smiles slightly. I have no interest in playing such petty tricks with you. He glances at an invisible progress bar. The next second, the ancient text in his hand starts to vibrate, emitting a humming sound. The text suddenly radiates countless golden characters, difficult to understand, but majestic. Everyone present exclaims in surprise. This is the legacy gold tome. Even the empress can't contain her excitement. Standing up, a deadly ancient book that has killed over a dozen people has now been unlocked by Prince. This level of talent should meet the prime minister's standards, right? The prime minister, sweating profusely, stubbornly says. While it's true the legacy gold tome has appeared, Prince Xiao hasn't received its legacy yet. Who can guarantee that this wasn't caused by the prince randomly flipping through the pages and triggering some hidden spell, making the legacy gold tome appear by itself? Just as the prime minister's words fell, the legacy gold tome swished, and all the golden, archaic characters surged madly into Xiao Tian's mind. Xiao Tian calmly accepted the legacy. The officials from the prime minister's side were at a complete loss for words, while those aligned with the empress wore satisfied smiles. A moment later, having fully accepted the legacy, Xiao Tian looked towards the prime minister and gently let go of the book. The legacy gold tome dropped to the ground as if it were trash. Raising an eyebrow, Xiao Tian smirked. Prime Minister Lu, what do you have to say now? Or are you going to go back on your word? Don't make any ridiculous excuses, saying this might be a fake book. The Prime Minister clenched his fists, pondered for a long while, and finally admitted, I misjudged Prince's talent. Seeing him concede, Xiao Tian pressed on. So, about the six million spirit stones, you better not default. Also, Xiao Tian abruptly stretched out his hand and snatched the dynasty key. Anything that belongs to my Empress wife should be taken seriously. Waving the key in his hand, Xiao Tian continued, Thanks, Prime Minister Lu. The Prime Minister was furious, but could only reply in a subdued manner. It originally belonged to Her Majesty, so there's nothing to thank me for. Xiao Tian shook his head. Prime Minister Lu, I'm referring to the legacy gold tome and the six million spirit stones. Originally, I only asked for five million, but who would have thought that you'd be so generous as to give an extra million? As he spoke, Xiao Tian suddenly clenched his fist. The Prime Minister was taken aback, wondering, what is this worthless guy trying to do? To everyone's surprise, Xiao Tian simply extended a thumbs up, grinning naively and praising, thank you, you're really a good person. The corner of the Prime Minister's mouth twitched, I swear, this guy is so annoying. You're the good person. Your whole family are good people. The Empress quickly stepped in to mediate. All right, my husband, don't be too unyielding. If you make the Prime Minister sick, who will send us gifts? The ministers chuckled quietly. Your Majesty has been influenced by the Prince, using the Prime Minister's own trick of feigning illness against him. Feeling cornered, the Prime Minister could only grit his teeth and reply, Thank you for your Majesty's protection. My gift will be sent to the palace this afternoon. The Empress, in high spirits, waved her hand and smiled. Then I must also thank the generous Prime Minister. If there's nothing else, let's adjourn the court. Upon hearing this, all the ministers prostrated themselves on the ground. Long live your majesty. As they exited the Shuangwu gate, the ministers were all smiles, but the prime minister and his son had grim expressions, their moods at a boiling point. Meanwhile, Xiao Tian was cheerfully telling Zhong Yang Ming, the minister, I had a big win today, so I'll come to your residence for dinner tonight. A few officials aligned with the empress quickly gathered around. Prince Xiao has truly uplifted our spirits. A closer look indeed reveals extraordinary temperament. You managed to overshadow the prime minister. His face was as black as the bottom of a pot. Xiao Tian grinned and waved his hand grandly. I like hearing that. One jar of green flame empress wine for each of you. Have someone pick it up from Minister Zhong's residence later. The three were overjoyed. Thank you, Prince. You're so generous. Zhong Li Suang, a female general, also joined in. You're indeed very impressive. I have high hopes for you. Zhong Yangming then pulled Zhong Li Suang along. Wife, let's go. We should head home to prepare some good food for the prince. Seeing that almost everyone had left, Xiao Tian took out the dynasty key and examined it. Will that guy find an excuse to renege on the six million spirit stones? Lu Yan shook her head. He won't. If Lu Outian said he would do it, he will. But this Prime Minister Lu is really a bit strange. I'm afraid he has some tricks up his sleeve. It's good that Lu Outian has some skills. The current Great Flame Dynasty needs him to stabilize the court and assist in governance. Zhong Ling suddenly interjected. Right, Prince. What was the deal with the ancient tome that caused 
caused people to drop dead. Xiao Tian looked indifferent. That ancient tome? It's something like an inheritance book of an ancient god clan. The restrictions inside can wipe out individuals of the 10th level and below. Upon hearing this, both Zhong Ling and Lu Yan were stunned. Wipe out the 10th level? Lu Yan was the first to recover. What is this ancient god clan? Xiao Tian was also puzzled. You guys don't know? Both shook their heads. We've only heard of the human race and demon race. Never heard of the ancient god clan. Zhong Ling suddenly remembered something, right? Prince, does opening and closing the ancient tome repeatedly help with receiving the inheritance? Xiao Tian looked innocent. No, not at all. How could you have such a ludicrous idea? How could flipping the book help with the inheritance? Hearing this, Zhong Ling was even more confused. Then why did you keep doing that? Prince, Xiao Tian mind a little. Well, the power of the restrictions in the book felt pretty relaxing. Because the force was intermittent, I kept flipping it. Goodness, 10th level, a height they might never reach in their lifetimes. Is just this in the prince's eyes? That's a power that can wipe out the 10th level, and you're using it for a massage. Prince, for the love of God, please act like a human being. That night, within Prime Minister Lu's residence, Lu Shermei, the Prime Minister's son, was angrily complaining. Father, this Xiao Tian is pushing it too far. Why don't I find someone to take care of him? Saying this, Lu Shermei gestured across his neck, the meaning clear. However, the Prime Minister did not respond, only looking sternly at him. Lu Shermei started sweating, realizing he'd said something wrong. After a long pause, the Prime Minister finally spoke. Things have already reached this point. Don't ruin the big picture over a small, insignificant person. I'm very disappointed in your performance today. Father, I, Lu Shermei began, but the Prime Minister interrupted him again. One day, when we return to the Empire, with your current behavior, you'll hardly be suitable for grand occasions. Have you forgotten all the principles I taught you? I've realized my mistake, Father. The Prime Minister looked at the night sky. All these years, the day we return to the Empire is drawing near. We must be extra careful at this crucial juncture. Release the news that Xiao Tian has received the Golden Book of Inheritance as soon as possible. Let's give this scoundrel Xiao Tian some trouble. Lu Shermei hastily agreed. The Prime Minister felt a pang of discomfort in his heart. What rotten luck. If it weren't for the terrifyingly powerful individual called King of Hell randomly intervening and destroying Blood Cloud Tower, I would have kidnapped Xiao Tian and controlled Zi Ruan by now. We wouldn't have these issues. If he knew that the powerful individual who destroyed Blood Cloud Tower was that prince, he'd probably be packing his bags and running away by now. On the other end, inside a chamber of the royal palace, Xiao Tian had just returned from outside. As soon as he pushed open the door, he saw the empress busy with official documents. Memorandums were piled high on the entire table. Xiao Tian was dumbstruck. So many. How long will it take to get through all of these? The empress looked up wearily, her face full of melancholy. If it weren't for Lu Outian's considerable ability, taking on more than half of the responsibilities, you probably wouldn't even see me standing here. Xiao Tian could only agree. Being the empress is really tough. It's good that I'm just a freeloader, otherwise I'd be worked to death. However, the empress didn't see it that way. Great Flame Dynasty is the fruit of my father's labor, and it's also what my two brothers gave their lives to protect. No matter how difficult or tiring it is for me, it's nothing compared to their sacrifices. Xiao Tian suddenly remembered. By the way, the six million spirit stones from Lu Outian have been delivered to the palace. Upon hearing this, the empress stood up and handed a key to Xiao Tian. Perfect timing. I have something I need your help with. This jade key pendant, along with the one you got from Lu Outian, can be combined to form the palace treasury key. It opens to a treasury filled with the wealth left by my father. Xiao Tian took the half of the key and was stunned for a moment. I have to do more work? The empress then explained. I'm giving you the key so you can manage the palace treasury. This way, no one can say you're idle and not doing anything useful. Isn't that a good thing? Hearing that he would be in charge of the treasury, Xiao Tian became instantly joyful. This is great. Saying this, Xiao Tian combined the two halves of the key. A ding sound rang out as the key suddenly emitted rays of golden light that enveloped Xiao Tian. The empress didn't even look up. The jade pendant itself is also a spiritual artifact with protective effects. It can keep you safe. I have built a new treasury since my ascension. Have Lu Yan move everything from the new treasury into the main one. While you're at it, feel free to pick anything you like. Just don't exceed 2 million spirit stones. Great Flame still has many expenses. The things you brought over earlier are also in the treasury. Whether or not you want to take them is up to you. Xiao Tian was thrilled. This is too good to be true. Life's great. Having the ruler of a country backing me and being able to spend money freely. This is amazing. He immediately cupped his fists in gratitude and laughed. Thank you, your majesty. I promise to manage the treasury securely for you. Having said this, Xiao Tian turned to leave. However, the empress suddenly called out to him, Xiao Tian. Xiao Tian quickly turned around. What's the matter, your majesty? The empress slowly approached him, then broke into a warm smile. Thank you. Xiao Tian understood her sentiment and casually responded, You're welcome, my wife. That day, Xiao Tian, along with Zhong Ling and Lu Yan, visited the empress's private treasury. Surprisingly, among the room full of rare and exotic treasures, the only thing that caught Xiao Tian's eye looked like a coffin. Zhong Ling was puzzled. This thing looks kinda strange, doesn't it? But Xiao Tian's eyes were filled with 
nostalgia as he gently touched the wooden box. What's strange about it? It looks like a coffin. Annoyed, Xiao Tian immediately gave Zhong Ling a flick on the forehead. Nonsense. This is a single-user armored weapons cabinet, and it's a custom-made version from my master. Upon hearing this, Zhong Ling was immediately interested. A single-user armored weapons cabinet, custom-made by a master? Sounds awesome. Can I take a look? Without thinking, Xiao Tian directly refused. This box had actually come with him when he was summoned. It was a weapons cabinet he used on Earth during his time as an assassin. If possible, he hoped to never use this weapons cache again. Subsequently, Xiao Tian called to the two women. Let's go. Let's check out my father-in-law's old treasury. Not long after, the three of them arrived at the entrance of the old emperor of the Great Flame Dynasty's treasury. Just as they were about to enter, they were stopped by guards at the door. The two soldiers shouted in unison, This is a restricted area. No unauthorized entry. Xiao Tian smiled slightly. I am the empress's husband, and I am here to take over the treasury by her orders. Seeing the key to the treasury in Xiao Tian's hand, the soldiers immediately sheathed their weapons and turned to open the gate. Upon entering, the three were stunned. The entire space of the treasury was packed full of spirit stones and treasures, piled up so densely that it seemed overwhelming. Their eyes widened, as the room was so filled that it seemed endless. Xiao Tian couldn't help but exclaim, Father-in-law, you really are something. This dowry is straightforwardly overwhelming. But that said, a founding emperor's private stash, being dozens of times richer than the entire Great Flame Dynasty, seems rather unreasonable, doesn't it? Zhong Ling was also dumbstruck and murmured, How many spirit stones could there be here? Suddenly, Xiao Tian patted Lu Yan's shoulder. Go get the empress. Let's see what she wants to do with all these spirit stones. Lu Yan nodded and immediately left. At this moment, Xiao Tian whimsically asked Zhong Ling, Do you think your dad would faint if he saw this? Zhong Ling shrugged. My father has been in charge of finances for years. How could he faint over something like this? Xiao Tian thought about it. Fair point. Just then, the empress and Zhong Yang Ming arrived. Xiao Tian stepped forward. What should we do? The empress was stunned looking at all of it, while Zhong Yang Ming suddenly collapsed and fainted on the spot. Everyone looked at Zhong Yang Ming speechlessly. Zhong Ling covered her face. This is too embarrassing. A moment later, Zhong Yang Ming regained consciousness and excitedly examined the room full of spirit stones. These could be used to forge new weapons. These could be used for the southern frontier. He he he. Finally, we can fight a war of abundance. The empress, with a loving look on her face, told Xiao Tian, if it weren't for you, I wouldn't have known that my father's private treasury had so many spirit stones. From now on, take as many spirit stones as you want, as long as you're happy. Hearing this, Xiao Tian was elated. Take as many as I want. He he he. I've struck it rich. Not long after, Xiao Tian was the first to leave the treasury, with Zhong Ling and Lu Yan covering their faces and walking alongside him. Behind them, several soldiers were struggling to carry a bed made of spirit stones. Lu Yan, won't this bed be too hard to sleep on? Zhong Ling asked. I don't know. As long as the prince likes it, Lu Yan responded. Xiao Tian was lying on the spiritual bed moved from the empress's treasury. Suddenly, an eye appeared between his eyebrows, scanning around. Moments later, the eye transformed into a spiritual consciousness, showering down radiant light into Xiao Tian's sea of consciousness. This spiritual consciousness was a legacy spirit from the ancient god race. After examining Xiao Tian's sea of consciousness, the spirit looked incredulous. Is this a human sea of consciousness? I must sense it again to be sure. The elderly-looking legacy spirit closed its eyes and began to mutter incantations. Moments later, he was enraged. How is this possible? The lowly human race has no right to inherit the ancient god's legacy. They must have used some despicable means to steal it. Suddenly, a voice sounded in front of the old spirit. Analysis complete. Legacy spirit of the ancient gods, responsible for imparting legacy knowledge. Upon focusing, the old spirit saw that the source of the voice was a tomato. But what was even more terrifying was what came next. Generally, the more starlight a sea of consciousness had, the stronger the soul. The old spirit had 99 starlights behind him, which was already incredibly powerful. However, this tomato had 3,000 starlights. He couldn't help but exclaim, Who, who are you? Isn't this supposed to be a human sea of consciousness? I am Puppy, the servant of my master. The sea of consciousness urine does indeed belong to my master, Puppy replied. Just then, Xiao Tian also appeared. Why is it so noisy here? Can a person get some sleep? Upon hearing the voice, the old man immediately knelt down without any hesitation, muttering to himself, This has to be a monster. Xiao Tian was enveloped by boundless starlight. At this moment, Puppy suddenly warned the old man, Intruder, please step back. My master just woke up and might accidentally erase your existence. Hearing this, the old man slid back a good distance while still kneeling on the ground. Xiao Tian was baffled and asked Puppy, Puppy, come here. Why did an old man suddenly appear in my sea of consciousness? Respected master, this old man is a legacy spirit from the ancient god race's golden scripture. According to my analysis, under normal circumstances, he would guide the inheritor with knowledge within the sea of consciousness, Puppy explained. Hearing this, Xiao Tian understood. Ah, so the ancient god race looks like this? He even looks like a teacher. The old man chuckled and responded, Indeed, sir, my appearance is in the likeness of the ancient god race.
god race, but in his mind, he was pondering how to tactfully engage with this powerful figure. If he could pretend to impart knowledge and extract information from him, maybe the ancient god race could be revitalized. He he he. The next second, Xiao Tian suddenly leaned in close to his face and asked, What are you thinking? Caught off guard, the old man's face turned awkward. Sir, I. Seeing his reaction, Xiao Tian suddenly shouted, Why are you acting so guilty? As expected, those who aren't from my kind have ulterior motives. You old wretch, you're definitely up to no good. Puppy, eat him. With a swoosh, Puppy darted past, and the old man lost his lower half. Seeing that his scheme was exposed, the old man's face turned angry. You're not playing by the rules, resorting to violence. Have you lost all sense of honor as a strong person? Xiao Tian coldly snorted, just as I suspected. You're filled with resentment because your plot was exposed. Is this the intellect of the ancient god race's legacy spirit? As he spoke, Puppy had already eaten the old man until only his head remained, but he was still cursing and grumbling. Shortly afterward, Puppy informed Xiao Tian that he needed to upgrade. Well, nobody ever told me that a system could be upgraded by eating. That night, a shadowy figure was lying on a roof within the palace, peering through a hole at Xiao Tian. Worthy of being the Empress's beloved consort, so extravagant, even using so many spirit stones as a bed. Sadly, your days of comfort are over. The next second, the masked man plummeted down, holding a shining silver blade in his hand. However, the blade broke into two pieces with a clang, and Xiao Tian continued to sleep, oblivious to what had just happened. The broken blade fell to the ground with a clatter under the masked man's stunned gaze. Frozen in place, the masked man was at a loss for what to do next. Just as Xiao Tian began to wake up and saw someone standing in front of him, he too was startled. Who are you? What are you doing here? The masked man was sweating profusely. Um, I didn't mean to. Do you believe me? At that moment, a servant outside the room also called out, Prince, are you alright? Xiao Tian immediately shouted back, I just accidentally knocked something over. I'm fine. Just send Lu Yan over. The masked man looked confused, having no idea what he was planning. The two guards outside who were about to break in also stopped and exchanged glances. Yes, Prince. Xiao Tian then picked up the broken blade, curiously inspecting its material. I can't believe someone would actually dare to assassinate me in the palace. The next second, Xiao Tian and casually crushed the broken blade into a ball. The masked man was completely shocked. What the hell is this? That was a high-level spiritual weapon given to me by my master. Is the intelligence department in the palace filled with idiots? Weren't you supposed to be an ordinary person? The masked man fell to the ground, shivering. At that moment, Lu Yan also rushed over. Prince, what happened? I had just woken up when this guy tried to knock me out with a dagger. By the way, has the Empress noticed any of the commotion here? Don't worry, Prince. I was nearby. There was no disturbance here. The Empress was not alerted. Xiao Tian side with relief. That's good, as long as she wasn't disturbed. By the way, where is the weapon? Lu Yan looked around but saw nothing. Xiao Tian extended his hand. It shattered when he tried to strike me. I was bored, so I was playing with it. Here, you can have it. It should be worth some money as scrap. Upon examining the small ball, Lu Yan was amazed. Goodness, this is actually spiritual edge gold. Just this lump could easily sell for hundreds of thousands of spirit stones. Lu Yan immediately thanked the prince with a fist and palm salute, then turned towards the masked man. Another one from the Black Soul Hall? Consider Considering your age and that you managed to sneak into the palace without being detected, you must be one of the twin evils under the six evil shadow killer, right? The masked man hurriedly smiled and said, You have good eyes, ma'am. I am earthly killer Fong Mang. It was all a misunderstanding. A misunderstanding? You broke into the palace at night to assassinate the prince, and you're talking about a misunderstanding? Fong Mang quickly explained, I wasn't trying to assassinate you. I used the blunt side of the knife. Prince, think about it. Didn't I use the blunt side? Xiao Tian nodded. Yes. You did use the blunt side. Exactly. I came into the palace just to gather some information. I absolutely had no intention of assassination. Hearing this, Xiao Tian looked at him in silence for a moment, then turned to Lu Yan and said, I feel like this guy is treating me like a fool. Lu Yan, the head of the Imperial Guard, also sighed helplessly and said, Just accept your fate. Your Black Soul Hall is unlucky to have fallen into the hands of the prince again. The masked man paused. What do you mean? Again? As far as I know, only poisonous marsh elder from our Black Soul Hall has been here before. Why are you saying again? Again, the masked man seemed to realize something, his eyes filled with horror and unease. The next second, he tremblingly pointed his finger and asked, Are you the king of hell? They had already received news that one of the six evils from Black Soul Hall, Poisonous Marsh Elder, had been completely annihilated by a mysterious powerhouse. Also, the infamous assassination organization, Blood Cloud Tower, was completely destroyed by that mysterious powerhouse within a day. The world knew that this mysterious powerhouse had left a steel behind with the name King of Hell inscribed on it. Now they're telling him that this King of hell is the useless prince in front of him? The man who's just a pretty face charming the empress. The masked man was so scared that his liver almost exploded, and his mind began to drift. He suddenly shouted loudly, Prince Xiao, you are the king of hell. As he spoke, he even vibrated his spiritual energy, trying to get this information out. Xiao Tian was slightly stunned by his loud shout, dude, why are you shouting so loudly? 
What if my wife hears this? Xiao Tian then waved his hand casually. Suddenly, a crack appeared in the space right in front of him. The masked man was completely stunned, tearing open space with bare hands. Is he even human? Before he could react, Xiao Tian had already grabbed him by the neck. I was originally thinking of giving you a chance to start anew. I didn't expect you to be so malicious, deliberately shouting loudly and vibrating your spiritual energy. Were you trying to alert his majesty and expose my true abilities? The masked man was trembling all over, wanting to beg for mercy but unable to speak. Desperate, he gestured with his hands. Xiao Tian sighed. You'd rather die than beg for mercy from me and even provoke me with gestures. Speaking, Xiao Tian sighed again. I guess I was overthinking it. Assassins would rather die than surrender. No sooner had he spoken than the masked man was tossed into the space crack. Xiao Tian then brought his hands together as if asking for the heavens to forgive his act of killing. After that, Xiao Tian chuckled. I really do treat others generously and hold myself to strict standards. Lu Yan listened and couldn't help but roll her eyes. First there was the destruction of the body, now there's this generosity. Prince, your understanding is always so extraordinary. By the way, go and see if the Empress is still in the Imperial study and see if she was disturbed by the noise here. Just as Lu Yan nodded and was about to leave, a guard reported at the door. Half an hour ago, General Zhong Li Huang hurried into the palace. Soon after, the Empress left with her and asked me to inform the prince that she might not return tonight, advising him not to wait. Xiao Tian was instantly overjoyed. Isn't this perfect timing? My freeloading lifestyle is saved. Then, Xiao Tian waved his hand. All right, you guys can go on duty. After the two left, Xiao Tian lay on the bed, happily thinking, I got a scare tonight. I'll have Zhong Yangming make me some extra delicious food tomorrow. The next morning, Zhong Ling was pacing anxiously back and forth in the courtyard. Zhong Li Suang, who had been searching all night, just returned and asked, any news of your father in the city? Zhong Ling, dark circles under her eyes and a dejected face, replied, no, I've searched everywhere in the city and haven't found any trace of my father. Zhong Li Suang clenched her teeth. I also searched around the imperial city and found no trace of your father. Just then, a golden light suddenly fell in front of them. The aura was so astonishing that both of them felt like they were facing a great enemy. Who is it? Zhong Li Suang hastily asked. As the light dispersed, they finally saw that it was the Great Flame Empress. Zhong Li Suang hurriedly approached her and asked, Your Majesty, any news? The Empress shook her head. Aunt Zhong, I haven't found any trace of Uncle Zhong. Zhong Li Suang almost collapsed to the ground. It's my fault. All my fault. I shouldn't have argued with him yesterday and kicked him out of the room in a fit of anger. If he had been with me, he wouldn't have been abducted. The Empress also looked grim. I suspect the main reason Uncle Zhong was kidnapped has to do with the situation in the southern border. Under his administration, the southern border has become increasingly stable. He has rooted out many troublemakers hiding among the refugees. And to retaliate, they would surely seek an organization capable of infiltrating the imperial city, undetected to abduct the Great Flame Minister of Revenue. That leaves only one option, the Black Soul Hall. Upon hearing the Empress's analysis, Zhong Li Suang became even more worried. The Black Soul Hall is known for their extreme and violent behavior. The chances of my husband coming back safely are slim, she thought. Falling to her knees, she pleaded, Your Majesty, I've never asked you for anything, but I beg you to save him. The Empress quickly helped her up. Aunt Zhong, although we are in a ruler-subject relationship, I am also your little Ruoyan. Don't worry, I will bring Uncle Zhong back in my personal capacity. Zhong Li Suang, teary-eyed, thanked her. Thank you. Aunt Zhong thanks you. Seeing her so distressed, the Empress turned to Zhong Ling. Take good care of your mother. Zhong Ling nodded, and the next moment, the Empress transformed into a beam of golden light and shot up into the sky. As soon as the Empress left, Zhong Li Suang suddenly felt uneasy. What if the enemy is trying to draw her away? What if they haven't actually gone far? Linger, stay at home and don't wander around. I'll continue to search for your father nearby, she said before leaving. Left alone, Zhong Ling was anxious, pacing like an ant on a hot pan. What if mom is wrong? What if something has already happened to dad? Suddenly, she had an idea and thought of Prince Xiao Tian, who was likely still sleeping in the palace. She rushed toward the palace as fast as she could. Meanwhile, in Xiao Tian's side chamber, Lu Yan had just finished her physical training. Zhong Ling burst in, asking, is the prince here? He's probably still sleeping. Young general, what's going on? Frantic, Zhong Ling exclaimed, my dad is missing. Lu Yan was taken aback, your dad is missing? Without explaining, Zhong Ling rushed to Xiao Tian's room, pushed open the door, and shouted, prince, wake up. Xiao Tian, who was rudely awakened, looked at her unhappily. When he realized it was Zhong Ling, he finally sat up, yawned, and asked, what are you doing here so early, you little rascal? Prince, my father was taken away last night, and we still haven't found him. I know you've said you're tired of fighting, but could you please help this time? Before Zhong Ling could finish her sentence, Xiao Tian exploded. What did you say? My chef was taken away. Zhong Ling was stunned. Chef? Prince, did you just give something away? My father treats you like a brother, and you see him as your chef? Realizing his mistake, Xiao Tian awkwardly replied, ignore what I just said, let's start over. Then, strangely, he lay back down on the bed, pretending that nothing had happened. The next second, he suddenly sat up, grabbed Zhong Ling by the shoulders, and shouted, what did you say?
away. My good older brother was taken away. Zhong Ling and Lu Yan just silently watched him perform. The atmosphere became extremely awkward, clearing his throat. Xiao Tian admitted, All right, I was just kidding. No wonder Her Majesty wasn't in the palace yesterday. Such a serious incident has happened. Who dares to kidnap the Minister of Revenue in the capital? Prince, have you forgotten? Last night, someone bold enough also infiltrated the palace and attacked you. Lu Yan reminded him. Hearing this, Zhong Ling was shocked again. What? Who's audacious enough to make a move on the prince? After pondering for a moment, Xiao Tian said, Black Soul Hall. It's them again. How audacious. Why are they targeting me? Both Zhong Ling and Lu Yan were puzzled. How did it become about targeting you, prince? Xiao Tian looked serious. Think about it. Ever since I became the Great Flame Prince, I've kept a low profile. All I do every day is enjoy some good food and have a little wine. I haven't offended anyone, have I? Both of them stared at him blankly. It seemed like he was right. So, this Black Soul Hall. First, there was that old man who somehow showed up at Green Flame Mountain to ambush me. It may seem coincidental, but is it really? Maybe they discovered some clues about me from the Blood Cloud Tower incident, so they deliberately came to investigate. And this time, the man from Black Soul Hall who would rather die than beg for mercy, he came directly at me. In the Great Flame Dynasty, there are so many other people. Why didn't they target Prime Minister Liu Outian, but instead kidnapped Zhong Yang Ming? Who's closest to me? Prime Minister Liu Outian is a heavyweight figure in the dynasty. Them kidnapping Zhong Yang Ming shows that I have reason to suspect they're targeting me. Listening to this, Liu Yan and Zhong Ling were almost speechless. Prince, you're really overthinking it. In their eyes, you're just an ordinary person. Who would target you? Ignoring them, Xiao Tian continued, Now Her Majesty has also gone to Black Soul Hall. If she sees me taking action, won't my true abilities be exposed? But if I don't take action and something happens to Minister Zhong, I'll never get to enjoy delicious meals again. This is infuriating. Why do some people always want to harm me? I just want to eat, drink, and be merry. Is that wrong? No, this absolutely won't do. I have to go and eliminate them. Don't worry, I will bring your father back. With that, Xiao Tian transformed into a beam of golden light and shot towards the sky like a rocket. The maids in the yard, who were bringing breakfast, were startled by the sudden rumbling noise. Only after a moment, when the sound gradually faded, did they look around in astonishment. Zhong Ling then turned to Lu Yan. Isn't Prince a bit too sensitive? Black Soul Hall probably doesn't mean that, right? Lu Yan thought for a moment, maybe before being summoned, Prince had some experiences in his own realm that make him always suspect people are out to get him. By now, Zhong Ling was no longer worried about her father, Lu Yan. I suddenly feel some sympathy for Black Soul Hall. What on earth did they kidnap my dad for? There's no need for that. There's nothing to sympathize with. Just like Prince said, this Black Soul Hall is a disgusting and troublesome force that deserves to be wiped out. Now that they've provoked Prince, they're just asking for trouble. Meanwhile, the Empress, who is out searching, hasn't found a single clue. She can't believe that they'd be able to get away with Zhong Yang Ming so quickly. She's already reached the border of the Great Flame. Should she continue to search further out? If she moves further south, it'll be Black Soul Hall territory. If she goes in recklessly, it'll be tantamount to tearing up all pretense of civility. No, I should not assume the worst just yet. I'll go search the south first. Just as she was indecisive, something was flying towards her at incredible speed from behind. Startled, the Empress immediately released a defensive golden light. What is this thing, and why is it so fast? A huge beam of light zipped past her. Its momentum was so great that even as a ninth-level powerhouse, she would be obliterated if hit. Thinking she was under attack, she quickly unsheathed sheathed her sword, only to realize she had no power to resist. Suppressing her shock, she shouted, Who is it? Identify yourself. With that, she slashed her sword, producing a powerful wave of sword energy. But this figure didn't pause for a moment and charged straight ahead. The Empress stared in the direction it went, murmuring to herself, So strong. Who is this powerful individual? That direction is towards Black Soul Hall. A sudden thought struck her. Could it be? He is the King of Hell? The mysterious powerhouse who destroyed the Blood Cloud Tower with a single punch, an existence that surpasses the 10th level? Empress quickly chased after him, eager to find out who this person was. On the other side, in a valley, a group of people were waiting in front of a teleportation circle. Moments later, a bearded man appeared in front of the circle with Zhong Yang Ming. All present quickly knelt on one knee and said in unison, Greetings, Heavenly Killer. With a stern face, Heavenly Killer nodded and then escorted Zhong Yang Ming through the crowd. At this moment, Zhong Yang Ming felt a surge of emotions. Could this be the headquarters of Black Soul Hall? Yet the grand doors in front of him and the surrounding decorations looked fairly new, like likely built within 30 to 40 years. If his conjectures were correct, then something was off about Black Soul Hall. According to what he knew, the existence of Black Soul Hall had to be longer than 40 years. As the doors slowly opened and the two entered the hall, Zhong Yang Ming was roughly thrown to the ground by Heavenly Killer. Then, with clasped fists and a respectful face, Heavenly Killer spoke, My lord, I have brought Zhong Yang Ming from the Great Flame Dynasty. The man smiled faintly. It seems you've acted much quicker than Earthly Killer. Any problems along the way? Heavenly Killer continued to explain. My lord, this man's wife, General Zhong Lis Huang, reacted quickly. She went out of the city with Empress Zi Ruoyan to search 
search for him. Unfortunately, they never suspect in our hidden short distance teleportation circles. The man nodded in approval. Very good. Well done. This somewhat sinister looking man was none other than the master of Black Soul Hall by Ching Lian. Zhong Yang Ming had obviously heard of him and blurted out his name. You have good composure and courage, Lord Zhong, said the woman leading a few of Black Soul Hall's executives. She smiled. I'm curious to see if your courage is greater than that of most people. Zhong Yang Ming showed no fear. It looks like my odds are poor this time, and I probably won't be able to go back. So be it. I'm just a mere minister of revenue. Seeing such grandeur from Black Soul Hall before my death is not a wasted journey. At that point, Bai Qinglian finally spoke up. Minister Zhong, why so pessimistic? We in Black Soul Hall are reasonable people. We've invited you here to discuss a matter. Nothing more than to help maintain Prince Xiao Tian's position. In addition, we would like you to collaborate with Xiao Tian to monitor Empress Zi Ruoyan's movements. Zhong Yang Ming paused. Monitor the Empress? What exactly are you planning? Prince Xiao Tian is just an ordinary person. Why are you so concerned about keeping him safe? Bai Qinglian chuckled behind his hand. What we plan to do and why we're acting against Lu Outian are not for you to know. Hearing this, Zhong Yang Ming realized that Black Soul Hall wasn't the external force collaborating with Lu Outian. But why did they want to monitor the Empress? What was the significance of that information? Seeing his silence, Bai Qinglian prodded. So, Minister Zhong, what say you? I admire you. You know, you'd best recognize a good opportunity when you see one. Grimacing as if preparing for death, Zhong Yang Ming clenched his teeth. I was but a penniless scholar, fortunate enough to be favored by the late emperor, which led to my current status. And the present empress, while a monarch in name, is also my niece who I've seen grow up. Do you really think I would betray my own family? Bai Qinglian chuckled. You've got backbone, but unfortunately, in our domain, backbone is the most useless commodity. Su Fu, show Minister Zhong what you can do. A man named Su Fu grinned. All right. In the blink of an eye, Su Fu morphed and appeared before Zhong Yang Ming, landing a brutal punch on his stomach. Su Fu then pulled out a strange, large, and fat worm, forcibly prying open Zhong Yang Ming's mouth and shoving it inside. After the deed was done, he carelessly threw Zhong Yang Ming onto the ground. Despite his retching, Zhong Yang Ming could only helplessly let the worm burrow deeper into his abdomen. With a cruel smile, Su Fu explained, this is a scent-sniffing insect, a very interesting type of poison. It's now parasitic inside you. Within three days, if you don't smell the specific scent, the insect will consume your internal organs. Its abdominal legs will also pierce into your flesh to suck your blood, making your life worse than death. So, Minister Zhong, how about it? You only have to agree. Light this incense, and your body will emit a smell that the scent-sniffing insect detests. It won't bother you after that. Zhong Yang Ming lay trembling on the ground, enduring immense pain, yet never pleading for mercy. Those present couldn't help but admire his resilience. Throughout this, he had not uttered a single cry. Only Su Fu roared in what seemed like a loss of face. This is impossible. Why aren't you screaming? Don't you feel pain? After a while, Master Bai Qinglian, curious whether Zhong Yang Ming was dead or alive, couldn't help but call out his name. Zhong Yang Ming gritted his teeth and groaned, veins popping on his face. The next second, he actually stood up and shouted. The late emperor humbled himself to call me, a lowly person, his brother and friend. The current empress, since childhood, has called me uncle. This great flame dynasty is both my nation and my family. You, Black Soul Hall, think a mere finger-length poison insect can make me yield? You are laughable. Su Fu seated, irate that his methods were so belittled. Zhong Yang Ming, are you truly seeking death? Enduring the severe pain in his abdomen, Zhong Yang Ming burst into laughter once more. I, Zhong Yang Ming, would rather die standing than live on my knees. Upon hearing this, Bai Qinglian gave up on persuading Zhong Yang Ming to surrender. Very well, if you insist on seeking death, I will grant you that wish. Shuang Yin, your skills are the best for the job, your slices are the thinnest. Execute him for me. Hearing this, the masked man known as Shuang Yin said nothing but instantly appeared in front of Zhong Yang Ming. Su Fu muttered with some dissatisfaction, knowing that with Shuang Yin in action, Zhong Yang Ming's death was inevitable. So boring. Shuang Yin's blade then emitted an overwhelming aura, facing the brink of life and death. Zhong Yang Ming couldn't help but shed tears. I'm sorry, your majesty. I can no longer assist you. Linger, I won't be able to see you marry and have children. My wife, I'm sorry. I really shouldn't have argued with you last night. Just as Zhong Yang Ming was silently repenting, the ceiling of the Black Soul Hall suddenly shattered with a loud bang. Amid the flying debris, a dark figure slowly appeared before everyone's eyes. He had arrived. Xiao Tian descended from the sky, crushing an evil king underfoot as he landed. Seeing this familiar yet strange silhouette and feeling the bone-chilling pressure emanating from him, Zhong Yang Ming was stunned, tears still in his eyes. Xiao Tian turned his head and smiled. Good morning, Minister Zhong. Oh, why are you crying? The next second, Xiao Tian's eyes exploded with cold light. You dare bully even my cook. As his words rang out, an overwhelming force surged forth, causing several evil kings to vomit blood on the spot. Xiao Tian's face turned serious. If it weren't for fear of harming Zhong Yang Ming, why would I only shout those worthless individuals to death? And I just saw my wife Zi Ruan earlier. Xiao Tian then decided to take action immediately. Lunch
lunging towards Bai Qinglian, the master of the Black Soul Hall. Bai Qinglian almost wet himself. Wait, Prince Xiao. Zhong Yangming has a painful parasite inside him. Without an antidote, he'll surely die. Hearing this, Xiao Tian turned his head towards Zhong Yangming and saw him shivering all over. You're still lying at this point. He's not in pain. He's clearly stunned. Stunned? He's stunned because you scared him. Su Fu quickly explained. Prince Xiao, I assure you, I planted this insect. Without an antidote, he will indeed die. If you don't believe me, just ask Minister Zhong. The others also chimed in. Minister Zhong, please explain to Prince Xiao. Your life is at stake. Exactly, Prince Xiao. Zhong Yangming is your good friend and an important minister. You can't joke around with his life. Zhong Yangming was utterly confused. Who am I? Where am I? What are these people doing? Weren't they trying to kill me just a moment ago? What's going on here? After hearing their words, a still somewhat skeptical Xiao Tian finally asked Zhong Yangming, Are you really dying? To which Zhong Yangming responded, Are you really Prince Xiao Tian? Xiao Tian continued, A brat named Zhong Ling mentioned that when she was six years old, she had an annoying dad who would purposely aim his butt at her face before farting. At this, everyone in the Black Soul Hall struggled not to burst out laughing. Zhong Yangming felt his scalp tingle. Why would the prince use this to prove his identity? That damned girl Zhong Ling remembered something from when she was six. What's wrong with a new dad having a little fun with his child? A moment later, Bai Qinglian stepped forward to comfort Xiao Tian. Prince Xiao, it's all a misunderstanding. Xiao Tian felt disgusted hearing this. Can you talk like a normal person? You sound so effeminate. It's nauseating. Bai Qinglian broke out in a cold sweat. Ahem, Prince Xiao. Sorry, old habits die hard. Enough. No more nonsense. Bring out the antidote. Xiao Tian waved his hand impatiently. At that, Su Fu took out a lamp, filling the air with a faint fragrance. Zhong Yangming breathed deeply, as if he were a fish returned to water. Xiao Tian was a bit puzzled. Is this the antidote? Zhong Yangming hurriedly explained, My prince, this is just to temporarily relieve the pain caused by the scent-sniffing insect inside me. It's not the antidote. Hearing this, Xiao Tian was instantly furious. You dare to trick me? Terrified, Bai Qinglian hurriedly explained, Not at all, Prince Xiao. We're just trying to make Minister Zhong more comfortable for the time being. As for the antidote, we hope to use it in exchange for the lives of the four of us. Also, we wish to form a blood pact for added security. Before Xiao Tian could speak, Zhong Yangming stood up to stop him. No, Prince, you absolutely can't agree. A blood pact is an unbreakable bond. Once established, you can never act against them. Zhong Yangming clenched his teeth. My death would be a small price to pay. The malignant tumor that is the Black Soul Hall must be eradicated. Hearing this, the people of the Black Soul Hall felt their scalps tingle. Their worst fear had come true. It wasn't that Xiao Tian was too strong. It was that Zhong Yangming was not afraid to die. Who knew that the next second, Xiao Tian suddenly spoke. Fine, let's form a blood pact. Xiao Tian then turned his gaze back to Zhong Yangming. If you die, where will I find another chef who cooks as deliciously as you? Besides, your daughter, that little brat Zhong Ling, would cry nonstop and annoy everyone if she knew her dad was really dead. Suddenly, Xiao Tian's face turned cold and he told the people of Black Soul Hall, let me give you some advice. Be more considerate in your actions. Remember, what goes around comes around. Nobody is spared by the heavens. Then, standing in place, Xiao Tian was surrounded by several people from the Black Soul Hall. Together they chanted, invoking the cosmic laws as their witness. In exchange for the antidote to save Zhong Yangming's life, Xiao Tian would never harm any of the Black Soul Hall members present. The antidote must also be effective. As the red glow of cosmic laws gradually dissipated, the blood pact was successfully formed. An imprint was engraved on Xiao Tian's hand by cosmic laws. Seeing this, Su Fu took out an antidote and gave it to Xiao Tian. After taking this, within three days, the scent-sniffing insect will dissolve into pus. With that, he tossed the antidote to Zhong Yangming. Xiao Tian then coldly warned them, I hope you cherish this opportunity. Take care. After saying that, Xiao Tian left with Zhong Yangming in a flash of light. Bai Qinglian and his men finally exhaled in relief. Finally, that guy is gone. A moment later, Bai Qinglian, who had recovered his energy, suddenly yelled at Su Fu, plant a scent-sniffing insect in every person in the intelligence department. How dare you tell me Xiao Tian is a waste? Make them suffer. Still stunned by Xiao Tian, Su Fu nodded mechanically. Don't worry, master, I'll make their lives a living hell. And these fools dare to say that Xiao Tian is a useless slacker? That man is clearly an incredibly strong monster. Another person scratched his head and asked, Master, what should we do now? Bai Qinglian gritted his teeth, his face full of resentment. It seems we'll have to ask for the help of high-ranking officials from the Holy Demon Sect's headquarters. Revenge is a dish best served cold. The blood pact only says he can't harm us, but we can still go after him. Xiao Tian overlooked this detail. Ha ha ha. I will definitely torture him and make him suffer. Just then, a hearty laugh came from outside the front gate. The woman shivered in fear and hurriedly patted Bai Qinglian. Master. Annoyed, Bai Qinglian snapped. What are you doing? Haven't I said I hate being touched by women? Trembling, the woman pointed towards the gate. Master, look over there. Look. Reluctantly, Bai Qinglian followed the direction she was pointing and was dumbfounded. This is trouble. Hiding outside the gate were none other than Xiao Tian and Zhong Yang Ming. 
who had returned. Prince, we've been discovered, Zhong Yangming said. Xiao Tian stepped out and spoke. Old Zhong, do you know how to describe people like these? Zhong Yangming thought for a moment. I don't know. Prince, you tell me. With a smirk, Xiao Tian pointed at Bai Qinglian. It's called a leopard can't change its spots. Zhong Yangming chuckled. Indeed, the true source of happiness is built upon the suffering of others. All the people from the Black Soul Hall were terrified, but Zhong Yangming was immensely impressed by Xiao Tian. Though Prince may appear to be out of tune, he is actually very thoughtful. He went on to explain that Xiao Tian had told him earlier to observe these people to see if they had genuinely changed and had no intention of seeking revenge. Xiao Tian coldly stared at everyone. I originally thought of giving you a second chance to walk the path of righteousness. I even came back to compensate you for the roof I broke earlier. But you have disappointed me greatly. Bai Qinglian broke out into a cold sweat. Prince Xiao, I was just speaking casually. Besides, we have a blood pact. Zhong Yangming felt disheartened. I knew it would come to this. If not for saving me, Prince wouldn't be in such a passive position. The others from Black Soul Hall also tried to pacify the situation. Prince Xiao, the master is right. It's all a misunderstanding. We have a blood pact after all. Growing more audacious, Bai Qinglian continued, if you dare lay a hand on us, the rules of heaven and earth will fall, and all beings will be as insignificant as ants. Annoyed, Xiao Tian retorted, you're truly incorrigible. Even at this point, you don't know how to repent. You even speak in such a contrived manner. Just as I suspected, you people from Black Soul Hall have been scheming against me all along. Pointing at Bai Qinglian, he added, I've underestimated you. At first, I thought you were just trying to sabotage my relationship with the Empress through poisonous marsh elder and earthly killer, but I never expected you to be so meticulous as to trap me with a blood pact. Such a frightening mind, such poisonous scheming. Confused by Xiao Tian's accusations, Bai Qinglian wondered, what is he talking about? When did I ever scheme against him? If I had known he was this formidable, I would have stayed far away. The evil kings of Black Soul Hall looked at him in astonishment. Our master could scheme to this extent? That's incredible. Annoyed, Bai Qinglian retorted, why are you looking at me? I didn't do anything. How could I have used poisonous marsh elder? Wait a minute. Poisonous marsh elder? Bai Qinglian suddenly raised his voice. Are you saying that poisonous marsh elder died at your hands? Are you the king of hell? Xiao Tian replied earnestly. Don't make baseless accusations. Do I look like the kind of person who would kill indiscriminately? Poisonous marsh elder committed suicide, said Xiao Tian. Zhong Yangming, who was standing behind Xiao Tian, was now stunned. So Prince is actually the king of hell. The members of Black Soul Hall felt chills running down their spines upon hearing Xiao Tian's words. What on earth did you do to make someone prefer suicide over living another second? Are you a demon? Xiao Tian smiled and energy surged within his palm. Up to this point, you still have no intention of repenting, and you still slander me as the murderer. It seems you are rotten to the core. Fine, today I shall act as an agent of heaven and send you all to the paradise. Terrified, a subordinate acted quickly out of fear, spitting out a large amount of poisonous fluid towards Xiao Tian while questioning. You've already signed the blood oath. Aren't you afraid of the heavenly rules? Xiao Tian just snorted coldly, so low and dirty. Even your moves are disgusting. As he said this, his gaze sharpened, and an overwhelming force burst forth from his hand. It rushed toward the subordinate with a loud rumble, like a laser firing. Looking at the marks left on the ground and walls, Zhong Yangming was frightened. Prince, why are you so impulsive? You should know. Almost no one signs blood oaths because the vows are stringent and it's easy to break the rules. A severe violation will undoubtedly lead to death. Bai Qinglian also didn't expect that Xiao Tian would be so decisive, acting immediately. Was he not afraid of losing his life? As expected, at this moment, dark clouds gathered and thunder rolled in the sky outside the hall. A repressive atmosphere began to spread. Zhong Yangming looked at the sky, worried. The rules of heaven and earth can't be challenged or violated. Otherwise, calamity will strike, and under this thunder, death is inevitable. Prince, you're too reckless. At this moment, no one was happier than Bai Qinglian. He repeated the words that Xiao Tian had said earlier. The wheel of fate keeps turning. Heaven spares no one. As he spoke, thunderbolts, filled with rolling anger, rained down. It was as if the avatar of heavenly law was roaring at Xiao Tian. The people of Black Soul Hall reveled in Xiao Tian's misfortune, completely lost in their joy. Xiao Tian, however, kept his head low, seemingly somewhat dissatisfied. The next second, Xiao Tian suddenly let out a cold snort and angrily shouted, If you dare, try striking down on my head. As Xiao Tian's words fell, the giant dragon seemed to sense something wrong. Its pupils dilated in fear, and it quickly dispersed the dark clouds in the sky, replacing them with a beautiful rainbow. It then landed behind Xiao Tian and let out a soft roar, as if to proclaim Xiao Tian's sovereignty. It seemed to tell everyone, this Xiao Tian is my boss. Then it obediently began massaging Xiao Tian's legs and shoulders, acting very much like a sycophant. Zhong Yangming and the people of Black Soul Hall were completely stunned. They couldn't think of any words to describe their feelings at that moment. After the heavenly dragon finished flattering Xiao Tian, it slipped away as if its feet were greased. The group was so scared that they huddled together, trembling. Xiao Tian just smiled and extended his left hand, which was previously bound by the blood pact, saying, blood packs may be useful to you, but they mean nothing to me. As
As he spoke, he clenched his fist, and the pack vanished into thin air. Black Soul Hall's leader Bai Qinglian was completely stunned. What kind of freak is this? Even the laws of heaven and earth don't apply to him. Without any more hesitation, he knelt before Xiao Tian and cried out, Prince, I know I was wrong. Please spare my life. This time I am truly repentant. Xiao Tian shook his head. Really? I don't believe you. Bai Qinglian immediately put on an ingratiating face. Prince, I know a shocking secret. No need. I don't want to hear it. Interrupted Xiao Tian. People like you, who wreak havoc and kill indiscriminately, deserve to die. I already went against my better judgment by giving you a chance earlier. However, I'm a soft-hearted person. Considering you've spent years cultivating your skills, I'll give you one last chance. Like this. When I count to three, you tell me one good deed you've done in your life. If you have, it means there's still hope for you. Hearing this, the group exchanged glances. This guy Xiao Tian is just a simple-minded, brawny fool. We just need to flatter him a bit, and we'll be saved, they thought. Zhong Yang Ming felt uneasy. Prince, this doesn't seem right. These people don't deserve leniency. Xiao Tian just smiled. Minister Zhong, that kind of thinking is dangerous. The world is already dark and difficult. If even people like us, who have the power, don't give them a chance to embrace the light, when will the light ever break through the darkness? Why not give them an opportunity? Now then, are you three ready? Three! Upon hearing this, they were all stunned. Wait, shouldn't he start counting from one? Before they could react, Xiao Tian made his move. You're all so stubborn. I already counted a three. Why aren't you speaking? I guess I was overly optimistic. But don't worry, I won't let you die out in the open. As he spoke, a black hole suddenly appeared behind the group and swallowed them all up. He also clapped his hands and lamented, What's the use of having such power if you can't lead people to goodness? Sigh. As expected, as soon as he was saved, Zhong Yang Ming suggested, Prince, if you completely annihilate Black Soul Hall, the southern region of the Great Flame Dynasty will surely be stable for many years. Xiao Tian turned his head in silence. You see, I've just revealed my power, and you're already putting me to work. Zhong Yang Ming felt awkward. Well, the capable should bear more responsibility. Xiao Tian took a deep breath. You exploiting elites truly have no heart. Once my wife finds out about my real power, wouldn't I be busy all day and night without even knowing which way is up? No, I absolutely cannot reveal my strength. He turned towards Zhong Yang Ming. I warn you, do not expose my strength when you go back. Zhong Yang Ming wanted to say something, but Xiao Tian continued with a smile. If you dare to speak out, I'll tell Zhong Li Huang about the 167 secret stashes of money in your Zhong mansion. I'll also secretly abduct you to a brothel every night and let Zhong Li Huang catch you there. Zhong Yang Ming was horrified. Prince, can you really say such malicious things? Fine, I won't say anything, okay? Prince, what about my daughter and Lu Yan and Black Soul Hall? Xiao Tian waved his hand to interrupt. Zhong Ling and the others already know about my situation and have promised to keep it a secret. As for Black Soul Hall, come with me. The two walked out of the main hall. Only then did Zhong Yang Ming notice that apart from the main hall, the rest of Black Soul Hall had turned into ruins. What happened here? Xiao Tian smiled. When I arrived earlier, I came in too fast. The air pressure was too intense and it accidentally lowered the height of the buildings. As for them, they were probably crushed to death along the way. Perhaps this is retribution for their many evils. Zhong Yang Ming thought to himself, what a form of retribution this is. Moments later, the two arrived at a place that was relatively well preserved, sealed off by a large array. Xiao Tian reached out his hand and clawed at the air. The next second, the door was blasted open with a loud bang. The place was filled with rich spiritual energy and brilliant lights, probably where Black Soul Hall kept their ill-gotten gains. Upon entering, Zhong Yang Ming was stunned by the room full of spirit stones. Xiao Tian then called on his system, Puppy, to calculate the value of these items. To his surprise, Puppy informed him, the system is currently upgrading and requires temporary maintenance. Xiao Tian was immediately displeased. You can't even handle something this small. What's the use of having you? Might as well get rid of you here and now. Frightened, Puppy urgently paused the upgrade, calculating, the total value of Black Soul Hall's stash is 32 million spirit stones. May I continue the upgrade and maintenance now? Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Master. And the system resumed its upgrade, entering maintenance mode. Then, Xiao Tian sighed and told Zhong Yang Ming, the value of the stuff here is just over 32 million spirit stones. As compensation, it's barely passable. I didn't expect Black Soul Hall, which looks so grand, to be so poor. Zhong Yang Ming quickly explained, Prince, the entire annual tax revenue of the Great Flame Dynasty is only around 10 million spirit stones. Prince, shouldn't these be turned over to the National Treasury? Why are you talking about compensation? Xiao Tian looked displeased. Why should it go to the National Treasury? This is all compensation from Black Soul Halls by Qing Lian to us. Zhong Yang Ming was puzzled. What are you talking about? You've already made Bai Qinglian miserable. He's dead. Aren't you going to let him go? Xiao Tian crossed his arms and began to explain, Right now, I should be sipping some wine, eating some food, and waiting at your Zhong residence for the dishes you've prepared. But instead, I'm here because of Black Soul Hall. They were plotting against us. Shouldn't they compensate us 10 million spirit stones? I'll take 9 million, and you can have 1 million. Zhong Yang Ming was confused. Prince, what do you mean by plotting against us? Xiao Tian retorted, You don't 
don't understand. Time is money. Time is life. Black Soul Hall wasted our time. How is that not plotting against us? In addition to compensation, we should at least get 10 million spirit stones for our services, right? For tuition fees, I'll take a loss and count it as 10 million spirit stones. And for transportation costs, 5 million spirit stones is reasonable. Plus the emotional distress you suffered from being kidnapped, another 2 million isn't excessive. So that totals to 37 million spirit stones. The value of this stash is only 32 million. Darn it. Black Soul Hall still owes us 5 million spirit stones. Looking at Xiao Tian's indignant expression, Zhong Yangming's worldview completely collapsed. How is it that someone who's already gone could end up owing you 5 million? Prince, the way you do your accounting is absolutely unparalleled. After dressing himself in Zhong Yangming in night attire, Xiao Tian was very satisfied. Worthy of my choice, this outfit looks like it's made for escaping. Alright, wait for me a moment. I'm going to clean up the scene. With that, Xiao Tian suddenly burst forth with energy, and without making a move, the palace below started to tremble. In an instant, sand filled the sky, the ground sank, and all the buildings of Black Soul Hall disappeared into the earth. Zhong Yangming was left dumbfounded. Prince, just how strong are you? What realm are you in? Could you be above the 10th level? Xiao Tian honestly replied, I have no realm. I don't even have spiritual energy. Haven't you noticed? Zhong Yangming realized this fact a bit too late. Prince does indeed seem like an ordinary person, but why are you so strong? Don't guess. My strength is a bit special and seems to be increasing. I don't know just how powerful I am yet, but luckily, I'm very good at control. Otherwise, the Great Flame Dynasty would have already been destroyed. Destroyed? Zhong Yangming's scalp tingled in fear. It seems like it wouldn't be a difficult feat for someone with Prince's abilities. If I were a bit stronger, would I not have been so easily kidnapped? Thinking of this, Zhong Yangming clenched his fist and asked Xiao Tian, Prince, could you give me some guidance on cultivation? Xiao Tian was taken aback. You want to cultivate? I remember Zhong Ling saying you're not really interested in cultivation. You've been focusing all your attention on the affairs of the Great Flame Dynasty. Zhong Yangming became serious. After witnessing Prince's strength, my views have changed. This time, Black Soul Hall had something for me to do. That's why they didn't harm me. What if next time, someone sets their sights directly on the Great Flame Dynasty and wants to harm me? So, this incident with Prince has also given me some inspiration. If I appear weak on the surface, waiting for those who want to harm me to reveal themselves, can I just take them down in one fell swoop? With a sly smile covering his face, Zhong Yangming made his point. Xiao Tian was speechless. This guy is so cunning, planning to play the fool to catch the wise. Xiao Tian directly took a refusing posture. You can do it without involving me. I simply wanted to enjoy a peaceful life, and they forced me to act. But it's good for you to practice. It will save a lot of trouble. Have you thought about your alias yet? Zhong Yangming scratched his head, looking confused. Alias? What alias? So stupid. Everyone in this world has an alias. Think of one in advance so you can announce it when you act. I had a friend who used to ambush people in the toilet, earning him the nickname the slaughterer of the restroom. So, be serious about it. What if people call you the heavy cavalry? Xiao Tian spoke with righteous indignation, but Zhong Yangming only mumbled in bewilderment. Your friend, Xiao Tian, interrupted him. That's not the point. The point is your alias. Have you thought of one? Hearing this, Zhong Yangming's eyes turned determined. Call me heavy cavalry. Xiao Tian subconsciously praised him. Decisive and manly. Wait, are you sure you want to go with that name? Zhong Yangming nodded confidently. Yes, heavy cavalry it is. Heavy represents the weight of the responsibilities of the Great Flame Dynasty. Cavalry symbolizes charging into battle. I really like this name. Zhong Yangming then spoke again. Prince, could you do me a favor? Xiao Tian glared at him. Why do you have so many requests? Come on, Prince. How about this? Instead of preparing five meals a week for you, I'll prepare ten. Xiao Tian immediately brightened up. Speak, what is it? Zhong Yangming pointed at the ruins below. Could Prince write a line of text? Right. The affairs of the Great Flame, the King of Hell is destined to conquer. Make it big enough to cover the entire valley. I want to make a splash in these murky waters using the name of Prince, a hidden powerhouse. Let's see who has their eyes on our Great Flame Dynasty and what they're after. Xiao Tian stared at him blankly, unable to resist commenting. You're really scheming, aren't you? No sooner had he spoken than he felt a sudden jolt in his heart. He turned to look behind him. Oh no, my wife is coming. Quick, run. After leaving the name King of Hell on the ground, he stirred up a gust of wind with a loud boom and flew away immediately. Watching Prince disappear into the horizon, Zhong Yangming couldn't help but marvel at how incredibly powerful he was. Then he looked at the speed of the Empress. In comparison, she was really slow. A moment later, Empress gently descended in front of Zhong Yangming, enveloped in golden light. Seeing him unharmed, she was a bit puzzled. Uncle Zhong, are you okay? On closer inspection, she became even more confused. Didn't Zhong Li Huang say that you were kicked out in nothing but your undergarments? How come you're now dressed in a high-grade spiritual artifact? Then, the Empress casually turned her head and exclaimed, Holy crap, this is King of Hell. Zhong Yangming proceeded to explain, your Majesty, I was originally captured by Heavenly Killer Pang Tong, one of the six evils under the banner of the Black Soul Hall. According to Bai Qinglian, they wanted me to protect Prince from Luo Yin. Listening intently, Empress furrowed her brows, seeming
seemingly puzzled. Zhong Yanming continued, that's when King of Hell appeared. He was dressed in black, and I couldn't see his face clearly. Bai Qinglian and the others were killed by him. Not only did he give me an antidote, but he also allowed me to take all the treasures from the Black Soul Hall. He said he wasn't interested in them. A look of disbelief covered Empress's face. If that's the case, what does this King of Hell want? It seems he desires the current stability of the Great Flame Dynasty. He doesn't want us to be influenced by Black Soul Hall and Blood Cloud Tower. Your Majesty, think about it carefully. Lu Outyan has been devotedly serving the Great Flame. Also, Black Soul Hall not only refrained from offending the Great Flame a few years ago, but even took the initiative to confront Blood Cloud Tower on our behalf. Don't their goals seem to align? Their goal is to fatten up the Great Flame Dynasty's national power and resources, much like fattening up a pig before slaughter, Zhong Yangming said. Empress nodded thoughtfully, based on what you've said, that seems to be the case. Zhong Yangming then took out the storage ring that Xiao Tian had given him. Your Majesty, this is a gift from King of Hell. After sensing its contents, Empress was amazed. It's full of high-grade spiritual artifacts. King of Hell is really generous. It seems he genuinely wants the Great Flame Dynasty to prosper. I wonder what he's up to. Zhong Yangming couldn't help but think sarcastically. What else could he be up to? He probably just wants to indulge in food, drink, and leisure, and not worry about anything else. Oh, I need to ask Zhong Ling how Prince managed to annoy Poisonous Marsh Elder to death. After putting away the ring, Empress told Zhong Yangming, let's hurry back. General Zhong and Zhong Ling are quite worried about you. Thank you, your majesty. No sooner had Zhong Yangming spoken than he was enveloped in a force field. Empress then took him and flew into the sky. Only then did he realize how incredibly fast she actually was. Not long after, Zhong Li Huang and Zhong Ling were sighing in worry when Zhong Ling suddenly stood up, smacking Zhong Li Huang on the side. Mom, look! Zhong Li Huang looked and instantly teared up, mouth wide open. My husband is back. Despite the dark circles under his eyes, he looked rather spirited in his high-grade spiritual artifacts. Zhong Li Huang rushed forward to embrace her husband, and they both broke down in tears. It's all my fault. If I hadn't argued with you yesterday, none of this would have happened. No, no, it's my fault for making you angry, Zhong Yangming said. Zhong Ling looked on, rather annoyed. Enough, enough. You two have been married for years. Why are you being so mushy? I can't stand it. Hearing this, Zhong Li Huang finally let go of her husband and turned around to poke Zhong Ling on the head. Empress looked at the harmonious family scene and smiled contentedly, although there was a tinge of wistfulness in her smile. How wonderful it is to be with family. Whenever she dealt with petitions late at night, she would think about the happiness of other families and could only console herself with the thought, even if I'm alone, I can still manage. That night, after finishing her work, Empress stretched, feeling satisfied. A maid quickly approached and asked, Your Majesty, would you like some late-night snacks brought over? No need, I'm not really in the mood today. Has the back palace study been cleaned up? The maid seemed hesitant, stammering, It has been cleaned up. Tired and not noticing anything amiss, Empress walked directly to the back palace, only to find something seemed different. Usually, during her rest periods, there would be minimal lighting in the back palace, especially in the front yard, which should be dim and chilly. Why is it different today? She thought, picking up her pace. She saw her husband, Xiao Tian, sitting on a stone chair. Seeing Empress arrive, Xiao Tian smiled. You've been working so hard. How about a hot pot late night snack? You've probably never had something like this. Empress paused, emotion welling up inside her. How are you? Here. Xiao Tian stood up and guided Empress to sit down. Commander Lu told me that you have a small habit. Whenever you're up late handling state affairs, you like to have some late night snacks. Eating alone isn't much fun, so I prepared some local delicacies from my hometown to reward you, your majesty, for all your hard work. As he spoke, Xiao Tian picked up a piece of meat with his chopsticks. For hot pot, you need to cook the ingredients in the broth. Each ingredient has its own cooking time. Try this one. Unfortunately, we don't have sesame sauce here, otherwise a single dip would make it incredibly fragrant. Xiao Tian blew on the meat to cool it down. Your majesty, please, have a taste. Empress's cheeks flushed as she obediently opened her mouth to try it. After carefully chewing, she felt the delicious flavors spread across her palate, making her cheeks even rosier. Prince serves me so well, I'm very pleased. You deserve a reward. Xiao Tian looked at her with interest. What would your majesty like to reward me with? Empress returned his gaze fervently. I reward you with the chance to feed me again. Xiao Tian smiled. Your majesty, please wait a moment. The piece of meat I'm cooking for you this time requires special attention, so you'll have to wait. Empress silently watched Xiao Tian as he busied himself, feeling a sense of appreciation. It's so good not to be alone, she thought. The two continued to eat, drink, and chat happily, enjoying the steaming hot pot. Before they knew it, it was already late into the night. Finally full and satisfied, Xiao Tian put down his chopsticks. Standing up, he said, Your Majesty, it's getting late. I should be going. As he finished speaking, a ring on his hand emitted a glow, and the tableware was quickly put away. Xiao Tian prepared to leave, but Empress suddenly spoke. Why go through all the trouble? Just stay here and rest. Upon hearing these words, Xiao Tian felt a jolt in his heart. He turned to look at Empress, who was smiling at him, her eyes shining like autumn water. It seemed like it was going to be another restless night. In the middle of the night, 
Xiao Tian lay in bed while Empress sat upright, meditating. Xiao Tian was a bit speechless, so she invited me here just to watch her meditate, but her way of meditating is really something else. As time passed, Xiao Tian began to doze off. In his half-asleep state, he suddenly jolted awake. What on earth is that? A majestic dragon was spiraling around Empress, making her appear even more awe-inspiring. Feeling quite annoyed, Xiao Tian thought, why can't I cultivate? I want these cool visual effects too. He suddenly remembered the system, puppy, and called out to it in his mind. However, the system displayed a message saying it was undergoing an upgrade. Growing impatient, Xiao Tian thought, why isn't it done upgrading yet? Upon hearing this, puppy immediately paused its upgrade. I'm sorry, master, how may I assist you? Xiao Tian pointed to the dragon surrounding Empress. Can I get those light effects too? Puppy clarified, master, those aren't just light effects. They're the emperor's dragon energy and royal purple energy that surrounds Zi Ruoyan. These are extremely rare and dignified energies that belong to the human race's legitimate lineage. Disdain appeared on Xiao Tian's face. Legitimate lineage of the human race? Is it so impressive? Puppy responded, Master, there are thousands of different worlds in the universe, each with their own traditions and races. Zi Ruoyan's lineage is from the most legitimate among these in the realm of thousands of worlds. Xiao Tian finally got serious. Thousands of realms and worlds, and the legitimate lineage of the human race is so powerful? Does that mean the realm we are currently in is one of the most core ones? No, Master, the realm you are in is called the Southern Wilderness Realm, also known as the Southern Wilderness World. It's one of the most desolate, impoverished, and fragile realms among the thousands of realms and worlds, Puppy explained. Hearing this, Xiao Tian was rendered speechless. So, I'm in the worst one? Fine, go back to upgrading. Subsequently, he looked at Empress with a goofy grin. Who would have thought I'd be so lucky? Summoned to another world. And not only do I get an Empress as a wife, but she also has golden legendary potential. Just as Xiao Tian was entranced by Empress, she suddenly opened her eyes and looked at him. Startled, he quickly turned around, his face flushing as he stammered. I was just looking, not doing anything. Seeing his reaction, Empress chuckled affectionately. Then, Empress ended her meditative state. With a wave of her small hand, the lights dimmed, shrouding the room in soft darkness. All right, let's rest, she said as she lay down. Xiao Tian could only nod and obediently follow suit. After some time passed, under the increasingly bright starry sky, Xiao Tian, who was deep in sleep, was suddenly awoken by Empress, who kissed him lightly. Pulling away, she softly explained, My word is my bond. Since I said I would reward you, I won't just casually go back on it. It's just that it's a bit late. Xiao Tian's face turned red, and one thought dominated his mind. Did I just lose my first kiss like that? He moved closer to Empress, whispering in her ear, Can you still sleep? Meanwhile, a group of people dressed in black robes looked at the writings on the ground, completely astonished. Black Soul Hall and Blood Cloud Tower have just disappeared like that, without a trace. Elder Wu Haobo looked disdainful. Bai Qinglian is really useless, can't even handle such a small matter. At these words, the two men in black robes who were with him immediately became unhappy. Wu Haobo, we're all in the same boat here. The Bai Temple Master is dead. What's the use of speaking ill of him now, especially when he died fighting against someone as powerful as the King of Hell? He died like a man. However, the next second, Wu Haobo snapped. Nonsense. Following his outburst, a sharp attack instantly pierced through the forehead of one of the men. The remaining few stared at him in shock. Is this the same Wu Haobo who was afraid of dying? He's just an elder of a minor division, and yet his move was so swift and powerful. Trembling, one of them cautiously asked, You've actually reached the ninth rank already? Wu Haobo smirked. When facing someone as strong as the King of Hell, one must be careful with their words and show some respect. Those who don't surrender and choose to provoke are just asking for death. Fortunately, our sect planned for one of us to be in the open and the other hidden. Otherwise, how would our sect ever get word of what's happened here? At this, the few were even more astonished. You and Bai Qinglian are actually from the same sect? Wu Haobo didn't answer but muttered to himself, Bai Qinglian, my foolish junior brother, you almost ruined our sect's big plans. He then turned to the crowd, my junior brother Bai Qinglian is dead. It's my turn to come into the light and take temporary control of the Black Soul territory. From now on, all the divisions will combine into one, gathering our forces. The Southeastern Sandstorm Division will serve as the main temple for now. Everyone quickly bowed their heads in agreement. After finishing his instructions, Wu Haobo thought grimly, King of Hell, once reinforcements from my sect arrive, you won't be jumping around any longer. On the other side, in the backyard of Empress's study, Empress was writing. Xiao Tian, holding a book, asked, Wife, isn't the story in the Emperor's journey a bit exaggerated? Empress replied, No, what's recorded in the book are all true experiences of my father. Everything can be verified. Although it may seem incredible, it's precisely because of such incredible experiences that my father was able to achieve such great feats. Xiao Tian was speechless. He didn't pick up the wrong book, but his wife's father was actually named esteemed Purple Emperor. What's with this cringeworthy, overly dramatic name? And this biography reads like a wish fulfillment story. The book actually says that a long time ago, an old scholar found a baby at his doorstep and named him esteemed Purple Emperor. However, esteemed Purple Emperor was different from others from a young age. 
There were sounds of dragon roars in his dreams. Unfortunately, when he was tested at the age of five, his talent was deemed extremely low. At that time, he suffered a lot of disdain and ridicule from others. Finally, at the age of 16, after experiencing a broken engagement and his foster father's suicide, he attempted to take his own life. Fortunately, his suicide attempt failed, and instead, he stumbled upon a cave filled with spiritual energy in the form of elixirs. With the influx of this vast elixir, esteemed purple emperor's supreme emperor's body finally awakened. Later, esteemed purple emperor broke through his limitations and traveled the world. He met his companions and gradually made a name for himself. However, the genius girl who broke off their engagement, along with the son of a promoted county magistrate, couldn't stand to see esteemed purple emperor leading such a successful life. So they frequently sought to cause trouble for esteemed purple emperor, even escalating their efforts to the point of attempting to assassinate him at his home. To protect himself, esteemed purple emperor had no choice but to kill the son of the county magistrate. Little did he know, this son was actually the illegitimate child of the current prime minister. To protect this younger son from potential harm from his legitimate wife, the prime minister had secretly placed the child under the care of his student, the county magistrate. Now that the child was killed, esteemed purple emperor had angered the powerful and had no choice but to flee while facing assassination attempts. Eventually, after discovering that all his friends and family in his hometown were killed by the prime minister, esteemed purple emperor became enraged. He killed the county magistrate, took up arms, and started a rebellion. A few years later, at just 20 years old, he founded the nation of Great Flame and became the great emperor that his foster father, the old scholar, had always believed he would be. Reading this, Xiao Tian couldn't help but be impressed. What an awe-inspiring father-in-law, just like the main character of a novel. Although the story seemed extraordinarily thrilling and reasonable, something felt odd to him. Seeing him furrow his brows, Empress asked, What's on your mind? You look concerned. Xiao Tian then slowly explained, Your father had an extraordinary encounter in that cave, awakening his potential. He wanted to study at the Four Directions Academy, but had no way to get in. At that time, the county magistrate's cousin was present and provoked your father. They fought and caught the attention of the academy's tutor, who then admitted your father. Empress nodded. Indeed, that was one of the fortunate twists in my father's life full of hardships. Your Majesty, don't you find it odd? Xiao Tian continued. If you look at the story of esteemed Purple Emperor from a different perspective, something about his life experiences doesn't add up. Hearing this, Empress suddenly turned her head and said, What do you mean? Based on my inference, when esteemed Purple Emperor first entered the academy, he had little to no resources. However, shortly after enrolling, he was provoked by the cousin of the county magistrate's son. He won several spirit stones and elixirs from the duel. The prodigious girl who broke off the engagement and she initiated a challenge herself. She lost to your father, giving him a substantial amount of academic credits, which could be used to exchange for various resources at the academy. Coincidentally, your father didn't have a suitable spiritual artifact at the time, so these academic credits came just in time. Later, when your father left the Four Directions Academy and wandered the world with your mother, the county magistrate's son secretly mobilized the power of his biological father, the Prime Minister, to ambush him. Your father not only killed the county magistrate's son, but also those who were trying to assassinate him, gathering a large amount of resources in the process. When he rose in rebellion in Luo County, the Prime Minister was enraged and sent troops to suppress him. Each time your father clashed with the Imperial Army, he captured a great deal of military supplies and provisions, expanding his territory in the process. Finally, during a standoff against the Prime Minister's army led by Prince himself, your father fought to a standstill with the Prime Minister's Four Great Vidras. He had a breakthrough on the battlefield, killed the Four Great Vidras first, and then decapitated the Prime Minister, putting an end to this long-standing grudge. Empress listened intently as Xiao Tian continued, Don't you find it strange that at every turn, your father seemed to gain precisely the resources he needed, almost as if some unseen force was arranged things for him? Hearing this, Empress suddenly stopped writing and turned to face Xiao Tian, asking, Are you sure you're reading the biography of the esteemed Purple Emperor? Xiao Tian still looked skeptical and said, If you remove all the emotional text that portrays how miserable your father's life was, and only look at the outcomes and gains, the situation becomes very interesting. This Prime Minister of Great Han could have directly sent his four great vitras to resolve the issues from the start, but instead, he kept sending experience, equipment, money, territory, and even supplies. Toward the end, he even gave gave up his own life, catapulting your father's fame to the peak. The more Empress listened, the more startled she became. She quickly put down her brush, went over to Xiao Tian, and grabbed the book to flip through it. Sure enough, the content was as Xiao Tian described. Seeing how worked up Empress was, Xiao Tian tried to comfort her, saying, I don't know if it's really this coincidental or if someone with a twisted sense of humor has been manipulating things all along. After being adopted by an old scholar who wrote storybooks for a living, your father led a life similar to that of a storybook protagonist. This thought alarmed Empress. Could my father's legendary life have actually been manipulated by someone? She wondered
answered silently. No, something is wrong here. She told Xiao Tian to keep this hypothesis a secret, stowed away in their hearts. Regardless of the truth, strength is what matters most. My cultivation has been going very smoothly lately. Even reaching the 10th level won't take too long, she said. With that, she patted Xiao Tian on the shoulder and assured him, Don't worry, I've got this. Any conspiracies or schemes, any fog of deception, all would be laughable in the face of absolute strength. Even if the situation deteriorates to an irreparable state, if anyone wants your life, they'll have to step over my dead body first. After speaking, Empress blushed slightly and turned back to her desk. Xiao Tian was left somewhat bewildered by her words. Hold on, all I did was casually read a book and share some afterthoughts. How did the topic suddenly shift to matters of life and death and profound vows? And what's with my wife, the Empress? Why is she trying to flirt with me so abruptly? Ugh, this is frustrating. I'm feeling sleepy again. Might as well lie down, he thought. With his current leisurely lifestyle, he mused that he could easily write a storybook titled The Royal Son-in-Law. The overbearing Empress falls in love with me. Amused by his own thoughts, Xiao Tian yawned out of boredom. After some time, Empress finally finished her work and stretched beautifully. When she turned her head, she found that Xiao Tian had already fallen asleep. She smiled at the sight, thinking that having someone by her side felt indeed wonderful. She wondered, though, how long she could preserve this happiness. That day, Xiao Tian enjoyed a meal at Cook Zhong Yangming's home while Zhong and his daughter practiced their stances in front of him, trembling with exhaustion. As Xiao Tian ate, he didn't forget to chastise Zhong. Squat lower. How are you even worse than your own daughter? Provoked by his words, Zhong Yangming couldn't hold on any longer and collapsed on the ground, panting heavily. Why is this so difficult? He muttered. Xiao Tian shook his head and said, practicing martial arts without foundational work is a waste. Your basics are too weak. You are far behind Zi Ruoyan in the same cultivation process. Her speed in cultivation is fast, but her foundation is very solid, perhaps due to her constitution. You should earnestly follow my training. Just look at how skilled your daughter is. Zhong Ling also turned her head to encourage her father. Dad, hang in there. Prince's cultivation methods are really effective. It's not just about honing the basics, it seems to enhance innate talent as well. Zhong Yangming was stunned. Enhance innate talent? Xiao Tian took a large gulp of fine wine. Your cultivation methods rely on borrowing the power of heaven and earth to improve yourselves. That's interesting in its own right. My past training focused on external body conditioning and internal energy cultivation. I focus on self-improvement, continuously exploring my own potential and breaking through human limits. This technique emphasizes transcending oneself, establishing one's inner world. The heart and mind communicate with each other, connecting with the heaven and earth. Zhong Yangming and his daughter were dumbfounded. This concept was simply inconceivable in their understanding. Xiao Tian shouted, All right, continue practicing. Your fatigue means you've just started getting into the groove. The real mental grind starts now. Seeing Zhong Yangming trembling uncontrollably, Xiao Tian couldn't help but inwardly chuckle. Zhong Yangming is actually a once-in-a-millennium martial arts prodigy. The title of heavy armored cavalry will probably spread far and wide before long. Meanwhile, at the residence of Chancellor Lu Outian, who had been plotting to kill Xiao Tian, Lu Outian was reviewing official documents. Suddenly, he sensed someone approaching. In the next second, a masked man appeared before him. The masked man respectfully presented a sealed letter. Sir, please take a look. Lu Outian took the letter, his expression turning somber. Is there an issue with the Empire? They've actually sent someone to deliver a message directly. This is absolutely outrageous. The masked man quickly explained, Sir, there has been a slight issue in the aftermath of the Black Soul Hall's destruction. Lu Outian snorted coldly. An issue? What kind of issue could there be? It's probably just the Holy Demon sect sending more people. But the next second, Lu Outian was stunned. How could this be? That's the Holy Demon sect. He stood up immediately and inquired, How did the leader of the Holy Demon sect die? What about the agreement? The man replied, Sir, the agreement still stands. According to the information provided by the Astral Pavilion, although the leader of the Holy Demon sect is dead, a new leader will soon take his place. Lu Outian seemed quite shocked. According to the information we have, the Holy Demon sect wasn't completely wiped out. It seems someone else interfered, and the three-party agreement is still intact. Things are very complicated right now and prone to go wrong. Lu Outian paced back and forth in his chamber, visibly unsettled. We've planned for so many years and expended so much in resources. There mustn't be any mistakes at this final juncture. Rest assured, sir, his majesty has mentioned that our years of hard work will not go to waste. If the new leader of the Holy Demon sect plays by the rules, all is well. If not, we're prepared for that too. As he said this, the masked man took out a talisman. Lu Outian was immediately taken aback. What is this? He snatched the talisman. Has his majesty gone mad? If this talisman is activated, it'll be a do or die situation. This is incredibly daring to bring this here. No wonder someone was sent all this way. Delivering a message was just a ruse. This is the real deal, isn't it? Indeed, the masked man removed his mask and said, His Majesty's verbal order. At worst, it's a do or die situation. Lu Outian was stunned. He actually sent you. It seems His Majesty is prepared for a battle of no return. He spoke coldly.
coldly. Who else came with you? The man replied. The four great Vidras. It looks like we've indeed reached the final juncture. From now on, stay at the place I've prepared and try not to show yourselves. Understood. We are just a backup force and won't take any action unless absolutely necessary. With that, the masked man vanished in a flash, leaving only Lu Outian standing there. He looked at the secret letter and muttered, a hundred years of planning, and yet things are prone to go wrong at the most critical moment. What exactly happened to the holy demon sect? I've spent so many years working for the Eastern Flame Kingdom and the Great Flame. There can't be any mistakes now. Xiao Tian walked down the street, and immediately a young man approached, offering him some local snacks. Prince, this is freshly made popcorn flour. Would you like to try some? Xiao Tian took it and asked, has your mother's illness been cured? The young man was overwhelmed with gratitude. Yes, yes, she's better now. If it weren't for the medical expenses you lend us, my mother would have. Never mind, how does the popcorn flour taste? Xiao Tian gave a slight smile. It tastes excellent, but let me correct you. The money was not lent by me, but awarded by Her Majesty the Empress. Keep this in mind. The young man was teary-eyed. Rest assured, Prince, I'll engage in good deeds and won't let you down. As he continued down the road, an old lady approached. Prince, this handkerchief is carefully embroidered by me. Please give it to Her Majesty. If it weren't for you and Her Majesty lending me money, I wouldn't even know where to get money from my stall. Others joined in. Prince, please try these candied hawthorns I made by hand. Prince, this fruit is from my own farm. It's guaranteed to be sweet. Please take some back to try. Calls and praises echoed around him. Xiao Tian walked like the light of righteousness on earth. Countless villagers kept praising. The prince is such a good man. Ever since he married Her Majesty, the moral climate in the capital has been getting better and better. Exactly. Prince is charitable and kind, not associating with evil. Yes, people say that the prince is living off his spouse, but if one can live off their spouse to such an extent, who would object? How about we give prince a nickname? That sounds like a good idea. Let's call him the Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deity. Soon after, in a deserted corner, Xiao Tian sighed deeply. Zhong Ling and another person quickly asked what was wrong. Xiao Tian turned his head, his face full of gloom. Do you guys have nicknames? Zhong Ling was the first to answer. Yes, I'm called the Dancing Flame Sword. Back in the day, I fought through various talents across the Great Flame at the fifth level, and Her Majesty bestowed this name upon me. Xiao Tian looked even more miserable. And you? Lu Yan thought for a moment. Before the young general grew up, I was in charge of quelling bandits within the kingdom for a period. People called me the Hawk Dog under the Emperor. Hearing this, Xiao Tian was completely disheartened. Damn it, why do their nicknames sound so cool? While mine is the Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deity. What kind of ridiculous name is that? Zhong Ling and Lu Yan looked at the dispirited figure of Xiao Tian. They didn't understand what had wronged him so deeply. They could only catch up quickly. Xiao Tian didn't notice that there was a beggar in the corner. As he walked past her, the female beggar lowered her head even more. Lu Yan felt a sense of unease. It looks like Prince really is in a bad mood. He even ignored a beggar and didn't give any money. After the three left, the female beggar quietly lifted her head, watching their retreating figures and muttered, I didn't expect to find such a talented woman in a place like this. Quite surprising. Not long after, the three arrived at the Green Flame Town Distillery. The village head kept expressing gratitude. Prince, you truly are the savior of Green Flame Town. Not only did you fund the road construction, but you also introduced the Green Flame Empress wine. Additionally, you leased the southeast region of the Green Flame Mountain, breeding wild pigs, chickens, ducks, and other livestock, especially the wild pig meat. It has become the second iconic product of Green Flame Town following the Green Flame Empress wine. It's often in high demand. Xiao Tian felt a surge of pride. Those were the wild pigs he had protected with various formations around the mountain. The taste was simply indescribable. He told the village head, it's nothing. Everything I did was for the betterment of the town. I'm here to collect some wine and also head to the livestock farm on the southeast side of Green Flame Mountain to pick a pig for a feast. As he firmly held his hand, Xiao Tian thought, let go of me. I want meat and wine. Don't stop me. Zhong Yang Ming is waiting to cook for me. Just then, Xiao Tian suddenly heard a distant voice. How is this possible? It's just a pig farm. Why are there so many formations? What's with this formation? Unable to control himself, Xiao Tian roared. What's wrong with this world? In broad daylight, a young woman is up to such mischief. He sped off, shouting to his companions. Wait here. I'll be right back. How dare they try to steal my pigs? Meanwhile, inside the formation at the pig farm, a woman was suspended in the air. This ancient formation is so annoying. I don't know how old it is, but it's so sturdy. It'll probably take hours for me to break free. I just wanted to taste the legendary green flame mountain pork. Why is it so hard? I, the demon clan empress, am stuck here. Suddenly, rapid footsteps approached. The woman was stunned. How can an ordinary person run so fast? Xiao Tian curiously looked at her. Isn't this the beggar I saw on the road earlier? But speaking of which, since when do beggars eat so well? Feeling Xiao Tian's gaze, Luo Feng Yuan's face turned red, and she shouted, Get lost, you stinky man. What are you looking at? A moment later, Xiao Tian suddenly spoke. This is my fault. I've caused you unnecessary suffering. Stepping forward, he reached out to touch the ancient formation. Startled, Luo 
little Fong Yuan quickly shouted, Don't touch it, this formation is dangerous. Yet in the next second, the formation unraveled in Xiao Tian's hands like soft ropes being pulled apart. Luo Fong Yuan, no longer restrained, landed beside Xiao Tian. He chuckled, Relax, this is just a second tier. Low grade formation I had someone set up. See how thin these lines are. They're easy to undo. I apologize for my previous neglect due to my bad mood. If I had assisted you earlier, you wouldn't have been desperate enough to sneak up the mountain to steal a pig and get caught in the formation. Luo Fong Yuan was stunned. Xiao Tian then took out a stack of silver notes and asked, Is there anything else you need help with? Still in shock, Luo Fong Yuan inquired, Are you very rich? He hesitated. Well, I guess I am. Luo Fong Yuan's face turned slightly red. Then, would you consider supporting me? Now it was Xiao Tian's turn to be stunned. He looked her over, thinking, The world really has changed. Such a lovely girl first resorts to begging, then stealing, and now even considers selling herself and her soul. Is this how Luo Yin governs his country? Luo Fong Yuan, on the other hand, wondered, Is he angry? I just saw how effortlessly he broke the constraints of the ancient formation. My approach is also related to the trilateral agreement. Why is he so peculiar in his thoughts? He wouldn't reject me, would he? He has no right to refuse me. Thinking this, Luo Fong Yuan wiped the mud off her face and flicked her long hair, laughing, I am still very attractive. If I clean up and stay by your side, I won't embarrass you and will be very obedient. Seeing Xiao Tian staring intently at her, Luo Fong Yuan giggled to herself. Indeed, no man could resist. Just then, Xiao Tian suddenly slapped Luo Fong Yuan on the head and shouted word by word, stay away. If the Empress finds out, my peaceful life will be over. Luo Fong Yuan held her head, utterly stunned. Damn it, there's actually a man who can reject me, and he's done it twice. But this pain, I kind of want to feel it again. She looked at him with a longing expression. Xiao Tian was completely baffled. Is this girl a little off? Why does she seem so happy even after I hit her? He squatted down and patiently explained, young lady, this kind of thinking isn't right. You know, as humans, we should strive to live positively and face the sunshine. How can you be so self-deprecating? If you're facing difficulties, you can talk to me about them. Without hesitation, Luo Fong Yuan said, no, I want to experience the feeling of getting something for nothing. Hearing this, Xiao Tian, who was initially trying to comfort her, clenched his fist in anger. Are you really out of your mind, not listening to advice? I'm telling you to live a proper life, not to have such wild fantasies. Can't you understand? As he spoke, Xiao Tian once again landed a punch on her head. Unexpectedly, Luo Fong Yuan's face was filled with joy, and she said with a look of enjoyment, oh, how strange, why can't this concubine understand? Xiao Tian was about to scold. How can you possibly not understand? But in the next second, it seemed as if he had realized something. Understanding dawned on him, and his face was suddenly covered in cold sweat. Could it be, this girl has awakened some strange fetish? Xiao Tian was terrified. If the Empress finds out, I'm probably going to be kicked out. Seeing the woman acting so clingy, he cautiously offered, how about, I take you home to find your parents? But to his surprise, the beggar woman, with a face full of sorrow, responded, my parents killed each other, they're both gone. Feeling helpless, Xiao Tian tried to persuade her, can you at least heed my advice and lead a good life? With a lovesick expression, the beggar woman cooed, this concubine doesn't understand. Annoyed by her behavior, Xiao Tian was about to slap her, thinking, she's really beyond redemption, she's driving me crazy. But just as his hand was about to hit her, he held back. He thought to himself, I can't slap her, she seems to enjoy it. As expected, the beggar woman looked up at him with an expectant look, not dodging his move at all. Frustrated, Xiao Tian punched the ground. What misfortune, I just wanted to enjoy some wild boar meat, and now I've got this mess on my hands. Not long after, at the Green Flame Town Distillery, the village head spotted someone approaching. Ha, huh? is that Prince? Xiong Ling and Lu Yan were taken aback. They quickly followed the direction the village head was pointing and exclaimed, Wow, did Prince bring back a beautiful beggar woman? The beggar woman, with a love-struck expression, shamelessly asked Xiao Tian, This concubine is so tired, can you carry me on your back? Xiao Tian immediately turned and snapped at her, Shut up, walk on your own. Hearing this, the beggar woman once again showed that provoking expression, replying, This concubine understands now. The village head, along with Zhong Ling and Lu Yan, were left stunned. Wasn't Prince going to catch the pig thief? Why did he bring back such a peculiar beggar woman? And, does Prince always have such a temper? It wasn't until the two approached that Lu Yan finally pointed at the beggar woman and asked, Prince, who is this? Xiao Tian immediately handed the beggar woman over to the village head. Please, make sure to find her a job at the women's packaging factory. Keep a close eye on her. She needs to undergo labor reform and understand the meaning of self-reliance. She should create her own future with her own hands through hard work. As he spoke, he couldn't help but slap the beggar woman on the head again. Did you hear me? The beggar woman, with a face full of joy, responded, this concubine understands. Upon witnessing this scene, Zhong Ling and Lu Yan felt completely dumbfounded. What's with this woman? At this moment, Xiao Tian wanted to leave immediately. After instructing the village head to arrange everything, he bolted. The village head looked somewhat uneasy. I didn't expect Prince, who has an empress, to be so audacious. Luckily, there was a residence that the townspeople had built 
as a gift for the prince. It came in handy now. All Xiao Tian could think was, women are so annoying. I need a drink. I want to eat the food made by Xiong Yang Ming to console my wounded soul. Soon, the beggar woman was settled in the house. She sat by a stone table, lost in thought. That Xiao Tian is interesting. Since my parents passed away when I was young, no one has dared to hit or scold me like that. But this feeling of being disciplined, it's quite nice. If Xiao Tian saw her expression now, he would probably have nightmares tonight. Suddenly, the woman's face turned cold. In a flash, several figures landed in front of her. It turned out they were three women from the demon clan. The leader was named the eldest. All three simultaneously addressed the beggar woman, Empress. The woman, with an authoritative presence, was none other than the Empress of the demon clan. At that moment, in a secluded palace within the royal city, three subordinates of Luo Feng Yuan arrived upon hearing the news. Ensuring there was no one around, Luo Feng Yuan transformed back to her true appearance before addressing the three. How are things progressing? One of them reported Empress, the tripartite agreement drafted by the Holy Demon Sect, Black Soul Hall, and Eastern Flame Kingdom to divide the fate of the Great Flame Dynasty is still ongoing. The Holy Demon Sect, mentioned in the agreement, was founded by your 18th royal brother. Thus, it's logical for us to take over the agreement. Luo Feng Yuan sighed. My 18th brother was indeed competent. If our parents hadn't instigated a war over the throne, leading the primordial demon kingdom into a decade-long civil war, they wouldn't have died at each other's hands. I had to fight with my siblings for the throne to survive, resulting in the fate becoming unstable. I suspect the agreement was something my 18th brother intended to use after his ascension. Now, with Black Soul Hall severely weakened, they're of limited assistance. Our strategy remains. Win over the hearts of the people of the Great Flame Dynasty using resources. Use the resources I've brought to benefit the common folk. Upon hearing this, the three subordinates began discussing among themselves. We could simply provide charity. That won't work, another interjected. Given the intangible nature of fate, directly pouring resources isn't effective. Why not invest? The Green Flame Town, where Empress is hiding, is a good example. That's too slow, another countered. Our hidden identities mean we can't easily take action. The high officials of the Great Flame Dynasty, the insiders from Eastern Flame Kingdom within the Great Flame are the highest ranking officials. They will sabotage our efforts. It's a pity that Black Soul Hall once secretly sent people to the Great Flame amidst chaos. That was a brilliant idea. That fool named by Ching Lian unnecessarily provoked such a formidable enemy. He deserves to die. The three kept chattering and discussing, but Luo Feng Yuan's mind was filled with images of Xiao Tian and that man named Wu Haobua. How dare he encourage us to provoke the King of Hell? He deserved to have his head burst open by Empress. Unable to stand their incessant chatter, Luo Feng Yuan interjected, Enough. You've been arguing for so long without a solution. Tomorrow, head to the Royal City to gather more information and while you're at it, find out out more about this Xiao Tian. As she spoke, a mist rose from Luo Feng Yuan's hand, gradually taking the shape of Xiao Tian. Recognizing the familiar face, the three witches exclaimed in surprise, the supreme benevolent sugar baby deity? Luo Feng Yuan was taken aback. What? What deity? The eldest among the three witches explained, Empress, this Xiao Tian is the husband of the great flame empress and the current prince. He's an ordinary man with a unique, captivating charm that has bewitched the great flame empress, Zi Ruoyan. He even foiled the plans of Luo Yin from the eastern flame kingdom. However, he is indeed a good person. The prosperity of Green Flame Town is in no small part due to him. The nickname Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deity is what the city folk have fondly named him. Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan felt a pang of jealousy. Someone got to him before I did? How can I get him for myself, to support me and give me five royal children? She imagined Xiao Tian holding her in his arms in front of the Great Flame Empress. The mere thought made her feel elated. No, if the Great Flame Empress finds out I'm supporting him, he might get worried and scared. But what of it? He has already been supported by the Great Flame Empress. Why can't I? With this realization, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly stood up. I've been wrong from the very beginning. The three witches looked at her in confusion. Empress, what did you get wrong? With a sweet smile on her face, Luo Feng Yuan pointed to Xiao Tian and declared, I want to support him. The three witches felt a chill run down their spines. Wait, why are you joining this drama? The revered ruler of the primordial demon kingdom, with the noble blood of the holy demon clan, wants to support an ordinary human man? Empress, are you joking with us? Luo Feng Yuan giggled. Would I joke about such a significant matter in my life? Do you believe in love at first sight? The three shook their heads. That's just a made-up thing. But Luo Feng Yuan was completely lost in her own world. Coincidentally, I believe in it. The three were utterly flabbergasted. Empress, have you chosen to become selectively blind and deaf? You don't know, but this Xiao Tian suits me well. He's exactly my type. Not only is he kind, but he also scolds and punishes me. Oh wow, I can't remember the last time I was disciplined. Don't you think that feeling is wonderful? You need to help me figure out a way to get him. This courtyard will do as our wedding chamber 
chamber for our wedding night. You can decorate it while you're at it. The three witches felt they had never been so shocked in their lives. Good heavens, Xiao Tian, with his enchanting beauty, has such a terrifying charm. He captivated the great flame empress, who never showed interest in men, and now the empress, who has always been irritated with men since she was young, is smitten by him. However, at the moment, Xiao Tian looked worried, unable to understand why the female beggar wanted him to support her. It felt so strange. Seeing Xiao Tian unmoving in front of a table full of food, Zhong Ling sensed something was off. Prince, what's wrong? Lu Yan shook her head. I'm not sure. He's been like this since you went to deliver food to General Zhong. I don't know what he's thinking. Fortunately, at that moment, Zhong Yang Ming approached with a dish, smiling. Done. The final five-colored pagoda dish is ready. Drawn in by the aroma, Xiao Tian turned his attention to the dish. With a confident expression, Zhong Yang Ming introduced. Prince, this new dish is crafted from the now famous Green Flame Mountain specialties. Green Flame Pork, Green Flame Lamb, Green Flame Chicken, Green Flame Duck, and Green Flame Fish. The five colors are derived from five different colored, aromatic mystical herbs which are used as a coating. The meat is first fried, then steamed, and fried again. Xiao Tian leaned in to take a sniff, and instantly, his mouth started watering. Well, Prince, care to have a taste? Without hesitation, Xiao Tian picked up a piece of meat from the top and popped it into his mouth. As he relished the flavor dancing on his taste buds, he couldn't help but exclaim, a minister of revenue who doesn't practice martial arts truly makes an excellent chef. With such delicious food, why was I even sulking? Immediately, he began to devour the food, returning to his old self of heartily eating meat and guzzling down drinks. Zhong Ling and Lu Yan watched, their eyes wide with astonishment. That's the prince we know. Soon after, Xiao Tian let out a satisfied burp. Zhong Ling stared at him with a puzzled expression. Noticing her gaze, Xiao Tian inquired, Is there something you want to say? Zhong Ling finally spoke up. Prince, what were you brooding over earlier? Holding a cup of hot tea, Xiao Tian responded, If I tell you, you all must promise not to laugh. The trio nodded obediently. Taking a breath, Xiao Tian continued, Today, someone asked me to support her. Isn't that strange? Before Xiao Tian could finish, Zhong Yang Ming burst out laughing, causing Xiao Tian to frown immediately. You promised not to laugh. What are you doing? Zhong Yang Ming quickly explained, My apologies, Prince. I had some food residue in my mouth and was just trying to spit it out. Please continue. Resuming his story, Xiao Tian recounted his encounter with the female beggar. I already said I'd help her be self-sufficient, but she insisted that I support her. Tell me, have you ever heard of someone so determined to be taken care of by someone else? Lu Yan couldn't hold back anymore and burst out laughing, trying to duck under the table to hide. Xiao Tian, visibly annoyed, asked, What are you doing, hiding your head like that thinking I can't see you? Lu Yan, still under the table, responded with his shoulders heaving, Prince, you've misunderstood. I was just stretching after our martial arts session. Xiao Tian abruptly stood up, thumping his chest with a serious expression. I'm being very serious here. This matter concerns my reputation. Upon hearing this, Zhong Ling finally broke into laughter. Infuriated, Xiao Tian slapped the table. Darn it, you little brat. I've been patient with you for far too long. Moments later, from the courtyard came the muffled sounds of three thuds. The trio stood with bumps on their heads, mentally grumbling. It's clearly the prince's fault. With a title like Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deity, who wouldn't laugh when someone asked him for financial support? Shortly after, Xiao Tian, accompanied by Lu Yan, headed back to the palace. On their way back, Xiao Tian suddenly chuckled. Concerned, Lu Yan quickly asked, What's the matter? Staring ahead, Xiao Tian responded, Just reminiscing. It feels so good to be in the light like this. Who said those who dwell in darkness wouldn't yearn for light. Xiao Tian, feeling rather bored, lay down on his bed. Sensing that the system was possibly upgrading, he lamented not being able to watch any shows. Resigned, he picked up a book and decided to read and accompany his rich wife, the Empress, while she worked. Reading the Emperor's Chronicle, he was astonished at the events recorded within. Where did my father-in-law get the spirit stone from the old archive? Did I overlook something? Noticing Xiao Tian's distraction, the Empress turned to ask, What's on your mind? Closing the book, Xiao Tian replied, Just thinking. The Empress grinned. Was the meat you brought to the palace last night the famous green flame pork everyone's talking about? Yes. Even those vegetables come from Green Flame Mountain. It's a treasure trove. With the right formations, vegetables grow incredibly fast there, though it's costly since they burn spirit stones. The Empress smiled broadly. No wonder even last night's fruits and vegetables tasted exceptional. But someone in the court filed a complaint against you. It's one of Lu Outyan's subordinates, accusing you of inflating market prices and taking advantage of the people. Looking disdainful, Xiao Tian responded. My wife is the Empress. File all the complaints you want. I dare you to bite me. At that moment, the Empress continued. However, your green flame pork really is expensive. The great flame treasure notes actually lists them at a hundred thousand tails each. Isn't that too much? If you're short on funds, just ask me. Xiao Tian waved his hand dismissively. It's not simply about the price. It's the principle of scarcity that drives the price up. Raising these pigs isn't easy. I've invested heavily in setting up the formation and feeding them with various rare ingredients. I even had people drive them around to ensure they get 
enough exercise. Given the unique environment of Green Flame Mountain, the price of the Green Flame pork is justified. Suddenly animated, Xiao Tian asked, Your Majesty, can you tell me who this Imperial historian is? I'd like to have a word with him. The Empress smirked, Are you planning on reasoning with him, or are you planning to bully him again? Xiao Tian immediately protested, raising his hands defensively, Your Majesty, I have no such intentions. The Empress, with a teasing smile, replied, I won't be fooled by you again. Last time, someone from the Ministry of Works accused you of overpricing your liquor. In response, you and Zhongling targeted Lu Shermei, blaming him as the mastermind behind the accusation. This led to him going to the Prime Minister's mansion to apologize, creating quite the commotion. Given the scale of the incident, how do you think we should handle it? Hearing this, Xiao Tian assumed a submissive posture. I am aware of my mistakes. Your Majesty, please punish me accordingly. Clearing her throat, the Empress playfully said, All right, I will punish you. Really? Seeing Xiao Tian's dejected look, she continued with a smile. Your punishment will be to inspect Green Flame Mountain and select the best pig. And tonight, you'll accompany me for a few drinks. Xiao Tian's face lit up in joy. Rest assured, Your Majesty, I will definitely pick the best one. I knew my wife wouldn't really punish me. I must select the best pig to accompany our drinks tonight. But then, a sudden realization hit him. Wait a minute, Green Flame Pig? Xiao Tian suddenly began a daydream. Luo Feng Yuan was hugging a pig, muttering to himself, You, Prince, I'd rather steal your pig, you fool. Looking for financial support from you? It's more worthwhile to just steal your pig. Xiao Tian cursed inwardly. I shouldn't have been so soft-hearted. Now, with the green flame pigs being so valuable, stealing one would mean living without worries. Stealing two would mean living comfortably for half a lifetime, and stealing a few more would mean immense wealth. Relying on the infamous sugar baby prince for financial support? She's definitely trying to deceive me. She just wants to steal my pigs. Seeing Xiao Tian's distraught expression, the empress asked worriedly, what's wrong? Without a word, Xiao Tian flung open the door and ran out, shouting back, wait, my dear, someone's trying to steal my pigs. The empress was left dumbfounded. Stealing pigs? Seriously? While Luo Feng Yuan was discussing with his subordinates, Xiao Tian burst into the room. The empress was taken aback. Why did he suddenly appear? I'm not prepared yet, and I wonder how he feels about the outfit I'm wearing now. Will he dislike it? Xiao Tian, on the other hand, was staring at Luo Feng Yuan's extravagant appearance, lost in thought. He assumed that in just one night, Luo Feng Yuan had sold all the pigs and used the money to buy such fancy clothes. Both Luo Feng Yuan and his subordinates were puzzled. Can he tell we're from the demon clan? With gritted teeth, Xiao Tian angrily exclaimed, I thought life must have been tough for you, being a female beggar and all. I didn't expect you to repay my trust like this. You, you sold all the pigs? Luo Feng Yuan stared blankly at him for a moment, realizing he was mistaken about the stolen pigs, but she couldn't help but think, he looks so handsome when he's angry. Smiling, Luo Feng Yuan explained, why would I? Regular livestock only fetches a small price. This concubine doesn't even bother with such. Hearing this, Xiao Tian became even more infuriated, only worth a small price. Xiao Tian swiftly pulled out an object from his storage ring, an abacus. Look here, he said, beginning to calculate rapidly. In the Imperial City, a green flame pig costs a hundred thousand great flame treasure notes, equivalent to a hundred spirit stones. Selling all the green flame pigs on this mountain would fetch at least tens of thousands of spirit stones. Luo Feng Yuan smiled faintly. Tens of thousands of spirit stones are just a drop in the bucket for this concubine. She motioned to one of her attendants, the eldest, bring out the gift. On command, a woman behind her nodded. The next second, a large box filled with dazzling spirit stones was placed in front of Xiao Tian. The woman explained, the Great Flame Dynasty mainly uses low-grade spirit stones. What you see here are 1,000 medium-grade spirit stones, compressed from spiritual energy, equivalent to 1 million low-grade spirit stones. We offer them to you. Xiao Tian was left flabbergasted. What's going on? She was a beggar just yesterday. How is she now exuding an aura of immense wealth? He scrutinized Luo Feng Yuan and her entourage. Is this really the female beggar from yesterday? The bust size seems similar, but in this world, there are countless ways to impersonate someone. I can't just rely on that alone to identify her. I need to be sure. What if they're trying to harm me? Suddenly, an idea popped into his head. Xiao Tian leaned in, demanding, have you been deceiving me this whole time? Did you find amusement in exploiting my kindness? Luo Feng Yuan was taken aback by his sudden confrontation, but before she could answer, Xiao Tian's hand swiftly chopped her head, akin to the gesture he made previously. True to form, Luo Feng Yuan once again revealed an expression of pleasure, saying, there were reasons for my actions. This concubine had no other choice. Xiao Tian was momentarily speechless. It was indeed her. After gathering his thoughts, he finally managed to ask, how? How did this transformation happen? Just yesterday you were a beggar, and now you're suddenly wealthy? What's going on? Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan grabbed Xiao Tian's arm and led him to a stone bench. She began, this concubine's surname is Luo. Luo Feng Yuan. I belong to the demon clan. If there's nothing else, I should take my leave. However, Luo Feng Yuan quickly grasped his hand. There's an urgent matter. I am the eldest princess of Abyssal Ink Kingdom. Our nation faced a 
great calamity and my father ordered me to safeguard the royal treasury and seek refuge in foreign lands. I possess limited powers to restore our kingdom. I need to practice an ancestral technique which requires a male partner. Our encounter yesterday was a test. I need a husband to trust and join me in our mission of restoration. Now, you are the one I've been searching for. Xiao Tian was dumbfounded. Does every citizen in Great Flame possess prophetic powers? Have I truly become the sugar baby deity? How is it that by randomly helping a beggar, I get offered riches and affection? He felt conflicted. No, I can't become like this. He told Luo Feng Yuan. I am the rightful prince, officially wedded to the current Great Flame Empress. I cannot serve two women. It wouldn't be fair to either Zi Ruan or you. Moreover, money doesn't solve everything. The Great Flame Empress is wealthier than you. Has she ever flaunted it? No. Also, I, Xiao Tian, am not a greedy person. Please take back these spirit stones. Use them as capital for restoring your nation. It's not wise to waste them. At his refusal, Luo Feng Yuan's infatuation flared. What's there to waste? I am much wealthier than that great flame empress. These few spirit stones are nothing. Xiao Tian, trying to remain patient, responded, as a princess of a fallen kingdom, even if you possess its treasury, it's still the treasury of a fallen kingdom. How wealthy can it be? You might not know, but if we calculate based on the value of these mid-grade spirit stones, the private treasury of the great flame empress would be at least a hundred million, Xiao Tian stated. Before his words could settle, Luo Feng Yuan opened her secret vault. It was filled to the brim with spirit stones. She responded, yet, if we were to evaluate the wealth within this concubine's vault in terms of mid-grade spirit stones, it's several hundred billion. Hearing this, Xiao Tian felt a shiver down his spine. Damn, she has outdone herself. It's outrageous. This vault, big as it is, seems more formidable than even my father-in-law's old treasury, not to mention the dazzling spirit stones inside. It does make sense. If she wasn't this affluent, her cup size probably won't grow that big. Turning his head, Xiao Tian addressed Luo Feng Yuan. Although you are far wealthier than Zi Ruoyan, as I said earlier, money can't solve everything. I'm quite comfortable and happy in great flame. So, as he spoke, Xiao Tian suddenly raised his hand, looking like he was about to strike. Luo Feng Yuan instantly adopted a hopeful, smitten look. However, the next moment, he halted his hand and explained with a laugh. So, you're just too late. And by the way, don't be so naive in the future. Who displays their entire wealth like that? Hearing Xiao Tian's mildly concerned words, Luo Feng Yuan felt completely captivated. She covered her flushed cheeks and said sentimentally, this concubine feels even more attracted to you now. Even if rejected 3,000 times, this concubine will not give up. Speechless, Xiao Tian thought, oh no, I forgot about this newly awakened trait of hers. Luo Feng Yuan giggled behind her hand before reassuringly adding, this concubine won't make it too hard for brother Xiao. Why don't we spend some time together? Just be normal friends, okay? What do you mean by normal friends? Just normal friends. Chatting, talking, regular interactions. But it might take up some of your time. So, how about this concubine gives you a million spirit stones every month as compensation for our chats? What do you say? Xiao Tian was left astounded. One million spirit stones? My goodness. She truly is a wealthy woman. She's spending lavishly. But no, I can't be corrupted by money. That's the capital you need for reclaiming your kingdom. How can you just give it to me? It's not right. Luo Feng Yuan pondered for a moment. Brother Xiao, you love doing good deeds, helping the people of the Great Flame Dynasty, right? But in such a vast kingdom, can you really help everyone? Hearing this, Xiao Tian became a bit agitated. What do you mean? Are you trying to tell me how to do my job? Hearing his response, Luo Feng Yuan's quirky side flared up again. Oh, how dare I? It's just a small suggestion. With these million spirit stones, you can assist more citizens of Great Flame. As their lives improve and the nation strengthens, they can also help our Abyssal Ink Kingdom reclaim its throne. Plus, you've always advised this concubine to be virtuous. Isn't this a great opportunity? Please, for the people of Great Flame, accept this. Listening to her, Xiao Tian fell silent. Just for chatting, he could receive a million stones as charity funds. Talking isn't as demanding as fighting or killing. He's often idle anyway. Just a bit of talk to benefit the Great Flame Dynasty and repay Empress Zi Ruoyan seemed okay. He'd make a small sacrifice. With that thought, Xiao Tian picked up the box and said, I accept this on behalf of the people of Great Flame. Seeing him agree, Luo Feng Yuan excitedly grabbed his arm. So, Brother Xiao, can you chat with this concubine now? Is that okay? Wait, wait, don't cling to me like that. It's too tight and uncomfortable. We agreed to just chat. Why are you getting all touchy? Are you trying to take advantage of me? No, no, this is too much of a loss. Unless, Luo Feng Yuan paused. Unless what? Xiao Tian, with an air of righteousness, declared, you'll have to pay more. Shortly after Xiao Tian left, Demon Clan Empress Luo Feng Yuan, looking despondent, leaned against the table. Suddenly, she murmured, it's only been a minute since brother Xiao left, and I already miss him. Her subordinates were left speechless. They thought, our empress is beyond hope now. Just then, two figures uninvitedly appeared in the courtyard. It was none other than the prime minister of Great Flame, Lu Outyan, and his son, Lu Shermei. Lu Outyan slowly began, are you the new leader of the holy demon sect? Luo Feng Yuan remained silent. Lu Shermei, on the other hand, I'd 
her captivating form lasciviously. What a stunningly seductive woman. Not just her face, but her figure is outrageously splendid. Suddenly, there was a soft thud. Lu Shermei instantly fell to his knees, covering his bleeding eyes, crying out in pain. The attacker was Luo Feng Yuan. With a face full of disdain, she declared, such a nauseating gaze. How dare you look at me that way? The eldest, Empress commanded emotionlessly, crush this disgusting bug for me. On her command, the eldest zoomed towards Lu Shermei, an overwhelming power emanating from him. Seeing this, Lu Outyan hastily stood in front of his son. Holy demon sect leader, what do you think you're doing? The eldest, without replying, directly stomped down. Lu Outyan gritted his teeth, raising his hand in defense. As their powers collided, thunder and lightning echoed above. Lu Outyan was evidently weaker, being pushed back by several meters. He shouted at Luo Feng Yuan, new leader of the sect. Are you trying to breach the tripartite agreement? Luo Feng Yuan silently scoffed in her mind. Who do you think you are? The eldest continued his onslaught. As Lu Outyan tried to fend him off, he shouted, What exactly do you want? Leader of the holy demon sect, the primordial embryo is about to mature. A hundred years of planning is at stake right now. Do you wish to see it all go to waste at the last moment? Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan finally commanded, the eldest. Immediately, the eldest halted his attack and stood behind Luo Feng Yuan. Lu Outyan, frantic, examined his son's injuries and thought, This woman has gone mad. What does she want? Luo Feng Yuan retorted, What do you intend by barging and uninvited? I heard that people from the holy demon sect have arrived in great flame. I just wanted to meet, Lu Outyan replied. The second and the third both sneered. Meet? The third added, Didn't anyone teach you to knock before entering? Your son is ill-mannered, staring blatantly at our leader. Who does he think he is? Is he worthy? Lu Outyan was furious but knew he had to calm down and resolve the situation. Acting impulsively might ruin bigger plans. He then respectfully said, What can I do to make amends? Please be clear. Luo Feng Yuan pondered for a moment. If you want this matter settled, it's simple. The legitimate prince of your empress, Xiao Tian, has caught my eye. Whenever you meet him, you must greet him respectfully, not make things difficult for him, and assist him in every way. If anything happens to him, I won't hesitate to turn against the Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion. I won't play along anymore. With that said, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly released an overpowering aura, forcing Lu Outyan to step back several paces. What shocked Lu Outyan the most, however, was her demand. He thought, what on earth? This overbearing new leader of the holy demon sect, what is she saying? To save my son's life and resolve this matter, I must look out for that. Pretty boy, Prime Minister Lu Outyan was completely taken aback. He couldn't help but mentally complain, Xiao Tian, how blind was I? You're not just any ordinary person. You're a charming man who can turn the world upside down. Admittedly, he is quite handsome and has an indescribable charisma that makes people feel attracted and close to him. Wait, Lu Outyan's face turned red as he realized his own thoughts. He slapped himself hard. What dangerous thoughts am I having? Charming man indeed. Demon clan empress Luo Feng Yuan shot him a stern glance. Have you made up your mind? Playing the victim won't work on me. Lu Outyan hurriedly agreed. Yet Luo Feng Yuan looked down at him, intimidatingly saying, remember not to expose me. If the Xiao Tian I've got my eyes on gets away because of you, you know the consequences. Now, get out. Hearing her command, Lu Outyan swiftly carried his blind son and leapt away, seething with anger. This was the most humiliating experience he'd had since he became the Prime Minister of Great Flame. Moreover, he'd now have to greet Xiao Tian with a smile. Back at the Prime Minister's mansion, Lu Outyan was livid. It's all your fault. You almost ruined years of planning. He furiously threw his son onto the ground. If I had the time, I'd rather strangle you and have another child. Lu Shermei harbored his own resentment. It's because of your incompetence that my eyes are now damaged. Sooner or later, I'll kill you, old man. Elsewhere, Luo Feng Yuan was daydreaming. She imagined that once Xiao Tian found out about all the things she did for him behind the scenes, he'd abandon Zi Ruoyan and rush into her arms, smiling to herself. She muttered, when that day comes, I might even allow Zi Ruoyan to be a concubine. He, naughty, the eldest looked at the daydreaming empress and sighed, thinking, there's truly no hope for the empress. She's completely lost it. Meanwhile, inside the royal palace's sleeping chambers, Xiao Tian lay on his bed, sighing out of boredom. I wonder when the puppy system will finish its upgrade. I'm not used to sleeping without its sleep mode. Coincidentally, a system notification came in, respected master, system upgrade has been completed. Xiao Tian blinked in surprise. Finally, you're back. Yes, master. Sorry for the wait. Shortly after, Xiao Tian's body slowly lifted off the ground and in the next moment, he found himself inside the system space. A soft, delicate voice greeted him. Master, how may I assist you? Xiao Tian was taken aback, for before him stood a young, vibrant, and adorable girl. He stared in astonishment. Are you, puppy? The girl nodded. Yes, master. How did you turn into this? Puppy then explained. I am your servant, residing within you. Over time, I evolved and upgraded, revealing this form. You can understand this as my true appearance. As for my attire, it was formed based on your preferences which I discerned from your data when the sleep mode was active. I chose this look to please you. Xiao Tian hurriedly defended himself. What nonsense are you talking about? How could these be my preferences? Puppy just smiled, her silence speaking volumes. Seeing this, Xiao 
Xiao Tian turned away. Never mind, I just want to sleep. Remember to activate the sleep mode. Hearing this, Puppy nodded in agreement. With a wave of her hand, an interface appeared before her. She began operating it. And one more thing. Switch from white stockings to black ones. I prefer black. And you said you summarized my preferences. Clearly, you got it wrong. Puppy chuckled softly. As you wish, Master. Everything will be as you desire. Puppy promptly summoned an interface that read, Sleep mode activated. Protecting Master's spirit. Blocking memory nightmares. Memory protection field. Using Master's power. Energy at 100%. As soon as the words faded, a barrier quickly arose. After it was set, Puppy looked adoringly at the sleeping Xiao Tian and whispered, Sweet dreams. Memories falling like meteorites were entirely blocked by the force field. Suddenly, a thought struck Puppy. Are those memories which trouble Master's dreams? His memories from Earth. Puppy directly accessed the interface to delve into those memories Xiao Tian didn't wish to recall. The scene displayed a massive training base. A young Xiao Tian was seen participating in a competition with his dog. Soon, the leader announced the results. Luo Tian, 9 years old, 27th place. Xiao Tian, 10 years old, 8th place. Xiao Tian, 6 years old, 1st place. Despite clinching the top spot, Xiao Tian seemed indifferent, focusing solely on the puppy beside him. The leader, who was also Xiao Tian's adoptive father, approached and ruffled his hair, asking if there was any reward he desired. Xiao Tian shook his head, expressing he wanted nothing. The leader then turned to the puppy. I heard you train this dog yourself. Very well done. Xiao Tian finally smiled. He's very obedient and smart. With hard training, he can always be number one. The leader patted the dog, noticing the bond between them. I've never heard you talk this much about anything before. What's his name? Xiao Tian replied with a soft smile. His name is Puppy, my companion. At these words, the spirited puppy immediately jumped into his embrace. Watching the harmonious scene, the leader's expression turned solemn. Even though you're young, I think it's time for your first task. Xiao Tian immediately stood at attention, awaiting his orders. To his surprise, the leader handed him a gun, pointing at his beloved white dog. He coldly ordered, kill it. The memory shattered abruptly at this point, leaving the ending unknown. After witnessing these events, System Puppy seemed lost in thought. After a moment, she knelt beside the sleeping Xiao Tian, gently placing his head on her lap. Looking down at him, she softly murmured, Honored Master, I truly cherish this name. On this bright morning, Xiao Tian yawned as he prepared to attend the morning court. He was irritated at the thought of joining the ministers in the main hall to discuss proposals, especially the one about building a welfare institution. He had to wait for Empress Zi Ruan's approval. If it weren't for the primary sponsor's insistence, he wouldn't have wanted to come at all. That sponsor was the demon clan Empress, whom Xiao Tian had only recently met. She gave him three million spirit stones every month just for chatting with her. These were to be used to raise his reputation in great flame. At this moment, Zhong Yang Ming and Zhong Li Huang greeted Xiao Tian. Ahead, Lu Yin turned towards Xiao Tian and greeted, Greetings, Prince. Did you not rest well last night? I have a calming incense at home which helps with sleep. After the court session, I'll send some to you. Everyone, including the surrounding officials, was stunned. Even Xiao Tian couldn't help but exclaim in surprise. He pointed at Lu Yin and accused, What are you up to? Poisoning the incense to harm me? Offering favors without reason. He's either deceiving or stealing. Maybe I should just get rid of him. Too many witnesses here. It's not the right time. But wait, Lu Yin is essential for great flame. Killing him would be problematic for the empire. And how would the empress sustain herself? Xiao Tian took a deep breath, forcing himself to calm down. Meanwhile, Lu Yin was flabbergasted, wondering, what did I do? Why would I try to please you if it weren't for that crazy woman? Did Xiao Tian really want to kill me? A mere mortal like him, trying to kill me? Who gave him such courage? I need to stay calm. Thinking this, Lu Yin laughed and explained, Prince, you misunderstood. I was just thinking of the nation's greater good. He suddenly gave Xiao Tian a thumbs up. The recent deeds you've done have shown me the kind of person you are. The title Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deity truly suits you. Xiao Tian felt his scalp tingle, thinking, how could you mention that name in front of such a large crowd? He turned his head and sure enough, the surrounding officials were covering their mouths, trying to hide their snickers. Damn it. Soon after the morning session ended and the officials departed, the Empress approached Xiao Tian. What's with Lu Yin's sudden support for you? Have you really not done anything recently? The Empress was puzzled. Could it be that the Prime Minister genuinely values the Great Flame Dynasty and has a changed perspective after observing Xiao Tian's recent actions? With a disdainful expression, Xiao Tian responded, I'm just as confused. After waking up, I noticed Lu Yin's attitude changed drastically. Did you not see how brightly he smiled at me before the meeting? Zhong Yang Ming was also baffled by Lu Yin's abnormal behavior, adding, and Lu Shermei suddenly fell ill at home. I wonder if there's any connection. Zhong Li Huang seemed indifferent. Regardless, we'll face any challenges as they come. Hearing this, Xiao Tian sighed in resignation. But a moment later, he remembered something crucial. I need to leave now. I'll come back in the afternoon to accompany you in the imperial study. He said to the empress as he rushed out. Zhong Yang Ming quickly called out. Prince, where are you going? What do you want for lunch? Without turning back, Xiao Tian replied. I'm going to make money. I won't be back for lunch. Hearing this, both Zhou 
Feng Yangming and his wife were utterly confused. What kind of urgent business required him to earn money? The empress was also puzzled. Had she been giving him too little pocket money recently? He did plan on opening a welfare institution for charity, which must have depleted his funds quickly. Perhaps she should find an excuse to increase his allowance. That night, Xiao Tian was writing in his diary, documenting his experiences in the alternate world. Clear skies. September 15th. The breakfast in the palace remains, as usual, inedible. In the morning, I visited Luo Feng Yuan. She insisted on bathing in the hot springs. She also suggested increasing the meal allowance for the welfare institution and even took action on it. I had no choice. Making a sacrifice for a good cause is not shameful. While there, Luo Feng Yuan cheerfully asked if I would catch a cold bathing fully clothed. But in the next moment, she looked surprised and covered her mouth. I had a nosebleed. It must be this overly warm and cloudy spring water. Great flame log. Hot autumn day. September 16th. On my way out of the city, I bumped into Lu Outyin. He kept smiling, spoke softly, and had a strange look in his eyes. I felt uneasy around him, thinking there might be something off about this man. Tonight, I'll need to activate my closed senses to secretly listen if he's plotting anything. Later, when I reached Luo Feng Yuan's residence, she told me she had twisted her ankle. It's painful. Can you massage it for me? I can give you a tip. I frowned, thinking, how dare she think a mere tip would get me to massage her foot. However, in the afternoon when I handed over 5 million spirit stones to Zhong Yang Ming, he kept asking where I got the money from. It was annoying. Just use it. I earned it through labor. I thought, he's going to get extra training tonight for all his questions. Great flame log. Light rain. Autumn. September 17th. I didn't sleep well last night. Keeping my senses closed seems better, as the external noise is too distracting. Late at night, I often hear unsettling noises, especially from that old lecher Lu Outyin. Even at his age, he wants a son. Doesn't he fear his son, Lu Shermei, might disapprove? Today, Luo Feng Yuan was a bit too forward. She asked me to accompany her to her room. Naturally, I refused. However, she kept calling me big brother and poking my face. I felt I should teach her a lesson and not let her become too unrestrained. But I think I fell for her trap. She seemed even happier than I was. Darn it, she probably wanted me to scold her. Thankfully, she compensated me for my emotional distress, which I handed over to Zhong Yang Ming in the afternoon. Zhong Yang Ming wants to expand the academy to cover the entire Great Flame. Impressive. It's a good idea. Fortunately, Zhong Yang Ming didn't pester me with questions this time. He just kept mumbling about some decoction of ten tonics and mentioned getting some ingredients from the seaside. I'm relieved. Why should a chef have so many queries? Just focus on cooking. Another issue. Zi Royan seems very vexed by the court affairs. She got drunk at the prince's residence last night. I had no choice but to let her stay and rest. Sigh. I shouldn't let her drink anymore. Alcohol causes trouble. Great flame log. September 18th. Clear day. When I woke up today, I found myself drooling, and Zi Ruoyan, who woke up before me, caught me red-handed. Such bad luck. For some reason, Luo Feng Yuan overreacted tremendously. She started kicking the wall, shouting, So what if you're great? Sneakily taking advantage of others when they're not alert. Thinking you can benefit because someone else is not too sharp? What a lame excuse. You can't be the only one to kiss. I only shared the drooling incident with Luo Feng Yuan. Why did she react so strongly? It's as if she's the one who's embarrassed, not me. Later, she even tried to sneak a kiss from me. If it weren't for her terrifying expression, like she wanted to devour me, which scared me into freezing on the spot, she wouldn't have succeeded. I expressed my discontent, saying it was my first kiss. She disrespected me. Yet, she got even angrier and demanded that I carry her around Green Flame Mountain to make amends. Thinking it would be a good opportunity to check on my pigs, I agreed. Arriving at the pig farm, I was astounded. Just a few days apart, and the size of the Green Flame pigs had doubled. I had to look up to see them. The free-ranging Green Flame chickens were also as tall as a person. They could peck open rocks to find food. It seems Green Flame Mountain truly is a geomantic treasure. Since it's so vast, I'm considering raising other things there as well. However, Luo Feng Yuan was strange. She had a serious look and kept glancing around. Those glimmers, could they be some sort of treasure? Very odd. While the history of the Great Flame Dynasty has seen many challenges and adversities, it has always reaped significant gains after each ordeal. Where can I even begin to understand all this? However, I drooled again in my sleep today. My mouth tasted sweet. Fortunately, Zi Ruoyan didn't notice. She was busy reviewing official documents. She must be so exhausted. When I woke up, I felt a bit hungry. Sadly, the preserved fruit was too sweet. The palace chefs are really lacking. Even if Zhong Yang Ming were to cook with his eyes closed, it would still taste better than this. At night, Xiao Tian was reading, pondering, why is the Great Flame Dynasty so peculiar? The Barbarian Kingdom attacks Great Flame, yet it leads to an expansion of Great Flame's territory. The assassins from the Blood Cloud Tower who die every time their operation is executed, their storage rings are terrifyingly rich with resources. The Black Soul Hall and Land of Dark Souls, whenever chaos ensues, causes a massive influx of refugees to the southern borders. Aren't these labor resources? Whatever. I'm tired. Just as Xiao Tian decided to rest, he suddenly saw Zi Ruoyan staggering towards him with a pile
pot of wine in hand. Xiao Tian quickly moved to support her, saying, Your Majesty, why do you drink when you can't handle alcohol? Zi Ruoyan, with a dreamy look in her eyes, replied, In the days to come, I feel the need to drink. It's good to have you by my side to practice my tolerance. Besides, some things are easier to do when drunk, right? Now, Demon Clan Empress Luo Feng Yuan brought over another large box of spirit stones. Xiao Tian was dumbstruck. He estimated there were roughly a hundred mid-grade spirit stones inside, equivalent to a hundred thousand low-grade spirit stones. How enviable! Money truly is wonderful! Pointing at the spirit stones, he asked Luo Feng Yuan, What's the meaning of this? Luo Feng Yuan, her face filled with excitement, said, This concubine doesn't just want to chat today. I want you to accompany me for a walk in the mountains, hand in hand, chatting while enjoying the scenic beauty. Xiao Tian immediately slammed the box shut, rebuking her with a stern face. Nonsense! Didn't you hear a word I said yesterday? However, Luo Feng Yuan responded, Brother Xiao, everything you do is for the people of the Great Flame Dynasty. Thinking of the orphanage, Xiao Tian had no choice but to agree. Alright, tell me, do you want to hold my left hand or my right hand? And let's make it clear, we can only hold hands, no hugging. Otherwise, I'll be so uncomfortable. Luo Feng Yuan blushed, her tone very sweet. Oh, stop teasing. This concubine didn't mean to make you uncomfortable on purpose. Soon after, the two were walking hand in hand in the woods. Just so you know, Xiao Tian began, after lunch, I have to go back and be with the Empress. Why be with her? Can't you stay a bit longer? What are you doing? Teaching me how to do things. Luo Feng Yuan responded playfully. Oh my, how would this concubine dare? Meanwhile, in a certain valley, Zhou Tianji of the Astral Pavilion was observing. What do you see? In the valley was something that looked exactly like Empress Zi Ruoyan. Zhou Tianji slowly said, from the surface, the maturation time of the primordial embryo seems to have advanced. How is that possible? The primordial embryo is born in accordance with the heavens and the earth. Its maturation time is set in stone. It can't change, not even by a minute. The person speaking was Great Flame's Prime Minister, Luo Yin. But Zhou Tianji was someone who could see fate. With a mocking expression, he told Luo Yin, You can't see fate. What do you know? Luo Yin was instantly furious. Zhou Tianji, can't you speak nicely? Hit me then? Zhou Tianji taunted, Sure, you're much stronger than me. But we all have our realms sealed. Who's afraid of whom? Zhou Tianji's arrogant demeanor infuriated Luo Yin, who could only chant to himself, Keep the big picture in mind. Zhou Tianji continued, Of course, if you unseal your realm and beat me up, I'll accept it. But do you dare? Upon hearing this, Luo Yin didn't argue further. I will discuss this matter with your astral pavilion to ascertain the truth. Zhou Tianji seemed indifferent. Going to complain? Go ahead. Regardless of who comes from the astral pavilion, the result will be the same. The development time of the primordial embryo and the time when Empress Zi Ruoyan increased her cultivation are set in stone. But the issue is, during that time in the northern border, Zi Ruoyan managed to break through and even increased her aptitude. This caused the timeline to advance by a year. Zhou Tianji was puzzled. It's really strange. Her bloodline and physique are already top-notch. How could she possibly improve further? And that king of hell, which realm did this foolish youngster come from? Making a mess and claiming great flame as his. Nonsense. Suddenly, a female voice intervened. What impact will this advancement have? Zhou Tianji initially thought she was the sect master of the holy demon sect. Luo Yin glanced at her. No, she is the eldest, a servant by the sect master's side. Zhou Tianji said with some dissatisfaction. This matter is not a trivial one. If your sect master is around, why isn't she here? Is there something more important than the early emergence of the primordial embryo? The eldest responded nonchalantly. The sect master has an important guest and is naturally unavailable. It's enough for me to handle this matter. Luo Yin thought to himself, important guest? That madwoman is just entertaining a young pretty boy. What's wrong with her brain? Valuing an ordinary Xiao Tian over the primordial embryo, the three then turned their attention back to the primordial embryo. Zhou Tianji explained, whether it's good or bad, our astral pavilion has never encountered such a thing. We don't know if the primordial embryo will continue to mature at this accelerated pace or return to its normal speed. It's unfortunate for these people. They might live shorter lives now. All right, we've seen enough. You can stay here and enjoy yourselves. I'm leaving. With that, Zhou Tianji turned into a streak of golden light and flew away swiftly. The eldest handed Lu Yan a bottle of antidote. You've been performing well lately. The sect master is quite pleased. Your son's eye condition isn't healing because he's been poisoned. Take this pill and he'll be fine. Oh, and act a bit more natural. Prince Xiao mentioned to the sect master more than once that your recent laughter resembles that of a creepy old man and it may makes him uncomfortable. Before Lu Yin could retort, the eldest quickly flew away, leaving him alone, yelling in frustration, I laugh like a creepy old man, Xiao Tian, you, 10,000 words omitted for brevity. Meanwhile, Xiao Tian, with a physique akin to a deity, suddenly sneezed, rubbing his nose, he thought, this doesn't make sense, I don't catch colds, is someone cursing me? Luo Feng Yuan seized the opportunity to advise, it must be because you're soaking in the hot spring with your clothes on, once the wet cloth gets a breeze, you'll feel cold, listen to this concubine and take off your clothes. Xiao Tian immediately refused.
confused. You offer the price, and I'll provide the service. You can't take advantage of me. Moreover, if I remove my clothes and someone sees, it'd be hard to explain. Just then, the warm hot spring water suddenly turned to ice. Xiao Tian was taken aback. Strange. Why does the water feel colder and colder? Luo Fum Yuan's eyebrows raised, sensing danger. She grabbed Xiao Tian by his hair and pulled him out of the water, then laughingly addressed someone not far off. Oh dear, after all, he's your husband. Aren't you afraid of freezing him to death? Following her gaze, Xiao Tian realized that the newcomer was none other than his empress wife, Zi Ruan. Holding a long sword, with an enraged expression, she shouted, Zhong Ling, Lu Yan, watch the prince closely. I'm going to kill someone today. Luo Feng Yuan seemed completely unfazed, even taunting with a smirk, Your Majesty Zi, such a fiery temper. But do you have the capability? Zi Ruan remained expressionless, her body radiating immense spiritual power. Whether I do or not, let's find out. No sooner had she spoken than Zi Ruan made the first move, charging fiercely at Luo Feng Yuan. The two collided, sending a cloud of dust billowing from the ground. Feeling no pressure whatsoever, Luo Feng Yuan provocatively said, Is that all you've got? With that, she lunged forward, aiming a fierce kick at Zi Ruan, who effortlessly blocked it. You're not that impressive either, she retorted. Such envy between women. As physical combat proved inconclusive, the two started harnessing their spiritual power. Zhong Ling and the others watched from a distance, occasionally having to fend off the aftermath of their fierce exchanges. Turning to Xiao Tian, they commented, Prince, seems like you've stirred up trouble. If Her Majesty wants to punish you later, please show some restraint. Xiao Tian was speechless, thinking, I just wanted to make a little extra money. How did things get to this point? Nothing's ever easy. As it turned out, Empress Zi Ruoyan, having some free time, had visited Green Flame Mountain for a leisurely stroll with Zhong Ling and Lu Yan. Zhong Ling suddenly remarked, Your Majesty, just ahead is the Green Flame Mountain's hot spring. It's secluded and has excellent water quality. You could relax a bit since there's no morning court session today. Thank you, General Lu. But then, Zi Ruoyan paused, thinking she heard Xiao Tian's voice. She asked the other two if they had heard anything. The pair exchanged puzzled glances. Didn't the prince say he was going to make some money? Upon hearing this, Zi Ruoyan waved dismissively. It must have been my imagination. However, as they neared the hot spring, they saw Xiao Tian and the demon clan empress, Luo Feng Yuan, soaking in the waters. Luo Feng Yuan appeared to be making advances, while Xiao Tian held his chest defensively, looking utterly reluctant. Enraged, Zi Ruoyan exclaimed, Who is this audacious woman daring to steal my man? Consequently, a fierce battle between the two empresses ensued. Zhong Ling and the others watched the drama unfold with a mix of amusement and resignation. She turned to Xiao Tian and asked, Didn't you say you were here to make money this morning? Why are you now in the hot springs with someone else? Sighing, Xiao Tian replied, I really was here to make money. Where do you think the money I gave to Zhong Yang Min came from? It all began a few days ago when I mentioned someone wanting to provide for me. Before he could finish, both Zhong Ling and Lu Yan burst into laughter. Baffled, Xiao Tian asked, What's so funny? I've been working seriously to earn money. Between fits of laughter, Zhong Ling managed to say, No, it's just thinking of something amusing. Lu Yan, do you think Her Majesty can win? Suppressing her giggles, Lu Yan replied, Hard to say, but is this what the Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deity has to deal with? Xiao Tian, feeling misunderstood, spread his arms and said, I earn money for good deeds, contributing to the Great Flame. Why are you laughing like this? As Lu Yan wiped away her tears of mirth, she added, Prince, you truly work hard to earn money. You're so selfless. We admire you. This only set off another round of giggles from Zhong Ling. Meanwhile, the standoff between Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan continued. Luo Feng Yuan taunted with a sneer, not bad in strength. It's good to stretch your muscles once in a while, but today, it seems you won't be killing anyone. Zi Ruoyan snapped back. I thought you were just a lowly mistress sneaking around. Turns out you've got some skills. However, Xiao Tian is mine. I suggest you quit these futile fantasies. Though, since I'm often busy, if you'd like to serve us, fetch tea, and attend to my husband and me, I might consider keeping you around. Luo Feng Yuan chuckled, calling me a lowly mistress. Oh, this concubine isn't like you. Kissing someone stealthily, and then lying that it was just drool from sleeping, pretending to be so virtuous. Hearing this, Xiao Tian turned to Zi Ruan in shock. She kissed me. Zhong Ling and Lu Yan were both left in shock, their minds going blank. They thought, is Her Majesty really this bold? Zi Ruan's face turned slightly red as she quickly retorted, don't spew nonsense. If I wanted to, I'd just take him by force. Would Xiao Tian dare to protest? Me, sneaking a kiss? He drools in his sleep anyway. Both Zhong Ling and Lu Yan looked away, thinking to themselves, Her Majesty, that's a great explanation. Maybe don't explain next time. Who in their right mind would believe that? However, to their surprise, Xiao Tian just scratched his head and laughed. Ah, you scared me there. I knew it couldn't be true. It was then that the two remembered that Prince Xiao Tian wasn't exactly what one would call normal. Luo Feng Yuan looked annoyed. Don't act innocent after taking advantage. Me, taking advantage? What a joke. Zi Ruoyan responded sharply. Xiao Tian is my husband, wedded in broad daylight. Who are you to comment? If I share a bed with him, do you think you have
have any right to judge? Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan was left speechless and enraged. She changed back into her original attire, grabbed her large scythe, and prepared for an intense battle. The massive, dark purple crescent blade came slashing down towards Zi Ruoyan. Reacting swiftly, Zi Ruoyan conjured an ice shield to block the blow, then raised her sword to counter Luo Feng Yuan's scythe. As their weapons clashed, shards from the shattered ice shield scattered, extinguishing many of the surrounding purple flames. Luo Feng Yuan smirked. Even if you've reached the ninth stage and ninth level, you still can't compare to the power of the tenth stage. Zi Ruoyan was well aware of the power gap. However, for her beloved Prince Xiao Tian, she was determined to fight, regardless of the odds. Zi Ruoyan unleashed her spiritual power, sending countless ice crystals crashing towards Luo Feng Yuan. With just a light tip of her toe, Luo Feng Yuan leapt gracefully, avoiding all the incoming attacks. Seeing this, Zi Ruoyan channeled her spiritual power once again, slashing with her sword. The ice crystals, sharp as blades, hurtled towards Luo Feng Yuan anew. Yet, Luo Feng Yuan began to spin her crescent scythe like a windmill, shattering the icy blade aura, rendering it completely ineffective. Luo Feng Yuan jeered, Is that all you've got? You should leave Xiao Tian's side. You're simply not worthy of him. With that, Luo Feng Yuan gathered her strength and swung her scythe with tremendous force. In an instant, a terrifying attack, accompanied by endless purple flames, shot directly towards Zi Ruoyan. Biting down hard on her teeth, Zi Ruoyan used her sword to fiercely block the blow. Though her body was now covered in injuries, the force was overwhelming, sending shockwaves throughout her internal organs. However, she believed that she could withstand it. No one could take him away from her. With that determination, Zi Ruoyan swung her sword once more with all her might, shouting, I'll show you if I'm worthy or not. Luo Feng Yuan grew increasingly irritated, swinging her crescent scythe wildly at Zi Ruoyan. You're so annoying. Why won't you just admit defeat? The barrage of fury and Fused attacks left Zi Ruoyan's mind reeling, causing her to fall from the sky. As she landed, even the hand holding her sword trembled. Yet, defiance still blazed in her eyes as she locked gazes with Luo Feng Yuan. Luo Feng Yuan observed Zi Ruoyan carefully, considering how rapidly Zi Ruoyan's realm had advanced. The spiritual energy within her body had expanded but felt unstable. Perhaps, she could beat Zi Ruoyan up to help refine and purify her spiritual energy, further advancing her realm. This would be a sort of compensation for trying to take Xiao Tian away. Way. After all, someone like Zi Ruoyan shouldn't meet her end here. Luo Feng Yuan lifted her long leg, delivering a fierce kick to Zi Ruoyan's chest. Zi Ruoyan was sent flying like a cannonball, crashing into a nearby mountainside with a thunderous impact. Zhong Ling and Lu Yan's expressions shifted dramatically, and they attempted to rush over to check on her. However, Xiao Tian stopped them both with a firm grip, one hand on each. Zhong Ling looked at Xiao Tian incredulously. Gone was the usually whimsical demeanor of Xiao Tian. His face was calm and composed. He calmly remarked, trust your empress. She's not the type to just fall or give up easily. After all, she's the stubborn Sundara who, even when exposed in front of others, still adamantly denied everything and clung to me. Hearing this, the two were taken aback. Prince, Zhong Ling queried, you didn't actually believe the empress's words, did you? Xiao Tian blinked. When a man is outside, he should give his woman some face. He said confidently, crossing his arms and watching the scene unfold before him. Just watch. As expected, Zi Ruoyan, clutching her sword, staggered to her feet. Xiao Tian's gaze was intense. Your Majesty, don't fall. I have great faith in you. Luo Feng Yuan stared at Zi Ruoyan with a puzzled expression. Why don't you give up? If you continue like this, you'll die. Zi Ruoyan responded with a smile, not of anger but of pity. In a way, I understand your feelings. But have you ever looked at his back? If you truly pay attention, you'd see that he seems to be in pain and sorrow, not fitting in with the world around him. But this fool, when he faces others, always has that silly smile on his face. Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan turned a glance at Xiao Tian who stood not far away. Indeed, she remembered remembered the times when she walked behind him on mountain trails. His lonely silhouette was heart-wrenching to behold. But what did that matter in the end? Luo Feng Yuan chuckled. I like it when he scolds me, and then looks at me helplessly, wearing that exasperated smile. Zi Ruoyan seemed to ignore her, continuing in her own world. That night, I was supposed to. She suddenly paused, as if a mental block had been lifted from her mind. Then, a serene smile graced her face. That night, as usual, I was preparing to return to the dimly lit and cold hall to rest alone, to face another busy day on my own the next day but the usually dark hall was lit with warm lights. The once desolate courtyard had a steaming pot, and beside it sat him, gifting me with his brilliant smile. As the empress spoke, she slowly closed her eyes. A golden spiritual power began to whirl and converge in front of her chest. The radiance intensified, enveloping Zi Ruoyan completely. Anyone watching knew that something monumental was taking place within her. Zhong Ling, Lu Yan, and Luo Feng Yuan stared in astonishment. Only Xiao Tian remained calm, intently observing the transformation. After a moment, the solidified gold golden light pillar began to shatter, resembling the hatching of an egg. Luo Feng Yuan finally came to her senses, her mouth agape, exclaiming in awe, 10th level, she's essentially
ascended to the tenth level just like that, as the golden pillar of light shattered completely, Zi Ruoyan's figure emerged. At this moment, she was fully enveloped in gold, donning a majestic and awe-inspiring set of golden armor. Luo Feng Yuan, feeling the pressure of a formidable opponent, began to unleash her magic power in full force, her purple hair fluttering wildly in the gusts. Then, Zi Ruoyan finally opened her eyes, her pupils having transformed into a commanding shade of gold. With her sword in hand, she bellowed, He is my husband. If you think of taking him away, don't even dream of it. Zhong Ling couldn't help but shout, Your Majesty, you're so cool. Lu Yan turned to Xiao Tian and asked, Prince, you stopped us from stepping in earlier. Did you know this would happen? Xiao Tian replied with an air of indifference, If you're talking about Luo Feng Yuan aiding Zi Ruoyan in her breakthrough, then yes, I was aware. But as for that battle armor, I have no idea. He looked perplexed. What does this golden light have to do with her majesty? Is it related to the Great Flame Dynasty? However, hearing Xiao Tian's words, Zhong Ling appeared reluctant to believe. Are you suggesting that woman helped her majesty advance to the next realm? Yes. Look closely. Right now, Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan, one gold and one purple, their powers are evenly matched, contending with one another in perfect balance. Just then, Xiao Tian sensed someone approaching. You all focus on the fight. I'll deal with the hidden lackeys in the shadows. As they watched the two figures clashing ferociously in the air, Zhong Ling couldn't help but murmur, so powerful. This is not the same level of battle as before. Lu Yan also felt a chill run down her spine. If that woman had used this kind of power against her majesty earlier, I fear. Interrupting her, Xiao Tian flexed his wrist and commented, Exactly. Luo Feng Yuan's combat strength has amplified at least tenfold from earlier. As he spoke, Xiao Tian casually signaled for a handkerchief to be handed to him. Zhong Ling and Lu Yan, both with a skeptical look, questioned, Why would that woman help her majesty break through? While wiping his hands, Xiao Tian replied nonchalantly, Zi Ruoyan's ascension was too rapid, her internal spiritual energy expanding and becoming unstable. Luo Feng Yuan probably wanted to beat up Zi Ruoyan, kidnap me, and in the process, refine Zi Ruoyan's spiritual energy to enhance her realm as compensation for taking me. Who could have anticipated that not only would Zi Ruoyan advance in rank, but she'd also manifest an armor, boosting her combat capabilities. At that moment, Zhong Ling noticed something amiss and exclaimed, Prince, why? Why are your hands covered in blood? The handkerchief in Xiao Tian's hand was now thoroughly soaked with fresh blood. It's nothing. This green flame mountain range consists of 39 mountains. It seems some individuals were hiding here. The noise from the fight attracted some hidden forces, 27 of them to be precise, all at the 10th tier. Upon hearing this, Lu Yan hesitantly asked, So, Prince, you took action? With a slight nod and a somber expression, Xiao Tian faintly smiled. While you all were engrossed watching Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan's battle, I swiftly dealt with them on the side. Perhaps due to my bad mood, I didn't choose the cleanest method, hence the messy hands. Zhong Ling pursed her lips, tightly gripping the beside Lu Yan, who didn't dare to breathe. The Xiao Tian before them at that moment was terrifying. Just then, the system puppy suddenly alerted, Master, please calm down. You are not in the superdimensional earth plane. The ambush ordered by your adoptive father is in the past. These people are merely unfamiliar forces that set up this ambush. Don't get agitated. Xiao Tian abruptly realized his oversight. The chilling ambience that enveloped them returned to its original temperature. Rubbing his forehead, Xiao Tian flashed his familiar radiant smile at the two and apologized. I'm sorry. I was momentarily overwhelmed, thinking about some unpleasant memories. Did I scare you? Both Zhong Ling and Lu Yan shook their heads vigorously, indicating they weren't frightened at all. Xiao Tian, a bit exasperated, remarked, Maybe, you both could stand up while talking? Following this, he casually tossed the bloodied handkerchief into a black hole, silently muttering, Thank you, puppy. Within the sea of his consciousness, a maid dressed in black gently cradled a soul, replying, You're welcome, esteemed master. Meanwhile, the battle in the sky continued. Unable to resist asking, Zhong Ling inquired, Prince, how do we separate her majesty and the other when the time comes? Lifting his gaze to the sky, Xiao Tian saw Zi Ruoyan, resembling a golden ice warrior queen. With each swing of her sword, a golden ice dragon roared and charged, eventually colliding with Luo Feng Yuan, dispelling her flames. Zi Ruoyan, in another swift motion, thrust her sword, piercing through Luo Feng Yuan's body. Stunned, she quickly withdrew her blade, shouting, Idiot, why didn't you dodge? Yet, at that moment, the figure before her became ethereal, and a slender hand reached out from behind Zi Ruoyan. Luo Feng Yuan whispered, Oh dear, are you worried about me? Zi Ruoyan swiftly deflected Luo Feng Yuan with her sword, her face turning crimson as she exclaimed, Who allowed you to touch me so casually? To her surprise, Luo Feng Yuan just chuckled and changed the topic, so small. Infuriated, Zi Ruoyan retorted, I am not like that young girl Zhong Ling. What's small about me? Down below, Xiao Tian nearly choked on his saliva. He glanced at Zhong Ling, who was looking up at the sky with a puzzled expression. Xiao Tian thought to himself, It's better that she never finds out. The person she respects the most might be the one who hurts her the most. Zi Ruoyan was the first to strike, landing a punch as she mocked. You think you're so great because you're big?
bigger? Luo Feng Yuan countered with a punch of his own, taunting back. Can't you take a joke? Is it wrong to point out that you're small? Watching the two of them bicker and fight, Xiao Tian pondered for a moment. It seems like they've mostly vented their frustrations. Not only are they bantering, but their murderous intent has diminished significantly. Lu Yan frowned and voiced her concerns. Prince, if they continue like this, it might attract unnecessary trouble. Xiao Tian rubbed his wrist and agreed. Indeed, it's time to intervene. To their surprise, he started warming up, which made both Lu Yan and Zhong Ling's eyes light up with anticipation. It seemed the moment they had been waiting for was finally here. The prince was about to showcase his formidable strength. Xiao Tian cleared his throat and then suddenly shouted towards the two fighters in the sky, Stop it. Both of you, stop fighting. Stop it right now. Upon hearing this, both Zhong Ling and Lu Yan were utterly stunned. Is this really the prince's solution? Unsurprisingly, neither Zi Ruoyan nor Luo Feng Yuan seemed willing to be the first to cease their combat. They continued to clash intensely. However, in that moment, Xiao Tian slipped, and Zi Ruoyan noticed immediately. With a gasp of surprise, she teleported in a split second to appear behind Xiao Tian, catching him firmly in her embrace. Luo Feng Yuan, arriving a moment too late, could only watch as Xiao Tian fell into Zi Ruoyan's arms. Lying in her hold, Xiao Tian began to inspect the clothing of the two fighters. He pondered to himself, when choosing clothes as a man, one has to pick the right kind. If it's leather, it feels rather cold, but is very smooth. Its shiny appearance is quite appealing. As for Gauss clothing, though it might not insulate well, it's quite warm. Its matte finish gives off a slightly mysterious vibe, and it feels incredibly silky. Lost in his thoughts, Xiao Tian murmured aloud, Choosing clothes is really difficult. Maybe I should get both types. Zi Ruoyan, still holding him, asked in confusion, What did you say? Xiao Tian looked up to see both of them staring intently at him. He quickly changed the topic, saying, Ah, the hot spring has been ruined because of your fight. There's no more for us to enjoy in the future. Zi Ruoyan wasn't so easily fooled. She said with a hint of irritation, That hot spring. I think you should soak in it for the entire night. You won't need to return to the palace tonight. Lu Yan, let him stay in your old mansion. He can stay in Green Flame Town. Lu Yan was taken aback and replied, Your Majesty, my old mansion is located in the old district of Green Flame Town. Not only is it far from Green Flame Town, but it's also too dilapidated for anyone to live in. Are you serious? As Zi Ruoyan turned to leave, Xiao Tian tried to persuade her once more, Your Majesty, what about the hot pot dinner tonight? Without turning her head, Zi Ruoyan replied, I'll eat it myself. You don't need to worry about it. Feeling a bit helpless, Xiao Tian turned to Luo Feng Yuan and asked, And at your place? But before he could finish, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly released his hold on Xiao Tian and said, Oh, this concubine suddenly remembered that I have plans tonight. It seems I won't be able to host Prince Xiao. Anyway, since the Empress has had her say, it's not appropriate for me either. Seeing Luo Feng Yuan's jealous demeanor, Xiao Tian felt completely at a loss. Zi Ruoyan then instructed Zhong Ling not to allow Xiao Tian to stay at the Zhong residence for the night. Afterward, the two went their separate ways, leaving Xiao Tian behind. Zhong Ling and Lu Yan looked at Xiao Tian with concern. Prince, it seems you've messed things up. Xiao Tian glanced at them and responded, You may not understand, but if you want to laugh, just do it. Your suppressed smiles make me feel even worse. Upon hearing this, the two burst into hearty laughter. That night, inside Lu Yan's dilapidated mansion, Xiao Tian lay on a tattered bed. The system puppy inquired, Respected master, would you like to activate the sleep aid mode? No need. I plan to sleep late tonight, Xiao Tian replied. After what felt like hours, a shadow slowly approached the entrance. It was Empress Zi Ruoyan, her face marked with annoyance. This guy is sleeping so soundly. I told you not to come back, and you really didn't. How infuriating. Little did she know, Xiao Tian was not asleep at all. At that moment, he was excitedly thinking, I'm glad I didn't turn on the sleep aid mode from the system. Will the Empress really sneak into my room tonight? I'm so looking forward to it. I've been trying to bait her, and as expected, in the middle of the night, Empress Zi Ruoyan came again. Observing Xiao Tian, who appeared to be soundly asleep, she thought, he seems to be sleeping deeply. I wonder if he's pretending, or if he's genuinely asleep. I have an idea. With a sudden inspiration, the Empress summoned a table full of hot pot from her storage ring. She then couldn't resist any longer and gave Xiao Tian a kiss. He still hasn't woken up. It seems he really is asleep, she thought. After what felt like hours, Xiao Tian finally began to stir. Zi Ruoyan quickly stood up, wondering what excuse she would use. Pretending to be unaware, Xiao Tian murmured, Strange, why am I drooling again? The food smells so good, especially the hot pot. Could it be that I drooled because of the aroma? Seizing the opportunity, the Empress chimed in, so that's the reason. I was wondering why you drool every time you sleep. Now it makes sense. Who can blame you when you're such a glutton? Feigning realization, Xiao Tian said, I must have dreamt about eating food. Wait, that's not right. Suddenly, he pointed at Zi Ruoyan and asked, Your Majesty, what are you doing here? Seeing Xiao Tian's confused expression, a thought crossed Zi Ruoyan's mind. He looks so adorable when he's clueless. She then sat down at the table and said, I initially didn't want to come, but I realized that as the Great Flame Empress, I shouldn't have to do things myself. Besides, I'm not a narrow-minded 
minded person. However, you still need to be punished. Tonight, you can only feed me the hot pot, and you're not allowed to eat yourself. Gazing at Zi Ruoyan's seemingly calm demeanor, but noticing her flushed ears, Xiao Tian, holding back a chuckle, bowed and said, My dear Empress, rest assured, I'll make sure you enjoy the meal. Just as Zi Ruoyan was about to respond, she noticed Xiao Tian, bowl and chopsticks in hand, sitting right next to her. She questioned, Why are you sitting so close to me? Xiao Tian looked serious, Your Majesty, if I sit too far, it won't be convenient to feed you. If I accidentally drop food on the table or the ground, it's not just a sign of disrespect to you, but mainly a waste of food, don't you think? Zi Ruoyan blinked and replied with her face turning a shade of red, I also think, yes, it should be like that. Thus, the two sat side by side. After boiling a piece of meat, Xiao Tian cooled it by blowing on it, while Zi Ruoyan anxiously clenched her fists. After a moment, Xiao Tian picked up a piece of meat and fed it to her. The meat tasted perfect in her mouth, with the right temperature and texture. It was simply divine. Wearing a beaming smile, Xiao Tian asked, How is it? Tasty? It's okay. Zi Ruoyan replied, feigning indifference. After all, I've only had one bite. How could I know its flavor? Xiao Tian immediately poured more ingredients into the pot and said, Wait a moment, your majesty. It'll be ready soon. As he busied himself, Zi Ruoyan watched with amusement. Shortly after, Xiao Tian offered another piece of food. Your majesty, try this. How's the flavor? It's alright, she replied nonchalantly. And this one? It's passable, I guess. At that moment, the chopsticks in Xiao Tian's hand accidentally fell to the ground. He slapped his thigh in frustration. How clumsy of me. I even dropped the chopsticks. I can't even manage such a simple task as serving your majesty. Zi Ruoyan quickly reassured him. It's just a minor issue. You shouldn't blame yourself so much. With a downcast tone, Xiao Tian asked, then how can I feed you with these foods? It's okay, I have. Before Zi Ruoyan could finish, Xiao Tian interrupted, I've got it. I can feed you with my mouth. Your majesty, I must say, I'm quite ingenious. Zi Ruoyan was stunned. Her face instantly flushed with embarrassment. Before she could react, Xiao Tian was already holding a piece of meat towards her. She could only gently bite it, silently cheering herself on. It's okay, I'm the empress. What's there to be nervous about? Feeding me this way since the chopsticks fell is reasonable. Yet in the next second, Xiao Tian leaned in, and they shared a passionate kiss. Zi Ruoyan quickly turned her head away. Teasingly, Xiao Tian asked, Your majesty, was it good? It was okay, just average, she replied. Yet inside, she was ecstatic, thinking, This feeling, it's so different from being secretive. It feels so much better when it's out in the open. Xiao Tian shook his head slightly, looking out of the window, gazing at the bright, full moon. He couldn't help but murmur, Such a beautiful moon tonight. Hearing this, Zi Ruoyan also turned to look at the night sky, softly agreeing, Indeed, it's beautiful. The room was filled with tranquility, with only the bubbling sound of the hot pot. Zi Ruoyan pursed her lips and slowly shifted her chair, discreetly moving closer to Xiao Tian. Just as the two seemed to be getting closer, a figure suddenly jumped in through the window. It was Demon Clan Empress, Luo Feng Yuan. Before she could stand up, she excitedly said, Brother Xiao, this concubine brought some fine wine. Let's drink till we're drunk. Lifting her head, Luo Feng Yuan finally noticed Zi Ruoyan and couldn't help but mockingly say, Oh, how come this little bun is here? Not one to back down. Zi Ruoyan retorted, I'd also love to know why this cow is here. The atmosphere quickly became tense. You called me what? I called you a purple-haired mess. The two continued bickering, leaving Xiao Tian feeling utterly exasperated. He thought, such a predicament. Suddenly, Luo Feng Yuan turned around and sat down, speaking in a sarcastic tone. How strange. Wasn't this Empress Furious, forbidding Brother Xiao from staying overnight in the palace? Even specifically warning Brother Xiao not to return to the Zhong residence. So, was all this fuss just for a secret rendezvous here? Zi Ruoyan crossed her arms, retorting, it's still better than someone who deliberately overstays, eavesdropping on others. Weren't you the one who said you were busy tonight? So, your busy night involves sneaking around to chase after my man, does it? Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan feigned innocence, but from what this concubine knows, aren't you just using Xiao Tian as a shield? The Prime Minister Lu proposed for his son, and you got married that very night. Who are you trying to fool? Zi Ruoyan was momentarily at a loss for words. Regardless of whether he's a shield or not, ever since he entered the palace, alive he's mine and dead he's my ghost. With that, Zi Ruoyan suddenly slapped in Luo Feng Yuan's direction, asking defiantly, showing off for whom? Think you're very impressive? Luo Feng Yuan, startled, quickly shielded herself, exclaiming, you, you dog empress, I won't let this go. With that, Luo Feng Yuan lunged at Zi Ruoyan. Zi Ruoyan, taken aback in her face pale with fear, shouted, you bully, what are you doing? Stop at once. From the side, Xiao Tian watched the two without blinking, thinking to himself, incredible, this is truly entertaining. Before long, both women were panting from exhaustion. Luo Feng Yuan spoke first, enough fighting, continuing like this will get us nowhere. So, what's your brilliant idea? Luo Feng Yuan slapped the wine jug beside her. If we can't settle this through physical combat, Combat. Let's have a battle of wits. A drinking contest. Do you dare, Zi Bun? Zi Ruoyan immediately waved her hand dismissively, scoffing. You think I'd be afraid of you? The next 
moment, a whole line of wine jars flew out from a storage ring, neatly arranged on the ground. Both of them slapped the table simultaneously, pushing the hot pot aside. Their hands then radiated spiritual power, directly opening the wine jars. As spiritual energy and demonic energy intertwined, the wine inside the jars rose into the air, mingling together before falling back into the jars. Immediately after, both turned their heads in unison, Brother Xiao. After saying their piece, they turned their attention back to each other, sparks seemingly flying between their gazes. It was uncertain who would emerge victorious this evening. Zi Ruoyan believed in the principle of first come, first served, but Luo Feng Yuan believed in another principle. The newcomer surpasses the old. Xiao Tian, looking quite aggrieved, was left pouring drinks for the two women, unable to get a word in. Zi Ruoyan continued to advise, I still want to remind you, a forcefully plucked melon is not sweet. Luo Feng Yuan, with some hidden thought making her face turn red with amusement, retorted, How do you know that something taken by force isn't sweet? What if it's especially sweet? Soon, bowls piled up in front of both of them, but neither Zi Ruoyan nor Luo Feng Yuan showed much sign of inebriation. Zi Ruoyan gave a light hum, I didn't expect your tolerance to be this good. Heh, <laughs> you're not too bad yourself. Another round? Zi Ruoyan said, her storage ring glowing as she prepared to bring out more wine. Luo Feng Yuan, undeterred, looked defiantly at her. The next moment, both of them took out another eight jars of wine, arranging them neatly on the ground. Luo Feng Yuan, picking up a jar, suddenly turned and proposed, this time, let's change the game. Zi Ruoyan casually spread her hands, all right, how do we play? Luo Feng Yuan pondered for a moment, we compete using martial techniques, lose a move, take a drink, how about it? Zi Ruoyan smiled and immediately agreed. The very next moment, the two of them rushed out of the house, not using any spiritual energy purely matching each other move for move. Xiao Tian chose to sit on the roof, enjoying the scenery while deep in thought. As he watched, Zi Ruoyan landed a punch on Luo Feng Yuan's face, immediately lifting a wine jar and taking a big gulp. She then followed up with a knee to Luo Feng Yuan's stomach, and Luo Feng Yuan, in turn, gulped down a large mouthful of wine. Xiao Tian was flabbergasted. The usual lightweight Zi Ruoyan, who typically was down after three cups in front of him, was clearly bluffing all this while. She had drunk several jars by now, and was still evenly matched with Luo Feng Yuan in their brawl. And what was Luo Feng Yuan thinking, bringing that strong-smelling wine to their place? What was the meaning behind the high-concentration alcohol in Empress Zi Ruoyan's storage ring? They even had their wine bowls prepared. What was going on? As Xiao Tian was lost in thought, a sudden burst of crying from the front snapped him back to reality. He heard Zi Ruoyan sobbingly say, My father has disappeared, and my mother, the prince, is also missing. Do you think you have it worse than me? Yet, you still want to snatch my husband from me. Luo Feng Yuan, tears streaming down her face, responded, At least there's a possibility your parents are still alive. But what about my parents? They killed each other. Can't you just let brother Xiao be with me? But my eldest brother died in battle. My brothers are also gone. My second brother is gone too. All of my sisters are gone as well. Zi Ruoyan, in her days, stared at Luo Feng Yuan for a while, then suddenly reached out to pat her on the head. It does seem like you've had it a bit rougher. Luo Feng Yuan stuttered, struggling to find words, and suddenly pulled Zi Ruoyan into her embrace, holding her head and crying bitterly. Xiao Tian, who was watching from the side, was completely dumbfounded. What kind of plot twist was this? Was this some kind of competition of who had a more tragic past? But in a way, they indeed belonged to the same kind of people. As the two women unexpectedly drifted off to sleep, Xiao Tian got up and approached them. With ease, he picked them up, one in each arm, and gently placed them on the bed. After looking at them for a moment, he glanced around the messy room. So troublesome, he mumbled. The two women had conveniently fallen asleep, leaving him to clean up the mess. Ripping open a spatial void, Xiao Tian threw in all the wine jars and trash. Moments later, he stood in the courtyard, now pristine and clean, and nodded with satisfaction. Returning to the room, Xiao Tian froze upon entering. On the bed, Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan were wrapped around each other, sleeping soundly like intertwined octopuses. A tender smile crept on his Xiao Tian's face. These two. The next day, as the sun was already high in the sky, rays of sunlight spilled through the window onto the two women. Their sleeping positions looked quite disheveled. At one point, Zi Ruoyan, perhaps reacting to a dream, made a sudden move. Luo Feng Yuan, out of reflex, swatted her hand away. However, in their half-asleep state, they unexpectedly leaned into each other and shared a brief kiss. The two of them snapped awake almost instantly, their eyes locking onto each other. Realizing whom they had just kissed, both quickly turned away and spat repeatedly on the floor in disgust. Wiping her mouth, Luo Feng Yuan was the first to speak. It's one thing for you, a female hooligan, to grab me, but you even dared to kiss me. Zi Ruoyan's face turned bright red. It was clearly you who kissed me first, and now you have the nerve to play the victim? I'm going to take you on, you Zi Bun, you Luo Kao. Do you think I'm afraid of you? With that, the two started to bicker and tussle right on the bed. Just as they were tangled up, Xiao Tian pushed the door and walked in. So spirited so early in the morning, the scene before him left him completely stunned. The three of them stared at each other for what 
felt like a long moment before Xiao Tian finally found his voice. I'll go prepare breakfast for you both. Without giving the two women a chance to respond, Xiao Tian turned on his heel and left. Luo Feng Yuan wore a smug expression. Xiao brother was quite naughty just now. He kept staring at this concubine. Zi Ruan, annoyed by her smugness, started to get dressed and laughed. You're joking, right? Clearly, Xiao Lord's eyes were only on me. Someone should avoid being overly self-confident. Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan snickered and glanced at Zi Ruan disdainfully. Being too confident isn't always good. Who do you think would be interested in buns? This comment hit a nerve, and Zi Ruan swiftly turned her head, fists clenched. Today, I'll tear that cow mouth of yours apart. The two women once again began their fierce scuffle. Meanwhile, Xiao Tian peeked around the corner, his eyes shining brightly, not blinking at all. I didn't realize Zi Ruan had such an impressive figure. No, no, this is too violent. I better prepare their meal. I can't watch this anymore. Half an hour later, both Zi Ruan and Luo Feng Yuan had changed their clothes and were quietly sitting in the courtyard, eating noodles. Luo Feng Yuan was lost in the taste. The noodles made by brother Xiao are so delicious. Zi Ruoyan also expressed her admiration. Xiao Lord, your culinary skills are on par with Uncle Zhong. Xiao Tian waved them off, indicating they should tone down their praise. I just know a bit. As long as you both enjoy it, I'm happy. Zi Ruoyan, out of curiosity, asked, given your cooking skills, Xiao Lord, why do you let Uncle Zhong cook instead of doing it yourself? Xiao Tian smiled and replied, food made by someone else always tastes better than when I make it myself. Luo Feng Yuan, on the other hand, quickly gulped down her bowl. Xiao Tian, seeing this, admonished, slow down, who's trying to snatch it from you? Upon hearing that, Luo Feng Yuan put down her bowl, slurped up the soup from her lips, and in response to Xiao Tian's reprimand, grinned, this concubine knows now. Zi Ruoyan snorted in response and hurriedly drank her soup, raising her eyebrows at Luo Feng Yuan once done, even flipping the bowl to indicate its emptiness, as if challenging her. Xiao Tian was left utterly befuddled by their competitiveness, thinking, women are so hard to understand. After breakfast, Zi Ruoyan suddenly inquired, Luo Feng Yuan, if I recall correctly from last night, you have no family left, right? Thinking about the night when they comforted each other, Luo Feng Yuan felt embarrassed. Zi Ruoyan then unexpectedly suggested, how about, you move into the palace? Not only was Luo Feng Yuan stunned by the proposal, but even Xiao Tian was taken aback, wondering, the empress isn't jealous anymore, why let her into the palace? Yet, yeah. Luo Feng Yuan responded with a mysterious smile, little miss, are you perhaps concerned for this concubine? Zi Ruoyan, looking flustered, retorted, how, how could I, why would I care about you, you annoying cow, if you're outside the palace, you might try to seduce Xiao Lord, but if you live inside, under my watch, you won't be able to make any moves or steal any moments with him, yes, that's it, I'm not concerned about you being alone, I just don't want you seducing Xiao Lord, Xiao Tian looked on helplessly, thinking, your majesty, you're really not good at lying, Luo Feng Yuan readily agreed to the proposition, if that's the case, then this concubine won't hold back. Zi Ruoyan defiantly stood up and, although a bit resentful, responded, come if you wish, what do I have to fear? If there's competition, let's face it head on. If I didn't have this much confidence, I wouldn't be the great flame empress. Upon hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan chuckled and moved closer to Zi Ruoyan, saying, empress, it's not a big deal. Compared to you, I'd say I'm more magnanimous. Even if you lose, I can still let you be a concubine. Zi Ruoyan replied with a smile, who ends up as a concubine remains to be seen princess of a fallen nation. Hearing this title, Luo Feng Yuan burst out laughing. Considering how adorable and kind you are, Zi Ruoyan, I won't pretend anymore. I'll lay my cards on the table. I'm not some princess from a fallen nation. I am the demon emperor of the primordial demon kingdom. The outside world prefers to call me the holy demon empress. Holy demon empress? Xiao Tian looked at Luo Feng Yuan in shock, especially at the horns on her head. So, she's not human. Zi Ruoyan was equally stunned. She's of a different race, like the barbarians, and her title is holy demon empress. Em Empress, that's on par with my status. This won't do. Xiao Tian is mine, and only mine. It seems I need to be more careful, so she doesn't steal him away. With these thoughts, Zi Ruoyan smiled and said, You truly surprise me. Luo Feng Yuan casually sat down, crossing her legs, as you said, fair and square. There's no point in hiding things, right? She then turned to Xiao Tian, her tone coquettish. I'm sorry, Xiao Tian. I didn't mean to hide my identity. Trust me. Aside from that, I've been mostly honest with you. After all, being from the Holy Demon Clan, most humans can't accept being with someone from the demon clan. However, Xiao Tian's focus was elsewhere. He pointed to her horns and asked, if these broke off, would it hurt? Do they keep growing? Do you need to file them regularly? Do members of your demon clan ever pierce them? Would that hurt? Luo Feng Yuan answered honestly, these horns are a symbol of our holy demon clan and are the toughest parts of our body. Breaking them would definitely hurt and we don't have a tradition of piercing them. She then grew a bit anxious. Xiao Tian, now that you've seen my horns and tail, don't you feel weird? At this, Xiao Tian's excitement grew. What? You have a tail too? That's awesome. Luo Feng Yuan looked at Xiao Tian in surprise. Xiao Tian, don't you think?
before she could finish, Xiao Tian raised his hand, chopping lightly on Luo Feng Yuan's forehead with a playful hand chop gesture. I don't care about what you think. What matters is what I think. I've said I don't mind, and I meant it. So you have horns, the tail? So what? As Luo Feng Yuan was about to say something, Xiao Tian raised his hand again. Instinctively, she closed her eyes, expecting another playful hit. Instead, Xiao Tian gently ruffled her hair, saying softly, The person I know is named Luo Feng Yuan, not the Holy Demon Clan. Feeling overwhelmed with happiness, Luo Feng Yuan, with a beaming smile, lunged towards Xiao Tian. Unexpectedly, she ended up in the soft embrace of Zi Ruoyan, who looked displeased. Don't overstep your bounds, purple fuzz. Irritated, Luo Feng Yuan retorted, Can't you read the room, yellow fuzz? Watching the two women bickering, Xiao Tian suddenly had an idea. Puppy, can you record this? Respected master, a voice responded, I've been recording since yesterday. Good job. I'll definitely give you a five-star review. I apologize for previously calling you just a voice assistant. Xiao Tian praised. Moments later, he stepped in to separate the two women and asked Luo Feng Yuan, Let's get back to the main issue. Why did you choose to reveal your identity? Luo Feng Yuan took a deep breath before speaking slowly. Before we get to the main issue, Zi Ruoyan, there's something I need to tell you. The concept of the 3000 worlds is just a name. In reality, there are far more than 3000 worlds out there. Whenever a world's rules break down, space becomes unstable, and spiritual energy gets chaotic, rendering the world unsuitable for long-term habitation. It's referred to as a barren domain. The southern barren domain was once ruled by the imperial power known as the Great Flame Empire. But 60,000 years ago, during the War of the Domains, this domain started to crumble. At this point, Luo Feng Yuan stepped forward, taking Zi Ruoyan's hand with a solemn demeanor. Zi Ruoyan, the world you've experienced since childhood, it's all an illusion. Empress Zi Ruoyan was visibly shaken, her face serious as she tried to process the profound revelation. Recovering quickly, she looked determinately at Luo Feng Yuan, whether it's real or not. I am still the Great Flame Empress, the sovereign of the countless citizens of the Great Flame Dynasty. Luo Feng Yuan momentarily looked surprised, then she hugged Zi Ruoyan tightly. You truly are worthy of being the woman trying to steal Xiao Tian from me. To remain so composed in the face of such news is impressive. On closer inspection, you're not so bad after all. Fine, even if you end up as a concubine in the future, Big Sister won't give you a hard time. Zi Ruoyan's mouth twitched in annoyance. I really want to squash you, you silly cow. Saying this, Zi Ruoyan reached out and gave Luo Feng Yuan a hard pinch. Luo Feng Yuan, feeling the pain, let out a sharp cry. However, she could only blush and pleaded with Zi Ruoyan. All right, let's stop the teasing and get to the matter at hand. This issue is somewhat related to your father, the esteemed Purple Emperor. My father, Zi Ruoyan, was taken aback upon hearing her father's name. Luo Feng Yuan turned her gaze to Xiao Tian. First, I need to be honest with Xiao Tian about more of my history. The previous Demon Emperor and Demon Empress of the Primordial Demon Kingdom were my parents. Since my birth 20 years ago, they had been embroiled in internal strife. After their deaths, my siblings, seeking to seize the throne, tried to eradicate me. After I ascended the throne, I unexpectedly found a three-party agreement related to the Great Flame Dynasty from my 18th brother. As Zi Ruoyan listened to Luo Feng Yuan's past, her eyes shimmered with emotion. So she's just a month older than me. We're both 20 years old. Although she had her parents and siblings, her life wasn't much different from living alone. Our experiences share some similarities and commonalities. But how can she be so mature despite being just a month older? How did she grow up like this? Luo Feng Yuan continued, From the intelligence I gathered from the Holy Demon sect under my brother, command. The Southern Baron Domain is currently under the control of the Eastern Flame Kingdom and the Astral Pavilion. This domain serves as a trial ground to test the younger generation from both sides, and also as a place to search for relics and valuable treasures. However, a hundred years ago, another trial was initiated. The young members of both the Eastern Flame Kingdom and the Astral Pavilion discovered a brand new wonder. On top of a mountain formed from a dragon corpse, they first encountered the esteemed Purple Emperor as an infant. At this point, Luo Feng Yuan looked at Zi Ruoyan, thinking it might be best to let her digest this information. Zi Ruoyan fell deep in thought. The Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion found my father a hundred years ago. But why? When he established his empire 45 years ago, was he only 20 years old? And what Xiao Tian mentioned earlier, about my father's experience seeming intentional. So, this false world began 65 years ago, the moment my father was adopted, right? Luo Feng Yuan nodded in affirmation. After discovering your father a hundred years ago, both the Eastern Flame Kingdom and the Astral pavilion tried various methods. They couldn't move the dragon corpse or melt the ice seal until the appearance of the primordial embryo, a treasured item nurtured by the heavens and earth. With the emergence of the primordial embryo, the ice began to thaw, and a pure imperial aura leaked from your father's body. My 18th brother happened to sense it and came searching. From then on, the Holy Demon Clan, Eastern Flame Kingdom, and Astral Pavilion became acquainted. Luo Feng Yuan then looked solemnly at Zi Ruoyan. Although the imperial blood 
bloodline cannot be forcibly taken. There are other ways. That is to gather the human race's legitimate imperial luck to bolster one's own power and gain the blessings of heaven and earth. In this way, when one achieves enlightenment, everything around them flourishes. Moreover, the legitimacy of the human race's destiny is too prestigious for any single party to claim. Dividing it among three was just right. Afterward, the demon clan provided the methods, used some resources to buy slaves, and replenish the population. Astral Pavilion was responsible for observations, calculations, and designing the process of consolidating imperial luck. The Eastern Flame Kingdom contributed manpower and effort, using their experience to build an empire for the esteemed Purple Emperor. After 30 years, the ice seal completely melted. My 18th brother, the King of the Eastern Flame Kingdom, and the Pavilion Master of Astral Pavilion, they sealed their cultivation levels and personally brought the infant esteemed Purple Emperor here. At the same time, a waning the Han Dynasty had already been established. They personally took the esteemed Purple Emperor to that village and entrusted him to an old scholar. Luo Fengyuan suddenly grasped Zi Ruoyan's hands. From that moment on, the fabricated life of your father, the esteemed Purple Emperor, began. Originally, under Astral Pavilion's calculations, the primordial embryo would take 60 years to mature, but there has been an issue. Its maturation is accelerating. Zi Ruoyan pondered for a moment. What exactly is this primordial embryo you speak of? Luo Fengyuan gave a mysterious smile. It's on you. Zi Ruoyan frowned in confusion. On me? I wasn't aware. Wait, could it be? She quickly retrieved an item from her storage ring. That's right. Luo Fengyuan affirmed. The Imperial Seal of Great Flame is that very primordial embryo. Once the dynasty's fate successfully consolidates, and the Imperial Seal matures, it will be time to seize the nation's destiny. Zi Ruoyan looked up at her. What will happen if the nation's destiny is seized? Hearing this, Luo Fengyuan slowly held up two fingers. Different choices lead to different outcomes. The first choice. If the destiny is seized, it signifies the demise of the Great Flame Dynasty. All the subjects of the Great Flame Dynasty will perish, leaving only you as the sole survivor, becoming a desolate empress. The second choice is for you, as the empress, to resist the backlash from the theft of the nation's destiny, to sacrifice yourself and protect the subjects of the Great Flame. Zi Ruoyan frowned. Didn't you say that all of this is fake? Shouldn't be civilians and officials. Luo Fengyuan interrupted her immediately. The events might be fabricated, but the Great Flame Dynasty genuinely exists. The people who were first thrown here had their memories altered, but as time passed, the population naturally grew. Zi Ruoyan took a deep breath. What happened to the dragon corpse that couldn't be moved? Luo Fengyuan pointed behind her. After the ice crystal sealing your father melted, that dragon corpse transformed into a vast mountain range, which is now the Green Flame Mountain Range. Xiao Tian should be able to sense this too. Xiao Tian finally understood. No wonder everything grown and bred on this mountain is so delicious. Does that mean what I've been raising are dragon pigs? Dragon chickens? Damn it. Why didn't you say this earlier? I saw sold them too cheaply. He playfully chopped at Luo Feng Yuan's head. Zi Ruoyan quickly pulled Luo Feng Yuan aside. What happened afterward? Do you know about my father's disappearance? And what about my two royal brothers? Luo Feng Yuan gently patted Zi Ruoyan's head to comfort her. Don't worry, your father is definitely safe. According to the intelligence, your father was most likely rescued by your mother. My mother? Zi Ruoyan's pupils contracted, as she seemingly had no recollection of her mother. After your father sensed the plan to seize the dynasty's fate, he secretly left the Great Flame Dynasty. The illusionary array that was supposed to cloud his mind surprisingly lost its effect, allowing him to see the true nature of the southern wilderness. As a result, he was pursued by the chief disciples led by the Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion. However, your mother's power is incredibly formidable. Even when she was in the sealed realm, she was able to combat two opponents at once. There were hints that she even had the upper hand, but suddenly, a large hand tore through the space, taking both your parents away without a trace. According to your elder brother's conjecture, your mother's background might be extremely mysterious and formidable. She revealed herself while saving your father. That massive hand was probably the act of a powerful figure from her family. Right now, your father must be residing with your mother's family. As to why he hasn't come back for you, I'm clueless. Luo Feng Yuan shot a glance at Xiao Tian, noticing his envious expression. Xiao brother, what are you thinking about? Xiao Tian snapped back to reality, cleared his throat, and said, I was thinking that this Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion are so wicked. How could they manipulate someone's life like that? It's so unfair. He then turned to Zero Ruoyan, consoling her, your majesty, don't worry too much. Your father, having been controlled and toiled for many years, is now with your mother's family. At the very least, he doesn't have to worry about food and clothing anymore. He doesn't have to exert himself and can take a good rest. Finishing his words, Xiao Tian fell deep into thought again. Why is my father-in-law so fortunate? To be taken away, piercing through countless spatial barriers, such a background, such support, and the capability to live off someone. It's incredibly solid. No wonder he's so contented that he's even forgotten about his own daughter. Why can't I live a carefree life like him? Why do I always run into abnormal individuals, forcing me to combat them? All I wanted was to
was to live a comfortable life. Where did I go wrong? Luo Feng Yuan and Zi Ruoyan, observing his conflicted expression, exchanged glances. What's gotten into him? I have no idea. Xiao Tian has two top-tier wealthy wives, yet he still felt his life wasn't good enough. After some deep contemplation, he had an epiphany. It's because his wife isn't powerful enough. He abruptly grabbed his wife's hand, his eyes filled with anticipation. Empress Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan were startled and quickly asked, Xiao brother, what's wrong? The more Xiao Tian thought, the more it made sense to him. As the saying goes, to forge iron, you yourself must be strong. For food to be delicious, the wife must be powerful. It seemed that Zi Ruoyan had already realized she needed to become stronger. Her excuse to invite Luo Feng Yuan to live in the palace was merely a pretext. Zi Ruoyan surely wanted to spar with her to enhance her strength. Realizing this, Xiao Tian gave Zi Ruoyan a thumbs up, saying, you are indeed the empress, always so thoughtful and wise. Zi Ruoyan was puzzled. What did I do? Why am I considered thoughtful and wise now? Luo Feng Yuan, still with a silly smile on his face, remarked, Xiao brother's thoughts are really hard to guess, but I love it. He he he. After taking a moment to compose herself, Zi Ruoyan asked Luo Feng Yuan again. So, after my father disappeared, I became the substitute, right? Luo Feng Yuan spread his hands in agreement. Exactly. The original choice for the substitute was the crown prince, your eldest brother. But your elder brother did not awaken the true imperial bloodline of the human race. Neither did your second brother. Everyone had given up hope. But unexpectedly, over four years ago, you awakened. Zi Ruoyan sighed. For years ago, such a fateful time. I was in a dire situation back then. Awakening at that time saved my life and allowed me to ascend to the position of demon empress. Hearing this, Xiao Tian suddenly interjected. For years ago? Coincidentally, I also nearly died for years ago. Zi Ruoyan was shocked. You almost died? Was that something that happened in your realm? It turned out that four years ago, Xiao Tian was still on earth and had not been summoned to this world yet. On that particular day, heavy rain poured. Xiao Tian was being chased by a large gang and had already been stabbed over a dozen times. Just as he was about to give up, a hand reached out from an alleyway and pulled him in. Even now, Xiao Tian couldn't understand how the rain and darkness could blind those pursuing him so completely, and how that girl disappeared without a trace remained a mystery to him. Zi Ruoyan felt a twinge of jealousy. What did that girl look like? Luo Feng Yuan also stood up, visibly excited. Did that girl become someone important to you later on? Xiao Tian waved his hands dismissively. Not at all. She disappeared like a ghost. But isn't the key point that our experiences from four years ago are so eerily similar? We both turned a dangerous situation into a blessing and moved on to something better. As for what she looked like, is it that important? Though her silver hair was indeed rare. Suddenly, Xiao Tian moved closer to Zi Ruoyan. She was very beautiful, with mesmerizing eyes much like yours. He then turned to Luo Feng Yuan. Her eyebrows, so captivating, looked almost exactly like yours. Both of them blushed, thinking he was merely flattering them. They playfully accused him of trying to charm them with his smooth talk. But only Xiao Tian knew that he wasn't just trying to please them. That 16-year-old girl with silver hair on that rainy night on earth really had eyes like Zi Ruoyan's and eyebrows indistinguishable from Luo Feng Yuan's. At that moment, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly pulled Xiao Tian into a tight embrace, catching Xiao Tian completely off guard. With a flirtatious tone, Luo Feng Yuan whispered, Xiao brother, this concubine has laid all the cards on the table for you, sacrificing my own interests. Don't I deserve some kind of reward? Before Xiao Tian could respond, Zi Ruoyan erupted in anger. Let him go at once. Luo Feng Yuan playfully stuck her tongue out at Zi Ruoyan. I don't want to let go. Xiao Tian was rendered speechless by the whole scene. Zi Ruoyan could no longer contain herself. You, come here. She grabbed Luo Feng Yuan by the collar and pulled her close. Luo Feng Yuan teasingly remarked, Oh my, why so mad again? Xiao Tian watched the scene unfold and urgently whispered a call to Puppy in his mind. The system Puppy immediately responded, Respected master, when Luo Feng Yuan lunged at you, I predicted the action and started recording. Xiao Tian gave a thumbs up. Well done. Five stars for you. Wishing for a more peaceful life, Xiao Tian asked Puppy, Is there a way to boost the strength of Luo Feng Yuan and Zi Ruoyan? Puppy explained, Master, when you have good intentions towards someone, depending on the degree of soul compatibility, your aura can envelop and indirectly enhance their strength. The higher the soul compatibility, the better the effect of martial arts practice under your aura. Here are the current compatibility percentages. Zhong Yangming 90%, Zi Ruoyan 105%, Luo Feng Yuan 102%. Xiao Tian's hair stood on end. What? Zhong Yangming, a grown man, has 90% compatibility? What does this mean? Puppy chuckled. Master, soul compatibility increases based on how often you're with them. The longer you're together, the faster it grows. The rapid enhancement of the national fate and Zi Ruoyan's rapid realm advancements are all because of your presence. Xiao Tian was dumbfounded, so this is related to me? But, Eastern Flame Kingdom, Astral Pavilion, Holy Demon Sect is our own. Puppy quickly caught on. Master, data for Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion is insufficient for navigation. You can ask Luo Feng Yuan for information, but the 
these two factions may not be in the South Wasteland realm. If you decide to go after them, you might need to travel across different realms. Xiao Tian looked perplexed. What do you mean go after them? I need to correct you on this. I am not inclined towards violence. Whether it's the Eastern Flame Kingdom or the Astral Pavilion, if they can establish a fake dynasty and orchestrate a plan spanning over a hundred years, they are not to be trifled with. Moreover, they have not attacked me, so I cannot harm them without reason. Just then, the previously playful Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan suddenly brought out several jars of wine and placed them on the table. Xiao Tian was utterly speechless. Here we go again, he thought. Luo Feng Yuan provocatively held up a finger to Zi Ruoyan. Dare to compete again, you female hooligan? Zi Ruoyan, with a wave of her hand, lined up the wine jars and taunted. Are you joking? Who would be afraid of you? Which? Xiao Tian felt a pang of bitterness in his heart. How much wine did these two women bring last night? Are they trying to drown me in it? As expected, after an undetermined period of drinking, the two women were once again crying in each other's arms. Why didn't my powerful parents come to find me? One lamented. My parents were no better. The other sobbed. They didn't care about their child's life. Only their own happiness. We can only rely on ourselves. After a while, the two could no longer hold on and, still hugging each other, fell asleep on the ground. Xiao Tian wanted to separate them and take them to their rooms, but found them clutching each other so tightly that he couldn't pull them apart. With a sigh of resignation, he decided, fine, I'll just carry them as they are. He carefully placed the two on a bed and covered them with blankets. In her sleep, Luo Feng Yuan muttered, Brother Xiao, come play. Xiao Tian, feeling a moment of peace, went to the courtyard. He instructed Puppy to hand him a communication jade token. With a wave of his hand, he opened a spatial rift and threw all the empty wine jars inside. After tidying up the courtyard, Zhong Ling and Lu Yan arrived. Holding the communication jade token, Zhong Ling inquired, Prince, you called for us. What do you need? Xiao Tian waved them over, come and see. As they entered the room, Zhong Ling's eyes widened in shock. Prince, you're so wild. Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan were both sound asleep, showing signs of utter exhaustion. Xiao Tian swiftly gave Zhong Ling a flick on the head. Little rascal, where did you pick up such nonsense? Lu Yan finally spoke up. Prince, you called for us. Are you asking us to take care of Her Majesty in this? Xiao Tian nodded in agreement. I called you here to keep an eye on them. If anything happens, use the Jade Token to notify me. Rest assured, Prince. We'll take good care of them. Where are you going at this late hour? It's nothing much. There's something I wanted to ask you about. Just don't mention it to Her Majesty, okay? Of course, Prince. Please go on. Xiao Tian hesitated for a moment. It seems there's a power around the Great Flame Dynasty called the Astral Pavilion, right? Do you know where it is? I do know where the Astral Pavilion is. May I ask why the Prince is inquiring about it? Xiao Tian smiled. Well, you know my nature. I truly can't bear to blame others. I intend to go and forgive them, give them a chance to live. Upon hearing this, both Zhong Ling and Lu Yan felt a shiver down their spines. What should have been a merciful statement somehow felt chilling and menacing coming from the prince. Xiao Tian immediately asked Zhong Ling about the whereabouts of the astral pavilion. She responded with palpable fear. Prince, are you genuinely going to forgive them and not to defeat them? Xiao Tian flicked her on the head again. What's gotten into you? Have all my teachings been in vain? Is this the insight you've gained from your recent good deeds and cultivation? Holding her head, Zhong Ling exclaimed, Prince, please stop hitting my head. I feel like I'm getting dumber by the second. And your form of good deeds is quite terrifying in itself. Lu Yan, looking exasperated, chimed in. The prince is indeed kind-hearted. He renovates orphanages, takes care of the old and young, and supports those in need. For the common people, the prince is benevolent. However, for officials involved in corruption, taking bribes, and exploiting villagers, this is not benevolence. For the sake of the common people, the prince has already ordered the execution of hundreds of corrupt officials. Subsequently, Xiao Tian put on a compassionate face and sighed. Alas, one shouldn't be like this. While the astral pavilion has indeed made mistakes, no one is perfect. Why can't we give them a chance to redeem them? themselves. With that said, Xiao Tian walked towards the exit. With a slight push of his foot, he transformed into a streak of light, shooting towards the sky. Zhong Ling watched Xiao Tian's departing figure and couldn't help but murmur to herself, it seems the astral pavilion is truly wicked. They're doomed. She shook her head, as if she had already foreseen the fate of the astral pavilion. Meanwhile, at a branch of the astral pavilion, a man gazed at the starry sky, lost in memories. Such nostalgia. Back then, Luo Yan and I came from there, bringing along our fellow disciples to this mysterious revival area. We met the esteemed Purple Emperor and initiated the Tripartite Agreement. In the blink of an eye, almost a hundred years have passed. We're finally on the brink of success. Once it's achieved, we'll use her flesh and blood to create an elixir for my daughter-in-law to consume. Perhaps she could give birth to an offspring with the pure bloodline of the human race. Suddenly, a subordinate approached and reported, Master, someone is approaching the mountain. The master turned his head. Who would come up the mountain at this hour? Did the mountain protection formation not stop them? The subordinate quickly explained, it's Prince Xiao Tian from the Great Flame Dynasty. He has the jade token we gifted to the Empress, allowing him access to our mountain, hence he could ascend. The master was taken aback. Xiao Tian, that pretty boy 
boy who relies on his looks. What's he doing at our astral pavilion? How did he come all this way? And is he accompanied by anyone? No, just him alone. The subordinate replied. He's walking up the mountain with a sincere expression. His eyes are full of determination. And he seems compassionate. The master looked puzzled. Compassionate? What is this Xiao Tian up to? Does he have a death wish or something? Master, should we invite him up? The master waved his hand dismissively. No need. If that fool wants to climb the mountain, let him. Once he reaches the top, we'll just send him back down. It's amusing, especially in the middle of the night. Hearing this, the subordinates chuckled coldly. On the other side, Xiao Tian continued his ascent, taking each step deliberately. He sighed internally. How many Oscars do they owe me for this performance? After about another hour of climbing, Xiao Tian finally arrived at the Astral Pavilion. The pavilion's master and his men were already waiting for him. Seeing Xiao Tian's arrival, the master was the first to speak. Prince Xiao, climbing must be tiring, isn't it? Xiao Tian stretched and took a deep breath. You have two chances left for me to forgive you. Unfortunately, you failed my test just now and lost one opportunity. I hope you can perform better next time. Try to seize the few redemption opportunities left. Upon hearing this, the master spread his hands dismissively. Prince Xiao, you keep saying you want to forgive us. What exactly did our astral pavilion do wrong? Xiao Tian feigned anger. Astral pavilion, in collusion with Eastern Flame Kingdom and the Holy Demon Sect, intervened in the life of my father-in-law, the esteemed Purple Emperor. You deceived his feelings, and that's fraud. Moreover, you caused the death of my two elder uncles, and deceived the current empress. Your actions are absolutely horrifying. For committing such grave offenses, and still laughing here, I'm deducting another chance for forgiveness. The master looked slightly startled. How did you find out? The secrecy measures for our plan were thorough. How could someone like you, who survives on his looks? No. Xiao Tian retorted. It doesn't matter how I know. The master, unconcerned, even mocked him. Oh, I'm so scared, Prince Xiao. So, tell us, how should we repent? Xiao Tian listed his demands. First, I want Astral Pavilion's master, Zhou Tianji, to write a self-criticism letter and read it while kneeling at the gates of the Great Flame Dynasty for three days as a sign of sincerity. Zhou Tianji must also inform Astral Pavilion headquarters to abandon the three-way plan. Secondly, the culprits responsible for the death of my two elder uncles must be handed over and be publicly executed at the noon gate of the Great Flame Dynasty's Imperial City. Third, given the unique environment of the southern wastelands where one shouldn't stay for long, I'll graciously ask the Astral Pavilion headquarters to cede some of its territory as compensation to the Great Flame Dynasty. As for compensation for my wife, father-in-law, uncles, and my own emotional distress, along with death compensation, labor costs, hardship fees, and such, a mere compensation of 18 billion mid-grade spirit stones will suffice. Then, you must inform me of the location of Astral Pavilion's headquarters and the Eastern Flame Kingdom, as well as how to get there, and then work on infrastructure building and labor in the Great Flame Dynasty for a hundred years. That should suffice. Xiao Tian didn't even notice the astonished expressions of the people from Astral Pavilion. He was still contemplating how magnanimous he was. He originally intended to demand 50 billion mid-grade spirit stones and labor reforms for 500 years. He had significantly reduced his demands. His adoptive father was right. He should correct his overly merciful tendencies. Zhou Tianji, looking at the self-absorbed Xiao Tian, was speechless. Did Empress Zi Ruan go blind? How could she fall for this delusional pretty boy? Fortunately, his delusional state can be an advantage. We can capture him and find out who leaked the information. So, Zhou Tianji told Xiao Tian, I don't have time for your nonsense. I'll give you two choices. Either you come with me willingly, or I'll capture you. Xiao Tian, somewhat incredulously, responded, I've been extremely generous, offering you an astral pavilion a chance. And yet, you want to arrest me? Third chances are the last. Are you sure you don't want to cherish this opportunity? Before Zhou Tianji could reply, his deputy couldn't help but laugh uproariously. The sight of the deputy laughing infuriated Xiao Tian. I came to discuss serious matters, and you dare laugh? Clearly, you're a heartless killer. You can't be spared. Xiao Tian then raised his fist and delivered a punch straight at the deputy. The force exploded instantly, causing a straight line in space to shatter, pulverizing the deputy along with it. Zhou Tianji's formerly amused expression froze. As he stared at the extending spatial rift, only one thought came to his mind. Lu out yin, damn you, is this really the naive and harmless pretty boy you described? Moments later, Zhou Tianji tried to compose himself, his expression complex. Just as he was about to speak, he saw Xiao Tian bring his palms together, miraculously mending the shattered spatial rift. Zhou Tianji swallowed hard, utterly stunned. Is he even human? He shattered space and could fix it back. After mending the rift, Xiao Tian looked at everyone with a serious expression. I lost my temper just now, but let me remind you, this is a serious matter. No more jokes and smiles. Treat it with the gravity it deserves. Is it that hard for you all to repent and do the right thing? Zhou Tianji waved his hands in panic. No, no, prince, you misunderstood. I accept all the conditions you put forth. We'll make sure they are met satisfactorily. Xiao Tian sighed in relief. That's more like it. I'm not unreasonable. As long as you sincerely admit your mistakes, I'm willing to give you a chance to start afresh. Zhou Tianji nodded vigorously.
seriously, rest assured, Prince, we will sincerely apologize and repent. However, Xiao Tian suddenly laughed. About the compensation of 18 billion, you'll need to add another 2 billion. Prince, why? Xiao Tianji was taken aback. Xiao Tian explained earnestly, think about it. Just now, with that punch, I helped you cleanse a harmful element from your group. Isn't a fee of 2 billion reasonable? Xiao Tianji internally wanted to throttle Xiao Tian, thinking, how does this make any sense? Are you even listening to yourself? Yet, outwardly, he readily agreed. Seeing this, Xiao Tian was very pleased. I knew it. With reason and emotion, you would see the error of your ways. Now, hand it over. Xiao Tianji looked a bit bewildered. Prince Xiao, what are you talking about? The compensation. 20 billion mid-grade spirit stones. Prince, 20 billion mid-grade spirit stones is a huge amount. I don't carry that with me. I need to arrange for it to be delivered. Xiao Tian glanced at the time. It's fine. There are about three hours until the first light of dawn. Plenty of time. Once you've met all my conditions by sunrise, we can head to the Imperial City to apologize. Xiao Tianji, somewhat stunned, asked Xiao Tian. Prince Xiao, are you saying that I need to present 20 billion spirit stones before dawn? Besides that, those coming from your headquarters to apologize and the culprit should also appear before me by sunrise. And also, the territory you're seeding from Astral Pavilion must be prepared? Xiao Tianji sighed in exasperation. Prince, are you in such a hurry because of some pressing matters? Xiao Tian glanced at him and said, exactly. I need to get back before sunrise to prepare a loving breakfast. My recent performance hasn't been up to par, and I fear my allowance might get cut. Xiao Tianji was flabbergasted, thinking, is this guy for real? Is he a lapdog or something? However, the three-hour deadline set by Xiao Tian felt too tight, and Zhou Tianji felt overwhelmed. Xiao Tian responded with, if I were in your shoes, given three hours to prepare, I'd be stifling my laughter. Besides, what challenges can't be overcome? Xiao Tianji nearly burst into tears. Prince, even if I use transportation arrays to get back, it would still take several days. This isn't something that can just be overcome by sheer will. Xiao Tian waved him off. You seem to be obstinately persistent in your misconceptions. This last chance I'm giving, you don't seem to want to cherish it. Xiao Tianji was petrified. Prince Xiao, I acknowledge your strength, but using your power to act as you please and being so unreasonable is not fair. Xiao Tian's expression darkened. Are you telling me I'm being unfair? Are you accusing me of being unreasonable? When you plundered the fortune of the nation and tried to harm the entire populace of the Great Flame Dynasty, did you speak of fairness then? When you harmed my father-in-law and his family, did you talk about being reasonable? Xiao Tian's aura erupted in anger as he continued to berate those innocent people who died because of you. Could they hear your so-called reasoning? Your so-called fairness? It makes me sick. Even now, you show no remorse. You are nothing but beasts in human skin, consuming others without leaving a bone behind. You brought this upon yourselves. Everyone present was stunned, and before they could react, Xiao Tian sent out a palm strike, directly killing several of them. Another deputy pavilion master thought, Damn it, Zhou Tianji, were you tired of living that you provoked him? No sooner had he finished this thought than he too vanished from existence. The remaining individuals, witnessing the horrifying scene of people being obliterated and sensing the terrifying aura permeating the environment, all tried to flee in panic, hoping to escape with their lives. However, Xiao Tian seemed to be everywhere at once. In a mere instant, he appeared in front of every single one of them. No matter where they hid or which corner they tried to escape to, Xiao Tian's finger would find them, piercing their consciousness. Those struck had a bloody hole appear on their foreheads, and they fell to the ground. In the blink of an eye, Xiao Tian finished his task and returned to Zhou Tianji's side. Zhou Tianji's eyes were filled with rage, and he muttered, So, you're acting as the Avenger, the King of Hell. You've been hiding your identity with ulterior motives. Now, you'll be exposed. If even one disciple of Astral Pavilion escapes, your true face will surely be revealed. Xiao Tian merely shook his head. Before coming here, I had already ascertained that this branch of Astral Pavilion had 147 members. Now, only you remain. Do you have any last words? Zhou Tianji gritted his teeth, thinking that there might still be a chance. Xiao Tian valued Zi Ruoyan greatly, as well as the people of the Great Flame Dynasty. Perhaps if he revealed the biggest secret, there might be a glimmer of hope. Just as Zhou Tianji was about to speak, Xiao Tian suddenly grabbed his throat. Xiao Tian mused aloud, impressive. Even at this point, you refuse to speak with me. There's some backbone in you. Though your group deserve their fate, this resolve of yours in the face of death is commendable. Zhou Tianji's face turned red from suffocation, desperately trying to break free from Xiao Tian's grasp. But Xiao Tian continued to speak. If you had known it would come to this, why did you start in the first place? Your feeble attempts to hurt me are in vain. The next moment, Xiao Tian noticed Zhou Tianji using his blood to write in the air. I have a major secret about Zi Ruan. Only then did Xiao Tian release him. Catching his breath, Zhou Tianji explained, Prince Xiao, you only know part of the story. Plundering the nation's fortune is just the tip of the iceberg. Our astral pavilion has deeper, more secretive aims that even the Eastern Flame Kingdom and the Holy Demon Sect are unaware of. Xiao Tian squatted down, looking serious. What secret aim? If I tell you, can you promise not to harm me further? Not harm you? Yes. Then, I can allow you to take your own life as atonement. Xiao Tian's sudden grin made Zhou Tian
Tianji freeze in shock. Zhou Tianji felt so humiliated that he could feel his teeth grinding. Never in his life had he felt such indignity. A warrior can be killed, but not humiliated. As Zhou Tianji was about to slap his own forehead in suicide, Xiao Tian quickly grabbed his hand. What are you doing? Didn't we just agree? You tell me the secret, and then you can end your own life. You haven't revealed the secret yet. Zhou Tianji, at the brink of his patience, yelled, When did we agree to that? Xiao Tian, don't push me too far. Xiao Tian glared and without hesitation, slapped him. Why are you suddenly yelling? You scared me. But then, with a sharp pop, Xiao Tian froze in realization. He had unintentionally slapped Zhou Tianji's head clean off. Where the hell did his head go? Xiao Tian exclaimed in disbelief. Puppy helpfully chimed in. Master, it seems like you accidentally exploded it. Xiao Tian, feeling rather frustrated, continued walking towards the astral pavilion. If I'm not mistaken, the location of the astral pavilion is considered part of the Great Flame Dynasty's territory, right? He asked Puppy. Yes, Master. Puppy responded, disregarding the false imperial project. This land belongs to the Great Flame Dynasty. It's technically leased to others. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian forcefully pushed open the doors to the treasury. Have they paid their taxes? Based on the records of the Great Flame Dynasty, there's no record of Astral Pavilion ever paying taxes. Xiao Tian, shaking his head in disapproval, remarked, not paying taxes? That's not acceptable. It looks like I'll have to seize it on their behalf. Without hesitation, he emptied the entire treasury. Later, Xiao Tian made his way to a side hall within the Astral Pavilion and indulged in a warm bath. He examined the treasures he had acquired and praised Puppy. You did well, Puppy. You even categorized and documented the books and artifacts I collected. Show me this airborne flight artifact and this emblem. Does it represent the Great Flame Empire? Yes, Master. The Southern Flame Domain, which was ruled by the Great Flame Empire, left behind many relics after it transformed into the Southern Wilderness. Most of these items come from those relics and therefore bear the emblem of the Great Flame Empire. There's no historical record in Astral Pavilion's library about the emblem of the Great Flame Dynasty. Xiao Tian pondered, is there a connection between the Great Flame Dynasty and the Great Flame Empire? Unable to figure it out, he finally decided to let it go. Whatever. Bathing is more relaxing. I don't feel like thinking anymore. It's exhausting. An hour later, Xiao Tian got up. It's getting late. I should head back soon. Soon after, at the old mansion of the Lu Yan family in Green Flame Town, both Lu Yan and Zhong Ling felt a sudden jolt. He's back already? As Xiao Tian landed, Zhong Ling immediately asked, Prince, did you forgive them? Caught off guard by her question, Xiao Tian paused momentarily before shaking his head. Unfortunately, their sins are too grave. I generously gave them three chances, but they didn't take them. Alas, it's my own inability. I couldn't save them. However, I did ensure they departed peacefully. Zhong Ling tried to console him. Prince, don't be disheartened. In the future, there will be people who will truly understand your deep intentions. They'll realize that you weren't simply ending their lives, but cleansing them of their sins, allowing them to be better individuals in their next life. Hearing this, Xiao Tian, feeling understood, affectionately ruffled Zhong Ling's hair. What a teachable child. Lu Yan, you should learn from this young one here. Look at how enlightened she is. Enough of this. I need to prepare breakfast. To reward you both, I'll let you taste my culinary skills. Watching Xiao Tian walk away, Zhong Ling spoke. What did I tell you, Sister Lu Yan? I knew that the wicked people of Astral Pavilion would not live to see the sun rise today. Lu Yan sighed. You truly are getting to understand the prince better each day. Zhong Ling responded with a resigned smile. That's because, at times, the prince can be quite childlike. He often exists in his own world. The emperor once mentioned that the prince always seems to have a lonely smile, as if he doesn't fit into this world. Yet, he always faces everything with positivity. Meanwhile, at the old house, Zhong Yang Ming yawns and asks listlessly, Prince, is this really okay? Xiao Tian is unfazed. What's not okay? Is it difficult to assist me? Zhong Yang Ming finally explains, Prince, my wife will panic if she wakes up and finds me mysteriously gone. Bad things could happen. In the time it took me to just roll over, I was dragged here by Prince to do heavy lifting. It's terrible. Xiao Tian smiles. Zhong Ling is outside. She can explain for you later. Take this out. Zhong Yang Ming is puzzled. There are only five of us. Why do we need so many bowls and chopsticks? Seeing Zhong Yang Ming standing still, Xiao Tian turns to urge him, hurry up, leaving the yard. Zhong Yang Ming realizes his mistake. But what's the deal with that purple-haired, horned woman in a tail too? She looks scary and disgusting. Moments later, Xiao Tian calls for noodles. Everyone is silent, making the atmosphere awkward. Empress Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan are staring at each other intensely. Both are silently comforting themselves not to get angry. We can't kill our own Xiao Tian because of the humiliating scene last night. Why must I remember such an embarrassing, humiliating scene? Zhong Ling and Lu Yan are also glaring at the three people on the other side. How annoying! Are these horned women transformed from cows? How can they be so large? Moments later, Zhong Yang Ming is the first to ask, Prince, what exactly is going on here? Empress Zi Ruoyan responds, It won't hurt for you all to know. There aren't many people in the Great Flame Dynasty whom I can trust. However, after hearing it, you'll need to stay calm. Luo Feng Yuan's three subordinates shake their heads. These 
humans probably can't handle the truth. Zi Ruoyan then begins to narrate slowly. It has to do with my father and the Great Flame Dynasty. Soon, a quarter of an hour passes. The situation is as follows. The truth is horrifying, but I hope, before Zi Ruoyan could finish, Zhong Yangming mutters to himself, so that's how it is. This explains Lu Outyan's strange behavior. Zhong Ling asks Lu Yan in a daze. This is making my head spin. Do you understand, Sister Lu Yan? Lu Yan puts it succinctly, in simple terms. We're being raised like pigs to be slaughtered when we're fat enough. Zhong Ling instantly understands, and upon seeing this, Luo Feng Yuan can't help but praise. Remarkable, you've truly impressed me. Facing such truth and still maintaining your composure, that's really impressive. At this point, Zhong Yangming suddenly stands up and asks, Lord of the Demon Empress, may I inquire if there's no turning back once this innate embryo jade matures? Faced with his own Xiao Tian chef, Luo Feng Yuan seriously explains, not necessarily. Thanks to the barrier of this special region, anyone who wishes to enter must suppress their cultivation to the tenth stage. Those who would come in to snatch the innate embryo jade are all at this level. Saying this, Luo Feng Yuan gives Zi Ruoyan a slightly provocative look. My true cultivation level is much higher than yours. Zi Ruoyan's face turns red as she huffs. So what? I will surpass you sooner or later. Luo Feng Yuan laughs, her eyes filled with indulgence. You look really cute when you're being stubborn. Zi Ruoyan's face grows hotter, but she continues to deny. I am not. You are so annoying. Bursting into laughter, still denying it. Ha ha ha. On the side, the trio of Zhong Yangming are still discussing. If that's the case, then we're not entirely powerless. That's good. The Emperor is already at the tenth stage, with the aid of the Imperial City's array. As long as the opponent doesn't exceed this level, I believe the Emperor can handle it. Zhong Ling covers her mouth and giggles. Anyway, we can't lose. The Eldest offers an explanation. To you, the tenth stage may seem strong, but for the Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion, this level of strength is not uncommon. Hearing this, the three who know Xiao Tian's true power all look at him at once. Although Prince appears to be in a daze, focusing only on his bowl of food, none of the three are anxious. This secret weapon will take action when cornered. At this moment, Luo Feng Yuan, seeing the seemingly easy to bully Zi Ruoyan, suddenly presses her against himself, a triumphant look on her face. Come on, my little darling, keep going, I'm waiting for you to hit me. But Zi Ruoyan is firmly pressed and can't speak, only managing to emit sounds of discontent. Just at this moment, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly looks up and sees the astonished faces of Zhong Yangming, Zhong Ling, and Lu Yan. She thinks they are frightened by the mention of Astral Pavilion and Eastern Flame Kingdom, so she decides to comfort them. Therefore, Luo Feng Yuan releases Zi Ruoyan and turns to the three, smiling, you don't need to worry too much, I will personally assist you. The Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion are easy to deal with. He then looks back at Zi Ruoyan and says, speaking of which, you previously invited me to live in the palace, does that offer still stand? Zi Ruoyan pauses for a moment, why did she pity her in the first place? Although her sympathy got valuable information and a new ally, she is really annoyed by her. Seeing Zi Ruoyan remain silent, Luo Feng Yuan continues to chuckle, ah, the Great Flame Empress, a direct descendant of the legitimate imperial bloodline, you're not going to back out, are you? I've already shared valuable information and even plan to help you. Seeing Luo Feng Yuan's expression, the Empress clenches her teeth, filled with inner criticism. You, what are you really up to? Do you think I don't know? Yet Zi Ruoyan clears her throat and states, my word is gold. What I say, I do. Although she regrets saying it instantly, thinking, so annoying. Why did I agree to this holy demon empress? I can't calm down at all. Luo Feng Yuan smiles very contentedly, as expected of the great flame empress, you do as you say. However, at this moment, Zi Ruoyan suddenly puts forth her conditions. Don't be too pleased just yet. Entering the palace is fine, but there are rules. First, Xiao Tian belongs to you in the morning, but he's mine in the afternoon and evening. As she says this, she points at Xiao Tian, who looks confused. Second, you're only allowed to share a bed with me, no sneaking off to Xiao Tian in the night. Third, you must spar with me to improve my strength. No more drinking contests with me. Saying this, Zi Ruoyan moves closer but is immediately pushed away by Luo Feng Yuan, who exclaims, No way! Are you an idiot? If we're together every night, wouldn't others benefit? Change the second condition. The three of us should be together, understand? Watching Luo Feng Yuan pinch her cheek, Zhong Yangming covers his mouth, struggling to hold back laughter. Then, he pats Xiao Tian's shoulder and says, Prince, you've had it tough. You've sacrificed so much for the people of Great Flame. By the way, Prince, would you like some nutritional supplements? Annoyed, Xiao Tian pushes him away and retorts, What are you thinking? Stop looking at me like that. Only Luo Feng Yuan's three subordinates in the room feel a massive headache coming on. My Empress, what are you doing? We are here to seize the national fate. Why did you get yourself involved? It's beyond words. At this moment, in a side chamber of the palace, Xiao Tian lies between the two Empresses, Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan, each gripping one of his hands. The blanket has long since been kicked away. Slowly opening his eyes, Xiao Tian realizes that sharing a bed, which he once looked forward to, isn't what it seemed. Dark circles under his eyes, he thinks
thinks he can't lie down any longer, his body just can't take it. In the next second, Xiao Tian maintains his supine position and slowly floats up between the two women. Then he heads straight for the door. Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan seem somewhat unaccustomed to his departure. They reach out, grasp for a bit, then end up embracing each other before falling back asleep. Xiao Tian steps out into the courtyard, breathing in the fresh air. However, his stomach rumbles with hunger. If I go to Zhongyang Ming now, I should be able to get some breakfast. Not long after, at the Zhong family dining table, Zhong Li Huang takes a bite from a large bun and frowns at Xiao Tian. Prince, why are you here again? Xiao Tian smiles and says, isn't it because Master Zhong's cooking is so good? Look at this bun. Oh my, why is this bun so small? He takes a big bite, thinking that this bun is really small and nowhere near as good as Luo Feng Yuan's or even Zi Ruoyan's. Prince, be careful with your words. Zhong Yang Ming coughs twice, looking helplessly at Xiao Tian. However, Xiao Tian casually shakes the bun in his hand and says, you're not that serious either. Heavy armored cavalry, you have unique tastes and yet you often make fun of me. Zhong Yangming's face turns red instantly and he doesn't know what to say. Just then, someone from outside yells, Madam, there's a situation. Zhong Li Huang instantly appears in the courtyard and takes the letter. After reading the statement inside, her face changes immediately. This is outrageous. Upon hearing the exclamation, Zhong Yangming rushes out to ask what happened. Zhong Li Huang then explains, Astral Pavilion has been destroyed. There's a letter left behind, saying acting on behalf of heaven. It's suspected to be the work of the King of Hell. Hearing this, Zhong Yang Ming simply responds with a disinterested O, seemingly not too concerned. This confuses Zhong Li Huang. Is this guy really so composed? And what about Ling'er? Why aren't these father and daughter surprised at all? No, now is not the time to worry about them. Immediately, Zhong Li Huang, with a serious expression, tells everyone, I have to go to the palace to report this to his majesty right away. I don't know what the king of hell is up to, causing so much turmoil everywhere. Maybe he... Before she can finish, Zhong Yang Ming interrupts, Madam, if there's an urgent matter, you should quickly go to the palace to report to her majesty. Don't waste time here. It's crucial to get there as soon as possible. Upon hearing her husband's concern, Zhong Li Huang gives him a kiss. My husband speaks wisely. I'll be back soon. After she leaves, Zhong Yang Ming wipes sweat from his forehead. Ah, my wife. The king of hell is right in front of you. You can't afford to speak recklessly. Returning to the dining table, Zhong Yang Ming immediately explains to Xiao Tian, Prince, please don't take my wife's ignorance to heart. Xiao Tian waves it off. I'm not petty enough to hold a grudge over a few words. Upon hearing this, both Zhong Yang Ming and Zhong Ling nearly roll their eyes to the heavens. Do you even believe what you're saying, prince? Then, Zhong Yang Ming suddenly asks Xiao Tian, with the fall of Astral Pavilion, I suspect Lu Outian won't be able to sit still. Xiao Tian looks unconcerned. There's no need to rush. With Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan joining forces, two empresses combined, even Astral Pavilion and Eastern Flame Kingdom don't stand a chance. After all, these women are my breadwinners. Just then, Zhong Li Suang returns, looking displeased. Zhong Yang Ming is puzzled. Madam, why did you come back so soon? Shaking her head, Zhong Li Suang solemnly informs Xiao Tian, Prince, I have something to tell you. Don't take it too hard. A purple-haired woman may have cuckolded you. I went to see his majesty and found them kissing. Xiao Tian feels a chill run down his spine. Just then, a helpless Lu Yan enters the courtyard with Zhong Li Suang, explaining, General, you misunderstand. Things are not as they seem. Zhong Li Suang frowns, looking back at her former subordinate. Where's the misunderstanding? When I went there, his majesty was indeed embracing that purple-haired woman and passionately kissing her. Lu Yan look somewhat helpless. It's good you don't know the identity of the holy demon empress. Otherwise, things would be worse. Xiao Tian, appearing to understand, says, so they've started fighting, haven't they? Lu Yan nods. Prince, you're right. Her majesty and Lord Luo had some sort of morning crankiness, so they started sparring in the courtyard. They had a fight, and when not using their cultivation, her majesty kept aiming for Lord Luo's chest, and in a moment of desperation, Lord Luo grabbed her majesty's hand and pulled it toward her, causing their lips to accidentally touch. Her majesty thought Lord Luo did it on purpose and kissed back in anger. Lord Luo thought her majesty was being a scoundrel and, irritated, tried to bite her majesty's face. In retaliation, her majesty bit Lord Luo's head. That's when you, general, walked in, and perhaps from your angle, you misunderstood. Upon hearing Lu Yan's explanation, Zhong Li Suang feels somewhat embarrassed. Zhong Ling, standing beside her, can't help but laugh. Her majesty is suddenly acting like a child, causing such a ruckus. This might actually be a good thing. Though they may not be good friends, at least her majesty has found a playmate. Zhong Yang Ming's face reveals a look of relief. Upon hearing the word friends, Xiao Tian packs his things into his system space and mutters as if reminiscing, I used to have some friends too. Unfortunately, they were all killed because of schemes by my adoptive father. His sudden muttering sends a shiver down the spines of Zhong Yang Ming and Zhong Ling who are sitting next to him. Prince, what sort of schemes did your adoptive father use? Zhong Ling asks cautiously. After a moment of silence, Xiao Tian slowly speaks, my adoptive father, in order to teach me not to trust people easily, coerced them into trying to kill me. 
Unfortunately, it took me a long time to learn the truth. I misunderstood them for so long. No wonder they kept crying and saying they were sorry. The one who should apologize is me. Xiao Tian looks up at the distant sky and laughs, as if recalling something. But we're friends too, aren't we? Zhong Ling suddenly chimes in. When we were young, the late emperor said that friends always have little secrets. I was friends with the late emperor, and now I'm friends with the prince. You cheeky girl, getting ahead of yourself. Are you trying to be my equal? Zhong Yangming's eyes widen in disbelief. You're mixing up generations here. Zhong Ling sticks out her tongue at Zhong Yangming. It's just a metaphor. Why are you getting so worked up? Besides, you're not worthy to be friends with the prince. You little brat. Don't make me discipline you. Come on, dad. You couldn't beat me if you tried. Zhong Ling shrugs, leaving Zhong Yangming fuming and powerless. Just then, Zhong Li Suang suddenly roars like a lioness and slaps the table. Are you ignoring what I say? Who allowed you to only eat the filling and not the skin of the bun? If you're not disciplined for three days, the roof tiles will lift off. With that, Zhong Li Suang grabs Zhong Ling and starts spanking her. My dear wife, you're hitting too hard. Zhong Yangming, who was fuming just a moment ago, rushes over with concern, only to be met with a scolding from his wife. How dare you speak? This girl's behavior is all because you spoil her. Xiao Tian sits there silently, watching the family drama unfold before him. He finally speaks. It's wonderful. Do you know why my cooking skills are actually not inferior to Zhong Yangming's, yet I prefer to eat his dishes? Lu Yan smiles at Xiao Tian. Is it for the same reason you cook noodles for Her Majesty and the others? Commander Lu is right. Xiao Tian stands up, propping himself on his knees, and looks at the family of three in the distance. The food that Zhong Yangming makes is not just for me, but also for his family. Dishes cooked with love and intent for one's family are, of course, irresistibly delicious. Let's go back to the palace. I suspect our empress and the demon emperor are probably starving by now. Saying this, Xiao Tian casually walks towards the exit of the estate, his hands behind his back. Lu Yan nods silently, casting a somewhat pitiful look at Xiao Tian's retreating figure. At this moment, Zi Ruoyan angrily chops Luo Feng Yuan on the head with the side of her hand. Are you an idiot? How did you become the demon empress? Luo Feng Yuan, clutching his head, mumbles indifferently, fought my way up. Zi Ruoyan sighs in exasperation. It's a wonder the primordial demon kingdom hasn't been ruined by your family. She then points to the content in the book, different strokes for different folks. However, upon hearing these wise teachings, Luo Feng Yuan becomes instantly confused. Not coddling her, chops her head again. Pay attention. I really am paying attention. Luo Feng Yuan moans, clutching his head. Zi Ruoyan continues to go through the primordial demon kingdom's information, saying, many things can't be generalized. You need to understand. Yet Luo Feng Yuan is staring intently at her face, thinking, how is she so amazing? Noticing her gaze, Zi Ruoyan is dumbfounded. This guy's mind is filled with nothing but Xiao Tian and fighting. She knows nothing about governance, yet she's still an empress. But then again, her chest is so big, she must have traded her brain for it. Later, with Zi Ruoyan's help, Luo Feng Yuan uses her avatar to issue various orders in the primordial demon kingdom. The officials are overjoyed and in tears. Finally, our demon empress is willing to use her brain. She stopped cutting people down at the drop of a hat. However, her avatar seems perplexed. Why can't we just cut them down? It's such a hassle. Can I just do it later? Why do we have to think? On the other side, Zi Ruoyan's Empress mini classroom session comes to a temporary end. Luo Feng Yuan lies dizzily on the desk. Why is being an Empress so complicated? My former subjects never consulted me like this. From a nearby reclining chair, Xiao Tian suddenly chimes in, probably because they were afraid you'd cut them down. Being an Empress is hard and technical work. There's much for you to learn. As soon as Xiao Tian finishes speaking, Zi Ruoyan places a large pile of memoranda in front of Luo Feng Yuan. These are all summaries from your personal guards regarding the state of affairs in the primordial demon kingdom. Review them carefully. I will check them later. For the sake of your people, do your best. Zi Ruoyan's face betrays a mix of frustration and hopeful expectation, as if wishing for her to excel. Luo Feng Yuan looks helplessly at her bodyguard, begging, help me. Her guard looked at her helplessly. The eldest sighed and comforted, Demon Empress, my lady. The Great Flame Empress does make a lot of sense. Empress Zi can patiently teach you. You should cherish it. Work hard and stop running away. Xiao Tian on the side picked up a drink and took a big sip. Exactly. If you don't govern the country well, your family fortune will eventually run out. Upon hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan slammed her fist on the table. We can't let the family fortune run out. Otherwise, how will we support Xiao Tian? At this moment, Xiao Tian is lying on a lounge chair, sipping a drink. In the eyes of Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan, he looks extremely adorable and good-looking. After a moment, Luo Feng Yuan looked up again at Zi Ruoyan who was focused on reviewing petitions. This person is really amazing. How can she review so many petitions without getting dizzy. Meanwhile, outside the palace, the winds and clouds are changing, as if something big is about to happen. At this moment, inside the Prime Minister's residence, a person in black told Lu Outyin, the Eastern Flame Kingdom has responded. The Emperor agrees with your plan, but the problem is, if you really do this, people will die. Lu Outyin looked indifferent. Touch my face.
police. The man in black hesitated, pondered for a moment, and then said, Are you insane? But seeing Luo Yin's serious face, the man in black sighed, stepped forward, and extended a finger. Just as he was about to touch Luo Yin, Luo Yin suddenly turned into a shadow of light and disappeared in front of him. The man in black then understood, I should have known. Your advanced dodging technique in close combat is remarkable. In our generation, you were dominant because of this. Luo Yin waved his hand. A hero doesn't talk about past bravery. Zhou Jitian has been above me for so many years. Upon hearing this, the man in black laughed. But Zhou Jitian doesn't even have a head now. Astral Pavilion's branch has been destroyed. They lost their opportunity. The Emperor agrees with your plan and has sworn he will take care of the Lu family. Lu Yin took the Imperial Edict handed to him and took a long sigh of relief. Good. The positions of those who died at Green Flame Mountain will immediately be filled by newcomers from Eastern Flame Kingdom. From now on, the highest command in this area will be given to you. Don't let me down. All for Eastern Flame. The man in black seemed a bit excited and repeated. All for Eastern Flame. The next second, the man in black suddenly burst into tears. Big brother, Lu Yin was stunned, even doubting his own ears for a moment. After a while, a comma Lu Yin sighed softly. It's been many years since I've heard you call me that. Go. The man in black nodded and quickly left. Lu Yin then sat at his desk and began to write a letter. Prince Xiao, or should I call you King of Hell? Although it's just a guess, I think it's very likely. Upon reading this, King of Hell, don't act rashly. Don't be in a hurry to come and kill me. Otherwise, nearly 70% of the Imperial City's populace will be buried with me. After reading the letter, please come to number one sky in the east of the Imperial City to meet at the Empress and Prince's love-filled and emotional Sunshine Welfare Institute. By the way, let me mention, naming it like this is really a bit off. Xiao Tian looked at the letter with a heavy face. Lu Yan next to him couldn't help but ask, Prince, what happened? Xiao Tian nodded, it's very serious. Even more tricky than I thought. Commander Lu, let me ask you, Xiao Tian said while holding his forehead. It really seems difficult to understand. You see, is the name Empress and Prince's love-filled and emotional Sunshine Welfare Welfare Institute really that problematic? Changing it now would be a complicated process. Very tricky indeed. Upon hearing this, Lu Yan was completely stunned. So you're worried about this? But she still comforted Xiao Tian. Don't overthink it, Prince. The name is quite nice. Xiao Tian nodded. That's good. Then it's just Lu Yan's personal taste issue. By the way, the Welfare Institute, mainly funded by Luo Feng Yuan recently, is about to be completed. What do you think of the name? Wholehearted Prince and loving Lady Luo's sincere contribution to a beautiful and happy Welfare Institute, Lu Yan immediately gave a big thumbs up. The name Prince came up with is excellent, very thematic, and it promotes the positive energy you've taught us. Xiao Tian was also very excited. Commander Lu has good taste. Lu Yan has terrible taste. Saying that, Xiao Tian slowly stood up. All right, it's time for me to have a talk with Lu Yan. Lu Yan was puzzled. Prince, what does Lu Yan want with you? Xiao Tian waved his hand. Don't worry, I won't die. However, Lu Yan suddenly became worried. Prince, could there be an ambush? The next second, Lu Yan recalled the time he used the toxic swamp as a facial mask. On second thought, never mind. With Prince's strength, it would be him ambushing a group of people led by Lu Yin. After reading Prime Minister Lu's threatening letter, Xiao Tian hurried to the Welfare Institute. A little girl missing an arm looked up at him, wanting Xiao Tian to be her father. Wow, I considered you my little sister, and now you want me to be your father? Dream on. How could this prince afford to raise you? Xiao Tian picked up the little girl. I will always be your big brother Xiao. Let's make that clear. The little girl hugged Xiao Tian's neck tightly with her only hand. It turns out that she was once a pitiable beggar controlled by others. If it weren't for the beggar boss being captured by the prince, she would still be kneeling on the street in the cold wind, begging laboriously. Now she has new clothes to wear, can read and write, and even learn cultivation from teachers. Seeing the group of children before him, Xiao Tian's previously gloomy mood greatly improved. Don't push. Be careful not to fall. Take it easy. No need to rush. Which little rascal touched my butt again? Xiao Tian pretended to be angry, making the bunch of children burst into laughter. So, surrounded by children, Xiao Tian entered the welfare institute. Along the way, the elderly in the yard looked kindly at the great flame prince being escorted by children. Thanks to Lord Prince, he paid for our housing and allows these children to learn. And even we, the older ones, can contribute using our skills. At this time, inside the Welfare Institute, Lu Yen, the Prime Minister of Great Flame, was making tea. The title of Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deity suits Prince Xiao very well. You're deeply loved by the people and especially adored by these children. While pouring tea, Lu Yen looked at Xiao Tian. Seeing Xiao Tian remain silent, Lu Yin directly tugged at his robe, exposing the area over his heart. Prince Xiao, now we can sit down and talk over tea. If I suffer even a minor injury, this trap void turbulence room formation will detonate. I can't speak for others, but this welfare institute will collapse instantly. And these pitiable children, those pitiable people, they will all die. As Lu Yin's words fell, he gently placed a jade cup across the table. Please, Lord Prince. Seeing this scene, Xiao Tian sighed, put down the little girl in his arms, and told everyone to move back. This is adult business. Children 
and shouldn't be involved. After saying this, Xiao Tian walked straight to the opposite side of Lu Outian and sat down, drinking all the tea in the pot in one go. Now that we're done, let's talk business. This made the corner of Lu Outian's mouth twitch slightly. Damn it, this Xiao Tian is still so annoying. Xiao Tian flexed his hands and looked at Lu Outian. What would be the consequences if I kill you now? Hearing this, Lu Outian pointed at his heart and explained, The Trap Void Turbulence Rune Formation is a killer weapon, combining both formation and rune. The main rune is connected to my life. Eight subrunes are placed at eight directions around the Imperial City. If I die, the subrunes will explode, causing spatial collapse and temporal turbulence. Seventy percent of the people in the Imperial City will undoubtedly die. As soon as the words were spoken, a rune suddenly appeared in the sky above the Welfare Institute. Immediately following, the space in this area was all sealed off. This startled Xiao Tian. What is this? At this moment, both of them looked at the rune above their heads. Lu Outyan chuckled lightly. The rune formation is activating. Once it's fully activated, you and I will be trapped within this formation constructed by the eight subrunes. Once the trapping formation is fully established, the main rune on my chest will also activate. At that time, the space within the formation will break and collapse, pulling both of us into a temporal turbulence. Of course, given your strength, perhaps killing me now would leave you unharmed, but this welfare institute and the people of the Imperial City would suffer terribly. Lu Outyan became more excited as he spoke. If I die, the rune on my chest will detonate. 70% of the population would be affected, with the worst impact being on the people close closest to us in this welfare institute. Saying this, he suddenly leaned forward on the table, slowly moving closer to Xiao Tian. Xiao Tian, would you strike me down? Xiao Tian turned his head to look at the children in the welfare institute, and immediately made up his mind. With a serious face, he replied, at least for now, I won't. Upon hearing this, Lu Outyan felt a triumphant thrill. He couldn't help but burst into laughter. Shortly after, Lu Outyan bowed to Xiao Tian. I indeed have not misjudged you. On behalf of the people of the Imperial City, I thank Prince for his benevolence. Saying this, Lu Lu Outyan slowly sat down, spreading his hands in a somewhat commanding manner, reassuringly saying, Prince Xiao, rest assured, our Eastern Flame Kingdom's Emperor has already agreed. Once this is resolved, all the people of Great Flame will move to Eastern Flame and live in peace and prosperity. Xiao Tian smiled with a hint of mockery. Sounds interesting. So, you're actually a person who cares for the people? Lu Outyan took it seriously. It's just a matter of different standpoints. I had no choice. I can only try to ensure the survival of the people of Great Flame, while also protecting the interests of the East. Eastern Flame Kingdom. Xiao Tian thought for a moment, you really are ruthless. No matter whether I take action or not, you'll end up dead either way. Is it worth it? Lu Outyan wore a face that was ready to die. For the people of Eastern Flame, of course it's worth it. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian suddenly felt somewhat annoyed. I can respect you, but that doesn't prevent me from wanting to kill you. You dare to use the Welfare Institute to threaten me? If I weren't afraid of causing a disaster by making a move, I would beat you and your son until even your mother wouldn't recognize you. At this moment, Xiao Tian suddenly thought of a question. By the way, how did you discover my true identity? I should have covered my tracks well, whether it was cleaning the scene or dealing with witnesses. Even the astute empress didn't notice. So how did you, a fool, manage to? Hearing this question, Lu Outyan's face brimmed with confidence. He chuckled smugly. Ziroyan doesn't know, but there is a world called the body cultivation realm and the lower realms. There, the spiritual energy is thin, resources are scarce, and cultivators don't have realms. They can only rely on lightning to temper their bodies, achieving sanctification of the flesh. The price is that they cannot break through above the 10th level. If my guess is correct, you should have been summoned by Her Majesty from such a body cultivation realm. Xiao Tian was confused upon hearing this. Lu Outyan continued speaking to himself. Now the space here is weak, and the rules are chaotic. Your power can be fully utilized. Likewise, you often pretend to be listless, acting lazy, precisely to create the illusion of a supreme powerhouse who is physically drained. Xiao Tian pondered for a moment. So there's something called the body cultivation realm. Ha! Ah, if I didn't know that I came from another dimensional universe, I'd almost believe leave his nonsense. Just as Xiao Tian was about to say that there might be a misunderstanding, Lu Outyan interrupted him. People from the body cultivation realm, knowing they have no future, are quick to deny it. But Prince Xiao, don't you have even that much grace? He sighed as he continued. To others, you may appear as a brute with only strength and no future, but I highly respect your benevolence. Xiao Tian's face was filled with disbelief. All right, all right, if it makes you happy, let's say I'm a futureless waste. Okay. While Xiao Tian was puzzled, Lu Outyan slowly explained the reason. Ever since Her Majesty the Emperor summoned you. The King of Hell has appeared. Also, after the Blood Cloud Tower was destroyed, Zhong Ling has been acting like an obedient little mare in front of you. It made me suspect. Later, Lu Yan started showing you immense respect, deepening my suspicions. Then, that ancient book's backlash had no effect on you, probably because of your strong physical body. When Zhong Yang Ming was abducted but later rescued by the King of Hell, why would the King of Hell do that? What if Zhong Yang Ming was the King of Hell's chef? Wouldn't that make sense? Everyone in the Imperial City knows about your relationship with Zhong Yang Ming. What confirmed my belief that you are the king of hell. 
was when you pinched my face on the street, and I couldn't dodge you. Therefore, you must be the king of hell. Having said this excitedly, Lu Outian watched as the surrounding trap void turbulence formation finally completed, sealing them both in. He looked at Xiao Tian and said, Xiao, king of hell, though body cultivation has no future, and is a dead end in this place, you, invincible at the tenth level, are terrifying. Eastern Flame Kingdom can't afford to lose. The greatest respect I can offer is to drag you down with my life. Lu Outian stood up, the runes around him flickering with golden light. Prince Xiao, please don't think about killing me. Before we enter the spatial turbulence, your attacks will trigger the runes. Pointing at the children nearby, he added, for the sake of those kids, please refrain from acting rashly. Xiao Tian didn't respond, internally asking Puppy, what's the outcome? Puppy calculated the results. The risk of affecting the orphanage is 12%. The best choice right now is to hold off. Even if we're trapped in the spatial turbulence, there won't be any harm to you, and your presence can stabilize the space, reducing the damage to a minimum. Xiao Tian's mind churned. So, can I directly tear the space, and throw him into the spatial rift? That won't work, master. Doing so will still trigger the runes, and affect the surroundings. Xiao Tian was somewhat puzzled. Why is that? Isn't that a bit excessive? Puppy paused before responding. It's because he's too weak. He can't withstand the impact of you tearing space. Xiao Tian immediately became angry, and started cursing Lu Outian. You waste of space. Lu Outian was puzzled. Why is he suddenly calling me useless? What's the reason? Just then, Xiao Tian's eyes widened. He was thinking that he mustn't let Lu Outian get hurt, but the situation took another turn. Turns out, his son Lu Shermei had just drawn his sword, attempting to backstab Lu Outian, but in the next moment, blood splattered on the runes, and Lu Shermei's eyes widened. Lu Outian had pierced his stomach with his bare hands, chuckling softly. Ah, my son, you're still too young. The knife in Lu Shermei's hand clanged to the ground as he slowly fell down. The blood from his stomach seemed almost sentient, frantically converging toward the runes. It was then that Lu Outian explained with a smile, the trap void turbulence rune formation requires a blood sacrifice. The moment you chose to conspire against your father, you became the perfect candidate. Meanwhile, the strange runes, after absorbing Lu Shermei's blood, began to emit a bizarre red glow, as if it was about to engulf everything. Already on the verge of eruption, the children nearby were not afraid, but rather, they were extremely worried about Xiao Tian. They yelled, Brother Xiao Tian, and rushed toward him. Xiao Tian snapped back from the shock of Lu Outian's act of killing his own son. Seeing the children closing in, he hastily shouted, Don't come any closer, are you all not listening? The children immediately stopped in their tracks. Lu Outian shook his head in mockingly, How touching, Prince. Just then, Lu Yan hurriedly arrived, trying to get closer, but was stopped by Xiao Tian's raised hand. Don't come any closer, help me keep an eye on those children. Upon hearing this, Lu Yan focused his spiritual energy into a shield, blocking those children who still wanted to charge. Seeing this, Xiao Tian finally looked at Lu Outian. You really are ruthless, Prime Minister. Lu Outian looked self-assured. The Astral Pavilion is hiding its true intentions, and its backhand is unknown. The Holy Demon Sect has the support of the Primordial Demon Kingdom. Compared to them, my Eastern Flame Kingdom has the least means. Speaking, Lu Outian suddenly became serious. This generation's Emperor of Eastern Flame Kingdom is bent on militarization. The national fate is declining. The people are suffering. We urgently need the enhancement of national fate. For the Eastern Flame Kingdom, for the people of Eastern Flame, this is a necessary sacrifice. Saying this, Lu Outian sighed. After all, if possible, who would willingly seek death? But he quickly reaffirmed his resolve. For Eastern Flame, my life is but a trivial sacrifice. As Lu Outian's voice fell, the surroundings began to fill with countless bloody thunders. The entire space seemed as if it was collapsing. Above the sealed space where the two stood, a formidable force of space, like a tornado, caused the heavens and the earth to change color and the winds to rage. Lu Outian spread his hands and told Xiao Tian, when the space collapses into spatial turbulence, the runes will detonate. There, no civilians will be affected. King of Hell Xiao, I admire your courage, but I also know that you really want to kill me right now. Unfortunately, you can't do anything before we're caught in the turbulence. Xiao Tian looked at him calmly, but the children from the orphanage were crying, shouting to let the villain release brother Xiao. Upon seeing this, Xiao Tian shouted sternly at the children. Don't cry, have you forgotten what I told you? From now on, you can only rely on yourselves. You must learn to be strong. Hearing this, the children bit their lips, stubbornly holding back their tears. We're good kids. We'll listen to brother Xiao. Seeing their adorable faces, Xiao Tian finally spoke. Your brother Xiao is very strong. Don't worry about me. I'll have to take a little detour with this big villain for now. In the days when I can't watch over you, study hard, eat on time, dress warmly, and take good care of the dogs you've adopted, understood? The children, dressed in blue and white, all raised their hands and responded. We understand. To boost their confidence, Xiao Tian deliberately put his hand to his ear. I can't hear you. Say it again. The children, faces flushed, screamed out. We understand. Xiao Tian burst into hearty laughter. It's a deal then. Wait for my return. Accompanying Xiao Tian's laughter, the space suddenly collapsed and twisted, taking Lu Outian and everything within the sealed space, instantly turning into a black dot and vanishing on the spot.
spot. Lu Yen stared intently at the space in front of her. The little girl beside her asked hesitantly, Auntie Lu, will Brother Xiao come back? Lu Yen sighed softly, turned around and rubbed the little girl's head. Don't worry, Prince will definitely come back. He can't bear to leave you adorable kids. As she said this, she even playfully pinched the girl's nose. Then she turned back to the spot where they had disappeared. Mauling over in her heart, Lu Yen, your biggest mistake, was using these children and civilians to blackmail the prince. You fool, you have no idea how terrifying the prince is. Eastern Flame Kingdom, ha, huh, you're done for. Heaven and Earth, no one can save you now. Meanwhile, in the chaotic area at the edge of the Void Realm, a streak of light suddenly tore through the space, falling into what appeared to be a mysterious location. Moments later, Lu Yen landed on the ground with a thud, and Xiao Tian was sitting on his lower back. Lu Yen looked puzzled. We're actually not dead. Xiao Tian looked around, clearly displeased. What's going on here? It's so dirty. Who's been littering here? Absolutely no manners. But then, why do these pieces of trash look so familiar? System Puppy awkwardly chimed in, Master, it seems that the trash you usually throw away when tearing open space for convenience is all here. Xiao Tian took another close look. Is this really stuff I've thrown away? Puppy initiated a system analysis and said, Based on the knowledge from ancient divine tribe scriptures, this appears to be a targeted setting for the southern wilderness realm. Any spatial tearing and traversal that occurs in the southern wilderness realm will be transferred here. This setting might be related to your father-in-law, esteemed purple emperor. Xiao Tian immediately understood. So you're saying, the Great Flame Dynasty is covered by a special realm barrier. To get in, one must pass through a special channel and seal their cultivation. Those who are more powerful and try to tear through space to get in will be forcibly transferred here. That's why whenever I tear through space to discard trash, the trash ends up here. At this moment, Lu Yin suddenly burst into laughter. This is the Holy Dragon Relic from the Sea Clan. Ha <laughs> The Holy Dragon Relic really exists. Legend has it that in ancient times, mankind had three leaders. They were called Human Emperor, Human Sovereign, and Human Venerable. In this Sea Clan Holy Dragon lineage, followed the command of the Human Emperor lineage. Unfortunately, that era fell, and we can't see the glory of mankind from that time. We can only see some past splendor from these ruins. Lu Yen became a bit sentimental as he spoke. It's a pity. The Holy Dragon Relic can't be opened without the bloodline of the Human Emperor. People like us, with ordinary human bloodlines, end up here, reduced to mere servants, toiling away to maintain these ruins, dying in this place. Suddenly, Lu Yen turned to look at Xiao Tian, but at least my plan was successful in the end. Without you as an extra variable, the agreement can continue to be implemented normally. I've successfully dragged you down with me, Prince Xiao. Just then, the door to the ruins was suddenly opened. A man who looked quite majestic let a man and a woman out and shouted, This is the Holy Dragon Relic. Who dares to make a ruckus here? When Lu Yen saw the people on the stage, his face changed dramatically. By Qinglian, it's actually you, and Li Yang and Li Chunhua from the Black Soul Hall. What are you three doing here? Bai Qinglian covered her mouth and chuckled. Lu Yen, I never expected to see you here. Bai Qinglian wanted to say more, but was interrupted by Li Yang. What's going on? Why did you interrupt me? Bai Qinglian turned to scold the two, only to find their faces pale, trembling as they looked in a certain direction. Bai Qinglian followed their gaze. Xiao Tian excitedly waved at him and warmly greeted him. Bai Qinglian was so scared that his liver almost failed, as if he had seen a lifelong nightmare. After a moment of shock, the three turned and ran, wishing they had never come out in the first place. Xiao Tian's face turned cold. You think you can run after seeing me? The next second, Xiao Tian teleported, appearing directly in front of the gate, effectively blocking Bai Qinglian's way. Xiao Tian scratched his head, about to say something, when Bai Qinglian and the others were so scared they nearly fainted. In their disoriented state, the three instinctively stepped back, only to miss their footing, and tumbled down the stairs. Xiao Tian followed them at a leisurely pace, and slowly extended his hand in front of them. Pay up. You three still owe me five million spirit stones. Bai Qinglian and the others looked at each other, puzzled. Five million? When did we owe you money? Seeing the three stay silent, Xiao Tian's face turned cold. You really forgot? The three shook their heads in bewilderment, looking as innocent as they could be. Xiao Tian stretched out his fingers. How could you forget? I thought surviving a near-death experience would have made you wiser. Let's see. Last time you kidnapped Zhong Yang Ming, I traveled far and wide, crossing mountains and rivers to save him. That's labor costs. I originally thought about letting you go and patiently advised you to be good. That's tuition for the life lesson. Then, after sending you into the space-time rift, I also helped transport your treasury. That's moving costs. Xiao Tian spread his hands. So, you see, don't you owe me five million spirit stones? On the side, Lu Ao Yin's eyes widened. You can actually tally it up like this. Is this a calculation that any normal person could make? And, why did Bai Qinglian get scared into idiocy? Even if Xiao Tian is invincible at the same level, there's no need to be that afraid of him. How did they get through the space-time rift to come here? Just then, an angry shout echoed through the entire relic. Who dares to cause a commotion here? Lu Ao Yin quickly turned around, only to see the spiritual energy inside the relic suddenly converge, gradually forming a holy dragon illusion. The appearance of the holy dragon, its majestic dragon aura everywhere. Seeing this, 
Lu Outian became suddenly emotional. This is the spirit of the holy dragon from the holy dragon relic. It is said that there is a spirit of the holy dragon in the holy dragon relic, formed from a dormant holy dragon. It really does exist. This trip was totally worth it. Meanwhile, Xiao Tian was thinking, this thing really resembles the dragon king in Dragon Ball. When it transforms into a person, I hope it isn't a dragon-headed human. As for Bai Qinglian and the others, they were winking and gesturing at the spirit of the holy dragon, seemingly telling him not to come out, but it was too late. A venerable elder appeared, with an imposing demeanor and dragon horns on his head. Unable to restrain his protective instincts, Bai Qinglian ran towards him, screaming at the top of her lungs, Lord Dragon Spirit, don't come here, run. Lu Yan was dumbfounded, run, telling such a powerful being like the dragon spirit to run, as he lost her mind? Sure enough, the dragon spirit angrily scolded Bai Qinglian, you lowly servant, dare to tell me to run? Kneel before me. With that, the elder dragon spirit burst forth in his aura, a wave of dragons might immediately radiated out. With a thud, Bai Qinglian and his companions immediately knelt down, but their expressions seemed somewhat off. At this moment, the elder dragon spirit also suddenly knelt down, kneeling proudly without hesitation. This move left Xiao Tian completely bewildered. However, the elder dragon spirit looked serious, with a face three parts innocent and three parts reverent. He simply knelt on the ground looking at Xiao Tian. The scene was awkward for a good while. Finally, after a long moment, Xiao Tian reacted and asked, Elder, why are you showing such great great respect. The elder looked confused. Didn't I use the power of my soul and dragon's might to make them kneel? Why am I kneeling here? Bai Qinglian and his companions covered their faces, mentally commenting, I knew it. Even if we came to the holy dragon relic and became attendants to the guardian dragon spirit, we can't escape the palm of Xiao Tian. Lu Yin was also dumbfounded. What's going on here? Does the guardian dragon spirit of the holy dragon relic also have issues with mobility due to old age? The elder hastily stood up and angrily shouted, I am Long Chiu Dao, the last appointed master of the holy dragon by the human emperor, a renowned dragon lord across multiple realms. How could I possibly be humiliated by a mere human like you? With that, Long Chiu Dao activated the holy dragon power throughout the relic. In an instant, there was a flash of lightning and rumbling of thunder. The winds and clouds surged. All of the holy dragon's power converged onto Long Chiu Dao. The next second, above Long Chiu Dao's head, a holy dragon's true form soared into the sky, looking down on Xiao Tian with a superior posture. In that moment, a sweeping dragon's might filled the entire relic. Bai Qinglian and his companions as dragon servants were just trembling with fear. But Lu Outian knelt on the ground and spat out a mouthful of fresh blood. At this moment, Long Chiu Dao emitted a dazzling, radiant light, his expression solemn, floating high above, in front of the illusory form of the holy dragon. Lu Outian glanced again at Xiao Tian, who was indifferent. This dragon lord of the holy dragon relic can't be real, right? Otherwise, why would Xiao Tian be unscathed? However, Xiao Tian is also unlucky enough to be misdirected in anger because the elder accidentally knelt due to his own infirmity. At that moment, Moment, Long Chiu Dao suddenly spoke with a dignified face. Now, kneel before me. Before he could finish, the entire relic space suddenly started to shake violently. A much more dazzling golden light burst forth from behind Xiao Tian. This feeling, Long Chiu Dao was completely stunned. How is this possible? This is actually the legendary primordial dragon god. And at this moment, behind Xiao Tian, there were actually nine divine dragon illusions. One of them slowly opened its eyes, seemingly somewhat disdainful. The next second, a dragon's breath was exhaled toward Long Chiu Dao. In an instant, the holy dragon illusion behind Long Chiu Dao was shattered, and he himself fell to the ground with a plop. His eyes widened in confusion. How could this be? The blessing once granted to me by the human emperor has been completely erased. How could such a terrifying real dragon illusion appear behind this young man? Lu Yin also stared at Xiao Tian for a long time. What was that behind him just now? Do the dragons of the sea clan look like that? Comparing them, the one behind that elder was like a mudfish. A moment later, Long Chiu Dao finally spoke in alarm. Who exactly are you? Xiao Tian patted his chest. Although I'm just an ordinary person. Even though I don't know what just happened, the feeling of being protected feels so good. I don't even have to lift a finger, and the opponent is already kneeling and conquered. Long Chiu Dao had no idea what Xiao Tian was thinking, staring blankly at him. After a long while, Long Chiu Dao couldn't help but burst into tears. Am I not pathetic? People are just chatting. A little noise shouldn't matter. Why did I have to show off my authority? Bai Qinglian told me to run. Why didn't I? Wait, why didn't Bai Qinglian explain things to me clearly? Just telling me to run without details. Of course I wouldn't. Thinking of this, Long Chiu Dao pointed at the trembling trio. It's all your fault. Screaming and disturbing this distinguished person. Even meddling and sowing discord in front of us. You are truly disposable trash. With that said, Long Chiu Dao suddenly raised his hand, directing the spiritual energy of heaven and earth to strike the three. Bai Qinglian's eyes widened, unable to hold back an angry curse. But before he could finish speaking, he was blasted into pieces, with no hope of surviving. After doing all this, Long Chiu Dao turned to face Xiao Tian and bowed. Lowly Long Chiu Dao greets this distinguished person. Are you satisfied with the smallest? assistance I provided earlier? Who knew Xiao Tian would suddenly clench his fists and shout?
out. Why did you kill those three? Long Chiodao felt a shiver run through him, thinking to himself that this was bad. Could it be that this Xiao Tian doesn't like killing? The next second, Xiao Tian grabbed him by the neck and scolded. They still only five million spirit stones. At this moment, faced with Xiao Tian's questioning, Long Chiodao was incredibly shocked, but didn't know what to say. Just a few spirit stones. Does this distinguished person really care so much? Seeing him silent, Xiao Tian continued to question. You said it was noisy at the entrance, and you're the guardian spirit of this place, so you must have heard our conversation. If you were really looking out for me, why didn't you wait for me to get back the five million spirit stones before killing them? Long Chiodao completely ran out of excuses. Xiao Tian became even more certain. So that's how it is. You learned some information about me from those three, so you were scheming against me in secret. As the saying goes, the older, the craftier. When you were speaking earlier, I observed your expression, your eyes darting left and right. Perhaps in that moment, you already had countless tricks and schemes. Had I not reacted quickly, I would have fallen into an irredeemable trap. Saying this, Xiao Tian suddenly gathered energy in his hand, reaching out to grab Long Chiodao in front of him. But unexpectedly, he grabbed at thin air. Long Chiodao immediately burst into laughter. Ha ha ha, you can't touch me. Just then, Puppy suddenly sent a message in Xiao Tian's mind. Master, he is in a soul form. A direct attack cannot touch him. You also cannot actively mobilize soul power now. I suggest that you shatter the space. Utilize spatial turbulence to wash him away. Xiao Tian gave a slight smile. This is easy to do. Saying this, Xiao Tian suddenly clenched his fist. Immediately a shattering noise was heard. Lu Yin, who was quietly observing from the side, sucked in a cold breath, rubbing his eyes in disbelief. What just happened? Was I seeing things? Did Xiao Tian just crush the space in his palm? While Xiao Tian stared at the smug Long Chiodao in front of him. Do you think if I can't touch you, that I have no options? Long Chiodao's smile didn't fade. It's useless. Since you don't know how to use soul power, how could you possibly kill me in this state with just your fists? Just then, Xiao Tian's figure seemed to vanish from the spot in an instant. Long Chiodao inexplicably started to feel a bit nervous, only to see that Xiao Tian had already stood in front of him, muttering softly, power control, one ten thousandth, a surge of wild power immediately concentrated in his palm, but Long Chiodao was confused, what do you mean, control the power to one ten thousandth, are you joking, how much strength could one ten thousandth have, enough to beat an earthworm, the next second, an earth shattering power erupted, enveloping both of them, and with one punch from Xiao Tian, the space started to emit a cracking noise, ferocious spatial turbulence burst out instantly, starting to violently wash away through the shattered space. Long Chiodao wanted to escape, but it was already too late. He could only grit his teeth and ask, how is this possible? You didn't even use spiritual energy. How could you shatter space with one punch? This is holy dragon relic space, extremely durable. And you, you idiot, you will also be washed away by the spatial turbulence. Is it worth it to risk your own life to kill me? As he said this, Long Chiodao suddenly stopped. At this moment, Xiao Tian, who was also standing in the spatial turbulence, seemed to be enveloped by some strange force field, leaving his robe completely intact. Act. Xiao Tian crossed his arms and looked at the spatial turbulence. This is really slow. Let me help speed it up. Saying this, Xiao Tian pointed again. The collapsing space suddenly became even more unstable, even more violent, and the spatial turbulence also grew more fierce. Long Chiodao's rate of being obliterated was also accelerating, seemingly having accepted his fate. He had one final question. Who are you? Xiao Tian tilted his head and thought. You're asking who I am? The next second, Xiao Tian suddenly showed a bright smile. I won't tell you. For someone as bad as you, you should die in ignorance. Letting Wang Chiodao die in spatial turbulence with a face like he'd swallowed three pounds of flies. Lu Yin, who was off to the side and had witnessed everything, saw Xiao Tian casually close up the shattered space with a pole. Tears flowed down Lu Yin's face. He he he, I am really stupid. Why did I provoke something like this? At this moment, Lu Yan, who had seen Xiao Tian be swept into the temporal turbulence, knelt in front of Zi Ruan with a face full of sorrow. Zhong Li Suan, who stood by her side, looked worried. Would the Empress do something foolish? Demon Clan Empress Luo Fong Yuan clenched her fist, cursing Lu Yin through gritted teeth, that scum from the Eastern Flame Kingdom. I should have killed him when I had the chance. At this moment, the Empress suddenly stepped forward to help Lu Yan up. The blame is not on you, and I am pleased. Lord Zhao's choice just proves that I have chosen wisely. Lu Yan looked at Zi Ruoyan, wanting to say something, but was interrupted by Zi Ruoyan through the slave ring of the summoning charm. I can't sense his location, but at least he's still alive. Perhaps some accident involving the spatial turbulence has given him a glimmer of hope. Luo Feng Yuan also nodded, indeed. Maybe the spatial turbulence didn't tear him apart, but instead took him to another safe place. Zhong Li Suang suddenly thought of something. What on earth is Lu Yin thinking? Why did he suddenly attack Xiao Tian? Zi Rui uncommonly but astonishingly said, Perhaps he discovered that Lord Xiao is the king of hell. Upon hearing this, Zhong Yangming's Hong Ling and Lu Yan almost simultaneously widened their eyes, staring directly at Zi Rui What's going on? How did your majesty know? Only Zhong Li Suang seemed to be tremendously shocked, exclaiming incredulously, King of hell? Luo Feng Yuan furrowed her brows, looking puzzled.
puzzledly at Ziruan. Is Xiao brother that king of hell? His strength does seem very impressive, but he indeed lacks a realm. If my guess is correct, Lord Xiao likely comes from the body cultivation realm world. Can't you guess this? Isn't it very obvious? Luo Feng Yuan was completely baffled. Her mind just couldn't wrap around it. Ah, is it that obvious? Zi Ruoyan silently looked at her. Indeed, you've exchanged your brains for your size. Luo Feng Yuan recalled the moment on Green Flame Mountain when Xiao Tian tore apart the ancient formation with his bare hands. So it's the body cultivation realm world. If you hadn't said it, I would have almost forgotten. No wonder Xiao brother has no realm, yet his physical body is so strong. Lu Yan at the side swallowed. Your majesty. You, Zi Ruoyan, interrupted her again. Why am I not surprised? That's because Lord Xiao is such a fool. His flaw is too big. When you, this young lady, started to obey him, I knew something was off. With your character, if Lord Xiao had no capabilities, how would you willingly follow him? Zhong Ling could only awkwardly chuckle at the side. Also, the subsequent events were too coincidental, especially after the destruction of the Black Soul Hall. The message we found in the valley, that suggestion was from Uncle Zhong, right? Zhong Yangming quickly responded, Your Majesty is wise. Indeed, it was my suggestion. Lastly, Zi Ruoyan summed up, That message from King of Hell is harmless to Great Flame. If the other party were an enemy plotting against Great Flame, this action would be unnecessary. But if King of Hell is Lord Xiao, everything makes sense. Zhong Ling still couldn't figure it out, but Your Majesty, if you knew all along that the prince was so formidable, why did you pretend not to know? Zi Ruoyan looked at her gently and explained slowly, The stories my mother told me mention that. People in the body cultivation realm world are always fighting due to their environment and limited resources. Lord Xiao must be tired of the killings. That's why he assumed the lazy posture of a prince. So I nurtured him to be that idle prince. Even if I knew he was willing to help me with my troubles, I would still pretend not to know. It's good to be a little confused sometimes, living in happiness and dreams, and waking up from a perfect nap to cheer and celebrate. What exactly did he go through to treasure a normal nap so much? As she said this, a hint of heartache showed in Zi Ruan's eyes. Finally understanding, Luo Feng Yuan chimed in. If Brother Xiao is of this body cultivation type, then he is a 10th level unbeatable figure. In the special area of the Great Flame Dynasty, he's simply against the heavens. No wonder Luo Yin wanted to take him away. This also implies one thing. At the very least, the Eastern Flame Kingdom is making its move, so they're eliminating the biggest threat in advance. It looks like a fierce battle is inevitable. The golden pupils of Luo Feng Yuan suddenly ignited with fighting spirit, only to be dumbfounded by a sentence from Zi Ruoyan. Why is it that your brain lights up all at once when it comes to fighting? At this, the corner of Luo Feng Yuan's mouth twitched. She glared at Zi Ruoyan and yelled, I've been putting up with you for a long time for Brother Zhao's sake. Can you stop bringing up brains? Zi Ruoyan also refused to back down. Did I say something wrong? Sometimes I really think you should change your title. Don't call yourself the Holy Demon Empress. Call yourself the Holy Demon Dumb Emperor instead. Suddenly, Luo Feng Yuan straightened her back, showing off her grandeur. You arrogant woman. Don't think I don't know what you're thinking. You're just jealous of me. I think you should also change your name from Great Flame Empress to Little Little Empress. Zi Ruoyan seemed to have hit a sore spot, gritting her teeth, the veins on her forehead bulging. What are you so smug about? Lord Xiao doesn't even like it. Luo Feng Yuan nonchalantly curled her lip. If a female hooligan like you can like it, not to mention Brother Xiao, the two women stared each other down. Others standing nearby could feel the collision of their wills, and couldn't help but murmur. Here we go again. How many times has this been? Lord Prince, please come back soon. This family will fall apart without you. Just then, another round of the Battle of the Two Empresses came to an end, with Luo Feng Yuan emerging as the winner. Zi Ruoyan could only praise, well fought. When we go back, I will give you an extra three small governance lessons as a reward. However, Luo Feng Yuan sensed something was amiss during the fight. Your aura is becoming more mature. The National Seal Jade Stamp may soon be able to successfully condense the national fate. Zi Ruoyan gently nodded. I know, I can feel it. Saying this, she took out the National Seal Jade Stamp from her storage ring. At this moment, the National Seal Jade Stamp began to emit bursts of golden light. Luo Feng Yuan stared at the reaction of the National Seal Jade Stamp. Looking at this, it should be complete within a month. That will be the time for Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion to make their move. Upon hearing this, Zi Ruoyan looked solemn. She put away the National Seal Jade Stamp and began to give orders. Minister Zhong, effective today, you will replace Lu Yin's position as the Great Flame Prime Minister. Deal with all the ministers from Lu Yin's faction and replace them with people we've prepared in advance. The Intelligence Department should immediately start monitoring everything around us. We must know of any movements. The Great Flame Dynasty is entering a state of war. I will personally serve as the Grand Marshal with General Zhong as my deputy to deal with the imminent threats. Upon hearing Zi Ruoyan's command, both Zhong Yangming and his spouse Zhong Li Suang nodded in unison. As you command, your majesty. Luo Feng Yuan then looked at Zi Ruoyan. My primordial demon kingdom is currently under watch, so we can't mobilize external reinforcements. It's only me and my three personal guards. If it really comes to war, will you be afraid? Zi 
Royan, however, smiled, her face full of determination. Choke, I will not be afraid. I will definitely protect the Great Flame Dynasty, not just safeguarding the foundation left by my father, or preserving the empire for which my two elder brothers sacrificed, but also for the people of the Great Flame. Even if it's a false empire, it's still my Great Flame, it's still home. Once home is secure, I can then safely go find Lord Xiao and bring him back. No matter where he is, I will bring him home. Luo Feng Yuan locked eyes with her. Don't worry, I will be with you, and we will definitely bring Lord Xiao back. However, at this moment, within the Holy Dragon Relic in the space-time rift, Lu Yin, who was in front of Xiao Tian, was kneeling on the ground, trembling and covered in cold sweat. Xiao Tian looked speechless. I'm just asking you how to get to Eastern Flame Kingdom. Why are you trembling? Lu Yin swallowed, lifting his shaky head. Lord Prince, what are you planning to do in the Eastern Flame Kingdom? Xiao Tian smiled. Don't be afraid. I'm a very kind and reasonable person. Saying this, Xiao Tian was about to help him up, but the next second, Xiao Tian suddenly pulled, tearing off a piece of Lu Yin's clothes, then used it like a rag to wipe Lu Yin's sweat. Look at you, scaring yourself and sweating so much. Lu Yin was stunned. He dared not move, dared not speak, just afraid. A moment later, Xiao Tian carelessly tossed the torn cloth aside and explained, Actually, when you first threatened me, I was a bit angry, but after thinking about it, you were doing all this for the people of Eastern Flame Kingdom to live a better life. We're just on opposite sides. There's no right or wrong. So I was wondering, could there be a more peaceful way? That wouldn't result in more deaths. To solve the current dilemma, as he spoke, Xiao Tian suddenly leaned in mysteriously. Just now, I thought of a brilliant idea. Guess what it is? Lu Yin shook his head in a daze. I, I can't guess. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian suddenly burst into triumphant laughter. Ha ha, such a brilliant plan. I knew you wouldn't be able to guess. What if, I go to Eastern Flame Kingdom and kill your empress? Wouldn't that solve everything? Upon hearing this, Lu Yin looked at Xiao Tian in utter shock, thinking furiously. What the hell? Say that again? I definitely, never mind. I can't beat him. Seeing that Lu Yin remained silent for a long time, Xiao Tian grinned smugly. Look at you, so stunned that you can't even speak. A bewildered Lu Yin asked, what's so brilliant about this? Seeing his reaction, Xiao Tian frowned. Seriously, you're so smart. Can't you figure it out? Think about it. You're doing all this so people can live better lives, right? Upon seeing Lu Yin nod seriously, Xiao Tian continued, so, what if I kill the emperor of your eastern flame kingdom and let Zi Ruoyan take her place? Wouldn't the people of the eastern flame kingdom immediately benefit from the legitimate national fate and prosper? People from the southern wilderness realm's great flame dynasty could also move there and continue to live well. Doesn't that sound great? Listening to this, Lu Yin felt confused. Although it seemed to make sense, wouldn't that mean the end of Eastern Flame Kingdom? You're thinking too small. Xiao Tian shook his head, pointing at his own brain. Names are just labels. If you're so attached to that, why not give the Great Flame Dynasty a nickname like Eastern Flame later on? You seem like a broad-minded, ambitious person. Can't you understand this simple logic? The decline of Eastern Flame Kingdom's national fate shows that your emperor is a tyrant. Killing a tyrant benefits millions, and all you have to do is tell me how to get to the Eastern Flame Kingdom. You'd be making a monumental contribution and leave your name in history. Having said that, Xiao Tian gave him a hefty pat on the shoulder. For Eastern Flame, for the people, listening to Xiao Tian's persuasive words, Lu Yin's eyes gradually lit up. Thinking carefully, he realized, he's right. With this thought, Lu Yin declared with a determined face, yes, everything is for Eastern Flame, for the people. Lu Yin immediately detailed the methods and specific routes to reach the Eastern Flame Kingdom, as Xiao Tian nodded and had Puppy record the information. After Puppy gave him a slight nod, Xiao Tian smiled satisfied. Actually, the next second, he abruptly reached out, grabbing Lu Yin by the neck and lifting him up. Only then did Lu Yin snap back to reality, cursing inwardly. What the hell was I thinking? Why did I ever believe that lying bastard Xiao Tian made any sense? But why did he suddenly attack? Seeming to sense Lu Yin's confusion, Xiao Tian spoke with a cold face. Throughout history, those who have left a strong mark are usually the deceased. You're too cowardly to die, so let me help you. Look how kind I am. Even after you threaten me with innocent lives, I'm still helping you secure a place in history. I really must have the heart of a saint. Looking at Xiao Tian's beaming face, Lu Yin was so angry he was shaking all over, mumbling something incoherently. Seeing this, Xiao Tian placed his index finger on his lips. No need to speak. I know you're grateful. Keep it in your heart. I understand you. Xiao Tian's smile was so innocent that Lu Yin's eyes widened, as if resentful, but it was all over. With a snapping sound, Xiao Tian released his grip, letting the lifeless Lu Yin fall to the ground. After doing all this, Xiao Tian looked at his corpse and suddenly thought, wouldn't it be too inhumane to leave his body out in the open like this? Fine, let's be a good person to the end. With that thought, golden light shone from the tips of Xiao Tian's fingers. He then clenched his fist tightly, and under the force, Lu Yin's body disintegrated into dust. After completing this, Xiao Tian took a deep breath. Another day of doing a good deed. Puppy, start the navigation. Let's go to Eastern Flame Kingdom, see if we can have a talk. However, Puppy explained, Master, the information provided by Lu 
Yin is a method to go to the Eastern Flame Kingdom from the Southern Wilderness Realm. Currently, we are within the Holy Dragon Relic and do not have a way to get to the Eastern Flame Kingdom. As of now, our location here is still uncertain. Looking at Puppy's somewhat apologetic face, Xiao Tian's expression stiffened instantly. Damn it, I was fully prepared and about to set off. And now you're telling me we can't go, that we're lost? This is infuriating. Xiao Tian stomped on the ground in frustration, causing the entire Holy Dragon Relic to tremble. Just then, a familiar voice resounded, Ah, uh, Master Xiao, please be gentler. If you use any more force, you might shatter the Holy Dragon Relic and get lost in the spatial turbulence. Xiao Tian's face turned cold, recognizing the voice as Long Chiu Dao's. However, he looked around and couldn't see him anywhere. Strange, I clearly cleaned him out using spatial turbulence. Is he still alive? Never mind if he's dead or alive, it's his fault for playing tricks. With that, Xiao Tian clenched his fist and began to unleash his power, mumbling to himself, You wanna play tricks? I'll just smash this relic to pieces. Let's see if you can continue your charade then. Hearing this, Long Chiu Dao's voice started to sound somewhat panicked. Master Xiao, you misunderstand. Although I am Long Chiu Dao, I am not the one you encountered earlier. Please, don't destroy this relic. I can sense the aura of the old human emperor in you. You must have a close relationship with the human emperor's descendant. If you bring people here next time, you could gain the treasures of this holy dragon relic. Xiao Tian paused and quickly stopped his actions. The old human emperor's descendant he's talking about, could it be Zi Ruan? If that's the case, then this holy dragon relic is technically my wife's property, which means it's my money. I really shouldn't destroy it. With that thought, Xiao Tian shouted into the surroundings. If that's the case, why don't you show yourself? I'm a reasonable person who keeps his word. Just come out. I won't do anything to you. Meanwhile, within the holy dragon relic, an elderly man shackled by black fog and chains was contemplating. He had seen clearly what had just happened outside. Does this young man named Xiao Tian really keep his word? He sort of does, but not much. Killing people with his own logic. Is that keeping his word? It seems like it. That guy might have made it into history, but now he's gone. At this point, it's not about whether I dare to go to Xiao Tian. I can't even if I want to. Thinking about this, the elder explained, Master Xiao, I am currently restricted in my movements and sealed within the inner sanctum of the holy dragon relic. I really can't come to see you personally. Xiao Tian was still somewhat puzzled. What do you mean? Weren't you just? The elder hurriedly explained, the one who died earlier was my corpse heart demon. I have a way to leave, but I never told him. You have a way out? Yes, Master. If I weren't sealed, I could certainly help you leave. But as it stands, I'm sealed within the inner sanctum and can't assist you. Hearing this, Xiao Tian didn't say much and directly walked towards the main door. The elder quickly tried to stop him. Master, don't be rash. If you try to break in forcefully to lift my seal, the holy dragon relic will self-destruct. But Xiao Tian didn't take any of it seriously. No worries. Your so-called rules here don't apply to me. Puppy said from the beginning that I can ignore any rules or laws. I have the ability to suppress any lineage or constitution. At this moment, Xiao Tian had already pushed open the doors of the holy dragon relic and entered its antechamber. Yet, looking at the narrow corridor and a handful of rooms, Xiao Tian couldn't help but sneer. Such a small place. Does it even need servants to maintain it? But when he pushed open another door, Xiao Tian's eyes brightened. He couldn't help but murmur in awe. No wonder it needs maintaining. This place is truly a hidden universe. This wasn't any chamber. It was a vast landscape of mountains and rivers. Countless cranes were soaring above the clouds, and the continuous mountain range in the distance extended like a sleeping dragon. Xiao Tian thought to himself, this mountain range looks familiar. It resembles Green Flame Mountain. Perhaps this is what Long Chiu Dao referred to as his abandoned body. It looks like a grand hall from the outside, but inside, it's a world of its own. Is this the inner sanctum of the Holy Dragon Relic? It even seems a bit larger than the territory of the Great Flame Dynasty. At this moment, Puppy suddenly pointed to a distant mountain peak. Master, according to my analysis, that mountain is the core of the entire Holy Dragon Relic's formation. This chamber must be the true location of the inner sanctum. Xiao Tian smiled slightly. Let's go. Saying this, he started to float slightly, then instantly vanished. The next second, he was already standing in front of the door to the inner sanctum. However, within the inner sanctum, the bound Long Chiu Dao looked horrified. He stammered at Xiao Tian, Master Xiao, please, don't act rashly, calm down. Seeing Xiao Tian unmoved and reaching out to push the door, Long Chiu Dao internally thought he was doomed. Although this man is extraordinary and doesn't fear the emperor's rules of the human emperor, the self-preservation mechanism of the holy dragon relic will detonate once triggered. What's the point of my guarding this relic then? To his surprise, the next moment, a dull sound of a door opening echoed. Long Chiu Dao, who had been sealed for countless years, found the area in front of him suddenly illuminated. He had lost track of how long it had been since he'd seen light. Although he had been chanting to himself that he was doomed, the rules of the human emperor were still in effect. The emperor's will, shining with a golden light, continued to roam through the chamber like a fish in water. Long Chiu Dao was astonished to find that the will of the human emperor did not reject Xiao Tian at all. Although Xiao Tian was not a descendant of the human emperor, he walked in as if the place was deserted, even occasionally 
commenting, This inner sanctum looks quite plain and ordinary. Puppy informed him, Master, according to ancient records of the God Clan, although this inner sanctum looks simple in style, it's actually priceless. Xiao Tian paused, Is that so? It seems like this so called human emperor is pretty practical. At this moment, Long Chiodao couldn't care less about style, he just wanted to know why. Wasn't Xiao Tian an intruder? Why wasn't he rejected by the emperor's rules? Could it be that the rules had lost their effect due to age? It doesn't make sense. Corpse Heart Demon trapped me here solely based on the emperor's rules. Then, Xiao Tian walked up to Long Chiodao. Compared to that corpse heart demon, the person in front of him felt like the real deal. Only then did it have enough gravitas. Long Chiodao felt immense pressure facing Xiao Tian, even more than when he had faced the human emperor himself. After a moment, Xiao Tian suddenly spoke. If I let you out, can you help me leave this place? Long Chiodao quickly responded. If I'm freed, Master Xiao, I can indeed help you leave. My word is my bond. As he spoke, Xiao Tian gripped the chains in his palm. Just as Long Chiodao was about to instruct him on what to do, Xiao Tian exerted force and shattered the chains. Long Chiodao's eyes rolled back in fear. Master Xiao, doing this will kill me. Sure enough, the surrounding golden energy that swam like fish suddenly converged onto Long Chiodao, transforming into a golden dragon. It bared its fangs as if it was about to tear into Long Chiodao. Long Chiodao had no intention of resisting and could only think to himself, it's over, it's over. The emperor's rules are backfiring. My life is over. He even resignedly closed his eyes, quietly awaiting death. The next second, Xiao Tian suddenly slapped out, and the golden dragon was immediately turned into a pool of gold liquid. Xiao Tian disdainfully spoke, What is this nonsense? The shattered spirit of the rule, however, reformed behind Xiao Tian, turning into a giant golden fish, and fiercely lunged at him. Startled, Long Chiodao quickly cried out, Master, watch your back. Xiao Tian didn't even turn his head. He just backhandedly grabbed the fin of the big fish. Even the fish was stunned at this point. The next second, Xiao Tian's aura turned terrifying, and the air itself seemed to become ominously chilling. In a cold voice, Xiao Tian interrogated, I let you off earlier, and now you dare to act defiantly? Suddenly, Xiao Tian seemed to think of something, wait, wait, can this thing be eaten? The fish seemed scared, and Long Chiodao also seemed to have heard something outrageous. Frightened, he hurriedly explained, Master Xiao, don't be impulsive, this is a spirit formed by the ancient human emperor's rules, eating it would be such a waste. Xiao Tian, however, didn't care at all, thinking about the red cooked carp that Zhong Yangming made, he muttered uncontrollably, whether it's a waste or not is irrelevant, I mainly want to taste it. The big fish internally wailed, help, this person is insane. At that moment, Long Chiodao seemed to think of something, Master Xiao, may I ask if there are any descendants of the human emperor by your side? This rule spirit has significant benefits for the descendants of the human emperor. Xiao Tian thought carefully, as for descendants of the human emperor, Zi Ruoyan should be one. However, she is currently in the Great Flame Dynasty, and has run into some issues. It involves the Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion, who have created a false empire to seize her destiny. Listening to this, Long Chiodao looked furious. She is a descendant of the human emperor. Her bloodline must be extremely pure. What is this false empire? Eastern Flame Kingdom, Astral Pavilion. They are all beasts. The original human emperor's Z lineage shed blood and sacrificed greatly for the human race. How dare they do this? They deserve to die. Observing Long Chiodao, who now seemed completely different from before, Xiao Tian thought, compared to that corpse heart demon, this guy is pretty righteous. Even his demeanor has changed. Xiao Tian has always liked positive people, so he comforted, don't worry, Mr. Old Dragon, don't get so worked up. Long Chiodao softly corrected him, Master Xiao, my last name is not Dragon, we, of the Holy Dragon lineage, are surnamed Dragon Mound. Hearing this, Xiao Tian immediately hugged him around the neck, so, Mr. Dragon Mound, this rule spirit is greatly beneficial to Zi Ruan. Long Chiodao continued to explain, the ancient human emperor originally formed these rules in the Holy Dragon relic, solidifying them with his dragon aura for protection. If a descendant of the human emperor comes in contact with this rule spirit, their supreme imperial physique will gradually awaken. They can inherit the true legacy of the ancient human emperor. What you have in your hand is this rule spirit. Hearing this, Xiao Tian still didn't plan to let go of the big fish. If the benefits are this significant, then would it matter if I take a bite? At this, Long Chiodao was left speechless. You really have to take that bite, don't you? Xiao Tian was already drooling at the thought. After all, this is a golden fish that can transform into a dragon created from some sort of rule. The taste must be extraordinary, right? Just one bite, a tiny one, shouldn't have much of an impact. Even if Zi Ruoyan finds out, she won't blame me. Just then, the big fish suddenly spoke. Daddy, please show mercy. Xiao Tian was stunned and looked around, not finding who was speaking. Long Chiodao, however, looked at the big fish with a shocked expression. You've not only become sentient, but also gained intelligence. Xiao Tian pointed at the big fish and asked Long Chiodao, you're talking about this fish? Long Chiodao nodded, yes, Master Xiao, I am indeed talking about it. He continued to ask the big fish, since you've gained intelligence, freeing me should have been a piece of cake. Wait, if you're so intelligent, how did you get deceived 
by corpse heart demon and end up trapping me here. The big fish was sweating profusely but spoke the truth. Well, I was bored. It's so boring here. So I just... Hearing this, Long Chiodao felt his heart skip a beat. What kind of reason is that? You hung me here for over a hundred years just because you were bored and in such an embarrassing position. A moment later, a calmer Long Chiodao told Xiao Tian, Master Xiao, with a great being like you around, the human emperor's descendant probably won't miss this rule spirit much. I'm a decent cook, so may I ask, Master Xiao, should this chubby-headed fish be steamed or braised? With a broad smile, Xiao Tian thought, this old man lives up to his name, quite agreeable. So he suggested, why not cut it in half? One half can be braised, and the other half steamed. How about chopping the head off and preparing it separately with chopped peppers? Long Chiodao immediately gave a thumbs up, Master Xiao, that's an excellent idea. The big fish trembled with fear and couldn't help but complain internally. I may not be human, but you guys are truly savage. Can humans even say such things? The next second, the big fish started to shake violently, emitting golden light from its body. Xiao Tian looked at it in surprise. What's going on here? The next second, the big fish transformed into a cute, adorable little girl in Xiao Tian's hands. The little girl looked up with tearful eyes and trembled as she spoke. Daddy, can you bear to eat little you or when I'm so cute? Seeing this, Long Chiodao was furious. This creature can transform? It must have had sentience for at least a thousand years. No wonder there have been so many incidents over the past millennium. It was you causing all the trouble. The girl had no choice but to explain. I've been awake for a short time, and there was no one to play with me. Please have pity on me. Little Yuer knows she was wrong. Xiao Tian wasn't really listening to their conversation, just feeling regretful inside. She turned into a human? That's really troublesome. Now I've lost all my appetite. In the end, Xiao Tian reluctantly put the girl down and sighed. Don't go around claiming people as your father. However, the little girl held her hands tightly together and looked up at Xiao Tian with innocent, wide eyes. But I want you to be my daddy. I'm an orphan, alone and miserable. Xiao Tian crossed his arms. Then why did you attack me earlier? The girl hurriedly explained. That was just my instinct. I am the imperial dragon energy of the old human emperor that gained sentience. My consciousness was still dormant before. But you're so powerful. Daddy, you even erased the will of the old human emperor. Now I don't have to be bound here and can be free. But I'm also afraid that someone will snatch me away. So, won't you be my daddy? As she spoke, the girl clung to Xiao Tian's leg, then lifted her head and looked up at him with a pitiful expression. Just like this dragon Mount Elder said, I can be of great help to mother. I can become the artifact spirit of the National Seal Jade Stamp. Hearing this, Xiao Tian felt a moment of contemplation. She's just like me, an orphan, alone and miserable, and she could be helpful to Zero Wan. Seeing his hesitation, the girl quickly continued her plea. Please be my daddy. Otherwise, every time I wake up, I'll be all alone in this dark room. Thinking back to his own childhood, dark rooms, loneliness, silence, all by himself in a confined space where traps could be triggered at any moment, Xiao Tian would never forget that feeling. With that in mind, he squatted down and gently patted her head. All right, having one more daughter won't hurt. The little girl cheered excitedly, repeating, I have a daddy now. But the next second, she suddenly kicked off the ground, hurling herself toward Long Chiodao with the force of certain rules. Caught off guard, Long Chiodao was hit squarely, almost vomiting up his last meal. Afterward, the girl pointed at Long Chiodao, who was kneeling on the ground and trembling with pain. Daddy, he wanted to stew me and steam me. It's fair for me to bump into him a bit, right? Xiao Tian was dumbfounded, but he's an elder. You, before Xiao Tian could finish, the girl interrupted, whether it's stewing or steaming, I could have died. I've already forgiven him for 90% of it. Isn't it reasonable to punish him a little for the remaining 10%? Xiao Tian scratched his head. Something feels weird and familiar here, but I can't quite place it. Where have I met someone this bratty before? Xiao Tian could only explain earnestly, even though he wanted to cook you, you were in the wrong first. You set this up on him, didn't you? The girl pouted and pointed with her little finger. I did hang him up as a joke, but it was for his own protection. If I hadn't sealed him off, the corpse heart demon would have devoured his spirit charm long ago. He wouldn't even have had the chance to talk about stewing or steaming me. Little you are pointed at Long Chiodao, looking furious. Long Chiodao paused and thought carefully, realizing she was right. After the corpse heart demon had grown stronger and tried to seize him, he was protected by a seal, and now he knew it was all Little Ewer's doing to protect him. With this in mind, Long Chiodao collected himself and respectfully bowed to Little Ewer. I misunderstood you. Thank you, Little Ewer. However, turned her head and hummed. The next second, she ran towards Xiao Tian, hugging his leg and secretly delighted. Daddy feels so comfortable. His aura can even stabilize my will. Choosing him as a father was a win. Xiao Tian looked down at the little darling at his feet and suddenly smiled. Little Ewer, how about changing your name? Little Ewer looked up. Change it to what? Xiao Tian muttered the name Little Ewer and had a moment of inspiration. How about Xiao Ewer? The little girl in front of him was beyond excited and nodded heavily. From now on, I'm someone with a name. Afterwards, Xiao Tian looked into the distance. We should leave this place soon. Two hours later, the trio were advancing through the void. Xiao Yuer floated at the height of Xiao Tian's shoulder while Long Chiodao carried a tray. Xiao Yuer would occasionally float
rode over to grab a fruit, offering it to Xiao Tian. Daddy, eat the fruit. Obediently, Xiao Tian took a bite and savored it. Somehow, it tastes sweeter when you give it to me. Xiao Yuer, you should eat too. Saying so, he affectionately touched Xiao Yuer's face. Then, Xiao Tian looked into the distance. I didn't expect the holy dragon relic to look like this from the outside. The scenery is truly amazing. It would be even better if we hadn't gotten lost. Speaking of getting lost, Xiao Tian glanced at Long Chiu Dao, mumbling in dissatisfaction. You're pretty useless. They say an elder in the house is like a treasure. The only time you're useful now is for carrying trays and cooling things down. Xiao Yuer chimed in from the side. Exactly, exactly. Long Chiu Dao gave a wry smile. How could I know? It's only been a few hundred years, and I can't recognize where I am anymore. Xiao Tian looked around. Well, there's not much we can do right now. We can only search slowly, but we should hurry up. As he thought, Xiao Tian started to emanate power to test a new skill he had developed with the help of his daughter and a puppy called Biological Field. It allowed him to detect life forms around him. Immediately, Xiao Tian led the two and their island relic to rapidly dash toward a planet. He looked quite pleased. With my King of Hell strides, we should be able to find the way to the Eastern Flame Kingdom quickly. Eastern Flame Kingdom Emperor, even the King of Hell is after you now. You can't escape. Xiao Yuer held onto Xiao Tian's shoulder and yelled in awe. Daddy, you're so strong. Feeling the space around them collapsing wildly, Long Chiu Dao thought to himself, I've underestimated him. His body is incredibly strong. Xiao Tian then chuckled. Xiao Yuer, I may increase our speed to 0.005% of full throttle. Let me know if it's uncomfortable for you. Xiao Yuer was excited. It's fine, Daddy. I think we can go even faster. This is so fun. The next second, Xiao Tian accelerated again, tearing through the space around them. Now we're at 0.008% of full throttle. How do you feel? No problem. Then let's push it to 0.01%. However, Xiao Tian had just started to accelerate when a system alert notified him that they had reached their limit. Any faster, and their bodies wouldn't be able to handle it. Somewhat reluctantly, Xiao Tian said, already at the limit? Then let's just keep it this way. Little did he know, Long Chiu Dao was already white with fear, thinking, this is just 0.01%? You're joking, right? You're only 20 years old. How is your physical strength so monstrous? I didn't advance this quickly even if I started training in the womb. At this moment, Zi Ruoyan stood on the city wall, watching a large number of people migrating from the north, and far off in the sky, many figures were floating, staring in the direction of the imperial city. Then, Zhong Yang Ming came up to Zi Ruoyan and reported, Your Majesty, these are the last of the people from the north. Zi Ruoyan nodded lightly, I understand. She then looked at those floating figures in the distance. It seems the Eastern Flame Kingdom and the Astral Pavilion can't wait anymore. They're not even pretending to hide it. Luo Feng Yuan came up to Zi Ruoyan and spoke softly. In three more days, the National Seal Jade Stamp will fully mature, and the National Fate will fully coalesce. There's no need to hide anything anymore. Zi Ruoyan took the National Seal Jade Stamp from her storage ring. The gold light on it was even more dazzling now, and it emitted an imperial aura. Zi Ruoyan knew that this was what the enemies wanted. She could protect the Jade Stamp, but where was Lord Xiao? A month had already passed. Just then, Luo Feng Yuan's guard, the eldest, pointed to the sky and shouted in surprise, Eastern Flame Emperor, they saw in the distance a horse stepping on flames, pulling a golden throne that floated through the air. Seated on the throne was a majestic-looking man. Luo Feng Yuan wore a disdainful expression and said, Eastern Flame Kingdom's Emperor, that Eastern Gaoxian? Interesting. As an emperor of the Eastern Flame Kingdom, he doesn't sit in her own country but roams around. What a worthless emperor. After saying that, Luo Feng Yuan noticed that everyone around her had gone silent, and Zi Ruoyan and others were looking at her strangely. Luo Feng Yuan finally realized her mistake and turned her head arrogantly. I am a demon empress, not an emperor. Zi Ruoyan shook her head helplessly at Luo Feng Yuan's behavior. As an empress, she's probably the least reliable. The good thing is she's willing to learn. Even if you use harsh methods to supervise her studies, she's quite pleased. Just then, a humming sound came from the sky, and another figure drew everyone's attention. It was Zhou Tianji, the master of the Astral Pavilion. He leisurely walked over to Eastern Gaoxian and said, Didn't expect you to arrive so quickly. You haven't changed, still as flamboyant as ever. Zi Ruoyan glared at the two with intense anger. It's these two who created a false dynasty, killed my brother, and tried to control the fate of our family. Suddenly, Luo Feng Yuan touched her chin and spoke. Something doesn't feel right. Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji, both of them came here in person. Zi Ruoyan looked at her questioningly. What's not right about them coming here? They've spent nearly a hundred years planning. Isn't it logical for them to supervise things personally at the last minute? Luo Feng Yuan shook her head. They are outside the southern wilderness realm, and they won't be sealed off there. In that special area, there's only one entrance and exit. They should be guarding the door, not entering. Coming in could actually seal off their powers and add unnecessary risk. Zi Ruoyan also began to ponder. She knew Luo Feng Yuan was very knowledgeable about combat, so her analysis made sense. At that moment, Zhong Yang Ming hesitated for a moment but couldn't help but speak. If we go by Her Majesty Luo's words, Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji 
Xinji must have other plans. I dare to guess that their scheme isn't solely aimed at your national fate. Zi Ruoyan's heart skipped a beat, and she unconsciously clenched her fists. Not just the national fate, the eldest interjected. Based on the information we currently have, this plot is indeed aimed at the legitimate imperial national fate. Upon hearing this, Zhong Yangming suddenly thought of something. Your majesty, can you sense the prince now? Zi Ruoyan closed her eyes to sense carefully, but then shook her head. No, I can't. The slave ring is still present, which means Lord Xiao is alive. But I can't sense his location. He must be too far from us. Luo Feng Yuan patted her on the shoulder and comforted. It's okay. As long as he's safe, that's what matters. Once we settle things here, I'll use the power of the primordial demon kingdom to find Xiao. At that moment, Zi Ruoyan noticed that Zhong Yangming looked disheartened. She sighed quietly and reassured. I didn't realize your bond was so strong. You don't have to worry. He has good luck on his side, and nothing will happen to him. Zhong Yangming internally grumbled. I'm not worried about the prince encountering trouble. I was thinking that if the prince could come, neither the eastern flame emperor nor the strongest master of the astral pavilion would stand a chance. With just one punch from the prince, all crises would be averted. At this moment, Xiao Tian, along with Xiao Yu and Wang Chiodao, searching for the path to the eastern flame kingdom. After an unknown amount of time, Xiao Yu, who was sitting on Xiao Tian's shoulder, suddenly pointed to a space rift ahead and asked, Daddy, did we loop back again? Long Chiodao felt anxious in his heart. We're surrounded by darkness in this void. How are we supposed to find our way? What should we do? After a pause, Long Chiodao carefully asked, Lord Xiao, could we try taking a different route? I think I can somewhat recognize this part of the void and relate it to the routes I remember. Xiao Tian was somewhat surprised. This place is pitch black. How can you remember the way? Long Chiodao hurriedly explained, It's a little skill of mine. The old human emperor kept me close because of my strong spatial awareness and reliable sense of direction. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian suddenly shouted at Long Chiodao, How dare you insult the old human emperor? Long Chiodao was stunned for a moment, but seeing Xiao Tian's expression, he asked, When did I insult him? Xiao Yu, who was sitting on Xiao Tian's shoulder, swung her little feet and explained, Your words just now basically implied that the old human emperor is directionally challenged. That's why he kept you close, right? Xiao Tian affectionately rubbed Xiao Yu's head. See, my smart daughter figured it out in an instant. How can you be so dumb? Not even on par with a little girl. Feeling praised by Xiao Tian, Xiao Yu immediately made a cheeky face at Long Chiodao, who was dumbfounded. Is this Xiao Yu really the manifestation of the imperial dragon energy left behind by the old human emperor? Are you sure she's not Lord Zhao's illegitimate daughter? Subsequently, Xiao Tian could only take Long Chiodao on a few more detours. However, he noticed that the power flowing through this realm actually came in two types, one violent, the other gentle. It was like chewing gum with two different flavors mixed in. The taste was unique. If he weren't in such a rush to get back, Xiao Tian would love to sample it more. I wonder how things are on the Great Flame side. I need to think of a cool entrance, Xiao Tian muttered as a mask suddenly appeared in his hand. Looking at the black demonic face he had modified, he thought, I'll call you the King of Hell mask from now on. At that moment, it seemed like he thought of something and immediately commanded in his sea of consciousness. Puppy, pull up the cool entrance scenes from previous hosts. All right, master, please wait, Puppy responded. Meanwhile, in the sea of consciousness, Puppy was worrying, where do I have previous hosts? All my data is made up based on information from other system seniors. Suddenly, an idea came to Puppy. Why not reference master's cool moments on earth and combine it with other senior data? Puppy felt more confident. Yes, that'll work. Soon, various cool entrance poses were displayed before Xiao Tian. He watched with great interest, thinking, wow, these poses are really cool. They do look a bit familiar, though. Never mind, this one is good. Let's keep it as an option. Damn, why do I like all these poses so much? Inside the sea of consciousness, Puppy stood quietly to one side, watching as the soul of Xiao Tian, who was sitting cross-legged, showed a satisfied smile. Puppy also couldn't help but smile. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters. Meanwhile, at another location, a furious shout echoed within the Imperial Palace. What exactly is this Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion up to? Setting up base in the north of the Imperial City is one thing, but the Astral Pavilion even created a floating island, and the Eastern Flame Kingdom brought in a small city as their palace. What is this? Have they moved everyone over here or what? Luo Feng Yuan looked at the memorial report, her face filled with anger. Zi Ruoyan also slammed the table and snorted coldly. It seems like they want to enjoy watching us in our most desperate moments, don't they? Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan smiled. With so many people coming, they probably want to enjoy some sort of show. Their actions are indeed strange, but no matter what they're planning, we'll have to fight them sooner or later. We can just kill these scoundrels and be done with it. Luo Feng Yuan suddenly stood up, clenching her fists. In a head-on fight, they can't win against us. Zi Ruoyan looked at her speechlessly. You really are a rash empress. Unaware of Zi Ruoyan's thoughts, Luo Feng Yuan walked over and said with a smile, Don't worry, I'll make sure we have a good fight. Zi Ruoyan could only smile bitterly. Is fighting all that's on her mind? Just then, a humming sound echoed, and the national sealed jade stamp on the table began to levitate. The next second, the 
jade stamp emitted the sound of a dragon's roar. A golden light shone so intensely it almost materialized. This is it. The national fate is about to fully coalesce. Luo Feng Yuan realized that when the sun rises in the east, that will be the moment the innate embryo jade fully matures, and the national fate will be solidified. It looks like things are moving faster than we thought. As she spoke, she suddenly turned her head, challenging Zi Ruoyan with her eyes. Are you ready for a big battle? You're not scared, are you? Zi Ruoyan walked over to Luo Feng Yuan, who said I'm scared. They both looked out of the window together. At this moment, above the royal city of Great Flame, a dazzling golden light burst forth, transforming into a divine dragon that soared over the royal city. Many citizens hurried to the welfare temple to offer incense and pray to the supreme benevolent sugar baby deity, hoping for his protection over Great Flame. Just then, a streak of golden light, carrying a chill swept over the royal palace's main hall and appeared above the northern gate of the royal city. The moment she appeared, the golden dragon that had originally been swirling around started to encircle her. Zi Ruoyan was seen clad in golden armor and holding a giant sword. The immense golden light gradually diminished and finally spiraled behind her. Zi Ruoyan then spoke to the citizens below. You may have heard a lot of rumors these days and learned a lot of news. I can now tell you, it's all true. I can't promise that you will all be safe, nor can I be certain that Great Flame can win. Upon hearing this, the citizens below raised their heads, looking worriedly at their empress. Is it true that your majesty may not make it this time? Their fists clenched, wishing they could share the burden with their empress. Zi Ruoyan spoke again, but there's one thing I can guarantee. If anyone is to die, I will be the first. Do you know, your beloved prince once told me, the emperor guards the nation's gate. A monarch dies for the state. With a deafening shout from Zi Ruoyan, countless citizens flushed red and chanted loudly, long live the empress. Long live the sugar baby deity. A moment later, the first rays of morning sun shot from the distant east. The earth shook instantly, and the golden dragon let out a roar, then plunged into the national seal jade stamp. At this moment, the national fate solidified, and the innate embryo jade was fully matured. The national seal jade stamp instantly fused into Zi Ruan's body. Brilliant golden ice crystals, resembling dragon scales, began to gradually climb onto Zi Ruan's golden armor. The empress, shrouded in a golden cold aura, parted her red lips slightly. Her breath froze the space in front of her, filling it with frost. The next second, Zi Ruan's body shone with a golden light. She raised her hand and spoke solemnly. This is my great flame, and these are my people. If anyone dares to harm them, they will have to step over my dead body. Saying this, Zi Ruoyan suddenly lifted the giant sword in her hand, pointing it directly at the enemies outside the city. All the citizens below knelt on the ground, continuously chanting for their empress, praying to get through this crisis. Not far away, Luo Feng Yuan looked at Zi Ruoyan in the sky and laughed to her personal guard. See, worthy of being the woman that caught my eye. Both looked at each other speechless. My empress, what do you have to be so proud of? Your romantic rival is both beautiful and intelligent, outclassing you in minutes. Luo Feng Yuan grabbed the black scythe in her hand and excitedly told her guard, same old plan. Zi Bun lures the enemy openly, then we take our chance to strike. Outside the city walls, people from the Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion were all hovering in midair, staring down Zi Ruoyan inside the city, a standoff. A great battle was on the verge of erupting, yet in such a tense atmosphere, a full 15 minutes passed, and neither side had given the order to attack. The people of the Eastern Flame Kingdom and the disciples of the Astral Pavilion all looked curiously at their respective empress and pavilion master. Why haven't they given the order to attack? Aren't we here to seize the national fate? The national seal jade stamp is almost fully integrated into Zi Ruoyan's body. However, neither Eastern Gaoxian nor Zhou Tianji made a move. They weren't even looking at Zi Ruoyan across from them. Instead, they kept their eyes fixed on the distant green flame mountain. Both had only one thought in mind at the moment. Why hasn't that thing appeared yet? At that moment, a crisp shattering sound resonated in the sky of the bipolar realm. The barrier of this domain was directly broken through. A figure, resembling a falling meteor, descended from the sky. The newcomer was Xiao Tian, who had been lost in the void for a long time. Feeling the energy around him, he thought, this place is indeed different from the southern wilderness realm. The power of heaven and earth here can be absorbed freely. I don't even have to suppress my aura. How comfortable. Rubbing his shoulders, Xiao Tian looked at Long Chiu Dao. Your navigation skills are really not bad. Thank you for the compliment. He quickly humbled himself. It's little dragon's honor to be able to assist you. At that moment, sitting on Xiao Tian's shoulder, Xiao Yu were suddenly floated up. Daddy, what should we do next? Xiao Tian revealed a slight smile. Let's go to the Eastern Flame Kingdom and have a heart-to-heart -heart with that emperor. Saying this, Xiao Tian looked ahead, a unique rhythm spreading out. Thinking to himself, Xiao Tian decided to open up his senses a bit to navigate properly, so as to avoid going to the wrong place or finding the wrong person, which would be really embarrassing. But the next second, Xiao Tian was stunned. The vast imperial city was completely empty of people. Then, Xiao Tian, along with Xiao Yuer and Wang Chiodao, took to the sky, heading directly for the imperial city of the Eastern Flame Kingdom. The entire city seemed like a ghost town, eerily quiet 
and devoid of any activity. Items were scattered on the ground, but not a single person could be found. Seeing the fresh scratch marks on the walls, they deduced that the people of the Eastern Flame Kingdom's Imperial City must have been taken away by something from above. The citizens had likely tried to grab onto objects in their panic, but failed to hold onto anything. Long Chiodao closed his eyes to sense the surrounding energies and then spoke. As the guardian of the Holy Dragon Relic, I am very familiar with its defensive array. After probing, I found that the protective formation of the Imperial City is still intact. It has not been damaged, but was deliberately turned off. Hearing Long Chiodao's analysis, Xiao Tian, who was walking, suddenly stopped. He bent down to pick up a candied hawthorn from the ground, noticing the tiny bite marks on it. Let's go check other places, he suggested. The trio then ascended into the sky, surveying the entire eastern flame kingdom from above. Even Xiao Yuer couldn't help but ask, Daddy, this place is so weird. Why have so many people disappeared? It's as if they've all been taken away. Xiao Tian chuckled. Interesting. Lu Outian would never have imagined that the people he was willing to sacrifice his life to protect would all be gone. Suddenly, it seemed as though Xiao Tian thought of something. He abruptly changed direction. Let's go and see the situation at Astral Pavilion now. Soon, the three arrived at the headquarters of Astral Pavilion. Palaces dotted the mountain peaks, but just like the Eastern Flame Kingdom, the place was empty. The traces of people being taken away, and the deliberately deactivated formation were identical. Xiao Tian clenched his fist, puzzled. What exactly are the Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion up to? Meanwhile, in the Southern Wilderness Realm, Zi Ruoyan was frowning, looking at the two individuals in front of her. What are they waiting for? Why haven't they made a move yet? Zi Ruoyan followed their gaze towards Green Flame Mountain. Is there something there? Suddenly, a booming sound echoed through the heavens, and the distant Green Flame Mountain slowly began to crack open. It was as if something was struggling to break free. Shattered Earth was continuously connected by golden threads, and an aura of desolate battle intent shot straight up to the sky. An ancient ruin of a city emerged from the ground, slowly rising. Luo Feng Yuan looked puzzled. Is this a palace-type spiritual tool, and it's so large? A bodyguard next to her, known as Old Three, spoke in astonishment, and it's a fortress-type city for warfare. Judging by the flame emblem, it should be left behind by the destroyed Great Flame Empire. At that moment, the second pointed to the ancient city ruins and said, Look, there's a huge furnace in the middle of the city. Indeed, a gigantic furnace, taller than the city walls, was situated right in the middle of the city. The solidified battle intent was emanating from this furnace. Just then, Eastern Gaoxian, who had been silent for a long time, suddenly shouted excitedly, The war furnace is really here. It's a success. It really is. The ancient records and legends are all true. Eastern Gaoxian slowly began to speak. The southern wilderness realm is a very interesting place. I learned some stories from ancient times here. He abruptly turned his head towards Zi Ruoyan with a smile. Zi Ruoyan, your ancestor was one of the four emperors under the human emperor, the great flame emperor who was most skilled in the art of refining tools. This war furnace is your ancestor's greatest masterpiece from that era. Only those with the pure bloodline of the human emperor can awaken it. As Eastern Gaoxian admired the artistic furnace, he continued, Look, the remnants of the Great Flame Empire, the masterpiece of the Great Flame Emperor, have re-emerged because of your presence. At this moment, Lu Yin's brother, Lu Ashi, suddenly exclaimed, Brother, your sacrifice has led to such a great reward. However, the vice president of Astral Pavilion, with a furrowed brow, asked Zhou Tianji, It's good that the plan is successful, but why does the Emperor of the Eastern Flame Kingdom know about all this? Zhou Tianji stood with his hands behind his back, leisurely saying, I personally told him, so naturally, he knows. It seemed as if everything was reasonable, but upon hearing this, the vice president's eyes widened in disbelief. Our plan was to stimulate Zi Ruoyan's human emperor aura to reveal the great flame empire ruins in the southern wilderness realm. We intended to use the resources and wealth of these ruins to strengthen Astral Pavilion. Why would you tell Eastern Gaoxian about this? Doesn't this prevent us from making our move in secret? Not far away. Luo Feng Yuan was also quite surprised. War Furnace, the four great emperors under the human emperor? I know about the human emperor, but what about these four great emperors and the great flame emperor? I really don't understand. At this moment, Zi Ruoyan was looking at the ruins emerging from the ground and more or less understood what was going on. So, they want to use my aura to trigger these ruins, she thought. Zi Ruoyan's voice trembled slightly as she spoke. So, Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion, you spent so much time and effort to create a false great flame dynasty just for this furnace? A mere furnace? Eastern Gaoxian shook his head upon hearing Zi Ruoyan's words. Zi Ruoyan, aren't you curious as to why the descendants of the four great emperors under the human emperor can only dominate in a lower level world? Ancient records state that the great flame emperor had a hundred sons, all of whom were extraordinary talents. In a time of great crisis, to assist the human emperor in a counterattack, the great flame emperor created this war furnace. Once the war furnace was completed, the great flame emperor threw himself into it. His 99 sons also followed their father into the furnace. A hundred people, father and sons, sacrificed themselves to refine this furnace, just to give your ancestor 
the human emperor, the power to win. Listening to Eastern Gaoshuan's words, Zi Ruoyan suppressed the shock in her heart and asked, What exactly do you want to do? Eastern Gaoshian snorted coldly and waved his hand. Another furnace suddenly appeared, looking exactly like the war furnace. He then spoke, Although I've replicated the war furnace, I can't use it. Obviously, only the real one is useful. Moreover, not only do we need the genuine article, but we also need an extremely noble bloodline to ignite the war furnace. Whether it's the spark to ignite the furnace or the main material, it's you, the true imperial bloodline of humanity, the descendant of the human emperor. At this point, Zhou Tianji, who had been standing silently, suddenly made a gesture with his finger in the air. The war furnace began to wobble with his movement. Eastern Gaoxian then maneuvered the replicated furnace to hover above it. Immediately, the furnace lid was opened, and it tilted slightly toward the war furnace. Astonishingly, countless wailing commoners slid from the replicated furnace and were poured into the war furnace. Not far away, Luashi was enraged. Are those people? Are they commoners and officials? He incredulously roared at Eastern Gaoxian. Your Majesty, what are you doing? Those are the people and officials of our empire. The Vice President of Astral Pavilion, who was not far away, was equally shocked and asked Zhou Tianji, Vice President, don't you see? Among those being poured into the war furnace are many of our Astral Pavilion disciples. Zhou Tianji calmly nodded. Indeed, apart from our disciples, there are also our Astral Pavilion commoners. With that, he coldly looked at his Vice President and asked, would you prefer to throw yourself into the furnace, or shall I personally toss you in? Zhou Tianji's words left his Vice President frozen, his mind blank. Eastern Gaoxian no longer feigned decorum. He spread his arms wide and shouted excitedly, at this point, there's no need to hide anything from you all. Plundering fate may save Eastern Flame Kingdom temporarily, but what if we merge with fate, becoming one with it? As he said this, his expression turned ferocious. With the war furnace, what's stopping my brother Zhou Tianji and me from creating another Eastern Flame Kingdom with fate, recognized and accepted by heaven and earth? What's the loss if we sacrifice some commoners? At this moment, Astral Pavilion's Vice President Zhou Yisen finally understood their plot. He hastily ran towards Empress Zi Ruoyan, Great Flame Empress. I am Zhou Yisen, the Vice President of Astral Pavilion. Zi Ruoyan glanced at him and said, We'll discuss past grievances later. Right now, we should join forces to deal with these two beasts. Eastern Flame Kingdom's Prime Minister Lu Ashi also clenched his fists and yelled at the people behind him from the Eastern Flame Kingdom. Lu Ashi of the Lu family, even if it means rebelling against this dog of an empress today. The next second, the majority stood behind Zi Ruoyan. Zi Ruoyan looked at Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji on the other side. Anyone else who wants to live should join me against these foes. Eastern Gaoxian looked at this gathering of people with interest. In his eyes, they were nothing but a ragtag group. With a wave of his hand, he said, You think joining forces will keep you safe? The next second, ten uniformly dressed people instantly appeared around him. Seize them! Upon Eastern Gaoxian's command, Zhou Yisen and the others charged forward. A mere ten people want to take on so many of us? Zhou Yisen snorted coldly, brandishing his long sword and charging towards a brawny man in black. However, just as he reached the brawny man, the man suddenly extended his hand, landing a heavy punch on Zhou Yisen's chest. Zhou Yisen was sent flying instantaneously. Not just that, Lu Ashi, who had also charged forward, changed his expression dramatically. He too was sent flying backward, and both individuals collided in the air, almost simultaneously knocked off course. Lu Ashi was the first to realize something was off. Body cultivation. These are all practitioners from the body cultivation realm. Can we even win against them? In a southern wilderness realm, where everyone's strength is suppressed to a single level, body cultivators who are invincible within their own realm are practically unbeatable. A disoriented Lu Ashi didn't even notice that one of the body cultivators had already rushed up to him and was reaching out to grab him. Fortunately, at that moment, a flash of golden light burst forth. The body cultivator was actually sent flying by the golden great sword. Lu Ashi looked up in surprise to find that the person who had just saved him was none other than Empress Zi Ruoyan. Zi Ruoyan looked down at him and said, Is this all the spirit you have, Eastern Flame Prime Minister who has caused my father countless troubles? Your four great Vidras, who are feigning death under your command, are still fighting desperately. Don't let me look down on you, people of Eastern Flame. Lu Ashi gave a bitter smile as he picked up his long sword. He was actually being scolded by a young girl. How he had regressed. The next second, Lu Ashi's eyes sharpened. The final wish my brother entrusted to me was to protect the people of Eastern Flame. Brothers, attack. For our lives, we must fight to the death. In an instant, the air above the royal city became a battlefield. Zi Ruoyan fought three on one and even gained the upper hand. With her icy cold aura, she nearly froze the three body cultivators. Zi Ruoyan let out a cold laugh. So-called body cultivators. That's all you are. However, the body cultivators were both shocked and furious. What skill is this woman using? Why can't I use my speed and strength? Zi Ruoyan didn't notice that someone had quietly sneaked up behind her and was reaching out to capture her. Zi Bun, watch out. A sharp shout suddenly rang out. A blaze of purple flames roared past, and a sharp scythe directly severed the extended hand. Clad in black armor, Luo Feng Yuan,
Yuan appeared behind Zi Ruoyan in an instant. With a high kick, she sent the body cultivator flying, mumbling as she did. These body cultivators are really annoying. They still managed to be fine after all this. Only then did she turn back, her face full of disdain as she exclaimed, Can you be more careful? How did you not notice such an ambush? Zi Ruoyan, swinging her golden greatsword, struck down the three body cultivators, making them spit blood as they were sent flying. Only then did she speak with a faint smile. Well, I still have you, don't I? Luo Feng Yuan looked at the encroaching body cultivators, retreating as she spoke. It's funny that you're not worried I might deliberately not take action, just to have Xiao brother all to myself after you're dead. Back to back with Luo Feng Yuan, Zi Ruoyan glanced around at the approaching figures and said, You won't, I trust you. After she spoke, their golden battle armor and black armor clashed together. Both of them stared ahead, facing the enemy eager to strike. Well then, let this empress give you a proper lesson on how battle and war should be conducted. Is that so? Zi Ruoyan also shimmered with golden light, her body emanating a chilling aura. If it's a fight you want, then let's fight. At this moment, facing the body cultivators who were invincible within the same realm, everyone had no choice but to give it their all in a fierce battle. Led by Zi Ruoyan, along with Eastern Flame Kingdom's Lu Ashi and Astral Pavilion's Zhou Yisen providing support, they were barely able to resist the enemy's onslaught. The expression on Lu Ashi's face was grave. They all are from a lower tier world, body cultivators of the tyrant body realm. Zhou Yisen also wore a grave expression. The body cultivators from the Overlord Body Sect are all brutes, stubborn people who don't listen to reason. Meanwhile, not far behind Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji, a giant elder over five meters tall had appeared without anyone noticing. The elder, with a buzz cut and white hair, had his arms crossed and was entirely composed of bulging muscles. This man was none other than the sect leader of Overlord Body Sect, Yuan Ba. Lu Ashi looked surprised. Is that the sect leader of the Overlord Body Sect, Yuan Ba? Why hasn't he made his move yet? Zhou Yisen could only console himself. Don't worry, we also have a formidable fighting force on our side. At the same time, Luo Feng Yuan was laughing wildly. Haha, you guys think you're so tough? Keep at it, you scrubs. Swinging her scythe imbued with purple flames, she wreaked havoc among the body cultivators around her, leaving them in a miserable state. Ha ha ha, is that all you've got? Luo Feng Yuan laughed uproariously and domineeringly, although her face clearly bore some injuries. The three body cultivators beside her looked at her with complex expressions. This woman is even more twisted than we are. On the side, Zi Ruoyan, wielding an intimidating chill, cleaved a body cultivator in half with her sword. She then turned to look at Luo Feng Yuan. We were fighting side by side just fine. Why did she suddenly rush into the crowd like a madwoman? And she's getting more and more ferocious. The surrounding body cultivators are even starting to fear her. She can't keep this up for much longer, can she? Her movements are starting to slow down. She must be getting tired. Seeing that the situation was at a stalemate, Yuan Ba suddenly let go of his crossed arms and rubbed his fists. Looks like it's time for this old man to step in. As he spoke, he turned to Zhou Tianji. Don't forget your promise. Zhou Tianji smiled. The contract is set. There's no going back. Rest assured, sect leader Yuan, if this succeeds, it will benefit both of us. Hearing this, Yuan Ba wasted no time and charged straight at Zi Ruoyan. The air exploded under his feet, sending out a booming sound. Zi Ruoyan had just turned her head upon hearing the noise, only to find that Yuan Ba had already reached her in an instant. His horrifying physique brought a tremendously oppressive feeling. Young lady, I'm doing this for my sect. Please forgive me. Now die, Yuan Ba said, his veins bulging as he raised his arms to smash down on Zi Ruoyan. Fortunately, Zi Ruoyan's chilling aura slightly delayed his movement, allowing her to dodge quickly. She looked at the old man and smirked, If you want my life, let's see if you have the skill to take it. Saying this, Zi Ruoyan's imperial spiritual energy exploded, and a freezing chill emanated, transforming into countless ice spikes. When they hit Yuan Ba, they only left minor scratches. Seizing the opportunity, Zi Ruoyan lifted her giant sword, which was enveloped in an aura resembling that of a dragon. Ultimate technique, ice formation, she yelled. In an instant, a cold sword intent filled with endless frost rushed towards Yuan Ba. Yuan Ba just chuckled, a very good strike. Unfortunately, young lady, you're too inexperienced, and your foundation is too shallow. He punched down without dodging, colliding fiercely with the ice and sword energy dragon. The dragon shattered, and Zi Ruoyan screamed as she was hit by the backlash. Seizing the opportunity, Yuan Ba followed the falling Zi Ruoyan and raised his fist to strike again. The next second, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly appeared, blocking the terrifying punch. She was sent flying and collided with Zi Ruoyan, quickly stabilizing herself. Zi Ruoyan caught the falling Luo Feng Yuan and helped her to her feet. Then, somewhat annoyed, Zi Ruoyan asked, Why did you block his attack? You could have attacked him from behind. Why take this hit? Luo Feng Yuan explained, This old man has been cultivating his physique for too long. If you were to take that punch, you'd either be crippled or dead. It had to be blocked. Besides, he's a body saint, someone who has broken the limits within 10th level body cultivation. In the outside world, I could easily snap his neck. Unfortunately, we're in this special 
special domain, so it's troublesome. Hearing this, Zeroyan took a deep breath. If it gets too difficult, find a chance to escape. Once out of this special domain, they can't touch you. Luo Feng Yuan shook her head. There's no chance to escape now. They've probably already sealed off the exits. Moreover, I wouldn't run away. I want to crush this old man's bones. At this moment, two figures, one gold and one purple, clashed wildly with the body cultivation boss Yuan Ba in midair. Yuan Ba became increasingly excited. You two want to crush my bones? Since you don't know what's good for you, don't blame me for being ruthless. Yuan Ba gathered his power, creating terrifying waves of energy. With a fierce punch, the sky resonated with two explosive sounds. Z Royan and Luo Feng Yuan were instantly sent flying. A moment later, Z Royan stood up, her sword holding hand trembling so much that she could barely hold onto it. Luo Feng Yuan propped herself up with her massive black scythe, muttering discontentedly, This old man can't be killed. So annoying. Yuan Ba sneered, You, the holy demon empress, are so arrogant. Eastern Gaoxian, who had been watching the battle with his arms crossed, shook his head and chimed in, Did you think you weren't discovered when you snuck into the southern wilderness realm? Do you know how excited I was when I found out you had secretly entered this special domain? I was wondering how to coax you in, and you fell into the trap. Luo Feng Yuan looked puzzled. So you knew all along? Zhou Tianji, who had been calm all this time, revealed a smile. If both you and Zi Ruoyan are thrown into the furnace of war for refining, the benefits would be extraordinary, perhaps even doubled. Just accept your fate. Your resistance is pointless. Hearing this, Yuan Ba sighed. Little ones, in this special domain that suppresses your power, you're no match for me. Struggling is pointless. Your fates have already been sealed. Yuan Ba's eyes revealed a trace of bitterness. It's as if we body cultivators are bound by the laws of this world, doomed to live as nothing more than brainless brutes our entire lives. Zi Ruoyan merely snorted coldly. Suddenly, a red cloth appeared in her hand. This was the bridal veil she had placed on Xiao Tian's head when they were wed. Zi Ruoyan tightly tied her hand to the hilt of her sword with the red cloth, even using her teeth to pull it tighter. She then took a deep breath. You may believe in fate, but I do not. If you want to throw me into that furnace, you'll have to kill me first. Luo Feng Yuan also burst into a defiant laugh. You expect me to willingly jump into the furnace? What a joke. Today it's either you die or I die. Just then, the gates of the Imperial City were suddenly burst open. Zhong Li Suan, who was supposed to be guarding the city, led a charge with her daughter Zhong Ling and even Commander Lu Yen and a group of guards. Zhong Li Suan took the lead. Your Majesty, let us go into battle once more. For the protection of our great flame nation, we shall die without regrets. Soldiers, citizens, charge. No sooner had her words fallen than all sorts of people, from officials and soldiers to powerless commoners, burst out shouting and rushing forward. Your Majesty, do not fear. We are all here. We're all going to die anyway. We can't let these beasts look down on us. Zi Ruoyan looked at the scene, her eyes filling with tears. She tried hard to keep from crying. You all. Zhong Li Suang interrupted. Your Majesty, this might be our final battle. Lead us in the charge. If we are to die, let us die standing. Zi Ruoyan looked up at the sky, eyes fixed on the three distant figures who were smirking at them. Even if we die, we must take a piece of their flesh with us. Luo Feng Yuan laughed softly. I'll grind their bones to dust and swallow them. It's a pity, though. I haven't had the time to learn how to be a good empress from you, and I haven't had the chance to say goodbye to brother Xiao either. Zi Ruoyan sighed lightly, and then took out a token from her storage ring. In a sense, this is a good thing. At least he can continue to live a good life. Saying this, Zi Ruoyan packed away her last trace of weakness, hung the token on her waist, and stood back to back with Luo Feng Yuan. In unison, they declared, let's prepare for a fight to the death. Eastern Gao Xian, hovering in midair, watched this scene with a face full of disdain. Such nauseating sentimentality, fuel self-pity. In the end, you can't escape death. Zhou Tianji beside him let out a soft shout. Yuan Ba, continue, but be careful not to mangle them too much. It will make them hard to refine. Yuan Ba murmured quietly, I'm very sorry. I have reasons for having to do this. Everyone, take action. Just then, an abrupt voice rang out. A body cultivation disciple yelled, Sect Master, people on the side of the Seventh Elder are dying rapidly. Someone is entering, dead. The Seventh Elder is dead. What's going on? The Eighth and Ninth Elders at the second line of defense are also dead. All their disciples are dead too. Yuan Ba quickly snatched a communication token. Calm down. What exactly is happening? Are you sure? Those three elders were close to breaking their limits. How could they possibly be killed in this area where powers are suppressed? At that moment, a huge rumbling noise came from the distance and almost instantaneously arrived above everyone's heads. A robed figure, Xiao Tian, shot into the battlefield like a meteor, capturing everyone's attention. That man, he has arrived. At this moment, he hovered in the air, tilting his head slightly upwards, his whole body emitting a dazzling golden light. Everyone below was puzzled. Who is this guy? Why does he make such a grand entrance? Xiao Tian stood with his hands behind his back, slowly retracting the golden light, but remaining still, maintaining an enigmatic image. However, at this moment he was actually asking his system, Puppy, quickly observe everyone's expressions. Are they all stunned by how handsome I am? Puppy reluctantly chuckled.
world. Everyone looks shocked, but the special flame effects you used by harnessing the power of the heavens and the earth have already hit a billion points on the handsomeness scale. Hearing this, Xiao Tian cleared his throat a bit awkwardly. Alright, we can't get too distracted. According to the plot, they will definitely loudly question who I am. I must make a cool entrance and can't miss the moment to show off because I'm lost in thought. Thinking this, Xiao Tian expectantly spread his arms wide. Come on, say it, loudly, and without reservation, question who I am. Unexpectedly, Zi Ruoyan was the first to speak. You've come back at quite the opportune time, Lord Xiao. Xiao Tian was momentarily stunned. What did I just hear? I look like this. How did she recognize me? Xiao Tian nervously turned his head. Zi Ruoyan looked sincere. I thought I'd never get the chance to see you again. Luo Feng Yuan also looked delighted. Brother Xiao, you really do look good like this. Xiao Tian swallowed, his eyes turning towards Zhong Ling and the others, clearly saying, Did you guys betray me? The three hastily shook their heads and widened their eyes, looking completely innocent. We're being framed, Prince. Seeing this, Xiao Tian consoled himself internally. It must be a coincidence. They are definitely trying to trick me. If I change my voice, they surely won't recognize me. With this thought, he finally spoke. What are you two talking about? This king of hell doesn't quite understand. He used a seductive, husky voice. Unexpectedly, the soldiers and citizens below suddenly raised their arms and shouted, Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deity. The whole world echoed with their uniform and enthusiastic cheers. Standing nearby, Luashi and Zhou Sen stared dumbfounded at the scene. Is Xiao Tian beloved by the people, or do they hate him? Can living off someone else really make people this excited? Zi Ruoyan tried to hide a smile, while Luo Feng Yuan covered her face, struggling to keep from laughing. I can't laugh, or Brother Zhao's mood might collapse. Zhong Ling and Lu Yan, on the other hand, had already doubled over with laughter. Only Xiao Tian stood there, stunned. I thought I hid myself quite well. Okay, I can understand if Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan, who are closest to me, recognize me. But what's the big deal with everyone else? Have the people's eyes become so sharp? Thinking of this, Xiao Tian let out a somber sigh. Also, could you not shout such an embarrassing title so enthusiastically? Are you jerks having fun? Annoyed, he removed his mask. I even went to the trouble of refining this anew. What's the point of wearing it now? I thought of so many cool ways to make my entrance. This is infuriating. Resigned, he could only muster a smile uglier than a cry and waved at the people. Consequently, the shouts for Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deity got even louder. Zhong Ling was almost in tears from laughing. Sister Lu Yan, why do you think the people recognized Prince so easily? Because the title is not self-proclaimed or flattery from others. Lu Yan turned her head, full of emotion. It's genuinely what the people think. Their love for Prince comes from the heart, which is why they recognized him instantly. It's not that Prince failed to hide, it's that his radiance is too dazzling to conceal, Lu Yan added. Zhong Ling looked back at the cheering crowd. The fervor in their eyes was so genuine. Suddenly, she felt she understood, and the next second, she too clenched her fist and shouted, Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deity. Everyone had smiles on their faces, looking at their genuinely heartfelt smiles and true loyalty. Xiao Tian scratched his head and gave an awkward smile. Well, well, this is the place I have to protect, and these are the people I have to protect. With me here, nobody can bully them. At that moment, Eastern Gao Xian and Zhou Tianji were staring at Xiao Tian. Is this the useless individual Zi Ruoyan summoned from the body cultivation realm? Zhou Tianji gave a slight smile. It seems that this person from the body cultivation realm is not inferior to your overlord body set. Even the trap void turbulence rune formation couldn't handle him, could it? Eastern Gao Xian was equally unconcerned. Perhaps there was some unexpected situation, but it's just him alone. He can't stir up much trouble. Yuan Ba, don't tell me you can't handle this. Yuan Ba looked unexpectedly serious. He should be like me, breaking through limits to attain the title of a body saint. It won't be easy to take him down. Hearing this, Zhou Tianji wasted no words and extended a finger. Double the resources in the original agreement. Seal the pact. The next second, a blood red mark appeared on both their wrists. Heaven confirms, the blood pact is established. On the other side, Xiao Tian gestured for Zhong Ling to come over. Zhong Ling walked up to him, waving her hands. Prince, her majesty knew about you from the beginning. You can't blame me. Annoyed, Xiao Tian pinched her cheek. I know. Now, recollect what's been happening lately in your mind, and think about letting me know. Zhong Ling obediently followed Xiao Tian's instruction, recalling recent events. Very quickly, Xiao Tian was updated on the latest developments. This is insane, he thought. The people of Eastern Flame, those from the Astral Pavilion, all were brought here by their respective emperors and leaders. Lu Outian, you are truly ridiculous. The emperor you swore to protect has abandoned the kingdom you swore to guard. It's truly sad. Just then, a questioning voice came from the sky. Xiao Tian, Great Flame Prince, from which body cult
cultivation realm world do you come? Xiao Tian looked up and saw an old man with white hair leading a group of people in the sky. Each one was glaring at him with extreme ferocity. Eastern Gaoxian, standing next to the old man, suddenly sneered. Don't dare to speak. Are you embarrassed? It makes sense. You probably already know about Zi Ruoyan's bloodline, don't you? Do you feel you're not worthy of her? You're just a body cultivation with no future. Zi Ruoyan abruptly cut him off, shouting, shut your mouth. In my eyes, he is simply Xiao Tian. Luo Feng Yuan also looked icy, her eyes filled with anger. What are you? An emperor of the minor eastern flame kingdom. To judge my man, Xiao Tian turned his head in surprise, looking at his two wives' reactions. Wait, a body cultivation with no future? Look at their damn protective instincts. How did I not think of that? Seeing the two women getting angry, eastern Gaoxian couldn't help but mock them with laughter. Ah, you both seem anxious. If you're so angry, come and kill me. Zhou Tianji coldly interjected. They can't. They don't even have the qualifications to make us lift a finger. In this place, fighting against a body cultivation with the title of a body saint, along with a hundred rank 10 body cultivations, even a formidable individual like Prince Xiao is doomed. Let's guess then. Before he dies, how many rank 10 body cultivations from the overlord body sect can he take down? Zhou Tianji wagered 10. Eastern Gaoxian laughed recklessly. I bet 5. Yuan Ba in front of them just chuckled and rubbed his wrists. We body cultivators are made for fighting. Can't get angry. Anger won't win fights. Better to brutalize the weak. Take them down. With Yuan Ba's roaring command, he himself took the lead and rushed forward, his muscles starting to inflate violently. Zi Ruoyan, enduring extreme pain, emanated golden light as she stood in front of Xiao Tian, her face tense, urging him to retreat. You've just arrived, breaking through the spatial rift. You can't stop this body cultivation sect elder now. Luo Feng Yuan, also holding back her pain, added, Brother Xiao, rest for a bit and regain your strength, then come help us. As they spoke, Yuan Ba's fist was already crashing down from afar, continuously shattering the air and carrying the heavy pressure of a mountain, heading straight for the three. Lu Ashi, not far away, jumped in fright. This body cultivation sect leader hadn't even been using his full strength until now. Just at that moment, Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan suddenly cried out. Xiao Tian swiftly reached out, wrapping his arms around their waists, and flew them away from the spot. Their faces turned slightly red as they softly called out, Brother Xiao. Xiao Tian gave them a gentle smile. It's tea time in the afternoon. You should rest. Leave the rest to me. Already unsteady on their feet, Empresses Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan were flown back to the city wall by Xiao Tian. Zhong Ling and Lu Yan quickly supported the two empresses, their eyes filled with concern. Whirling his head around to face the culprits, Xiao Tian inquired mentally to his daughter Xiao Yuer, Sweetheart, are you ready? In the sea of consciousness, Xiao Yuer confidently gestured. Dad, don't worry, everything is prepared. Puppy, what about you? Puppy also responded, respected master, everything is ready according to your instructions. Hearing this, Xiao Tian roared, activate special effects. Putting his mask back on, he burst out with a rank 10 aura in front of everyone. At the same time, his entire body ignited with golden flames. Determined, Xiao Tian declared, today, I will protect my empresses. Accompanying his roar, invisible waves of force exploded outwards in successive rings. Super earthling, the next second, the ground beneath Xiao Tian burst open, and he shot into the sky at a terrifying speed. It seemed like a punch made with all his might, as he slammed it into Yuan Ba's chest. A deafening roar resounded. This body cultivation saint, who seemed invincible, was actually sent flying with one punch from Xiao Tian. Xiao Tian, hanging in midair and panting, stared intently in the direction Yuan Ba had been sent flying. To the onlookers, it seemed like he had used his trump card, but at that moment, he was actually thinking, I'm panting so hard, they better not say I'm slacking off. As expected, down below, Zi Ruoyan clenched her fists. Lord Xiao used so much force in that punch, he must have played his trump card. Luo Feng Yuan and I will have to protect him later on. Little did she know, Xiao Tian was internally complaining at that moment. Puppy, what are you doing? Good thing I didn't listen to you and set the power to 0.0005%. This 0.0003% already sent him flying. Wouldn't 0.0005% have killed him outright? Puppy quickly explained. I apologize, Master. The enhancement from Xiao Yuer's special effects contributed to a slight increase in power, which I failed to detect. From a distance, Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji looked at each other with puzzled expressions. What is this thing? Super Earthling? What kind of world is Earth? I've never heard that lord mention it. With a sigh, Eastern Gaoxian said with a serious expression, Be careful. Something about this guy doesn't feel right. Zhou Tianji carefully observed Xiao Tian, who was already panting after just one punch. This must be some special secret technique that allows him to surpass his body cultivation combat power. Let him enjoy his moment before he faces despair. Yuan Ba, who had been knocked to the ground, wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth, but still looked at Xiao Tian calmly. Unexpectedly, I get to see a body cultivation practitioner this strong, but is it worth harming yourself like this? Just as his words ended, disciples from the overlord body sect started to gather around, all looking at 
at Xiao Tian, who was burning with golden flames, with full combat intent. Xiao Tian pretended to sigh helplessly and struck a compassionate pose. Then, clenching his fist as if making a final decision, he shouted, For the people of the Great Flame, for the innocent citizens of Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion, and for my two empresses who have always supported me, even if it means burning my life and giving my all, I must do this. After finishing, Xiao Tian roared as if he was enduring great pain. His face under the mask started to contort. The next second, he suddenly appeared in front of a rank 10 practitioner from the Overlord Body Set. The golden flames burning on him became even more intense. King of Hell, claim a life. With a loud shout, Xiao Tian swiftly pointed his finger, lightly pressing it against the other's heart. The body cultivation practitioner's eyes immediately widened, clutching his chest in pain and spitting out a mouthful of blood before dropping dead from the sky. Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji were both stunned. What's going on? Such a seemingly effortless attack, and yet it killed someone instantly. Meanwhile, Xiao Tian moved like a specter, golden flames swirling around him as he continued to target the surrounding body cultivation disciples. Yuan Ba was so infuriated that he almost broke his teeth. Fight me! What are you doing flying around? Don't touch my disciples! Come at me! Yuan Ba roared while chasing Xiao Tian, but Xiao Tian completely ignored him. Instead, he kept maneuvering among these rank 10 disciples from the Overlord Body Set. Hundreds of body cultivation disciples started falling from the sky like dumplings being dropped into boiling water. From a distance, it looked as if Xiao Tian was using some kind of forbidden technique to annihilate the Overlord Body Set before time ran out. At this moment, with disciples of the Overlord Body Sect falling like dumplings from the sky, Sect Master Yuan Ba was utterly panicked. He kept yelling for Xiao Tian to stop, but of the hundreds of body cultivation disciples, only two remained. One disciple gritted his teeth and swung his blade at Xiao Tian, only for Xiao Tian to calmly grab his wrist. With a snap, the disciple's wrist and blade were both shattered by Xiao Tian. The intense pain made the disciple instinctively want to cry out, but Xiao Tian swiftly covered his mouth. Don't scream. I promise to let you leave without pain. If you scream, won't that make me a liar? Even the body cultivation practitioners were stunned by this tactic. Yuan Ba watched as his disciple was held in Xiao Tian's grip, roaring in anger but unable to prevent what came next. Xiao Tian shattered the disciple's brain. The disciple's eyes rolled back and he fell limp, lifeless. Immediately, Xiao Tian sharply turned his head to look at the only remaining disciple. In the next second, he appeared in front of him and delivered a flying kick. Then, Xiao Tian covered the disciple's mouth, making it impossible for him to escape despite his struggle. One hand kept him silent, while the other was placed on his forehead. As Yuan Ba rushed forward, Xiao Tian lightly twisted his hand, killing the last disciple on the spot. Yuan Ba was so angry that his whole body started to tremble. Xiao Tian, you're burning yourself up, disregarding your own life, just to torture my overlord body sect disciples? That's excessively cruel in my view. Xiao Tian, unfazed, casually brushed his hands together. One of my wives injured her hand, and the other her leg. I'm merely letting them suffer the same kind of injuries. Isn't that fair? Moreover, Xiao Tian looked around at the fallen bodies of the body cultivation disciples. I gave them a chance to repent for their sins. Sadly, they chose not to. Hearing this, Yuan Ba became even more furious, pointing at Xiao Tian and yelling, You didn't even ask them. How do you know they didn't repent? Xiao Tian used the clothing of an overlord body sect disciple to wipe his hands, then casually said, Do I even need to ask? At those words, Yuan Ba was so angry that smoke seemed to pour out of his seven orifices. Clenching his fists, he shouted, You're insane. I'll risk my life to tear you into pieces. You must pay with your life for my disciples. Yuan Ba's muscles swelled and his skin turned red as he exuded a hot aura. Xiao Tian spread his hands in a gesture of innocence. Some people are really strange. They think it's fine for them to harm others, but when someone fights back, they blame them for retaliating. Yuan Ba was at a loss for words, and could only reach out to grab Xiao Tian. Dodging in an instant, Xiao Tian said, You old geezer, your brain must be going fuzzy. With that, both transformed into two streaks of light, clashing in mid-air, emitting deafening sounds with each collision. Not far away, Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji were intently watching the battle unfold, concern filling their hearts. Xiao Tian's forbidden technique seems stronger than we anticipated. The Overlord Body Sect is almost completely annihilated. Zhou Tianji suddenly drew his longsword, focusing intently on the scene. We must find an opportunity to deal with Xiao Tian. We can't afford any mishaps. Eastern Gaoxian was restless, unconsciously clenching his fists. He thought about their previous plans. What a waste Luo Yan is. Why couldn't he have killed Xiao Tian? Below, Luo Feng Yuan was also anxiously watching the two fighters. Her leg injury had largely healed, but she was still worried. Xiao Tian is even stronger than I thought. What price did he pay to protect us all? Thinking this, Luo Feng Yuan tried to stand up, shouting, Zi Bun, are you ready? It's our turn. As an empress, I can't let my man do all the work. However, Zi Ruoyan gave her a look as if she were an idiot and said sharply, are you stupid? Sit down. Luo Feng Yuan was puzzled. Shouldn't we? The pill that Xiao Tian secretly gave us worked really well. She thought her might 
still be injured. Zi Royan was speechless. Didn't you see the message he sent? Didn't you check the communication jade token he gave us? Luo Feng Yuan blinked, completely perplexed. What message? Zi Royan face bombed. I really can't with you. While he was hugging us and giving us the pill, he also handed us a communication jade token. Check what he wrote. Embarrassed, Luo Feng Yuan stammered. I thought that was a love gift. Frustrated to the point of almost losing control, Zi Royan clenched her fist and yelled, Can you please use your brain instead of just your boobs? Luo Feng Yuan, whose thought process was a bit slower than others, finally pulled out the communication jade token Xiao Tian had given her. After lightly infusing it with spiritual energy, she began to read the content about a simple overview of the performance art, subsequent script arrangements, and the feasibility of selected research options. After reading it, Luo Feng Yuan quickly put the jade token away, mumbling to herself, So, I'm just supposed to pretend to be so beaten up that I can't take care of myself? I'm totally confident I can play the part of a seriously ill patient. The next second, Luo Feng Yuan's expression became serious. She suddenly spat out a mouthful of fresh blood, looking as if an old injury had flared up. With an astonishing look in her eyes, women truly are naturally good at disguising. She suddenly fell back, landing on her bodyguard, the eldest. Her shaky fingers reached towards the sky as her eyes grew blurry, softly calling for Xiao Tian. The eldest was speechless. Your majesty, you might have overdone the acting a bit. Look at the Great Flames Prime Minister Zhong Yangming. He's nailing it. Luo Feng Yuan turned to look and saw Zhong Yangming standing upright with a serious and solemn expression on his face. He was silently watching Xiao Tian's fierce battle in the sky, and even his tears were perfectly timed, silently falling. Luo Feng Yuan was flabbergasted. Look at his acting. That scene where he's watching Xiao Tian risk his life to save others is even better than my scripted performance. But just by watching Xiao Tian's fighting style and his life-risking demeanor, Zhong Yangming knew this familiar fighting style, this familiar acting skill, the prince is definitely up to something and he's fully committed to his performance. As he thought, Zhong Yangming stole glances at Eastern Gao Xian and Zhou Tianji beside him. The prince is forcing them to make a move. You two better not let down the prince's acting. Hurry up, I want to go back and cook something delicious for the prince. Just then, a tremendous sound echoed through the sky. Xiao Tian and Yuan Ba separated once again after their head-on clash. They floated in the air, facing each other. Yuan Ba's massive body began to shrink, his reddened skin gradually returning to normal, his body full of cracking wounds that were continuously oozing fresh blood. Yet, he continued to stare fixedly at Xiao Tian. Meanwhile, Xiao Tian was also drenched in sweat, his body covered in stolen blood. He was gasping heavily, looking completely exhausted. Seeing this, Zhou Tianji's eyes lit up. He thought the opportunity had come. Strike now! Eastern Gaoxian chuckled lightly. I've been prepared for this. I've been waiting for him to be worn down by Yuan Ba. With that, the two of them soared into the sky, accompanied by a burst of spiritual power, and charged towards Xiao Tian. However, the moment they moved, a mocking smile appeared on Xiao Tian's face. I've been waiting for you for quite some time. Xiao Tian quickly turned around, his hands moving rapidly to form a spell. His eyes filled with a resolve that looked like he was ready to face death. He shouted, Explosive Lobster. At that moment, the golden flames enveloping Xiao Tian suddenly turned crimson. An overwhelming aura surged toward the sky. Zhou Tianji's face changed dramatically, shouting, Not good, he still has energy left. Eastern Gaoxian was visibly annoyed. This beast is really hard to deal with, but at this point, there was no turning back. The spear in his hand transformed into a red dragon shadow, blasting towards Xiao Tian. Yuan Ba also raised his fist, gathering the last of his strength. Blood sprayed from his wounds as he roared, kill him. The three sides joined forces against Xiao Tian, and upon impact, a rumble reverberated throughout the sky. It seemed as though the entire sky had exploded. After the explosion, all four were sent flying back, spitting out blood from their mouths. Xiao Tian accurately landed on Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan. Both women immediately cried out in worried tones. Brother Xiao, Xiao Tian, who was propped up by the two of them, seemed as though he would pass away the next second. Little did they know, what he was thinking at that moment was, these two wives of mine are really lacking. Why are they just holding me and not saying their lines? Just then, a heartbreaking and touching voice rang out. Prince, what's happened to you? Lifting his head, Xiao Tian saw Zhong Yangming running towards him in a state of utter despair, even using spiritual power to amplify his voice. Xiao Tian slightly smiled. You really understand the situation. Zhong Yangming rolled and crawled toward him, crying out. Prince, what's happened to you? Xiao Tian coughed a few times and said with some difficulty. I used that ancient secret technique from the ancient god race's scriptures. Zhong Yangming gasped in surprise. What? You mean the legendary technique that burns your lifespan and soul? The last ditch effort? Zhong Yangming looked horrified, his body trembling and his face filled with disbelief. Then his expression changed to one of utter despair. Prince, you're being foolish. You've actually used that technique? That's trading your life. If you're gone, how will we live? Zhong Yangming even began to sob uncontrollably. One couldn't help but admire his loyalty. Xiao Tian was extremely pleased and winked at him. My personal chef is so reliable. With that acting, you must win an Oscar this
this year. Luo Feng Yuan and Zi Ruoyan also looked at Zhong Yangming with admiration, truly worthy of being the Prime Minister. Quick reactions, excellent performance, completely different from the script, obviously improvised, and yet so high quality. Well done, well done. Just then, a violent coughing sound rang out. Eastern Gaoxian, Zhou Tianji, and Yuan Ba were all seriously injured and wobbly, barely able to stand. Seeing this, Zi Ruoyan's face suddenly turned angry as she unleashed her aura, also igniting a golden glow. Brother Xiao, I will avenge you, she said, lifting a golden greatsword, emanating a chilling aura. She took step by step toward the trio. Do you think you can stop me now? Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji had not yet recovered. Facing Zi Ruoyan's sudden onslaught, both looked dismayed for a moment, and then gritted their teeth in the next second. How did it come to this when everything was going so well? Zhou Tianji was visibly angered. Zi Ruoyan, we may have failed this time, but you won't win either. Zi Ruoyan looked at them and slowly shook her head. I don't know about winning, but I do know you're going to die under my sword. Just then, a female voice abruptly rang out. Little girl, you're quite arrogant, aren't you? The space nearby seemed to twist, and the next moment, a figure appeared as if walking out from a mirror. She floated in midair. This woman was named Zi Xinlian, and had golden hair identical to Zi Ruoyan's. As soon as the woman appeared, Eastern Gaoxian and the others, despite their injuries, immediately knelt and greeted in unison. Welcome, my lord. The woman waved her hand to signal them to rise, but her voice was icy cold. You have disappointed the elderly. A mere body cultivator, using the ancient god race's forbidden technique, has left you in such a sorry state. The woman then looked behind Zi Ruoyan and said sarcastically with a face full of regret, it's a shame that this person is going to die. The elderly is quite curious about this so-called super earthling. She paused, her expression suddenly shifting to utter bewilderment. Wait, where did that Xiao Tian, who was supposed to be waiting for death, go? The next moment, Eastern Gaoshuan's face turned pale as he trembled and pointed behind her. My lord, behind you. The woman sharply turned around only to be greeted by Xiao Tian's cheerful face. Hello there, gotcha. The woman's hair stood on end, and the space around her distorted as she instantly increased the distance between them. She then looked at Xiao Tian, who had silently appeared beside her without her noticing. What's more, he seemed completely unscathed. The woman looked at him incredulously, her eyes filled with countless questions and confusion. Xiao Tian wore a mocking smile, so there is a puppet master behind the scenes. You've finally shown yourself, quite the secret of one, aren't you? System Puppy also analyzed. She seems to be practicing the Tao of space. She can use the distortion of space to hide herself in a spatial layer for covert observation. I have now locked onto her aura. She won't escape or go missing. Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji also looked at Xiao Tian in horror, their minds in turmoil. Were we tricked? Was the one truly harmed by that intense collision just us? The woman, coming to her senses, twisted her head to look at Zi Ruoyan and found her to be utterly composed, and the holy demon Empress Luo Feng Yuan also calmly stood up, showing no signs of severe injury at all. The most outrageous part is Zhong Yang Ming, who currently appears as if nothing happened, as if he wasn't the one who was weeping earlier. This was all a performance they put on together. The woman clenched her fists and glared at Xiao Tian. You deceived me? This is impossible. The elderly was hiding in a spatial layer. How could you have possibly found me? Xiao Tian sneered. You thought hiding in a spatial layer would make you invincible? Unfortunately, you have too many flaws in my eyes. Hearing this, Zi Xinlian was bewildered. Isn't he just a nobody summoned by Zi Ruoyan using a summoning charm? What could he possibly discover? Xiao Tian crossed his arms and shook his head regretfully. I initially had no suspicions that someone else was behind them. Then, Xiao Tian suddenly pointed to the war furnace above, shouting angrily. It wasn't until I saw that the war furnace was filled with commoners captured by the Eastern Flame Kingdom and the Astral Pavilion that I understood. You were exploiting my kindness to force me to act. Woman, you've definitely set your sights on me. But unfortunately, you're playing with fire. Xiao Tian spoke earnestly, filled with righteous indignation. But Zi Xinlian was utterly baffled. Where did you get that idea? I didn't think highly of you before. Xiao Tian, not noticing her expression, continued analyzing on his own. You must have gathered intelligence and realized my strength. You wanted to study me and later found out that I can't stand to see commoners suffer, so you used the lives of commoners to threaten me. Unfortunately for you, I turned the tables and drew you out with an excellent performance. At this point, Xiao Tian turned around and pointed excitedly at her. It's really unfortunate that your sinister intentions have exposed you. Before the inside of my penetrating mind that sees through all, all darkness and evil will have nowhere to hide. As soon as Xiao Tian's words fell, the commoners nearby all began to clap enthusiastically. Although they didn't understand what Xiao Tian was saying. Seeing him accuse the bad woman with such flair and charisma was enough for them. Clapping is the right thing to do. Beside him, Zhong Yang Ming rubbed his forehead, internally speechless. He knew that the prince's old habit had acted up again. Finally, Zi Xinlian could no longer contain herself. Clenching her fists, she yelled, Stop talking nonsense. I, the elderly, have no interest in you. In her view, this man must be crazy. Why would she waste time focusing on him? However, Xiao Tian couldn't help but shake his head, wagging his index finger. Don't try to dodge it. Look at the angry corner of your mouth.
yourself. Can't accept the reality that your long concocted plans were exposed by me. At that moment, Eastern Gao Xian below suddenly pointed at Xiao Tian and shouted angrily, Xiao Tian, don't be delusional. You're just a body cultivation with no future. You could never catch the eye of an empress. Xiao Tian thought that Eastern Gao Xian was just being irresponsible. You're an emperor for heaven's sake. How can you lie without even blushing? This is disappointing. Eastern Gao Xian was so angered that she was shaking all over and couldn't think of any words to rebut. Xiao Tian, do you know what you're? Xiao Tian disdainfully turned his head away, interrupting. I don't want to talk to shameless people. Don't call me. Then he suddenly looked toward Zhou Tianji on the side. You're quite ugly. Don't talk to me. I won't entertain you. Zhou Tianji was stunned for a moment. His face, which was calm just a moment ago, twisted in anger. This guy is infuriating. I didn't even want to talk to him. And also, how am I ugly? Eastern Gao Xian was grinding her teeth. If he could beat him, he would have shown him by now. As for Yuan Ba standing behind him, he felt even worse. Why is he only talking about them? What about me? Does he look down on me? Do I have no presence at all? At that moment, Zi Xinlian waved her little hand. Stop wasting time talking to him. The holy dragon relic is more important. Elderly, deal with this Xiao Tian. The rest of you take action now. Luo Feng Yuan's expression changed. I didn't expect their real aim to be the holy dragon relic. How many more secrets are behind all this? Zi Ruoyan was confused. What is the holy dragon relic? Is it important? Xiao Tian had the most significant reaction when he heard about the holy dragon relic. He couldn't help but inhale sharply, pointing at Zi Xinlian and exclaiming, What? Holy dragon relic? Woman, your scheming is terrifying. So, Lu Outyan using the trap void turbulence rune formation was all your plan. Zi Xinlian was almost at her wit's end. What are you babbling about now? Making wild guesses without evidence? The next second, Xiao Tian pulled out a miniaturized holy dragon relic from his system space. You want evidence? Here it is. The holy dragon relic is right here. This is the biggest evidence. You manipulated Lu Outyan to take me to the holy dragon relic, and then used my power to bring the holy dragon relic back and hand it over right in front of you. You're truly malicious. A woman's heart is most venomous. Zi Xinlian was left speechless and dumbfounded. But the biggest shock was because she could clearly feel that the miniaturized object in Xiao Tian's hand was really the holy dragon relic. According to records, there must be a holy dragon relic near the war furnace, personally crafted by the human emperor. However, the holy dragon relic is still there, so she couldn't understand why Xiao Tian also had one in his hand. Luo Feng Yuan, who was standing nearby, couldn't help but exclaim, it's really the holy dragon relic, and it was personally crafted by the human emperor. Only Zi Ruoyan was still confused and asked, what exactly is the holy dragon relic? Does it have something to do with your bloodline? Luo Feng Yuan began to slowly explain its significance to her. Just then, because the holy dragon relic had come out from the system space, Xiao Yuer also flashed out and floated onto Xiao Tian's shoulder, chirping, Daddy, is the matter resolved? Long Chiodao's figure also gradually appeared. He looked around, his expression somewhat desolate, so this is the protective realm constructed by the human emperor at the cost of his life. However, when Luo Feng Yuan heard Xiao Yuer called Daddy, he felt as if he had turned to stone. Did I just become a mother without feeling any pain? Zi Ruoyan frowned. This little girl is actually a human form created by a spiritual body. Only Zi Xinlian, upon seeing Xiao Yu emerge, began to look excited. This aura, it really is the aura of the human emperor's holy dragon relic. Xiao Tian, you've really helped a lot, saved so much effort. As she spoke, Zi Xinlian waved her hand grandly, and the space around began to distort. Since the holy dragon relic has already come into Xiao Tian's hands, why bother staying in this protective realm? Why not come with me to the southern wilderness realm outside? As Zi Xinlian's words fell, under the distortion of space, Xiao Tian, Xiao Yuer, and Long Chiodao were all taken away by her. Not only that, even Eastern Gao Xian, Zhou Tianji, and Yuan Ba below were also swept into the space. The many commoners all looked up, unable to understand what was happening before their eyes. In their view, what kind of existence was that purple spatial distortion force? Luo Feng Yuan's personal guard, the eldest, who hailed from the foreign realms, immediately perceived the secret behind the situation. He quickly shouted to Luo Feng Yuan, Empress, Prince Xiao is in danger. This woman is likely of the 17th level and can harness certain spatial powers. Prince and the others have probably been taken to the southern wilderness realm. Once they regain their powers, I fear the odds are not in the prince's favor. At that moment, Luo Feng Yuan was still reeling from the shock of discovering that Xiao Tian had a daughter and replied weakly, I am aware. You all stay here and help rescue the people from the war furnace. I will go. As she said this, Luo Feng Yuan picked up a black scythe and turned to look at Zi Ruoyan. What do we do, Zi Bun? We've been cuckolded, haven't we? The next second, a thumping sound could be heard. Zi Ruoyan, with a face displaying frustration, smacked Luo Feng Yuan on the head with her hand, shouting, Would you please think for a moment? That little girl has no scent of flesh and blood. She's likely some kind of spiritual entity. And haven't you noticed that the little girl looks nothing like Lord Xiao? She's probably adopted. Is that so? Luo Feng Yuan's spirit lifted instantly. Zi Ruoyan looked both exasperated and amused. She sighed 
sighed in resignation and said, If you don't believe me, just ask him directly when you see him. Don't make wild guesses like Lord Xiao. The more you guess, the more absurd it gets. Yet Luo Feng Yuan looked puzzled once again. Was Brother Xiao really just making wild guesses? It sounded quite logical. After a prolonged silence, Zi Ruoyan finally spoke again. I've been thinking, perhaps the reality is indeed as Lord Xiao speculated. But right now, the most crucial thing is to go and assist Lord Xiao. Saying this, Zi Ruoyan dashed towards the north. Luo Feng Yuan hurriedly followed, trying to stop her. You can't go. You're not strong enough. You'll die. Unexpectedly, Zi Ruoyan turned around suddenly, her face resolute. Even if I die, I want to be by his side. In the end, the two women quickly vanished from everyone's sight. Zhong Yangming watched them depart and couldn't help but sigh. Her majesty has truly grown up for Prince Xiao. She even knows how to tell white lies with her eyes wide open now. Beside him, Zhong Ling and Zhong Li Suan approached. Do you think the prince will be alright? One of them asked. Yes. Once he leaves the sealed realm, he will be facing beings far beyond his level, added the other. Zhong Yangming gently patted his daughter's head, speaking with a light-hearted chuckle. Don't worry, the prince will be fine. I remember when he was kidnapped to the Black Soul Hall. I've seen the measures Prince Xiao can take. Even the divine dragons that enforce the rules of heaven and earth personally massaged him. Levels and realms are not a concern for him. Pausing a moment, Zhong Yangming added, In fact, if they were defeated by the prince here, they might have had a more peaceful death. Why? Asked Zhong Ling, a puzzled look on her face. Because knowing the truth and then dying in despair is too painful. Plus, before they die, the prince would mess with their minds, explained Zhong Yangming. Zhong Ling and Zhong Li Huang exchanged glances, mess with their minds? More than just messing with their minds, Zhong Ling's thoughts drifted to the time when the poisonous marsh elder was forced to slap himself to death due to the prince's manipulations. She couldn't help but silently mourn for Zi Xinlian and the others. At this moment, in a corner of the southern wilderness realm, the barren land is filled with tears and space everywhere, along with countless spouts of earth fire. It's such a broken world, the space above suddenly distorts. In the next second, several figures are spat out. Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji, who have left the Guardian Domain, are shouting simultaneously, Xiao Tian, they have clearly broken their seals, and return to their 14th level of cultivation. Zi Xinlian, who is beside them, has even reached the 17th level. She's staring at the distant spatial barrier, murmuring, I wonder what the story is behind the sacred dragon that sacrificed its life to create this Guardian Domain. I'm already at the 17th level, yet my level is still being suppressed in the Guardian Domain. It's hard to accept. However, Zi Xinlian spreads her hands and looks at Xiao Tian, hand over the relics of the sacred dragon. Here, without the protection of the sacred dragon's domain, you have lost all advantages. But Xiao Tian, who was brought here by Zi Xinlian, opens and closes his mouth, unable to hear what she is saying. The sound of thunder and exploding flames here is too loud. Xiao Tian feels a burst of irritation. What the hell is this? It's so noisy here. Even if I remove sensory restrictions, all I can hear is the roar. What is she saying? I can't hear clearly. Eastern Gao Xian, feeling his restored strength, is already somewhat impatient to give Xiao Tian a good beating. Why not just take action? Why waste time talking? Little did he know, Zi Xinlian gave him a cold glance, rebuking him in a frosty tone. Do you have a say here? Eastern Gao Xian quickly lowers his head to apologize. I'm sorry, my lord. I didn't mean it that way. In front of Zi Xinlian, he can only obediently listen. Then, Zi Xinlian looks at Xiao Tian again, shouting triumphantly. Face reality, Xiao Tian. A body cultivator is just a body cultivator, not making much of a splash. Better to submit at my feet. I'm very interested in your body. I'll allow you to serve me. Zi Xinlian's words left Zhou Tianji beside her stunned. What the hell? This old woman has taken a liking to Xiao Tian? Such a bewitching and cheap character. Even seducing our lord. Another person who was dragged into this, Yuan Ba, also shows a face of sympathy at this moment. This is our fate as body cultivators, Xiao Tian. Even if your physical realm is higher than 10th level, you're still useless in front of them. Little did they know, Xiao Tian is incredibly irritated at the moment. It's just too noisy here. While he is good at controlling his powers, controlling his senses in such a noisy environment is challenging. The next second, Xiao Tian suddenly shows a ferocious look and shouts, Can you stop making noise? Xiao Tian suddenly loses his temper and punches around him. The surrounding chaotic space shatters with one punch, and the whole world falls silent in an instant. Both Zhou Tianji and Eastern Gaoshuan's jaws almost drop to the ground. What the hell is this? Is this really a body cultivator? Floating beside him, Xiao Yu or quickly massages Xiao Tian's shoulders, her voice somewhat shaky. Daddy, don't be angry. Let Xiao Yu or massage your shoulders. Long Chiu Dao, who was previously enjoying the scenery, also hurriedly takes out tea and snacks from the holy dragon relic, comes in front of Xiao Tian and respectfully says, Sir Xiao, I've been negligent due to abandoning my physical body and the erosion of time. I forgot to prepare tea and snacks. My apologies. Xiao Yuer and Long Chiu Dao awkwardly console him, and Xiao Tian finally feels a bit better. The two sneak glances at each other, both seeing the fear in each other's eyes. Daddy Xiao Tian, this is too terrifying. Yuan Ba, who originally felt a kindred spirit, now 
Zhao feels the aura emanating from Xiao Tian, as if he is a mighty dragon, and he himself is not even worth an ant. Yuan Ba is completely dumbfounded. What did he just say? What is the fate of body cultivators? What even is a body cultivator, compared to the guy before him, who doesn't use a shred of spiritual energy, relying solely on physical strength, and who basically shaved the southern wilderness realm bald? What are we? Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji are shaking uncontrollably, feeling for the first time a profound sense of unknown terror. At this moment, Xiao Tian sips the tea brewed by Long Chiu Dao, enjoying his daughter's shoulder massage. Now that the surroundings have quieted down, his irritable mood finally eases a bit. He turns his head to the woman beside him. It was too noisy earlier. I couldn't hear what you were saying. Say it again. Zi Xinglian looks in terror at the area obliterated by Xiao Tian's punch, then quickly puts on a flattering smile upon hearing him speak. This mistress was just introducing myself to you. My name is Zi Xinglian. I was wondering, do you need a maid to serve tea? My tea skills are quite good. Xiao Tian motions for Long Chiu Dao to refill his cup, seeming somewhat surprised at Zi Xinglian's words. Why are there women everywhere trying to latch onto him? Little does he know, although Zi Xinglian is smiling, she is inwardly cursing Zi Ruoyan's mother. That lucky Shuaruyan, how can she be so fortunate? She runs away from her marriage to this remote place, not only meeting a husband with an awakened lineage of human imperial blood, but now also gaining a terrifyingly powerful son-in-law. Xiao Tian furrows his brow, looking around in confusion. Introduction, it was a bit noisy here earlier with all the fireworks, so I didn't hear clearly. Why don't you say it again? Hearing this, Xiao Yuer, who is by Xiao Tian's side, is not pleased. Daddy, don't listen to her nonsense. I heard her clearly. Zi Xinlian, who is about to speak, is preemptively exposed by Xiao Yuer, and her face instantly fills with bewilderment and terror. Xiao Yuer points at her and says emphatically, Daddy, this woman, she's lusting after you. Right, dragon mound old man? Long Chiu Dao, who is carefully pouring the tea, is startled by Xiao Yuer's words, looks up and sighs, his face full of resignation. My little ancestor, I'd prefer to be invisible right now. Why are you involving me? Ah, it's so hard being a dragon, but since he was named by Xiao Yuer, even if reluctant, Long Chiu Dao has to tell the truth. Sir, to put it simply, Xiao Yuer is right. This woman indeed wants you. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian stares thoughtfully at Zi Xinlian. This woman really wants to study me, doesn't she? She's interested in my invincible capabilities. Upon hearing Xiao Yuer and Long Chiu Dao's words, Zi Xinlian feels both angry and anxious. This darn girl, daring to ruin my plans. But then again, from what I've seen, he does have affections for those two women, and they for him. So, Xiao Tian should be a lecherous sort. With this thought, Zi Xinlian suddenly makes up her mind, pretending to speak sweetly. She says, Mr. Xiao, what your precious daughter said is not wrong. For an exceptional man like you, what woman wouldn't be moved? She has quite a bit of confidence in her own looks and figure. Xiao Tian sighs, and puts on an I'm so handsome, what can I do? Expression. What you're saying does make some sense. Excellence is hard to hide. Seeing his reaction, Zi Xinlian secretly rejoices, thinking she's got Xiao Tian hooked. Serving as a concubine to such a powerful man like Xiao Tian wouldn't be too bad. As she thinks this, she licks her lips. At this moment, Xiao Tian leans in closer, and slowly asks, I do have something I want to ask you. Your surname is the same as Zi Ruoyan's. What exactly is your background? Zi Xinlian lowers her head and smiles, seemingly somewhat helpless. I'm from the Zi family, and a descendant of the human emperor. I suppose you could say I'm family with Zi Ruoyan. Xiao Tian stares intently at her, asking again, if that's the case, what brings you to this southern wilderness realm? Upon hearing this, Zi Xinlian hesitates. She isn't sure whether to make up an excuse, especially since her relationship with Zi Ruoyan's mother is not good. Seeing her hesitation, Xiao Tian steps even closer, staring at her intently. Now, tell the truth. It has to be said, Xiao Tian at this moment, instantly charms his way into Zi Xinlian's heart. Her emotions are in turmoil, but she keeps reminding herself, no, no, I can't be infatuated. Since lying won't work, she decides to speak frankly, hoping to win his favor. I refuse to believe I can't charm him. Thinking of this, Zi Xinlian slightly parts her red lips, softly breathing as she lightly lifts her skirt, putting on a shy and adorable look. Mr. Xiao, this mistress will tell you everything. At this moment, Zi Xinlian is extremely confident. How could she not bewitch him with such allure? Originally, the Zi family, where Zi Xinlian is from, had a good relationship with Zi Ruoyan's mother's Shua family. Zi Xinlian also had a good relationship with Zi Ruoyan's mother. So, she was asked to come to the southern wilderness realm to look after Zi Ruoyan. But who could have thought? The moment Zi Xinlian arrived, she discovered Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji's conspiracy. Learning about the heavenly furnace and the holy dragon relic, she couldn't contain her greed and took the lead in the scheme. As she speaks, Zi Xinlian suddenly covers her face and bursts into tears. It's all my fault. Seeing this, Xiao Tian remains unmoved, a glimmer of wisdom flashing in his eyes as he mutters. So that's how it is. Turns out you're my mother-in-law's good friend. Now, I ask you, how are my in-laws doing? Why didn't they come themselves? Hearing this, Zi Xinlian sighs softly. As it turns out, Zi Ruoyan's mother, Shuo Ruyan, and her family have a low status within the Shua family. If it weren't for the esteemed per
Purple Emperor awakening the true bloodline of the human race, they would still be exiled in the southern wilderness realm, and her children, due to innate defects, are not allowed to be brought back. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian becomes curious. Innate defects? Zi Xinlian nods slightly. Yes, this barren realm has incomplete rules, and living beings cannot sense the rules of heaven and earth. Shui Ruyan had no way to oppose the head of the Shui family, and thus she asked for my help. Hearing this, Xiao Tian finally has an epiphany. No wonder Zhongling and the others have such poor foundations. They were born in the southern wilderness realm, and cannot sense the rules of heaven and earth, lacking innately. Also, Zi Ruoyan's two older brothers couldn't awaken their bloodlines either. Wait, he suddenly thinks. How did Zi Ruoyan awaken hers? Well, we'll take it one step at a time. Xiao Tian puts away his puzzled expression, looking at Zi Xinlian with a cold face. Your willingness to confess the whole story shows that you have come to a clear understanding of your mistakes. Hearing Xiao Tian say this, Zi Xinlian's originally worried face turns excited. She thought she was finally off the hook for death. However, Xiao Tian continues. Then, you can go ahead and end yourself now. Zi Xinlian's expression freezes in an instant, feeling as if she's been struck by lightning, her mind completely shutting down. After a long hesitation, she carefully asks Xiao Tian, Mr. Xiao, are you joking with this mistress? Xiao Tian coldly shakes his head, his tone still firm. I'm not joking. Zi Xinlian quickly promises, Mr. Xiao, this mistress can serve you tea, pour you water, and serve you well. Enough. Zi Xinlian is abruptly interrupted by Xiao Tian. He points at Zi Xinlian somewhat angrily. Just now, I sacrificed my attractiveness and purposely faced you at a flattering angle, which should have pleased you. And now, you're actually still talking like this. You're such a greedy woman. Stunned and speechless, she really wants to ask, what do you mean I'm greedy and you sacrificed your attractiveness? Did you get it backward? Xiao Tian pays no attention to her astonishment, only offering some disappointed explanation. My mother-in-law initially trusted you and asked for your help, but you became greedy, leading to the death of my two uncles. Now, all I'm asking is for you to end yourself as an apology, and yet you're still trying to push it further. What has the world come to? People are malicious, morals have decayed, oppression is everywhere, schemes are everywhere. Zi Xinlian is left speechless, wanting to say something but not knowing how to begin. She can only silently comfort herself. Don't get angry, don't ruin your own health. Just then, Xiao Yuer suddenly points at her and speaks. Dad, she probably has even more malicious intentions. Xiao Tian turns to look at Xiao Yuer, with a serious expression he asks. What do you mean? Dad, think about it. She's been intentionally trying to seduce you since earlier, wanting to stay by your side. Her behavior is quite promiscuous. If our mothers found out, wouldn't they get jealous? And then, when both of our mothers give you a headache with their bickering, she would use her gentleness to trap you. How would you explain this to grandmother then? This is clearly her premeditated revenge. Xiao Yuer speaks with a worried look on his face, while Xiao Tian gasps in astonishment, feeling a sense of fear. No wonder they say women are as unfathomable as the ocean's depths. Only a woman can truly understand another woman. Xiao Tian sharply looks at Zi Xinlian, pointing at her and indignantly shouting, Moreover, my daughter is not even a full-fledged woman. She's like one-sixth of a woman. So, one can only imagine your true intentions, which are probably even more terrifying. It seems you cannot be spared. As he says this, Xiao Tian's eyes turn cold. He raises his hand, ready to slap her. Zi Xinlian's face is filled with disbelief and resentment. Can both of you get any more ridiculous? I'm just trying to save my own life. Who taught you to have such wild imaginations? If someone said you two aren't actually father and daughter, I wouldn't believe it even if I were a ghost. Unbelievably, Zi Xinlian refuses to accept her fate quietly. She uses spatial magic to obscure her figure, and hides within the folds of space. System Puppy quickly informs Xiao Tian, Master, Zi Xinlian is now hiding in a spatial layer. I've locked onto her for you. She can't escape. Following Puppy's guidance, Xiao Tian soon locates Zi Xinlian's position. His attack automatically locks onto her. Then, Xiao Tian smiles slightly. Today, I'll play the role of a good person one more time. I'll give you a chance to repent and be reborn. Go reincarnate in peace. As he says this, Xiao Tian increases the power of his palm strike, aiming it towards the locked-on position. Within the space where Zi Xinlian is hiding, the layers explode one after the other. Finally, after a scream, Zi Xinlian is completely eradicated. Xiao Yuer makes a face at her. Evil woman, serves you right. Beside him, Long Chiodao suddenly recalls his own corpse heart demon. Before it died, it probably felt as frustrated as Zi Xinlian, right? Lord Xiao truly is terrifying. Now, the only ones remaining on the scene are the trembling Yuan Ba, Zhou Tianji, and Eastern Gao Xian. Xiao Tian turns his head to look. Yuan Ba immediately asks, is the upper limit of us body cultivators really this powerful, or are you just a special case? Xiao Tian sizes him up for a moment, then suddenly smiles. I have a way for you to break your own limits, to reach even higher goals, to become a thousand times more powerful than you are now. Yuan Ba is so excited that he's somewhat at a loss for words. Really? Is it really possible? Can you let me see it? Even if I die right after, it's okay. Xiao Tian shakes his head, very seriously tells him, no, you can't. At this, Yuan Ba becomes frantic. This is his life's obsession. He looks disappointed.
disheartened at Xiao Tian. Why? I just want to see the future of us body cultivators before I die. Xiao Tian, with a trace of anger on his face, retorts. What does the future of body cultivators have to do with you? You're not a body cultivator. You're just a bully who preys on the weak. You've been helping Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji to oppress the weak, all under the guise of breaking through the limits of the world. What kind of body cultivator are you? Xiao Tian's words hit Yuan Ba like a hammer, striking deep into his heart. Gritting his teeth, he trembles a bit. I, too, am working towards the future of body cultivators. No matter how hard I try, I can't break that limit. Saying this, he suddenly becomes emotional, tearing off his outer garment, pointing at his wounds and shouting, body cultivators need to keep breaking their own limits. You, who came from a higher realm, probably have no idea what I've been through to achieve breakthroughs. Suddenly, Yuan Ba's words come to an abrupt halt. Beside him, Xiao Yu er covers her mouth with her hands, eyes widening, unable to hold back her sympathetic cry. Daddy, it's as if Yuan Ba's words are choked off. Behind him, Eastern Gao Xian and Zhou Tianji also inhale sharply. Before them, Xiao Tian has already taken off his upper garment, revealing a muscular chest. Only, it's covered with countless scars, looking incredibly gruesome. Xiao Tian looks at Yuan Ba, his face calm and indifferent. You always say, this is the fate of body cultivators. But when faced with difficulties, you didn't rise to the challenge, but chose to flee. You gave up the possibility of advancing, reaching out to oppress the powerless commoners instead. That's the behavior of a coward. Saying this, Xiao Tian puts his clothes back on and continues. I know a young girl. Even though she lost both parents and had her arm chopped off and was forced to beg, she never lost hope in life. And you, you're not even as good as that little girl. Yuan Ba remains silent for a long time, finally smiling as he sheds two lines of tears, muttering as he shakes his head uncontrollably. You're right, I'm not worthy. Saying this, Yuan Ba suddenly lifts his hand. A frightening power gathers in his palm. The next second, he smashes his fist into his own chest, crushing his own heart. He chooses to atone with his death. Xiao Tian looks at the lifeless Yuan Ba lying on the ground, silent for a long while. In some ways, he's very much like me, someone committed to martial arts. After a long pause, Xiao Tian exhales slowly, turns to look at Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji, a signature smile appearing on his face. Why the long faces? Lighten up. After all, I'm not a bad guy. You don't have to be so scared. Zhou Tianji and Eastern Gaoxian can't stop trembling, their faces dripping with cold sweat. Hearing Xiao Tian's words, they can only muster a smile uglier than crying, muttering to themselves, Yes, you're a good person, just haven't seen a good person as terrifying as you. Xiao Tian chuckles as he wraps his arms around their shoulders. You don't have to be so tense. The main culprit, Zi Xinlian, has already been brought to justice. You guys are at best accomplices. Heaven is merciful, so I've decided to give you both a valuable opportunity. Zhou Tianji and Eastern Gaoxian exchange glances, forcing another ugly smile. Is this guy really that kind-hearted? Well, let's see. He is called the Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deity. After all, Zhou Tianji, with a glimmer of hope, carefully asks, Lord Xiao, do you think we still have a chance? Xiao Tian smiles and casually explains, anyone can have a chance to turn over a new leaf, especially the two of you. After all, what Zi Xinlian wanted was the Holy Dragon Relic, while you two wanted to plunder the national fate and exploit the common people. With such grave mistakes, how can you not try to gain everyone's forgiveness? Hearing this, both men suddenly feel that something doesn't quite add up. Cold sweat breaks out on their foreheads. This doesn't sound good. What does he mean by gain everyone's forgiveness? Xiao Tian ignores their thoughts, suddenly turning to ask Long Chiodao, is there a good way to make them unable to resist? Long Chiodao quickly nods, yes, his expression is very serious, even lacking any sycophancy. But as his words fall, a golden rope appears in his hand. This is binding rope. With a wave of Long Chiodao's hand, the golden rope flies out like a coiling snake. Before they can react, they're enveloped and bound by the binding rope. Immediately, Xiao Tian quickly points his finger, landing precisely on the two men's Dantian. Their Dantian shatters, and their cultivation levels rapidly decline like a receding tide. Xiao Tian nods in satisfaction. Very good, excellent. Then he turns to ask Long Chiodao again. If an ordinary person stabs them with a sword, is there a way for them to quickly heal and recover? Long Chiodao thinks seriously. It shouldn't be difficult. It's just a stab. After all, Xiao Tian ponders. What if they're stabbed or cut at intervals? Can they be kept in optimal condition? Long Chiodao considers this carefully. If the healing elixir is turned into a liquid, and the weapon is dipped in it before striking, it seems possible. Zhou Tianji and Eastern Gaoxian are almost frightened out of their wits. What happened to being supreme benevolent? How can you discuss such horrifying matters so calmly with this old man? Upon hearing that the method is feasible, Xiao Tian turns to tell the two, if this can be done, then you have your chance to repent, for your own selfish reasons. You've taken so many innocent lives, so let them take matters into their own hands. We will spare your lives. The two men feel dizzy and disoriented, falling to the ground in horror. What does he mean by let the common people take matters into their own hands? There are over three billion people in the Great Flame Dynasty alone, and with the Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion, that's at least 20 billion. If each person takes a turn, even if the old man can keep us from dying, 
our souls will surely die. Long Chiodao also realizes this. This would take too much time, Lord Xiao. It might even take years. The two men kneeling on the ground quickly chime in. Yes, yes. Whether we live or die isn't important. Don't inconvenience yourselves. Xiao Tian waves his hand, signaling them to calm down. It's okay. Take it slow. Redemption and turning over a new leaf is a long process. He then tells Long Chiodao, just for these few years, you'll need to work extra hard to make sure they don't die. Long Chiodao's lips twitch. He looks at the two with a pitiful expression. You've really brought this upon yourselves. At his gaze, the two men's emotional defenses collapse entirely, begging Xiao Tian to kill them and put them out of their misery. Xiao Tian shows a gentle smile. Really? You've been refining living beings, but never offered them a swift end. How can you have the audacity to ask for a quick death? Remember, what you need to do now is live on and atone for your sins. This is all for your own good. The two men tremble all over, utterly despondent. They suddenly feel that the cruelest words they've ever heard are this is for your own good. God damn it, this is for our own good. Shou Tianji and Eastern Gaoxian are tucked under Long Chiodao's arms, closely following behind Xiao Tian, and Xiao Tian, walking ahead, prepares to take them back to the Great Flame Dynasty. Just then, a surprised voice suddenly comes from ahead. Brother Xiao! Xiao Tian looks up abruptly, and the next second sees an extravagantly curvaceous woman, with a commanding aura crashing into his face. It's none other than the demon clan Empress Luo Feng Yuan. She excitedly pulls Xiao Tian into her arms, while Xiao Tian helplessly flails his arms in the air. This woman actually body checked him. Xiao Tian struggles to break free from this damned restraint, as he can't breathe at all. In his mind he's shouting, Someone save me, I'm going to die. Fortunately, at that moment, Z Ruoyan arrives and grabs the collar of Luo Feng Yuan's dress, pulling her away. Are you trying to suffocate him? The saved Xiao Tian gasps for air, his face filled with relief as if he's survived a calamity. Thank you, your majesty, for saving my life. If you had arrived a few steps later, I wouldn't have died at the enemy's hands, but at the hands of my own demoness here. Z Ruoyan looks at the uninjured Xiao Tian, and her worry finally lessens considerably. She softly reassures him, all right, stop talking, as long as you're fine. Saying this, Z Ruoyan glares at Luo Feng Yuan, always so careless, and you want to act like an empress? Luo Feng Yuan scratches her head awkwardly, wasn't I just too anxious? Immediately after, Luo Feng Yuan's expression turns excited, clenching her fists together as she asks Xiao Tian, brother Xiao, where is that old blonde? This concubine will help you blow her up. Upon hearing this, Z Ruoyan suddenly chops her on the head, her face full of anger. Luo Feng Yuan hurriedly explains, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about that old woman. Z Ruoyan, however, points to Long Chiodao standing behind her and laughs. Do I get the feeling you did that on purpose? Didn't you see these two unconscious people? Doesn't that mean the situation has been resolved? Luo Feng Yuan pulls a slight smile, squinting her eyes in an I don't care manner. You're so strange, your majesty. Why would you tarnish someone's reputation out of the blue? Seeing that the crisis is now averted, the two empresses, who had been fighting side by side, now start to lock horns again. Seeing this, Xiao Tian suddenly starts coughing violently. Both of you, wait a moment, he says before suddenly falling backward. Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan get a big scare, and quickly support him from both sides, their faces full of terrified expressions. Xiao Tian waves his hand and speaks in a strained voice. I'm fine, it's just overexertion. Although I didn't use the ancient god clan's forbidden technique earlier, it was still a form of my power burst. Though there are no lingering worries. I still need a few days of rest to recover. Sorry for making you worried. Z Royan quickly shakes her head, her face full of emotion. You've already done very well. You gave me a great surprise. King of Hell, Xiao Tian blushes, not wanting to recall this embarrassing moment any longer. Luo Feng Yuan looks at Xiao Tian with utmost admiration. Exactly, exactly. I never thought Brother Xiao could be so amazing. Could a body cultivator also be this strong? Xiao Tian immediately puts on a humble face and scratches his head awkwardly. Well, I just got lucky and found a small trick to break the 10th tier limit. Z Royan suddenly looks at the desolate scenery around them. Let's not talk about this now. This isn't a good place for chatting. Let's continue this at home. Luo Feng Yuan nods her head frantically on the side, her face full of a happy smile. Yes, let's continue at home. Xiao Tian looks at both of them somewhat surprised, and can't help but repeat their words. Go home? He's a bit stunned, as this is the first time in his life that he's heard these words. He feels his heart pounding rapidly, quite peculiarly. So having a home is such a wonderful feeling. At this moment, Xiao Tian leads everyone back to the Guardian Domain, returning to the Great Flame Dynasty. The citizens all burst into enthusiastic applause and cheers, shouting their thanks. Xiao Tian gives them a broad grin, waves in their direction, and shouts back, You're welcome. Meanwhile, within the Sea of Consciousness, the soul of Xiao Tian reveals a slight smile. System Puppy floats beside him, looking at him curiously. In the originally dull Sea of Consciousness, a faint glimmer of light suddenly appears, brightening the dark space a little. Puppy looks at the light falling onto Xiao Tian's soul, and a shallow smile appears on its face. Although it's just a little light, it's enough to warm things up, isn't it, master? The walls and fortresses constructed to defend against nightmare shards and negative emotions also 
suddenly expand to double their size. As if everything is moving in a positive direction, Xiao Tian returns to the palace, lying on his custom-made spirit stone chair, closing his eyes in relaxation. Zhong Ling comes rushing over with fruit, prince. Everything is ready. Without opening his eyes, Xiao Tian waves his hand. All right, you may go. Practice your skills at the side. It must be because you didn't practice diligently that you weren't able to contribute during this crisis. You all need to reflect on this. Zhong Ling goes to the side and sighs helplessly. It's not our fault. The enemy was too strong. Long Chiu Dao timely hands over a cup of tea. Lord Xiao. Xiao Tian sips the tea with his eyes closed, and instantly, a look of bliss spreads across his face. This tea is beyond words. Absolutely perfect. Long Chiu Dao hurriedly responds with modesty. Xiao Tian seems to suddenly remember something. Right. Long Chiu Dao. You served beside the human emperor in your past life, right? Did he run into any trouble? Long Chiu Dao shakes his head. It's been too long. As you know, I've discarded my physical body, left with only this incomplete and damaged spiritual form. I vaguely remember. It was a great catastrophe that nearly wiped out all the races. But with Lord Zhao's capabilities, when the catastrophe comes, self-preservation won't be difficult. Xiao Tian recalls when he killed an antagonist, who had said, the great horror that led a generation's great emperor to sacrifice himself is about to re-emerge. We must improve our abilities at all costs to survive. Don't kill me. I have a lot of information I can tell you. You dog. Xiao Tian fiddles with his cup and thinks. According to what Zi Xinlian said before her death, the great catastrophe will come again. What a coincidence. Do you think this catastrophe is targeting me? Long Chiu Dao is taken aback, his hand holding the teapot shakes, nearly dropping it. Though at a loss for words, he still tells Xiao Tian, Lord Xiao, you're so kind and righteous. I don't think anyone would harm you without a reason. Xiao Tian shakes his head in disagreement. That's hard to say. Since I came here, in such a short time, I've been schemed against several times and faced numerous dangers. If not for my little bit of brute strength, I would have been long dead by now. By the way, where's Xiao Yuer? Xiao Tian looks around, but doesn't see her. Long Chiu Dao quickly explains, she went to find the two empresses. Ever since she became the artifact spirit of the National Seal Jade Stamp, she likes to stay by the side of the two empresses. Just then, speak of the devil, Xiao Yuer bursts in, stops abruptly in front of Xiao Tian, and shouts, Daddy, they are fighting again. Xiao Tian isn't particularly concerned, and calmly asks what the reason is this time. Xiao Yuer says earnestly, they are arguing over who should be the chief wife. Z Empress says it should be whoever is smarter, while Luo Empress says it should be whoever is bigger. Yet her little face shows some confusion. Xiao Tian has to ask, what are you thinking? Xiao Yuer shakes her head in slight confusion. Daddy, why did Luo Empress say something about her being big? Hearing this, Xiao Tian, caught off guard, suddenly chokes on his tea, but can only laugh and tell Xiao Yuer, well, you're still young, you'll understand when you're older. Xiao Yuer obediently nods. All right then. Suddenly she turns her head toward the door. Mom is coming. Being the national sealed Jade Stamps artifact spirit, she naturally can sense Zi Ruan's approach in advance. The two women walk in side by side, sweat on their foreheads and expressions of dissatisfaction on their faces. Obviously, neither has gained the upper hand from their earlier argument. At this moment, Zi Ruoyan and Luo Fengyuan each sit on one side of Xiao Tian, sulking. Xiao Tian dares not move, when suddenly, Zi Ruoyan reaches out and grabs Xiao Tian's teacup, tilting her head back to drink the remaining tea. Xiao Tian is stunned. What is she up to now? Luo Fengyuan is so angry she nearly grinds her back teeth. She snatches the teapot from Wang Chiu Dao's hand, startling him, then takes out an empty teacup, and angrily pours herself a cup, her expression as if daring anyone to say she can't. Next, Luo Feng Yuan puts on a charming appearance, and coquettishly tells Xiao Tian, Brother Xiao, have some tea. Xiao Tian still dares not move. Luo Feng Yuan looks challengingly at Zi Ruoyan and laughs. Zi Ban, see, you still have a lot to learn. Zi Ruoyan snorts, rolls her eyes, and dismissively says, childish. Then she lies down on Xiao Tian, I'm tired. Luo Feng Yuan follows suit, lying on the other side. I'm tired too. Xiao Tian is squeezed between them, almost in tears. Can you not involve me in your argument? This is so uncomfortable. On the side, Xiao Yuer and Wang Chiu Dao are covering their mouths, stifling their laughter. Just then, Lu Yan enters to report, Your Majesties, Prime Minister Zhong has arrived. She barely finishes speaking when, Zhong Yangming bursts in, Your Majesties, this is bad. The sky has cracked open. Zi Ruoyan is confused. What do you mean? Explain. Zhong Yangming catches his breath. Just now, cracks started appearing in the sky in various places. People are panicking. Outside the Imperial City just now, Zhong Yangming can't finish. What a cracking sound is heard overhead. Everyone looks up in surprise, and lo and behold, a crack has appeared in the sky as well. Xiao Tian is stunned for a moment, then turns to Long Chiu Dao with a serious expression. What is going on? Long Chiu Dao opens his mouth wide. This, this. Xiao Tian interrupts with a warning. If you dare say you've lost your memory, Long Chiu Dao quickly thinks, the sacred dragon guardian realm is collapsing. This means that the sacred dragon's juvenile period has safely passed. Although you're not the sacred dragon, empresses, you are the ones this realm is protecting. Long Chiu Dao explains, but Zhou 
Long Yang Ming suddenly interrupts. No, Mr. Dragon Mound, may I ask you something? Go ahead, Long Chiodao invites. Zhong Yang Ming respectfully asks, Will the Sacred Dragon Guardian Realm switch its protection target in the middle of its term? It won't. Once the Sacred Dragon Guardian Realm is formed, it will not change the individual it protects. Long Chiodao answers. Hearing this, Zhong Yang Ming nods and turns to Zi Ruoyan. So it appears there is a problem with the Sacred Dragon Guardian Realm's protection of Supreme Emperor, esteemed Purple Emperor. Long Chiodao steps forward to add, Each Sacred Dragon Guardian Realm has different rules. Only the sacrificed dead dragon that created it knows the criteria for its disappearance. Xiao Tian interrupts. Could it be that father-in-law broke through a boundary in a secret realm? Long Chiodao nods. It should be so. Their conversation leaves everyone else in a stunned silence. Zi Ruoyan curiously asks. What secret realm were you talking about? Xiao Tian suddenly realizes he has been a bit too relaxed recently. He had forgotten to mention the matters about his father-in-law and mother-in-law that Zi Xinlian had told him. I don't know if I'll get scolded for saying it now, he thinks. Taking a deep breath to calm himself, he straightens his face and starts explaining. Zi Xinlian has a deep connection with your mother, and in order to get accurate information, I had to seduce her using my looks. Upon hearing this, Zi Ruoyan is literally petrified. What the fuck? What did I just hear? He seduced her with his looks? Luo Feng Yuan is also quite shocked and quickly rushes up to ask, Xiao brother, what did that old woman do to you? I knew it couldn't have been that easy to deal with a level 17 individual. Xiao Tian sighs. She saw me at my most handsome, and for a very long time at that. I even had to strike various poses and angles for her. He then shares the information he gathered. Esteemed Purple Emperor and Shuo Ruyin went into a secret realm to focus on their cultivation, aiming to rebel against the head of the Shuo family. They've probably already. Long Chiodao, who knows the whole story, isn't really listening. You're right, your sacrifice is enormous. You're such a good person. He thinks sarcastically. Zi Ruoyan just sighs. Is that it? Luo Feng Yuan thinks to herself. What a relief. I thought he'd done something even worse. Xiao Tian can't sit still any longer. What's with your reactions? I'm so handsome, and she looked at me up close for so long. She got such a bargain. Why don't you all care? Can I get some reaction here? Lu Yan suddenly smiles. Well, Prince, we've also been looking at you for a long time. How does that count? Xiao Tian dismisses it. Old ladies and kids don't count. Lu Yan's eyes turn red, nearly exploding with anger. Who is he calling an old lady? So infuriating. And I can't even beat him up, which makes it even worse. Zhong Yang Ming watches the scene and shakes his head in satisfaction. In his view, the prince is clearly changing the subject. He must have forgotten about the matter of their royal highness's parents. With that in mind, Zhong Yang Ming steps forward to ask Xiao Tian, Prince, although this request may make you uncomfortable, please try to recall what Zi Xinlian told you when you used your good looks to seduce her. Was it related to the Supreme Emperor? Hearing this, Xiao Tian gives a mental thumbs up to Zhong Yang Ming. Well done, heavy cavalry. You really understand me, as expected of my family chef. Subsequently, Xiao Tian puts on a face like he's trying hard to remember. Initially, Zi Xinlian mentioned that my in-laws went into a secret realm to break free from the control of the Shua family. However, they lost contact with the outside world while inside. Then he recounts the whole story one by one. Zi Ruoyan suddenly starts. Then her face fills with rage. This Zi Xinlian is nothing but a beast. My mother trusted her, and this is what she does in return. Luo Feng Yuan pats her on the shoulder to comfort her. Anyway, she has already been dealt with by Xiao brother. Consider it a comfort to your late brother's spirit. Zhong Yang Ming, meanwhile, is calmly analyzing. If that's the case, the situation doesn't look very good for the Supreme Emperor and the Empress Dowager. Thinking this, he turns to Zi Ruoyan. Your Majesty, regardless, we must find and establish contact with them. Zi Ruoyan nods in agreement. Exactly. We have to search for my father and mother. Moreover, we can no longer continue to stay in this protected realm. We must move. Upon hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan turns to Xiao Tian. By the way, Xiao brother, which world does the Zi family belong to? In which territory? In which Shue family are we talking about? Xiao Tian is momentarily stumped. Ah, this. He glances around, wanting to complain in his heart. I'm not familiar with this world either. Aren't you asking the wrong person? No, I have to answer in a way that hides my ignorance. So, Xiao Tian puts on a mysterious demeanor and says seriously, the Zi family descended from the human emperor and the Shue family that is in friendly relations with them. Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan is also stumped. What a good answer. Maybe you shouldn't answer next time. Seeing Luo Feng Yuan's reaction, Zi Ruoyan is somewhat puzzled. What's the matter? Shouldn't the Zi family with the title of human emperor descendants be easy to find? At this moment, one of Luo Feng Yuan's personal guards suddenly explains, Great Flame Empress, you may not know this, but in the primordial demon kingdom, there are 17 Zi families claiming to be descendants of the human emperor. Zi Ruoyan turns her head in astonishment, speechless. Are you serious? Another guard steps up. Even though much has been lost from that era, there is one thing that all races know. The human emperor was very amorous. He had 3,000 wives, each of whom was incredibly beautiful and captivating. Good heavens, Xiao Tian is dumbfounded. So the human emperor was really something, huh? Yes, and each of the human 
Roman emperor's 3,000 wives had dozens of children, Luo Feng Yuan adds with a smile. So in each realm or world, there are legitimate descendants of the human emperor from the Zi family, no fewer than dozens, if not a hundred. As for the Shui family, they should be descendants of the great virtue emperor, one of the four emperors under the human emperor. They, too, are everywhere. Xiao Tian can't help but roll his eyes. What a human emperor, and what a great virtue emperor. You guys really have good stamina. Meanwhile, in a very distant secret realm, various forces are controlling palace-like spiritual artifacts that slowly float in the void. A young man can't help but worry. I wonder how the young lady and the others are doing inside the secret realm. Hearing this, another man snorts. I really don't know why they chose to take Shua Ruyin and her useless husband with them. The young man quickly gestures for him to lower his voice. Be careful what you say. Shua Ruyin's husband has the bloodline of the human emperor. At the same time, inside the secret realm, a woman stands atop a mountain, fending off various attacks. However, waves continuously flow around her, as if a large sea suspended in the air is blocking the attackers. Another woman can't help but loudly question, how can you not support your family but instead assist that man? What on earth is so charming about him that you're so bewitched to protect him? Shwarian lets out a cold laugh. Are you out of your mind? He's my husband. Who else would I protect if not him? Seeing this, the man can only turn his focus towards esteemed purple emperor attempting to provoke him. So, he points at esteemed purple emperor and angrily scolds, hiding behind a woman. Do you even consider yourself a man? I'm embarrassed for you. Do you have any shame? Esteemed purple emperor simply ignores him, continuing to eat his divine flame vermilion fruit. The woman, seeing this, becomes even more frustrated. You're a practitioner of the ice path. Why are you eating so enthusiastically? Suddenly, esteemed purple emperor retorts while chewing on the fruit. How much is face worth these days? Fine. I have no shame. I live off a woman. What are you going to do about it? Not satisfied? Then find one for yourself. He grows increasingly irate. If I hadn't been trapped in a turtle shell since I was young, I would have destroyed you wastes long ago. Having said this, esteemed purple emperor swallows the divine flame vermilion fruit. The next second, he actually breaks through to the next realm. Looking at everyone present, esteemed purple emperor snorts in his heart. Such a bunch of spoiled wastes. I must become stronger and take control of my own destiny, rescuing my in-laws from the Shua family, and then we can go back and find our children as a whole family. Shua Rian looks back at her husband, grips her spear tightly, and mutters, my husband, grow stronger quickly. Who knows how our children are doing? Saying this, Shua Rian picks up her weapon and charges at the two people. Meanwhile, in the Great Flame Dynasty, Long Chiu Dao is still narrating. In that era, humanity was declining. The human emperor's intention was to leave behind strong bloodlines that could at least hold up a piece of sky when they grew up. He didn't expect the result to be too effective. The three people listening feel awkward, so the biggest obstacle to the empress finding her parents is that their ancestor, the human emperor, had too many offspring. Long Chiu Dao slaps his head, trying to recall the past. Back then, there was no title of human emperor. He was just a powerful individual among humans. But what was the big war about? Was it related to the great catastrophe? I really can't remember. Seeing this, Xiao Tian shows a helpless expression. Fine, if your memory isn't working, stop slapping your head. You might break it before you remember anything. Long Chiu Dao can only give an awkward smile to cover up his embarrassment. At this moment, Zhong Yang Ming suddenly stands up, spreads his hands, and says, we definitely have to find the Supreme Emperor and the Empress Dowager. Although it's like finding a needle in a haystack, we can still try. Turning to look at Zi Ruoyan, Zhong Yang Ming adds, your majesty, the most pressing matter at hand is that this protective domain is about to shatter. What should we do about the common people? Zi Ruoyan lowers her head in deep thought. After a long pause, she suddenly looks at Luo Feng Yuan. Why not use the war furnace to evacuate everyone? Luo Feng Yuan shakes her head. That won't work. It's not big enough. We might end up crushing people. Long Chiu Dao strokes his beard, muttering to himself, the holy dragon relic has its own world inside where we could take the people. There might not be enough time. It's too rushed. He looks up at the sky, noting the changes. This protective domain will likely shatter in a few days. Zi Ruoyan grows anxious, sweat dripping down. A few days? That's way too tight. Dragon Mound Elder, is there really no other way? Just then, Xiao Tian suddenly speaks with excitement. Wait, I have a solution. Zi Ruoyan looks at him with a worried face. Lord Xiao, you haven't recovered from your injuries. Let's think of another way. Don't harm yourself. Xiao Tian smiles, an extremely satisfied smile. Your Majesty, are you worried about me? The moment he says this, Zi Ruoyan blushes and stammers, unable to speak. Luo Feng Yuan takes the opportunity to interrupt. Brother Xiao, the Great Flame Empress is only worried about the people. How could she worry about? Her words are cut off as Zi Ruoyan covers her mouth to prevent her from continuing. Zi Ruoyan defends herself. I'm not worried. I just can't bear it. Xiao Tian stares at his first wife. This occasionally Tsundra Empress. Is she trying to aggressively flirt now? How interesting. Because the protective domain is about to break, Xiao Tian thinks of a way to protect the people. However, Zi Ruoyan assumes he'll have to burn his life force to do it. Don't worry. I'm just offering a suggestion. Using a tool. The main person who will act is Long Chiu 
Bao. Xiao Tian reassures her. Hearing this, Zi Ruoyan, while still covering Luo Feng Yuan's mouth, turns to Long Chiu Dao. Then I'll have to trouble Elder Dragon Mound. Please keep an eye on Lord Xiao and make sure he doesn't act recklessly. Long Chiu Dao smiles and nods at Zi Ruoyan. You are the existence among the human emperor's descendants who awakened the true human emperor bloodline. You don't have to be so polite with an old man like me. Zi Ruoyan shakes her head earnestly. You're an elder. No need for modesty. Lord Xiao will be in your care. Long Chiu Dao feels awkward. You should be telling him to watch out for me, not the other way around. But rest assured, Xiao Tian waves at everyone, then we'll be going. Before leaving, he doesn't forget to pat Xiao Yuer's head. Stay and play with your mothers. Daddy has some important things to do. Xiao Yuer, who was laughing at Long Chiu Dao's antics a moment ago, obediently nods her head when her dad speaks. Okay. Immediately, Xiao Tian and Long Chiu Dao turn into two streaks of light shooting into the sky. Only after they've disappeared from sight does Zi Ruoyan turn to Luo Feng Yuan. Luo Feng Yuan points at Zi Ruoyan, angrily questioning, You're cheating. Zi Ruoyan chuckles softly and pours herself a cup of tea. How can this be considered cheating? It's fair competition. Perfectly reasonable. Luo Feng Yuan is infuriated but quickly changes her expression to one of smugness. Just now, I fed brother Xiao water. Can you do that? Zi Ruoyan coldly glances at her, childish. Zi Ruoyan then tells Zhong Yang Ming, regardless of whatever method Lord Xiao has thought of, proceed with the existing plans. Try to arrange for the citizens to pack their belongings and move into the fortified structures. Zhong Yang Ming bows. Your Majesty, rest assured, we are already doing that. Luo Feng Yuan looks somewhat worried. I wonder what kind of method Brother Xiao has thought of. I hope nothing goes wrong. Zi Ruoyan lowers her head in thought, recalling Xiao Tian's determined gaze. I don't think so. He was being truthful. He said he wouldn't burn himself up or use any forbidden spells, so he won't. Hearing this, a relieved Luo Feng Yuan starts daydreaming again. Come to think of it, Brother Xiao is really amazing. A body cultivator with such incredible power, I wonder just how powerful he is. The eldest, one of the personal guards, suddenly chimes in. I've heard that some heavenly materials and earthly treasures can indeed help body cultivators break their limits. Their combat power could even compare to a 17th level. At this, Luo Feng Yuan excitedly pats her chest, revealing her grand plans. This empress is extraordinarily talented. Once I break through the 20th level, I'll find those treasures for Brother Xiao. I'll help him break his own limits and become the number one body cultivator in all the realms and domains of this universe. Zi Ruoyan takes a sip of her hot tea and casts a mocking glance. Oh please, with your intellect, I'm really concerned that you won't find any treasures and will instead get yourself in trouble. This matter is better handled by me. Luo Feng Yuan explodes, glaring at her as she grits her teeth. You're so annoying. Can you not talk about brains? Really? Zi Ruoyan sets down her teacup and reveals a mischievous smile. If not brains, then what? Should I say that a fool is sitting on top of your neck? Unable to win either in a verbal exchange or by yelling, Luo Feng Yuan finally loses her temper. Ah, you little bun, I'll fight you. The two immediately tumble into a playful brawl. Xiao Yuer watches them with a somewhat wistful look. Why do our mothers love fighting so much? Lu Yan crosses her arms, thoroughly enjoying the spectacle. Her majesty's combat skills are improving rapidly. Luo Feng Yuan's three personal guards, long accustomed to this, nod in agreement. Our empress is also making rapid progress. Zhong Ling let out a light sigh, so exhausting. But she had no choice but to continue her tedious standing meditation practice, while watching the two empresses fight to amuse herself. At this moment, Xiao Tian and Long Chiu Dao arrive at the deepest part of the storage area. Slowly, he opens the final door revealing his most closely guarded secret. Xiao Tian caresses a metal cabinet, unable to help his sentiment. I didn't expect to actually use this. Long Chiu Dao, full of curiosity, examines the cabinet. Master Xiao, what is this? Xiao Tian smiles nostalgically. This is a single soldier armor weapons arsenal, pausing for effect. Master level edition. Long Chiu Dao looks confused. A single soldier weapons arsenal? Never heard of it. It must be quite powerful, right? Meanwhile, Xiao Tian has already verified his palm print, slowly opening the cabinet. As the door opens, a hissing sound of gas emanates from it, revealing the true nature of the weapon's arsenal. Long Chiu Dao is transfixed, unable to suppress a gasp of astonishment. Xiao Tian is also excitedly looking inside the cabinet. The first thing he sees is a golden demonic mask, ferocious yet mysterious. Below the mask are a sword and a knife, each engraved with the phrases one sword to wealth and worldwide peace. There is also a faint blue electric current pulsating. Long Chiu Dao is dumbfounded. What kind of writing is this? I've never seen it before. And how can there be an electric current inside a metal cabinet? Xiao Tian laughs as he draws a knife from the cabinet. This is my weapon, black and white. With a gentle swipe, the knife easily tears a crack in the space in front of him. Satisfied, Xiao Tian smirks. Not bad. Truly worthy of being my weapon. Now, onto serious matters. With that, Xiao Tian gestures, and the sheath from the arsenal is drawn to his hand. He sheathes the knife 
his expression turning serious, and leads Long Chiodao back out. Long Chiodao keeps glancing back at the slowly healing spatial rift, shocked in his heart. This knife is too terrifying. Catching up with Xiao Tian, Long Chiodao suddenly asks, Master Xiao, you took the weapon, why didn't you wear the battle armor? Xiao Tian looks at him somewhat speechlessly, we're going to address the safety issues of the people, not get into a fight. What's the use of wearing that thing? Pausing, Xiao Tian then corrects him very seriously. Also, that's my former assassin's outfit, not battle armor. Long Chiodao is startled. Assassin's outfit? Considering its flashy gold color, how did you ever manage to assassinate anyone while wearing it? Xiao Tian thinks for a moment. I once had a friend who was into stealth and assassination. He was so good at hiding that he liked to hide in toilets, under beds, and in cabinets. As a result, he earned strange titles like Slayer of the Shitter, Killer Under the Bed, and Shadow in the Cabinet. Learning from that, I changed my method of stealth. I call it frontal stealth. I'd wear this cool assassin outfit with a mask and just eliminate everyone at once. Isn't that perfect stealth? With that, Xiao Tian suddenly gives a thumbs up, looking very proud. That's why my title is King of Hell. Long Chiodao is stunned for a moment, but finally claps softly. You're right, there's no flaw in your logic. Keep it up. Walking behind Xiao Tian, Long Chiodao suddenly asks, Master Xiao, how do you plan to handle this situation? Slowly drawing the impermanent knife, Xiao Tian says, since there are too many people and not enough time to transport everyone into the holy dragon relic, I'll simply cut out the space of the guardian domain. Can you pull it directly into the relic? Long Chiodao is taken aback. That's a bold and skillful plan. Of course, it's possible. If such a large space is cut out, it will be stable enough to be directly pulled into the holy dragon relic without any issues. Then let's get started. With a slight smile, Xiao Tian leaps forward, holding the impermanent knife imbued with a golden flame. Raising his hand, he lightly slashes at the space, and a spatial rift instantly starts to spread. The entire guardian domain seems as though it's being disemboweled and packaged away. Looking at his handiwork, Xiao Tian is clearly very happy. So many people are saved, and once again using the this knife is not for slaughter, but for saving lives. He thinks, I'm actually being a good person, rescuing countless families. Families? Xiao Tian seems to think of something and suddenly turns to ask Long Chiodao. Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion are now lands without masters. Wouldn't the captured people be happy to return to their homelands? Hearing this, Long Chiodao suddenly starts. Master Xiao, are you thinking of? A glint of wisdom flashes in Xiao Tian's eyes. Exactly what you're thinking. If I also cut out the territory of the Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion, will it fit? Long Chiodao's mouth twitches. After pondering for a long time, he finally says, Master Xiao, over in the bipolar realm, it's a normal dimensional world. Cutting out space there would be a hundred times more difficult than here. Xiao Tian reassures him as if it's a small matter. No issue, I'll just increase my strength by a hundred times when I'm cutting, right? Long Chiodao suddenly feels uneasy and cautiously asks, Master Xiao, if I may be so bold, did you just cut out that space using only 1% of your power? Xiao Tian blurts out, of course not. Relieved, Long Chiodao exhales. Good, good, you haven't shattered my understanding of the world. But the next second, Xiao Tian estimates and says, probably around five ten thousandths of my strength. Long Chiodao is instantly stunned, his eyes glazing over as if his soul is about to ascend. His understanding of the world has finally collapsed. Seeing Long Chiodao almost going offline, Xiao Tian hurriedly comforts him. Are you alright? I was just joking with you. After a moment, Long Chiodao, who has barely recovered, shakes his head wildly while laughing and crying. Master Xiao, no need to say more. Five ten thousandths, ha. He, Xiao Tian looks at Long Chiodao holding his head, acting like he's gone mad. Why can't Long Chiodao take the truth? Why did he break? I know how to kill people, but how do I deal with a mad old man? I have no clue. Or is it because I'm too strong? And after telling him, he went mad with jealousy. Xiao Tian speculates to himself and seems to find an answer. Shaking his head, he warns himself, better not tell the harsh truth in the future. Excellent men always attract jealousy. After a long time, Long Chiodao, who has calmed down, bows slightly to Xiao Tian. I lost my composure for a moment. Forgive me. Xiao Tian asks with concern, are you really alright? I was really joking with you earlier. Long Chiodao nods vigorously and stands close to Xiao Tian, smiling obsequiously. Master Xiao, I understand. From today on, I will be Xiao Tian's personal old steward. No one else can command me. Even if it's the human emperor or the prince, I belong to Xiao Tian. No changing that. Alright, as long as you're fine, Xiao Tian says. Walking back, let's go find Luashi and Zhou Sen. Long Chiodao pauses. Why is that? Xiao Tian smiles. Look, the southern wilderness realm is deserted. So of course, I can cut it at will. Bipolar realm is different. Other powers exist there. I'm a reasonable person. To avoid accidentally cutting into someone else's territory, I need those two locals as my advisors. Shortly after, in a plaza outside the imperial city within the guardian realm, Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Tianji are suspended on a platform, hands behind their backs and feet tied together, in an incredibly rare posture. The crowd below is buzzing, but the two hanging men have lifeless eyes, like walking corpses. Luashi tells Xiao Tian, their souls have collapsed 
collapsed. They're gone, but their bodies are still alive. Xiao Tian sighs deeply. It seems they still haven't realized their mistakes. They're sending me their final silent roar by collapsing their souls. Well, they were men of courage. Let's take them down and lay them to rest. Zhou Isen, standing nearby, quickly agrees. Suddenly, Xiao Tian turns around, looking curious. By the way, how did they end up like this? Who did it? Zhou Isen replies truthfully. It was ordered by Prime Minister Zhong. Xiao Tian's eyes widen in astonishment. Done by Zhong the chef? So, is it General Zhong who knows how to have fun or is it you, the chef? You two as a couple. Something's not right. After instructing that the two bodies be taken down, Xiao Tian signals to a nearby official. Young man, come here for a moment. Facing this hero prince of the Great Flame Dynasty, the young man hurriedly steps forward, his face filled with admiration. Prince, what are your orders? Xiao Tian carefully considers for a moment. I've thought it over carefully. Let's build them decent graves. Remember, the tombstones must be large enough to list their foolish deeds. Write it in the style of a self-critique. Then place a statue next to the tombstone, kneeling, so that the statues can continue to atone for their sins. Xiao Tian's face is full of compassion. Remember, the material has to be good. This is the only thing I can do for them. Hopefully, they will be moved in the afterlife. The young man is thrilled. Prince, that's a brilliant idea, making them restless even in death. They truly deserve it. He bows excitedly. Prince, I'll go and get it done right away. Watching the young man's elated departure, Xiao Tian feels both pleased and content. He turns to Long Chiodao, Zhou Isen, and Luashi. See, doing good deeds makes people happy. Look at him, how happy he is smiling. Long Chiodao smiles warmly in response. Master Xiao, you're absolutely right. Luashi wipes the sweat from his forehead, sharing the sentiment with Zhou Isen. Of all the people to cross, you had to cross this guy. He won't let you rest even in death, and he says it's for your own good. Actually, you'll never find peace, and yet he insists it's for your benefit. Truly, you had it coming. Xiao Tian turns to the two and says, All right, let's talk about the real reason I asked for your assistance. I want to sever and take away both the Eastern Flame Kingdom and the Astral Pavilion. I need you two to help me identify the dividing points between them and the other powers in the bipolar realm. Moving closer to the two, Xiao Tian continues, After this is accomplished, remember, the credit mainly goes to Long Chiodao. You can't say it was my doing. Otherwise, her majesty will worry about me. Even if I explain, she'll think I'm making excuses. Speaking the truth these days is risky. Just earlier, someone almost had a meltdown due to it. As he says this, Xiao Tian glances at Long Chiodao, whose face is full of obedient attention. Zhou Isen, however, is somewhat shocked. Prince Xiao, can this really be done? Lu Ashi is equally concerned. Prince Xiao, be careful. If you get caught in a fractured space, it's no joke. Moments later, both Lu Ashi and Zhou Isen are left stunned, almost dropping their jaws and eyes. My god, he's not human. They watch in disbelief as Xiao Tian cuts through the space as smoothly as slicing tofu, and Long Chiodao methodically draws it into the holy dragon relic. Xiao Tian has genuinely severed the space of the guarded domain and packed it up to take away. Lu Ashi trembles, silently praying, Brother, I will inherit your will, protect the people well, and follow Prince Xiao towards a new future. Zhou Isen covers his face in fear and a somewhat frenzied expression. I talked back just now. I'm really courting death. I won't get beaten, will I? Xiao Tian pays no mind to their thoughts, simply instructing Wang Chiodao beside him. First, take these two into the holy dragon relic. We're going to the bipolar realm. Almost instantaneously, the scene around Xiao Tian shifts rapidly, and they arrive at their destination in the next second. Lu Ashi and Zhou Isen look at the familiar bipolar realm. We're here already? Xiao Tian looks down at the land below him and slowly draws out his impermanent knife. This should be fun. He turns to the two and says, you two are in charge of providing information. I'll handle the cutting, and Long Chiodao will take care of storing it in the relic. With just a few swishes, the entire space is divided cleanly, without a hitch or any oversight. The whole block of space slowly floats up and is transferred into the holy dragon relic by Long Chiodao. Xiao Tian watches his handiwork while contemplating. The task of moving everyone into the holy dragon relic is done. Now it's time to find my in-laws, but will they disapprove of me? I'm just a son-in-law who lives off his wife. Other than fighting, I can't do much else. Oh well, I'll deal with that later. Giving up on his thoughts, Xiao Tian dives into the holy dragon relic. Going back and playing with Empress is more fun. Meanwhile, far away, the esteemed purple emperor, hiding behind his wife, suddenly sneezes. Strange, who's thinking about me? Never mind, I'll just eat some spiritual fruit to increase my abilities. At this moment in the palace, Zi Ruoyan is panting heavily, fanning herself continuously. This is too exhausting. Luo Feng Yuan stands to the side, hands on her waist, and laughs heartily. Ha ha ha, that was such an exhilarating fight. Wiping the sweat from her forehead, Zi Ruoyan can only sigh in resignation. Luo Feng Yuan, you're like an energetic cow. You fight endlessly and seem to get more and more excited. At this moment, Luo Feng Yuan, who has calmed her emotions, suddenly thinks of something. Looking at Zi Ruoyan, she says, I think I can guess what Brother Zhao's plan might be. He will probably first test how many people the Holy Dragon Relic can accommodate in the coming days, and then use the War Furnace to evacuate some. He'll save as many people as possible. The 
territories of Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion in the Bipolar Realm are currently no man's land. Migrating there should be no issue. Pausing, Luo Feng Yuan looks at Zi Ruoyan seriously. As for me, the Empress, I will do my best to help. I will make sure that as many of our citizens as possible are safe, allowing the Great Flame Dynasty to thrive on new land. You've said before that we must preserve the Great Flame Dynasty so that when your parents return, they will have a home. Zi Ruoyan wants to say something but can't find the words. She remembers that Luo Feng Yuan, when drunk, once said that all her parents and siblings had died. Is Luo Feng Yuan saying goodbye now? Indeed, Luo Feng Yuan's eyes, shimmering with restrained tears, tell Zi Ruoyan that this might be their last duel. The next time we meet, who knows when that will be, she says, trying to smile. After all, I am the holy demon empress of the primordial demon kingdom. I can't remain in exile forever. If it were before, I would have stayed here, despite your annoying habits, like ambushing me during baths. But having someone to argue and fight with has been rather nice. You remind me of a sister. Upon saying this, Luo Feng Yuan finally can't hold back her tears from you. I learned what it means to be an empress, what responsibility is. I also realized that the fates of many in the primordial demon kingdom depend on my choices. Zi Ruoyan looks at her with reassurance and earnestly tells her, you will certainly be a great empress. Finally, Luo Feng Yuan says solemnly, Zi Ruoyan, take good care of yourself. If anything happens, make sure you come to find me. You may not realize just how terrifying your awakened abilities are. Know that, in tens of millions of years, there have only been two awakenings among the descendants of the human emperor, so, you must keep your bloodline and constitution a secret. Upon hearing this, Zi Ruoyan's expression also becomes serious. She nods. Don't worry, I understand. Before parting, Luo Feng Yuan pats Zi Ruoyan's head. I will help you gather information about your parents. If there's any news, I'll send someone to inform you. Also, take good care of Brother Xiao for now. Once the primordial demon kingdom stabilizes, I will come to get people. Luo Feng Yuan extends her hand and Zi Ruoyan grips it. Give up any hope of victory by then. Looking at the two, seemingly reluctant to part, their three female bodyguards can't help but feel emotional. The Empress has finally grown up. Although the bipolar realm and the holy demon realm aren't far apart, who knows how many years will pass before they meet again. Perhaps Xiao Tian will become an indelible part of the Empress's memory. Lu Yan also watches them keenly. The appearance of the holy demon Empress makes up for the fact that Her Majesty has no close friends. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. Just as everyone is lost in emotion, Xiao Yu or suddenly speaks. But both of you mothers should know. Dad and Dragon Mound have already packed up the territory and moved it. The Holy Dragon Relic is already flying towards the Holy Demon Realm. This farewell is meaningless. You'll be together again soon anyway. She shrugs. You both are so silly. One moment you're like sisters, and the next you're kicking and punching each other. At this moment, Zi Ruoyan looks at Xiao Yu her eyes filled with confusion, packed up and moved. Luo Feng Yuan is stunned for a moment. The Holy Dragon Relic is flying toward the Holy Demon Realm. We're all inside the Holy Dragon Relic right now. Xiao Yu or nods. Didn't you feel a bit shaky and nauseous just now? That was when we entered the Holy Dragon Relic. Zi Ruoyan looks at Xiao Yu in shock. You mean the entire Great Flame Dynasty has been placed inside the Holy Dragon Relic? Zi Ruoyan has already caught on and slowly asks Xiao Yu, who nods in confirmation. Yes, Dad and Dragon Mound somehow managed to separate the entire Great Flame Dynasty from the Southern Wilderness Realm and placed it inside the Relic. Because I have a connection with the Holy Dragon Relic, I could sense it. Xiao Yu's words leave Luo Feng Yuan somewhat puzzled. If that's the case, shouldn't the Holy Dragon Relic be flying toward the Bipolar Realm? Xiao Yu slowly explains. Dad and Dragon Mound also separated the territories of the Eastern Flame Kingdom and the Astral Pavilion from the Bipolar Realm and placed them inside the Holy Dragon Relic. At this point, Xiao Yu shrugs. That's why I said they packed up and moved. Upon hearing Xiao Yu words, the room falls into complete silence. The three female bodyguards are left speechless, staring at Xiao Yu. They know full well just how outrageous this accomplishment is. Space is not something you can simply manipulate at will, especially a whole, healthy world realm. To cut off such a large area, could it have been Long Chiodao's doing? No wonder he once followed the human emperor. His abilities are truly terrifying. In that case, Luo Feng Yuan finally breaks the silence. It would be best for Brother Xiao to stay in my demonic palace. It's big, soft, and comfortable. Luo Feng Yuan suddenly smirks, and Zi Ruoyan points at her. Didn't someone just say something about giving their place to whoever came first? Ah, did someone say that? Lo Kao, Zi Bun. The next second, the two figures collide again, as if their previous tender sisterly affection was merely an illusion. Moments later, Xiao Tian's head pops out from the courtyard entrance, looking puzzled. Are they still fighting? Are they really that energetic? Meanwhile, in the Eastern Flame Kingdom, the citizens are tearfully grateful towards Luoshi. It's good to be back. Thanks to you, we can finally return home. Luoshi, helping an elderly man, says, All credit goes to Prince Xiao. Without him, you wouldn't even be alive, let alone returning home. Hearing this, the people of Eastern Flame unanimously speak. Yes, we all know the 
the name of Prince Xiao, Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deity. We've already discussed it. Once we get home, we'll set up a shrine to honor him daily. Exactly. I'll prepare a shrine in my house as well. My family too. Just then, Luoshi's nephew interrupts. Aren't you exaggerating Prince Xiao's achievements? Wouldn't the Great Flame Empress be? Before he could finish, Luoshi slaps him, trembling with anger. If you want to die, don't drag me into it. What nonsense are you talking about? Prince Xiao is unparalleled in benevolence and respect. What are you compared to him? Spreading such nonsense. You can quit your post. Go home. Lock yourself up for 10 years. And come out only when you've improved your temperament. Meanwhile, in the Astral Pavilion, Zhou Yisen tells everyone, from now on, we must maintain the utmost respect for Prince Xiao. Follow his words and carry out his will. Remember, Prince Xiao is even more revered than your ancestors. Understand? The disciples hurriedly reply. Understood. Zhou Yisen clenches his fist. Trust me, this is the best decision for everyone. Following Prince Xiao is absolutely the right choice. I don't want to say much more. Let's continue our work. Arrange for the citizens as Prince commanded. Be polite in both speech and action. Serve the people, understand? The disciples loudly reply, understood. At this moment, in a far-off place, inside a grand hall, many people are staring at a crystal. Inside the crystal are figures that surprisingly turn out to be Zi Ruan's parents. Within this mystical realm, the sacred spirit fox awakens. I am the guardian spirit of this sacred site. Did you summon me? The sacred spirit fox turns to the esteemed purple emperor. Have you awakened your human emperor bloodline? Your daughter Zi Ruan has also awakened her human emperor bloodline? The sacred spirit fox seems incredulous. You didn't bring her with you? Where did she awaken her bloodline then? At this moment, fearsome powerhouses who are waiting for the trial to end are getting impatient. Find her immediately. Search for the esteemed purple emperor's daughter and bring her back. Ha! Ah, Zi Ruan. Ha! Ah, if we find her and marry her to one of our kin, the next generation could have a semi-emperor bloodline. That would be quite something. Elder Shua, since you've got the esteemed purple emperor in your grasp, it's time for us to vie for Zi Ruan. Old Snowy. It's weird. You asked the Snow family patriarch to save your own daughter and son-in-law back then. Why didn't you bring your granddaughter back too? The current patriarch of the Snow family remains seated on his fluidic throne floating in the void, his face clouded, and his hands clenched. I regret not doing so. At this moment, within the mystical realm, esteemed purple emperor asks the sacred spirit fox, what about my other children? Upon hearing this, the sacred spirit fox summons a crystal mirror. Both of your other children have died in the wars. Esteemed purple emperor looks stunned, subconsciously holding onto Shua Ruyan, muttering incredulously, only Zi Ruoyan is left. The esteemed purple emperor's face darkens, remaining silent. The fox spirit of the divine sight, which never errs in its divination, confirms the death of his two sons. They no longer exist in this world. Quickly composing himself, the esteemed purple emperor turns to Shua Ruyan. We need to expedite our plans. After we pick up your parents, we must find Zi Ruoyan immediately. Her situation has now been fully exposed, and I fear many will try to locate her. Shua Ruyan stops her tears, staring at the esteemed purple emperor and nodding affirmatively. The esteemed purple emperor takes a deep breath, staring into the distance as if his gaze could cross space and time to reach his daughter. Zi Ruoyan, hold on, your parents are coming to save you. At this moment, in another place, the Great Flame Domain is continuously approaching the Holy Demon Domain. Luo Feng Yuan looks at the report in front of her, her head aching. Zi Ruoyan, however, is somewhat curious, so the so-called Primordial Demon Kingdom is this vast and magnificent. It's really something that you became the Empress. Turning to face Zi Ruoyan, Luo Feng Yuan says, if it's a matter of settling things with fists, I really don't have many opponents in the Primordial Demon Kingdom, but why do I feel so nervous when I'm actually returning to my own kingdom? Is it because I've been around Zi Ruoyan and know how hard it is to be an Empress? Before Luo Feng Yuan can gather her thoughts, Xiao Tian delivers a chop to the top of her head. We're going to your homeland. Why are you getting nervous? Come on, pull yourself together. With a few more hits, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly feels energized. Zi Ruoyan watches this and rubs her temples, thinking, this silly cow is beyond help. Just then, the entire continent rumbles, the ground quaking. At this moment, the Great Flame Domain is slowly entering the Holy Demon Domain. Long Chiu Dao bows and says, Master Xiao, we have arrived in the Holy Demon Domain. Soon after, everyone reaches the Demon Palace. Xiao Tian starts to lift his visual limitations. Looking at the surrounding scenes, Luo Feng Yuan winks at Xiao Tian. How is it, Brother Xiao? Isn't the scenery of the Holy Demon Domain beautiful? Xiao Tian snaps back to reality, giving Luo Feng Yuan a thumbs up. It's indeed more beautiful than I imagined. Luo Feng Yuan points towards the Grand Palace in the distance. See over there? That's my Imperial City. The Demon Palace is right there. Saying this, Luo Feng Yuan moves a little closer to Zi Ruoyan. Zi Bun, I can generously offer you a place to stay. Upon hearing this, Zi Ruoyan nods and directly agrees. Is that so? Then I would be most honored to accept. Luo Feng Yuan is taken aback. Shouldn't you be playing hard to get and insisting on staying in the Great Flame Dynasty's palace? Why aren't you following the script? You're messing up my plans to show Xiao Tian around and have a nice time just the two of us. Seeing Luo Feng 
Kim Yuen's puzzled expression. Zi Roy on Huff's child's play. Moments later, the group flies towards the imperial city of the primordial demon kingdom. The holy dragon relic floats not far behind them. Long Chiodao suddenly comes up to Xiao Tian and communicates telepathically, Master Xiao. Have you noticed? Xiao Tian nods lightly. By all accounts, with the long history of warfare here, there should be an atmosphere of resentment, killing intent, and even the smell of blood. It's as if the primordial demon kingdom's past battles were fake. Could someone have sensed my arrival and deliberately staged this to mislead me? Long Chiodao is speechless. Master Xiao, the world isn't that malevolent towards you. Stop overthinking. As Xiao Tian senses the sweet atmosphere of the holy demon domain, he wonders how comfortable the beds are in the demon palace of the primordial demon kingdom and whether the food is good. But how should I arrange the territories and people inside the holy dragon relic? Now that the entire domain world is under Luo Feng Yuan's rule, and with Zi Ruoyan, who has the legitimate imperial bloodline of the human race, there shouldn't be any more trouble. I should finally be able to rest comfortably. What was I just thinking about? Ah, it doesn't matter. Relaxing is what's important, thought Xiao Tian. Just as Xiao Tian was lost in thought, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly shouted, We're holding a court meeting. Everyone needs to be there in half an hour. After making the announcement, Luo Feng Yuan walked straight into the grand hall. Zi Ruoyan twitched her lips. Is this how court meetings are usually conducted in the middle of the afternoon? Moments later, Luo Feng Yuan was seated at the center of the hall, with her legs crossed, looking down at the court officials gathered. Beside her was Zi Ruoyan, and on the other side was Xiao Tian. The ministers were baffled, but performed the ritual of kneeling and bowing. We greet the holy demon empress. With her arms crossed and legs propped up, Luo Feng Yuan said, I don't have anything special to announce. I mainly have two decrees. First, she leaned towards Xiao Tian. This man beside me will be the one and only official prince of the primordial demon kingdom, so forget about any ideas of adding people to my harem. Second, Luo Feng Yuan patted Zi Ruoyan on the shoulder. This woman here is the empress of the human race's great flame dynasty. She and I are love rivals, but she's also teaching me how to be a good empress. You should all show her some respect when you see her. Waving her hand, Luo Feng Yuan concluded, that's all I have to announce. You're dismissed. The ministers looked at each other, confused but united in their blessings. Congratulations, your majesty, on finding a wonderful partner and a good friend. We shall take our leave. With the blessings echoing, Luo Feng Yuan started to smile. All right, our matters have been satisfactorily resolved. She winked at Xiao Tian. So, how do you feel? Now you're the prince of both the Great Flame Dynasty and the Primordial Demon Kingdom. Xiao Tian looked completely bewildered. What just happened? The court meeting is already over? Zi Ruoyan was also puzzled. What were you doing just now? Luo Feng Yuan casually replied, holding a court meeting, of course. Upon hearing this, Zi Ruoyan looked somewhat alarmed. Don't tell me that this is how you've always conducted court meetings? Luo Feng Yuan frowned. What else? I've already learned so much from you. Haven't I improved? Zi Ruoyan was even more shocked. Improved where? Luo Feng Yuan answered confidently. This time, I didn't use any force. Zi Ruoyan silently looked at the three female bodyguards, who nodded back at her, looking helpless. She then massaged her forehead. Luo Feng Yuan, can you please shift some nutrients from your chest to your brain? Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian's face flushed. He coughed awkwardly, then turned to Long Chiodao. Shouldn't we consider merging the Great Flame Dynasty, Eastern Flame Kingdom, and Astral Pavilion into the Holy Demon Domain? Long Chiodao was somewhat taken aback. Ha, huh? ah, yes, we should. He then bowed slightly to Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan. Your Majesties, Prince Xiao, and I will take our leave. Moments later, they floated in the air. Xiao Tian pointed ahead. Long Chiodao, what if I carve out a space here and integrate the Great Flame Dynasty, Eastern Flame Kingdom, and Astral Pavilion? What do you think? Long Chiodao quickly waved his hands. Absolutely not. If you do that, where will the people of these original lands live? Xiao Tian stroked his chin thoughtfully. You make a good point. Does this mean that the domain world itself has some malleability and flexibility? Should we give it a try? With Xiao Tian's terrifying power, the entire holy demon domain was forcibly expanded. He then signaled to Long Chiodao. Indeed, it is malleable. Let's go. Soon, they arrived in the void. Xiao Tian merely reached out his hand and joined the holy demon domain with the great flame dynasty seamlessly. Now we don't have to worry about overcrowding. Long Chiodao was completely dumbfounded. Isn't it said that the stronger your abilities, the more you can elevate your fate and gain the favor of heaven and earth? What happened to the laws of heaven and earth? To the rules? Why does it feel like Xiao Tian just does whatever comes to mind, and it actually works? Later in the evening, inside the sacred hall of the demon palace, Xiao Tian was enjoying some hot pot as a reward for himself. Long Chiodao, who was beside him, was somewhat curious. Lord Xiao, with your incredible strength, haven't you ever thought of unifying the various domain worlds? Xiao Tian looked at the hot pot, unifying everything? Two exhausting. Long Chiodao was even more confused. Just because of that, Xiao Tian shook his head. Isn't that enough? Why make life so hard for yourself? Desires that are too big and heavy will only suffocate you. Xiao Tian leaned back in his chair, looking up at the night sky. Unifying the various domain worlds sounds like an ambitious and grand plan. But such grand
Tian ambitions are very tiring. I don't like it. Just as Xiao Tian was saying this, there was suddenly loud arguing coming from the entrance of the courtyard. Kao Luo, this is my daughter. Let go of her. Zi Ban, the one who should let go is you. She's my daughter. However, when the two arguing empresses enter the courtyard, they both showed smiles at Xiao Tian and walked toward him, following behind them were the guards Lu Yan, the sycophantic Zhong Ling, and some female bodyguards who acted like nannies. Xiao Yuer was distressingly being tugged by both her mothers, almost being pulled out of shape. At this moment, Xiao Tian turned to Long Chiu Dao. Cold, lifeless things really aren't interesting. What's living is what I like. Xiao Tian then waved his hand. Hold on. Don't get me wrong. I'm not mocking you for being gone. I'm talking about the grand ambitions you mentioned earlier. Long Chiu Dao didn't argue any further. You're strong. You're right. I'll keep quiet. Ha. Ah. The scene changes, and a group of people are gathered around a table enjoying hot pot. It's a very harmonious setting until Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan start arguing over a piece of meat. Zi Ruoyan shouts at Luo Feng Yuan. Let go. Lord Xiao is my prince. You don't need to worry about him. Luo Feng Yuan retorts. You should let go. I picked this for Xiao brother. Xiao brother is my prince too. Thank you. Just as their disagreement escalates, a pair of chopsticks suddenly snatch the piece of meat they both were aiming for. Xiao Tian then brings it to his mouth. Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan are somewhat stunned. Xiao Tian senses the awkward atmosphere. Should I give it back to you? Hearing this, both empresses simultaneously say, it's fine. Xiao Tian then eats the piece of meat and looks at the night sky, both empresses by his side. Suddenly, Xiao Tian addresses everyone. Now that the Great Flame Dynasty is successfully located in the Holy Demon Domain, and both are unified, should we consider forming an alliance? Make the Great Flame Dynasty and the Primordial Demon Kingdom sister countries, establishing an Empress Alliance? We will each maintain our independence, but allow trade between us. Keep major laws consistent, and unify travel documents to make travel between the two countries convenient. Luo Feng Yuan immediately raises both her hands, eyes shining. I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. We could even jointly hold court sessions. When either of us empresses is in need, we can help each other handle court affairs. The next second, Zi Ruoyan gives Luo Feng Yuan a flick on the forehead and angrily says, Could you be any more outrageous? You're the empress of the primordial demon kingdom, not me. You wish. You want me to work for you for free? Subsequently, Zi Ruoyan drags Luo Feng Yuan away. Starting from today, your special empress training will be doubled. Luo Feng Yuan reaches out to Xiao Tian. Xiao brother, save me. Xiao Tian sweats nervously and can only avert his eyes. The moon is really round tonight. The guards on the side even shed tears of emotion. Z Empress, we entrust our empress to you. For the safety and well-being of the primordial demon kingdom's ministers, we're counting on you. The next morning, the cries of street vendors ring out. Come take a look. This is the green flame empress wine, endorsed by both great empresses. And this bottle even has our primordial demon kingdom empress's handwriting on it. It's priceless. Immediately there's a scramble from the crowd. One demon clan citizen bids 200 gold. Another from the human clan counters with 300 gold. Then comes a flurry of bids. I bid 500. 600 here. Don't even try. My dad is an official. I bid 800. Not only that, even the livestock raised by Xiao Tian end up on the dinner table. A demon clan man takes a bite and immediately praises. So delicious. This is the unique livestock meat from Green Flame Mountain. Another responds. Well, of course. Look who raised them. He's a man of legendary renown, but also very real and present among us. He has a heart and will of the utmost goodness. He has a face that could bewitch all beings. He's also broken through the limits of body cultivators to become the most powerful in history. The demon clan man raises both hands high. He is the man behind the union of the two empresses. So tell me, who is he? Children cheer below. Supreme benevolent sugar baby deity Xiao Big Prince. Xiao Tian, hearing this, is utterly speechless. Finally, covering his face, he laments, I failed after all. I just wanted to reverse the embarrassing name from the Great Flame Dynasty side. Why is this so hard? What a calamity. Just then, a figure descends from the sky, heading straight for Xiao Tian. The next second, Xiao Tian is struck by a woman and feels a chill go straight through his heart. Xiao Tian lowers his head to look at the woman lying on top of him. She wears azure blue armor with golden dragon patterns. Compared to the tall figures of Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan, this woman is petite and delicate. Scratching his head, Xiao Tian squints. The woman's silver hair with a tinge of blue instantly brings back memories of that rainy night. Identical silver hair. Even the cowlick looks the same. However, her face is entirely different. Not the same person at all. Long Chiu Dao, standing nearby, looks up and observes. The spatial fluctuations suggest that she must have encountered some urgent situation and fled here. Xiao Tian props himself up on his hands and also looks up. Above, the sky looks like a shattered mirror folding in on itself, but is slowly healing. Soon, it's as if nothing happened at all. Suddenly, silver white dragon scales appear on the woman's body, in places like her neck, forehead, and the backs of her hands. Long Chiu Dao's tone becomes serious. It looks like she was hiding her sacred dragon clan identity earlier. Now that she's unconscious, the distinctive features of the sacred dragon lineage are revealed, and it
it seems her generation of the sacred dragon clan is a bit different. Xiao Tian, propping himself up to stand, asks Long Chiu Dao, how is it different? Stronger. There's obvious evolution compared to the sacred dragons of my younger days. Long Chiu Dao answers. Long Chiu Dao chuckles. It seems the younger generation of my clan is quite fond of you, Xiao Tian. Even unconscious, she seems close to you. The next moment, Xiao Tian cradles the woman in his arms and prepares to leave. Let's go. Long Chiu Dao is somewhat puzzled. Are you taking her with you? Xiao Tian's tone is a bit melancholic. She might have some connection to me. Do you recognize the scorch marks on her armor? Long Chiu Dao hesitates for a moment, looking at the burn marks on the woman's armor. Indeed, they look like marks from flames, but not charred. They feel more like they've been purified, stripped of their spirituality. It's as if her armor has been weakened. Suddenly, Long Chiu Dao exclaims, it's Luo Empress's holy demon flame. Holy demon flame bypasses physical durability, burning flesh, bones, and internal organs, weakening the inner spiritual energy. The holy demon clan is extremely rare, and royal family members with the awakened supreme holy demon bloodline are even rarer. Only they can use the holy demon flame. Turning his head, Long Chiu Dao continues, based on the spatial fluctuations earlier, she doesn't seem to come from a faraway place. Thinking it over, Xiao Tian decides, let's go back and ask Luo Feng Yuan. Soon, Xiao Tian and Long Chiu Dao arrive in the hall, where Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan are currently disputing over Xiao Tian's allegiance. Just as their argument reaches an impasse, Xiao Tian greets them. You two are up early today. However, both women are staring intently at the woman under Xiao Tian's arm. Breaking into a cold sweat, Xiao Tian senses trouble. Both Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan simultaneously demand, Lord Xiao, who is this? Scratching his head, Xiao Tian responds somewhat helplessly, Would you believe me if I said she fell from the sky? Zi Ruoyan squints at the woman and says, Luo, do you remember Lord Xiao once mentioned a silver-haired woman who saved him on a rainy night? Assessing the woman again, Zi Ruoyan adds, She seems to be of high status and likely quite wealthy. Zi Ruoyan then makes a fist and offers it to Luo Feng Yuan. Temporary truce. Luo Feng Yuan bumps her fist back. Understood. At this point, Long Chiu Dao begins to explain to the two empresses, You misunderstand. She is a descendant of my sacred dragon clan. She accidentally fell on Prince Xiao. She bears marks of being attacked by holy demon flame, so Prince Xiao brought her back. Xiao Tian sets the silver-haired dragon woman down on a spirit stone lounge chair in the courtyard. Everyone gathers around. Luo Feng Yuan reaches out and touches the woman's dragon horn. Sacred Dragon Clan is extremely rare, almost extinct. This is the first time I've seen one alive. Suddenly, she turns curiously to Zi Ruoyan. What do you think would happen if my holy demon horn collided with her sacred dragon horn? Whose would break? Zi Ruoyan looks at the disappointing Luo Feng Yuan and says, Can you not think about fighting all the time? Luo Feng Yuan pouts, You're no fun. She then reaches over to touch the scorched marks on the armor. These are definitely burns from holy demon flame, but awakening the supreme holy demon bloodline is difficult. She hugs Zi Ruoyan and adds, Still, it pales in comparison to her pure human royal bloodline. Ignoring Luo Feng Yuan, Zi Ruoyan continues, She must have been through a big battle. Her spiritual energy is greatly depleted, and she has suffered a severe head injury. As she says this, she lifts the woman's head and notes, Just as I suspected, there's severe bruising on the back of her head. She was likely attacked from behind while fleeing. Suspicion 1. Her armor's holy demon flame is connected to your holy demon clan. Suspicion 2. Did she come here out of chaos, or is there another motive? I lean towards the latter, and it has to do with suspicion 1 about the holy demon clan. Turning to Xiao Tian, Zi Ruoyan poses her third suspicion. Is she the woman who saved you? Xiao Tian frantically shakes his head. No, I don't even know her. She just fell out of nowhere and landed on me. Pretending to cough, he adds. Luckily, I've recovered quite a bit. Otherwise, with her crashing down in that full armor, I'd probably be in some real trouble. At this point, both Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan grasp Xiao Tian's arm, looking somewhat reproachful at Long Chiu Dao. Dragon Mound Elder, it's not about blaming you, but you promised to take good care of Lord Xiao. And now, he got hit unexpectedly. What if it wasn't a woman who fell on him, but something else? Luo Feng Yuan joins in the blame. Dragon Mound Elder, you didn't keep your word. Long Chiu Dao is speechless, thinking to himself, you're worried about Xiao Tian getting hurt? If a whole realm fell on his head, you should be more concerned about that realm. Xiao Tian places the woman on a bench. As everyone gathers around, the woman with dragon horns suddenly stirs and wakes up. Her name is Dragon Mound by Ching. Upon opening her eyes, she finds herself surrounded by unfamiliar faces staring curiously at her. Startled, she abruptly sits up and asks, Who are you? Zi Ruoyan glares at her, You unexpected guest, falling from the sky and landing on my husband. Luo Feng Yuan, standing nearby, quickly interjects, and on my husband as well. Zi Ruoyan rolls her eyes and pushes away the hand on her shoulder, asking sternly, Who are you, and what is your purpose for coming to the holy demon realm? The white-haired dragon lady frowns, holding her forehead as she thinks hard. I, I am Bai Ching, and I don't remember much else, but there is a name that seems familiar, Luo Tao Tian. Upon hearing this, Luo 
Feng Yuan and her three bodyguards' faces dramatically change. Luo Feng Yuan exclaims, My father is alive? She rushes forward, grabbing Bai Qing's arm. Who are you? How is my father still alive? And why did he save you? Luo Feng Yuan's eyes fill with complex emotions. The name has always been a sore point for her. Dragon Mom Bai Qing shakes her head, showing no resistance. I'm really sorry. I don't remember anything else. Just that name. Luo Feng Yuan bites her lip, gripping Bai Qing's arm so tightly that the armor makes a cracking noise. Z Royan quickly embraces Luo Feng Yuan. Calm down. Given her current condition, even if you lay hands on her, she won't remember anything. Also, are you sure your father saved her? Listening to Z Royan's words, Luo Feng Yuan's emotions stabilize somewhat. Suddenly, she snaps her fingers, and a fierce holy demon flame erupts, covering the burn marks on Bai Qing's armor. Moments later, the flame transforms into a fiery net that envelopes Bai Qing. Luo Feng Yuan looks pleased, as if she had expected this. She explains to the crowd, this is the holy demon flame my father left to protect her. Even I can't attack her. Faced with this evidence, Bai Qing can only helplessly respond. I'm really sorry. I don't remember anything. At this point, Long Chiodao suddenly steps forward, smiling. Child, my name is Long Chiodao. In some sense, I am your elder. Our sacred dragon clan has exceptional physical constitutions. It's unlikely that you'd lose your memory from a simple blow to the head. I need to look for a reason but, just then, Bai Qing interrupts. I need to reveal the dragon spirit, right? Long Chiodao looks somewhat surprised. You know, he was wondering how to explain it. Bai Qing remains calm. What I lost seems to be just my past memories, not my knowledge. Subsequently, she closes her eyes, and, the next second, a spectral dragon ascends from her body. This is the dragon spirit, the soul of the dragon race. However, the once majestic silver dragon spirit is now covered in alarming patterns, as if chained. Long Chiodao exclaims in horror, this is the blood curse technique, an ancient spell formed through the sacrifice of flesh and blood. It looks like her memory has been sealed by this curse. Z Royan analyzes the situation calmly. If my conjecture is correct, she was being hunted down to be silenced. They didn't want her to spill any information. She turns to Luo Feng Yuan, and your father was likely covering for her, even helping her escape. Once she successfully escaped, they could only resort to attacking the back of her head to curse her and keep her from revealing anything. Finally, Z Royan looks at Long Chiodao, Dragon Mound Elder. How can this curse be broken? Long Chiodao keeps his eyes fixed on Bai Qing. This kind of flesh and blood curse uses life as a lamp and flesh as fire. It's everlasting. To break the curse, kill the person who cast it. Xiao Tian, who hasn't spoken for a while, shocks everyone with this statement. People all turn their heads to look at him. He just shrugs, looking impatient. Isn't it simple? If the curse is everlasting, just smash the lamp. Why make a big fuss? Xiao Tian mutters to himself. I haven't even mentioned rebooting yet. Maybe I could give it a try. For a reboot, soul reconfiguration would be necessary. The success rate should be pretty high. Xiao Tian's scrutinizing gaze makes Bai Qing inexplicably nervous. Turning his head to ask Long Chiodao, Xiao Tian inquires, is there any kind of elixir that can fully restore a shattered soul? Long Chiodao thinks for a moment, the anti-void spirit communication pill indeed has such a miraculous effect. I do have plenty. After all, my body is that of a dragon spirit, such a pill. He suddenly realizes something is off about Xiao Tian's statement. Wait, shattered soul, you don't mean what I think you mean, do you? In my hometown, there's a saying, if there's a problem, don't worry, just reboot, and everything will be fine. Xiao Tian looks at Bai Qing. If we shatter her soul, the flesh and blood curse will have no host, right? Then we restore her soul, and everything's fine. It's basically just a reboot. Long Chiodao quickly shakes his head. That won't work. Her dragon spirit is inside her, in the sea of consciousness in her head. Shattering the dragon spirit is no different from killing her. It's simple then. Just blow up her head first, and then heal her, Xiao Tian says, his eyes shining as he looks at Bai Qing. Where should I start? His words shock everyone. What kind of crazy idea is this? The girl is just sitting there, and you want to blow up her head? Actually, it's a very good idea. A calm, melodious voice rings out again. Everyone turns to look at Bai Qing, who is sitting on a spirit stone lounge chair. The silver-haired dragon lady adjusts her posture and leans her head towards Xiao Tian. Please go ahead. This unexpected turn of events leaves everyone speechless with amazement. They never thought that Bai Qing would agree to such an outrageous request. Xiao Tian, hearing her agreement, is overjoyed. Great courage, very decisive. I like it. He starts warming up his fists. Turn a little. This angle is not good. If it's not done properly, it will be difficult to heal later. Okay, I understand. Bai Qing shifts slightly to adjust her angle. I hope this works, so my memories can be restored and I can find my father. Don't worry, I'll control the strength and angle to make sure it ends painlessly, Xiao Tian assures her. Luo Feng Yuan, who is standing beside them, has a flushed face and sultry eyes. This is so thrilling, I want in too. Just as she finishes speaking, she's met with a furious punch from Zi Ruoyan. Is this the thrill you were talking about? What are you thinking in that silly head of yours? Zi Ruoyan then turns to Xiao Tian, and you, put your fists away. Who came up with this insane idea to blow up someone's head? She then walks up to Bai Qing, grabs her, and lifts her up, and are you an idiot for agreeing to this? The truth might be
be in my memories, and the curse on the dragon spirit could potentially attract unnecessary enemies. Bai Qing, who's lifted off the ground by the tall Empress Zi Ruoyan, maintains her calm demeanor and analyzes. Finding a way to break the curse immediately not only could reveal the truth, but also help us avoid unnecessary danger. Though the method is risky, it's a gamble worth taking considering the outcome. Seeing Bai Qing's determined face, Xiao Tian also nods continuously. He pats Long Chiodao who's beside him. Anyway, Long Chiodao has many potent elixirs, so it should be fine. Shut up, Zi Ruoyan says with a dark face, glancing at Xiao Tian. This scares Xiao Tian and Long Chiodao into a shiver, both of them falling silent immediately. There's an old saying that the two most terrifying creatures on earth are an angry mother and a stern wife. Truly, the intimidation is real. At this moment, Zi Ruoyan looks at Bai Qing and shakes her head. This method is too risky. It's not worth gambling with your life for no reason. Upon hearing this, Bai Qing immediately gives Zi Ruoyan a good person card, saying, you are indeed a very good person. If this works, there's at least a 70% chance. Even 70% is not acceptable. Let's think of other ways. Zi Ruoyan interrupts, grabbing Bai Qing's chin. I'm declaring, not discussing. Do you understand, young lady? Bai Qing responds, based on the age we appear to be, calling me young lady is not appropriate, and pushes Zi Ruoyan's hand away. This leaves Zi Ruoyan stunned for a moment, who then looks closely at Bai Qing. This of yours is so small. Are you even 20? For the first time, Bai Qing shows some emotion. She glances down, then looks up at Zi Ruoyan. She points to Luo Feng Yuan, in front of her. You shouldn't be surprised by this. Luo Feng Yuan bursts into laughter upon hearing this. Someone really shot themselves in the foot. Zi Ruoyan's mouth twitches in annoyance, looking at Zi Ruoyan, but you don't need to be so sensitive. Overall, you're still very beautiful. I'm not sensitive, Zi Ruoyan retorts. Zhong Yangming quickly interrupts, regardless of whether it's for Her Majesty Luo or for her own sacred dragon clan identity, she must stay here. So, what should we do with this young lady from the dragon mound? Before anyone can respond, the girl suddenly stands up and goes over to Xiao Tian, sniffing him as if no one else exists. What are you doing? Xiao Tian asks, puzzled. Unexpectedly, the girl floats up the next second and licks Xiao Tian's cheek. Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan are immediately stunned, and everyone else's eyes widen, shocked beyond words by her audacious action, especially in front of two empresses. Long Chiodao, your descendant sure is bold, someone remarks. The girl suddenly hugs Xiao Tian's neck and says to everyone, I want to stay by his side. I don't know why, but it feels very comfortable next to him. He even smells nice, very sweet. She feels that not only are her injuries healing faster when she's with Xiao Tian, but even her dragon's aura is gradually increasing. Seeing the two of them so intimate, Zi Ruoyan instantly loses her temper, clenching her fists and yelling, Scoundrel, get off Xiao brother right now. She attempts to pull the girl away, but the girl clings to Xiao Tian, explaining calmly, being by his side right now is the best choice for both healing and sensory reasons. Please forgive me, but I can't leave his side. Suddenly, Luo Feng Yuan, perhaps thinking she's missing out on something, excitedly rushes forward and blurts, Wait, I want to lick too. If I weren't so busy, I'd smack you with a hammer. Zi Ruoyan retorts, What are you doing? Help me pull her off. Finally snapping out of it, Luo Feng Yuan helps Zi Ruoyan try to pull the girl away. Meanwhile, Xiao Tian stands there, utterly confused, watching the three women struggling. What's going on here? Puppy, do I have some healing abilities or something? The system, Puppy, then explains, Bai Qing comes from the sacred dragon lineage, an emperor-level sacred dragon bloodline, and you, master, are a descendant of dragons. It makes sense for someone of the sacred dragon lineage to be drawn to you. Your body has been getting stronger, and her being around you will also help her become stronger. Hearing this, Xiao Tian is rendered speechless, so my body is still being strengthened? When will it ever stop? I'm sorry, master, but I can't detect any limits to your physical strength at the moment. However, please be patient. Once your body is fully strengthened, you'll be able to start training. Xiao Tian is somewhat surprised, so I can actually start training? I thought I'd be a regular person my entire life. Just then, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly shouts, Hey, why are you being so gentle? Just get physical. As soon as the words leave her mouth, Xiao Tian sees Luo Feng Yuan suddenly deliver a high kick, aiming her heel down harshly at the girl. The girl's pupils dilate, and electric lights seem to shimmer in her eyes. A golden thunderous power suddenly manifests, and in an instant, the girl flickers to stand behind Xiao Tian. Luo Feng Yuan's kick misses entirely. Zi Ruoyan then brings her two fingers together, forming a long sword from her concentrated energy. Be careful not to hurt Lord Xiao. He still hasn't fully recovered from the after effects of his last outburst. Luo Feng Yuan grins, her eyes full of excitement. Don't worry, I promise I won't. When two empresses join forces, she won't be able to dodge. The girl remains silent, still clinging to Xiao Tian's neck while her body sparkles with electric light. Watching the two charged up empress wives, Xiao Tian sighs internally. I'm just an innocent bystander. Can you not involve me? The two empresses lock eyes and whisper, let's go in together. Immediately, Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan simultaneously attack. Swords and kicks fly, but the girl nimbly avoids them while 
sticking close to Xiao Tian. Neither can land a hit on her. Annoyed, Luo Feng Yuan mutters, This damn white hair, why is she as slippery as an eel? In a sudden motion, Luo Feng Yuan spins her body and launches another kick at the girl. At the same time, Zi Ruoyan also spins around, and the two, sticking close to each other, accidentally direct their attack towards Xiao Tian. Xiao Tian, who had been passively watching the spectacle, suddenly finds himself the unintended target. Both Luo Feng Yuan and Zi Ruoyan are horrified and quickly shout for him to dodge. We can't stop it. However, Xiao Tian, with a twitching smile at the corner of his mouth, prepares to catch the incoming attack. He knows he can't dodge, otherwise they'll surely fall to the ground. But who could have known that in the next second? Thunder manifests. The girl who had been clinging to Xiao Tian suddenly blocks the front, enduring both attacks head on. The flickering lightning around her acts like two twisting vortexes, absorbing all their attacks. The girl lets out a pained grunt, clenching her teeth, but still, she can't help but spit out a mouthful of blood onto the ground. Upon seeing this, the faces of Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan instantly change. They rush forward to support the girl, but she speaks up. Thank you both. Spitting out that stagnant blood actually makes me feel much better. Luo Feng Yuan frowns, but it seems like your injuries have worsened. Zi Ruoyan is also concerned. Why didn't you fight back? Why didn't you dodge earlier? The girl softly shakes her head. When you decided to take me in, that was an act of kindness. Therefore, I can't raise a hand against you. As for not dodging, you mentioned that he hasn't fully recovered from his after effects. He couldn't have withstood that attack. Based on my calculations, enduring the blow could help circulate my energy, so absorbing the attack was the best outcome. She speaks these words with a calm demeanor. However, as she talks, fresh blood continues to flow from the corner of her mouth, making her look somewhat frightening. For a moment, everyone is silent. How is she able to calmly analyze the situation while spitting out blood? This doesn't seem related to her amnesia caused by some curse, does it? At this point, Zhong Ling in the corner is the first to react. Quickly, treat her wounds. She's bleeding non-stop. What are you all staring at? Hearing this, everyone scrambles into action, picking her up and hurrying. She is then laid down on a spirit stone lounge chair. Long Chiodao takes out a bottle and pours out some elixirs, but the girl takes one look at them and speaks again. Taking an elixir is not as effective as staying close to him. Zhong Li Huang is somewhat confused upon hearing this and looks at Xiao Tian curiously. What's the logic behind that? Xiao Yuer floats onto Xiao Tian's shoulder and spreads her little hands, reminding them, it's true, being near daddy is very comfortable. Haven't you all noticed? Upon hearing this, Zhong Ling and the others remember that their cultivation speed seemed to increase significantly whenever they were near Xiao Tian. Even the two empresses, when dealing with official documents, could easily resolve complicated issues as long as Xiao Tian was present. With this thought, everyone in the room starts to look at Xiao Tian intently, feeling somewhat embarrassed under the scrutiny. Xiao Tian suddenly hears Luo Feng Yuan propose a theory. Didn't brother Xiao once mention that he ate something that helped him break his limitations? Could it be that this heavenly treasure is incredibly potent and is fused with his flesh and blood, radiating its benefits to those around him like a mobile elixir? Zhong Ling claps her hands in sudden realization. You're right, your majesty Luo. No wonder she wanted to lick Prince earlier. Xiao Tian stands there, completely baffled, a series of question marks filling his mind. Scene changes. Xiao Tian and his three companions are eating hot pot. Zi Ruoyan speaks earnestly to the girl. Firstly, due to the matter concerning her father and your health condition, it's settled that you will stay. However, I won't feel comfortable leaving you near Lord Xiao. No one can guarantee whether you have ulterior motives. The girl nods at Zi Ruoyan's suspicions. Your doubts are reasonable. Even I can't assure whether I was good or bad before my memory loss. Zi Ruoyan seems to breathe a sigh of relief at her understanding, giving a slight nod. It's good that you understand. Starting from today, I will officially move to Prince's palace and live with you. If something happens to you, I'm afraid I'll live the rest of my life in regret. Xiao Tian feels a bit helpless. Here she goes again. Why does Zi Ruoyan always have to make grand overtures? Is she testing my tolerance? At his side, Luo Feng Yuan's eyes widen with barely suppressed rage. Damn it, the Great Flame Empress is truly cunning. She must have been planning to move into Prince's residence for a long time. Luo Feng Yuan suddenly slaps the table. No, I must move there as well. Zi Ruoyan, seemingly expecting this reaction, casually picks up a piece of lettuce and asks, Why does the Holy Demon Empress want to move in? Isn't my presence sufficient? Gritting her teeth, Luo Feng Yuan replies, She knows something about my father. What if she suddenly remembers the past? I need to be the first to know any news concerning my father, so I have to be near her. Saying this, Luo Feng Yuan dips some boiled vegetables into a sauce and then puts them into her mouth. Zi Ruoyan follows suit. The girl watches them in awe, so that's how you're supposed to eat it. No wonder it tasted so salty when I tried to drink it. What should I do now? Can I ask for another serving of sauce? Zi Ruoyan pays no attention to the girl's thoughts and snorts at Luo Feng Yuan. Your mind seems to be working better these days. No wonder your chest has gotten smaller lately. Not to be outdone, Luo Feng Yuan retorts, really? Seems like someone is just too jealous and keeps an eye on others. Hearing this, Zi Ruoyan doesn't bother with more words. With a loud bang, she slams a jug of wine 
wine onto the table. Whoever loses, go back to your own palace. Luo Feng Yuan also produces a jug of wine, her eyes ablaze. Bring it on, who's afraid of whom? The battle of the two empresses erupts again. Meanwhile, the girl on the side finds a solution. She pours both empresses dipping sauces into her own bowl and starts to eat voraciously. Even as the two empresses argue and drink, contesting each other jug for jug, she continues to eat as if nothing else matters, thoroughly enjoying her meal. Xiao Tian looks at the three with a helpless expression. It hasn't been that long since our last drinking contest, and now we're at it again? A sense of nostalgia comes over me. Soon, the courtyard is littered with empty wine jugs. Xiao Tian is holding Zi Ruoyan, while the girl supports Luo Feng Yuan. The four of them head toward the inner chamber. A moment later, the two empresses are placed on the bed and embrace each other again. Xiao Tian can't help but sigh. Back to the same old routine. Just then, a loud burp echoes from the side. The girl looks embarrassed. The food was really good. I haven't had such a satisfying meal in a very long time, so I may have overindulged. My apologies. Xiao Tian waves his hand dismissively. If you enjoyed it, then eat as much as you like. It's just a small amount of money for the food. I control the household finances. After all, he gives a thumbs up, looking proud. Though she's not sure what he's so proud of, the girl quietly says, Thank you. Please get some rest. After saying this, the girl sits down cross-legged and closes her eyes, entering into a state of meditation. Not wanting to waste words, Xiao Tian immediately slaps her, knocking her out, and then carries her to a recliner. I don't know what you've been through before, but a good night's sleep is important. You don't need to be on guard here. Just then, Xiao Tian suddenly feels something is off. Behind him, the two women, their eyes shimmering with intelligence, are glaring at him intently. The next moment, the inner chamber is filled with the sounds of Xiao Tian's discarded clothing and his painful wails. Calm down, both of you. Don't tear my clothes. Just because I don't hit women doesn't mean you can get out of control when you're drunk. Wait, don't. Stay away. Xiao Tian sits shivering in the corner of the bed, while Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan look at him as if he were Little Red Riding Hood, and they were wolves, almost drooling. After a three-way battle of sorts, they all fall into a deep, exhausted sleep. Meanwhile, in the chaotic void outside the holy demon realm, a portion of space suddenly distorts. A grand and rugged black warship violently forces its way through the distortion. The entire ship seems to be constructed from an unknown black wood. Boss, it looks like we've reached the holy demon realm, says a figure standing on the deck of the warship, surrounded by others who are similarly towering and strong. Each one is about two meters tall, their skin adorned with blood-colored patterns, and they emanate a strong smell of blood. According to the star maps we've captured, this should be the place. I didn't expect our pursuit would lead us all the way here. His deputy, rubbing his bald head, looks at a book in his hand emitting fluctuating spiritual energy. Something feels off. The dimensions here seem to be more circular, bigger. There's a slight discrepancy with our star maps. Yes, send out a scout team to get a sense of the place. It would be best to capture someone valuable for questioning. Let Squad 10 handle it. They're not too powerful. Won't startle the enemy. As he says this, he continues to gaze at the holy demon realm ahead. We've paid a high price to get here. We must capture Luo Tao Tian and Bai Ching. Meanwhile, back at Prince's palace, Bai Ching opens her eyes and sits up, appearing somewhat dazed. She remembers that she was meditating and feels as if she was knocked out. Thinking this, Bai Ching quickly rolls over and stands up, scanning her surroundings. The room is in disarray, with unidentifiable rags all over the floor. You're awake, a voice says. Lifting her head, Bai Ching sees Xiao Tian making the bed, dressed in new clothes. Bai Ching nods gently and looks around, asking, was there a thief here yesterday? Xiao Tian finishes making the bed and sighs. We had a fight yesterday, so it's a bit messy. A fight? Bai Ching thinks for a moment and shakes her head. Although we haven't known each other long, it seemed like everyone got along well last night. I can't imagine you'd fight. Xiao Tian leans on his waist and says, the deeper the relationship, the fiercer the fights. You probably wouldn't understand. Hearing this, Bai Qing looks puzzled, but Xiao Tian doesn't offer any further explanation. He simply says, those who understand, understand. No need to spell it out. Bai Qing picks up a torn piece of silk from the floor, stained with blood, and furrows her brow. Is this from tending to wounds? I can't believe your arguments get so heated. Yes, the battle was intense. You could call it domestic violence, says Xiao Tian as he snatches the silk from her and stores it away. This kind of thing sets a bad example for the children. It seems being the consort to an empress isn't easy. Bai Qing notes. Xiao Tian nods and walks over to the window with a steaming cup of tea. It's not easy, especially when it's two against one. I can't win. He sips his tea and adds. Too bad this world doesn't have goji berries, but I have green flame pigs. I'll ask Zhong Yangming to make some stir-fried kidney. That should solve everything. Decided, he runs off, reminding Bai Qing to stay in the prince palace and to not wander off. Confused, Bai Qing asks if something happened. I have some business to attend to. Just stay put. There's no point in wandering around. With that, Xiao Tian runs off, leaving Bai Qing to ponder. No point, huh? Upon reflection, that seems true. Bai Qing looks around the empty hall and stands alone for a long time before sitting down in a cross-legged position to meditate. After the
the formation of the Empress's Alliance, there are two joint court meetings every month. These meetings are jointly hosted by the Great Flame Dynasty and the Primordial Demon Kingdom to discuss matters of mutual concern. Naturally, they are held at a location on the border of the two territories, in a temporary Empress Hall built in front of the Prince Palace. At this moment, the two Empresses exchange glances in the hall. How about it? Shall we continue tonight? Zibon, this time, I want to go first. Xiao Tian sneezes from a distance. Who's talking about me? Early in the morning, Xiao Tian finds his chef Zhong Yang Ming, preparing to order stir-fried kidneys and roasted lamb kidneys. Before he can order more, Zhong Yang Ming interrupts. Prince, how about I make you a complete nourishing feast? Ten dishes that will absolutely rejuvenate you. Looking at the chef's frail appearance, Xiao Tian can't help but wonder, are you sure? Will it be effective? Zhong Yang Ming looks dead serious. Yes, Prince, rest assured. I've tried it. Recalling Zhong Yang Ming's wife, Zhong Li Huang, Xiao Tian instantly understands. When it comes to nourishment, probably nobody is more authoritative than Zhong Yang Ming, this heavy armored cavalry. Thinking this, Xiao Tian suddenly puts his arm around Zhong Yang Ming's neck. Speaking of which, after training in martial arts with me, you must be doing much better, right? Zhong Yang Ming smiles ambiguously. All thanks to your excellent teaching, Prince. Things have been much easier recently. All right, prepare yourself. I'm taking you to Green Flame Mountain, says Xiao Tian, preparing to leap. But just then, Zhong Yang Ming suddenly frowns and yells, Prince, someone's coming. In the next second, whooshing sounds fill the air, and almost instantly, for bald men in armor surround them. Johnny Sin focuses on the two. According to our information, the holy demon realm is ruled by the primordial demon kingdom. One of you is the prime minister and the other a prince. You should have a lot of information. Johnny Sin slowly approaches and gestures. Gentlemen, if you don't want any trouble, please come with us. Xiao Tian and Zhong Yang Ming follow the direction indicated and see a UFO. Its massive body is hovering up and down. Xiao Tian is baffled. Is this an alien? Zhong Yang Ming is equally surprised. What on earth is that? Where did these people and this weird thing come from? Never seen it before. While the two are still bewildered, Johnny Sin steps forward and looks down on them, sneering, don't make any futile resistance, otherwise, all you'll face is despair. Zhong Yang Ming becomes irritated and suddenly produces a talisman in his hand. Who will be the one to despair remains to be seen. Emperor's sword energy. Go! As soon as Zhong Yang Ming's words fall, the talisman absorbs spiritual energy and instantly transforms into a golden sword energy, charging towards Johnny Sin. In an instant, the sword energy hits Johnny Sin, but doesn't affect him due to the blood red runes on his armor that burst into fearsome energy. What a pathetic attack. Johnny Sin brushes the dust off himself, shakes his head at the frail looking Zhong Yang Ming, and says, Seems like you really can't heed my advice, inferior human race. Then, Johnny Sin turns around and walks towards the spaceship, ordering his men, break his legs and take him and Prince Xiao Tian with us for further orders. But just as he takes two steps, a team member calls out, Captain, something seems off. All the bald men look horrified and involuntarily take a step back, but a towering shadow still envelopes them. Johnny Sin, annoyed by his team member's words, asks, What do you mean? They're just humans. What's there to be scared of? Turning his head, his pupils instantly contract. Oh shit, that's terrifying. Zhong Yang Ming has somehow transformed into a giant, nearly 30 feet tall, covered in explosive muscles. He's staring intently at Johnny Sin, and even his casual breathing emits a mist that seems like clouds in motion. Zhong Yang Ming exudes an incredibly terrifying aura, leaning his explosive physique forward, clenching his fists. He looks at Johnny Sin and says, Inferior human race? That's an interesting way to put it. Then show me what you've got, and let's see how you make this prime minister despair. What do you say, little sprout? Seeing his subordinates shaking in fear, Johnny Sin hastily shouts, Don't panic. Stay calm. His aura is only at the tenth level. It's just his size that's intimidating. Taking a deep breath, he pats his subordinate's shoulder. Backing down before fighting isn't the Blood Rune Clan style. With that, Johnny Sin's body starts to inflame as his form enlarges, and his aura climbs rapidly, reaching level 13. Encouraged by Johnny Sin, his team members also roar as their body muscles swell and blood-colored runes flash. Johnny Sin takes the lead, charging at Zhong Yang Ming at an explosive speed, attacking him relentlessly with the blood blades on his arm armor. His team follows suit, their previous fear forgotten, surrounded and attacked from all sides. Zhong Yang Ming can't dodge in time. Enraged, he snorts, his body tightens, and the wounds inflicted by the blood blades immediately start to heal. Zhong Yang Ming then coldly sneers, jumping monkeys, weren't you going to make this prime minister despair? Let's have a face-to-face -face battle then. Without further ado, he lunges forward, his massive form almost overshadowing everything. Two of the bald men don't even have time to dodge and are smashed into the ground by his giant, stone-like fists. They collectively gasp, is this even a human? Zhong Yang Ming clenches his fists again, visibly irritated. The Great Flame Dynasty has just stabilized, and the Empress combined primordial demon kingdom is still in the making. Who are these crawling creatures daring to stir up trouble? Johnny Sin roars in anger, how can a mere human be this strong? Ignoring his outburst, Zhong Yang Ming takes a deep breath, steadying his stance according to the stances he 
learned while training with Xiao Tian. His right fist expands as he yells, giant spirit fist. With that, Johnny Sin is sent flying, feeling as if his body is falling apart. However, as he flies backward, a cunning smile crosses his face. You fell for it. Using the momentum from Zhong Yangming's strike, he flips and lands beside Xiao Tian, holding the blood blade against Xiao Tian's neck. Prime Minister, don't make any rash moves. If my blade slips, you won't be able to complete your mission for your majesty. Xiao Tian looks emotionless at the blade against his neck, then turns to Zhong Yangming who has stopped at a distance and says, What are you looking at me for? Keep fighting. Why do I have to do everything? What's the point of your martial arts training? He even yawns out of boredom. Johnny Sin is dumbfounded. This guy really has some nerve. Seeing Xiao Tian looking at him, Xiao Tian raises a nut in his hand. Want some? Johnny Sin is completely stunned. Does he even realize the situation he's in? At this moment, Zhong Yangming nods and says, I understand. In the next second, his aura erupts again as he charges directly at Johnny Sin. Frightened, Johnny Sin hastily shouts, Stop. Don't you care if this man lives or dies? Seeing him not stopping, Johnny Sin grits his teeth and roars, You forced my hand. It's all your fault. Then he swings his blade towards Xiao Tian's neck. There's a loud clanging sound, and Johnny Sin is shocked. He can clearly feel the pain in his arm and sees that his arm is bent at a 90 degree angle, broken by the impact. Unable to bear the pain, Johnny Sin cries out and crouches on the ground, trembling. Xiao Tian continues eating his nuts, glancing at Johnny Sin who's kneeling on the ground. You're a strange one. What's the point of self-harm? Johnny Sin looks at Xiao Tian's neck. Not even a scratch. What the hell is this guy? His teammates are equally horrified. Our boss's blade was ineffective against that waste. Seizing the opportunity, Zhong Yangming throws a hard punch at them. You guys actually get distracted during a fight? The intense wind from the punch makes their eyelids twitch. Meanwhile, Xiao Tian spits out a nutshell. You guys are really resilient. Your recovery ability is pretty scary too. Are you a body cultivator? Johnny Sin looks at the nutshell that landed on him, his mouth twitching. He quickly retreats, but as he lands at a distance, Xiao Tian appears beside him like a ghost, spitting out another nutshell. Why are you ignoring my question? How can you, as a body cultivator, break through the 10th level? Johnny Sin freezes on the spot. Something's wrong. What's up with this Xiao Tian? Being physically strong is one thing, but why is he so fast too? Could he be a 16th level expert or higher? Thinking of this, Johnny Sin suddenly thrusts his hand into his chest, shouting, everyone, burn the blood crystals, pulls out a fiery red crystal. His teammates cry out in disbelief. Captain, Johnny Sin gives them a wry smile, filled with a hint of apology. We have no choice. We can't go back alive anyway. Our only option now is to take them down with us. Saying this, he turns to look at Xiao Tian, his face gradually becoming ferocious. I admit, you're strong, but it doesn't matter. You can't stop this thing. As he speaks, Johnny Sin hasn't noticed that the object has disappeared from his hand. Xiao Tian holds up the blood crystal and examines it. You say this thing is dangerous? Johnny Sin is completely dumbfounded. When was it taken? The next second, Xiao Tian lifts his head and puts the blood crystal into his mouth, swallowing it whole. Damn it, Johnny Sin thinks this is something that even 18th level experts would be blown up by instantly. How could he just swallow it? A moment later, a muffled explosion sound emanates from Xiao Tian's belly. Unconcerned, Xiao Tian pats his stomach and then suddenly opens his mouth to belch. Red smoke sprays out from his mouth. Xiao Tian looks thrilled. Oh, that feels great. The moment it entered my mouth, it was like taking a shot of strong liquor, followed by an explosive burning sensation. But far from causing pain, it felt like my organs got a warm vibrating massage. This thing is great. Definitely a high quality snack. Saying this, Xiao Tian looks at Johnny Sin with a face full of anticipation. Got any more? Give me another hundred. Johnny Sin stares at Xiao Tian in disbelief, unable to speak for a long time. Our clan's ultimate weapon, something that would obliterate everything in a hundred mile radius and dissipate all the spiritual energy between heaven and earth. How did it turn into a unique tasting snack in his mouth? Isn't this bullying the honest people? Zhong Yang Ming, who is standing nearby, holds on to other members of the Blood Rune clan. Prince, are you alright? Xiao Tian dismisses it with a wave of his hand. I'm fine. Upon hearing this, Zhong Yang Ming tosses the people he's holding like trash onto the ground, glaring at them. These people are troublesome and seem very special. They're actually body cultivators. Johnny Sin looks at his captured subordinates, despair filling his face. It seems we're doomed. Just then, Xiao Tian suddenly turns serious and looks at Zhong Yang Ming, Prime Minister Zhong. From earlier until now, I've noticed something serious. Zhong Yang Ming, who just returned to his original form, immediately becomes anxious upon hearing Xiao Tian's words. Prince, what's the matter? Johnny Sin is even more nervous on the side. Could it be that our void battleship stationed outside the void has been discovered by this monster? If that's the case, our leader and others would be in danger. Who knew that the next second, Xiao Tian would point at Zhong Yang Ming and shout, first of all, your entrance pose was not cool enough. What was that crouch about? You should have been sitting, one arm on your leg and the other propping up your slightly tilted head, looking down on them coldly. Xiao Tian speaks as if he's very serious about this matter.
matter. Also, Giant Spirit Fist isn't a cool enough name. I've thought of a better one, raising arm of divine tyranny across the skies. As he says this, Xiao Tian suddenly turns to Zhanisen. By the way, what race are you guys? Before Zhanisen could snap out of his daze, he hears the question and becomes even more stupefied. Xiao Tian immediately slaps him. Under a precise control of force, Zhanisen spins like a top at high speed. Xiao Tian narrows his eyes slightly, and a terrifying aura of murderous intent begins to fill the air. I was just talking. Why weren't you paying attention? Are you plotting something? Zhanisen, who's been slapped into a daze, finally mumbles. We are the Blood Rune Clan. Xiao Tian smiles slightly. Well, in that case, this punch shall be named the Titanic Divine Sky Dominating Blood Rune Annihilating Fist. What do you think? He looks at Zhong Yangming with confidence. Zhong Yangming can only awkwardly smile and say, Very good. Indeed a great name. Xiao Tian continues to give his insights. Some of your moves earlier were also incorrect. Your battle experience is still lacking. For instance, you wasted too much power, and some aspects of your attacks were not smooth enough. Zhong Yangming promptly takes out a notebook to jot down the pointers, feeling deeply impressed inside. No wonder Prince Xiao is so skilled in combat, truly a learning experience. However, he wonders, just what has Prince Xiao been through to have developed such intricate attacking techniques? With that thought, Zhong Yangming lets out a wistful sigh. After giving a few key points, Xiao Tian says, Alright, that's enough for now. Digest what you've learned. Upon hearing this, Zhong Yangming quickly bows, Prince. I'll pay attention next time. Xiao Tian frowns. What do you mean next time? Why not right now? It's still early. There's plenty of time. Saying this, Xiao Tian suddenly takes out a bottle of elixir pills. He walks up to the severely injured members of the Blood Rune Clan and feeds each one a pill. In no time, the men look at themselves in disbelief, feeling completely refreshed as if all their injuries have healed. At this moment, Xiao Tian claps his hands to get everyone's attention. Alright, let's do it all over again. Starting from the point where you all noticed him gathering energy within his body, preparing to fight. You guys need to act panicked and scared, like the first time you saw him. Don't look all dumb and numb. This is your chance for redemption. The members of the Blood Rune Clan are puzzled. What's going on? Is this guy a director or what? Seeing their lack of cooperation, Xiao Tian feels a wave of anger rise within him. He throws a powerful punch, instantly smashing the member who was just standing there looking stunned. He then yells at the remaining people. What kind of expression is that? I'm giving you an opportunity here, and you're not even taking this rehearsal seriously. You're beyond redemption. Everyone is stunned by the imposing aura exuded by Xiao Tian. The giant from earlier took ages to beat us into severe injuries, but this guy obliterated us with a single slap without even any fluctuation in spiritual energy. This is too terrifying. Better cooperate. Perhaps, we could still survive and go back home to our families. Quickly, the first trial begins. Just as Zhong Yangming is about to throw a punch, he hears Xiao Tian shout, Cut! Blood Rune Clan, I need serious expressions from you. Fear, understand, be afraid. Let's do it again. On the fourth take, Zhong Yangming is in the middle of chasing the members. Xiao Tian speaks again. Cut. Zhong Yangming, pay attention to what's behind you, not just who you're chasing in front. Be aware of your surroundings. Let's do it again. By the sixth take, Zhong Yangming is beating up the members of the Blood Rune Clan, who are wailing and begging for mercy. Finally, on the seventh take, one of the bald members can't take it anymore. The high-pressure environment and humiliation break him. After letting out a roar, he raises his hands and slams them onto his own head. His skull shatters. His soul leaves the body, but he has a relieved and satisfied expression on his face. However, Xiao Tian takes out another medicine bottle and encouragingly says, escaping won't solve the problem. Facing it courageously is the only way to redeem yourself. As he speaks, Xiao Tian forcefully shoves two elixir pills into the man's mouth. The soul that was on the verge of ascending to the heavens suddenly halts, sensing that something is terribly wrong. The next moment, the medicine takes effect. His injuries heal rapidly and his departing soul is violently pulled back, causing him to scream, let me go, let me die, please, don't revive me. No matter how much he struggles, it's futile. The man who was about to die suddenly sits up, gasping for air as if he just woke up from a nightmare. Xiao Tian then pats him reassuringly on the shoulder. Don't give up. I believe you can do it. The bald man's lips are trembling. Even though Xiao Tian is smiling at this moment, he still feels terrified. Why won't they let me die with dignity? Shaken to his core, the bald man seems to lose his mind, mumbling, it's karma, all karma. I was wrong. I shouldn't have set foot on an invading warship. Xiao Tian clenches his fist and shouts, stop playing dead. Let's do it again. Everyone remember, this is not a rehearsal. Zhong Yang Ming, begin. After several more attempts, the whole valley is a mess. Zhanisen suddenly kneels on the ground, sobbing loudly. I was wrong, truly wrong. I shouldn't have invaded, shouldn't have taken joy in slaughtering humans. While crying, he beats his chest and stomps his feet. Finally, he looks up towards the sky, his eyes empty. Moments later, there's no sign of life left in him. His soul completely disintegrates. Xiao Tian looks at Zhanisen, who has lost all hope of survival, and sighs. Why can't they even withstand such a minor test? Zhong Yang Ming starts to analyze with a serious 
mysterious face, at least, we can confirm that the Blood Rune Clan are body cultivators. However, unlike the body cultivator realm, they can break through to higher levels. Also, what is the background of this Blood Rune Clan? Why did they suddenly visit the Holy Demon Realm? What's their purpose? Although their cultivation system is much weaker compared to the martial arts techniques you've taught, it's still very unique. What's the objective here? Just as he says this, Xiao Tian turns his head leisurely, only to suddenly freeze. The entire valley falls into silence. Only he and Zhong Yang Ming are left standing. All the Blood Rune Clan warriors have turned into lifeless corpses, their souls vanished into oblivion. Zhong Yang Ming falls silent for a moment before finally speaking. Prince, you've gone too far. You've left none alive. Xiao Tian shakes his head. You're mistaken. It's not that I went too far. It's that they had something to hide and couldn't bear the pressure. They were probably plotting something against me and feared that I would see through it. With that said, Xiao Tian takes a couple of steps forward and places his hand on Johnnyson's head. That's why they couldn't focus earlier and lost their chance to survive. With a slight exertion of force, Johnnyson's body instantly turns into ashes. At that moment, Xiao Tian suddenly spots a flying boat hovering in the sky. Zhong Yangming also looks up, and after pondering for a moment, says, These criminals from the Blood Rune Clan have wasted your time. You even went to the trouble of teaching them how to be good, and had to personally rehearse with them. Labor fees, tuition, emotional distress, a mere flying boat will surely not be enough. With that, Zhong Yangming hands over their storage rings to Xiao Tian. Prince, with these, I think many people in the Holy Demon Realm facing difficulties will be helped. This is not war spoils, it's charity and good deeds. Xiao Tian looks at Zhong Yangming, surprised and pleased by his enlightened thinking. He reaches out to tightly grasp Zhong Yangming's hand, somewhat excitedly telling him, you finally understood, I am not alone in my path. Just a moment ago, after Xiao Tian wiped out everyone from the Blood Rune Clan, he blew a breath over the valley, lifting up the entire valley's ground. After all, cleaning up the battlefield is everyone's responsibility to protect the environment. Immediately afterwards, Xiao Tian took Zhong Yangming into the captured spaceship. It was even more spacious than expected. It was controlled by magic arrays and powered by many huge spirit stones. Xiao Tian sat in the main seat, yawned, and ordered, Puppy, control the spaceship's array. Go to Green Flame Mountain to get a Green Flame Pig, then return to Prince's Palace. Puppy obediently replied, Yes, Master. Then, he patted Zhong Yangming on the shoulder. You've worked hard before. Go get a Green Flame Pig later. Cook it for me to replenish my strength. Zhong Yangming awkwardly smiled. He could be touched by even a single wrong word, but he still obediently said, All right, Prince, no problem, very soon. Under the spaceship's rapid speed, the two caught a pig and returned above Prince's palace. Puppy told Xiao Tian, Master, we have arrived. Xiao Tian got up and stretched. I'll have someone modify this spaceship later. It can totally serve as a means of transportation. It's best to find the people from the Blood Rune Clan and make them compensate us for our losses. Just then, Puppy suddenly notified, Master, Bai Qing is approaching. Xiao Tian was initially indifferent, so what if she's approaching? What does it matter? But the next second, a roar of thunder came from far and near. The spaceship's floor was suddenly smashed open. This white-haired little dragon lady just came in by smashing her head through. Both Xiao Tian and Zhong Yangming were shocked. Is this girl also starting to make dramatic entrances? But before the two could react, Bai Qing smashed through the top of the spaceship again and flew out through a hole, leaving only the flickering light of thunder. After flying tens of meters more, Bai Qing finally stopped, her expression bewildered. Did she just fly too fast and see things wrong? How could Xiao Tian and Zhong Yangming be in that spaceship? Unsure, she considered going back to check, but that spaceship was already falling apart. The hole she had made began to crumble. The next second, the spaceship broke into two halves, with golden electric light flickering constantly. Xiao Tian grabbed Bai Qing, quickly moved away from there, and in the next second, the spaceship that had been split in two hadn't even hit the ground yet. It exploded violently in midair, turning into a huge ball of fire. Xiao Tian was holding a green flame pig, staring blankly at his own spoils of war. My spaceship, my money, my compensation, all turned into fireworks. Both turned their heads simultaneously, facing each other. A wave of unspoken emotion spread. Finally, Bai Qing turned her head away, not daring to meet Xiao Tian's gaze. She really wanted to say this had nothing to do with her. Soon after, inside Prince's palace, two figures, one tall and one short, stood face to face. Bai Qing looked apologetic, very sorry. For some reason, seeing this warship, this shuttle, especially seeing the Blood Rune Clan's insignia, she just couldn't help but act. Zhong Yangming quietly dragged the green flame pig towards the kitchen. Xiao Tian was expressionless, pausing between each word. You, oh, me. Bai Qing could only answer honestly. I don't have anything too valuable on me right now, and given my amnesiac state, it's difficult to compensate. So, I could repay with my service. You can order me to do things as compensation. Xiao Tian squinted at this clueless girl. Judging from the current situation, it doesn't seem like there's anything you can help with. Bai Qing thought for a moment, then clenched her fists. Next time you fight those two empresses, if they bully you, I can protect you. Xiao Tian awkwardly coughed. No, no, you can't get involved in that matter. What should we do then? Bai Qing 
Qing sighed. You took me in, and I ended up ruining your things. Xiao Tian seemed to think of something. You said you acted impulsively when you saw the mark on that warship. That suggests they were targeting you, or rather, they were using you as an excuse to get to me. Bai Qing nodded without hesitation. Possibly. Maybe me crashing into you was predestined. At this, Xiao Tian fell into thought. Now all you need to do is recover your memory and find your home. Then you can pay me back for the spaceship. Two birds, one stone. You just said you'll do anything I ask, right? Bai Qing quickly nodded. Yes, anything you want me to do. Xiao Tian's mouth curved into a small smile. I've heard that physical activity helps stimulate the brain, and amnesia usually has some conventional solutions. Later, the two empresses came to Xiao Tian's prince palace, both thinking that they must sleep alone with Xiao tonight. However, as they approached the prince palace, Zi Ruoyan and Luo Fengyuan looked shocked. Did something happen? They hastily used their power and rushed toward the palace. When they stepped in, they were stunned by the scene before them. What the hell is going on? They saw Xiao Tian comfortably lying on a recliner that had been intentionally adjusted to a certain height. In front of him, Bai Qing was suspended in midair, swinging back and forth like a pendulum. Every time she swung towards Xiao Tian, her head would collide with his, and then she would swing back. The two stood there, dumbfounded. He's sleeping so soundly through this. In that frequency, it's so consistent. Luo Feng Yuan suddenly looked excited, her body trembling slightly. This is so interesting. What are they doing? Is this a special form of training? Zi Ruoyan, looking at Luo Feng Yuan, who seemed to have lost her senses again, yelled, Have you lost your mind? How could you find this amusing? We need to rescue them now. With that, Zi Ruoyan hurriedly moved forward, extending her hand to dissipate the spiritual energy that was suspending by Qing, and then caught her as she fell. Xiao Tian heard the commotion and groggily opened his eyes. Seeing Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan, he stretched and yawned. You're back? Luo Feng Yuan quickly approached, asking with anticipation, Brother Xiao, were you guys practicing? If so, can you hang me up and do the same? Xiao Tian wordlessly stretched out his hands, squeezing both of Luo Feng Yuan's cheeks toward the middle. What nonsense are you talking about? What kind of training involves hanging people up and swinging them around? Luo Feng Yuan pointed at Bai Qing defiantly. Isn't that what you were just doing? After setting down Bai Qing, Zi Ruoyan checked her over carefully. Finding no issues, she finally sighed in relief. Thankfully, she's fine. She then turned to Xiao Tian, slightly annoyed. You weren't actually thinking this would help her regain her memory, were you? Why not? Xiao Tian grinned confidently. I believe she must have remembered something by now. He then looked at Bai Qing with anticipation. Bai Qing touched her forehead thoughtfully, finally saying, other than a headache, it doesn't seem like I've remembered anything. Feeling drained, Xiao Tian let out a long sigh. How is that possible? I remember hearing that a good hit on the head could restore lost memories. Listening to this, Zi Ruoyan was dumbfounded. What kind of bizarre idea is that? Where did you even hear such a method? Scratching his head awkwardly, Xiao Tian explained, I heard it back in my hometown during leisure times. Speaking of his hometown, Xiao Tian's eyes suddenly lit up. Another idea of flooding his mind. Speaking of which, getting shocked by electricity might also work. Bai Qing, you can control lightning. Can you strike yourself? Bai Qing extended her hand to feel the power of her controlled lightning. I could give it a try. Hearing this, Xiao Tian was visibly excited. Then let's. Before he could finish his sentence, he suddenly felt a cold chill from behind. He turned around to see Zi Ruoyan looking at him furiously. Quickly changing his tune, Xiao Tian said, let's quickly have dinner then. Zhong Yang Ming, is my pork ready? Almost there, prince. Zhong Yang Ming responded. Hearing this, Xiao Tian swallowed hard. An angry wife is truly terrifying. That night, everyone sat down for a hot pot dinner. When the specially made green flame pig brain was ready, Zi Ruoyan split it in two, half for Bai Qing and half for Luo Feng Yuan. Annoyed, she told them both, eat this to nourish your brains. She then looked at Bai Qing with resignation. It's one thing for brother Xiao to fool around, but why are you joining in? Bai Qing picked up the pig brain from her bowl and stuffed it into her mouth, chewing as she answered, if there's even a slight chance, I'm willing to try. Luo Feng Yuan and immediately chimed in, exactly, you're too serious, Z. As she spoke, she tried to pour more pig brain into Bai Qing's bowl. Z Ruoyan was not pleased, the saying goes, you are what you eat, don't think about giving that pig brain to Bai Qing. Luo Feng Yuan quickly grabbed her hand to divert the topic, then what should you eat to get back to normal? Z Ruoyan clenched her fist in anger, say that again? Luo Feng Yuan stood up, chest out, what do you want to do? The two stared each other down, grinding their molars audibly. Bai Qing simply picked up the pig brain with her chopsticks, put it in her mouth mouth, and said, I think I've actually remembered something. Upon hearing this, all three turned to look at her. Even Xiao Tian stopped using his chopsticks. Bai Qing looked seriously at Luo Feng Yuan. You are important, Empress Luo. All hope rests on you. After a moment of stunned silence, Luo Feng Yuan eagerly asked, Is there more? What else have you remembered? Bai Qing shook her head. I can't remember anymore. Let me check my dragon spirit. The next second, a majestic dragon spirit rose, and although the magical patterns on it were still there, cracks had indeed begun to appear. Seeing this, Xiao Tian accepted excitedly slapped the table and stood up. It really works. How about we go and, before he could finish, a menacing look from Zi Ruoyan silenced him. He could only complain
Jin inwardly. Why does Zi Ruoyan never agree with my ideas? Just then, the ever curious Luo Feng Yuan suddenly spoke up. Brother Zhao's method is so good, why not let him try? Seeing Xiao Tian hang his head in disappointment, Luo Feng Yuan quickly shot Zi Ruoyan a glance. Tonight, Brother Xiao, sleep. Zi Ruoyan extended her little hand and made an okay gesture, signaling that she understood. Immediately, the two began to argue. I don't agree. Are you looking for trouble on purpose? So what if I am? Xiao Tian was dumbfounded. What's gotten into these two now? The next second, they both swung their arms, and numerous jars of wine instantly appeared in the courtyard. Each picked up a jar and taunted, Come on, who's afraid of who? Without further ado, they both tilted their heads back and started chugging. Xiao Tian watched in awe. My kidneys won't survive this. A sense of foreboding overcame him, prompting him to pick up a plate of stir-fried kidneys and start eating furiously. Bai Qing, who had been quietly eating her meal, was completely taken aback by the spectacle. Do they really love alcohol that much? Little did she know, what they were drinking was not alcohol, but loneliness. Unfortunately, the price was Xiao Tian's complete exhaustion. It wasn't long before the two empresses were drunk and collapsed. Xiao Tian looked at the two collapsed women with a resigned expression, thinking, I'll have to ask Zhong Yang Ming to make me a very nervous meal tomorrow. Preparing to help the two empresses to their room, Bai Qing suddenly tapped Xiao Tian on the shoulder and asked, Need help? Xiao Tian quickly nodded in agreement. The two of them then proceeded to carry the two empresses to their room. As soon as they were placed on the bed, they naturally cuddled together. With a look of apology, Xiao Tian turned to Bai Qing, Sorry for the trouble. Bai Qing analyzed seriously, It's not a bother. Holding Her Majesty Z is much easier. Her Majesty Luo, on the other hand, is too large to manage easily. It's cumbersome to hold her. Although Her Majesty Z is not not bad. Some things are troubling when there's a comparison. What they didn't notice was that at some point, Zi Ruoyan had clenched her fist tightly. Luo Feng Yuan whispered, Don't move. She is telling the truth. Endure it for the sake of sleeping next to Brother Xiao. Upon hearing this, Zi Ruoyan angrily tightened her grip on Luo Feng Yuan, who seemed rather excited. Press harder. Don't hold back on me. Bai Qing, noticing this slight movement, was a bit puzzled. Did Her Majesty Zi and Luo just move? At this moment, Xiao Tian asked, Didn't I arrange a place for you to stay? Why haven't you left? Bai Qing lightly touched her lips with her index finger. I'm sorry for troubling you again, but could you knock me out like yesterday? I felt really relaxed when I woke up. Xiao Tian sighed in resignation, then took out a mattress and spread it on the ground, then sleep here. Bai Qing crawled into the blanket that Xiao Tian had provided. Thank you, good night. With a chop of his hand, Xiao Tian knocked Bai Qing out again. As she fell back, her head hit the soft pillow and she fell into a deep sleep. Xiao Tian half crouched there, one hand supporting his knee, gazing at her in silence. The silver-haired dragon lady in front of me gives off the impression that she herself doesn't dare to sleep. Even now, in her unconscious state, her body is tense as if by instinct. What kind of environment must she have been in before? Just as Xiao Tian was lost in thought, he suddenly noticed a black tail appearing in front of him. Brother Xiao, it's time to go to sleep. Xiao Tian chuckled softly as he looked at the two women. Sometimes the world is just like this. When you can't resist, all you can do is resign yourself to enjoying what you have. It seems there's no other choice. So, Xiao Tian resumed his plumbing work. After a night of clearing out the drains, he woke up the next day feeling refreshed. At that moment, Bai Qing slowly opened her eyes and sat up. She looked behind her and noticed the bed was gone. Xiao Tian, holding a large cup of tea, slowly walked over. Are you awake? Yes, I slept well last night. Thank you for your help. Did you guys fight again last night? And what are you drinking? It smells wonderful. Xiao Tian handed over the cup of tea to her. Did you get injured in the fight last night? Are you drinking medicinal tea to heal? Xiao Tian conjured a new bed with a wave of his hand. This is six flavor Romania tea that I've prepared. It's remarkably effective for restoring vitality. Bai Qing gave the tea back to Xiao Tian. You do need to replenish your strength. I can sense you've been quite weak these past days. You must have suffered some internal injuries. Do you need my help to heal? Xiao Tian was curious. You can heal? I seem to recall something about dragon saliva being good for wounds in my memories. Though, I don't think I've ever done it before. You're a good person. I can try licking your wound. Xiao Tian was instantly alarmed. Sprang out the tea he was drinking. Stop. Stop. I've asked Long Chiu Dao about this. It's nonsense. Besides, my injuries can't be healed by ordinary means. Seeing Xiao Tian's refusal. Bai Qing had no choice but to relent. Then let's try the electric shock therapy you mentioned yesterday. Xiao Tian was puzzled. Why are you in such a rush? You're safe now. Take some time to rest. Bai Qing explained. I want to recover my memories as quickly as possible so that I can compensate you for any losses I've caused. Xiao Tian was silent for a long time. Is that your only reason? Bai Qing has a serious expression on her face. I've already caused you a lot of trouble here. Moreover, I've promised you, so I must act quickly. Xiao Tian suddenly smiled happily. Very well. Let's go. But besides electric Electroshock. I have thought of an even better method. Really? That's great. Suddenly, Luo Feng Yuan's voice called out, Xiao brother, hurry up and go mooch a meal at Prime Minister Zhong's house. At this moment, Zhang Wushuang was standing on a flying boat, gazing at the holy demon realm. His face was filled with worry, but he could only pretend to be calm. However, his lieutenant,
side. Zhang Zhuo couldn't help but ask, Boss, it's been three days. Zhang Yixin and the others have been gone for so long, and there's still no news. Could something have happened? Hearing this, Zhang Wushuang calmly replied, Haven't you figured out why I sent the 10th team yet? Zhang Zhuo awkwardly scratched his head. Isn't it because Team 10 is the weakest? What else could it be? At these words, Zhang Wushuang turned his head away, somewhat disappointed. Can't you think more long-term like me? I've told you before, observe and notice the talents among these younger generations. I'm very confident in Zhang Yixin. He's calm and composed, and the most suitable for gathering information. I guess he deliberately turned off the communication array on the flying boat to avoid detection. Zhang Zhuo was somewhat surprised. How did you know, boss? I just checked, and it really is turned off. Hearing this, Zhang Wushuang felt even more confident in his judgment. That's why you should mature a bit. There are things you can learn from Team 10. Let's wait a few more days for them to reply. Maybe they'll come back and report in person. Zhang Zhuo laughed awkwardly. Boss, you really are the boss. Always thinking long term. I have so much to learn. But another 10 days have passed. Boss, there's still no contact from Zhang Yixin. Could something really have happened? Zhang Wushuang turned his head to look at him with disdain. What did I tell you before? Young people should be steady. He still has a blood crystal. What are you worried about? If something really happened, we would have seen an explosion by now. Zhang Zhuo scratched his bald head, but it's been so long, and still no news. Zhang Wushuang turned back to face him. You've been with me for a long time, Zhang Zhuo. From the siege of the sacred dragon to the breakout of the holy demon clan, I have to criticize you. Zhang Yixin has gone deep into enemy territory. Who knows what dangers he has faced? And you, as one of the older members of the clan, can't even give him a bit of trust. How many times have I told you to stay calm, steady, and relax? Zhang Zhuo felt helpless, but it's been 10 days now. He should have at least reported something, right? No news at all isn't good. Zhang Wushuang still dismissed his concerns. You need to learn to be calm. Don't make a fool of yourself. You should learn from Zhang Yixin. Do you know what it means when there's no news for 10 days? Zhang Zhuo looked surprised. What does it mean? Zhang Wushuang waved his hand dramatically and raised his voice. It means the dangers below are more complicated than we imagined. Zhang Yixin must be cautiously laying a solid foundation for us. What we need to do now is to believe in him unreservedly and wait patiently for his good news. Trust me, Zhang Yixin will definitely succeed. He might have already infiltrated the enemy base and is about to get the core secrets of the Holy Demon Emperor. Zhang Zhuo looked at his boss's eyes full of expectation and couldn't help but think, Zhang Yixin, you're about to hit it big. Time quietly passed, and a full month later, Zhang Wushuang began to doubt. Zhang Zhuo cautiously asked, Boss, you don't think this kid has defected, do you? It's been so long. Hearing this, Zhang Wushuang erupted in anger. Absolutely impossible. Zhang Zhuo couldn't help but remind him, but it's been a month, boss. Zhang Wushuang felt a chill run down his spine. No, this can't be. Zhang Zhuo patted Zhang Wushuang's shoulder. Boss, we're not a clan of fools. Even if Zhang Yixin is steady, he's still part of our blood room clan. Either he's gone, or he's become someone else's lackey. There's no other reason. Upon hearing this, Zhang Wushuang finally had to accept the reality. How he wished Zhang Yixin was from a clan of fools. He had misplaced his trust. After pondering for a moment, Zhang Wushuang gave an order. You take the second and fifth teams and go down to check the situation. Be cautious. Do not act recklessly. Zhang Zhuo clenched his fists. Understood. Boss, I'm not a greenhorn. We will complete the mission. You can count on us. Zhang Wushuang nodded slightly. Go on. I have faith in you. Moments later, seven or eight flying boats rushed straight into the holy demon realm. At this moment, on Green Flame Mountain, two flying boats from the Blood Rune Clan were parked with a cloaking spell. Zhang Zhuo was giving orders. The second team is stronger. Scout the surroundings first. Report immediately if anything unusual happens. Fifth team, set up a perimeter and scan the environment. Let's see what's going on. Finishing his instructions, he gestured, pulling both flying boats into his own spatial artifact. Once this was done, he once again instructed the teams behind him, be discreet, don't engage unless absolutely necessary. The crowd shouted in unison, understood. Shortly after, the captain of the fifth team, Zhang Jiji, began to set up the formation, placing a special spiritual tool capable of scanning the realm's environment and providing relevant intelligence. Spiritual energy detection array, activate. As he yelled, a complex formation appeared in the air. But Zhang Jiji suddenly froze, looking at the spiritual energy forming a curtain in front of him, speaking in a surprised tone. This data, why is it like this? Hearing this, Zhang Zhuo immediately came over to inquire, what's going on? Zhang Jiji pointed at the fluctuations displayed by the spiritual energy. The holy demon realm is a mid-level realm, but its spatial stability is almost on par with higher realms. Its levels of spiritual energy, laws of heaven and earth, are all gradually increasing. Zhang Zhuo looked puzzled. Isn't that stating the obvious? Realms will ascend unless they are in a period of decline. Zhang Jiji patiently explained, but that's based on long-term observations. The elevation of the holy demon realm is visible to the naked eye. There must be something anchoring this place, making its spiritual energy increase at a rate a day compared to a year in other mid-level realms. Hearing this, Zhang Zhuo's eyes sparkled with understanding. It looks like this is the secret behind the formidable strength of holy demon emperor Luo Taotian. Maybe Zhang Yixin has gone off the radar 
Avatar to take all the credit for himself. Shan Jishi once again manipulated the spiritual tool array. After scanning for a moment, he pinpointed a direction. The spiritual energy fluctuations over there seem to date back to a very distant era. Maybe we'll find something worthwhile there. Zhang Zhuo patted him on the shoulder. Good job, young man. Let's head in that direction. Find this ancient treasure and uncover the secrets of Holy Demon Emperor. Little did they know, they were actually heading towards the palace of Prince Xiao Tian. Meanwhile, Xiao Tian, who was currently practicing standing meditation with Zhong Yangming and others, suddenly sneezed violently, rubbing his nose with a puzzled expression. He wondered, who's thinking about me out of the blue? Never mind, it's not important. The current main task is to boost the spiritual power in the holy demon realm. Puppy, how are things going? Puppy's voice immediately responded, Master, rest assured. After you've been exercising, the realm has improved even more dramatically. According to the data, based on the current rate of progress, the livestock and crops on Green Flame Mountain will taste about 70% better next time. The taste will be more appealing. Xiao Tian immediately smiled. Well done. The improvement in the food's taste, coupled with Zhong Yangming's increasingly better culinary skills, this will be heavenly. Just then, Xiao Tian noticed Bai Qing at the courtyard entrance. Why are you back? Shouldn't you be with Luo Feng Yuan today? Bai Qing scratched her head awkwardly. Well, you see, she went to see the two empresses today. Both of them offered money for her to join them in beating themselves up. Luo Feng Yuan was confident, saying, All of you, come on, it's more fun for me to fight. Zi Ruoyan also looked assured. Both of you attack, it's good practice for me, considering I've hit a bottleneck in recovering my memory and still owe money to Prince Xiao. I agreed. Later on, Empress Luo was taken away by Empress Xi for official duties, so I came back early. Saying this, she looked up and inquired, Are you conditioning your body again? Xiao Tian, standing on a pillar, responded, Sort of. Would you like to try? Bai Qing excitedly nodded and pushed off the ground. In an instant, she flew up and landed steadily on a pillar. Xiao Tian couldn't help but exclaim, Wow, you're quite talented. Bai Qing then smiled and handed over a bag of money she was holding. Here, this is for you, for today. Xiao Tian stared intently at the spirit stone in her hand. I appreciate young people like you who are honest and pay their debts on time. He gave her a thumbs up as he spoke. At this, Zhong Ling who was nearby couldn't help but ask, Why is another woman giving money to Prince and using the money she earned from the two empresses, no less. Lu Yan, not at all surprised, calmly sipped his tea and said, the name might be wrong, but the title is spot on. The prince is indeed the supreme benevolent sugar baby deity. At this moment, in the imperial study of the palace, Luo Feng Yuan yawned widely, bored out of her mind, as she lay on the desk in front of her, surrounded by countless petitions. She aimlessly slapped her tail against the floor. Zi Ruoyan, on the other hand, was diligently reviewing documents. Luo Feng Yuan turned her head and asked, I don't get it. How can you be so busy all the time and still manage to improve your strength so quickly. You've broken through to the 14th level in such a short time. That's really fast. Seeing that Zi Ruoyan remained silent, Luo Feng Yuan muttered to herself, Is this the incredible power of the human empress bloodline? Just be a good empress, govern the subjects well, and naturally you'll increase your strength. After a while, Zi Ruoyan finally finished reviewing the petitions and explained, Regular cultivation is indispensable. Moreover, I'm just making more rational use of the time you're wasting by complaining. She tapped Luo Feng Yuan's head with a stack of paper as she spoke. Not just me, even Bai Qing, despite her amnesia, finds time to cultivate diligently. Luo Feng Yuan pouted. What's the point then? However, if brother Xiao continues to scold and reprimand me harshly, I'll definitely be motivated to cultivate. Dreamily imagining this, Luo Feng Yuan looked as if she were lost in her own world. Zi Ruoyan was speechless. Your bad habits really leave me at a loss for words. Plus, Lord Xiao has been getting gentler recently. It's going to be hard to provoke him. Luo Feng Yuan, looking quite regretful, sprawled across the desk. True, but remember, Brother Xiao was really angry when he thought I was going to steal a pig. Suddenly, she slapped the table, stood up and exclaimed, I've got it, startling Zi Ruoyan so much that her writing went crooked. She looked at Luo Feng Yuan, what are you planning now? Luo Feng Yuan smiled wistfully, as if planning her next move, nothing much, I just thought of a way to provoke Brother Xiao, I'll be back shortly. Zi Ruoyan shouted after her retreating figure, be careful, don't do anything reckless. Luo Feng Yuan quickly departed, don't worry, I'm just going to steal a pig. Zi Ruoyan was puzzled. Old. Steal a pig? What kind of plan is that? After leaving the palace, Luo Feng Yuan headed straight for the Green Flame Mountain Livestock Farm, which was pretty much Xiao Tian's private property and not for sale to the public. The Green Flame pigs were fat and healthy, spending their days eating, drinking, and sunbathing. Luo Feng Yuan arrived above the farm and targeted a specific pig, thinking, if I steal Brother Zhao's most treasured 5 at grade number 998 pig, he'll definitely be furious. He he he. Soon, many people witnessed the sight of Luo Feng Yuan parading through the streets, pulling along Xiao Tian's favorite pig, with a bright smile on her face. She thought to herself, I wonder how brother Xiao will punish me, he'll probably hit me really hard on the head, he he he. Just then, a peculiar wave of spiritual power, accompanied by the aura of burning
blazing flames, came roaring towards her from not too far away. Luo Feng Yuan was stunned, already, the pig was equally astonished, thinking, looks like I'm going to be roasted. With a loud crash, Luo Feng Yuan was knocked back, the green flame pig sent flying as well. Demonic energy surged within her, and her black tight-fitting leather clothes were instantly covered by black armor. A huge black scythe appeared in her hand. Luo Feng Yuan's aura erupted, and purple demonic flames rose up. She looked at the bald man in armor opposite her and demanded, Who are you? What are you doing here? The man was none other than Zhang Zhuo, the second team captain of the Blood Rune clan. Clenching his fist, his blood runes flamed up like wildfire. With a mighty punch aimed at Luo Feng Yuan, he yelled, Never mind who I am, eat my fist first. With a clang, the man's fist collided with Luo Feng Yuan's black scythe. Sparks flew in an instant, and the force from the collision rapidly separated them. Luo Feng Yuan was sent flying quite a distance before she finally stopped. As she landed, something suddenly occurred to her, and she shouted, Damn it, where's my pig? If it's gone, Xiao Tian will be heartbroken. Luo Feng Yuan looked around anxiously. The green flame pig was lying not far behind her, looking serene and motionless. Just then, footsteps sounded. Luo Feng Yuan looked up and realized she was surrounded by a dozen bald men. Zhang Zhuo, who was leading them, finally spoke. Woman of the Demon Clan, judging by the aura emanating from you, are you the current demon empress of the Holy Demon Domain? Zhang Zhuo's face was serious. What is your relationship with Holy Demon Emperor Luo Tao Yan? As he spoke, he suddenly paused, sensing a terrifying killing intent. Luo Feng Yuan's demonic flames were dancing violently as if boiling. She glared at the men before her, her eyes filled with extreme rage. You filthy male vermin, that's my man's favorite ingredient. You disgusting lowlifes. Die. With that, Luo Feng Yuan's aura erupted completely, and she charged at the Blood Room clan members, swinging her scythe. On the other hand, Zi Ruoyan was initially focused on handling administrative affairs. As her pen moved, the fate of the entire dynasty seemed to flow into her like golden light. Suddenly, her hand, which was holding the pen, paused. She clearly felt a strong fluctuation of spiritual energy coming from the green flame mountain outside the palace. Making such a commotion over stealing a pig? Suddenly, it seemed like she thought of something. Zi Ruoyan abruptly stood up, and her white armor with golden patterns instantly covered her entire body. She burst into golden light and flew out of her study, heading straight for Green Flame Mountain. It's not possible for Luo Feng Yuan to cause such a ruckus just by stealing a pig. Something must have happened. Meanwhile, Luo Feng Yuan, amidst the Blood Rune clan members, swung her scythe like a spinning windmill. The collision forced the numerous bald men of the Blood Rune clan to repeatedly retreat. Suddenly, Luo Feng Yuan tightly gripped her scythe and shouted, Demonic flames, sky high. In an instant, an even more intense burst of purple demonic flames erupted. As she swung her arm, the burning purple flames seemed like rolling tidal waves. The many Blood Rune clan members who were maintaining their offensive stance quickly crossed their arms in front of them. In that moment, a murderous intent emerged. Those with weaker powers could not withstand it. Their armor was torn apart, and they screamed in agony. Seeing the situation go awry, Zhang Zhuo quickly ordered a retreat. His veins bulged, and flames of bloody red energy burned all over him, forming a Blood Rune flame figure. As Zhang Zhuo shouted angrily, the ignited spiritual energy between heaven and earth instantly transformed into a hundred meter tall fire giant. The giant moved in sync with Zhang Zhuo, tightly clenching its fist and aiming it directly at Luo Feng Yuan. Luo Feng Yuan smirked, revealing a look of disdain. In the next second, she vanished before the giant's fist, only to reappear above its head. Her demonic energy exploded, and purple flames continually burned, forming a giant fiery scythe. Then, Luo Feng Yuan swung the massive scythe with increasing force and speed. Suddenly, a booming sound erupted as they collided. The ground trembled slightly, and a large, deep pit formed, surrounded by burning flames. Zhang Zhuo was sent flying by the recoil and landed on the ground. Zhang Zhizhi quickly stepped forward to steady him. Zhang Zhuo's face was full of shock. This member of the Holy Demon Clan was much stronger than what he had known from the intelligence. She was at least on par with him, a 16th level fighter. Suddenly, the surrounding air seemed to cool. Zhang Zhizhi looked around in confusion. Vice Commander, why does it feel colder? At that moment, a pair of feet gently landed on the ground. The newcomer was surrounded by an intense chill, with even ice crystals falling from her body. It was Zi Ruoyan. She cradled Luo Feng Yuan in a princess hold and said with a smirk, Your plan sure made a lot of noise, didn't it? Luo Feng Yuan clenched her fists and accused, These pests from who knows where, these filthy things, killed the number 998 that Xiao brother had prepared for us to enjoy for the new year. Number 998? Zi Ruoyan was slightly taken aback. So these people are the Blood Rune clan that Lord Xiao and Prime Minister Zhong mentioned? The bald members of the Blood Rune clan all looked solemnly at the two women before them. Zi Ruoyan gave a faint smile. I was planning to track you down, but here you are, right on my doorstep. How convenient. Luo Feng Yuan stepped down from Zi Ruoyan's embrace and picked up her black scythe again. Be careful. They are body cultivators capable of regular cultivation. They're tough to deal with. Zi Ruoyan, however, was nonchalant. A golden power 
burst from her as she held a giant golden sword and said with a light smile, just beat them half to death and capture them. Zhang Zhuo looked at them with a face full of mockery, interesting, a holy demon clan woman, and you bring along a 14th level helper, and she's human? Before Zhang Zhuo could finish, the sky and earth shook. Above the entire Great Flame Dynasty, the national fate appeared like a golden river spanning thousands of miles, turning into imperial dragon energy and pouring into Zi Ruoyan. Zhang Zhizhi blurted out, what the hell, is this the human emperor? Even Zhang Zhuo was stunned, Zi Ruoyan had suddenly reached the 16th level. At the same time, the imperial will within Luo Feng Yuan also burst forth. She instantly recovered from her depleted state, appearing both bewitching and powerful. Above their heads hovered a golden dragon with extreme cold and a black dragon entwined with purple flames. Astonishingly, the two dragons responded to each other and merged. A terrifying imperial pressure instantly shook the entire land. Zhang Zhuo looked at this scene, his bald head instantly soaked in cold sweat. What is going on? Weren't they supposed to be like water and fire, incompatible? How are these two putting on a show of water and fire merging right here? Where's the referee? They're cheating. Luo Feng Yuan didn't pay attention to his inner shock and charged at him, dragging her black scythe. A barrage of purple holy demon flames snapped Zhang Zhuo back to reality. Zhang Zhuo quickly activated the power of the blood rune, his body swelling rapidly, his fists gathering scorching flames. But inwardly he was screaming, damn, I'm running out of stamina. I need to end this quickly. Luo Feng Yuan pressed forward, swinging down her scythe once more, and taunted, your power seems to be weakening. Zhang Zhuo's face tightened as he continuously raised his arms to block her attacks, gritting his teeth in persistence. I don't believe that before my power completely wanes, I won't find a way to break her guard. Damn this holy demon flame. But Luo Feng Yuan became more and more frenzied as she fought, her swinging scythe getting faster and her expression increasingly excited. Keep fighting, you worthless insect. Are you only good at retreating? Zhang Zhuo was increasingly struggling to cope and finally issued orders to the surrounding Blood Rune clan members. Surround her, let's wear her down, drain her demonic energy and stamina. The crowd quickly responded. Only then did Zhang Zhuo taunt Luo Feng Yuan. You think just because you're getting more excited, I can't do anything about you. Let's see whose demonic energy and stamina run out first. With that, Zhang Zhuo seized the opportunity to retreat sharply. At the same time, the other Blood Rune clan members all closed in. Luo Feng Yuan made a strike, but Zhang Zhuo disappeared, hiding behind other Blood Rune clan members. He coldly looked at Luo Feng Yuan in the middle of the crowd and shouted, All of you, attack! In an instant, numerous bald Blood Rune clan members charged at Luo Feng Yuan, determined to cut her down. However, at this moment, Zi Ruoyan, who had been watching the battle, suddenly called out to Luo Feng Yuan and blew out a cold breath. Luo Feng Yuan looked at the numerous Blood Rune clan warriors turned into ice sculptures and immediately got the message. The other peripheral warriors, sensing the sudden drop in temperature, were puzzled and terrified. What's going on? Why did it suddenly get so cold? Luo Feng Yuan didn't give them time to react. She extended her long legs in a spinning windmill kick, incapacitating several people immediately. Zhang Zhuo, seeing his forces nearly annihilated, roared instinctively, but Zi Ruoyan had already lifted her sword above his head. You should worry about yourself. Zhang Zhuo twisted his head in horror, but it was too late. He was severely wounded almost instantly, internally screaming impossible as his armor's protective barrier was shattered in an instant. At this point, Zhang Zhuo was flung into a boulder, which shattered upon impact. Zi Ruoyan then slowly landed in front of him, struggling to sit up. Zhang Zhuo's body trembled from exhaustion, but his eyes were filled with concern for his subordinates. Without him to hold the line, those with lower cultivation levels stood no chance against their opponents. Luo Feng Yuan was excitedly massacring the enemy. Unfortunately, their numerical advantage eventually led to them surrounding her again. Zi Ruoyan quickly planned their tactics. Luo Feng Yuan, use flanking attacks. Focus on attrition. Leave the other team members to me. A team member took the opportunity to help Zhang Zhuo, vice commander. She has the legitimate imperial bloodline of the human race. This should be her territory. We can't win. Only then did Zhang Zhuo realize. So she has the legitimate imperial human bloodline? We must retreat. As the order was issued, the many Blood Rune clan members didn't hesitate. They all began to flee with all their might. Luo Feng Yuan, who had been immersed in the excitement of combat, immediately changed her expression when she saw them run. Don't go. Stay and play. Saying this, Luo Feng Yuan spread her wings, ready to chase after the two warships above her. Zi Ruoyan grabbed her tail. Don't chase them. Their thing is too fast. We won't catch up. Luo Feng Yuan had no choice but to stop. She looked at Zi Ruoyan pitifully. What should we do next? Zi Ruoyan pondered briefly. Let's go back for now and see what the Dragon Mound Elder has to say. After Bai Qing arrives, this Blood Rune clan appears. It must be related to her. All right, let's hurry back to Great Flame Imperial City to find her. Luo Feng Yuan agreed. Both transformed into two streets 
streaks of light, one gold and one purple, and disappeared on the spot. However, after they left, the two warships that had flown away slowly reappeared right where they were. It's true, the most dangerous place is the safest place, came the comment. That day, when he and his daughter Xiao Yuer returned to the palace, Xiao Yuer noticed the communication jade token on the table vibrating and emitting faint light. Daddy, it seems like you have a message on your communication jade, she quickly told Xiao Tian. Puzzled, Xiao Tian picked up the jade token and read the message from the mayor of Green Flame Town. Prince, pig number 998 is missing. I have failed you. Furious, Xiao Tian dashed out of the courtyard and yelled at Zhong Yangming and a few others who were about to leave. Both of you, come with me right now. Zhong Yangming and Wang Chiodao turned their heads in surprise, but before they could ask why, Xiao Tian grabbed their clothes and flew into the sky. Before leaving, Xiao Tian didn't forget to tell Bai Qing, stay here and hold down the fort. Don't run around. Guard my treasure. I'll deduct 10,000 spirit stones from your debt. Bai Qing clenched her small fists and nodded seriously. Don't worry, I will complete the task. Seeing this, Xiao Tian burst into full speed, soaring into the sky. He felt he was losing control of his emotions. These people dare to steal my pig today. Tomorrow they'll dare to steal my people. Are my gentle and fragile empress wives just free for the taking? Suddenly, a voice entered his ears. It seems that crazy woman from the Holy Demon Clan doesn't know much about our Blood Rune Clan and Luo Tao Yan's affairs. Ha! Xiao Tian was immediately filled with a nameless rage. It's this damned Blood Rune Clan again. I have to wipe you all out to do justice to pig number 998. On the other side, Zhang Zhuo looked at the chaotic battlefield and the two empresses who had already left. Good thing I had the real warship within a formation and used another formation to project an image of the warship leaving. Zhang Zhizhi walked over. Vice Commander, the formation is all set up. Zhang Zhuo nodded. Then let's begin. Immediately, a humming noise spread out, and a large formation enveloped the area, hiding the traces of the Blood Rune Clan members. Zhang Zhuo then looked at his subordinate, Zhang Zhizhi. Based on the remnants of the battle, can you estimate how strong those two empresses are? When we clashed, I found that the Holy Demon Empress had an imperial aura stronger than even that of Luo Tao Tian, the Holy Demon Emperor. Zhang Zhizhi looked excited. Not only that, we've also discovered the orthodox imperial bloodline of the human race. If our calculations are correct, we'll get huge merit for this. Zhang Zhuo scratched his bald head. Unfortunately, we haven't found any trace of the Dragon Empress. I wonder if we've poked a hornet's nest. That's already three empresses. Very interesting. Saying this, he walked forward to look at the clansmen who had died in the battle. Seeing his mood a bit low, Zhang Zhizhi quickly comforted, Vice Commander, we don't need to be overly sad. The Blood Rune Clan will remember their glory. And after this battle, why don't we all take a good rest? This pig smells delicious. Let's eat and drink well to regain our strength. Hearing this, Zhang Zhuo looked at the pig in the pit, an alluring smell of roasted meat wafted into his nose, making him swallow involuntarily. You're right, let's feast on it. After pulling the pig out of the pit, Zhang Zhuo sprinkled some cumin on it. Just as he was about to start carving it with knife and fork, a subordinate suddenly shouted, Vice Commander, that Empress from the Holy Demon Clan suppresses our Blood Rune Clan's combat power by about 50%. The restraint strength is even up to three times. Moreover, the Human Empress enhances the capabilities of the Holy Demon Clan's Empress. Not only do their powers perfectly match and fuse. They also boost each other. The estimated boost is up to 200%. Most surprisingly, if we add the Dragon Empress's power data into it, the result would be a 300% increase. Zhang Zhuo instantly felt his scalp tingle, even dropping the knife he was holding. If they get to the battlefield, our whole Blood Rune clan will likely be annihilated. He urgently told everyone, we must find a way to capture them. Otherwise, the Blood Rune clan is in danger. Squad leader Zhang Zhizhi pondered, we can't beat them head on, and we've already been exposed. They will definitely increase their defenses. A sneak attack is also out of the question. Vice Commander, why don't we go back and report to Commander? No way! Zhang Zhuo interrupted him immediately. The boss told us to be cautious and prudent when we left. And now, not even a day has passed, and we've messed up this badly. Do you want to be scolded mercilessly? Suddenly, Zhang Zhuo caught sight of the roasted pig number 998 beside him. He recalled that Luo Feng Yuan had personally come to catch the pig, calling out for Brother Xiao at the time. An idea popped into his head. The weak point is in the man mentioned by that crazy demon clan woman. This holy demon clan's empress even flew here carrying a pig just for her man, and got so angry when the pig died. Clearly, she dotes on him. We just need to find and capture this pretty boy. Manipulating an inept empress like her, who cares more for beauty than her empire, will be easy. Zhang Zhuo said this with a face full of excitement. Zhang Zhizhi enthusiastically gave him a thumbs up. You're a genius, commander. You found a way out in this chaotic situation. Smiling smugly, Zhang Zhuo corrected him. Be cautious, it's vice commander. You've also been working hard to monitor the fluctuations in spiritual energy and gathering this intelligence. As he spoke, Zhang Zhuo took the kidney from pig number 998 and handed it directly to Zhang Zhizhi. Grilled kidney, the best part. Here you go. Zhang Zhizhi flattered again. You're too modest, commander. Whether main or vice, you're
you're still the commander. The two exchanged knowing smiles, and Zhang Zhuo then shouted to everyone, fellow clan members, once you've eaten and drunk your fill, prepare to work. This time, I, Zhang Zhuo, promise to lead you to great achievements. Then we can return and enjoy the good life. No more risking our lives. Just as the crowd began to cheer, the concealment formation they'd set up was suddenly ripped apart like a piece of cloth. The person who broke it was none other than Xiao Tian, who had hurriedly arrived with Zhong Yangming and Wang Qiudao. Xiao Tian was absolutely devastated, as if a bolt from the blue had struck him. My 998 is gone. Zhang Zhizhi looked around. What happened? How was the formation torn apart? Zhang Zhuo nervously asked. Could there have been a mistake when you set up the formation? It's impossible to avoid unexpected situations. I intentionally increased the formation strength this time, using more than twice the amount of spirit stones. Zhang Zhizhi replied. Hearing this, Zhang Zhuo clenched his teeth with worry. Everyone, pay attention. Whoever is coming doesn't have good intentions, and they're probably not weak either. Meanwhile, in the sky, Xiao Tian sighed deeply, pointing at the Blood Rune clan and questioning the two. Do you still want to say that my concerns were unwarranted? The Blood Rune clan is clearly targeting me. They stole my pig as soon as they showed up, intentionally left traces, and even had the mayor of Green Flame Town notify me personally. It's all to lure me here. Zhong Yangming was still somewhat skeptical. Could there be a misunderstanding? After all, you have no grievances with the Blood Rune clan. Why would they target you? Xiao Tian shook his head. I don't know. There's definitely an unknown truth hidden here. But the evidence that they are targeting me is the number 998 pig. Why do you say that, Prince? Xiao Tian wiped the saliva from the corner of his mouth. The green flame pig was cooked in the most perfect, most authentic way. Also my favorite cooking method, charcoal grilled whole pig. Not only do they know which pig is my favorite, but they also know my taste preferences. It shows how terrifying their intelligence system is. I have to say, it smells really good. It even seems like they used seasonings I've never heard of. No, this is not the time to eat. Xiao Tian forcefully shook his head as if to shake the tempting aroma out of his mind. Damn it, they knew I was coming and purposely used food to distract me. Tell me, if they weren't targeting me, why would they gather all this information? Why? All I want to do is good deeds every day and be a kind-hearted, carefree prince. Why is it that people are always trying to harm me? Xiao Tian looked distressed. Zhong Yangming and Wang Qiudao were deeply moved. This blood rune clan is too terrifying. Their intentions are extremely malicious. Both wore angry expressions. It seems we can't let them go. Upon seeing the three people floating in the sky garden, the first thing the blood rune clan noticed was Long Chiodao in the middle. See that old man? Zhang Zhuo pointed out to his followers. He looks like he's from the sacred dragon clan. Zhang Zhizhi looked in the direction and confirmed. Seems like it is indeed the sacred dragon clan. But something feels odd. He doesn't seem to have a physical body, just a form made of spiritual energy. Zhang Zhuo felt a weight on his mind. Are you sure? Zhang Zhizhi's bald head dripped a bead of sweat. Yes, I'm sure. That's why the sacred dragon clan is appearing in the holy demon realm. It's probably a dragon spirit left over from a past era. Because the soul is powerful, it can form such a dragon spirit body. But a pure dragon spirit body isn't very powerful. It can be dealt with. As he spoke, Zhang Zhizhi took out a formation disc. I'll adjust the formation to seal it off, so the fight won't alert the departing empress. It will also enhance our fighting power. However, the spirit stones will be consumed several times faster. We need to make it quick. With that, Zhang Zhizhi pressed his hand onto the formation disc. In an instant, the previously torn formation closed up, covering the three of them. Xiao Tian looked at them knowingly. See, even the formation is prepped in advance. The moment they see us, they're ready to act. They practically have deal with Xiao Tian written on their foreheads. Zhong Yangming and Wang Qiudao exchanged glances. It seems they really are targeting the prince. Let's do this. Take them down. But in the next second, Xiao Tian said something that stunned them. You guys, use the ultimate move, the combined attack technique we've been practicing these days. Both felt stiff all over and quickly gestured to Xiao Tian. Prince, the move and the slogan need some discussion. Maybe we should slow down? No way! Xiao Tian firmly rejected the idea. There's no time to discuss. We must shout it out loud and clear to let those villains know that justice is right here, right now. Saying this, he spread his arms and yelled at the bald men below. Charge. Reluctantly, Zhong Yangming clenched his teeth. We have to make them regret this later. Long Chiodao also looked unwilling. Don't worry, I'll boost you as much as I can. With that, Zhong Yangming began to gather his power, still very upset inside. This is all the fault of these Blood Rune clan beasts. Otherwise, we wouldn't need to fight, and the prince wouldn't ask us to use the combined attack technique. Thankfully, not many outsiders were around. Thinking this, Zhong Yangming clashed his fists together, and a burst of energy exploded from him. The next second, his clothes tore to shreds. He yelled out, Combined secret technique, I will form the body. Long Chiodao transformed into his true form and shouted, Combined secret technique, I will form the armor. Then Long Chiodao dove into Zhong Yangming's body. Instantly, light shone brightly, and an armored giant appeared, even striking a Bruce Lee classic pose. The bald men from the Blood Moon clan were stunned. Only Xiao Tian was ecstatic. This is awesome. With these two as a combo, the title of Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deity 
anxiety suddenly sounds so much better. Everything is relative, isn't it? Who cares about losing face? That's their problem, not mine, right? Although Zhong Yangming himself felt embarrassed, his pride wouldn't let him be the butt of jokes. He immediately unleashed his aura, preparing to attack. The expressions on the faces of the Blood Rune clan baldies changed instantly. Deputy Commander Zhang Zhuo quickly ordered them to disperse. As Zhong Yangming's strike came down with a roar, they dodged it. Seeing this, Zhang Zhuo waved his hand, attack. Zhong Yangming immediately turned to look at him. So you're the ringleader. Long Chiodao, merged with Zhong Yangming, felt a surge of anger as well, shouting, smash him. Faced with a fist clenching, teeth gritting Zhong Yangming, Zhang Zhuo's blood runes shone brightly as a giant made of flames began to rise. However, before the fiery giant could fully form, Zhong Yangming's foot already landed a brutal kick on its face. Accompanied by a massive boom, the fiery giant exploded, and Zhang Zhuo, unable to dodge, took the kick squarely. He was sent flying into the ground like a cannonball. Two minutes later, just as Zhang Zhuo was crawling out of the pit, his face changed dramatically. He exclaimed, damn it, because what he saw was Zhong Yangming lifting both legs and then slamming down with his butt, sending Zhang Zhuo back into the hole. Seeing this, other bald members of the Blood Rune clan recklessly unleashed their energy attacks on Zhong Yangming. However, Zhong Yangming casually wiped them away, ending their lives. A bunch of pig-stealing thieves, he snarled disdainfully. I, as the Prime Minister, am busy serving the people. Do you really think you can make a mockery of me? With that, he raised his foot and stomped hard on Zhang Zhuo. Zhang Zhuo was left tearless, thinking, what bad karma did I accumulate to run into such a freak? Meanwhile, as Zhong Yangming continued to step on people, Xiao Tian was tearfully looking at pig number 998. You really died in such a miserable way, 998. I'm sorry I couldn't protect you or let you grace the dinner table in your most perfect form, but rest assured, these people will get their comeuppance. As he spoke, Xiao Tian ripped off a pig's hoof and took a huge bite, savoring the taste. He felt as though pig number 998 was speaking to him, saying, My deliciousness is unparalleled and belongs only to you. Xiao Tian silently looked at the pig's hoof. Don't worry, I will fully enjoy your body. Rest in peace, my 998. Just as Zhong Yangming prepared to stomp again, Zhang Zhuo suddenly leapt out of the hole, pulling out the Blood Rune Clan's ultimate weapon, a blood crystal. His aura changed instantly. We are noble and never surrendering warriors of the Blood Rune Clan. Our fate is to die honorably in battle, not to be humiliated by your lowly human race, backed by the sacred dragon clan's dragon spirit. Other bald warriors landed behind Zhang Zhuo, whose blood crystal was spinning in his hand, emitting an incredibly menacing aura. Yes, we, the Blood Rune clan, are warriors who should die on the battlefield, not get sat on the death. Zhang Zhuo's face turned serious. I never expected to encounter such a strong opponent in the holy demon domain. No wonder Zhang Yisen has been hiding and not revealing himself. With that, Zhang Zhuo suddenly grinned. Now let the trump card of our Blood Rune clan shine brightly in this middle-level domain world. Zhang Zhuo looked towards the direction of the Blood Rune clan's main force in the void. Boss, you better be careful. Even if you try to stop it now, it's already too late. However, Zhong Yangming stood there with his arms crossed, quietly watching Zhang Zhuo, showing no intention of taking any action, and even displaying a slight disdain. Zhang Zhuo suddenly felt uneasy, thinking, could it be that they're not afraid of dying? Just then, a warrior shouted, look, what is that human doing? Before Zhang Zhuo could react, the blood crystal in his hand was snatched away. Xiao Tian waved the blood crystal in his hand. So you have one of these interesting things too. I've been missing it ever since I had one last time. Zhang Zhuo was extremely anxious and was about to say something when Xiao Tian took a big bite, a look of bliss covering his face. This is amazing. Do you guys have more? As he spoke, Xiao Tian began to juggle the blood crystal in the air. Zhang Zhuo felt a chill down his spine. I was going to detonate this blood crystal like a true Blood Rune clan warrior, dying with honor and courage in a blaze of glory. How can this worthless human suppress the blood crystal and even take a bite? Do you know how damaging that is to our Blood Rune clan? With a face full of resentment, Zhang Zhuo thought the blood crystal should be close to exploding by now, right? He stared intently at Xiao Tian, who didn't seem to care and just threw the remaining blood crystal into his mouth, swallowing it whole. The next second, a rumbling sound came from his stomach. Xiao Tian let out a satisfied belch. Ah, that familiar feeling. So good. Zhang Zhizhi felt like he had aged backwards out of sheer terror. He actually ate an entire blood crystal, and it exploded in his stomach, and he's fine, and even feels great? Is this guy even human? Then he thought, wait, did Xiao Tian say he ate another blood crystal before? Upon this realization, Zhang Zhizhi asked, did Johnny Sin die at your hands? Xiao Tian responded calmly, Johnny Sin, are you talking about that Blood Rune clan guy? Don't falsely accuse me, I didn't kill him, he died due to his own moral corruption, refusing to be reformed and re-educated, and his soul collapsed. All the other Blood Rune clan members committed suicide, don't wrong a good person. The Blood Rune clan warriors were all furious, this guy isn't human, he's a demon. What horrendous torture must our mentally resilient Blood Rune clan warriors have suffered before dying to have their souls collapse? Afterwards, Xiao Tian and his group tied up all the members of the Blood Rune clan. Long Chiodao looked displeased.
pleased. Master Xiao is too kind to you all, merely crippling your cultivation. If it were up to me, I'd turn you all to ashes, making me lose so much face. You bunch of jerks. Zhang Zhuo, the deputy commander of the Blood Rune Clan, signaled to his people with his eyes. We, the warriors of the Blood Rune Clan, never submit. Everyone understood, looking at Xiao Tian with hatred. Meanwhile, Xiao Tian casually started roasting a pig. As the aroma intensified, the stomachs of the battle-weary Blood Rune Clan warriors began to rumble uncontrollably. Chomping down on the meat, Xiao Tian remarked, This meat is so delicious, especially with this seasoning on the crispy, golden brown skin. He even fanned the aroma toward the Blood Rune Clan, making their mouth's water. Zhang Zhuo clenched his brows, thinking, a soldier can be killed, but not humiliated. It's just roasted pig. However, his body betrayed him, as his stomach growled louder, and everyone seemed to be on the verge of losing their sanity. Xiao Tian suddenly moved closer with a bone in hand, feeling tempted, want to have a lick, to taste it. Zhang Zhuo, who had been somewhat disoriented, snapped back to attention, grinding his teeth in anger and wishing he could bite Xiao Tian to death. He suddenly couldn't help but shout, kill me. If you have the guts, kill me now. Xiao Tian just laughed and turned to the other others, saying, see, he's losing it, he can't even withstand this minor temptation, no wonder he'd resort to stealing a pig, shaking his head, he continued, it seems like the moral integrity and educational upbringing of the Blood Rune Clan is really lacking, you call yourselves noble warriors, more like hooligans on a battlefield, I can't stand to watch this anymore, they must make amends for their mistakes, take them to Green Flame Mountain, Zhong Yangming and Long Chiodao exchanged glances, both sighing, you guys could have provoked anyone else, but you had to mess with Master Xiao, now you'll know what it's like to wish for death, Soon, they arrived at the pig farm in Green Flame Town. Xiao Tian pointed at pig number 997, kneel and apologize. Zhang Zhuo was stunned, and the others were equally flabbergasted. You want us, the esteemed warriors of the Blood Rune Clan, to kneel and apologize to a pig? Xiao Tian swiftly slapped Zhang Zhuo, spinning him around in place. With a thud, Zhang Zhuo reluctantly knelt before pig number 997. In an indignant tone, Xiao Tian informed him, number 997 is a mother. Originally, I had planned for number 998 to witness the birth of its children and proceed to the dinner table for the New Year's reunion with a heart full of happiness. But your greedy and selfish actions ruin a happy family. This is an atrocious sin. Apologize whether you want to or not. Zhang Zhuo was on the verge of tears. It's so unfair. I didn't steal the pig. This is the biggest humiliation of my life. This man, he's not human. Watching Zhang Zhuo finally shed tears, Xiao Tian smiled. Are those tears of regret? It seems you're not beyond redemption. After all this time, I've finally encountered someone who is genuinely remorseful. Just then, the mayor of Green Flame Town came running and shouting. He said to Xiao Tian, Prince, it seems like the mood of the livestock is a bit off. Seizing the opportunity, Xiao Tian asked the mayor, you've come just in time. Take a look. Are these the people who stole the pig? The mayor instantly understood, pointing at the group angrily. Yes, it's these guys. Kneeling on the side, Zhang Zhuo became unhappy. You're talking nonsense. We didn't do it. It was clearly a crazy woman from the Holy Demon Clan who stole it. Zhong Yang Ming and Wang Chiodao understood immediately. Who else could it be but Luo Feng Yuan from the Holy Demon Clan. She's the kind of person who would do such a thing. Xiao Tian ignored them, stepping forward to kick Zhang Zhuo twice. Don't speak nonsense. She's my. Suddenly he stopped, changing his tone. She's a good empress who protects ordinary people like me. How could she possibly steal my pig? I just praised you, and you immediately forget yourself and start slandering good people. Ideological reform is urgently needed. Xiao Tian then looked at Long Chiodao, placed the mark of servitude on them, and give control authority to the mayor. After Long Chiodao complied, Xiao Tian instructed the mayor. From now on, these Blood Rune Clan criminals are yours to instruct. Any hard labor like shoveling manure or massaging the pigs, cows, and sheep of green flame can be given to them. After all, they have big ambitions and strong bodies. The mayor couldn't contain his smile. Prince, you're truly amazing. I just mentioned we were shorthanded a few days ago, and you've resolved it all at once. The bald heads were all numb with disbelief. Our destiny as Blood Rune Clan warriors is on the battlefield, to lead brilliant lives through blood and fire, not to wallow in feces. Suddenly, the mayor remembered his original purpose. Prince, what I was trying to say was about the livestock's mood issues. Xiao Tian patted him on the shoulder, cutting him off. Don't worry, I have a plan. He then turned to Long Chiodao with a serious face. Put this bald guy into that yo-yo over there. Long Chiodao was startled. Is this really okay? He's a warrior, after all. Xiao Tian sighed, thinking that Long Chiodao was asking why not just kill him. It's not ideal. I'm showing too much mercy here. But given that he showed tears of remorse, I'm willing to give him a chance. Long Chiodao sighed and didn't say anything more. He slowly conjured a spherical formation with his hands, and covered Zhang Zhuo with it. Zhang Zhuo was baffled. What's going on? Long Chiodao explained somewhat sympathetically. This is a toy that Prince prepared for the livestock here. Green flame pigs, green flame cows, green flame sheep, etc. Your job is to make them 
happy by playing with them. The green flame pigs nearby already seemed eager to start. Zhang Zhuo was dumbfounded. A toy? I'm supposed to be a toy for a bunch of livestock? He felt a mix of panic and an urge to cry. Shouldn't I at least be treated as a person? At that moment, the deputy commander of the Blood Room clan was confined in a sphere by Xiao Tian, ready to be used as a toy for the animals to play with. Seeing this, Zhang Zhuo's demeanor suddenly changed. The Blood Room clan warriors understood instantly. Deputy commander, are you finally unable to hold back? Are you going to bring this lowly human down with you? But the next second, Zhang Zhuo suddenly knelt down, smiling brightly at Xiao Tian. Sir, regarding information, I can elaborate in detail from ten different angles and types. Which would you like to hear first? The other warriors were instantly stunned. We didn't expect this from our deputy commander. Xiao Tian stared at him coldly, then spill everything you know. Zhang Zhuo gave a bitter smile. Sir, my soul has been bound. There are many things I can't say, but whatever I can say, I will. Long Chiu Dao examined him and confirmed. Prince, he does indeed have a restriction placed on him. Xiao Tian relented. All right, then tell us everything you can. Turns out, the Blood Rune Clan is part of the Martial Spirit Army. From birth, they have been fighting in the Meteor Flame Battlefield against humans, the Demon Clan, and the Sacred Dragon Clan. For them, the only purpose in life is to continuously invade and seize territories from other races. They were close to capturing the Meteor Flame Battlefield when the Demon Clan Army appeared to assist the humans. Among them, the Holy Demon Emperor Luo Tao Yin's demonic energy completely countered the Blood Rune Clan. His wife's illusions could even trap the Blood Rune Clan in a false world. So the reason Zhang Zhuo and the others came here was to discover the Holy Demon Emperor's powerful secret and cut off his retreat. Zhong Yang Ming immediately understood. Ah, that explains a lot. It also accounts for the internal conflict within the Demon Clan back then. But why would they do something like this? Is it for training soldiers? Long Chiu Dao continued to inquire. Have you ever heard of the name Bai Qing? Zhang Zhuo looked surprised. Isn't she the Dragon Empress? Before the Holy Demon Emperor came to the battlefield, she was the supreme commander of the humans, the Demon Clan, and the Sacred Dragon Clan. During our mission, we encountered someone from the Blood Grudge Clan who seemed to be tracking the Dragon Empress. However, Zhang Zhuo swallowed hard, restricted by the binding on his soul before he could say more. Xiao Tian mumbled, the title of Dragon Empress. Why does her name sound so much cooler than mine? That's really unfair. He shook his head in dissatisfaction. Zhong Yang Ming and Wang Chiu Dao exchanged a glance, both understanding the underlying message, another empress. Ha, huh? no wonder. Xiao Tian sensed something was off and turned his head to look at them. What are you two looking at? Why are you giving me weird looks? It's uncomfortable. Zhong Yang Ming cleared his throat. If I remember correctly, Prince, you received money from Dragon Empress, didn't you? Xiao Tian wanted to argue that it was compensation, but the other two didn't want to listen. They both bowed slightly in praise. Only Xiao has the capability to have the Dragon Empress, the Holy Demon Empress, and the Human Empress all pay for his expenses at the same time. At that moment, Xiao Tian found them very annoying. The two were grinning. We're definitely not getting back at you for the earlier embarrassment, really. Xiao Tian turned away, chanting to himself, I'm not mad, I'm not mad, but actually vented his frustration on Zhang Zhuo. He told Zhang Zhuo, originally, I was planning to rotate this Toyoyo stuffing job between you and your people, but you admitted your mistake so well. I've decided to bestow this heavy responsibility solely upon you. How do you feel about that? Surprised? Zhang Zhuo felt like he was about to have a mental breakdown. Why is this happening? Why? Soon, the green flame pig that was originally lost in thought suddenly charged at Zhang Zhuo. Everyone watched as Zhang Zhuo kept being thrown up into the air and falling back down, and they all felt a secret satisfaction, thinking he deserved it. Zhang Zhuo cursed nonstop. Human prince, I'll get you for this. Xiao Tian didn't care. Make sure to do it with more force. I'll thank you on behalf of my adoptive father. Then, Xiao Tian instructed the village chief. Keep an eye on their condition. When they completely break down and can't function, inform me. I'll send professionals to interrogate them. The village chief was confused. Didn't that guy already confess? Long Chiu Dao shrugged it off. People at their level, when they have a mental breakdown, it affects their souls. They might reveal more. Zhong Yang Ming nodded. Exactly. If what he said deviates greatly from what he was instructed to say, it means he is lying. The village chief immediately praised. Prince, you are indeed wise. At that moment, in the royal study, Luo Feng Yuan was grinding her teeth in anger. Her fists were clenched tightly. Damn it. They managed to get away before I could even enjoy the fight. What cowards. Zi Ruoyan listened to her complaints and couldn't help but poke her in the head. You should be thankful that they didn't have reinforcements or traps. You're actually quite lucky, instead of complaining about not having a good fight. Upon hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly fell silent, tail swishing thoughtfully. Zi Ruoyan really wanted to reach out and grab it, but she restrained herself. Then, Zi Ruoyan warned again, knowing that the enemy is strong, why would you act so recklessly and be outnumbered? Couldn't you just detonate your demonic energy and let me help? Luo Feng Yuan immediately refused. Those scumbags killed 998, who was Xiao Brother's favorite. All I know is I want to crush them, not run away. The plan was supposed to be perfect. How could I be so unlucky? Zi Ruoyan almost laughed in exasperation. Your plan was flawed to begin with. 
But next, we'll need to allocate some manpower to find that Bloodloon clan. They're a significant threat. Luo Fongyuan nodded. Yes, we must find them. Just then, a guard rushed in to report, Your Majesty, the Prince and the Prime Minister are on their way to the royal study. Hearing this, Luo Fongyuan became a bit panicked. Why did Xiao brother suddenly come? Did he find out about 998? Zi Royan could only comfort her. He's probably just coming to rest. You know his little habit, right? However, Luo Fongyuan was not listening and began pacing back and forth, muttering, Xiao brother must be really angry. He will surely scold me. As she spoke, an expression of excited anticipation crossed her face. Zi Royan was speechless. This girl is beyond help. Absolutely beyond help. Soon after, the incense in the royal study was lit. Xiao Tian reclined in the chair and gave Zi Royan a thumbs up. So comfortable. The scent of the incense here is truly unforgettable. Luo Fengyuan curiously sniffed. Is the fragrance really that amazing? Xiao Tian pointed to his head and explained. Many things in the world are fascinating. Scents can carry memories. When I smell this incense, I'm always reminded of your majesty's diligent and benevolent governance. This is your majesty's scent. Saying this, Xiao Tian winked at Zi Royan, whose face instantly turned red. She shyly turned away and mumbled, nonsense. Where would I get a scent like that? Always sweet talking, never serious. Upon witnessing the interaction between the two, Luo Feng Yuan started to feel uneasy. No, Xiao brother's attention should only be on me. I just need to confess about stealing the pig, and it'll be fine. Xiao Tian spoke first. Who said there's nothing serious? There actually is. That blood room clan we spoke of earlier has reappeared in numbers. According to their confession, they had other missions, but I still think they have nefarious plans towards me. They know me too well. They stole nine 998 and even roasted it whole over charcoal. Absolutely infuriating. Zi Royan turned her head in surprise. I didn't know Lord Xiao had an encounter with those who ran away. What happened? How did you meet them? Xiao Tian shook his head. Didn't the village chief say 998 was stolen? So I rushed over with Zhong Yangming and Wang Chiodao. Turns out, this Blood Rune clan had just roasted 998 and got caught by me. Luo Feng Yuan, seeing her efforts being claimed by someone else, became anxious. That's not how it is, Xiao brother. I'm the one who stole 998. Actually, before she could finish, Xiao Tian interrupted her. You little mischief maker. Trying to take credit for this to make me angry at you? That's not happening. That criminal gang is currently being reformed at the Green Flame Farm. Don't try to fool me, you little rascal. Saying that, Xiao Tian gave Luo Feng Yuan a head pat. Zi Royan was left speechless. Is there a chance that it actually was her this time? Luo Feng Yuan was dumbfounded. It was really me who did it. Why? Does that Blood Room clan have issues? They ran away and then came back to take the blame? What's the meaning of this? Luo Feng Feng Yuan started crying, my perfect plan, just gone like that. However, Zhong Yangming then informed the two empresses. The Blood Rune clan also disclosed some information about the Holy Demon clan. We learned from them that the Holy Demon Emperor and his wives have all appeared on the Meteor Flame battlefield. Both of them were stunned for a moment. Luo Feng Yuan shook her head in disbelief. Impossible, absolutely impossible. My father and mother argued incessantly back in the day, fought to the death, and died together. That's when the primordial demon kingdom began to fall into chaos. Those so-called siblings of mine were incredibly cruel. For years ago, after I awakened, I personally pierced their bodies with the holy demon scythe. Zi Royan was curious and asked, so why did your father and mother argue and fight to the death in the first place? How did they die together? Luo Feng Yuan became annoyed. Zi Bun, what's the matter with you? Can't you understand? I told you clearly. They argued and then died together. Zi Royan's temper flared up. You stupid cow, listen to my question. Why did they argue and how did they die? Luo Feng Yuan, confused, yelled back, why are you shouting? I already told you, they fought to the point of no reconciliation and died together. As Luo Feng Yuan continued speaking, her voice became softer. Noticing the stares from the three of them, she seemed to sense something was off. She covered her mouth in astonishment. Have I been repeating this content? Why is that? It felt so real back then. Those damn parents never cared for me, and those brothers and sisters were so mean. But how did they neglect me? How did they bully me? Why can't I remember any of the details? Luo Feng Yuan tried to recall, but it felt as if her brain's CPU had burned out. Xiao Tian and Zi Ruan just stared at Luo Feng Yuan's seemingly smoking head. This woman is truly bizarre, they thought. But Luo Feng Yuan still didn't want to believe it. This can't be fake. I killed those hateful brothers and sisters with my own hands. Especially 18th royal brother. He was involved in the Southern Wilderness Realm plan. Xiao Tian and Zi Ruoyan exchanged glances and spoke in unison. It's a clone. Luo Feng Yuan was confused. Are these two teaming up to trick me? Zi Ruoyan sighed. When you came to the Southern Wilderness Realm, didn't you leave a clone in the Primordial Demon Kingdom? Luo Feng Yuan finally caught on. Oh, that. It's a special ability of our holy demon clan. Using the demonic energy of the holy demon clan, the clone not only possesses combat ability, but can also deceive others. Luo Feng Yuan suddenly realized, could it be that my 18th royal brother also used a clone? Zi Ruoyan held her hand, comforting her shocked heart. It's not confirmed yet, but since the Bloodroom clan said so, we have to go to the Meteor Flame battlefield.
Hatfield to find out. Your 18th royal brother's involvement in the Southern Wilderness Realm plan might be one of the reasons. The real truth behind this can probably only be revealed when you reunite with your family, who shouldn't even be alive. Listening to this, Luo Feng Yuan felt bewildered. Suddenly, she threw herself into Xiao Tian's arms, crying and saying, Brother Xiao, I'm so annoyed. I feel like my brain is breaking. Zi Royan coughed twice, pulling Luo Feng Yuan's clothes. Wait, Lord Xiao is still recovering. He probably had a fight with the Blood Rune clan earlier. Don't tire him out. Zi Royan got impatient and pulled her away. Are you an idiot? Your horns are poking people. Really, you didn't pick up by Qing's diligence, but you certainly learned her skill of not letting go. Xiao Tian watched as his two emperor's wives argued. Here they go again. But why do I feel a little happy about it? It's so nice to see them lively like this. Seven days after Zhang Zhuo and his people were captured, Xiao Tian and his two emperor's wives were enjoying a roast whole pig. Xiao Yu are floated in midair, reading the information that Zhang Zhuo and the others had provided over the last few days. According to their confessions, their main plan was to capture the descendants of holy demon emperor Luo Taotian and obtain their blood to use in a spatial array that would open the war gate. Xiao Yu are turned to Zi Ruoyan. Zi Ruoyan then advised Luo Feng Yuan, in that case, don't act recklessly on your own from now on. We should stay together as much as possible so that we can cover for each other in case something happens. Luo Feng Yuan waved her hand impatiently. I get it. You've been going on and on. At this point, Xiao Yu are suddenly remembered something. By the way, where's old Dragon Mound? Haven't seen him in a while. Xiao Tian, intently focusing on the roast pig, said, he's off handling some matters. Should be done soon. Meanwhile, in the starry sky of the universe, a battleship floated quietly. On board was the Blood Rune Clan's commander, Zhang Wuxuan, holding a transmission jade. Zhang Wuxing looked confused. It's been seven days. Why? I'm going bald here. Why hasn't there been any response? Zhang Wuxing quickly stepped forward to comfort him. Boss, you should eat something. This special blood meal, if not consumed, can be a burden on your body. We're in a unique situation. We need to maintain our best condition. Zhang Wuxuan clenched his teeth. There's something I don't get. I only asked for a simple task. A little scouting. A little probing. I didn't make an excessive request. Why has there been no movement? No matter how hard he thought, Zhang Wuxuan couldn't understand it. His third team captain, Zhang Wuxin, had a bitter smile on his face. How the hell would I know? My stupid cousin from the 10th team, Zhang Sen, has disappeared without a trace. And there's no news from Zhang Zhuo, the deputy commander. Boss, keep your cool. No news means they're being careful and prudent. Zhang Wuxuang interrupted him angrily, flipping the table over. Careful my ass. Prudent my ass. We are the Blood Rune clan, the bravest and most noble warriors, not a bunch of cowards. Zhang Wuxuang was so furious he was nearly hysterical. I can give them everything but women. Why haven't they returned? Wait, women? A thought suddenly struck him. Women in the demon clan are incredibly beautiful and voluptuous. These dogs must have been seduced by worldly pleasures and defected. He was convinced that must be the case. Zhang Wuxin, sweating with embarrassment, suggested, Boss, is it possible that they encountered danger down there and got wiped out? Zhang Wuxuang pointed at himself. I thought of that possibility too. But why was there no sign of a blood crystal explosion? Zhang Wuxin considered a possibility, his face turning serious. Boss, could it be that the blood crystal didn't explode because it was stopped? Didn't explode? Zhang Wuxuang repeated, Even I would only have the option to run when facing a blood crystal. How could there be someone strong enough here to stop it? Even if they could suppress it, there should have been some sign of an impending explosion. Could it have been eaten? Looks like I'll have to go down there myself. I want to see just how well these bastards are living it up. Immediately, Zhang Wuxuang ordered, Prepare on your end. Notify the members of the first team to assemble. After meeting with our superior, I'll personally go to the holy demon realm. Just as Zhang Wuxin nodded in agreement, both men noticed something bright. When did this fragment of the world float by? Never mind. There are many similar fragments in the void. Little did they know, this fragment was actually the handiwork of Long Chiodao. Lord Xiao was right. The Blood Rune clan's battleship is indeed outside the boundary world. They've hidden themselves quite well, using the turbulence and dense fragments in the void as cover. It took me a while to find them. At night, Zi Ruoyan, Luo Feng Yuan, and Bai Qing are having dinner. Zi Ruoyan looks calm, relieved that everyone can finally relax a bit after working hard for a while. Bai Qing, however, is scarfing down roast pork, thinking that wasting food is shameful. Seeing Luo Feng Yuan looking worried, Zi Ruoyan quickly comforts him. After we get information on the Meteor Flame battlefield, you can leave your clone in the primordial demon kingdom and go find your parents for some clarity. Luo Feng Yuan replies, Of course I will. This matter has been bothering me like a ticking time bomb in my head. She takes a drink and looks at Zi Ruoyan. You seem to miss your parents, don't you? Zi Ruoyan's eyes soften with reminiscence. I do miss them. Luo Feng Yuan suggests, Well then, why not go find them? Zi Ruoyan sighs, I am the Great Flame Empress. I can't just leave. The countless citizens here are my responsibility. If my parents knew the current situation of Great Flame, they would definitely support my decision. Luo Feng Yuan softly huffs, stretches her arm, and pulls Zi Ruoyan into her embrace. I support you too, but should we hurry to the void battlefield?
field? What if my parents die there? Zi Ruoyan quickly reassures her. What are you thinking? If your parents were so easily killed, why would the Blood Rune clan go to the great expense of sneaking into the holy demon realm? Tears appear in the corners of Luo Feng Yuan's eyes. But now that I think about it, your parents are also in a very dangerous situation. What if, before she could finish her sentence, Zi Ruoyan interrupts her by putting a flask to her lips. If you can't say anything helpful, shut up. No one said you're mute. Luo Feng Yuan chokes on his drink, then shoves the flask back towards Zi Ruoyan's face. What do you know? This is called preparing for the worst. By Qing, watching this, moves a flask of wine over, drink, drink, drink more. You guys drink, and I'll eat. It's perfect. Then Bai Qing pushes the dining table a little further forward. This distance should keep all the food on the table safe. The familiar scene returns. Who will win this night's battle remains to be seen. Poor Zhong Yang Ming will have to prepare a nutritious soup again tomorrow. At the other end, Zhang Wushuang arrives at a spacious hall. He bows to the deputy general sitting on the chair. Sir. Ji Chuan raises an eyebrow. Zhang Wushuang, where is your hair? Zhang Wushuang touches his bald head, struggling with how to explain. Do I just say I got so stressed I lost it? Would that be too embarrassing? Ah, never mind. It's not important. Ji Chuan says it's not important but still finds it a little distracting to look at. I heard from your subordinates that we are currently in the void above the holy demon realm. Zhang Wushuang nods quickly. Exactly, sir. Upon hearing this, Ji Chuan laughs. What a coincidence. I have some after effects from using the blood curse technique and wanted to recover on your warship. I also wanted to sense the whereabouts of the dragon empress. As it turns out, I sensed her in the holy demon realm. Ha ha ha. This is really effortless. Old minister Zhong Yang Ming observes them both, thinking the emperor only acts like a 20-year-old when he's bickering with Luo. Suddenly, he turns and asks Xiao Tian, young prince, what about your parents? Xiao Tian casually slurps some soup and replies, they were killed by my adoptive father. Zhong Yang Ming becomes slightly awkward. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Xiao Tian is only thinking, this soup tastes amazing. The chef is truly skilled. Hearing the apology, Xiao Tian just smiles. It's alright. I didn't know until later. I used to think I was picked up from somewhere. Zhong Yang Ming feels a pang of discomfort. How can the young prince talk about such painful matters with a smile? It looks like you've had a hard time too. What have you been through? Xiao Tian picks up his soup bowl. In the past, my so-called adoptive father raised us like hunting dogs for his assassin organization. And I was the organization's ace. So my life was slightly easier than others. Zhong Yang Ming is surprised. I never thought that you were a top assassin in your original realm. Xiao Tian's expression suddenly becomes serious. You're wrong. I'm the ace among aces, but not an ace assassin. What's the difference? I rank first in the strongman list, but last on the assassin list. They even say my assassination methods are unorthodox. Absolutely shameless. So, I am indeed the organization's ace, but not an ace assassin. Zhong Yang Ming is a bit confused. He immediately bows. May I ask, young prince, what was your assassination method like? Xiao Tian beckons Zhong Yang Ming closer and then asks in a low voice, let me ask you, for a successful assassination, isn't it about eliminating the target without revealing your identity and leaving no traces? Exactly. Zhong Yang Ming agrees. So what if I simply eliminate everyone and destroy the place? There would be no information leak and even no traces to follow, right? Zhong Yang Ming swallows. Well, when you put it that way, it does make sense. Xiao Tian immediately smiles. See, you agree, don't you? When I wiped out the entire blood cloud tower, you couldn't find any information, could you? Zhong Yang Ming feels rather uneasy but concedes. True, can't argue with that. Just then, a thud draws both of their attention. They turn to see Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan, both drunk and leaning against each other on the ground. Xiao Tian knows it's time to act. He pats Zhong Yang Ming on the shoulder. Ponder what I've said and what I've done. Think about it. Both of their communication tokens suddenly receive a video call. Long Chiodao informs them that he's found the lair of the Blood Rune clan. Xiao Tian and Zhong Yang Ming exchange glances. Let's go check it out. All right, young prince. Immediately after, Xiao Tian calls for his daughter Xiao Yuer. He then picks up both empresses and carries them into the room. After placing them on the bed and seeing them sleep soundly, Xiao Tian smiles affectionately. You both have been working hard lately. Take a good rest. Get drunk, then sleep it off. He then leans over and kisses Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan on their foreheads. Turning back, he sees Xiao Yuer covering her eyes. What's the point of covering your eyes like that? Bai Qing then assumes her usual position and says, please go ahead. Xiao Tian delivers a palm strike to the back of her neck, knocking her out. He then covers her with a blanket and instructs Xiao Yuer, be a good girl and watch over her and your two moms. Daddy has to go take care of some business. Xiao Yuer stands with her hands behind her back. Got it. But dad, what are you going to do? Did you find out someone wants to harm you again? Xiao Tian lightly flicks Xiao Yuer on the forehead. Adult matters. Kids shouldn't ask. Annoyed, Xiao Yuer rubs her forehead, but Xiao Tian and Zhong Yang Ming have already slowly left. Seeing this, Xiao Yuer sets up a defensive array in the room. This should keep things safe. Now I can get a good sleep too. Meanwhile, Ji Chun of the Blood Grudge Clan looks pensive. From the information you've provided, it looks like the secret of the Holy Demon Emperor is really in his hometown. Zhang Wushuang scratches 
scratches his bald head. Is the holy demon realm really that mysterious? Absolutely. Although Bai Qing is affected by my blood curse technique, instinctually, she should have gone to the Eastern Sea Realm. Her choice to go to the holy demon realm doesn't make sense. Plus, I'm not the only one tracking Bai Qing. Someone might already be there in the holy demon realm, eliminating your teammates to take all the credit. Xiang Wushuang is dumbfounded. Is Bai Qing really that important? There are things you guys at this level wouldn't understand, which is normal. She grew up with that woman as her playmate. Zhang Wushuang is stunned. That woman? Yes. From the Sacred Alliance four years ago. Who would have thought that a 16-year-old fox demon would rise to such heights and become a woman of immense power? Bai Qing is her confidant and playmate. Capturing her would bring many advantages. Moreover, your mission to find the descendants of the Holy Demon Emperor to unlock the war gate could also be completed. You should assist me fully in this operation. You won't be left out of the rewards. You should know how generous the rewards from the Martial Spirit Army are. However, at this moment, Zhang Wushuang's face turns pale, and he points at Ji Yichuan's head, but can't utter a word. Confused, Ji Yichuan asks, why are you pointing at me? Before he could get an answer, a hand suddenly appears above his head and smashes him into the ground. Looking up in horror at the man who just appeared, Xiao Tian smiles. You were just talking about how generous the rewards are. I'm quite curious, could you explain it to me? Faced with the sudden appearance of the three men, sweat beads on Ji Yichuan's forehead. He had no idea when they appeared, and he couldn't sense their aura at all. The man leading them has an especially strong soul. Not only can he block Ji Yichuan's mental invasion, but he can also disrupt his will. His power is truly terrifying. Ji Yichuan barely takes a moment to think before deciding to strike first. The next second, Ji Yichuan clasps his hands together, and the patterns on his body erupt. The black lotus on his forehead shines. Taking advantage of Xiao Tian's momentary distraction, Ji Yichuan shouts, seal, and makes hand signs. Chains appear out of nowhere and bind Xiao Tian tightly. Having done this, Ji Yichuan roars, attack. Hearing this, Zhang Wushuang instantly explodes with energy, swelling to a much larger size, resembling a bald giant. Then, he smashes his fist into the ground, causing a loud explosion. The room fills with debris and smoke. Ji Yichuan and Zhang Wushuang quickly retreat, but keep their eyes fixed on where Xiao Tian is. Ji Yichuan then directs both palms towards Xiao Tian, channeling his blood grudge spiritual energy in a torrent toward him. Quickly, I'll buy some time. You use the blood crystal to blow them up. With a ripping sound, Zhang Wushuang unhesitatingly rips open his chest and takes out a blood crystal nurtured in his heart. As the blood crystal emerges, the blood stains on it evaporate, leaving it crystal clear and immaculately pure. Zhang Wushuang raises it high and roars, Kinsmen, fight for honor. With that, he throws the blood crystal into the thick smoke towards Xiao Tian's location. Seeing this, Qi Chuan urgently signals everyone, enough, let's go. Zhang Wushuang then takes out an array disc and places it on the ground to activate the array. Their figures start to become blurry as they prepare to teleport away. Qi Chuan grits his teeth, a cruel smile on his face. Human trash, face the explosion of the blood crystal. We look forward to your counterattacks. Ha 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 ha. After throwing the blood crystal capable of destroying an entire world, Zhang Wushuang immediately uses the array disc to teleport the entire warship to a small separate world. Ji Yichuan looks around this lush, green small world. The spiritual energy here is very scarce, and the strongest beasts are only at the fourth tier. Zhang Wushuang looks at the array disc with a sad expression, saying that the emergency void transfer could only be used once and it consumed so many blood crystals, equivalent to 500 million top grade spirit stones. Ji Yichuan turns to comfort him, saying not to worry. When they get back to the meteor flame battlefield, he'll explain the situation to the higher-ups. Trust me, if we hadn't acted decisively to throw the blood crystal and activated the array to escape, we would have surely died. Zhang Wushuang nods slightly. I know, that person seemed ordinary, but was able to appear silently behind you. His strength is unfathomable. Thanks to your quick decision, we were able to hide in this small world fragment. Otherwise, I can't imagine the consequences. Zhang Wushuang then instructs Zhang Wuxin, who is behind him, to mark this place with an anchor point on the warship so they can directly teleport here in the future. Zhang Wuxin promptly agrees. Then, taking advantage of the time spent setting the anchor point, they summon a projection array to see how Xiao Tian was blown up. The many Blood Rune clan warriors also want to know what kind of enemy forced the commander to use the blood crystal. Meanwhile, in a void, Xiao Tian sweeps away the smoke and debris with a burst of energy. All three stand there calmly. Long Chiodao informs the others that the person from earlier is from the Blood Grudge clan who put a blood curse technique on Bai Qing. That person decisively ordered a retreat upon encountering trouble. His control over the rhythm of the battle was impressive. Xiao Tian, however, grips the blood crystal in front of him and says, that guy had black patterns all over his body and a black lotus on his forehead. Just by looking at him, you can tell he's up to no good. His face is full of schemes, and he ran as soon as he saw me, clearly guilty. Xiao Tian then takes a chicken leg out of his storage ring and starts eating it along with the blood crystal, enjoying himself greatly. The energy in this blood crystal is much stronger than the two from the holy demon realm. It tastes even more potent. Awesome. Zhong Yao 
Xiao Ming looks bored. So does this mean we made a wasted trip? Long Chiodao carefully examines the traces in the void. Based on what happened, they used a spatial array known as Void Transfer. This array requires an anchor point to be set. Judging by the residual space fluctuations nearby, they should be hiding in some nearby space-time fragment. Hearing this, Xiao Tian is about to speak when the blood crystal he swallowed starts to explode. A rumbling sound emanates from his stomach, followed by Xiao Tian belching out a burst of flames. Only then does he clear his throat satisfactorily, patting his belly and asking, are you sure they're hiding in a nearby space-time fragment? Could this be a clue meant to mislead us? No. According to their thinking, the intense fluctuations from the explosion of that scorching crystal would completely conceal any spatial fluctuations. However, they didn't account for the trump card that is Lord Xiao. The blood crystal has become a seasoning for Lord Zhao's barbecue. Hearing this, Xiao Tian looks around and comments, but there must be at least a hundred fragments here. It's going to be a real hassle to search. Meanwhile, the people from the Blood Rune clan, who are watching Xiao Tian's audacious actions, are utterly astonished. Zhang Wuxin mutters in horror, Boss, you are actually right. The blood crystal really got eaten. Zhang Wuxuang is almost furious, clenching his fists tightly, swallowing a blood crystal. These humans really are something. Why didn't it explode and kill you, you bastard? My deputy commander, my troops, my blood crystals. Damn humans, you've wasted three of my blood crystals. I hate this. Ji Yichun of the Blood Grudge Clan watches Xiao Tian swallow the blood crystal and mutters in horror. His strength far exceeds our imagination. It's good we retreated quickly. He must be a 20th or 21st tier practitioner in physical cultivation. This isn't right. It's hard to find such a powerful individual in the holy demon realm or other planes. Never mind. Let's not think about it for now. Keep an eye on him. I'll go rest. Once this human leaves, we'll quietly retreat. However, his subordinate Zhang Wuxin is somewhat worried. My lord, the blood crystal didn't explode, and there are residual spatial fluctuations. What if he finds us? Ji Yichun gives a bitter smile of resignation. It should be impossible. With so many small worlds, how long would it take for him to find us? But before he could finish his sentence, his eyes widen in shock. What is that? What is this damn human doing? Xiao Tian reaches into the void with both hands and rips it apart with a tearing sound, revealing a continental module inside. Long Chiodao leans in to take a look. My lord, they are not here. Unfazed, Xiao Tian grabs the entire landmass and molds it into a ball. He stores it in the holy dragon relic. I'll see if I can fit this into the holy demon realm later. Upon seeing this, Long Chiodao almost loses his composure but mutters to himself, don't collapse, don't collapse, maintain a calm mind, this is just basic stuff for the lord. Subsequently, Xiao Tian tears open another small world, seemingly getting more enthusiastic as if he's opening a mystery box. After tearing open a gap, he asks Long Chiodao, is it in here? Long Chiodao shakes his head, no. Hearing this, Xiao Tian again molds it into a ball and tosses it to Long Chiodao, store this one as well. Witnessing this scene through a magical formation, Zhang Wuxuang is on the verge of a breakdown. Is this even human? Tearing the world's barriers by hand is one thing, but stuffing them back in and then rolling them into a ball to take away? You're unbelievable. Zhang Wuxin hurriedly asks, Boss, what do we do? The question you're asking is quite exquisite. It's exquisite because what the hell can I do? Zhang Wuxin then turns to Ji Yichuan, but before he could get a word out, Zhang Wuxuang sees Ji Yichuan's mental state collapse, drooling like an idiot. At this moment, a warrior suddenly shouts, They're gone. They're gone. The three immediately shudder, but then breathe a sigh of relief as they see the figures getting farther away. However, just as Zhang Wuxuang wipes the cold sweat from his bald head, he sees Xiao Tian suddenly turn back and stare at their small world. Ji Yichuan is terrified, mentally screaming no, it's just a fourth tier small world, leave it alone. Yet, against his wishes, a thunderous noise erupts and a spatial rift is torn open. Ji Yichuan clenches his fists tightly, but is helpless. Xiao Tian looks through the rift at them and grins, ha ha ha, found you, you hid pretty well. Actually hiding in this small world fragment, Ji Yichuan falls to the ground in terror, I'm only at the 19th tier, in front of this monster who can tear world fragments with his bare hands, I'm just a baby. Zhang Wuxuang also stares at Xiao Tian in amazement, this guy is really not human, he can even protect the small world from the chaotic flow of the void, are we really going to die in despair? I can't accept this, we are the Blood Rune clan, how can we submit so easily? As a deputy general of the Meteor Flame Battlefield's Martial Spirit Army, and a warrior of the Blood Grudge clan, he should think like me, to die in battle is the only way home, thinks Zhang Wuxuang, but the next second, Ji Yichuan suddenly prostrates himself on the ground, a steamed human powerhouse, your strength and abilities have completely conquered me, Zhang Wuxuang is stunned, I didn't expect you to be this kind of deputy, Xiao Tian is also somewhat confused, not quite understanding the situation, Zhong Yang Ming is also perplexed and can only think that this guy is smart, when the situation turned against him, he immediately bowed his head and begged for mercy, Ji Yichuan lifts his head with a sycophantic smile, esteemed sir, my name is Ji Yichuan, I am the deputy general of the Meteor Flame Battlefield, at the 19th tier, I am also an elder of the Blood Grudge Clan, and I'm quite skilled in various kinds of curses, I'm hardworking, reliable, and very well informed, 
just as Xiao Tian is about to say something, Ji Chuan interrupts him. Esteemed sir, you strike me as a person of high moral standing and great reputation. Surely, you're a benevolent and respected figure. I deeply regretted my previous actions, and am quite remorseful. Now the heavens have brought you before me, offering me a chance to switch sides and serve you. Would you be willing to let me seize this opportunity? Hearing Ji Chuan's colorful and impassioned plea, Xiao Tian, Long Chiu Dao, and Zhong Yang Ming are all stunned. This guy really has no shame. Seeing them silent, Ji Chuan continues, You may not know this, esteemed sir, but we came here at a great cost, not only to obtain the heir of holy demon Emperor Luo Tao Yen and to open the gate of war, but also to link the gate of war of the meteor flame battlefield and the holy demon realm to facilitate the continuous deployment of troops and conquer 124 realm worlds in the void. Finishing, Ji Chuan feels quite smug. Now, I don't believe you won't keep me by your side. Once I'm close to you, I'll find the right moment to steal important information. Unaware of Ji Chuan's ulterior motives, Zhang Wushuang can't help but verbally accuse him of being shameless. Ji Chuan rolls his eyes, but the next second, Xiao Tian suddenly speaks. You're a terrifying person. You're scheming and morally low, which disgusts me. I won't give you the opportunity the heavens have offered you. You can't stay. Ji Chuan is completely baffled. Why? I just made such a good presentation. Not only did I surrender, but I also provided valuable information. Where am I scheming or morally low? Seeing as you've just given me information, I'll let you die understanding. This is our first meeting, yet you know that I love doing good deeds, which suggests you've already conducted thorough research on me. Yet now you act as if you don't know me, likely plotting something sinister in secret. Also, you are just lowering your head and smirking, your eyes shifting around. Clearly, you're up to no good. Ji Chuan is puzzled. I was lowering my head. How could he possibly see? Seeing his expression, Xiao Tian slightly smiles. See, I got you right there. Plus, you spilled all your plans without me even asking. Isn't it to get me, the yet-to-be son-in-law of the holy demon emperor, to act? Moreover, your behavior of betraying your side for personal gain is utterly disgraceful. If I spare you today and keep you by my side, who knows when you'll betray me? As he speaks, Xiao Tian suddenly reaches out, grabbing Ji Chuan's neck. Enough. The more we talk, the scarier this gets. Then with a loud bang, Ji Chuan is firmly pressed into the ground by Xiao Tian. He suddenly turns his head. Oh right, if he dies, Bai Qing's memory blood curse technique will be lifted, right? Long Chiu Dao nods. Yes, my lord. His death will naturally lift the blood curse technique. Ji Chuan barely manages to speak. Boss, I have something else to say. But Xiao Tian seems not to hear him, continuing to talk to himself. That's good. Once Bai Qing's memory returns, the compensation for the initially damaged warship I had seized can be finalized. Ji Chuan completely breaks down. So, you're killing me just to restore Bai Qing's memory and then collect on a shuttle's cost? And this shuttle was even seized from us? Ji Chuan is utterly baffled. His soul seems to drift away. Esteemed sir, I can offer you more money. 100 million. 1 billion. You are Luo Taoyan's son-in-law. I have a lot of information about the holy demon emperor. Please spare me. I can be useful. Unfortunately, Xiao Tian is already deaf to his pleas. Ji Chuan can only curse in his mind. Damn it. I'm really screwed this time. This human is insane. He's utterly mad. The humans I've played to death before probably thought the same about me. It's karma. With that thought, Ji Chuan's spirit completely gives in, and he dies instantly. Seeing this, Zhang Wushuang clenches his fists. Good riddance. Long Chiu Dao glances at him. This blood grudge clan member deserved it. Xiao Tian turns to the remaining blood rune clan members. As for you, in the next second, he vanishes. A series of thudding sounds are heard as all the blood rune clan members are severely injured, lying on the ground shivering, their powers completely gone. Xiao Tian gestures to Long Chiu Dao. Store them in the holy dragon dragon relic for now. The green flame farm is expanding, and we're short on manpower. Long Chiu Dao, with a face of compassion, compared to Ji Chuan, they are lucky enough to live, even if it's a miserable life. At this moment, after settling matters with Zhang Wushuang and others, Xiao Tian arrives in their warship, observing the inscriptions covering the entire space. Long Chiu Dao informs the two, the person who built this warship is very powerful. Ji Chuan, who is now dead, was nothing but an ant in their presence. Then the three of them arrive in front of the formation base. Long Chiu Dao takes a closer Look, as long as we meet the conditions for this formation base, the so-called war gate can be built. The ship's cabin is empty but, thanks to spatial formation enhancements, it can hold over 10,000 people. The technology to build the war gate is quite mature. Using the supreme holy demon's blood as a medium is indeed a good choice. With Lord Luo's blood, we can directly create a war gate. They can come through it, and we can also reach their location. Xiao Tian Yan's out of boredom. If that's the case, what are we waiting for? Let's open the war gate and go. We have to get back for breakfast before dawn. 
especially Zhong Yangming. Cooking takes time. Zhong Yangming awkwardly rubs his forehead. Prince, you didn't really have to point that out. Long Chiodao reminds Xiao Tian, we need Lord Luo's blood as a guide, or else we can't activate the formation. Xiao Tian smiles slightly, pulls out a bottle from a spatial rift. I've got some right here. Zhong Yangming and Long Chiodao are both stunned looking at the blood in the bottle. Where did this come from? Just got some before we left. Just in case, Xiao Tian responds. Both men share a speechless glance. The prince is unusually proactive and diligent. Next, Long Chiodao drips the blood onto the formation. A loud boom is heard as the formation activates. A huge beam of light engulfs the three of them. Meanwhile, in a distant void battlefield, spatial fluctuations begin to appear over a city. A drop of blood vibrates continuously. The guarding Blood Rune Clan soldiers sense something is wrong. Go and inform the general. Something's wrong with the war hall. On the other side, within the general's mansion, a figure is trapped within a formation, guarded by many soldiers. The figure struggles constantly, almost breaking free from the formation's binding. Unfortunately, Blood Rune Clan's general Zhang Buki returns. As he slams his big blade into the ground, the formation is immediately strengthened, and the figure is once again forcefully bound. Zhang Buki taunts with a smile, you're a formidable man indeed. I step out for just a moment, and the formation nearly couldn't suppress you. It seems there's really no way around it, but to watch you around the clock. Holy Demon Emperor, Luo Tao Yin. Luo Tao Yin lifts his head and grins. Zhang Buki, if you have the guts, let me go and we'll fight it out. Let's see who ends up worse for wear. Zhang Buki only smiles. Taunts don't work on me. We went to great lengths to capture you. Luo Tao Yin spits in disdain. Coward. Zhang Buki remains unfazed. From the initial single layer of the formation to the now extreme seven layered formation. And now I personally have to suppress you. You're truly remarkable. Luo Tao Yin. The stronger you get, the more stable your blood can make our war gate. Of course, I'd advise you to surrender your blood power willingly. Stop being stubborn. Luo Tao Yin smirks. If you want it, come and get it yourself. To his surprise, Zhang Buki laughs. Your confidence comes from your blood power being fortified by some force. But that secret is about to be cracked by us. Our superiors have paid a heavy price to send a void warship above the Holy Demon Realm. From what our intelligence shows, your Holy Demon Clan hasn't deployed in full strength, has it? As Zhang Buki finishes speaking, Luo Tao Yin falls momentarily silent before erupting in a terrifying aura. He goes into a burst state, and the two horns on his head look even more ferocious. Seeing this reaction, Zhang Buki laughs even more heartily. Exactly. If he wasn't a beloved descendant, why would he be placed in a safe zone? Sadly, that safe zone is no longer safe. Perhaps your descendant has already been captured and had his blood drawn for the war gate. Hearing this, Luo Tao Yin roars in anger. If anything happens to little Yuan, I swear I'll slaughter your entire clan. Unfortunately, as the formation strengthens its suppression, Luo Tao Yin once again falls to his knees, powerless. Zhang Buki continues to tempt Luo Tao Yin. If you surrender your blood power and bring your entire clan to join our martial spirit army, I can call off the operation in the holy demon realm, and you'll be rewarded by the higher-ups. Luo Tao Yin bursts out laughing. Ha ha ha. Zhang Buki, don't be delusional. We of the demon clan will never bow down and scrimp for life unless we die in battle. As you said, little Yuan might face a catastrophe, but I believe, as the daughter of this emperor, she will not yield. Zhang Buki grits his teeth. This guy is like a stone in a dung pit, stinky and hard. Just then, a rumbling sound is heard within the city. Luo Tao Yin, you really don't know when to give up. Wasting effort, Zhang Buki observes. Luo Tao Yin doesn't move. The commotion just now wasn't his doing. He looks puzzled as well. If it wasn't him, then who else would act here? At that moment, a soldier suddenly runs in. General, something's happened. Zhang Buki slaps him without a word. Calm down. What's with the panic? The young soldier covers his mouth, looking wrong. There's a human man wearing a strange mask, and he's hunting our people everywhere. Zhang Buki's first reaction is disbelief. The city's defense is as solid as a rock. How could a human have breached it? Luo Tao Yin, suppressed by the formation, also doesn't believe it. Are there really humans that strong in the meteor flame battlefield? Moreover, the city's defensive formation is still intact, without a single sign of being broken. Zhang Buki waves his hand. Find out what's really going on. Don't speculate because of some minor disturbance. The young soldier quickly explains, I don't know where this human came from, but he's wearing a creepy mask. He attacks us on sight, and didn't come from outside the city. Zhang Buki's brow furrows. He has a bad feeling. He then conjures the mansion's formation in midair. I want to see just how formidable this human is, to be worthy of the term hunting that. Soon, three figures appear in the formation. He is wearing a black robe and a black ghost mask. Zhang Buki looks at the trio in surprise. Not just one, but also the sacred dragon clan, but there doesn't seem to be anything special about them. He questions the soldier before him. Is this the hunting you panicked about? These are just rats who've snuck in from somewhere. Before Zhang Buki finishes speaking, a loud rumbling noise erupts. The masked human does something, and a bunch of buildings are instantly demolished. Dust rises, and the Blood Moon clan soldiers scatter in fear. See that? Perfect assassination technique. Draw out your target, then eliminate them. With that, Xiao Tian lightly pushes off the ground, so 
soaring into the sky. With a few whooshes, his figure moves like a ghost, instantly catching up to the fleeing Blood Rune clan soldiers. These soldiers explode into blooms of blood in midair, while the rest of the people scatter in all directions, frantically trying to escape. Yet Xiao Tian casually walks up to an intact building, picks up a long knife, and with a light wave, a violent whirlwind reduces the building in front of him to ruins. The long knife can't withstand Xiao Tian's power and shatters into pieces, which he casually discards. A Blood Rune clan soldier hides behind the rubble, thinking, the most dangerous place is the safest. If I hide in the ruins that we're going to destroy, he'll never find me. Xiao Tian brags to Long Chiu Dao and Zhong Yang Ming. See this? My assassination technique is so efficient, and it leaves no trace. I don't understand why the Assassin's Guild even expelled me. Zhang Buki watches this and asks the young soldier beside him, why don't you all leave the city? The young soldier helplessly spreads his hands. The formation has been altered. It's fully sealed. We can't escape. Everyone's worried about revealing your position and doesn't dare to approach here. General, it's best if you find a way to move Holy Demon Emperor away from the Vanguard City. He will hunt us down sooner or later. Zhang Buki mutters to himself, damn it, how could it be such bad timing? Right when we were about to open the war gate, this human shows up. His strength might even exceed my 20th level by a bit. The young soldier continues to urge the general, time is of the essence. Better make a decision soon. Luo Taotian slowly stands up. It's not that he doesn't want to move, but that he can't. To move, the formation has to be lifted. Unfortunately, once the formation is opened, suppressing him won't be easy. So, he's stuck in a difficult position. He can only order his three deputy generals to intervene, to try and stall Xiao Tian's progress and buy some time. With that, the blood-colored patterns all over Zhang Buki's body suddenly ignite. His level 20 aura bursts forth, and as his momentum continues to rise, a blood-colored formation appears above everyone's heads. The next second, the formation chains that were originally locking Luo Taotian start to converge towards Zhang Buki. Luo Taotian is taken aback, wondering, what is he trying to do? Then, with a few squelching sounds, the chains actually pierce into Zhang Buki's body. Zhang Buki clenches his fists, seemingly enduring great pain. Luo Taotian's eyes widen in shock as he clearly feels his bloodline power being absorbed by Zhang Buki. As time passes, the blood-colored flames around Zhang Buki gradually take on a golden hue. A Blood Rune clan soldier behind him can't help but speak. General, this will affect the master's plan. Zhang Buki snaps back. Quickly carry out my orders. If we don't kill the invading enemies, any so-called plans for later will be a joke. A loss in bloodline power is okay. We can find some rare treasures for him to consume and recover later. Feeling his power being absorbed, Luo Taotian feels weak and falls to his knees. His body trembles uncontrollably, and he's somewhat worried. If Zhang Buki absorbs all of his power, will the human still be able to resist? Luo Taotian can't help but look up at the formation, looking at the human warrior who brought hope. Meanwhile, Xiao Tian is explaining to Long Chiu Dao and Zhong Yang Ming, the essence of my assassination technique is to feign weakness. Don't be in a hurry to show all your battle power. Take it step by step. You must accurately control the power you reveal, make the big fish think you're nearly at their level, and then continually provoke and stimulate the opposition. Make those big fish take the bait and come out to teach you a lesson. Both of them look helpless, nodding as if to say, you're awesome, whatever you say goes. But the next second, three nineteenth level Blood Rune clan soldiers land with thuds behind Xiao Tian. They are the strongest forces under General Zhang Buki. The leading deputy general holding a long spear shouts, human, this way is blocked. Xiao Tian's eyes light up, pointing at the three individuals as he tells Long Chiu Dao and Zhong Yang Ming, see, the big fish have come, haven't they? And judging by their actions and blocking us, the biggest fish must be up ahead. The two are puzzled. Why is it that when the prince says to let the targets reveal themselves, they just do? The prince is making a show of arrogance and destruction to bait the big fish, and lo, and behold, three big fish fall from the sky. What is going on? On the other side, Zhang Buki stretches his body comfortably, feeling the surging power within him. He can't help but exclaim, worthy of being the holy demon emperor. Just a bit of absorbed power has made me incredibly strong, a strength I've never felt before. Unfortunately, it will only last for an hour. Luo Taotian, looking weak, lifts his head, even more worried than before. Can the human really resist such a strong Zhang Buki? Zhang Buki seems to notice his worry and laughs. Next up is dealing with that human. Just as he finishes speaking, the wall in front of him bursts open, dust flying everywhere. Zhang Buki wonders how they arrived so quickly. Did they just happen to miss the three deputy generals he had arranged? Another explosion sound. Debris flying. Both Luo Taotian and Zhang Buki are surprised at the emerging figure. When could a level 20 take down three level 19s? Xiao Tian appears, carrying a blood-colored long spear, and behind him are the three level 19 deputy generals, now motionless as if they were three dead dogs. At this moment, Zhang Buki takes a deep breath and asks, who exactly are you? Xiao Tian throws down his spear, smashing the three lifeless deputy generals to the ground. Dad calls me the supreme benevolent king of hell deity. My name is Xiao Tian. Saying this, Xiao Tian adjusts his mask and his aura explodes.
explodes, creating an oppressive atmosphere. Upon hearing this, Zhang Buki's whole body's blood runes ignite, burning with a purple-red flame. I am Zhang Buki, the station general of the Meteor Flame Battlefield Martial Spirit Army. But who is this supreme benevolent king of hell deity? Why haven't I heard of him before? Xiao Tian turns to look at Luo Tao Tian behind him. It seems the only audience who can spread the message is this one here. Xiao Tian gestures towards him. Come on. Zhang Buki suddenly laughs. It seems the guards aren't completely ignoring this battlefield, after all. They even sent such a powerful reinforcement. Quite unexpected. Xiao Tian waves his hand impatiently. Enough talk. If you want to fight, let's fight. Only the weak speak nonsense. Zhang Buki becomes agitated. If you're seeking death, then I'll grant it to you. The more I look at you, the more annoying you become. It's infuriating. Zhang Buki growls, reigniting his aura, and suddenly expands into a five meter tall giant. With a roaring shout, Zhang Buki unleashes Crimson Flame Sky Slash. He's starting off with his strongest move, observes Luo Tao Tian, urgently warning Xiao Tian, be careful, his attack can bypass your defense and directly burn your spiritual energy, weakening you. It's too late. As the attack approaches, a massive roar resounds in the sky, filled with towering flames. Zhang Buki gives a satisfied smirk, the game is set, stripped of all your spiritual energy by my holy demon flame, what will you counter my dual blades with? Ha ha ha, pathetic human. As the dust and smoke clear, Zhang Buki's laughter abruptly stops. Xiao Tian, at some point, has moved behind him, grasping his dual blades. With a light squeeze, the blades snap into two pieces. Before Zhang Buki can react, a silver light flashes by, and a cold sensation emerges at his wrist, blood spurting from the severed parts. Xiao Tian makes his next move, spiritual power enveloping the broken blade as it grazes past Zhang Buki's knees. All Zhang Buki feels is a sharp pain followed by a sense of weakness in his knees, causing him to kneel before Xiao Tian. Before the shocked expression on his face could change, Xiao Tian lightly says, no need for such formalities if you know you're wrong. As General Zhang Buki lies helplessly before him, Xiao Tian casually tosses the broken blade to the ground. The blade bounces off the ground, brushing past Luo Tao Tian's face. For a moment, it seemed like Luo Tao Tian saw his ancestors. The next second, there's a cracking sound, and Luo Tao Tian feels all his restraints vanish. The array chains that bound him disintegrate into the ether. Unable to resist, Luo Tao Tian takes another look at Xiao Tian. This human is incredibly strong. Zhang Buki is held by the chin by Xiao Tian, disbelief filling his eyes. I've absorbed Luo Tao Tian's power. Why was I so easily defeated? Xiao Tian smiles. Weaklings from foreign races, remember my name. Zhang Buki breaks into a sweat. What is this human planning to do? With a slight effort, a crack is heard. The powerful Zhang Buki loses his life, filled with profound confusion. Shouldn't I have been captured and interrogated for intelligence? Maybe traded for resources or hostages? Why did he simply snap my neck? Luo Tao Tian looks at the completely dead Zhang Buki. He's really dead? This all feels so unreal. Xiao Tian then hoists Luo Tao Tian over his shoulder. We shouldn't stay here long, and also grabs Zhang Buki's corpse. With a leap, they fly through the air, covering a considerable distance before Xiao Tian finally stops. This should be a safe place. Luo Tao Tian slaps his puzzled head. Not only is this human incredibly strong in combat, but he's also fast. Where is he weak? Thinking this, Luo Tao Tian bows slightly. Thank you for saving me. I am eternally grateful. Xiao Tian waves it off. It's nothing. You appear to be powerful, yet you were captured alone. If you return alone, your comrades might suspect you've been turned. So, let me help you all the way. This foreigner has a high status. You can take him back as proof. Luo Tao Tian is momentarily speechless. Just as he's about to reveal that he's actually the holy demon emperor, Xiao Tian interrupts. There's no need to thank me. When you go back, recount everything that happened in detail. Make it clear that it was I, Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity Xiao Tian, who saved you. If anything happens, feel free to put it on me, Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity. Got it? At that moment, Luo Tao Tian suddenly grips Xiao Tian's hand, looking at him earnestly. I've always enjoyed making friends with heroes from all walks of life. Brother Xiao, why don't we become sworn brothers right here and now? Seeing Luo Tao Tian's eager expression, Xiao Tian considers it. From the way you carry yourself, you do seem like a bold and carefree individual. Why not become sworn brothers? Having a brother makes one's name even more impressive. With this thought, Xiao Tian firmly grasps Luo Tao Tian's hand. You seem older than me, so you should be the elder brother. I'll call you big brother. Luo Tao Tian is overjoyed. Little brother, the two share a heartfelt moment, basking in the warmth of their newfound friendship. Just then, Xiao Tian receives a message. The gate of war is about to close. Xiao Tian's expression changes slightly. This isn't good. We might not have enough time. Big brother, something urgent has come up. My wife is unwell at home, and I must return before dawn. Let's part ways for now and reunite later. With that, Xiao Tian quickly departs, disappearing from Luo Tao Tian's sight in an instant. Watching him go, Luo Tao Tian thinks, this strong little brother of mine is also quite impulsive. He didn't even let me introduce myself. However, being this strong and caring for his family, his siblings are indeed fortunate. Far away, Luo Fong Yuan suddenly sneezes, sensing that something is amiss. After
After some introspection, Luo Taoyan feels his strength gradually returning. Purple flames burn furiously around him, cleansing his body. His originally dark purple hair flows down his back, revealing without a doubt the grandeur of the holy demon emperor. Xiao Tian quickly rejoins them. As soon as he lands, he immediately asks, How did it go? Is everything settled? Long Chiodao looks weary. The Blood Rune clan members hiding in the shadows have completed their donations. They've already moved all their resources out of the city. Hearing this, Xiao Tian immediately decides, Then let's go. We need to hurry back before the gate of war collapses. Saying this, the three of them look back at the array platform behind them. Long Chiodao points to the gate of war. It's still not stable enough. Whether it's the blood on this side of the array or Empress Luo's blood on the other side, it's too little. Otherwise, the gate of war could have lasted much longer. Alright, let's go. Instantly, the three quickly pass through the gate of war. The scenery changes in a flash, and within a second, the three are back inside the cabin of their void warship. Just a few seconds after they've landed, the gate of war behind them bursts open with a bang, dissipating into the cosmos. Xiao Tian lets out a relieved sigh. That was close. Who knows how long it would have taken us to get back otherwise. Then Xiao Tian suddenly asks, By the way, how did the fundraising go? How much did we get? Zhong Yangming is momentarily puzzled before laughing and spreading his hands. Too much to count quickly, but we can be sure that the overall level of the holy demon realm will greatly improve with these resources. Xiao Tian removes his mask. It looks like the Blood Rune clan has realized their mistakes. I'm relieved to see them actively expressing their goodwill. He then then asks, did you tell the Blood Rune clan that after you modified the array and we leave the Vanguard Battle City, there will be an explosion? Long Chiodao's expression stiffens, and he blinks. I should have, maybe mentioned it. Xiao Tian takes a deep breath, looking a bit awkward. What do you mean by maybe? Zhong Yangming finally catches on, looking at Long Chiodao in astonishment. The array will explode after you've modified it. Long Chiodao is somewhat puzzled. Wasn't it Xiao Tian who said that we have to destroy all traces after the assassination? Xiao Tian falls silent for a long time before finally speaking. They should leave after making the donation, right? They won't think they're safe just because they've donated and then stay there, will they? This Blood Rune clan, they shouldn't be that foolish, right? Zhong Yangming and Wang Chiodao both wear serious expressions. They're definitely not foolish. They should have all left by now. After saying this, the cabin falls into silence once more for a long time. Finally, Xiao Tian speaks up. I'm sure it's fine. Let's hurry home. It's almost time for breakfast. On the other side, at the Meteor Flame Battlefield, a group of Blood Rune clan warriors is gathered together. They are sitting on the ground trying to calm their fears when suddenly, one of them pats his chest and says to his companion, why do I feel a bit uneasy? Should we hurry up and leave this troublesome place? But the other man looks disdainful. What's there to worry about? We saw that masked monster leave through the gate of war. Are you still afraid? Yeah, let's take a good rest, then clean up the entire city. This is the most suitable area for setting up the gate of war. Once the higher-ups send people over, we can earn merit for holding our ground and not retreating. Suddenly, a squad leader asks in a daze, that's strange. Why has it suddenly gotten bright? Boom! A massive mushroom cloud rises into the sky. At that moment, all of the Blood Rune clan members met their grandmothers. Just now, Luo Tao Yin was rescued. He immediately ran off carrying the body of Zhang Buki. Indeed, soon after, a violent explosion was heard from behind. Looking at the flames that shot up into the sky, Luo Tao Yin couldn't help but mutter, It's really not safe to stay here for long. Brother Xiao didn't lie to me. At this moment, a group of men and women from the demon clan suddenly appeared. They quickly approached Luo Tao Yin. Wu Xinxiu looked surprised. Luo Tao Yin, what's going on? On. The others, either calling him brother or father, all began to ask questions. Luo Tao Yen threw Zhang Buki's body to the side. Why are you all here? Wu Xinxiu threw herself into his arms. We were originally discussing how to rescue you from Pioneer Battle City, but then we heard a loud explosion. When we came out, we saw that Pioneer Battle City had been blown to the heavens. We hurried over to check the situation. She looked to the side. Is this Zhang Buki? How did he die? Luo Tao Yen glanced away. Let's go back first. This is not the place to talk. Wu Xinxiu adjusted her hair. That's correct. There's too much commotion here. We might have already alerted other station troops. It's better to go back to our defensive lines to avoid them pursuing us. The group of demon clan men and women immediately nodded in agreement. Soon after, everyone returned to the camp. Luo Tao Yen gathered everyone and began to speak. My fellow comrades, the Blood Rune clan general Zhang Buki has fallen. Pioneer Battle City has been taken. He glanced at Zhang Buki, who was nailed to the wall. Remember this everyone. The one who killed Zhang Buki is a powerful human, known as the Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity, named Xiao Tian. The crowd instantly erupted. Heavens have opened their eyes. Blood Rune General got what he deserved. Wait, who is this supreme benevolent king of hell deity Xiao Tian? Who cares who he is? If he could kill Zhang Buki, he is the ultimate powerhouse. Looks like your human race has gained some face. Many humans exchanged glances. All had the same question. Who is Xiao Tian? Is he human? I've never heard of him. At this moment, Luo Tao Yan suddenly asked Wu Xinxiu, Has there been any anomalies with Little Yuan's bloodline lamp? There indeed has been an anomaly, and it's not small. Upon hearing this, Luo Tao Yan 
and immediately became excited. What? We must hurry back to the hall where the bloodline lamps are kept. Little Yuan's bloodline lamp must not go out. Saying this, Luo Taotian rushed off in a certain direction. But as soon as he pushed open the door, a blinding light immediately shone out. Luo Taotian was stunned. Why is it still lit? Goodness, when you said anomaly, you meant it became too bright? Wu Xinxiu wore a helpless expression. After you were captured, I came here to take a look, wanting to observe your condition. But as soon as I came in, I found that little Yuan's bloodline lamp had turned into this. Right now, at the center of the Grand Hall, there floats an enormous fireball, resembling a proud sun. The lamps of other people below are no bigger than fists. Luo Taotian muttered to himself, is this what they call a firefly dares to compete with the sun and moon? This is way too big. Wu Xinxiu slowly spoke. The problem now is, little Yuan's lamp is still expanding. This small hall can barely contain it anymore. Luo Taotian thought for a moment, then let's move it to the main hall. Such a big lamp shouldn't go to waste. Let's use it for illumination. Wu Xinxiu laughed. You really are something. Jealous of your own daughter? Isn't this a good thing? It was because her bloodline was the weakest that we left her in the holy demon realm. Now, she has grown stronger than all of us. She has evolved from being the last spark of the holy demon clan to becoming a great son. Luo Taoyan's eyes turned red. How could I be jealous? This girl, Wu Xinxiu sensed something was off and couldn't help but tease. Look at your temper. The numerous princes and princesses immediately chimed in. We are also very jealous. Exactly. By the way, you haven't yet explained what exactly happened at the pioneer battlefield. Wu Xinxiu suddenly asked. Luo Taoyan paused for a moment. Well, this time I made a new brother called Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity Xiao Tian. You should have seen him. This brother Xiao is extraordinary. At this moment, Xiao Tian had just returned from blowing up Pioneer Battle City. Looking at the captured battleships, he asked, can these things be modified? Long Chiodao thought for a moment, shouldn't be difficult. We've seized quite a lot of spoils this time. Reforging ten such void battleships would be more than enough. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian patted Long Chiodao on the shoulder. Your level of awareness leaves room for criticism. Although they are our enemies, these resources were offered out of genuine repentance and love. How could you describe them as spoils of war? Long Chiodao felt awkward. Ah, yes, I was mistaken. Thank you for the enlightenment. Xiao Tian crossed his arms and nodded. Recognizing your mistakes is never too late. Remember to add a large bathhouse and a big kitchen to this battleship. Don't forget. Long Chiodao hastily bowed. Don't worry Lord Xiao. I'll try to direct the renovations of this void battleship towards comfort. Suddenly, Xiao Tian remembered something else. There's one more thing. The people from the Blood Rune clan, who were imprisoned in the Holy Dragon Relic. Take care of them too. Send them to work at the Green Flame Farm. They are short-handed there due to expansion. Let them atone for their sins through labor. Let sweat cleanse their souls. Long Chiodao continued to bow. Understood. Rest assured, Lord Xiao. But he couldn't help but think to himself, with this treatment, might as well let them die like Ji Yichuan from the Blood Grudge Clan and be done with it. All right, go to your work. Zhong Yang Ming, come make breakfast with me. Everyone, let's get moving. Zhong Yang Ming and Long Chiodao cooperatively struck a pose. Good. Xiao Tian also timely yelled. Go for it. Heavy Holy Dragon Cavalry. Both men felt like crying, but couldn't. Lord, there's no need to say the title out loud. We still want to save face. Not long after, Xiao Tian returned to the royal residence. As soon as he entered, he was blocked by his wife and children at the door. Xiao Yuer was floating in the air with crossed legs. Daddy, you're back? Zi Ruoyan had an unhappy face. Where were you yesterday? Faced with the pressure from his two empress wives, Xiao Tian scratched his head and explained. Something came up at the last minute. A new group from the Blood Rune clan arrived. Now that my injuries are a bit better. I joined Long Chiodao in resolving the situation. We also took care of those who used the blood curse technique from the Blood Grudge clan. Upon hearing this, Zi Ruoyan spoke. It seems I guessed right. With that, she pointed to the side. Look over there. Xiao Tian followed her gaze and was shocked to find. Above by Qing lying there, a pure white dragon spirit was circling non-stop. The traces of the blood curse technique were also slowly disappearing. Zi Ruoyan frowned. Although you're back, you also need to be careful with your body. Don't push yourself if your injuries aren't healed. Fortunately, you didn't get hurt this time. Xiao Tian quickly stepped forward to rub her shoulders. Don't worry, I've been recovering very quickly recently. Even gained a bit of strength. It's just that using force jolted my insides a bit. My energy is somewhat depleted. Upon hearing this, Zi Ruoyan immediately looked worried. Grabbed Xiao Tian's hand to examine it. As expected, Xiao Tian's meridians were constantly pulsing. Felt like they were playing music. But why would there be such a rhythm out of the blue? You must have gotten hurt. Zi Ruoyan became somewhat angry. I just told you. How could you be so careless? Luo Feng Yuan also hurriedly approached. Brother Xiao damaged his energy? What are we going to do? Zi Ruoyan pondered for a moment. Her cheeks slightly flushed. The only solution for now is, tonight, when we go to sleep, we'll use mutual supplementation to replenish his energy. Luo Feng Yuan nodded with a smile. Indeed that's an option. Last time when Brother Xiao was looking at that book as he slept, I glanced at it while cleaning up. We can use the method of harmonizing Yin and Yang to fill the energy gap. Xiao Tian looked hopeful. It's all my fault. I'll definitely cooperate tonight. At this moment, accompanied by Bai 
Baiqing's dragon spirit becoming free. After a roar, the dragon spirit returned to Baiqing's body. The previously sleeping Baiqing suddenly opened her eyes. Under everyone's gaze, Baiqing calmly stood up and softly said to everyone, Let's get reacquainted. My name is Baiqing, dragon empress of the sacred dragon lineage, one of the commanders in the meteor flame battlefield. Battlefield commander designated by the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes. Luo Feng Yuan and Zi Ruoyan were both confused. United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes? Battlefield commander? Even though I don't understand, it sounds very impressive. I wonder if I could win in a fight against her. Suddenly, Bai Qing looked at the two of them, pointed to her own face and said, Both of you, though I don't mind being cuddled by you for rest, please be a bit more considerate. Lord Xiao wasn't here last night. Cuddling with me is one thing. But why? While you were cuddling with me, did one of you try to bite my face and the other try to lick it? At these words, both became instantly awkward, not knowing what to say. Xiao Tian suddenly reacted. Weren't you knocked out by me? How could you know what happened? Bai Qing pointed to a tuft of purple and yellow fur on the blanket. With such obvious evidence, the answer is clear. Furthermore, you both intentionally, after getting drunk, vent emotions and relieve stress. During my amnesia, I've seen quite a bit of that. Of course, during the days of my amnesia, I also had significantly lowered self-control. Saying this, Bai Qing looked at Xiao Tian. During my amnesia, I apologize for the irrational acts I have done towards the overly tempting and delicious Lord Xiao. Zi Ruoyan was utterly surprised. You said tempting? Luo Feng Yuan looked even more like she was facing a formidable foe. What do you mean by delicious? Bai Qing, unbothered, looked at Xiao Tian. Haven't you noticed? His very existence makes it hard for people to not make mistakes. The aura he exudes is like the world's most delicious delicacies. Just by staying near Lord Xiao, my injuries recover quickly. Even my internal body starts to cultivate on its own. My sacred dragon lineage is also constantly strengthening. Therefore, it caused me, who had lost my memory and had weaker self-control, to uncontrollably engage in licking behavior. Zi Ruoyan simply couldn't believe it. What a joke. How is that possible? Luo Feng Yuan also hadn't noticed. You're right. How could it be so mystical? We've also tried it many times, and there's been no effect. Hearing her slip of the tongue, Zi Ruoyan was somewhat disappointed. Can you be a little more reserved in front of others? Luo Feng Yuan just shrugged. Reserved about what? Aren't we discussing the issue here? Zi Ruoyan almost lost her composure. Luo Kao, you've really had enough. Hearing the two talk like this, Bai Qing also began to doubt. No effect? That can't be. Could it be that this effect only comes into play when in a severely injured state? Saying this, Bai Qing moved next to Xiao Tian. No, I can clearly feel that my cultivation speed is accelerating. Don't you guys notice any anomalies compared to before? Bai Qing even placed her hand on Xiao Tian. Look, especially after physical contact, the amplification effect is particularly noticeable. Luo Feng Yuan seemed to think of something, whispered into Zi Ruan's ear. It seems like there is something to it, especially after that one night. The effects are even more terrifying. Zi Ruan suddenly grew concerned. Did we somehow take something from Lord Xiao? Both quickly asked. Lord Xiao, will this have any impact on you? Do you feel uncomfortable? Lord Xiao, do you feel anything wrong? Xiao Tian nonchalantly shrugged. I don't feel uncomfortable at all. Ever since the first time I met you, I've only gotten better and better. And being summoned by you, I've felt comfortable and happy every moment. Don't worry, I'm in excellent health. If you insist that I've given up something to allow you to experience such changes, I think it must be love. Zi Ruoyan had a radiant smile. I also think summoning you here was the most correct thing I've ever done. Both looked at each other, and a strong feeling of love enveloped the two. All was said without words. Luo Feng Yuan looked on with jealousy from the side. So what if she came here before me? What's so great about that? Hearing this, Bai Qing calmly explained. In a sense, it's perfectly reasonable that whoever comes first in matters like this gets priority. Don't fret too much about it. Suddenly, Luo Feng Yuan had a daring idea. Since you feel so comfortable by Xiao Brother's side, why not just be with him? Bai Qing was dumbfounded. What are you doing? Do you even know what you're saying? Luo Feng Yuan patted her on the head. Once you join in, the two of us can team up against Zi Ruoyan. Wouldn't that be one? wonderful? Bai Qing turned her head in resignation. Uncle Luo and Aunt Wu said you've been off since you were born. It really is true. Luo from Yuan's eyes lit up. So you do know about my royal father and mother? I do indeed. Originally, they were worried that if they died in battle one day, you'd be heartbroken and completely collapse emotionally. That's why they tried to keep it from you. She glanced at Luo Feng Yuan, but as it stands now, you seem to be doing much better than expected. Your soul seems to be increasingly stable. It seems they don't have to worry about you anymore. Luo Feng Yuan seemed somewhat puzzled. Is that so? But the next second, she licked her lips. So, about that proposal of mine, do you accept or not? Bai Qing was at a loss for words, feeling a headache coming on. Didn't I just change the subject? Why can this guy bring it right back so directly? Luo Feng Yuan thought to herself, Bai Qing is also an empress, and she's close to my parents. She's on my side. So if we ever have to fight against Zi Bun, wouldn't we be guaranteed to win? Thinking this, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly moved forward and picked up Bai Qing. Bai Qing was taken by surprise. As Luo Feng Yuan tossed her towards Xiao Tian, Xiao brother, catch. Xiao Tian, who was talking with Zi Ruoyan, heard the call and instinctively turned his head.
head. But before Bai Qing could collide with him, Zi Ruoyan had already flashed in front of Xiao Tian and caught her. Bai Qing stared blankly, muttering thanks. But Zi Ruoyan scolded. Luo Dari Kao, what are you doing? With that, she threw Bai Qing back. Luo Feng Yuan didn't hold back either, and a resigned Bai Qing, who was treated like a sandbag, began to wonder, did I live too comfortably during my days of lost memory, that my reactions have become so slow? I can't take this anymore. The next second, white lightning instantly enveloped Bai Qing, forcing Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan to retreat. Zi Ruoyan flicked off the lightning on her hand. Ah, the little girl is getting interesting. Luo Feng Yuan also smiled. This is the first time I've seen you take the initiative. Bai Qing was speechless for a moment, as lightning burst from her again, and the three immediately fell into a melee. Xiao Tian looked on, contemplating. What a memorable day. The first battle of the three emperors has begun. I wonder how Zhong Yangming's breakfast is coming along. At that moment, in the green flame farm, Shan Jiji, who was previously captured, shouted. What is our slogan? Everyone shouted in unison. Work off our sins through labor. Let sweat cleanse our souls. What is our spirit? Follow Master Zhao's teachings. Adorn ourselves with kindness. Decorate ourselves with benevolence. Correct ourselves with justice. So, before breakfast, we can rest. But what should we do? Work hard. Study hard. Reform ourselves. Everyone was fired up. Let's go. Master Xiao was right. Our current battlefield is the Green Flame Farm. Not long after, as everyone was diligently shoveling manure, the mayor's voice rang out. Team leader, we have newcomers. Shan Jiji turned around and saw a group of Blood Rune clan warriors behind the mayor, staring blankly at him. The mayor cheerfully introduced them to Shan Jiji. Team leader, these are the newcomers. Everyone was dumbfounded. We're not going to have to do these chores too, are we? If so, I'd rather die. Suddenly, the commander pointed an alarm. Is that the deputy commander? The squad leader's eyes widened in disbelief. Zhang Zhu is being used as a ball by those pigs? Zhang Wushuang felt a cold sweat. My deputy commander, how could he suffer such humiliation? The key is, he looks happy about it. Zhang Jiji leaned in disdainfully. No need to be so surprised. Zhang Zhu earned this. He provided Master Xiao with information about our Blood Rune clan. Commander was trembling with anger. I must have been out of my mind to believe his main quality was loyalty. Then, ready to charge at Zhang Zhu, Zhang Jiji saw this and quickly ordered others to restrain him. Commander was immediately pinned to the ground. Zhang Jiji yelled at Zhang Wushuang. Zhang Wushuang, know your place. You are now a labor reform prisoner of Green Flame Farm. What will you do if your yelling scares the pigs? You need to forget your past. Our current battlefield is Green Flame Farm, understand? Zhang Wushuang was shocked. His eyes filled with tears. Has Zhang Jiji gone mad? Zhang Jiji then turned to the mayor. Mayor, may I request a postponed breakfast time? I want to conduct ideological education for these newcomers until they come to their senses. I won't let them eat a single grain of Master Zhao's rice or drink a drop of his water. The mayor patted Zhang Jiji on the shoulder. Sure, no problem at all. I trust your judgment. Zhan Jiji looked at Zhan Wushuang, satisfied. Don't worry, I'll make sure you understand the gravity of your past crimes. Meanwhile, Zhong Yangming had prepared dinner. The three empresses were seated, and Long Chiodao arrived late, noticing something was off. The empress's spiritual energy fluctuations are intense, just like they've been in a battle. How strange. Just in time for dinner, everyone sat down and began eating, when suddenly, Zi Ruoyan asked Bai Qing. Bai Qing, Lord Xiao risked his own health to join forces with Long Chiodao to eliminate eliminate the one who cast the blood curse technique on you. You should know the reason behind it. Why don't you share the information we want? Saying this, Zi Ruoyan looked up at her. Stunned for a moment, Luo Feng Yuan also asked, Don't they serve meals where you fight? Bai Qing had her mouth full, her chopsticks moving non-stop. She mumbled to them, Of course they serve meals, but the taste is far inferior. We can eat and talk at the same time. Don't waste Prime Minister Zhong's hard work. Zi Ruoyan also looked dissatisfiedly at Luo Feng Yuan. Let's not concern ourselves with these trivial matters for now. Let's be serious. Shall we start with the first matter? Bai Qing nodded. Go ahead. What is the situation with Luo Feng Yuan's parents? Upon hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan couldn't believe it. I didn't expect you to ask about my parents. Seeing her expression, Zi Ruoyan leisurely explained. Haven't you been troubled by this for a long time? Instead of letting you obsess over it alone, it's better to just ask. Then, Luo Feng Yuan leaned in and whispered. In that case, can you be considerate tonight? I want to be with Xiao brother. Shut up. You don't. But Luo Feng Yuan's clenched fists expressed. I really want to. When Bai Qing spoke up during a break in eating. Uncle Luo and Aunt Wu often mention her. What specifically would you like to know? Luo Feng Yuan became excited. I want to know everything. In my memory, they died fighting amongst themselves, and I became the demon emperor by killing my brothers and sisters with my own hands. Luo Feng Yuan said, trembling. Why? Why did they do that? Bai Qing slowly put down her chopsticks. Uncle Luo and Aunt Wu said, among their 19 children, you were the one with the weakest bloodline, but the greatest potential, with a strong soul, but prone to rage. So they always pampered you, afraid your emotions would cause your body to to break down. For years ago, Meteor Flame Battlefield was in crisis, so we had to ask for help from the Holy Demon Royal Family. I offered Bloodline Inheritance as a condition, so your father agreed to go to war. The so-called Bloodline Inheritance method requires one to peel away a part
part of one's own bloodline to pass on the kin. Your parents, brothers, and sisters all had the resolve to die on the battlefield to protect you. They all offered up their bloodline, creating avatars to act as your enemies. In the illusion your mother created, they became the villains on your path to the throne. When you killed their avatars, that's when you inherited the bloodline they offered you. Even the cosmic gifts that were granted when the 18th prince's legitimate human imperial bloodline fully coalesced national fate were left to you to strengthen your body, eliminating the risk of your body collapsing. Luo Fen Yuan's eyes filled with tears upon hearing the truth. Mother is so ruthless. How miserable I felt in her illusion. The happier I am in my real memories. Suddenly, she looked at Xiao Tian beside her. It used to be really painful. It felt like my head could explode at any time. After meeting you, that rarely happens. Could that be why you say I'm not smart? Z Royan thought for a moment. Regarding that, my opinion remains the same. The nourishment went to the wrong place. Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan burst out laughing. My parents, brothers, and sisters gave up so much. Do you think they're also not smart or just foolish? Xiao Tian gently wiped the tears from her eyes. They're not foolish. They love you very much. Cherish this affection. After all, you are loved by your family. Xiao Yuer suddenly came over. Daddy, Xiao Yuer loves you too. Luo Feng Yuan simply pounced. He, Xiao brother is also part of my family. Z Royan really wanted to go over, but held back. Everyone was smiling at the scene, except for Bai Qing, who was incredibly busy. Luo Feng Yuan, holding Xiao Tian, suddenly thought of something. What about my parents? Will the loss of that part of their bloodline affect them? Bai Qing chewed her food. The impact won't be significant. It's just that the martial spirit army has been making frequent moves. We're outnumbered and have faced several ambushes. Luo Feng Yuan became anxious. What about my parents? It was already fraught, but because of a mysterious powerful individual who clashed with someone, a major crisis was averted. At that time, the martial spirit army had gathered and was pressing against our forces. Just as we were preparing for a desperate fight, the sky over meteor flame battlefield shattered, falling right above the heads of the martial spirit army. A massive spatial turbulence directly tore apart tens of thousands of martial spirit army elites. Based on the situation at the time, the unknown powerful individual who could tear space seems to have been fighting someone in the spatial layers. The losing individual, his curses before dying almost echoed across the entire battlefield. Everyone became curious. What did he curse? Bai Qing mimicked the tone. You damn thing. You'll die a bad death. Hearing this, Xiao Tian, who was drinking water, choked a bit. Xiao Yu were quickly asked. Daddy, are you alright? Did Xiao Yu were hug you too tightly? Xiao Tian waved his hand. No, I just choked. But when he looked up, he found Bai Qing staring at him oddly. Xiao Tian awkwardly closed his eyes. He communicated with Long Chiu Dao. Could this be from when we killed corpse heart demon Long Chiu Dao? Long Chiu Dao picked up his cup to hide his expression. Mr. Xiao, that's likely the case. The area where the holy dragon relic was, is where the spatial layers are. They never would have guessed that the so-called unknown powerful individual is actually sitting right with them. Bai Qing continued, after the crisis was averted, I was about to go to the United Alliance of a hundred tribes for assistance. Unfortunately, I was ambushed. Uncle Luo saved me but was captured. Luo Feng Yuan suddenly became agitated. My father was captured. They were after the secret Uncle Luo holds. People from the Blood Grudge Clan and Blood Rune Clan. They want to know why Uncle Luo never runs out of demonic energy and why he gets stronger as he fights. So for now, Uncle Luo is still safe. Suddenly, Xiao Tian shouted urgently, Wait a minute, you said the one who was captured is her father. Holy Demon Emperor Luo Taotian? Bai Qing nodded, Yes, and it was the Blood Rune Clan's general Zhan Buki who led it. Is there a problem? Xiao Tian awkwardly smiled, No problem, but internally, he was cursing, No problem my foot, the man I saved on the meteor flame battlefield, my good sworn brother, turns out to be my second father-in-law. Xiao Tian felt choked up, he had told Long Chiu Dao and Zhong Yang Ming about his life-saving sworn brother's situation on the warship. Is it too late to silence them now? Meanwhile, Long Chiu Dao and Zhong Yang Ming were trying their best not to laugh. Laugh and their life is over, but the moment they thought of the day when Xiao Tian would introduce Luo Taotian to Luo Feng Yuan as this is my big brother, both couldn't help but feel the urge to burst into laughter. Z Royan then looked at Luo Feng Yuan. The illusion your mother set up for you has been lifted. Do you have any clues in your memories about the secret behind your ever-increasing battle power? Luo Feng Yuan shrugged. Didn't you hear by Qing? I've been abnormal since I was a child. How would I know any clues? Z Royan didn't want to give up. Think carefully. Knowing the enemy's objective would help us better prepare. Luo Feng Yuan gave up thinking and raised her fist. You all say my brain's not good. How could I possibly figure it out? Why not just go and save my father? Z Royan looked at her disdainfully. Ah, right, right. You also have Holy Demon Emperor's bloodline. Going there would be like delivering yourself to them. Luo Feng Yuan didn't understand what she meant and mumbled, delivering ourselves to wipe them out. What's the problem? Z Royan was almost exploding in anger. She had to keep telling herself not to get mad. She's been dumb since she was a child. Don't take her seriously. At this moment, Bai Qing also spoke. Don't be too impulsive. Why not wait until I contact the United Alliance of a hundred tribes and plan after the reinforcements arrive? Long Chiu Dao, who was beside them, muttered something about 
about getting stronger with each fight. Suddenly, he seemed to recall something. I guess I know why the Holy Demon Clan grows stronger as they fight, and never runs out of demonic energy. It should be the Earthly Sovereign Technique, one of the Emperor's unique skills. Using the land as a base, they amplify themselves. According to what you said, the Holy Demon Emperor likely uses the entire Holy Demon Realm as the base. In that case, the demonic energy of the Holy Demon Clan will naturally be inexhaustible. Moreover, the Holy Demon Emperor has tied himself to the Primordial Demon Kingdom using the Earthly Sovereign Technique. The stronger the Primordial Demon Kingdom becomes, the stronger the Holy Demon Clan will be, naturally growing stronger as they fight. After this detailed analysis, everyone was stunned. Z. Royan was the first to inquire. Is the Earthly Sovereign Technique really that amazing? Surely, it must come at some cost. The Primordial Demon Kingdom and the Holy Demon Emperor are already tied together. They rise and fall together. Of course, the chance of the Primordial Demon Kingdom being destroyed is minimal. After all, with this incredible guy around, the Holy Demon Realm will only become stronger and stronger. Z. Royan finally understood, so that's how it is. But the Holy Demon Emperor really has guts. Leaving the Primordial Demon Kingdom to you, if I weren't around, the war at Meteor Flame Battlefield would probably still be ongoing, and this Elder's Realm would have fallen to the first stage. Luo Feng Yuan slammed the table and stood up. You're talking nonsense. Z. Royan didn't hold back. You know whether I'm speaking the truth or not. With your beheading style of governance, it's a wonder the Primordial Demon Kingdom is still intact. And could you please take your studies seriously? Now, the memorials that I have to go through actually include affairs of your Primordial Demon Kingdom. Are you trying to work me to death? Facing Z. Royan's tirade, Luo Feng Yuan was baffled. Did I mistakenly allocate things? Z. Royan shook her head. It's not just a mistake. It's your subjects in the Primordial Demon Kingdom asking for help from officials of the Great Flame Dynasty, hoping that I would make decisions for them. Luo Feng Yuan was speechless. This isn't my fault. I didn't even know they were doing this behind my back to save themselves. Besides, we're all family. Helping out shouldn't be a problem. Facing Z. Royan's killer look, she thought better of it. Fine, fine. For the sake of my dad's combat power, I'll take the blame. Suddenly, Zhong Yangming spoke up. There's actually one last doubt regarding the National Fate Plundering Plant in the Southern Wilderness Realm. What role does the Primordial Demon Kingdom play in this? Both of them looked at Bai Qing. So, did the Holy Demon Emperor say anything about it? Bai Qing looked around at everyone, her eyes somewhat heavy. Upon being asked, she began to slowly say, The Holy Demon Emperor holds goodwill towards the Emperor lineage of the Southern Wilderness Realm. Zhong Yangming was a bit confused. If it's goodwill, why did Lord Luo initially come to the Southern Wilderness Realm, planning to plunder the National Fate to other parties? Bai Qing shook her head. That's impossible. The Holy Demon Clan naturally feels close to the descendants of the true human emperor lineage. They would only become close friends, or even partners. The information left by Uncle Luo should be to help the Great Flame Dynasty consolidate national fate and share the blessings of heaven and earth. Why would he allow her to plunder it? As Bai Qing spoke, she continued eating without any interruption. Z. Royan let out a helpless laugh. If I'm not mistaken, given her personality, no matter what the information says, she would interpret it as a license to plunder national fate, right? Luo Feng Yuan was incredibly awkward. Indeed, it seems. I might have misunderstood. Zhong Yangming then asked again, why would Luo Empress definitely be close to Z Empress? Isn't that a bit presumptuous? Before Bai Qing could speak, Long Chiodao started explaining, a long time ago, there wasn't a holy demon clan among the demon tribes. In the demon tribes, the Luo family's dual horn demons belonged to one of the imperial families. The young emperor of the Luo demon nation married his sister to the human emperor as a second wife. The agreement was that their firstborn son would carry the Luo surname. This is the origin of the supreme holy demon bloodline. So technically, the holy demon clan are also descendants of the human emperor with the same origin. This is why they would naturally be close. Bai Qing added, Uncle Luo once mentioned that he and that esteemed purple emperor of the human descendants are sworn brothers. Hearing this, Xiao Tian coughed uncontrollably. Goodness, so my second father-in-law is sworn brothers with my grandfather-in-law. That makes me sworn brothers with my grandfather-in-law too. Man, my second father-in-law sure knows how to befriend people from all walks of life. At this moment, the stunned Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan spoke simultaneously. My father and her father are sworn brothers? Since when? Bai Qing thought while biting her chopsticks. The old celestial master who once supervised the national fate of the Great Flame Dynasty was actually Uncle Luo. Zhong Yangming suddenly recalled, so it was him. He disappeared when the Celestial Observatory was disbanded three years after the founding of the nation. Did he go back to the Primordial Demon Kingdom? Did the former emperor already know the truth about the Southern Wilderness Realm? After Uncle Luo discovered the Southern Wilderness Realm's plan to plunder fate, he suggested turning the tables, using resources and efforts from the Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion to help esteemed Purple Emperor grow. Once the national fate was successfully consolidated, Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion would naturally be suppressed by the true human imperial bloodline. At that time, it would make sense to relocate the Great Flame Dynasty to their
their territories. Zhong Yangming shook his head helplessly. Unfortunately, plans can't keep up with changes. If it wasn't for Prince Zhao's last-minute intervention, Empress Zi and Empress Luo would probably already be dead. Even the citizens of the Great Flame Dynasty, Eastern Flame Kingdom, and Astral Pavilion would have been turned into pills and consumed. Hearing this, Bai Qing was slightly startled. What do you mean? Once the national fate was consolidated, Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion planned to use the Furnace of War to refine the people of the Great Flame Dynasty, Eastern Flame Kingdom, and Astral Pavilion into medicine, with Empress Zi and Empress Luo serving as catalysts. Bai Qing found it hard to believe. How is that possible? Uncle Luo had sent a group of demons to the Southern Wilderness Realm for secret protection four years ago, including the Crown Prince and the Second Prince of the Great Flame Dynasty. Xiao Tian suddenly interjected. It's Zi Xinlian. The backup plan of the Holy Demon Emperor was probably dealt with by her. Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan excitedly slapped Zi Ruan's tailbone. No wonder when I sneaked into the Southern Wilderness Realm. She easily detected me. She already knew my father had a backup plan, and suspected I would come. She was planning to catch us all in one net. This woman, her mind is so sinister. Zi Ruoyan immediately delivered a chop to Luo Feng Yuan's forehead. Why are you slapping me? If you have to slap someone, slap your own leg. Luo Feng Yuan felt secretly pleased inside. He he he. It's a pity the one hitting me isn't Brother Xiao. But Zi Bun will do. I'm not picky. He he he. Zhong Yangming continued to inquire. If the former emperor already knew the truth, why did he initially turn hostile and force the hidden empress dowager Shua Ruyan to intervene, which in turn alerted the Shua family, leading them to forcibly cross space to kidnap people? Bai Qing, while chewing her food, responded, I don't know about that, but I've heard Uncle Luo complain that his sworn brother is generally a good guy, except he likes to drink, and has to fight to calm down after he's drunk. The behavior of the two empresses after drinking must have been inherited, though I don't remember Uncle Luo enjoying drunk fights either. Birds of a feather flock together, so it probably doesn't make a difference. At this point, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly laughed. Enough. Let's not think too much about it. Let's discuss all issues after we're full and satisfied. But the next second, Luo Feng Yuan was dumbfounded. Where did all the food that Zhong Yangming made go? More than 20 kinds of snacks. How could they just disappear? Seeing Bai Qing still chewing, Luo Feng Yuan directly grabbed her by the neck. Damn it, spit it out. Bai Qing asked in astonishment. Didn't you all eat just now? Luo Feng Yuan was furious. We were discussing serious matters. How could we have eaten? But on the meteor flame battlefield, we have to eat quickly to be prepared for enemies who might attack at any moment. Besides, multitasking by eating and talking shouldn't be a big deal. Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly froze, her body becoming rigid and her hand movement stopping. She let go of her grip and looked blankly at the frail girl in front of her. Yes, it's them who have been on the front lines of a war we knew nothing about, defending against enemies and protecting our rear. Thinking of this, Luo Feng Yuan turned her head away. Fine, missing one meal won't make a difference. Next, Bai Qing looked at Zhong Yangming. Thank you for the meal. It tasted great. Zhong Yangming paused and quickly shook his head. The ones who really deserve to be thanked are you guys. You've been defending against enemies and ensuring our rear is safe without us even knowing. Thinking about it now, under your protection, people like Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Jitian are actually causing havoc behind the lines. They truly deserve to be cut into pieces. Zi Ruoyan listened to everyone's conversation and felt exasperated. This family would fall apart without me. How did the topic get so off track? She quickly told everyone that what's most important now is to help Bai Qing send a message to the United Alliance of a hundred tribes and call for reinforcements. Bai Qing nodded. Yes, I still need some help from you too. We are too far away from the core area of the United Alliance of a hundred tribes. We need to construct a magical formation base to amplify the spiritual energy fluctuations of the communication jade in order to send the message out. Hearing this, Zhong Yangming and Wang Chiodao simultaneously turned to look at Xiao Tian. No need to send a message for reinforcements. Our Lord Xiao can single-handedly take on an army. Xiao Tian glared at them seriously. If you dare to expose me, I'll kill you. Both looked away awkwardly. At that moment, Zi Ruoyan suddenly asked, Does anyone here know how to construct a magical formation base? The three paused simultaneously and looked at the two empresses, who seemed somewhat helpless. Xiao Tian sighed deeply. Seeing this, Long Chiodao volunteered. The materials needed for the magical formation base are quite common. It's just that the inscription of the formation itself is somewhat difficult. I can give it a try. Only then did Zi Ruoyan breathe a sigh of relief. Then, I'll leave it to Mr. Dragon Mound. Long Chiodao shook his head. It's no big deal. Just a simple task. Saying this, he looked at Xiao Tian again. Lord, are you really not going to take action? Xiao Tian got angry, clenched his fists, and became excited. I must mooch off others to the very end. Their whispered conversation was unheard by others, but Zi Ruoyan looked at their changing expressions and was puzzled. What are these two doing? Forget it, Mr. Dragon Mound. What materials are needed for constructing the base? I will order someone to prepare them. Long Chiodao sighed and gave a slight bow to Zi Ruoyan. Then I'll have to trouble your highness Zi. After finishing discussions last night, at this moment inside the prince's mansion, Long Chiodao had completed the construction of the 
magical formation base. Bai Qing stood beside him, starting to contact the battlefield leader. A dragon spirit slowly emerged behind her. Bai Qing gently pushed the dragon spirit forward. Instantly, countless forces flooded in. The magical formation base buzzed. A phantom appeared, and the two sides were successfully connected. Bai Qing looked at Long Chiodao beside her. You're amazing. You succeeded on the first try. At this moment, a gentle voice came from the other side of the formation. Is this little Bai Qing? Bai Qing quickly responded. Leader Su, can you hear me clearly? Very clear. What happened? You're actually contacting me in this manner. Luo Feng Yuan listened to the voice from the other end, muttering somewhat dreamily. This leader sounds like a really nice woman. Z Royan glanced at her. You could tell just by her voice. Luo Feng Yuan shrugged. But, don't you think it sounds really gentle? At this moment, Leader Su's voice continued. Is the patrol envoy on your side making things difficult for you? Did they mistreat you? It's unfortunate that I can't be with you. But, you can send those who trouble you to the blood void. That way, they can die in battle with honor. It's not just for your sake. Since they have the leisure to make life difficult for you, let's send them to a more intense battlefield, so they can display their abilities. Hearing this, everyone present fell into silence, as the most ruthless words were spoken in the gentlest voice. Luo Feng Yuan even hid behind Xiao Tian. I take back what I said earlier. This woman seems a bit scary. Speaking such cold words in a gentle voice is really frightening. Z Royan also refused to be outdone, clasping Xiao Tian's arm. As a woman, she holds the position of the leader of the United Alliance of a hundred tribes. How could she be a simple and kind person. Bai Qing continued to report three months ago, the envoy Lu who was in charge of supplies in the meteor flame battlefield purposely withheld resources. Holy demon emperor Luo Taotian was not convinced, and the two had a bet on who could kill more enemies. Unfortunately, envoy Lu fell into an ambush and died, and the supplies in his storage ring were seized by the enemy. We need the Lu family to compensate for these resources. So, that's what happened. It looks like we'll have to demand an explanation from the Lu family. It's a pity about envoy Lu, who sacrificed his life on the meteor flame battlefield, listening to the two's conversation. Z Royan looked helplessly at Luo Feng Yuan. Seems like your father isn't exactly a saint either. Luo Feng Yuan proudly said, of course. At this moment, Bai Qing seemed to remember something. Right. The main content of this message is about the need for reinforcements at the meteor flame battlefield. Soldiers from the Blood Demon Clan and Blood Grudge Clan, through some means, have flooded into the meteor flame battlefield in large numbers. Our forces are clearly outnumbered. Leader Su's gentle voice sounded, forcing their way through the void barrier requires a huge cost. I didn't expect that the other side would be willing. Things are becoming increasingly severe. Little Bai Qing, the reinforcements may be a bit unruly. You should be clear about that. Bai Qing nodded. Don't worry, I am not alone here. Sister Z and Sister Luo are good people. With their help, we can get things done. Upon hearing this, Leader Su's voice suddenly became melancholy. No wonder you used to call me Sister Su, but now you call me Leader Su. It seems you've found new sisters. Bai Qing felt a bit guilty, quickly disconnecting the communication array, and looking somewhat awkwardly at everyone. Next, all we have to do is wait for reinforcements, and then head to the meteor flame battlefield. In the meantime, we need to stay vigilant, to prevent any surprises. Z Royan and Luo Feng Yuan flushed slightly, nodding very cooperatively, for once not teasing her. Suddenly, Luo Feng Yuan clenched her fists. I'm really looking forward to seeing my parents, and my brothers and sisters. I can understand that feeling. Her expression suddenly turned fierce. At that time, I will personally beat every single one of them up. How dare they deceive me like that? The nerve. Z Royan sighed. All right, that's a feeling I can't understand. At this moment, in the dark void, a warship was speeding along. On board were Zi Royan's father, esteemed purple emperor, and her mother, Shuaruyan. In addition, there was another couple who resembled Shuaruyan. These two were Shuaruyan's father, Shua Fugue, and her mother, Lu Gui Xiang. Lu Gui Xiang chided discontentedly. All right, stop sulking. What's so great about staying there? I've been fed up with your Shua family's old patriarch for a long time. Esteemed purple emperor also comforted his in-laws. Mother-in-law is right. I think we've escaped a life of suffering. We should be happy. Shue Fugue rubbed his head. For our family to leave intact. Of course, that's a good thing. It's just the business we left behind in the Ring Mountain realm. Before Shue Fugue could finish, Lu Guixiang interrupted. What's there to miss about things you can't take with you when you're born or when you die? Haven't you already moved a lot of things? Saying this, Lu Guixiang hugged her husband. If it weren't for saving you and damaging my foundation, I would have reached the 20th stage long ago. Running away from the Shue family would have been a matter of minutes. Shue Fugue looked worried. Lu Guixiang I'm just concerned that the old colleagues who followed us for their livelihoods will have a hard time. I'm wondering if we took too much when we left. Lu Guixiang looked at the pile of rings on her hand. That was yours to begin with. What's this about taking too much? What's the point of leaving anything for that bunch of layabouts? Shue Fugue said. Lu Guixiang, I'm not sure if we'll be able to make a comeback in the future. Lu Guixiang patted her husband's head. In my heart, you've always been the best and the most capable. Believe in yourself. You can definitely do it. And you have me by your side. The two shared a loving gaze. All was understood without words. Shuaruyan, watching her parents
parents' affectionate behavior, told esteemed purple emperor, my parents have always been very loving. You'll get used to it. Esteemed purple emperor smiled. Speaking of which, we were fortunate. I initially wanted to discuss with my in-laws on how to escape from the Shwe family. Unexpectedly, the Shwe family suffered heavy losses. The tracking contracts on you and your father suddenly disappeared. So now we can go look for Zeroyan. I wonder what happened to the Shwe family. Shwe Rian grumbled. Let those people in the Shwe family worry about it. Right now, I just want to get back to the southern wilderness realm as fast as possible and find our daughter. And also to find out how my two sons actually died. If it wasn't for your grandfather, who wanted my emperor's bloodline, and had the patriarch forcibly bring us back from the southern wilderness realm, we wouldn't have missed out on so much time with our children. But mainly, I'm worried that Zeroyan might have been captured. Remember when you used the sacred spirit fox to divine Zeroyan's situation? That sacred spirit fox was annihilated. Shwarian scorned, as if I forced the sacred spirit fox. It was the one who felt resistance while divining, and due to its arrogance, forced the issue and was eradicated. Yes, that's what I'm worried about. I'm afraid Zeroyan's constitution has been discovered, and she's been taken by some powerful being. Shwarian patted her chest. That won't happen. Zeroyan's luck can't be that bad. Shwefugue also comforted with a smile. Our sweet granddaughter will be just fine. You two don't worry too much. Good son-in-law, didn't you say you have a sworn brother who belongs to the holy demon clan? Won't he take care of our granddaughter? My dear daughter, you also said that you asked Zi Xinlian to go over and help take care of things. Let's just see how the situation goes. Don't worry too much. Thinking of Zi Xinlian, Shuarian also felt relieved and hummed in anticipation. Half a month later, the battleship finally arrived at the southern wilderness realm. But when she saw the state of the southern wilderness realm, Shuarian was instantly stunned. What the hell? What happened here? The other three quickly surrounded her. Esteemed purple emperor supported his wife. The scene before them showed an even more broken and devastated realm. Lu Guixiang wore a serious face. Looks like the topics you were discussing on the battleship were accurate. A very powerful being took away our granddaughter, and even took away your empire along with it. Shue Fugui took a deep breath. If it wasn't for you, Shue Ruyin, using your spiritual power to trigger the tracking contract within you, how could the patriarch of the Shue family discover your whereabouts? But then again, with his level of strength, he couldn't even take away the entire southern wilderness realm. Now, whoever took our granddaughter must be unimaginably powerful. For a moment, all four of them fell into an eerie silence. After a while, a steamed purple emperor suddenly spoke. Let's go down and take a look. The battleship entered the southern wilderness realm and slowly hovered over this devastated world. Suddenly, a steamed purple emperor seemed to see something. His mood lifted instantly. What is that? Soon, the battleship, under a steamed purple emperor's control, accelerated dramatically, rushing forward. Before long, the battleship stopped in midair, and the four slowly landed on this land. Before them were bodies strewn about haphazardly. A steamed purple emperor instantly recognized them as people of the barbarian kingdom. Shwarian also recognized them. Aren't these people from the barbarian kingdom, captured from the eastern flame kingdom to speed up the growth of the great flame dynasty? A steamed purple emperor sighed. Exactly. Look over there. The man was Jia Su, an old acquaintance of a steamed purple emperor. At the moment, he was staring at the sky, his heart pierced by an icicle coagulated from fresh blood. Shwarian found it strange, because this method was exactly the same as the one used to ambush a steamed purple emperor back in the southern wilderness realm. A steamed purple emperor looked solemn as he examined the scene. Indeed, the attacker not only injured the victim but also drained their soul force. This Jia Su was probably drained of his soul while he was still alive. As he spoke, a steamed purple emperor reached out and closed Jia Su's eyes. Lu Guixiang also came over and asked, Is the perpetrator the same mysterious powerful individual you encountered before? Shuarian turned around to explain, Yes. Originally, his sworn brother, the holy demon emperor, had helped us cultivate some powerful subordinates, but these people were assassinated overnight. Their souls drained. While we were investigating, we encountered that strong individual who had attacked people from the Eastern Flame Kingdom and the Astral Pavilion. We joined the battle, but the opponent's techniques are strange. If you get injured, even your soul will be drained. Shuarian looked scared. If it weren't for the Shue family patriarch intervening from a distance, pulling both us and that enemy away, we would all probably be dead. However, the enemy struggled so violently on the way that he fell out of the spatial channel. I fear he has returned. Shue Fugue thought for a moment. Can you still identify him? Did you notice anything special about the enemy? A steamed purple emperor recalled. I didn't get a good look at his face, but I could see that under his hood, he had horns on his head, and they were golden. Meanwhile, on the other side, recently idle while waiting for reinforcements, Zi Royan spent every day diligently reviewing memorandums. Luo Feng Yuan was behind her, studying hard. Suddenly, Zi Royan clenched her fists, frustrated and shouting Luo Feng Yuan's name. Luo Feng Yuan was startled. What's the matter? Zi Royan directly smacked her on the forehead, angrily shouting, When will I not have to review your primordial demon kingdom's memorandums for you? Can't you learn from Bai Qing and take your own affairs seriously? Beside Bai Qing were two piles of memorandums as tall as half a person. She was 
was quickly going through them, reviewing one after another at an incredible speed. Luo Feng Yuan was stunned. That's amazing. She's even faster than Zi Bun at reviewing memorandums. Just then, a report came from outside. Empress, a group has arrived outside the prince's palace, claiming to be reinforcements sent by His Majesty of Dragon Mound. But something seems off about these people. Xiao Tian, who was sleeping on the side, heard this and got up, stretching. Could it be that these people want to cause trouble? No, prince. It's not like that. They just look more like refugees than soldiers. Upon hearing this, Bai Qing exploded with anger, lightning flashing around her. This is outrageous. The people responsible for sending reinforcements have grown bold, daring to defy leader Su's orders, and sending refugees as reinforcements to deceive me. Bai Qing clenched her fists, lightning swirling around her, and stormed out. Luo Feng Yuan quickly asked Zi Ruoyan, shall we go take a look as well? Zi Ruoyan thought for a moment, of course, we are supposed to go to the meteor flame battlefield with these reinforcements. If problems arise before we even set out, whether you'll get to see your family becomes questionable. Immediately, the two held hands and prepared to go outside. Luo Feng Yuan didn't forget to turn back and smile at Xiao Tian. Brother Xiao, you should come along. Meanwhile, outside the city, several flying boats were currently landed, and among those so-called reinforcements, aside from a few dwarven soldiers, the rest were all elderly, women, and children. So frail it seemed they would crumble in the wind. Xiao Tian looked at the scene, thinking to himself, what the hell, are these the sick and elderly here to serve as reinforcements or to offer themselves up? He then looked over at a lavishly dressed individual, who appeared to be the leader of this group. This man was none other than the one guarding the second line, Mysterious Wealth Mountain Range, Jia Benfu. He frowned and started shouting, what's the hold up? I brought the people you rushed me for, and now you're dragging your feet? This is disgusting. A moment later, seeing that Bai Qing had finally arrived, Jia Benfu complained again, the Dragon Mount Commander of the Meteor Flame Battlefield. You've taken quite some time, haven't you? Never mind, I've brought the reinforcements you requested, so I should head back now. As Jia Benfu turned to leave, the next second, a bolt of lightning suddenly struck towards him. Hold on a minute. Bai Qing pointed to the sky with one hand, her face full of rage. Usually delays and lack of supplies are tolerable, but to be so careless with this batch of reinforcements? This is going too far. With that, one bolt of lightning after another struck Jia Benfu, making him jump and shudder. He quickly returned to Bai Qing's side. Dragon Mount Commander, what is the meaning of this? Bai Qing, still furious, retorted. These people, with no combat ability, are your idea of support? But Jia Benfu waved his hand and smiled. The troops in front of you are already the best we can muster. Dragon Mount Commander, you can't ask for the impossible. At this, Bai Qing grew angrier. When we were on the front lines, risking our lives to protect you, many perished. And now when we ask for your help, this is how you repay us. Do you think this is fair to those who sacrificed their lives? Jia Benfu seemed not to care at all. It's not like I asked you to go to the front lines and fight. What does your death have to do with us? Besides, it was agreed from the start that we would improve our strengths in the rear, while you deal with the enemies at the front. Why should we care whether you live or die? If you're not satisfied, go complain to the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes, understand? With that, Jia Benfu suddenly grinned maliciously. If you think complaining isn't enough, you can take action against me, even kill me. After all, you are leader Su's childhood friend, and a close confidant. I believe that even if you killed me, the people of the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes wouldn't lay a finger on you. Bai Qing clenched her fists, telling herself she couldn't act on her impulse. If she struck now, she would lose any moral high ground, and it might also implicate leader Su. But Luo Feng Yuan, standing nearby, could not bear it any longer. Her hands blazed with purple-red flames. I can't stand this any longer, she said, as she moved forward to teach Jia Benfu a lesson. Fortunately, Zi Ruoyan grabbed her. What are you trying to do? I want to take this scoundrel down a notch. Zi Ruoyan patiently explained. He's deliberately trying to provoke Bai Qing. If you make a move, you'll be playing into his hands. At that, Luo Feng Yuan looked at Jia Benfu. So we're just supposed to stand here and do nothing? Zi Ruoyan patted her shoulder. We have to trust Bai Qing. If she's holding back now, that means the situation isn't as straightforward as it seems. Otherwise, she would have acted by now. Reluctantly, Luo Feng Yuan, despite her annoyance, dissipated the flames from her hand. Bai Qing continued, You parasites are just trying to use me to manipulate leader Su. Quite the scheme you have there. Jia Benfu shamelessly grinned. Thank you for the compliment. Now, I entrust the meteor flame battlefield and its reinforcements to the Dragon Mount Commander. I believe you won't disappoint us. With that, Jia Benfu leapt up, heading toward the flying boat in the sky, leaving behind a hearty laughter. Luo Feng Yuan finally turned to Bai Qing. Why didn't you strike back? Do we just allow ourselves to be bullied? Sending these people to the battlefield is practically sending them to their deaths. Bai Qing looked at the sky and sighed. The divisions within the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes are just too deep. This mysterious wealth mountain range has the backing of the elders in the Alliance. They're intentionally turning covert schemes into overt acts and delaying things without cooperating. We are helpless against them. Luo Feng Yuan still couldn't understand. Then why not just report them? It's not that simple, Bai Qing replied. Leader Su values rules. To accuse the Jia family, we would need 
need evidence and an investigation, which would be too time-consuming. The Meteor Flame Battlefield can't wait. Z Royan took over. If they delay and cause your defeat, they could then exploit that to gain merits. You and Leader Su would bear the blame for the loss. And if you had struck earlier, they would probably accuse you of fratricide within the Alliance, implicating Leader Su as well. Exactly, Bai Ching said, her voice tinged with helplessness. Luo Feng Yuan was so frustrated she felt like her head would explode. So what do we do now? It's a deadlock. Z Royan's eyes narrowed. The only way to break the deadlock is to ensure that the Meteor Flame Battlefield doesn't fall. We have to buy time, until Leader Su can take them down according to the rules. Suddenly, Xiao Tian's voice rang out. This is infuriating. That Jiao Benfu is so malicious, finding ways to harm me. The guards next to him were confused. What's going on? Who is harming whom? Did we miss something? Why can't we keep up with the situation? Xiao Tian directly told the two. No, I have to take Long Chiu Dao and investigate. I need to see if Jiao Benfu has set traps for us on the Meteor Flame Battlefield. You guys wait for me here. Saying this, he gently pinched Zi Ruoyan's cheek, his eyes filled with warmth. He immediately took Long Chiu Dao and dashed into the cosmos. Puppy informed Xiao Tian, respected master, this is the navigation through the void. The red tab represents locked on space shuttles. A friendly reminder, to avoid tearing the fabric of space, please do not exceed the speed limit. Xiao Tian softly acknowledged with a hum, placing one hand on Long Chiu Dao's shoulder. In the next second, the two were like a streak of aurora, breaking through the boundary barrier and chasing after Jiao Benfu's shuttle. Meanwhile, Jiao Benfu was taking a bath with a maid, enjoying a delightful leisure time. Suddenly, a voice called out, Young master, there's a situation. Jiao Benfu had no choice but to put on his clothes and go to the shuttle's control room. What's the situation? Something is rapidly approaching us. Even if we change our course, it's still following us. A subordinate informed him. Jiao Benfu was taken aback. What is it? Do we have any results from the scouting array? We don't know. If it wasn't for their high speed creating significant disturbances in the chaotic flows of the void, our scouting array wouldn't even have noticed something was approaching, the subordinate replied. Just as he finished speaking, the shuttle experienced severe shaking. Both men rushed to the deck, only to find someone there. The newcomers were Long Chiu Dao and Xiao Tian, both staring emotionlessly at Jiao Benfu. Jiao Benfu froze. If I remember correctly, this guy is that gigolo, right? At that moment, Xiao Tian suddenly spoke with a smile, running so fast, you must have a guilty conscience. Jiao Benfu was puzzled. Guilty of what? And who says I'm running fast? But come to think of it, how does he know the shuttle is here? Is it a tracking array? Wait, isn't he just a gigolo? How could he possibly know about arrays? Could it be that his gigolo identity is just a smoke screen, and he's actually here to secretly protect Bai Ching from headquarters? As Jia Benfu was rapidly contemplating these questions, he suddenly widened his eyes. Before he knew it, Xiao Tian was already standing in front of him. Jia Benfu was so startled that he stepped back several paces, thinking, what the heck? With my 16th stage power, he managed to approach me silently. He must be incredibly skilled. Xiao Tian, as if discovering some secret, spoke coldly, you're thinking. Jia Benfu was stunned. Is it a crime to think? Hearing this, Xiao Tian turned to Long Chiu Dao and said, see, he's scheming, and he's doing it so blatantly. Long Chiu Dao was speechless. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. Seeing this, Xiao Tian finally began to confront Jia Benfu. Don't blame me for not giving you a chance. Confess now. Xiao Tian even chuckled after saying this. I really am a little genius who understands people well. Jia Benfu was completely confused. What is this guy talking about? What do I have to confess? However, he thought, he just barges into my shuttle so recklessly, he must have a death wish. Clenching his fist, he yelled, hasn't anyone told you not to casually enter another person's palace type spiritual tool? Then, Jia Benfu suddenly kneeled on one knee, and pressed his palm onto the deck. An array appeared. As the array started to operate, a surge of power flowed into Jia Benfu's body. Let's see who's more powerful, you or my upgraded 18th stage self. By the time he stood up again, his aura had indeed reached the 18th stage. Without hesitating, a purple flame appeared in his hand, heading straight for Xiao Tian. Take this. At this moment, facing Jia Benfu who had just leveled up twice in the continuously surging power on the shuttle, Xiao Tian turned his head and asked Long Chiu Dao, why are you trembling? Long Chiu Dao looked somewhat helpless. Sir Xiao, palace-type spiritual tools generally have arrays that can amplify the owner's power. With the power of the array, Jia Benfu can now suppress me. After all, I'm just a dragon spirit without the power of flesh and blood to support me. A little trembling is normal. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian turned his attention back to the imposing Jia Benfu, who was slowly pulling out a long sword amidst flashing electricity. Blood Shadow Thunderblade power doubled. Jia Benfu declared confidently, charging forward. This time, I'll finish you off in one strike. Xiao Tian stood still, allowing the sword to swipe across his neck. With a clang, purple thunderlight burst forth as if reaping lives, like a strange god of death. Jia Benfu sheathed his sword, and smugly said, in your next life, don't overestimate yourself, and recklessly intrude into someone else's palace-like spiritual tool. However, just then, Jia Benfu's sword suddenly shattered with a crack, scattering all over the floor. Jia 
Xiao Benfu was instantly baffled. What the heck? Where's my sword? Where's my long, handsome sword that was flashing with thunder? Turning his head, Xiao Benfu saw Xiao Tian completely unscathed. His neck was flawless, showing no signs of injury. Xiao Benfu was stunned. Why? I clearly hit him. At this moment, Long Chiodao suddenly sighed. This kid is about to lose hope. Xiao Tian looked unhappy. Did you see that? He tried to kill me right away. Clearly, he has malicious intent. Long Chiodao nodded. Exactly. These people are truly malicious. Upon hearing this, Xiao Benfu was completely disheartened and collapsed weakly onto the ground. My most powerful move was so useless. Bai Qing, are you out of your mind? Why would you even need support when you have such a monster beside you? Xiao Tian walked up to Jia Benfu and looked down at him condescendingly. Your true colors are exposed. You can't deny it now, can you? Jia Benfu looked bitter. What should I even say? Xiao Tian didn't waste any more words, clenched his fist and said, Some people just need a good smack. With a slap, Xiao Tian sent Jia Benfu flying, who landed with a thud not far away. Pointing at him, Xiao Tian turned to Long Chiu Dao. Can you believe this guy? He even dared to ask me questions. Indeed, he actually had the nerve to question. Long Chiu Dao agreed. Xiao Tian walked up to Jiao Benfu again. It seems like you don't even realize the situation you're in. Speak. Jiao Benfu had had enough and yelled. What do you want me to say? This infuriated Xiao Tian. How shameless you are. I, the victim, haven't even lost my temper. Yet you dare to get angry? With that, Xiao Tian started pummeling Jiao Benfu, leaving him questioning his life choices and ultimately falling weakly to the ground, his soul soaring in agony. Better fess up now. Honesty will get you leniency. Resistance will make it worse. The sooner you talk, the sooner you'll be free, Xiao Tian warned. Holding his swollen face, Jiao Benfu looked wronged. Well then, ask me, what do you want to know? Xiao Tian raised his hand as if to strike again. Jiao Benfu flinched and hastily began to speak. Big brother, behind me is Elder Zhang from the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes. Xiao Tian paused, and then, seeing this, Jiao Benfu was slightly taken aback but quickly tried to appear obedient. Is he asking about the power behind the Jia family? Right, he's on good terms with Bai Qing. He probably wants to know why the Jia family is causing trouble for Bai Qing. If he'd asked sooner, I would have told him. Did I really have to be beaten so many times? With these thoughts, Jiao Benfu continued, Elder Zhang has been unhappy with Leader Su for many years, so he had us sabotage the front lines in the war. All the plans were provided by him. Our Jia family was just following his orders. As soon as he finished speaking, Xiao Tian suddenly slapped Jiao Benfu again. Jiao Benfu was dumbfounded, but Xiao Tian looked disdainful. You got it wrong. Keep thinking. Jiao Benfu thought for a moment and pulled a scroll of a map from his pocket. Here is the defensive line map of the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range. Please take a look. Xiao Tian glanced at the map briefly. In the next second, he smacked Jiao Benfu on the forehead with the scroll. What's wrong with your brain? What use do I have for this? Keep thinking. Jiao Benfu was on the verge of breaking down, frantically bowing his head. Please calm down. Let me think again. Long Chiu Dao coldly watched this unfold. Why bother? You were showing off in the Holy Demon Domain. And now look what's happened. Moments later, Long Chiu Dao suddenly reminded Xiao Tian, Sir, we are approaching the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range. Outside the flying boat, a massive range of mountains stood, surrounded by countless smaller lands, all shimmering with the light of magical arrays. Long Chiu Dao looked out the window. The base of the defense formation is made up of world fragments, surrounded by island-shaped war fortresses. This kind of dual-layer defensive line is brilliantly arranged. But unfortunately, Xiao Tian snorted and cut him off. Unfortunately, all these resources are just sitting here, while the actual front lines can't benefit from them. Pointing at Jia Benfu, he added, Your Jia family really is shameless to the core. The soldiers on the front lines are sacrificed for nothing. The next second, Jia Benfu suddenly slapped himself. You're right, it's utterly shameless. Xiao Tian suddenly felt a chill and was taken aback, drawing in a breath of cold air. No wonder you know nothing. Your brain isn't functioning. Have you ever seen someone who slaps themselves? Long Chiu Dao leaned in. This is the first time I've seen something like this. It's really eye-opening. Jia Benfu, however, was undeterred and kept slapping himself, unable to stop. Internally, he was secretly delighted. I'm so clever. As long as I slap myself faster, he won't have a chance to do it. Ha ha ha. He finally seemed to lose his sanity and knelt on the ground, laughing maniacally at the sky. Xiao Tian was confused. What's going on here? Long Chiu Dao looked awkward. Did you break him? Xiao Tian quickly waved his hand. Impossible. Absolutely impossible. Looking at the still giggling Jia Benfu, Long Chiu Dao sighed. What a pity. How can we use him if he's gone insane? He then leaned close to Xiao Tian's ear. Sir Xiao, what should we do next? Xiao Tian also glanced at the idiotic Jiao Benfu. Don't worry, we can still make use of him, but his expression is really disgusting. Describing him as a dog would be an insult to dogs. Let's enter the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range and covertly investigate this so-called Mountain Range and the Jia family. Maybe we'll make some new discoveries. What do you think? After speaking, Xiao Tian smiled confidently, feeling very satisfied with his own wisdom. Long Chiu Dao immediately got the gist. Do you mean, Lord Xiao, are you suggesting that there might be the workings of an enemy martial spirit army, possibly comprised of the Blood Rune Clan and Blood Grudge Clan? Here 
here? Xiao Tian shrugged. Yes, I can't rule out that possibility. After all, if the Martial Spirit Army isn't involved, their internal disputes wouldn't put the front lines at such risk. And if the front lines fall, how can the rear be secured? Upon hearing this, Chia Benfu involuntarily twitched. Long Chiodao immediately noticed. It was just a guess earlier, but Jia Benfu showed such a clear micro-expression after hearing the words Martial Spirit Army. He's practically exposing himself. He quickly told Xiao Tian, Sir, the Jia family really has an issue. Xiao Tian looked over and saw that Jia Benfu had returned to his clueless demeanor. Xiao Tian could only continue to analyze. This is all speculation. Jia Benfu's micro-expression lasted only about a second or so, which can't directly prove that the Jia family is up to something. We'll still have to investigate further. Remember, we won't let any enemy slip away, but we also won't wrong any innocent person. Follow my lead. Upon hearing this, Long Chiodao looked deeply at Xiao Tian. What's terrifying about Sir Xiao is his logic, and the logic is irrefutable. Then, Long Chiodao slowly approached Jia Benfu and patted him on the shoulder. Young man, take a good look at this mysterious wealth mountain range for the last time. Hearing this, Jia Benfu looked up, puzzled. What do you mean? Long Chiodao sighed. Because soon, your hometown, mysterious wealth mountain range, will become a thing of the past. Just like the previous pioneer battle city, it will only exist in people's memories. Jia Benfu was completely bewildered. What's he talking about? What does become a thing of the past mean? At this moment, under Jia Benfu's guidance, the group had already reached the mysterious wealth mountain range. Looking at the watchtower beyond the world barrier, Xiao Tian curiously asked Long Chiodao, what is this? Long Chiodao informed Xiao Tian, this is the entrance to the domain world, commonly referred to as a border checkpoint. It's constructed on some weak points of the world barrier and is primarily used to screen and verify the information of people entering and exiting the domain world to prevent those with malicious intentions from getting in. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian was a bit puzzled. Why doesn't our holy demon domain have such a checkpoint? Long Chiodao looked deeply at him. The holy demon domain does have them. It's just that you, sir, treat the world barrier as if it's non-existent. You come and go as you please, never having to pass through any checkpoints. Jiao Benfu, who was standing nearby, widened his eyes upon hearing this. Holy cow, is this even human? Treating world barriers as if they're nothing, coming and going freely? Where did this guy come from? But Xiao Tian shook his head. That's not right. The Blood Rune clan members entered the holy demon domain pretty easily back then. Long Chiodao helplessly extended two fingers and explained, that's because, sir, you expanded the holy demon domain a little bit in order to integrate it with the Great Flame Dynasty. After the expansion, there were several weak points, giving the Blood Rune clan an opportunity. Only then did Xiao Tian have an epiphany. He looked around and said, all right, but this mysterious wealth mountain range is quite lively. Long Chiodao also observed the passing airships. The mysterious wealth mountain range must be a crucial point on the void routes, hence the number of flying spiritual tools passing through. It's a key defense line, so if the meteor flame battlefield is breached, this will be the new meteor flame battlefield. Xiao Tian was again confused. What do you mean by crucial point? Can't they take a detour? When you start from a distance, isn't everything around empty? Why not just go around? Xiao Benfu couldn't help but laugh. Even a child knows such basic knowledge. How come this incredibly powerful individual doesn't? Long Chiodao seriously explained, Sir Xiao, the turbulent flows in the void can be strong or weak. When strong, they could easily tear apart someone like Jia Benfu. When weak, even a level 10 individual could easily withstand them. The turbulent flows within the void roots are relatively mild, and can even serve as a boost for flying spiritual tools. Over time, everyone began to use these roots. Additionally, from what I've observed, the intensity of the turbulent flows surrounding the mysterious wealth mountain range is terrifying. They could easily shred a level 20 strongman. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian glanced at Jia Benfu again. Jia Benfu quickly nodded, reporting to you, sir, everything this old gentleman has said is absolutely true. Moreover, to the north of the mysterious wealth mountain range, there's a void thunder pool filled with devastating void thunders. No one can pass through that death trap. Upon hearing about the void thunders, Xiao Tian suddenly recalled something. Is this thunder black, with a little bit of white light on it? Does it look like a sea where thunders interweave? Jia Benfu was taken aback, showing some surprise on his face. Yes, have you seen it? Xiao Tian didn't answer him, but turned to ask Long Chiodao. That's odd. When I was rushing from the southern wilderness realm to the holy demon domain, I remember taking you all through this void thunder pool. Does that mean the southern wilderness realm is also part of the mysterious wealth mountain range? Long Chiodao continued to explain, you indeed took us through the void thunder pool, sir. The southern wilderness realm is near the mysterious wealth mountain range. Upon hearing this, Jia Benfu subconsciously swallowed. He couldn't fathom why he had brought such a monstrous individual from Bai Qing's side. I'm a sinner to my family. Father, grandfather, I've failed our ancestors. Xiao Tian, arriving at the mysterious wealth mountain range checkpoint on Jia Benfu's airship, asked Jia Benfu, do we need to be interrogated when entering the checkpoint? Jia Benfu grinned confidently, sir, with me here, you both can make up any identity you 
want. Xiao Tian immediately told him, All right, then I am your adoptive grandfather from now on. You're the obedient grandson. Got it. Without a moment's hesitation, Jia Benfu knelt on the ground and shouted, Grandfather, I understand. But what about this other gentleman? Xiao Tian thought for a moment, He can be your adoptive father. Jia Benfu was stunned, completely at a loss for words. Long Chiu Dao internally shook his head, thinking, Sir Xiao really acts childishly sometimes. At that moment, Xiao Tian took out a pill from his storage ring and handed it to Jiao Benfu. Here, eat this, he said. Without questioning, Jiao Benfu took the pill and swallowed it without hesitation. Both Xiao Tian and Wang Chiu Dao were baffled. Has Jiao Benfu gone completely stupid? He doesn't even suspect it might be poison. Just then, a quarrel erupted at the checkpoint. One of the people trying to pass shouted, Why is the toll so expensive? The guard retorted, If you find it expensive, you can mortgage your wife and your airship to pass. Upon hearing this, Long Chiu Dao turned to Jiao Benfu. How much is the toll for passing this checkpoint? Jiao Benfu hesitated for a moment. 30%. Long Chiu Dao, finding his answer vague, raised his voice. What do you mean by 30%? Startled, Jiao Benfu quickly explained. The toll is 30% of the wealth the traveler possesses. The magical formations can detect what you have stored and the value of your flying spiritual tools. Of course, powerful people and people with strong backgrounds are exceptions. Jiao Benfu said this with a smile, but Long Chiu Dao was visibly angry. This is extortion. They take advantage of the weak. Xiao Tian, however, just chuckled. When your power is sufficiently strong, you naturally do whatever you want, following your heart's desires. Without a scale in your heart, it's easy to go astray. Such things are quite interesting, if you are strong enough. Even if you act recklessly or create a mess. Even if you fart, others will say, wow, that smells so good. Seeing Xiao Tian perform so convincingly, Jia Benfu hurriedly flattered. Grandfather, you're absolutely right. But the very next second, Xiao Tian slapped Jia Benfu across the face. Holding his swelling cheek, Jia Benfu trembled, but showed no signs of discontent. Grandfather, that was a wonderful slap. It felt so good. Don't worry, I'll have the guard let us through right now. Xiao Tian pointed at him seriously. Not only that, you should also let everyone on that airship go. Absolutely, as you say, Jia Benfu agreed. Seeing this, Xiao Tian tossed another pill at him. Jia Benfu immediately opened his mouth to catch it, looking very much like a sycophant. Then he leapt off the deck and ran toward the checkpoint guards. Long Chiu Dao looked visibly frustrated. When the upper beam is not straight, the lower ones will go aslant. This Jia family really is disgusting. Xiao Tian was more reflective. The problem isn't the Jia family, it's this world. Saying this, he looked into the distance. Anyway, let's not dwell on it. What we should consider now is that the Jia family is using my kindness to their advantage. They set up this whole act to force my hand and make Jia Benfu pretend to listen to me, just to trap me. This Jia family is really crafty and dangerous. They can't be trusted. Long Chiu Dao listened in silence. Although Master Zhao's thoughts were becoming increasingly biased, the overall point was valid. When they arrived at the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range checkpoint and saw the guards giving a traveler a hard time, Xiao Tian had Jia Benfu step and help. Observing the poor state of the traveler, Xiao Tian pondered, if you can't pay the toll, you get beaten. Your spouse might even be taken as a slave to cover the toll. This is disgraceful. Clearly, the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range has rotten to its core. Jia Benfu helped the beaten man up and yelled at those who were oppressing him. What are you still doing here? Get out now! The disheveled guards hurriedly ran out of their airship, leaving behind a group of tearful women. Long Chiu Dao was fuming. Sir Xiao, you were right. This Jia family must be eradicated. Moments later, Jia Benfu returned to the airship to report to Xiao Tian. Grandfather, the toll for this family has been waived. Those people will no longer be enslaved to cover their toll. Seeing the trembling relatives who had almost been taken away, Xiao Tian waved his hand. Well done. Let's move forward. As he spoke, Xiao Tian clenched his fists. I can't wait to see the might of the Jia family in the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range. Seeing Jia Benfu looking flustered, Xiao Tian patted him on the shoulder. Don't be afraid. I'm a very reasonable person. I hit you earlier as a test to see your worth. As the saying goes, there's a special bond between grandfathers and grandchildren. The person a grandfather dotes on most is his grandchild. Xiao Tian continued speaking while patting Jia Benfu on the face. Jia Benfu was deeply moved. Yes, the person a grandfather dotes on most is his obedient grandson like me. He then registered the information for Xiao Tian and Wang Chiu Dao. This person is my grandfather, and the one next to him is my father. The guard looked at them in bewilderment. Young master, are you joking? Jia Benfu immediately slapped the guard. Do you have the audacity to question who I recognize as my grandfather? If it weren't for him saving my life, I would be dead by now. Furious, Jia Benfu continued. What kind of damn look is that? You know nothing. He then unleashed a flurry of slaps, leaving the guard's face swollen like a pig's head. Once he was done, Jia Benfu massaged his wrist and asked, Have you noted down the information I gave you? Can we proceed now? The guard quickly bowed and nodded. Yes, young master, you may proceed. What are you waiting for? Get it done. The guard immediately dashed to the magical formation at the checkpoint and activated it. The formation lit up and the guard gestured. Young master, you may now proceed. The enormous airship passed through the formation.
destination and the scenery immediately changed. Xiao Tian stood at the front of the ship, looking at the continent. Why do I feel that the spiritual energy here is not as strong as in the Holy Demon Domain? Long Chiodao stroked his beard and pondered, Sir Xiao, the Holy Demon Domain has become quite special since you've been there. Xiao Tian turned his head curiously. Isn't the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range also special? Long Chiodao hesitated for a second. It's not the same, Sir Xiao. You collected so many world fragments in the void and casually inserted them into the Holy Demon Domain. Not only has the size of the Holy Demon Domain increased, but the fate within those world fragments has been absorbed by the Domain. Therefore, the spiritual energy of the Holy Demon Domain is definitely denser than any other domain right now. Long Chiodao sighed. Only you could have accomplished something like this. At this moment, Xiao Tian has already entered the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range. The main city below is the epitome of luxury. Jia Benfu points to the largest mansion and laughs. That is the residence of our Jia family's core members. It's the heart of our mysterious Wealth Mountain Range, called Mysterious Wealth Mountain City. Besides this, we have five other major cities in various directions. If you're interested, Grandfather, I can take you to see them. Xiao Tian, closing one eye, is gesturing with one hand, contemplating how he should dismantle this harmful city. Like this? Or like that? Long Chiodao also inquires, Sir Xiao, what shall we do next? Getting somewhat excited, he thinks, this place is the core of the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range. I'm sure Sir Xiao will make a big move here. So thrilling, but Xiao Tian waves it off. No rush. We must be steady and cautious in our actions. Then he suddenly asks Jiao Benfu, is there a place in mysterious Wealth Mountain City where we can stay? Jiao Benfu immediately smiles. Of course, grandfather, I have some properties in the city. What kind of place would you like to stay in? A quiet environment with a comfortable bed. Jiao Benfu rubs his hands together. Certainly, grandfather, just wait a moment and I'll take you there right away. Their airship then majestically flies over the city, catching the attention of the surprised citizens below. Suddenly, Xiao Tian looks curiously in a certain direction. What is that? He sees an elegantly dressed woman leisurely walking down the street. Long Chiodao quickly asks when he sees Xiao Tian's expression change. Sir Xiao, what's wrong? Did you see something? Xiao Tian explains. It's nothing. I just saw a woman who looks a bit like my main wife. Long Chiodao is confused. Main wife? You mean Her Majesty Z? Xiao Tian nods. Yes. Long Chiodao observes. This is the first time I've heard you refer to Her Majesty Z in this manner. Why the different titles in public and private? Xiao Tian gives him a look. You must be single, right? Long Chiodao blankly responds. Yes. I have never been married. Hearing this, Xiao Tian sighs and laughs. No wonder you don't understand. Women, especially one who's an empress, can be a bit sundra. Calling her wife directly would make her shy. Calling her your majesty is just a little romantic quirk between couples. Long Chiodao is utterly confused. How are these things necessarily connected? Xiao Tian can only pat him on the shoulder in consolation. You really are an old bachelor. Long Chiodao is completely bewildered, staring at the sighing Xiao Tian who seems to have more to say but doesn't. He wants to argue back, but he can't refute the truth. At this moment, at the peak of Mysterious Wealth Mountain, Xiao Tian stands on a balcony overlooking the city, muttering to himself, this position is really good. Looking closely, the scenery of Mysterious Wealth Mountain range is quite nice. It'd be a pity to cut it down. Jia Benfu is immediately taken aback. What do you mean cut it down? Are you going to destroy the Mysterious Wealth Mountain range? That's impossible. How could anyone destroy such a vast world? Xiao Tian then turns around and smiles at him. You've handled this matter quite well, and I'm very satisfied. However, this doesn't absolve the Jia family of their sins. Yet, I'm willing to give your family a chance to reform. Jia Benfu immediately starts to nervously rub his hands together, smiling. Yes, yes. Grandfather, you're absolutely right. Our Jia family will definitely cherish this opportunity. Although he's saying this, he has no clue what wrong his family has committed to offend this man. Could it be related to the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes? But Xiao Tian has never mentioned the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes from start to finish. Oh well, better not to think too much about it and just ask him directly. So, Jia Benfu bends over and asks with a smile, Grandfather, do you have any further instructions? Xiao Tian glances at him. You should go back to the Jia family first. Tell your family head to come and apologize. Remember, don't try any tricks. You know my strength. Jia Benfu breaks into a cold sweat but quickly regains composure, adopting a submissive and respectful demeanor. Rest assured, Grandfather, I'll convey your wishes exactly. Whatever requirements you have, our Jia family will cooperate fully. Xiao Tian waves his hand. Go on then. Make sure your family head visits tomorrow and don't be late. Hearing this, Jia Benfu turns to leave, casting a lingering glance back at Xiao Tian as if contemplating something. Once he's downstairs, he waves to Xiao Tian. Grandson will return tomorrow. Make sure to get some rest. Xiao Tian, still on the tower, simply gestures for him to leave. How could anyone not love such a cheerful and magnanimous individual like Xiao Tian? Soon after, Jia Benfu exits the building. As the door closes behind him, he pats his chest in relief. He actually survived. I need to report this to my grandfather as soon as possible. Xiao Tian seems to suspect that our Jia family is in cahoots with the martial spirit.
Spirit Army. Long Chiu Dao watches Xiao Benfu's departing figure. Sir Xiao, are we just letting him go? Xiao Tian nods. Long Chiu Dao is instantly puzzled, so the idea of acting cautiously is to let him go and alert his family, so they have ample time to prepare an ambush. I doubt the Jia family head will come to apologize tomorrow. Instead, they'll likely surround us with various experts. The situation might turn into one where they willingly come to us and get wiped out. None will escape, he concludes. Having the enemy willingly deliver themselves to us, Sir Xiao, this is a brilliant plan. Xiao Tian motions him to lower his voice. Keep that admiration to yourself. Don't voice it out loud. I can't be too high profile. All right, let's go check on the family we rescued at the checkpoint earlier. Long Chiu Dao points to a side building. The family we rescued at the checkpoint has been arranged to stay in the side yard by Xiao Benfu. Xiao Tian looks over. Are you sure that's a side yard and not a garden? All I see are plants and flowers from here. Long Chiu Dao is equally puzzled. Sir Xiao, shall we go down and have a look? It should be the side yard. All right, let's go check it out, says Xiao Tian. But when he arrives, he is stunned. Turns out, when the people they rescued took off their hats, they each had a flower or plant growing from their heads. No wonder it looked like a garden from above, he thinks. The leader, Hua Kai Tu, looks at Xiao Tian with surprise. Is something wrong, benefactor? Have I offended you in some way? The next second, Xiao Tian bluntly asks, Why do you have flowers growing from your heads? Hua Kai Tu touches his head. Oh, you mean this? Haven't you ever seen our flower head tribe before? Xiao Tian shakes his head, confused, and looks at Long Chiu Dao, who is also puzzled. If even Long Chiu Dao hasn't seen them, they must be a new race that emerged after Long Chiu Dao was sealed in the Holy Dragon Relic. But this flower head tribe, they've definitely crossed some racial boundaries. Do they even wash their hair? With this thought in mind, Xiao Tian pulls Hua Kai Tu aside and whispers, I have a question, and I apologize if it's inappropriate, but I'm genuinely curious. Benefactor, you saved our family. Feel free to ask anything. With a serious expression, Xiao Tian asks, Do you wash your hair? Long Chiu Dao, not expecting such an irrelevant question, is caught off guard and coughs vigorously. That's so like you, Sir Xiao. Always focused on the most trivial yet oddly specific details, Hua Kai Tu starts to explain, Our tribe doesn't need to wash our hair. Our head flowers absorb the spiritual energy from the heavens and earth and convert it into a dew-like spiritual energy. This dew has the power to purify other spiritual energies and is an excellent ingredient for alchemy. Many in our flower head tribe are skilled alchemists and also good at cultivation. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian's face lights up with excitement. You can purify the spiritual energy of the heavens and earth? That's wonderful. So that's it. Ever since Xiao Tian stuffed various world fragments into the holy demon realm, the spiritual energy there has become more abundant but also more murky. Even using a magical formation couldn't sort it out. But with the arrival of this flower head tribe, could the problem be solved? Xiao Tian eagerly grips Hua Keita's hand. Sir, may I know your name? You may call me Hua Kai Tu, benefactor, he replies. I noticed you had a conflict with the guards at the border. Was it because you couldn't afford the toll? Didn't you look into the situation before coming here? Asks Xiao Tian. Hua Keita's brow furrows. Benefactor, you may not be aware, but our homeland, the Hundred Flower Domain, has been struck by calamity. We are refugees. After escaping, we came here to seek help from the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes. We didn't expect the guards at the second defensive line, the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range, to be so ruthless. They demanded half of our possessions. Half? Xiao Tian is shocked. I thought it was just 30%. Hua Kai Tu grinds his teeth in anger. According to those guards, 30% goes to the toll, and another 20% is shared among them. Hearing this, Xiao Tian and Long Chiu Dao exchange a glance. Then, they inquire further. What kind of calamity has befallen your homeland, Hundred Flower Domain, that you had to flee? At these words, Hua Kai Tu seems to recall some horrifying scene and starts to shiver. After a long pause, he finally speaks. In our Hundred Flower Domain, many talented and strong individuals have had their souls drained and died mysteriously. Hearing this, Xiao Tian looks at Long Chiu Dao. Soul draining? What kind of race would use such a technique? Long Chiu Dao sighs and shakes his head. I'm not sure. There are too many races capable of such methods. At that moment, Puppy suddenly informs Xiao Tian, Master, based on Hua Keita's description, the calamity that struck the Hundred Flower Domain could be related to soul draining. And soul draining is a talent of the ancient god tribe. However, Xiao Tian couldn't immediately remember who the ancient god tribe were. Puppy materializes its virtual form and starts scanning the legacy data of the ancient god tribe. Soon, an old man appears on the screen. What is this? Xiao Tian asks. Puzzled. Puppy smiles. Master, have you forgotten? This is the spirit of the ancient god tribe's legacy. Hearing Puppy's explanation, Xiao Tian ponders for a moment before suddenly recalling. Ah, you mean the legacy spirit you consumed when we were in my sea of consciousness? What happened to it? Seeing that he remembered, Puppy continues. Master, the calamity that befell the hundred flower domain could very well have been caused by soul draining. And after scanning the data left by the legacy spirit, I found that soul draining is a talent of the ancient god tribe. So, it's very likely that they are the ones responsible. Further data is still being scanned. Hearing this, Xiao Tian mutters to himself, if I can find 
out who is responsible for draining the souls in the hundred flower domain, then these humanoid air purifiers will owe me a big one. It would then make sense to integrate them into the holy demon realm to purify its murky spiritual energy, right? This could work. I'll take care of the hundred flower domain's problems on my way back to the holy demon realm. Thinking this, Xiao Tian breaks into a self-satisfied smile. Both Hua Kai Tu and Wang Chiu Dao, watching Xiao Tian as he zones out, can't help but call out, Sir Xiao, Sir Xiao. Coming back to his senses, Xiao Tian asks, What's up? Long Chiu Dao, eyes wide, queries, Sir Xiao, have you thought of something? At this, Xiao Tian directly tells them, I just remembered that the methods used against the Hundred Flower Domain might very likely be from the ancient god tribe. Hua Kai Tu, clearly having never heard of this race, asks confusedly, What is the ancient god tribe? Long Chiu Dao is also puzzled, I have never heard of this race either. If they really possess such terrifying techniques as you suggest, how come they are not widely known? Could it be that the ancient god tribe is a newly born race? Xiao Tian waves it off. Who cares? We'll find out when we visit the Hundred Flower Domain on our way back. He then reassures Hua Kai Tu, you take your family and rest well. Don't worry about anything. Once we've settled things here, we'll go to the Hundred Flower Domain and solve this problem once and for all. Hua Kai Tu looks terrified. Benefactor, the Hundred Flower Domain is extremely dangerous right now. How can I let you take such a risk? Hearing this, Xiao Tian reaches out with one hand. Don't worry, I'm very powerful. But Hua Kai Tu becomes frantic. Benefactor, you've already saved our family's lives. How could we allow you to risk yours for the sake of our people? Before he could finish speaking, Hua Kai Tu watches as Xiao Tian effortlessly shatters a piece of space with one hand. You, you just casually shattered a high-level dimensional space. Coming to his senses, Hua Kai Tu wraps his arms around Xiao Tian's leg. On behalf of all the people of the Hundred Flower Domain, thank you. Xiao Tian quickly helps him up. No need for this. We're all on the same side now. No need to be so formal. Hua Kai Tu looks at Xiao Tian with a face full of admiration, considering him to be the greatest benefactor in the world. Unbeknownst to them, their entire clan was about to embark on the path of working laboriously. Back home, Jia Benfu immediately goes to his grandfather, Jia Jingjing, to complain, Grandpa, that guy is not human at all. You have no idea the humiliation I have endured. That Xiao guy is just inhuman. He beat me into a pulp on the flying boat, and even forced me to call him Grandpa. Upon hearing this, Jia Jingjing nods approvingly, you did well. He turns around and pats his grandson on the shoulder. A good man knows when to bend and when to stand. It may seem humiliating to others, but to me, it shows courage, the courage to bow, the courage to endure. Jia Benfu, cheered up by the compliment, asks, so what should we do next? Jia Jingjing reveals a scheming smirk. Tomorrow, your grandpa wants me to apologize. So, I will prepare a special gift for him to make it very clear who the real grandpa is. Saying this, his face fills with a ruthless expression. Jia Benfu looks at his grandfather's face and becomes alarmed. Wait, grandpa, you're not planning to use that, are you? Jia Jingjing cuts him off. Exactly, I plan to use the Jade Shatter formation. Upon hearing this, Jia Benfu swallows hard before cautioning, Grandpa, we can't do this. This is the last trump card for our mysterious wealth mountain range. Once activated, it would mean mutual destruction along with the entire realm. Jia Jingjing dismissively scolds, What's all the fuss? This formation has long been altered by me so that it will only sacrifice the creatures native to the mysterious wealth mountain city, leaving our Jia family uninvolved. Once I activate the formation and bring down that Xiao individual, we will have performed a great service. Jia Jingjing can't help but laugh. By then, whether it's in the Elders Council of the Alliance or the Martial Spirit Army, both will owe us a debt of gratitude. Isn't it a win-win situation? Growing more animated, Jia Jingjing clenches his fist as if Xiao Tian's fate is already sealed. Jia Benfu bends at the waist in a formal bow. Grandpa, you're brilliant, but this person is incredibly powerful. Will the Jade Shatter formation really work? Upon hearing this, Jia Jingjing chuckles lightly and turns. Come with me, grandson. There are some family secrets you should know. Soon, they arrive at a secret location. Seeing the bound person, Jia Benfu is shocked and can't help but ask, Grandpa, what is this? With a mad glint in his eyes, Jia Jingjing explains, this guy is a descendant of the human emperor and has awakened the authentic imperial bloodline of humanity. His bloodline, once extracted, would be incredibly extraordinary, wouldn't it? Jia Benfu is startled by his grandfather's words, you can actually extract the true imperial bloodline of humanity? Jia Jingjing calmly responds, of course, the method was provided by the martial spirit army. I'm not entirely sure of its efficacy, but the Jade Shatter formation will be ignited using his blood as the core, coupled with the lives of a billion citizens from Mysterious Wealth City. Eliminating that arrogant Xiao Tian will be a piece of cake. It will take just one night to activate the formation. Tomorrow will be that arrogant Xiao Tian's day of reckoning. Jia Jingjing sneers, as if the death of a billion lives is nothing more than a cold statistic. Carried along by the mood, Jia Benfu also starts to look forward with anticipation, thinking, Grandpa, you're definitely done for this time. In the evening, Xiao Tian takes out a ghost mask and hands it to Long Chiu Dao to put on. Confused, Long Chiu Dao 
asks, Lord Xiao, what are we doing? Have you never heard the saying? The night is dark, and the wind is high, a perfect time for a lesson, Xiao Tian replies, putting on his ghost mask and looking towards the palace above. We're going to the Jia family to teach them a lesson. Long Chiodo hesitates, but Lord Xiao, didn't you say they should come to see you tomorrow? What does that have to do with me going to see them now? Xiao Tian retorts. Long Chiodo is left speechless. Lord Xiao, you really are cunning, always full of surprises. Before leaving, Xiao Tian instructs, wait, don't act rashly, follow my commands closely, stay by my side to avoid any unexpected situations. Facing Xiao Tian, Long Chiodo nods lightly after putting on the mask, understood, Lord Xiao. After donning the mask, Xiao Tian slowly rises into the night sky at a moderate pace. Long Chiodao follows, staring at the bright lights of mysterious wealth city. Long Chiodao can't help but feel puzzled. Isn't it too early? The night has just begun. Strange indeed. Although Long Chiodao is puzzled, he dutifully follows Xiao Tian, gradually approaching the palace where the Jia family resides. Meanwhile, in a more secluded residence in mysterious wealth city, the woman Xiao Tian previously saw, who resembles Zi Ruoyan, is pacing back and forth. Beside her, another short-haired woman is gesturing with a knife in hand. Several members of the Flower Head tribe are sitting nearby. Enough with the pacing, you're making me dizzy, says Lu Guixiang, the mother of the woman in blue. Yes, she's esteemed Purple Emperor's mother-in-law. The woman in the blue robe is Shua Ruyin. Mom, aren't you worried? Dad has been gone for so long. Shua Ruyin pauses her pacing to look at her mother. Don't underestimate your father, Lu Guixiang replies, shaking her head. He used to be the god of wealth, you know. Upon hearing Lu Guixiang's words, the members of the Flower Head tribe nod in agreement. Indeed, despite the city's expensive real estate, your father, Shua Fugue, bought a residence without a second thought. He even purchased the three neighboring properties to avoid disturbances. Just then, they hear a sound from the direction of the front gate. A portly Shua Fugue returns. Dad, how did it go? Shua Ruyin asks anxiously. Everything is set. As soon as I crush this jade token, they will get the signal to cause a disturbance in Mysterious Wealth City, plunging it into chaos. That will give us the perfect opportunity to rescue our son-in-law. Lu Guixiang flexes her shoulders. I haven't exercised my skills in a long time. I wonder if I can still move freely. Shua Ruyin clenches her fists and looks towards the enormous palace in the sky. I'm more concerned about whether Bro Z can hold on. Don't worry, we will all get out of this safely. Shua Fugui walks over and tousles his daughter's hair. With your mom and dad here, you have nothing to fear. Dad, I'm not a child anymore. Shua Ruyin retorts. Shua Fugui continues to look at his daughter with a cheerful demeanor. In my eyes, you'll always be my little girl. I'm very sorry. If it weren't for rescuing us from the hands of the Void Bandits, you wouldn't have exposed your tracks. The leading woman from the Flower Head tribe begins, letting out a sigh full of regret. Shua Ruyin lifts her head, waving her hand at the woman. You don't need to blame yourself. This has nothing to do with you. What we didn't expect was how well informed the Jia family of Mysterious Wealth City is. They ambushed us even before we reached the region. Bro Z was captured and taken away because he was trying to protect all of us. Now that we have identified where our son-in-law is being held and have arranged a rescue plan, the moment Mysterious Wealth City falls into chaos will be our best opportunity to free him. Just then, an earth-shattering roar resounds throughout the vast skies of Mysterious Wealth City. Everyone looks up to see the floating palace above, the high and mighty residence of the Jia family. Its defense formations have been shattered with a deafening blast that echoes in all directions. Xiao Tian has shattered the Jia family's defensive formation. Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity Xiao Tian is here. The Jia family, tasked with guarding the second line, is acting like a band of thieves. I can no longer tolerate your heinous acts. Today, I am here to administer justice. I'm willing to give the Jia family a chance to repent. Everyone in Mysterious Wealth City, bear witness to see if the Jia family can be saved. As this deafening declaration echoes, everyone looks up at the sky towards Xiao Tian, stunned. The protective formation around the Jia family's celestial palace has been blasted open. Their faces show a mixture of shock and euphoria. Finally, someone has come to put the oppressive Jia family in their place. Shue Fugui and Lu Guixiang are shocked at first, but then elated. Isn't this fortunate? We were just considering whether we would have a chance to take action. Now the opportunity has come. It's time to make a move. Hold on, let's wait. Shue Ruyin instead remains calm, looking up at the sky. The person who shattered the formation must be very powerful. Let's not act hastily. They probably have some kind of dispute with the Jia family. Let this powerful individual take the lead in conflict with the Jia family. When they're fully engaged, we'll seize the opportunity to move. Hearing his daughter, Shue Fugue nods in agreement. Lu Guixiang is holding a machete, eyeing the palace above. This supreme benevolent king of hell deity Xiao Tian is indeed impressive. People with great power really can do as they please. While we have to be cautious, he just charged straight in. I kind of like that audacity. Upon hearing her mother, Shue Ruyin nods in agreement. Indeed, too audacious. Lu Guixiang is speechless for a moment. So you only heard the part about being audacious, huh? At this moment, Xiao Tian arrives at the celestial palace with Long Chiodao. So this is where the Jia family lives. Xiao Tian looks around and finds the scenery
scenery quite pleasing, akin to a fairy palace. Lord Xiao, didn't you say we should act cautiously, not rashly? Xiao Tian looks at Long Chiu Dao, puzzled. Yes, so what's the problem? Shouldn't we have deciphered the formation quietly and sneaked into this Jia family palace to find the key personnel? And then, Long Chiu Dao makes a slicing gesture across his neck. Xiao Tian frowns at Long Chiu Dao. We are on the side of justice. We are here to sweep away the darkness and deal with the cancer that is the Jia family. How could we act like thieves? Moreover, when we came to the Jia family's place, a formation was blocking us. Isn't it logical and in line with procedures that I blasted it open with a punch? How can you think that's rash? Faced with Xiao Tian's counter question, Long Chiu Dao opens his mouth but doesn't know how to rebut. After the formation was broken, I conducted a careful analysis of the situation. Breaking the formation would definitely alert them. So why not just announce it openly to the world? The people in the mysterious Wealth Mountain region must have suffered greatly under the Jia family's tyranny. Perhaps many are on the verge of emotional collapse. This is the perfect stage for education. It can let everyone know that darkness can't overcome light, and evil can't defeat justice. After careful consideration, I've decided to let this good deed spread far and wide to convey kindness and justice. You can't possibly think that I'm doing this just to gain fame, can you? As the formation explodes like fireworks, Jia Jingjing, who was originally meditating, is suddenly awakened. The moment he opens his eyes, he sees the core of the entire formation hub shatter completely. For a moment, Jia Jingjing feels disoriented. Was the defensive formation that I spent a fortune on building just broken? Then Xiao Tian's voice reverberates throughout the city. You, the Jia family, have done countless unscrupulous deeds. I, Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity Xiao Tian, am here to teach you how to be human. As Jia Jingjing leaves, the bound esteemed purple emperor suddenly opens his eyes and stares at his departing figure, murmuring softly, Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity Xiao Tian, quite an intimidating name. However, how could I, with my esteemed imperial lineage, be so easily stripped away? Esteemed purple emperor is full of confidence. As he speaks, the chains of the formation binding him suddenly burst into flames. The blood that was being drained from him starts burning as well. These burning flames of blood are crazily absorbing the spiritual energy from the formation's core, flowing back into his body. With each flame that merges into the esteemed purple emperor, his aura increases slightly. Seeing this, esteemed purple emperor breaks into a satisfied smile. I originally planned to wait for my wife to rescue me, using the power of my bloodline to erode the Jia family's formation and escape with her help. I didn't expect someone to intervene. I can't miss this opportunity. Feeling the surge of power within him, esteemed purple emperor glances at the formation. The Jia family really has something. Even the elder of the Shua family couldn't strip away my imperial bloodline, yet this emperor of the mysterious Wealth Mountain range has such sophisticated means. The Jia family must have a mastermind behind them. Anyway, I should first focus on escaping. Saying this, esteemed purple emperor takes a deep breath. His imperial aura bursts forth, causing the formation within the entire hall to wobble. Meanwhile, at the square of the Jia family's residence, Xiao Tian and Long Chiu Dao look ahead. Finally, someone arrives, led by Jia Benfu. Jia Benfu is almost going insane. He thought they had agreed to meet tomorrow. So why have they come tonight? Does this mean even the strong can go back on their words? Soon, other strong members of the Jia family arrive one after another. Each has an impressive aura. Long Chiu Dao takes a quick look around. The leading elder is at level 20, while the others average around level 18. Jia Jingjing fixes his gaze on Xiao Tian, but before he can speak, Xiao Tian interrupts. My good grandson, why are you standing there? Your grandpa is here. Won't you come and greet me? Jia Benfu nearly collapses, holding his face as he trembles and shakes his head frantically. That's not what was said. That's not what was said. The other Jia family elders exchange puzzled glances. What is going on? Did Jia Benfu just acknowledge a stranger as an elder? Seeing no response, Xiao Tian's face darkens. My good grandson, are you planning to deny me? At these words, Jia Benfu finally snaps out of it, looking at Xiao Tian with a face full of horror. Immediately after, Jia Benfu bends his knees and gracefully slides to kneel at Xiao Tian's feet, pointing at Jia Xingjing and excitedly shouting, Grandpa, your good grandson has been waiting eagerly for you. This old man is trying to harm you. Jia Xingjing was stunned. This is the successor I've taken a liking to? Is he the one to whom I'm going to entrust the future of the Jia family? Seeing Jia Benfu's face full of happiness and belonging, both Xiao Tian and Long Chiu Dao's eyes widen as they stare at him in disbelief. After a moment, Long Chiu Dao scratches his head and asks, Lord Xiao, what's going on? I've never seen anything like this before. Xiao Tian shrugs and shakes his head. To be honest, this is my first time encountering something like this as well. Xiao Tian quickly adjusts his mood and communicates with Long Chiu Dao through telepathy. Remember the monitoring formation you set up earlier when we were slowly rising? Is it ready? Long Chiu Dao pauses for a moment, recalling the Skynet mirror formation he had set up. Lord Xiao, don't worry. With just a signal from you, I can let all the citizens of Mysterious Wealth Mountain City see the ugly face of the Jia family. At this moment, Jia Benfu suddenly starts wailing again. Grandpa, your grandson didn't lie to you. That old man has activated something 
called the Jade Shatter Formation. That Jade Shatter Formation is incredible. It can sacrifice the lives of a billion beings in mysterious Wealth Mountain City to condense into a single strike against you. I wanted to leave the Sky Palace to inform you, but this old man was watching too closely and didn't give me the chance. Jia Xingjing is utterly dumbfounded. This kid has actually revealed all of it. Xiao Tian nods. Earlier, when I ascended to this Sky Palace, I did sense a sacrificial formation. Is it this Jade Shatter Formation you're talking about? Jia Benfu looks up proudly, as if he's been acknowledged. Yes, yes it is. A smirk forms at the corner of Xiao Tian's mouth as a plan springs to mind. Interesting. He then points at Jia Xingjing and questions. So, the head of the Jia family, is this how you use a formation intended to defend against external enemies? For your own selfish gain, you so easily wiped out the lives of so many innocent people in mysterious Wealth Mountain City? Caught red-handed, Jia Xingjing is momentarily stunned, and the other powerful figures in the Jia family look at him in disbelief. Patriarch, is this true? This is no joking matter. However, Jia Xingjing reveals a smug smile. A joke? It's just a mere formation. We've been consuming all the resources coming from the United Alliance of a hundred tribes for years. Each time, haven't you all followed me, filling your bellies and greasing your lips? What's there to be surprised about now? So what if we sacrifice a billion lives? What's the problem? Jia Xingjing's face contorts, showing no regard for the lives of ordinary people. Xiao Tian then gives Long Chiodao a look that says now's the time. Activate the formation. I want to socially annihilate them. Oblivious to what's happening, Jia Xingjing continues his impassioned speech. They are but a bunch of lowly beings. It's their honor to be sacrificed to the Jade Shatter Formation. If anyone investigates, we can simply say the formation was used to resist the Martial Spirit Army. Finally unable to hold back, Long Chiodao speaks up. Are you so sure that the Meteor Flame Battlefield will fall and you'll face off against the Martial Spirit Army? Jia Xingjing adopts a confident and fearless demeanor. Haven't you already figured out that our Jia family has colluded with the Martial Spirit Army? Why ask the obvious? What's the point? Just then, countless voices of anger are heard. What's the point? Are our lives meaningless to you? You Jias have bullied us enough as it is. Now you're even colluding with the Martial Spirit Army and threatening the Meteor Flame Battlefield? That's crossing the line. Only at this moment does Jia Xingjing notice the sky mirror overhead, realizing that everything he's said and done has been broadcast live. At this instant, countless citizens, upon hearing his words, are fervently shouting to tear down the Jia family. Long Chiodao turns his head and exchanges a glance with Xiao Tian, as expected of Lord Xiao. You come to the doorstep honorably and openly, yet you make the other party reveal their cards voluntarily. Seething with anger, Jia Xingjing trembles. Fine, you'll regret this. You think you're clever? You think you're winning? Fool, you're courting death. At this moment, the mysterious Wealth Mountain range is filled with curses. Shui Ruyan and her family, along with many from the Flower Head tribe, come out to observe the situation in the streets. They see countless people pointing at Jia Xingjing in the sky mirror, cursing and yelling to bring down the Jia family. Shui Fugui pinches his chubby chin. I spent money to create chaos among the citizens of mysterious Wealth Mountain City. Why does it feel like it was unnecessary? The disturbance here is much bigger than what I arranged. Shui Ruyan is also staring at the sky mirror. This is bigger than we thought. Jia Xingjing's secret has been fully exposed. He might try to kill everyone in Mysterious Wealth Mountain City to keep them quiet. The Jade Shatter Formation's sacrifice certainly won't stop now. Lu Guixian steps forward, looking at her husband and daughter. Should we make our move? Both give her a surprised look. Not yet. The situation is certainly intense, but it's not chaotic enough. She then turns to Shui Fugui. Dad, your money isn't wasted. The kindling has been soaked in oil. It just needs a spark. Hearing this, Shui Fugui takes out a jade token. You make a good point, he says. And with a crunch, he shatters the token. Across mysterious wealth mountain range, all the people who've been paid off receive the signal. Simultaneously, the Jia family's second line defense force storms into the city, suppressing the crowd. This group, originally meant to defend the area from external threats, now turn their weapons against the very people they were supposed to protect. A torch in the hands of someone from the Flower Head tribe is abruptly cut down. Seeing this, the Flower Head tribe roars in anger. They've taken action. Wipe out these scum. The grievances of past days erupt at this moment. The shouts and battle cries gradually drown out the curses. The crowd is fearless, with Lord Xiao Tian taking a stand for justice and leading the way. What are we hesitating for? Are we all just going to cower until we die? Rise up. Topple the tyrannical Jia family. Today is the day. The situation increasingly spirals out of control. Jia Xingjing glances back at the chaotic scene. These so-called defenders are useless. They can't even suppress these dissident voices. However, as he looks at Xiao Tian, he thinks, once I get rid of this instigator, the others won't be able to make waves. Furious, Jia Xingjing clenches his teeth, a murderous aura emanating from his body. Everything he'd painstakingly built has been ruined by this shameless individual. Suddenly, Jia Xingjing speaks into the empty space behind him. Stop watching. If this situation isn't resolved, it won't be good for you either, right? Just as he finishes speaking, ripples appear in the air, and several figures materialize behind him. You've really screwed this up, haven't you? They belong to a race 
race that Xiao Tian is quite familiar with. The Blood Grudge Clan, also tier 20 warriors. Yellow hair smirks. Looks like your good days are over. Hearing the mockery, Jia Xingjing narrows his eyes. First, think about how to clean up this mess. The cat's out of the bag. We need to kill to keep it quiet. To slow down the spread of the news. His expression turns malicious. I remember that the Blood Grudge Clan has a blood curse technique. It can trace people's loved ones through their blood, right? Yellow hair chuckles lightly. What? You want to search for his relatives? You're really petty. Petty? Jia Xingjing flexes his body. This guy has turned me into a public enemy. How could I possibly let him off? Suddenly, his voice comes to a halt. For some unknown reason, yellow hair swiftly appears in front of Xiao Tian, in a kneeling position no less. Xiao Tian casually extends his hand and grips his throat. It feels as if yellow hair had voluntarily delivered himself. What's going on? Jia Xingjing is dumbfounded. Are you all putting on a show here? One moment you're chatting beside me, and the next, you're in Xiao Tian's hands? Yellow hair takes a deep breath, his spiritual energy erupting instantly. His body reverberates with a rumbling sound as his muscles and the bursting red spiritual energy work in unison. Yellow hair summons a terrifying power and shouts, rise. However, he doesn't budge. Xiao Tian's hand seems like an unmovable sky, forever suppressing him. A silence descends on the scene. Panic starts to creep into Yellow Hair's mind. I'm a tier 20 warrior. Why can't I rise under the grip of this puny human? As if granting his wish, Xiao Tian slowly raises his hand and helps him to his feet. Yellow Hair finally experiences that unparalleled power. With a slight pressure from Xiao Tian's fingertips, Yellow Hair lets out a gut-wrenching scream. Jia Benfu, kneeling beside, has been shivering with fear. Watching Xiao Tian hoist Yellow Hair up like a little chicken, Jia Benfu is internally screaming. I knew it. I knew Xiao Tian was a monster. He corrects himself. No, he's not a monster. He's my grandfather. My mighty grandfather. Finally, Xiao Tian speaks. My purpose for coming here was to give them a lesson, to awaken their conscience. I didn't expect a menace like you to appear before we even started. It seems you are the backbone of the Jia family's evil doing. With that, Xiao Tian's hand holding yellow hair suddenly flicks upward. Yellow hair becomes a blur, rocketing skyward, even piercing through the clouds. His screams are endless. Subsequently, people hear Xiao Tian murmur, current power, seven ten thousandths. Jia Benfu is instantly dumbfounded, unable to believe what he's heard. My dear grandfather, you can control your power down to such a small fraction. While he's still in shock, Xiao Tian throws a punch into the sky. Space is torn asunder as a tangible attack surges upward. Yellow hair, hurled into the sky, feels a tremendous force rushing towards him. He watches as the space below shatters inch by inch. Yellow hair's heart tightens, sensing something terrible. The next second, an extremely terrifying force envelopes him completely. Blood power path. However, even though he is a tier 20 warrior and exhausts all his power, he is still ruthlessly shattered. Yellow hair screams in terror. No, don't. Just before dying, yellow hair loses all decorum and curses. Jia Jingjing, you ageless beast. You idiot. You dragged me into this. You dog. His voice abruptly stops as his body violently bursts apart. The surrounding space also shatters into fragments like mirrors, emitting a crisp sound. Xiao Tian withdraws his fist and says to the people in front of him, listen, ding ding, ding a ling, the bell is rung, it's time for class. Jia Xingjing trembles all over, looking at Xiao Tian with eyes full of fear. He swallows hard, sweat constantly trickling down his forehead. Only now does he truly understand Jia Benfu, truly worthy of being the successor I have my eye on. Grandson, you're a clever little devil. After casually crushing the strong warrior of the Blood Grudge Clan, Xiao Tian nonchalantly brushes off his hands. The annoying guy has been dealt with. Now it's time for your Jia family to get schooled. Heaven is merciful. Even if you've committed heinous crimes, as long as you can do a few things, I'm willing to give you a chance for redemption. Jia Jingjing can't control his trembling. He thinks to himself, is there really such good fortune? Could this be the quirk of a powerful person? A preference for urging people to be virtuous? He makes a secret resolution. He must seize this opportunity to survive. Xiao Tian extends a finger and begins, first, relinquish your position as the guardian of the mysterious wealth mountain range. Then, transfer the mysterious wealth mountain range to me as compensation for my emotional distress. After all, you've colluded with the martial spirit army to secretly plot against me, causing irreplaceable harm to my spirit. Hearing this, Jia Xingjing smiles broadly on the surface, but inside he's cursing. This is utter nonsense. The agreement I made with the martial spirit army was decades ago, probably before you were even born. How could it have been aimed at you? But for the sake of staying alive, he maintains composure. Don't be angry. Don't be angry. As long as I can save my life, whatever he says is right. Give whatever he wants. Thinking this, Jia Xingjing quickly bows and agrees. If you say so, it's no problem. I'll immediately issue a notice declaring you the lord of the mysterious wealth mountain range. At this point, Long Chiodao suddenly speaks up. The mysterious wealth mountain range has already formed a world heart. You should transfer this world heart to Lord Xiao. Hearing these words, Xiao Tian is visibly startled. What is a world heart? The world heart is formed by the world energy of a domain world. It is the control nexus of a domain world. Once controlled, one can control everything within the 
the domain world, aiding one's cultivation and enhancing combat ability. Jia Xingjing is dumbstruck. How does he know that I have the world heart? This is known only to the Martial Spirit Army and the Jia family. Even the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes Council of Elders isn't aware of this. How could an outsider know? Seeing him not responding, Long Chiodao chides. Are you saying that you didn't form this world heart? Jia Xingjing awkwardly smiles. How could that be? I was just about to hand over the world heart. Xiao Tian steps closer to Long Chiodao, then bring it out. The next second, an odd-looking stone appears in front of Jia Xingjing. The stone emits overwhelming fluctuations. This is the world heart of the mysterious wealth mountain range. Xiao Tian curiously reaches out to touch it. So this is the so-called world heart? Jia Xingjing is startled. Is he an idiot? This is the world heart of the mysterious wealth mountain range. Reaching out directly means enduring the enormous pressure of the entire mountain range. And no one is stopping him? Does he really think he's so powerful that he can withstand the pressure of an entire domain world? Jia Xingjing suddenly feels some anticipation. This is overly confident. Ha ha ha. I can't wait to see you destroy yourself. If he gets crushed, the Jia family will be safe. Crush him. Under Jia Xingjing's expectant gaze, Xiao Tian casually picks up the world heart with his fingers. This thing actually looks quite nice. Jia Xingjing feels as if he's been struck by lightning. What on earth is happening? That's the world heart, representing the immense pressure of an entire domain world. And he's just holding it between his fingers? Now holding the world heart in his hand, he knows that the mountain range is his. Jia Xingjing, however, has other ideas. The world heart represents the natural laws of a domain world. You think just because you say it's yours, it becomes yours? That's incredibly arrogant. However, the next moment, Jia Xingjing watches as his control over the mysterious wealth mountain range slowly drifts out of his body and directly enters Xiao Tian. Jia Xingjing is dumbstruck. What just happened? My control was taken without my consent? Xiao Tian is also momentarily stunned, but then he sees the world heart disappear into his hand, absorbed along with the control. Now that I possess the world heart, I can sense everything within the domain of the mysterious wealth mountain range clearly. This is much more convenient than relying on my physical eyes. Xiao Tian nods in satisfaction. You've done well in fulfilling my first request to become the lord of the mysterious wealth mountain range. It shows me you're committed to changing your ways. He then holds up two fingers. My second request is for you to fully understand the meaning of responsibility and duty. At this, Jia Jingjing looks utterly confused, having no idea what Xiao Tian is referring to. Xiao Tian explains with a smile, the meteor flame battlefield up ahead is in dire need of reinforcements. As the defensive army for the second line, it's time for you to go into battle. As the saying goes, raise troops for a thousand days, use them for a moment. Now is the best time for you to redeem yourselves. Hearing this, Jia Jingjing quickly agrees, rest assured, once we get to the meteor flame battlefield, we'll fight the enemy with all our might and live up to your teachings. However, inside, he's laughing triumphantly. This is a godsend. If the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes can't be relied upon, I can always switch sides to the Martial Spirit Army. As soon as we reach the Meteor Flame Battlefield, I'll join them, and my family will be safe. Unaware of Jia Jingjing's thoughts, Xiao Tian tells Long Chiu Dao, See, there are no truly evil people in this world. With patience and love, even the most wicked can be reformed. Long Chiu Dao has his doubts, thinking that Jia Jingjing doesn't seem like the kind of person to mend his ways. No matter how crafty he is, could he really outwit Xiao Tian? Next, Xiao Tian turns to Jia Jingjing, Since you've agreed to go to the Meteor Flame Battlefield to redeem yourselves, get moving. Eagerly, Jia Jingjing agrees. All right, all right, shall we start packing and head to the Meteor Flame Battlefield? Xiao Tian suddenly waves his hand. No need for all that fuss. He then unexpectedly draws a long knife. You can simply use this knife to commit seppuku. With a swift motion, he stabs the knife into the ground, scaring the wits out of Jia Jingjing and his people. Jia Jingjing hesitates. Lord Xiao, what do you mean? Xiao Tian shakes his head. I can't be certain that you won't collaborate with the Martial Spirit Army once you get to the battlefield. You can stain this knife with your blood, and I'll send someone else to use this knife on the battlefield. That's equivalent to you fighting against the enemy. This is the way you'll atone for your sins. You won't even have to travel far. Isn't that great? Hearing that Xiao Tian wants him to use the knife to commit seppuku, Jia Jingjing is clearly incredulous. You're joking, right? Xiao Tian points to the long knife in front of him. Nope, I'm very serious. You can use your blood and lives to imbue this knife. Then Bai Qing will take it and fight against the enemy. Your family's spirit will be with her, giving her courage. In this way, you can leave behind a good reputation, making your atonement meaningful. Honestly, I can't think of any reason for you to refuse. Jia Jingjing is stunned. Xiao Tian turns to Long Chiu Dao. Can you think of any reason? Long Chiu Dao shakes his head. I can't. This is such a perfect solution. Even I can't refuse. Jia Jingjing feels a surge of anger rising. He's treating us like animals for a blood sacrifice. He's trampling on the dignity of our Jia family. At this thought, Jia Jingjing can't help but shout, is having power an excuse to do whatever you want? Long Chiu Dao calmly replies, having power does allow you to do whatever you want. Besides, isn't that what you've been doing? Jia Jingjing is speechless, gritting his teeth. Just then, Xiao 
Xiao Tian rubs his forehead and says, Oh right, before you commit seppuku, tell me where your treasury is. I need to take some compensation for my services. I've traveled a long way to give you advice. Naturally, I should be paid. Everyone is silent at this audacious demand. Even Long Chiodao seems to be uncomfortable. Jia Jingjing is about to explode. Is this human language? Is this something a sane person would say? He's trying to settle scores on behalf of those who died on the meteor flame battlefield. With me, who colluded with the martial spirit army. But just at that moment, Jia Jingjing's face changes. Each and every one of you here, don't even think about running. You thought my humility meant I'd really admitted my guilt? I was just buying time. Now is my moment to counterattack. Jia Jingjing clasps his hands together, and a blood-red formation appears behind him. He shouts, Jade Shatter Formation, rise. A humming sound resonates, and a mysterious force starts gathering, draining everything from unidentified sources, life, spiritual energy, essence, all being sucked away and condensing into Jia Jingjing. Everyone in the Jia family, even Jia Benfu who's kneeling on the ground, can feel their life force, spiritual energy, and blood being plundered. Jia Jingjing's crazed voice echoes, the martial spirit army taught me another use for the Jade Shatter Formation, sacrificed the entire clan to empower me alone. You didn't see this coming, did you, Xiao Tian? This time next year will be the anniversary of your death. At this moment, the withering Jia family members all shout, Grandpa, no, Jia Jingjing, may you die horribly. In contrast, Jia Jingjing's condition keeps improving, his aura growing stronger and reaching new heights. Long Chiodao watches in astonishment, this man is shameless, he actually killed his own clan with his own hands. Xiao Tian snorts coldly, this isn't the Jade Shatter formation, this is clearly a blood drinking formation that sacrifices clan members to achieve a desperate turnaround. Hearing this, Long Chiodao turns his head in surprise, Xiao Tian, when did you become so knowledgeable about formations? I once obtained the ancient texts from the ancient god tribe, it includes records from the Soul Intent clan, where the blood drinking formation is documented. While the two are talking, Jia Benfu and the other Jia family members have already lost their lives. Jia Jingjing exhales deeply, seemingly feeling very relieved, lowering his head to look at his hands. He can't help but laugh in a manic state. This power, it's intoxicating. Take out the holy dragon relic and activate the formation. Although he doesn't know the significance of this action, Long Chiodao obediently takes out the relic. Once he has done as Xiao Tian instructed, Jia Jingjing suddenly moves, drawing a long knife and laughing. I'm quite skilled with knives as well. You'll regret this. Xiao Tian uninterestedly picks at his ear and says, All right, begin your performance. Just as Jia Jingjing raises his knife and appears to charge forward, shouting, Prepare to die. Long Chiodao hurries to stand in front of Xiao Tian, saying, My lord, please step back. But the next second, the previously calm space warps abruptly. A force of spatial translocation envelopes Jia Jingjing. Before Long Chiodao can react, Jia Jingjing has already used the power to warp through space and escape. Long Chiodao is speechless. The old man knew he couldn't win, so he used the power gained from sacrificing his clan to escape, even burning his own spiritual energy to speed up. How decisive. Such a pity. Xiao Tian yawned. Now there's no need to waste energy to chase after him and bring him back. Sadly, Lord Xiao Tian had already anticipated his escape. Once the Holy Dragon Relic Formation is fully activated, it automatically detects any spatial translocations in the vicinity. It effortlessly manipulates the enemy within the palm of one's hand. Truly impressive, my lord. Immediately after, Xiao Tian pulls out the long knife stuck in the ground and looks at Long Chiu Dao, saying, release him. The next second, Jia Jingjing is spat out from the Holy Dragon Relic. Seeing the familiar faces in front of him, Jia Jingjing is stunned. Didn't I escape? How am I back here? Xiao Tian grabs his shoulder and says, enough running. Now what you need to do is tell us the location of your treasure vault, pay your tuition, and correct your ways as part of your homework. We're all grown men here. Why are you dilly-dallying about this knife? Saying this, Xiao Tian hands the knife to Jia Jingjing. The message couldn't be clearer. Jia Jingjing, holding the long knife, is so scared that he bursts into tears. Please spare my life. I'll tell you everything. I'll say it all. However, Xiao Tian calmly instructs Long Chiodao to take out a recording formation to document all of Jia Jingjing's crimes. Long Chiodao activates the formation and says, I'm ready, Lord Xiao. Hearing this, Xiao Tian looks down at Jia Jingjing and says, Go ahead, tell us in detail about everything you've done. Jia Jingjing nods quickly, Yes, I'll tell you now. I once colluded with the martial spirit army on the battlefield and plotted to kill my father, the first generation guardian. I took his place. With the tacit approval of the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes Elder Council, I've been secretly skimming off resources from the Meteor Flame battlefield. I even withheld resources that were supposed to be regularly and specifically sent to the battlefield. My level 20 was built up using these resources. Is there anything else? I also sold some unique resources and information to the Martial Spirit Army. Hearing this, both Xiao Tian and Wang Chiodao look at him with faces full of disdain and anger. This man deserves to die. Facing the gazes of the two men, Jia Jingjing steals himself and asks, I've said everything that I should say. Can you forgive my past mistakes? I really, really know I was wrong.
wrong. Xiao Tian takes a step forward and grabs his wrist. Of course, I'm willing to forgive you and I believe you will mend your ways. Jia Jingjing. Saying this, Xiao Tian slowly lifts the hand holding the knife. The next second, he suddenly applies force and Jia Jingjing unwittingly stabs the knife into his own chest. His eyes are filled with disbelief and regret. Pulling out the knife, Xiao Tian disdainfully says, I can forgive you, but whether the soldiers you've killed and the innocent people harmed by the Jia family will forgive you, well, you'll have to go ask them yourself. In his haze, Jia Xingjing seems to see his father before his death and can't help but call out, my father. However, the last thing his father said to him before dying was a curse wishing him an ill fate. Xiao Tian looks at him speechlessly, I'm not your father, don't shout randomly. Upon hearing this, Jia Xingjing spits out a mouthful of old blood, you scoundrel, I'm dying, and you still take advantage? After saying this, Jia Xingjing falls to the ground, lifeless. Unconcerned, Xiao Tian sheets the knife and calls to Long Chiu Dao, let's go. I just saw through the world heart of the mysterious wealth mountain range that someone is trapped in the formation behind us. Meanwhile, inside the heavenly palace of the mysterious wealth mountain range, a steamed purple emperor is tugging at formation chains, attempting to break the formation and escape. Seeing the two figures enter, a steamed purple emperor stops and asks, my brother, could you be the supreme benevolent king of hell deity Xiao Tian? Would you mind if? Xiao Tian raises his hand to cut him off. Hold on before you call me brother. Looking at the familiar binding method, a familiar feeling rises in his heart. In that familiar formation, those familiar golden hairs, Xiao Tian seems to awaken from a dream. You wouldn't happen to have the surname Z, would you? Esteemed purple emperor's heart stirs. This guy starts by asking about my surname. Could he be here to catch me? No, I have to change my appearance. Can't let him recognize me. The next second, esteemed purple emperor activates a secret technique to change his appearance. By the time Xiao Tian comes over to check, he looks completely different from Z Ruan. Could he really not be my father-in-law? Likewise, esteemed purple emperor starts speaking. My good brother, my name is Zhou Shintong. However, upon looking up, he sees Xiao Tian grinning from ear to ear. Isn't he here to capture me? Why is he so happy to know I'm not esteemed purple emperor? Shouldn't he be disappointed? Xiao Tian has no idea what he's thinking and excitedly grabs the chains of the formation. Hold on, I'll come and save you right away. Esteemed purple emperor gets a fright and hurriedly speaks up. Wait, brother, this formation is strong and a bit strange, but it's already too late. Xiao Tian starts to apply force to the chains, and the formation immediately reacts. A red light shoots directly into Xiao Tian's mind. Puppy quickly warns, Master, your soul is under attack. According to the ancient god tribe scriptures, the formation that binds this man in front of you is called the Soul Locking Golden Strike Formation. This is a method commonly used by the ancient god tribe. It appears to bind the physical body, but it actually seals the soul. Xiao Tian is displeased. It's the ancient god tribe again? Never mind. It's not important. But a soul attack? Why don't I feel anything? Because your soul is too strong. The soul shock from this soul locking golden strike formation is like scratching an itch through a boot for you. It's insignificant. Puppy explains. I see. Xiao Tian murmurs, continuing to apply force. The next second, the chains are directly crushed by Xiao Tian. A steamed purple emperor watches this scene, completely stunned. The formation chains that even I couldn't deal with were just torn apart by this man. Xiao Tian calmly speaks. All right, now that you're free, go reunite with your family. A look of admiration fills esteemed purple emperor's face. Benefactor, I cannot forget your life-saving grace. How can I ever repay you? Xiao Tian dismissively waves his hand. Don't be like that. I, supreme benevolent king of hell deity Xiao Tian, do good deeds without seeking fame or reward. Go back. Your family must be worried about you. Esteemed purple emperor clasps his fists. Thank you, brother Xiao. May we meet again someday to enjoy wine and good company. Watching the departing figure of esteemed purple emperor, Xiao Tian feels sentimental. Another day of doing good deeds. How nice. Long Chiu Dao, who's beside him, strokes his beard. Something feels off. Why do I find the aura on that person familiar? At this point, Xiao Tian nudges Long Chiu Dao with his elbow. What are you daydreaming about? Let's go. It's time to collect the tuition from the Jia family. Xiao Tian heads straight to the Jia family's treasure vault, standing in front of the door. Suddenly, Long Chiu Dao remembers. My lord, we don't seem to have a key. Xiao Tian casually turns his head and looks at him. Are you stupid? What do we need a key for when I'm here? Saying this, Xiao Tian steps forward, grabs the doorknob, and gently twists it, lifting the entire door off its hinges. Long Chiu Dao is completely stunned. It seems I've underestimated him. Soon, the sight inside the treasure vault leaves both of them dumbfounded. The Jia family really hasn't skimped on their corruption. Looking at the room filled with rare and valuable items, Xiao Tian sighs. These are all things that the Jia family exchanged for human lives. It looks like I'll have to give them some extra tutoring after class. Given these resources, I should do something more for Jia Xingjing and the Jia family. Long Chiu Dao looks at him incredulously. Lord Xiao, what do you mean? Xiao Tian gives a faint smile. I plan to make a statue of Jia Xingjing in the busiest part of Mysterious Wealth Mountain City. Next to it, I'll erect a stone tablet detailing all of his past deeds. I want this statue to suffer public humiliation.
humiliation and physical abuse on Jia Xingjing's behalf. That way, it will be like he's atoning for his sins. If Jia Xingjing were still alive, he'd probably be moved to tears. Long Chiodao is speechless. Whether he would be moved or not, I don't know. But if someone were to suddenly come back to life out of sheer anger, it would definitely be your doing. As Long Chiodao ponders, Xiao Tian suddenly turns around and calls out, What are you still thinking about? Let's go. Long Chiodao is startled. Leave? Are we taking anything? But when he turns his head, he's dumbfounded. What the? You've already taken everything? Xiao Tian looks serious. Don't doubt my abilities. I can endlessly refresh your understanding of what's possible. Let's go. However, Long Chiodao shakes his head. Lord Xiao, it might not be appropriate for us to just leave. The mysterious Wealth Mountain Range is a secondary defense line. Its position is too special. If we just depart, what happens to this mess? All of the Jia family are dead. The mountain range is now like a dragon without a head, and there's a bunch of unruly garrison troops. These are all troubles. Xiao Tian nonchalantly shrugs. To set the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range on the right path, a strong leader is needed. Clearly, I'm not that person. Just as Long Chiodao is about to say something, Xiao Tian cuts him off. I can't do it, but what I can do is move the Holy Demon Domain over and merge it with the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range. By then, Zi Ruoyan will definitely figure out a way to deal with the problem of insubordination. Hearing this, Long Chiodao is flabbergasted. Only you would dare to propose such an idea. Merging two enormous domain worlds? How can you even dare to think like that? Lord Xiao, such things shouldn't be done recklessly. What if something goes wrong and both domains explode? Xiao Tian looks a bit puzzled. It shouldn't explode, right? Plus, if we merge it, the second defense line will directly belong to our holy demon domain. The title of garrison commander can go to Zi Ruoyan, and the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes could also send resources to us. Isn't it good for us to guard the second defense line? Long Chiu Dao's eyes light up. Exactly. Why let the benefits go to others? We're on the same side as Bai Qing, which means we're also aligned with leader Su of the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes. If the Jia family can take these resources, so can we. However, Long Chiu Dao looks at Xiao Tian with a sly expression. Why would you want to give the garrison commander position to Emperor Zi? Xiao Tian calmly replies, If I give it to Luo Feng Yuan, she'd probably turn the second defense line into an assault camp and constantly lead the garrison troops into battle. There's no way I could give it to her. Now, now, you go handle the subsequent matters. Reorganize Mysterious Wealth Mountain City and integrate the garrison troops. Find some local people to temporarily manage the Mysterious Wealth Mountain range. Once that's all set, we'll go to the Hundred Flower Domain with Hua Kai Tu. We'll merge it with Mysterious Wealth Mountain range first as a test. If everything goes well, we'll move the Holy Demon Domain. Yawning, Xiao Tian adds, I need to get some sleep. Staying up late is bad for the skin, and I still need to rely on this face to get by. Standing beside him, Long Chiu Dao is speechless. Lazy is lazy. What's all this talk about bad skin affecting your ability to get by? You're quite at ease after assigning all these tasks. It's always easy for the leader to give orders, but the subordinates are the ones who have to run around. Sighing, Long Chiu Dao puts on the mask Xiao Tian gave him and heads to Mysterious Wealth Mountain City. Let me use his dead body to intimidate the people of Mysterious Wealth Mountain City. It will also let them know who saved them from their miserable situation. The next second, Long Chiu Dao displays his dragon aura, releasing a majestic and domineering dragon spirit. The hearts of everyone still fighting below are instantly shaken. Long Chiu Dao then announces to everyone, the criminal ringleader Jia Xingjing has been executed by my lord, the great deity Xiao Tian. In a small courtyard, Lu Guixiang, Shui Ruyan and others are staring blankly at the heavenly net mirror. Such a powerful dragon aura. Who is this masked man? Such a strong figure. Is he really just a follower of that previous supreme benevolent king of hell deity? Jia Xingjing, the head of the Jia family and the keeper of this second defense line, is he really dead? But if the battle is over, why hasn't Z brother come back yet? Just then, a stranger bursts through the door, loudly calling out for Shuarian. Hearing the familiar voice, Shuarian looks surprised. Esteemed purple emperor, why do you have Zhou Shindong's face? She embraces his arm. Let's go inside and talk. Once inside the courtyard, Shuefugui and others are confused. Daughter, who is this? Esteemed purple emperor quickly cancels his secret technique. After a burst of golden light, he rubs his sore face. This secret technique for changing one's appearance really hurts. Who came up with this? A masochist. Shuefugui then asks, son-in-law, why? Why did you change like this? I've never seen such a technique to change one's appearance before. Esteemed purple emperor scratches his head. Before I was rescued, I wasn't sure whether that supreme benevolent king of hell deity named Xiao Tian was friend or foe. To avoid revealing my identity, I had to change my appearance. Shuarian interjects. You met Xiao Tian, the powerful figure from Heavenly Palace? Not just met, he was the one who saved me. He even asked if my surname was Z. Shuarian then realizes, no wonder you had to change your appearance. Fortunately, you didn't reveal yourself. Did he really come to capture you? You? Esteemed Purple Emperor shakes his head. It doesn't seem like it. When I lied about my name, he seemed quite pleased that I wasn't a Z, and I also felt strangely close to him for some reason. Shuefugue finally explains, some people naturally make you
you feel close to them. Don't overthink it. This Xiao Tian is probably a young master from some major clan. Otherwise, how could he have such a powerful follower? Esteemed Purple Emperor nods. Alright, let's not worry about whether he's from some major family. We need to leave quickly. We can't stay in the mysterious Wealth Mountain range for long. Let's head to the Holy Demon Domain. Sometime later, within the Heavenly Palace, Xiao Tian is sound asleep and quite comfortable. Below him, a large group of rebels from the mysterious Wealth Mountain range are lined up, their faces bruised and swollen. Long Chiu Dao stands above them, reprimanding. I told you to stop, but you didn't listen. I had to step in and beat you to a pulp before you'd listen. How shameless are you? Nobody dares to breathe a word. We were just caught up in the fight with the garrison. We didn't even hear you shout to stop. Suddenly, Long Chiu Dao raises his hand, and everyone instinctively recoils. Long Chiu Dao clears his throat satisfactorily. Let's not beat around the bush. Lord Xiao has completely wiped out the Jia family. From now on, the mysterious Wealth Mountain range belongs to Lord Xiao. In the near future, it will be ruled by a power named the Great Flame Dynasty. Depending on territorial circumstances, some areas might be allocated to the Primordial Demon Kingdom, but generally, it will all be under the joint jurisdiction of the Empress Union. Long Chiu Dao then takes out a bunch of small books. These are the general rules of the Empress Union, and some governmental regulations. Familiarize yourselves with them, as you will assist me in governing the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range. Everyone takes a book and continues to listen to Long Chiu Dao. Remember, Lord Xiao tolerates no sand in his eyes. Crooked scoundrels will suffer terribly at his hands. You should know that Jia Jingjing was emotionally shattered before his death, begging for mercy with a face full of tears. The crowd is stunned. Mouth Sagape. What exactly did that supreme benevolent king of hell deity do to make Jia Jingjing break down like that? Long Chiu Dao stares back at the crowd. Do you have anything to say? No, no. Everyone shakes their heads and immediately begins reading the books in their hands. The only sound left is the flipping of pages. Soon someone exclaims, Great Flame Dynasty, Primordial Demon Kingdom, Empress Union. This is simply amazing. If we really govern the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range according to these books, it couldn't be better. Exactly. Good days for the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range are coming. Yes, those capable of overthrowing the Jia family aren't necessarily worse than them. Long Chiu Dao speaks at an opportune moment. In the next few days, we must work well together to sort out the affairs of the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range. We can't let Lord Xiao down. Take my advice. You can offend anyone but not Lord Xiao. After all, you wouldn't want to experience what it's like to be worse than dead, would you? Also, take these pills. For seven days, you won't need to eat, drink, or sleep. Use these seven days wisely to accomplish what Lord Xiao has assigned. Understood? Everyone stands at attention and responds loudly. Understood. Long Chiu Dao is extremely satisfied. Look at that spirit. Indeed, it's me who managed to train someone so well in such a short time. The next day, Xiao Tian wakes up, stretches comfortably, and goes outside to see that Long Chiu Dao has already managed to set the mysterious Wealth Mountain range in order so quickly. Impressive efficiency, he thinks. As for the rest, he has no idea how many days it will take to accomplish everything. Let him handle it. I'll just enjoy some leisure time exploring, eating, and drinking for a few days. But if the people need help, all they have to do is shout Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity, and I'll appear to rescue them. Today, he answers the people's call to come and eliminate bandits. As soon as the bandits see the familiar mask, they immediately flee in terror, yelling for their lives. How did they let the Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity out? Weren't his subordinates the ones who've been dealing with bandits for the past three days? Why is he here himself today? They have no sense of martial virtue. Unfortunately, no matter how much they plead and cry, it won't save their fallen hearts. Xiao Tian unleashes a single punch. The sheer energy of it not only annihilates all the bandits, but also levels the mountains. He clenches his fist and looks back. Wasn't that easy? A single punch takes care of the mountain bandits. It took you all three days, and you still couldn't handle it? Long Chiu Dao remains silent, having long grown accustomed to such feats. The others, however, widen their eyes in awe and terror. Fortunately, the populace bursts into cheerful applause and eagerly waves at Xiao Tian. Deciding not to berate his subordinates any further, Xiao Tian waves back at the crowd. Long Chiu Dao is numb to the spectacle. Children are gathering around Xiao Tian. Clearly, the man is popular. However, once Lord Xiao integrates the Hundred Flower Domain and Mysterious Wealth Mountain into the Holy Demon Realm, the cultivation level of Holy Demon Emperor Luo Tao Tian, who is connected to the Holy Demon Realm, is likely to skyrocket. Meanwhile, esteemed Purple Emperor and others are on a flying boat approaching the boundary of the Holy Demon Realm. Shue Fugui, standing at the bow of the boat, comments, This Holy Demon Realm looks enormous. Are mid-level worlds usually this large? Lu Guixiang chimes in, Not only that, but there seem to be fewer fragments of smaller worlds around. Esteemed Purple Emperor walks up to them. Based on Luo's guidance, this is undoubtedly the Holy Demon Realm. Once we pass through the boundary, everything will become clear. Soon, the guards inform them, After passing through the boundary, you'll see navigation markers. But remember, you can't pilot any void-flying spiritual tools within the city. To go to the primordial demon kingdom, turn left. For the Great Flame Dynasty, turn 
right. Everyone is puzzled. Turn right for the Great Flame Dynasty? What does that mean? Seeing them still confused, the guards impatiently urge. Why are you still standing here? You've completed the registration. Stop blocking the way. Moments later, they pass through the boundary and arrive inside the mainland. Shuefugue immediately feels the rich spiritual energy in the air. It's even denser than in many high-level worlds. This must also be in part thanks to the efforts of the Flower Head tribe. At this moment, Lu Guixiang suddenly interrupts. Now's not the time to be marveling at the spiritual energy. What's going on with this great flame dynasty? Wasn't it taken away by a powerful being? How did it end up in the holy demon realm? A steamed purple emperor shakes his head. I have no idea. Besides, the great flame dynasty in this holy demon realm might not even be ours. After all, humans do live in the holy demon realm. Perhaps Luo just allowed them to establish this dynasty for fun? Suddenly, Shuarin points in a direction, exclaiming, Look, everyone hastily looks up to see a giant sign on a floating island. Alright, let's not jump to conclusions. We'll see for ourselves what's going on. The flying boat then follows the directions and continues flying forward. Soon, the flying boat landed on the mountaintop. Everyone looked down at the bustling city below. Shuarin was astonished. It's truly the Great Flame Dynasty. But how is it in the Holy Demon Domain? Shuefugue asked. Are you saying that the territory of the Great Flame Dynasty, which should be in the Southern Wilderness Realm, appeared in the Holy Demon Domain? A steamed purple emperor was also baffled. Let's go. We should enter the city and check it out. Several of them walked on the main street, observing the passing crowd. It seems this place is not just an outpost, but also a trading post. At that moment, a steamed purple emperor suddenly stopped a carriage. Young man, my family, and I have just arrived here. We wish to go to the Great Flame Dynasty. May we accompany you on the way? This way we can look out for each other. Saying this, he took out a pouch of money. The young man immediately accepted it and agreed with a smile. On the way, everyone observed the unfamiliar infrastructure. A steamed purple emperor commented, This road is interesting, very convenient. It seems that the array inscribed in this official road enhances the six-hooved creatures pulling it. The young man proudly replied, You have keen eyes. This official road was commissioned by Minister Zhong. All of our Great Flame Dynasty's roads are like this now. With such roads, our lives have become much better. Even if traveling on foot, the arrays here can alleviate fatigue, helping people to move more effortlessly. A steamed purple emperor, catching on to the information, inquired, You mentioned Minister Zhong? Could the Prime Minister you speak of be named Zhong Yangming? The young man gave a steamed purple emperor a glance. You know the name of Minister Zhong? Well, after all, he is the Prime Minister of our Great Flame Dynasty. It's really him, a steamed purple emperor remarked with some nostalgia. Then, Shuarin from inside the carriage spoke up. Judging by your demeanor, you seem to be living well. You must have a good empress. Indeed, our Great Flame Empress Z is deeply respected and revered by all of us. Seeing the young man bowing distantly towards the palace, both the steamed purple emperor and Shuarin were reassured. It seems the empress of the Great Flame Dynasty is still Z Ruoyan, and she's safe. Shuefugue and Lu Guixiang were also thrilled, their mouths agape in excitement. We'll soon see our beloved granddaughter. Shuarin then asked the young man again. You all seem to hold her in high regard, don't you? The young man's face flushed with emotion. Of course, our empress works diligently and conscientiously. She has made our great flame dynasty prosper. Who wouldn't admire her? However, one cannot ignore the achievements of the prince behind the empress. The best prince in our world. Prince, the four of them were momentarily taken aback. What do you mean? Shuefugue, being more experienced and worldly, quickly regained his composure and asked the young man. It seems like you all greatly admire this prince. Without a second thought, the young man responded, naturally, without the prince, how could we have lived such good lives? If not for him, the empress would have likely faced dire consequences, and we might have died. The great flame dynasty would have disappeared long ago. Where would there be the united reign of the current empress? In these prosperous times we enjoy now, hearing this, both esteemed purple emperor and Shuarin were startled. Z Ruoyan nearly faced disaster. Esteemed purple emperor immediately inquired, what do you mean our empress almost died? What happened? The young man's eyes brightened. You've asked the right person. I was there when it happened. Back then, the Astral Pavilion and Eastern Flame Kingdom joined forces against us. Empress Xi stood alone against two foes, fighting against those body cultivators. Just when Empress Xi was about to be struck down, Empress Luo intervened, fighting side by side with Xi Ruoyan, thinking of his daughter's valiant efforts in battle. A steamed purple emperor felt a pang of pain in his heart. It was fortunate that he had been sincere and kind to his subjects, or they might have abandoned Xi Ruoyan in her crucial moment. Seeing him distressed, Shuarin quickly approached to comfort him. While all this remained unsaid, the young man continued. At that time, we were all scared and desperate, yet also furious. As we were preparing to fight to the death, the prince arrived. You might not understand the sentiment at that moment. The situation seemed hopeless. Everyone believed they wouldn't survive. The empress was fighting with a do-or-die attitude. But then, in that crucial moment, the prince transformed into a blazing fire from the distant horizon. Coming before us, with his own strength, he withstood everything, protected the empress, defended the great flame dynasty, and saved all of us. The young man paused and let out a sigh. In that battle, the prince used a 
secret technique. He sacrificed himself to save us all. I wonder how the prince's health is now. Shwarian stared blankly at the esteemed Purple Emperor. Such risks shouldn't have occurred in the first place. Why didn't the measures left behind by Elder Luo or the Shadow Guards come into play? Thankfully, everything is in the past now. She then turned her gaze back to the young man. I wonder what other achievements the prince has done that would be worth our admiration. Of course, there are many. The young man exclaimed with enthusiasm. Apart from the road infrastructure, there's the livestock on Great Flame Mountain, Great Flame Wine, and other products. All these initiatives were led by the prince to boost the development of Great Flame. He also set up various welfare institutions, and the list of his benevolent actions goes on. Once we enter the city, you'll see for yourselves. Oh, and speaking of the prince, there was an amusing incident during that battle at the Imperial City. The four of them leaned in with interest. Do tell. With a grin on his face, the young man continued. When the prince first made his appearance, he seemed to be hiding his identity and was wearing a ghost mask. How could the people not recognize him? When they all started shouting out his identity, the prince looked quite bashful. Hearing this, all four were taken aback. The esteemed purple emperor felt as if he was numb. A ghost mask? Are you kidding me? It has to be a coincidence. He shook his head in disbelief, trying to push away the unrealistic thoughts. Then he asked the young man, do you know the title or full name of this prince? Without hesitation, the young man pulled out a wooden carving. Of course, he is known as our supreme benevolent sugar baby deity Xiao Tian. Prince Xiao, Sir Xiao. The four of them were momentarily speechless, trying to process the peculiar title. Supreme benevolent, sugar baby, deity? What kind of name is that? Suddenly, Shue Fugue, upon hearing the term sugar baby, turned to look squarely at the esteemed purple emperor. The esteemed purple emperor looked immediately displeased. Father-in-law, why are you looking at me like that? Although I was frequently protected by Shue Ruyin when I was first at the Shue residence, I am still the founding emperor of our nation. Shue Ruyin, feeling slightly embarrassed, questioned the young man. That title doesn't sound quite right, does it? The young man, with evident pride, responded, Supreme Benevolent represents the prince's benevolence. Deity symbolizes his great power. As for Sugar Baby, it represents the prince's spirit and is also the motto of our Sugar Baby Association. Externally gentle but internally tough, persevering, promoting acts of kindness, and striving for world peace. Consider this, being a kept man or living off a woman is seen by many as a disgraceful act, a reflection of incompetence. But our prince is different. He redefines the concept. He has personally shown us that your social status doesn't determine your worth. Society's opinions and judgments don't determine anything either. Only you can define yourself. The young man's passionate words left the group silent and at a loss for words. The esteemed purple emperor even began to question his life choices. Why was I mocked for being taken care of by the Shui family? While Xiao Tian is revered and respected by the people, even when seemingly in a similar position, can one really elevate such a status with noble spirit? Is it all about inherent talent? Shui Ruyin tried to console him. It's all right. The Xiao Tian he's talking about may not be the same one we met at the mysterious Wealth Mountain range. Let's inquire more before jumping to conclusions. Just remember how you kept praising Xiao brother back then, saying how great he was and how he saved you. If it turns out to be the same person, referring to him like that would be so awkward. Just then, the group finally reached the southern border gateway. Meanwhile, within the palace, Xiao Yu were rushed into the imperial study to inform Zi Ruoyan, mother, there's news. The names of grandfather and grandmother have appeared at the border check. What? Zi Ruoyan's body stiffened, her face a mask of disbelief. Seeing this, Xiao Yu were spread her hands out, saying, mother, look. The next moment, Xiao Yu were reverted to her original form, and on her belly were clearly written the names of several individuals. Zi Ruoyan was taken aback. Esteemed purple emperor and Shui Ruyan are the names of my parents. Shui Fugui and Lu Gui Xiang are names mother once mentioned. They are the names of my grandparents. It seems unlikely that this is just a coincidence of shared names. Xiao Yu er had a smug expression, right? You only mentioned it once, and I remembered it immediately. Zi Ruoyan gently patted Xiao Yu er's head, praising, Xiao Yu er is truly remarkable. But Xiao Yu er could clearly see that Zi Ruoyan's expression was not one of excitement, deep longing and concern. Seeing the worry on Zi Ruoyan's face, Xiao Yu er quickly comforted her, Mother, don't worry. Zi Ruoyan took a deep breath, we can't conclude anything based solely on names. We need to see them in person and confirm their identities. With the current situation, we can't be sure that someone didn't get wind of this and is impersonating my parents. Xiao Yu er, do you have any safe methods to ensure their identity? Xiao Yu er raised an eyebrow, her face brimming with confidence. That's easy, Mother. You can release the authentic bloodline aura of the human emperor. When you come into contact with grandfather, if he releases the same bloodline aura, then it is surely him. After pondering for a moment, Zi Ruoyan replied, that's a good idea. Do you know where they are now? Xiao Yu er confidently said, they've just entered the southern gateway and haven't left yet. Zi Ruoyan smiled excitedly, good, let's go and meet them.
Meanwhile, as the esteemed Purple Emperor and his companions entered the city gates, they looked around the transformed surroundings and couldn't help but reflect. Back when I was Emperor, the South was quite desolate. In just a few years, a new city has flourished like this. It's impressive. Suddenly, Shuefugue pointed to a nearby structure and asked the young man, what is the purpose of that building? The young man smiled. That place is called a residential community. It's another innovation by Prince Xiao Tian. Moreover, the materials used there have been specially refined. A steamed purple emperor looked puzzled. Given that, are there enough resources to sustain it? The Great Flame Dynasty won't be financially strained, will it? The young man beamed with pride. Of course not. Both the treasuries of the Great Flame Dynasty and the Primordial Demon Kingdom are under Prince Xiao Tian's supervision. The prince himself has a knack for generating wealth, and both treasuries often receive his generous support. Everyone says that Prince Xiao Tian is truly the Empress's valuable partner. And see those buildings on either side? That's where our Living Off Others Association holds its events. They were personally overseen by the prince during their construction. The four of them looked at the nameplates on the buildings, momentarily speechless. They read, Southern Ever Blossoming Joyful Welfare Home, World's Best Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deities Institute of Light, Southern Gateway Branch. The young man continued excitedly, the one on the left provides shelter for orphans and the elderly, while the one on the right educates the children. The group became even more dumbfounded. While the intentions were commendable, couldn't they have chosen better names? Just then, a shout caught their attention. Mother, over there. As they looked up, they saw Z Royan suddenly yell, Imperial Aura Suppression. A steamed purple emperor gazed at his radiant daughter. Is that Z Royan? But before he could speak, Z Royan felt something amiss. This man's imperial aura is so feeble. Could he be an imposter? With that thought, Z Royan's anger surged. How dare you deceive me? You've got some nerve. Saying this, she released an even more intense pressure. Under the immense force, a steamed purple emperor knelt on one knee, coughing continuously. Inwardly, he thought, my daughter has grown so powerful. Unfortunately, I can't release my realm's aura. If I did and it affected even a single hair on her head, Shwarin would ensure I'd go bald right then and there. Luckily, Xiao Yu were suddenly interjected. Mother, if you continue like this, grandfather will be forced to the ground. Z Ruan paused, turning sharply to Xiao Yu -er. What did you say? Xiao Yu -er. Xiao Yu -er hurriedly explained. Mother, that's grandfather. The bloodline aura on him is genuine. Z Ruan was dumbfounded, but he seemed so weak. It's because you've been with father. Your bloodline has been strengthened a lot over time. Not just you. The aura from my second maternal grandfather would probably also be suppressed by my second mother. Xiao Yu explained. Z Ruan was flabbergasted and quickly withdrew her oppressive aura. Moments later, the group returned to the palace. The esteemed purple emperor sighed with relief, finally home. He teased Z Ruan. Dear daughter, why are you so silent now? You were quite majestic earlier. What happened? Why not release your bloodline aura again? It was so powerful that your old man almost knelt before you. Feeling embarrassed, Z Ruan didn't know how to respond. Suddenly, Shuarian slapped the esteemed purple emperor's shoulder. Why are you scolding her? Z Ruoyan didn't do it on purpose. It's your fault for not being strong enough to withstand your daughter's aura. And you have the audacity to be angry? Scratching his head sheepishly, the esteemed purple emperor tried to defend himself. It wasn't like that, Shuarian. I was just trying to lighten the mood because Z Ruoyan seemed embarrassed. Shuarian wasn't in the mood to listen to his explanations. She shot him a sharp glance, and the esteemed purple emperor immediately wilted, mumbling an apology. Seeing this, Shuarian's face softened, full of motherly love, as she opened her arms to Z Ruoyan. Z Ruoyan, overwhelmed with emotion, Z Ruoyan ran into her arms. Mother, the two embraced tightly. You must have faced many hardships over the years, but mother is back now. Everything is okay. I've always known you to be strong-willed. If you want to cry, let it out. Vent your feelings. If anyone bullied you in the past, tell mother, and we'll teach them a lesson. Z Ruoyan, feeling a wave of happiness, closed her eyes. No, mother, gently stroking her daughter's hair, Shuarian remarked, I never imagined and you'd grow up so fast. You've done an outstanding job as empress, far better than your father. The esteemed purple emperor felt numb. Why does it always have to relate back to me? Suddenly, Z Ruoyan's expression changed. Following her gaze, Shuarian noticed two women approaching slowly. Z Ruoyan, suppressing her feelings, asked, How long have you been here? However, Luo Feng Yuan and Bai Qing looked like they were trying to hold back their laughter. Luo Feng Yuan even mimicked Z Ruoyan by leaning into Bai Qing's chest and saying, Mother, seeing their mocking gestures, Z Ruoyan was infuriated. Luo Feng Yuan continued to provoke, your reunion with Uncle Z and Aunt Shue was truly a sight to see. I've already instructed Xiao Yu to record it all with a formation. Once Xiao brother returns, before she could finish, Z Ruoyan roared and lunged at her. However, Luo Feng Yuan dodged with a teasing smile, looking back at Z Ruoyan with a mischievous grin. And just like that, the human empress Z Ruoyan and the demon empress Luo Feng Yuan were at it again. Bai Qing turned to the esteemed purple emperor and the others, offering some snacks with excitement. Once on the esteemed purple emperor and the rest were stunned, quickly refusing. Bai Qing shrugged, taking out a piece for herself. She munched and said,
said. Don't worry about them. They spar frequently. Oh, and she's Uncle Luo's daughter, Luo Feng Yuan, the current holy demon empress of the primordial demon kingdom. The esteemed purple emperor inquired, isn't brother Luo in the holy demon domain? Bai Qing replied, still chewing her snack. Uncle Luo is on the battlefield. He's likely been captured and is in mortal danger. We're preparing to rescue him. With Uncle Z back, our chances of succeeding are higher. Shui Rian patted Bai Qing on the shoulder. Child, tell us what happened, okay? Bai Qing nodded in agreement. Meanwhile, in the endless void, Xiao Tian finally reached his destination. He pointed to the realm world ahead and asked Hua Kai Tu, is this your hometown? Just as Hua Kai Tu was about to nod, Xiao Tian abruptly grabbed his and Wang Chiodao's hands, gearing up to rush straight in. Suddenly, Xiao Tian halted in his tracks, causing bewilderment among the others. What's going on? Why did we stop? Xiao Tian turned to Hua Kai Tu, has the heart of the world of your hundred flower domain formed? Hua Kai Tu shook his head in confusion. No, Long Chiodao elaborated, forming the heart of the world isn't easy. It requires secret methods to gather the rules of a world, and the execution of such methods is extremely challenging. Our clan leader once tried to form the heart of the world, but found the difficulty too overwhelming and gave up. Xiao Tian smiled mysteriously. This will be interesting then. The heart of the world of your hundred flower domain has already been formed. Suddenly, the system puppy alerted Xiao Tian, respected master. The hundred flower domain's heart of the world has successfully formed. Moreover, the world barrier is covered in formations. If we rush indirectly, we might alert them. Furthermore, this domain world in front of us seems to be under erosion. In 15 days, the hundred flower domain will decline to a lower domain world. Upon hearing this, a surge of fury overtook Xiao Tian. Why does it feel like the entire universe is conspiring against me? The hundred flower domain was to be merged into the holy demon domain. And yet, someone is trying to steal it. Is there no law and order left? Sensing Xiao Tian's agitation, Long Chiodao quickly asked, Lord Xiao, what's wrong? Gritting his teeth, Xiao Tian growled, someone is trying to steal what's rightfully mine. Without hesitation, he once again dragged the other two, heading straight for the world barrier, thinking, even if they detect our intrusion, what of it? Shameless thieves, dare to face me head on. However, as soon as they entered the barrier, they were blinded by an intense luminosity. Damn, it's so bright. Is your homeland always this dazzling? Hua Kai Tu looked around, equally puzzled. My lord, the hundred flower domain wasn't like this before. Xiao Tian became even more perplexed. Can this world change its color on its own? No, this place used to just look like a regular forest, and everyone lived near Flower God City. Hua Kai Tu explained. Xiao Tian interrupted him. Let's leave the details for later. First, take us to where you used to live. Also, stop calling me my lord from now on. Hua Kai Tu looked at Xiao Tian in surprise. How should I address you then? After a brief pause, Xiao Tian said, just call me King of Hell Deity. Long Chiodao, on the other hand, was speechless. He thought, how much does Lord Xiao fear being called Supreme Benevolent Sugar Baby Deity? Elsewhere, in the core region of the Hundred Flower Domain, the Flower God City was currently entangled and bound by countless vines. The Flower Head Clan's leader, Hua Xia, was also restrained by these vines, kneeling on the ground, feeling utterly humiliated. These vines were continuously infusing them with power. Unable to bear it any longer, Hua Xia demanded answers from the hooded figure before him. Why are you slaughtering our people and forcefully pumping this power into us? What are you trying to achieve? With a slight raise of his hand, Di Xinlu signaled a vine which immediately slapped Hua Xia across the face. Following this, Di Xinlu clenched his hand, and vines instantly muzzled Hua Xia. Internally fuming but helpless, Hua Xia seethed at the situation. Not only had Di Xinlu effortlessly formed the heart of the world of the Hundred Flower Domain, even the Flower Divine Ancient Tree was obedient to him. How detestable! Just then, there was a sudden disturbance from the heart of the world. Di Xinlu quickly realized, someone has forcibly penetrated the barrier of this mid-tier world. Someone with such ability must be at least of the 20th tier. Could it be a reinforcement called upon by the escaped Flower Head tribe? Speaking this, Di Xinlu snapped his fingers and ordered, send someone to investigate. Immediately, a long-haired individual dressed in a black robe appeared, kneeling and calling out, Master. Di Xinlu began examining a world map. It's likely around the peaceful landing area of the Hundred Flower Domain. Investigate for any suspicious beings, be it the Flower Head tribe or outsiders. If you find any suspicious entities, eliminate them immediately. The subordinate confidently displayed their weapon. I will ensure they meet their end silently and painlessly. Di Xinlu, not doubting her capabilities at all, smiled maliciously. Then let me thank you in advance on behalf of the intruder for your kindness. At this moment, in the core region of the Hundred Flower Domain's Flower God City, a towering ancient tree stood majestically at the center. Xiao Tian, accompanied by Long Chiodao and Hua Kai Tu, slowly approached the base of the tree. Taking in the refreshing scent of the Flower God Tree, Xiao Tian remarked, This tree smells quite pleasant. If it was turned into skewers to grill meat from the Great Flame Farm, I wonder if it would taste better. Suddenly, several guards appeared behind the trio. Peaceful Landing City's guard force is here. Who are you? Stay away from our Flower God's offspring tree. One of them demanded. Surprised, Xiao Tian turned around and noticed the serious expression.
expressions on their faces. It seems even the city guards are in a constant state of alert. The situation in the entire Hundred Flower Domain isn't looking optimistic. Recognizing the urgency, Hua Kai Tu quickly removed his mask. Recognizing him, the guards looked shocked. Young Lord, weren't you out of the Hundred Flower Domain? Why have you returned? Waving his hand, Hua Kai Tu replied, It's a long story, but I've returned on important business. These two gentlemen are esteemed guests I've invited to save our Hundred Flower Domain. This is Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity, Lord Xiao Tian, and beside him is one of the members of the Heavy Holy Dragon Cavalry, Mr. Long Chodao of Dragon Mound. Immediately, the guards kneeled in respect. Greetings, esteemed guests. Xiao Tian motioned for them to rise, then pointed at the Flower God's Offspring Tree. Can this Flower God's Offspring Tree be turned into skewers for grilling? Or perhaps I can take the whole thing with me? Hearing this, even Hua Kai Tu was taken aback. Lord Xiao, choose your words carefully. This Flower God's Offspring Tree is grown from a branch of our revered Flower Head Tribe's Divine Ancient Tree. To turn it into a skewer would be a grave insult, and could invoke the wrath of the Flower Divine Ancient Tree. Xiao Tian looked puzzled. What do you mean by reverence and punishment? It's just a piece of wood. Why make such a fuss? And by its name alone, it sounds like it's made for perfect grilling skewers. The guards were utterly flabbergasted. Ever since the turmoil in the Hundred Flower Domain, the Flower Divine Ancient Tree had seemingly withdrawn its protection over the Flower Head Tribe. There were even incidents where the Flower God's offspring tree destroyed its own cities. As expected, the offspring tree began to shake violently. Their minds went blank in horror. This is it. Peaceful landing city will be destroyed by the flower god's offspring tree. Looking up at the ancient tree that appeared on the verge of a violent outburst, Xiao Tian commented, Impressive. Can this tree attack people too? Seeing the swift tree branches approaching him, Xiao Tian rolled up his sleeves. Come on then, let's see what you've got. Hua Kai Tu exclaimed in fear, Lord Xiao, be careful. But the next moment, everyone was dumbfounded. What the hell is going on? On. They watched as the branches kept shaking, and wooden sticks the size of skewers kept falling down. The tree even considerately tied them up with its leaves, and presented them respectfully to Xiao Tian. Unable to contain himself, Xiao Tian praised, Marvelous, it would be a pity to cut down such a tree. Hua Kai Tu, still recovering from the shock, remarked, Thank goodness, I had already known about Lord Zhao's power, so this is still within my expectations. He turned his gaze to the three guards, who were so stunned that they couldn't speak. Is this the flower god's offspring tree I know? Where's its pride? This has to be fake. Seizing the moment when everyone was still in disbelief, Xiao Tian signaled Long Chiodao with his eyes, implying that it was his turn to step in. Understanding the cue, Long Chiodao cleared his throat and addressed the people of the Flower Head Tribe. Our supreme benevolent king of hell deity, Lord Xiao Tian, firmly believes that hardships will eventually pass. He will definitely help the Hundred Flower Domain overcome its challenges. The reason why your flower god's offspring tree is so close to Lord Xiao is because it also knows this. Whispering to the ancient tree, he added, if you don't want to get chopped down, cooperate. The next moment, the huge flower god's offspring tree standing in the city began to tremble. Its crown rustled and continuously shed bright green tender leaves which, under the influence of spiritual energy, became dazzlingly colorful. The onlooking crowd was astounded. So powerful. Who exactly is this supreme benevolent king of hell deity, Xiao Tian, that he can make the flower god's offspring tree submit to him? I heard he was invited by the young lord. Does this mean our hundred flower domain is saved? Look, the flower god's offspring tree is shaking so much to please Lord Xiao that it's going bald. Long Chiodao, observing the hope growing among the people, continued, Lord Xiao came here perhaps to use the Flower Head Tribe to purify the spiritual energy of the Holy Demon Domain. But for the entire Hundred Flower Domain, Lord Zhao's act of coming to their rescue is the ray of light they've seen in their darkest despair. At this point, Hua Kai Tu told the two, My father is in the City Lord's Mansion, Lord Xiao, let me lead you there first. Xiao Tian nodded slightly, lead the way. Moments later, at the City Lord's Mansion, Hua Kai Tu pushed open the door. Upon seeing the scene inside, his face turned pale from shock. Both Xiao Tian and Long Chiodao wore expressions of surprise. Hua Jingxin was bound by a vine, which was continuously drawing power from him. Witnessing his father's weakened state, Hua Kai Tu cried out in alarm and rushed forward, but hesitated, fearing that any rash actions might hurt his father. Hua Jingxin looked up, surprise evident on his face. Why are you back? Hua Kai Tu gritted his teeth. What's going on? Can't the vine be removed? It can't be pulled out. Child, this is the root of the flower divine ancient tree. How can it be moved? Hearing this, Tears welled up in Hua Keda's eyes. Father, I've been unfilial. I shouldn't have left the Hundred Flower Domain. Hua Jingxin became instantly furious. Nonsense. Leaving the Hundred Flower Domain was your filial duty. You all are young and in your prime, and by leaving, you can help our clan grow and expand. Suddenly, Xiao Tian's voice interrupted. Sorry to interrupt. As Xiao Tian placed his hand on the vine, Hua Jingxin froze, wondering what he was about to do. In the next moment, with a gentle tug, Xiao Tian severed the vine. The broken vine quickly retracted, but Xiao Tian grabbed it and said, did something wrong and now trying to run? Think it's that easy? As he exerted more force, the vine shattered and transformed into a pure
pure, luminous green glow. Hua Jingxin looked at his hand in astonishment, and his previously weakened appearance began to rejuvenate. The vines on the ground retreated and vanished as if terrified. Xiao Tian dusted his hands and said to Hua Kai Tu, There, now the father-son reunion is complete. You two can have a proper conversation. Hua Jingxin was utterly perplexed. The flower god's offspring tree's vine was dealt with just like that. Where did my son find such a powerful individual? Seeing his father still in shock, Hua Kai Tu quickly reminded him, Father. The call snapped Hua Jingxin back to reality, and the power within him surged, instantly dispelling the binding on him. Standing up, Hua Jingxin bowed to Xiao Tian and said, Thank you for saving my life. Xiao Tian waved it off. We're all on the same side. It was a small matter. Hua Jingxin was momentarily taken aback, thinking to himself, Has my son already recruited such a formidable person to our side? And so quickly at that, he shook off the thought, deciding, It doesn't matter. The minor details are irrelevant. The pressing matter is to address the situation in the Hundred Flower Domain. With that in mind, he spoke again, esteemed guest, this isn't the right place for a conversation, shall we move to the inner hall? I'll have refreshments prepared. Xiao Tian nodded in agreement, sounds good. Hua Jingxin led the way, guiding them to the inner hall. After a short while, they were seated around a dining table. Only then did Hua Kai Tu address his father. Father, you have no idea what I went through after leaving the Hundred Flower Domain and arriving at the Mysterious Wealth Mountain Range. The guardians of the Mysterious Wealth Mountain Range were absolutely unreasonable. If it weren't for Lord Zhao's intervention, I would have been killed by their blades. Hearing this, Hua Jingxin rose to his feet and bowed, esteemed guest, I thank you again for your timely aid. Should you ever need anything in the future, please do not hesitate to ask. After expressing his gratitude, Hua Jingxin took a drink from his cup, finishing it in one go. Xiao Tian waved it off with a smile, no need for formalities. My reason for coming was to save the Hundred Flower Domain. A hopeful expression appeared on Hua Jingxin's face. With your assistance, perhaps the Hundred Flower Domain truly stands a chance. However, the current situation seems a bit different from what Hua Kai Tu previously described. Please, enlighten me on what exactly has transpired. Hua Jingxin's expression turned bitter as he began his account. Not long after we sent Hua Kai Tu and the others away, the entirety of the Hundred Flower Domain was sealed. The entire domain was shrouded in a vast array, preventing any entry or exit. This resulted in the domain being enveloped in golden light, never experiencing night. This constant illumination changed things, with the Flower Divine Ancient Tree no longer protecting us, but revolting and attacking, killing our clansmen. Everything shifted when a figure in a black robe appeared. He simply placed his hand on the ancient tree, and somehow pacified it. At first, we believed we were saved. However, to our horror, the tribal chiefs and elders were soon ensnared by the rampant vines and sealed inside the ancient temple. Those of us city lords with weaker abilities were bound by the flower god's offspring tree's vines, and drained of our energy. Our people were killed by the vines. We were confined in the city lord's mansion like livestock, while the chiefs and elders remained sealed, their fates unknown. Long Chiodao, having listened to the story, was puzzled. He wondered why the mysterious figure in the black robe had acted in such a manner and where all the drained energy had been channeled. Xiao Tian, however, was wholly engrossed in the food before him. This food is absolutely delightful, though it's all vegetarian. It's even more savory than meat dishes. I should get Zhong Yangming to learn these recipes. Unbeknownst to him, both Hua Kai Tu and Hua Jingxin were looking at him with raised eyebrows, their expressions a mix of amusement and disbelief. It was up to Long Chiu Dao to gently prod him, Lord Xiao. It seems this food suits your tastes quite well. Startled, Xiao Tian cleared his throat, attempting to regain his composure. Ah, I was just pondering. How are you so certain that both the Flower Divine Ancient Tree and Flower God's Offspring Tree were under the control of the figure in the black robe? Hua Jingxin recalled the scene, when both the Flower Divine Ancient Tree and Flower God's Offspring Tree were under the control of the robed figure. They were enveloped in a layer of golden light. The patterns flowing on this golden light matched exactly with the patterns on the golden horns atop the robed figure's head. Can you visualize the culprit's appearance? Xiao Tian inquired. Certainly, Lord Xiao. Watch. Above Hua Jingxin, flowers started swirling, channeling spiritual energy, which then coalesced into a silhouette. After a quick comparison, Puppy informed Xiao Tian, Master, it's indeed the ancient god tribe. Xiao Tian couldn't help but snort disdainfully. For a tribe with such a grandiose name, their actions are petty and trivial. He then addressed Hua Jingxin seriously. Now that I understand, let's eat up. We need to be well fed to catch the culprits. Hua Jingxin bowed in agreement, as you say, esteemed guest. Elsewhere, Jing Wuxing, an assassin dispatched by the robed figure, was lurking in the city. Being a professional killer meant hiding in the shadows, striking down enemies without a trace. Relying on information provided by the vines of the flower divine ancient tree, that so-called supreme benevolent king of hell deity, Xiao Tian, should be here. But where is this city's flower god's offspring tree? Looking up, she was stunned by what she saw. Is this the flower god's offspring tree? Why is it bald? Just then, passing citizens from the flower head tribe were discussing among themselves. Do you think this supreme benevolent king of hell deity Xiao Tian can really solve our problems? I'm not 
sure, but he does seem reliable. Haven't you noticed the flower god's offspring tree went bald trying to impress him? Indeed, it's such a rare sight. This is the first time we've ever seen such a thing. Upon hearing the conversation, Jing Wuxing revealed a subtle smile, thinking, it seems that fate is indeed favoring me. I never expected to get a confirmed lead this easily. Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity Xiao Tian, enjoy your peace before nightfall. Come nighttime, Jing Wuxing used a secret technique that rendered her invisible. The guards at the entrance couldn't detect her presence. Once inside the mansion, she gently swung both arms, extending her inherent black bone blades without making a sound. Meanwhile, the room echoed with cheerful banter as a group was raising their glasses in a toast. Jing Wuxing slowly stepped into the room, approaching Xiao Tian from behind, raising her bone blade. To die painlessly is the greatest kindness I can grant you. Be grateful, Xiao Tian. However, just as she was about to strike, a sense of unease halted her. Everything felt too easy. From the moment she entered the city and obtained information, she was quickly led to this so-called Xiao Tian. Clearly, someone had orchestrated these events. Was it to divert her attention? To make her believe that Xiao Tian was the main target when, in fact, Long Chiodao fits the description my master provided. He's the one operating covertly, investigating without a trace. While this Xiao Tian is but a decoy to misdirect potential assassins. What a clever ruse. What brilliant misdirection. In an instant, Jing Wuxing shifted her focus towards Long Chiodao. Detecting the sudden change, Xiao Tian looked at Long Chiodao with a caring gaze, causing confusion in Long Chiodao's heart. Why is Lord Xiao looking at me with such an expression? Without explaining, Xiao Tian simply turned his head and chuckled. I've always told you, always be wary of others. Before Long Chiodao could even comprehend the meaning of those words, Jing Wuxing's bone blade swiftly moved towards him, slicing through his dragon spirit form. With a loud boom, Long Chiodao exploded, his echoing question resonating in the room. What the hell? What's going on? Watching Long Chiodao slowly dissipate, Jing Wuxing hadn't anticipated such an easy mission. She immediately initiated a teleportation spell, thinking of making a swift exit. Just as she stepped into the teleportation circle, a sudden realization struck her. What she had just killed felt insubstantial, not a creature of flesh and blood. Before she could ponder further, a large hand reached in from outside the circle, grabbing her by the shoulder and yanking her out. Caught off guard, Jing Wuxing was thrown to the ground. Xiao Tian firmly placed his foot on her chest, berating her. You dared to harm my tool person. Ahem. My trusty steward in such a gruesome manner and still think you can escape? Before Jing Wuxing could utter a word, she felt immense pressure on her chest, causing her to cough up blood. Xiao Tian glared at her. I didn't permit you to speak. Jing Wuxing trembled, realizing her situation was dire. Hua Jingshen and Hua Kai Tu also approached, asking, Master, who is she? And what about Elder Long Chiodao? Xiao Tian smiled reassuringly. Stay calm. It has nothing to do with you. The guards were no match for an assassin of the 20th tier. As for Long Chiodao, before Xiao Tian could finish, Long Chiodao had already reformed. After taking a deep breath, Long Chiodao recognized the woman on the ground. She's from the Mist Blade tribe. Xiao Tian looked puzzled. You know of her? Long Chiodao replied, Yes, my lord. The Mist Blade tribe is renowned for its assassination skills. They possess extraordinary talents and are shrouded in a black mist, allowing them to effortlessly hide in the shadows. Apart from this, they have inherent bone blades that grow stronger with their abilities. Even if damaged, these blades slowly heal. After listening, Xiao Tian pointed at Jing Wuxing and paused. I purposely didn't intervene when she tried to assassinate you, as a lesson for you. I've told you before, always be wary of others. You always console me, saying I overthink, believing not everyone in the world harbors ill intentions. Now tell me, do you know her? Do you have any grudges against her? I thought your long life would have given you insight into the treacherous nature of people. You're still so naive. Fortunately, this assassin was incompetent. What if a more skilled killer had come and raised peaceful landing city to the ground? Jing Wuxing's mental state was on the verge of breaking. Xiao Tian was the assassination target mentioned by her master, and his strength was even more formidable than she had imagined. He dares to say, I'm not a competent assassin. What kind of professional assassin could unleash their full power and destroy an entire city with a single airborne strike? That's not an assassin. That's a berserker. At that moment, Xiao Tian's voice resounded. See that? Tears of regret. Long Chiodao, noticing the tear at the corner of Jing Wuxing's eye, scratched his head in confusion. Master Xiao, what does she regret? She regrets her lack of skill. She's ashamed of tarnishing the reputation of the assassins. However, there's an old saying that a prodigal who returns is more precious than gold. Since she seems remorseful, I'll give her a chance. He extended his hand towards Jing Wuxing, but Jing Wuxing shouted defiantly, to hell with that. I wasn't aiming for Long Chiodao. You were my real target. I simply mistook him for you. I am the top-ranked young assassin of the Mist Blade tribe. You foolish. Before she could finish her sentence, there was a sharp sound, and blood splattered everywhere. Jing Wuxing's life was extinguished. Xiao Tian calmly dusted off his hands. Even on the brink of death, she tries to deceive and spread lies. I gave her an opportunity, and she wasted it. Keeping her alive would have been a mistake. However, it was too late. With her dying breath, Jing Wuxing had loudly declared her target, the echoes of her voice still reverberating within the room. Cold sweat dripped down Long Chiu 
Shodao's forehead. This Mist Blade tribe member really has a sharp tongue. Of all people to insult, she chose Master Xiao. Seriously, she met a swift end, but we might face repercussions. Hua Jingshan and his son pretended they hadn't heard a thing. After a prolonged silence, Xiao Tian suddenly turned with a smile. This individual was cunning. She deliberately slandered us with her dying words, hoping we'd hastily destroy the evidence. This is an attempt to divert our investigative focus. Do you think my analysis is accurate? Upon hearing Xiao Tian's words, Long Chiodao hurriedly replied with a bow, Master Xiao, your analysis is very insightful. Not only that, but her last words were clearly intended to provoke and enrage you, hoping the secrets she held would be forever hidden. We must not fall for her ruse. Hearing this, Hua Kai too was taken aback. Wow, is that even possible? Elder Dragon Mound, who stands by Master Zhao's side, is truly wise. His words are so profound. I can't be left behind in this. Thinking quickly, Hua Kai too added, with my limited knowledge and understanding, I would have remained clueless if not for Master Xiao exposing the plot. Hua Jingxin turned to his son, surprised. What's gotten into my son? Since when did he start speaking such nonsense? Are they even discussing the same matter? Hua Kai too quickly hinted to his father. Father, didn't you hear the assassin insulting Master Xiao before her death? Say something, anything, to soothe Master Zhao's emotions. Seeing this, Hua Jingxin quickly replied, I feel the same way. Thankfully, I realized it in time. It's all thanks to Master Zhao's formidable capabilities. A rank 20 powerhouse was simply crushed with ease. Observing their cooperation, Xiao Tian didn't further press the matter. He stared at the spot where Jing Wuxing's body had disappeared. After a while, Xiao Tian sighed softly. Why did she push me? What good comes from forcing me to unleash my suppressed powers? The next moment, Xiao Tian suddenly released his power. His eyes became incredibly clear. So these are the specific energy signatures of the Hundred Flower Domain? But why are there conflicts arising beneath the ground over Jing Wuxing's body? Turning to the trio, Xiao Tian decided to sort this data information into his internal system. With the system in place, why should he strain himself analyzing? Quickly, numerous pieces of information flowed into Xiao Tian's internal puppy system, receiving Hundred Flower Domain data. Please wait. After a brief moment, the system responded, information received successfully, master, all set, rubbing his temples. I'm really not good at fully opening my senses to receive external information. The influx of details is overwhelming, causing a headache. Thankfully, I have the system to help process it. Xiao Tian began to read aloud, after the members of the Mist Blade tribe die, the remaining energy from their flesh and blood has been completely absorbed by the roots of the flower divine ancient tree, and the peaceful landing city's flower god's offspring tree. Hua Jingxin was taken aback, the flower divine ancient tree, after our sacred tree was controlled, it wanted to devour flesh and blood? Xiao Tian nodded. Exactly. The extensive root system of this sacred tree spans the entirety of the hundred flower domain, constantly drawing nutrients from this world to fortify itself. If your ancestors hadn't taken branches from the so-called sacred tree when it was still young and planted them in various cities to compete against it, your tribe would have vanished long ago. Hua Jingxin felt a chill run down his spine. So, the flower divine ancient tree isn't protecting our flower god tribe, but rather exploiting us. But Master Xiao, Hua Jingxin tried to reason, from birth, members of our tribe have been blessed by the ancient tree. There have been numerous benefits. How can this be? Xiao Tian interrupted. Want to know why? He placed his hand on Hua Keita's head, abruptly pulling off the flower that grew there. Hua Kai Tu was in shock. Why is my head bleeding? Hua Jingxin panicked. Master, in our flower head tribe, removing our head flower can be fatal. Blood still oozing from his head. Hua Kai Tu stared bewildered. Master Xiao, is there something wrong with our tribe's head flowers? From the flower, Xiao Tian extracted a fruit. Eat this. Hua Jingxin stared, dumbfounded. There's a fruit inside my son's head flower, but when our tribe members died in the past, their flowers wilted without such a fruit. A moment later, realization hit Hua Jingxin, the flower divine ancient tree, the flower god's offspring tree. So, when Master Xiao mentioned exploitation and parasitism, he meant this. No wonder children blessed by the vines, who grow these head flowers, live healthy lives, while those who aren't blessed die tragically young. The so-called blessings, the flowers that sprout from the top of our heads, they're actually parasitic. Are the premature deaths of unblessed children caused by the flower divine ancient tree, all to make us believe only the blessed children can survive without harm? At that moment, Hua Kai Tu took the fruit, bowed slightly, and said, Master Xiao, thank you. Without hesitation, he swallowed the fruit whole. The next second, intense flames erupted from Hua Kai Tu, so fierce that even Hua Jingxin struggled against their force. In alarm, he quickly asked Xiao Tian, Master Xiao, what's happening? Xiao Tian remained calm. Destruction comes before renewal. Be patient. It seems that the flower divine ancient tree's blessing indeed drew from your tribe's essence. Now, that essence is returning. As his words settled, Hua Kai Tu underwent a profound transformation. His hair grew rapidly, and a fresh, unique life force emerged from within the flames. It was as if a distinctive life was being nurtured and birthed. Simultaneously, the flower god's offspring tree released a flurry of new leaves that danced in the air, enveloping Hua Kai Tu until he was encased in a cocoon. His vitality
vitality intensified, and soon after, the cocoon burst open, revealing a completely transformed Hua Kai Tu. His handsome face was now strikingly different, and his entire demeanor had changed. Moments later, Hua Kai Tu slowly opened his eyes. Hua Jingxian was left in awe. My goodness, is this strikingly handsome young man really my son? Yet, Hua Kai Tu spoke with a calm voice. Master Xiao, with the essence restored, I've gained inherited memories. However, over the past years, the flower divine ancient tree's interference led to a loss in our lineage's memories. Xiao Tian chuckled. Interesting, can you still produce flowers on your head? Hua Kai Tu waved his hand, and a flower bloomed atop his head once again. Xiao Tian quietly thought, impressive. His natural air purifier is still functioning. Hua Kai Tu then shared with Xiao Tian, our tribe is the flower god tribe. Based on the fragmented memories, it seems we originated from an ancient, powerful race. We possess the means to cultivate the flower god tree, and have an innate ability to suppress it with our bloodline. Perhaps this is why the flower divine ancient tree secretly pilfered the essence of our tribe's bloodline. Seeing his confident demeanor, Xiao Tian muttered under his breath, I should have waited for the air purification to complete before aiding their recovery. Oh well, consider it a good deed. With that thought, he gestured for Hua Jingxian to come closer, beckoning with a finger. Come, extend your head. Soon enough, Hua Jingxian underwent a similar transformation. Observing the appearances of the two, Xiao Tian exclaimed, My goodness, is everyone from the Flower God tribe this good looking? What a pity. The old Flower Head tribe appearance was quite interesting, especially since they could purify the air. Turning to Long Chiu Dao, he asked, Have you ever heard of the Flower God tribe? Long Chiu Dao shook his head, Never. Xiao Tian continued, Do you think those resembling the ancient God tribe came to the Hundred Flower Domain for the Flower Divine Ancient Tree, or for the Flower God tribe? A look of surprise crossed Long Chiu Dao's face. Master Xiao, you're not suggesting the ancient God tribe did all this to target you? It's as surprising as the sun rising from the west. However, the next moment, Xiao Tian spoke again, This ancient God tribe must be dealt with. They dared send assassins after me and tried to steal my Hundred Flower Domain. Domain. Truly despicable. Moreover, if they strike you, they strike me. Don't worry, any resentment you hold for being attacked, I'll settle it on your behalf. There's no need to feel sad or upset, I've got this. Long Chiu Dao felt overwhelmed. Alright, I spoke too soon, I apologize. My mistake. After all the twists and turns, it's still Master Zhao's persecution theory. But could we please not mention the part where I was attacked? At that moment, Hua Kai Tu chimed in, Master Xiao, what should we do next? Xiao Tian, pulling out a chair and sitting down, said, First, transform all members of the flower head tribe and peaceful landing city back to their rightful appearance. You can handle this task. Once I've eaten, drunk, and had a rest, I'll head to the flower divine ancient tree. Also, keep a watchful eye on the flower god's offspring tree. Long Chiu Dao nodded, understood, Master Xiao. I'll document the changes and effects within peaceful landing city once the entire flower head tribe is restored to the flower god tribe and observe the impact on the flower god's offspring tree. Elsewhere, the sacred flower of the flower divine ancient tree was radiating a blinding light, a unique power constantly circulated around the sacred flower. Di Xinlu's face was filled with excitement. The divine fruit is finally about to ripen. What a great start! Suddenly, the flower divine ancient tree began to rumble. Tied up nearby, the flower head tribe chief, Hua Xia, looked puzzled. The flower divine ancient tree has always been calm. It only once rebelled when it was controlled by the rogue figure. Why is it acting up now? An impatient Di Xinlu shouted, quiet down. No sooner had he spoken than the flower divine ancient tree ceased its disturbance. It reached out a twig, gently winding around Di Xin Xin Lu's wrist, conveying information to him. Di Xin Lu was taken aback. Jing Wuxing is dead? Hua Xia was stunned. That fearsome assassin has lost his life? Is the intruder who suddenly entered the Hundred Flower Domain so powerful? Moments later, Di Xin Lu shook off the twig of the Flower Divine Ancient Tree, pacing back and forth anxiously. The secret of the Flower Divine Ancient Tree parasitizing the Flower Head Tribe has been discovered. The Flower Head Tribe has been freed from the parasitic state and restored to the Flower God Tribe. They plan to come and inspect tomorrow? How did this happen? They'll be here tomorrow, but the Divine Divine fruit isn't ripe yet. Consuming an immature divine fruit won't enhance my cultivation. What a waste. The formation of the divine fruit must not be disturbed. Perhaps I should make the first move and try to annihilate them. Though doing so might worsen my injuries. Consuming a fully cultivated divine fruit will make everything right again. While pondering, Di Xinlu noticed the odd expressions on the faces of Hua Xia and the others nearby. Their eyes were blank, as if in shock. Why are they looking at me like that? The next moment, a footstep sounded behind Di Xinlu. Xiao Tian, taking a bite of the divine fruit fruit in his hand, inquired, this fruit is quite tasty, do you have more? Di Xinlu was flabbergasted, what the hell is going on? Xiao Tian had somehow appeared behind him, holding a half-eaten divine fruit, chewing it with relish. Long Chiu Dao asked curiously, Master Xiao, is the fruit really that delicious? Yes, the taste is fantastic, would you like to try? Xiao Tian offered pieces to both Long Chiu Dao and Hua Kai Tu, as they placed the fruit into their mouths, they were immediately overwhelmed by its exquisite taste, feeling as if they were floating in ecstasy. Suddenly, Xiao Tian spoke up, why is that after
after eating this. I only find it delicious and feel nothing else. It looks like something of value. Shouldn't consuming it boost one's strength or fortify the body? Long Chiu Dao, stroking his beard, speculated, it's probably not fully matured. Hence, it's only flavorful without any real effects. Xiao Tian was taken aback. Not right? If it's this tasty now, wouldn't it be absolutely mouth-watering when right? Long Chiu Dao was stunned. Master Xiao, logically, shouldn't you be more concerned about the potential benefits of the fruit when ripe rather than its taste? At this point, a trembling Di Xin Lu chimed in. Didn't you say you'd be coming tomorrow? Why are you here? He recognized this man. But how could he be in the hundred flower domain? Why am of all people? Di Xin Lu had witnessed Xiao Tian's might in the starry skies, where with just one punch, he shattered the rules of the southern wilderness realm. Di Xin Lu had reminded himself to remember this man's face and never to provoke him. At this moment, he felt like he wanted to die. How had he managed to provoke such a significant figure? Xiao Tian responded calmly. I ate too much tonight, so I took a walk with these two. Unexpectedly, our walk brought us here. Both Long Chiu Dao and Hua Kai Tu were speechless. Your pace of walking is akin to flying. The scenery blurred as we arrived. Nearby, the tied-up Hua Xiao looked at Hua Kai Tu, the handsome green-haired man, thinking, why does he feel so familiar and close to me? Xiao Tian took another bite of the divine fruit and turned to Di Xin Lu. Are you from the ancient god tribe? With a rustling sound, Di Xin Lu removed his robe. I didn't expect you to recognize me. Indeed, I am from the ancient god tribe. My name is Di Xin Lu. He nodded slightly. Master Xiao, it's an honor to meet you again. However, inside, he was panicking. No, no, no. I never wanted to see you, you monster. Again. Why couldn't you let me consume the divine fruit in peace, enhance my abilities, and sacrifice the entire hundred flower domain to solidify a strong foundation for our ancient god tribe's revival? Why did you have to ruin my perfect plan? Xiao Tian remained silent, continuing to eat the fruit, making smacking noises as he did so. Di Xin Lu cursed inwardly, eat if you must, but what's with the loud chewing noises? It wasn't until Xiao Tian swallowed his mouthful that he asked, have we met before? Di Xin Lu replied, in Indeed, I once saw you from a distance in the Southern Wilderness Realm. With just a light punch, you caused the entire rules of the Southern Wilderness Realm to disperse for you. It was truly memorable. Moreover, you sliced a huge section of the Southern Wilderness Realm's space away. Such power is commendable. Hua Jia was puzzled. Has Di Xin Lu changed? When did he become so eloquent? Is slicing space so impressive? Aren't many spatial storage spiritual tools created by slicing space? Why is this self-proclaimed member of the ancient god tribe making such a fuss? Di Xin Lu quickly donned his robe again. See secretly hoping that his flattery would make Xiao Tian self-satisfied, buying him more time. Then, using the vines of the flower divine ancient tree, he planned to crush the heart of the world, causing the entire hundred flower domain to shatter, leading to their deaths. Grinning internally, he wondered if he should shower Xiao Tian with more compliments. However, as Di Xin Lu was laughing to himself, Xiao Tian suddenly appeared in front of him. What are you laughing about? Di Xin Lu was startled. Nothing, Master Xiao. I'm just genuinely pleased to see you. Xiao Tian's expression turned serious. Am I your father? Di Xin Lu clenched his fists in anger. That's too much. This is an insult. I am of the ancient god tribe, a noble and ancient race of gods. Do you have to humiliate me like this? Yet he had to swallow his pride. Master Xiao is joking. Our races are different, so how can? Xiao Tian interrupted him. Since I'm not your father, why are you pleased to see me? You're hiding something. Di Xin Lu thought quickly. How can this guy not be swayed? Even after hearing praise from a member of the esteemed ancient god tribe, he remains cautious and suspicious. Will my plans with the flower divine ancient tree be thwarted by such a ridiculous question? Fine. If he wants me to acknowledge him as father, so be it. Let's do this. With that thought, Di Xin Lu fell to his knees with a thud. In fact, from the moment I first saw your magnificence in the southern wilderness realm, I swore to serve under you. As he spoke, Di Xin Lu started to kowtow repeatedly to express my sincerity. I have already acknowledged you as my adoptive father in my heart, treating you with the same respect as my biological father. If you don't mind, may I address you as father? After finishing his speech, Di Xin Lu felt overwhelmed with emotion, feeling that he could abandon his dignity for the greater good of the ancient ancient god tribe. Long Chiu Dao, standing nearby, was dumbfounded. This guy is definitely ruthless. When Jiao Benfu acknowledged his god-grandfather, it was only after Master Xiao reminded him. But this one didn't even need a reminder and acknowledged it directly. So decisive, I admire. Hua Kai Tu bit back his laughter. Is this spineless guy the main culprit behind the potential downfall of our hundred flower domain? He has absolutely no shame. How did he ever control the flower divine ancient tree on his own? He seems so incompetent. Just then, Xiao Tian suddenly said, no, I refuse Refuse. Di Xin Lu was taken aback. Why? Do you realize what you're doing? You're refusing an ancient god tribe member who wants to acknowledge you as his father. But Xiao Tian calmly explained, because you don't look like a good person. Di Xin Lu was dumbfounded. What? Xiao Tian continued with a serious expression. It's not my fault. If you want to blame someone, blame your parents for not giving you a kind face. At that moment, a vine gently touched Di Xin Lu's shoulder. His heart leapt with joy. It's time. He stood up abruptly, waving his hand dismissively. Never mind. You can have your parents give birth to you again with a kinder face. Thanks.
Thanks for giving me enough time to control the flower divine ancient tree and crush the heart of the world. Once the heart of the world shatters, the hundred flower domain will turn into a desolate world and all of you will be torn apart by the world's power contained within the heart of the world. Ha ha ha. He then turned around, intending to leave. However, after taking only a few steps, he was yanked back by Xiao Tian. Di Xin Lu was agitated. Have you lost your mind? Why aren't you saving the wastes of the hundred flower domain? Why did you pull me back? Do you intend for us to die together? Don't tell me you believe that using the divine weapon you used to slice through space can sever the heart of the world? Fool, that will only hasten the explosion of the heart of the world. Before he could finish his words, Di Xin Lu saw Xiao Tian grasp the heart of the world of the hundred flower domain, holding and kneading it in his palm. Long Chiu Dao, standing nearby, was stunned. Moments later, Xiao Tian, holding the now subdued heart of the world, turned to Di Xin Lu. What were you saying just now? Di Xin Lu felt a chill run down his spine, realizing that he may have misunderstood and messed up some things. It wasn't the power of the slicing knife that made the rules of heaven and earth yield to him, but rather his inherent strength that scared the very rules of nature. Swallowing nervously, Di Xin Lu admitted to himself, I've really messed up this time. Resigned to his fate, he lay on the ground, giving up any attempt to resist. Xiao Tian, speaking to Long Chiu Dao, remarked, Who would have thought I could play around with this thing? Long Chiu Dao looked at him puzzled, Master Xiao, when you were needing it just now, wasn't it to compress the heart of the world and stabilize it? No, I just held it in my hand. If it were to explode, it'd do so in my hand, and you all would be safe, right? Xiao Tian suddenly realized that since the heart of the world of the hundred flower domain currently had no master, he could take this opportunity to form a pact with it. Long Chiu Dao, watching Xiao Tian's actions, had eyes wide in amazement. Only you, Master Xiao, could manage to directly withstand the explosion of the heart of the world with just your hand. Di Xin Lu was completely flabbergasted. What kind of creature is this human? Xiao Tian, is his body really so formidable that it can directly withstand the explosion of the heart of the world? Just then, a white light illuminated the area. Xiao Tian pulled out another heart of the world. Curious, Long Chiu Dao approached him. Master Xiao, what are you doing? Xiao Tian looked down. I want to try an experiment. To their horror, Xiao Tian forcefully placed the two hearts of the world together, rubbing them vigorously with his hands. As the two hearts touched, a terrifying force of the world erupted from within. Those nearby could clearly feel the cataclysmic power emanating from Xiao Tian's palms. Soon, the two hearts of the world merged together under Xiao Tian's force. Moreover, Xiao Tian began to delicately shape it, using his fingernails as tools. In a short time, the heart of the world transformed into a cute little figure. In his mind, Xiao Tian silently asked, Puppy, do you like it? Puppy's soft voice immediately responded, Thank you, master. I love it. If you like it, keep it, Xiao Tian said. The little figure vanished from his hand. Almost instantly, the skies and earth of the hundred flower domain trembled. The concentration of spiritual energy began to skyrocket, and in a short time, the domain ascended to a higher realm, becoming a superior domain world. Then, regaining his senses, Xiao Tian crouched down, looking at the serene face Di Xin Lu on the ground. Accompanied by the sound of shattering, the life force within Di Xin Lu ceased. Countless breaths and energy began to seep into the flower divine ancient tree. Who would have thought? Di Xin Lu gasped, that the energy I once received from the flower divine ancient tree would be reabsorbed by it upon my death. You are indeed very powerful, even described as a defiance of heaven. Blood began to flow from the corners of his mouth as he stared intently at Xiao Tian. Although I can't resist someone of your caliber now, a great calamity is coming. Despite your immense strength, I fear you won't survive. From the side, Long Chiu Dao inquired, are you referring to the martial spirit army that keeps attacking on the meteor flame battlefield? Martial spirit army? Di Xin Lu suddenly burst into laughter. Ignorant child, the martial spirit army is nothing but cannon fodder, mere pawns sent to their deaths as scouts. To call them a great calamity is utterly ludicrous. With that, the life drained from Di Xin Lu's eyes, and he lay motionless. Long Chiu Dao looked at Di Xin Lu's lifeless body. Master Xiao, what should we do? After contemplating for a moment, Xiao Tian turned to Long Chiu Dao and made a hand gesture. It's not a big issue, he assured. Xiao Tian then reached out, gently caressed Di Xin Lu's face, and infused him with vitality. Di Xin Lu smiled blissfully. Whose hand is this? It feels so warm, like my father's touch. Xiao Tian felt a chill run down his spine and quickly withdrew his hand. Why did you stop? Before he could answer, Di Xin Lu, still in a daze, felt a familiar gust of wind coming from a slap. Where is this slap coming from? I thought I was dead. The next moment, a crisp slap echoed, and Di Xin Lu was jolted awake. Xiao Tian informed the now seated Di Xin Lu. Someone taught me this technique. If someone pretends to be asleep, a slap will wake them up. Seems quite effective. From the side, Long Chiu Dao glared coldly at him. Do you want to die? You think we'd let you off so easily? Xiao Tian then turned and clenched his fist towards the flower divine ancient tree. Return his life force. You can't just consume everything. It'll harm you in the end. The flower divine ancient tree trembled and obediently returned the stolen life force. Feeling the returning vitality, Di Xin Lu was dumbfounded. Oh my god, it's coming back. I don't want it. Take it away. Can I even die on my own terms? This is so unfair. He covered his 
swollen face, looking at Xiao Tian. Why? Why didn't you let me die? Why did you have the flower divine ancient tree save me? Xiao Tian patted his shoulder. Taking your own life out of guilt isn't a good habit. While you might find peace, what about the people of Hundred Flower Domain whom you've harmed? What about them? Saying this, Xiao Tian suddenly gripped Di Xinlu's wrist and snatched away his storage ring. Di Xinlu looked at Xiao Tian with confusion. Didn't you save me for intelligence and secrets? Why are you taking my possessions? Xiao Tian replied calmly. Consider these items as fines. I presume you have no objections. Turning to Long Chiodao, he asked, What about the clothes he's wearing? Long Chiodao quickly responded, The materials used are of high quality and quite valuable. If we unravel them and re-sew, they could be repurposed into many valuable items. Wouldn't it be nice to use such materials for the curtains in the cabins of the modified void battleship? Soon, a thoroughly stripped Di Xinlu felt humiliated. Inside, he was raging. Why don't you hit me? Attack me. Torture me. Xiao Tian shook his head. I can't do that. Why not? Because I'm a good person. Hearing this, Di Xinlu's patience reached its limit. He tightly gripped his own throat. Even if the laws of the universe won't let me die, I'll strangle myself. With a determined twist, he broke his own neck and collapsed to the ground. Xiao Tian, without any hint of panic, turned to the flower divine ancient tree. The tree was sweating profusely, thinking, why make me save him again? I'm using my original power to save lives here. After transferring its power, Xiao Tian delivered a strong slap to Di Xinlu's face, waking him up. However, Di Xinlu didn't want to open his eyes. Internally, he was screaming, why? Just let me die. Please. Xiao Tian patted his shoulder. Don't be like this. It breaks my heart. You've made a mess of the hundred flower domain and just want to end it all? Isn't that a bit excessive? Look, the flower divine ancient tree had to use its original power to save you. So, I've decided to have Long Chiodao put you under a slave contract. This way, not only can we uncover all your secrets, but you also won't be constantly trying to kill yourself. Isn't that great? Upon hearing this and sensing the energy emanating from Long Chiodao, Di Xinlu sat up abruptly and questioned, What exactly do you want? Xiao Tian took Di Xinlu's hand and said, I don't really want to do much. I run a farm over here and I want to plant the flower divine ancient tree there to upgrade the living conditions for my livestock. You can simply tend to the tree there. It's not tiring. Just fertilize it and take good care of it. This way, you can atone for your sins, and I can provide a better environment for my animals. It's a win-win. Why not? Hearing this, Di Xinlu felt chills down his spine. I am from the noble ancient god tribe and you want me to handle dung and fertilize? Impossible. Absolutely impossible. The next moment, Long Chiodao's voice resonated. Seal it. With that, Long Chiodao attempted to place the slave contract on Di Xinlu's head. However, he quickly realized he couldn't establish the contract. As it turned out, the rank of the ancient god tribe was higher than the sacred dragon clan, so Long Chiodao couldn't subdue and enslave him. Turning to Xiao Tian, Long Chiodao inquired, Master Xiao, what should we do? Xiao Tian pondered for a moment and pointed to the slave contract in his hand. Can I hold this? Long Chiodao nodded, quickly performed a series of hand gestures, and transferred the contract to Xiao Tian's hand. Di Xinlu, observing their actions, defiantly shook his head. It's useless. Our racial hierarchy is innate, unless you possess immense virtue that can influence the world's rules. Before he could finish, Xiao Tian swiftly slapped him, sending Di Xinlu spiraling. The contract was successfully established. Holding his face in disbelief, Di Xinlu questioned, How can this be? Aren't humans always considered to be of a lower rank? Even if they were of a higher rank, they couldn't possibly enslave me. The ancient god tribe is a superior existence. Ignoring the dismayed Di Xinlu, Xiao Tian told Long Chiodao, See, it worked. You just weren't forceful enough. Next time, put more effort into it, okay? Long Chiodao remained silent, thinking, Is this something that can be solved just by using more force? Yet once again, Xiao Tian had reshaped someone's worldview. Indeed, Di Xinlu, looking like a wronged wife, suddenly pointed at him and shouted, You're not human. You're definitely not human. Then, Di Xinlu stood up and invoked a secret technique, exploration technique. I want to see what race you belong to and why it ranks higher than our ancient god tribe. In the next moment, an endless expanse of starry sky emerged. Di Xinlu faintly saw behind Xiao Tian, in the darkness, figures of terrifying stature. There was the winged creator dragon god, the ancestors of mankind walking the vast lands, and the Taoist lying above the heavens and earth. Moreover, there were countless other eerie and terrifying entities. Terrified, Di Xinlu broke into a cold sweat. The next second, he spat out a mouthful of blood, retreating continuously until he finally knelt on the ground. After a moment, Di Xinlu began to speak, you are actually, but before he could finish, Xiao Tian snapped his fingers. Di Xinlu immediately stood up straight. Xiao Tian pointed to a spot nearby and scolded, stop making noise. While the adults are talking, children should dance on the side. Di Xinlu, seemingly not in control of his own body, stood aside and began to dance, internally screaming, this is humiliation. Absolute humiliation. Sensing his discomfort, Xiao Tian snapped his fingers again, instructing, dance with a smile. Immediately, Di Xinlu began dancing with a mischievous grin on his face. Only then did Xiao Tian turn his attention to Hua Xia. The crisis of the Hundred Flower Domain has been completely resolved. You all need
needn't worry any longer. Thank you, noble sir, for saving our tribe and the hundred flower domain. We have no way to repay your immense kindness, why she had expressed, as the entire flower head tribe bowed in gratitude, shouting in unison, Thank you, noble sir. At this moment, Hua Kai Tu, who stood beside Xiao Tian, suddenly spoke, Chief, Sir Zhao's kindness to our tribe is not as simple as you think. Hua Jia looked puzzled, Brother, it seems we're not of the same tribe. Hua Kai Tu quickly stepped forward, Chief, I am Hua Kai Tu. You've met me before. You're the son of Hua Jingxin from the Luaning Division, the one skilled in business? Yes, that's me. Upon hearing this, everyone looked baffled and confused. How did you change so much? This transformation is drastic. Hua Kai Tu turned to Xiao Tian and gave a respectful bow. All of this was made possible thanks to Sir Zhao's discovery of our tribe's predicament. The flower divine ancient tree trembled, realizing that its secret of parasitically attaching itself to the flower god tribe would soon be exposed. Soon after hearing Hua Keda's explanation, everyone was in shock. How could such a thing happen? They wondered. Xiao Tian just smiled and waved his hand. Now that you know the truth, stretch out your heads. Moments later, everyone was horrified to see blood spraying from their heads. Long Chiodao couldn't help but ask, Sir Xiao, if I'm not mistaken, wouldn't it have been easier to have the flower divine ancient tree do the job? Xiao Tian shook his head. It's more fun and relieving for me to do it myself. Long Chiodao was rendered speechless, thinking, it's just like you, Sir Xiao. Your way of thinking is certainly unique. Meanwhile, the members of the flower head tribe experienced a renewal, looking at themselves in amazement. After a while, they calmed down and deeply bowed to Xiao Tian. Sir Xiao, you've done so much for our tribe. From now on, both the flower god tribe and the entire hundred flower domain will serve you and follow your lead. Xiao Tian quickly stepped forward. All right, all right. From now on, we're all on the same side. Hua Jia asked, Sir Xiao, what plans do you have next? Xiao Tian smiled. Your main task now is to help everyone revert back to the flower god tribe. Then, I'll merge you with the mysterious wealth mountain range. And after that, I'll bring the holy demon domain to join. You, the flower god tribe, will be in charge of cultivating the flower god tree and stabilizing the chaotic spiritual energy produced by the mixed domains. Understand? Everyone was flabbergasted. What is Sir Xiao trying to achieve? Does he want to merge the domains until they explode? Hua Jia hesitantly asked, Sir Xiao, by merging the domains, do you mean to clear the void navigation routes, making them more connected and enabling the two domains to communicate? Xiao Tian shook his head. No, that's not it. Let me show you. He then turned to Long Chiodao. Are there any world fragments left in the holy dragon relic? Without any hesitation, Long Chiodao replied, there are a few uglier world fragments left. Which one would you like, Sir Xiao? Xiao Tian pondered for a moment. Whether it's ugly or not is irrelevant. It's just that its style doesn't quite fit. Let's go with the one from the decayed land. It's perfect for planting trees. Upon hearing this, Long Chiodao bowed slightly, understood, Sir Xiao, please, take it. As soon as his words faded, a piece of the world fragment appeared in Xiao Tian's hand. Waving the fragment, Xiao Tian informed everyone, see this? This is a world fragment I've compressed. Now, I'll demonstrate for you what it means to merge domains. He continued, first, tear a rift in your current domain. With a sweep of his hand, a rift appeared in the air, like this. While the domain hasn't fully merged, crush the world fragment and place it into the rift, allowing it to absorb absorb and fuse on its own. As he spoke, Xiao Tian crumbled the fragment and tossed it into the rift. Thunderous sounds emanated from the rift. See, if the fusion process is slow, I can manually seal the rift. In this way, the two domains will perfectly merge. Witnessing the sudden appearance of a new continent and the contrasting sceneries on both sides, the members of the Flower Head tribe were in utter astonishment, their mouths agape. Seizing the moment, Long Chiodao flattered, Sir Xiao, it seems your skills have improved even further. Brushing the dust off his hands, Xiao Tian replied, while while gathering information and observing the hundred flower domain, I learned some new techniques related to merging domains. Sometimes, one has to marvel at the importance of continuous learning and growth. Turning to face the crowd, he asked, Now, do you understand what I meant by merging them together? Stammering, Hua Jia responded, Sir Xiao, you are truly, truly amazing. At that moment, Hua Kai Tu suddenly inquired, By the way, Sir Xiao, how should our hundred flower domain approach the mysterious wealth mountain range? Should it be compressed into a tiny crystal ball as well? Xiao Tian pondered for a moment. Moment. We can give it a try. Half an hour later, a streak of light cut across the sky. Everyone was enveloped in a protective shield, watching in astonishment as the hundred flower domain above them was compressed. Once again, they were in utter shock. It really worked. Meanwhile, in the palace's main hall during the morning assembly, Zhong Li Huang knelt and reported to Zi Ruoyan, Your Majesty, the armies of the Great Flame Dynasty and the Primordial Demon Kingdom are fully assembled and ready to reinforce the Meteor Flame Battlefield. With the Empress leading the charge and the resources of the Elder Statesmen supporting us. We will surely be victorious in this expedition. Zi Ruoyan replied with a calm expression. As I personally lead the reinforcement to the Meteor Flame Battlefield, I'm entrusting the Great Flame Dynasty to your care. Zhong Li Suang immediately responded, Rest assured, Your Majesty, I will manage the affairs of the court diligently.
reluctantly. Z. Royan nodded, then stood up and declared, In three days, we march to the meteor flame battlefield. However, the moment Z. Royan returned to her study, an annoying voice greeted her. Oh, isn't this our beloved niece, Z. Royan? Considering the current relationships, since your father and brother Xiao are now sworn brothers, shouldn't you be calling brother Xiao uncle? Luo Feng Yuan sat at the desk, legs crossed, her tone full of jest. Z. Royan approached and retorted, Back off. Lord Xiao was being reckless back then. Why are you joining in his nonsense? Saying this, she slapped Luo Feng Yuan's foot away. Luo Feng Yuan exclaimed in mock pain, Ouch, that hurt. Z. Royan sat down and replied, You had it coming. She felt a surge of irritation. I don't understand. It was one thing for Lord Xiao and Wang Chiodao to create a ruckus in the mysterious Wealth Mountain range, but why did he become sworn brothers with my father? At that moment, Luo Feng Yuan continued to fan the flames. If they're sworn brothers, then Brother Xiao is indeed your uncle, and that makes me your auntie, dear niece. Z. Royan, feeling irritable, picked up a report and said, Whatever. What does the relationship matter? At worst, my father will try to fight Lord Xiao in the end. I won't stop him. Besides, my father wouldn't even win against him. Right now, I need to focus on this report. Everything else can wait. Suddenly, Luo Feng Yuan remarked, I wonder how Brother Xiao is doing now. Z. Royan replied, There's no need to worry. Lord Xiao is formidable on his own, and with the support of Elder Dragon Mound, even my father mentioned that with the help of Elder Dragon Mound, Lord Xiao has already destroyed the Jia family of the mysterious Wealth Mountain range. Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan burst into laughter. That's true. With Elder Dragon Mound by his side, we indeed don't need to worry about Brother Zhao's safety. However, I never imagined Elder Dragon Mound to be this powerful. Brother Xiao is fortunate to have found the Holy Dragon Relic and have such a formidable elder to serve him. Three days later, in the void above the Holy Demon Domain, a massive flying ship soared by. Z. Royan stood at the bow, pointing her sword towards the Meteor Flame Battlefield. Accompanied by the unified chance of everyone, defeat the Martial Spirit Army, save Lord Esteemed Purple Emperor, the flying ship swiftly moved forward. Elsewhere, in the void above the mysterious Wealth Mountain range, Xiao Tian was calmly floating with the protective shield behind him. Members of the Flower Head tribe whispered amongst themselves, How is Lord Xiao planning to merge the Hundred Flower Domain with the mysterious Wealth Mountain range? Will it be similar to what we've seen? A direct collision and fusion? Shush! Quiet down! Lord Xiao is about to begin. As they spoke, Xiao Tian casually waved his hand, and the miniaturized Hundred Flower Domain began to move, enlarging as it drifted towards the mysterious Wealth Mountain range. Suddenly, Puppy spoke to Xiao Tian, Master, for the Hundred Flower Domain to strike at this angle, it would be best to hit this point. However, you'll have to push it personally. If the two domains collide without proper guidance, they'll shatter. I understand, Xiao Tian responded. Turning to the others, he said, Stay here and don't move. I'll be right back. With that, he slowly advanced, holding the Hundred Flower Domain. Not far away, Di Xinlu nervously bit her finger, thinking, It feels like it's going to break. If they collide head-on like this, they'll surely explode. Long Chiodao glared at him. Stop talking nonsense. Just then, the two domain worlds finally touched. A blinding white light illuminated the entire void. In this moment of darkness in the void, the two vast domain worlds began to merge. Hua Kai Tu, Long Chiodao, and the rest stood in the void, observing the merging process. As the fusion started, numerous turbulent void currents became violent. Their protective shields began to crack. Suddenly, Hua Kai Tu slapped Di Xinlu on the back of his head. What are you looking at? Get to work. Di Xinlu was angry but held back, glaring resentfully at Hua Kai Tu. Unintimidated, Hua Kai Tu retorted, What are you glaring at? Lord Xiao asked you to protect us. Reluctantly, Di Xinlu began to gather spiritual energy. A golden light, filled with divine intent, instantly enveloped everyone, defending against the turbulent currents. Finally, with their minds at ease, they all watched intently. Lord Xiao, be careful, don't really shatter the two domain worlds. When these two superior domain worlds merge, will they form a super superior domain existence? Fortunately, there wasn't a collision sound. Instead, the world barriers of the two continents began to slowly blend together, just like merging bubbles. Di Xinlu watched in awe, forgetting even to maintain a shield. It was a sight he would never forget in his lifetime. Suddenly, Long Chiodao suddenly slapped Di Xinlu on the back of the head. Focus on the shield. This is just basic operation for Lord Xiao. Don't overreact. Quickly, Di Xinlu strengthened the shield, but inside, he was panicking. It's a mess now. It's really messed up. When the powerful elders of our ancient god tribe tried to do something like this, they were directly killed by the world rules of the two domain worlds. I didn't expect this. It's really chaotic. At that moment, a sound like a muffled bell rang, seemingly proclaiming the birth of a super world in the void. The violent turbulence slowly calmed down, and a domain world, several times larger than before, stood silently in the void. Suddenly, Xiao Tian appeared beside them, declaring, Mission accomplished. Let's go inside and take a look. As soon as Xiao Tian finished speaking, without waiting for a reaction, he immediately pulled them and dove down. Upon entering, they saw that many members of the Flower Head tribe had already begun purifying spiritual energy. Xiao Tian looked 
looked pleased. Good. Very proactive. I'm satisfied. The Hundred Flower Domain and Mysterious Wealth Mountain Range have successfully merged. You have also begun purifying the murky spiritual energy. Next, I'll move the Holy Demon Domain for merging. But with this, we need to rename this domain world. As Xiao Tian pondered, Long Chiu Dao couldn't help but ask, what should it be called? Thinking of the two empresses, Xiao Tian proposed, since the entire domain world is co-managed by empresses, let's simply call it the Empress Domain. As he finished speaking, the heavens and earth sang in harmony. Golden lights and auspicious clouds surrounded them. Adorable golden figures blew their horns, and many sprites danced around Xiao Tian, showering him with flowers. The words Empress Domain manifested above the world barrier, engraved in the sky, then slowly faded. Di Xinlu was dumbstruck, thinking, is this the illegitimate child of the heavens? Seeing that the task was complete, Xiao Tian stretched, yawned, and said, all right, you all continue working in the Empress Domain. I, along with Long Chiu Dao and Di Xinlu, will head to the Holy Demon Domain. He patted Hua Keda's shoulder and gave a thumbs up. Keep it up. Work till you drop, but don't drop dead. The Flower Head Tribe members were pumped up. We won't let Lord Xiao down. Shortly after, Xiao Tian, Long Chiu Dao, and Di Xinlu departed. Once they left, Hua Xia told his tribe, even though the Hundred Flower Domain is no more, for us, a bright future is taking shape. The tribe members enthusiastically agreed. Yes, we've returned to our original state, even better than before. Elsewhere, Xiao Tian told Long Chiu Dao in the sky, take him to the Great Flame Mountain Farm. Let him familiarize himself with manure management and set up some formations to detect the approach of the ancient god tribe. So, if they ever try to sneak up on us, an alarm will be triggered. In his mind, Di Xinlu realized, is he just using me as bait to capture the ancient god tribe? Such cunning. Long Chiu Dao directly asked, Lord Xiao, are you fishing? What are you saying? I'm taking precautions, Xiao Tian retorted. Never mind, no more explanations. I'm going to see Zhong Yang Ming for food. Watching Xiao Tian's departing figure, Long Chiu Dao remarked, Lord Xiao sometimes seems so impulsive and gluttonous. He then turned to Di Xinlu coldly. Come, Lord Xiao has given his orders. Don't even think of trying anything. Bound by a slave contract, Di Xinlu had no room for resistance. Upon arriving at Great Flame Mountain, he was stunned. This mountain is actually formed from the corpse of an emperor-level holy dragon. Is this premium-grade feed being used to cultivate livestock and vegetables here? Such a waste. Only then did Long Chiu Dao explain, what's so strange about that? This holy dragon died protecting others. Offering it a place to rest is the best way to honor its sacrifice. Lord Xiao is indeed a very kind-hearted person. Di Xinlu couldn't help but laugh. Do you even hear what you're saying? I was stripped by Xiao Tian and now I'm only allowed to wear a cloak. Being humiliated to such an extent and you call that kind-hearted? Long Chiu Dao didn't respond, simply motioning for him to follow. Let's go. Soon, the two of them noticed members of the Blood Rune clan sitting around a table. Di Xinlu narrowed his eyes. Something seems off about these Martial Spirit Army's Blood Rune clan members. They don't exude the aura of any realm, yet the power within them is even more violent than that of body cultivators. They are much larger than any I've seen before, and there seems to be quite a bit of tension between the two groups. Their clothes even read reform and become a better person. At that moment, Di Xinlu noticed a piece of paper on the table. Picking it up curiously, he read, Great Flame Honor Toy Group, what is this note about? Before he could finish, a man suddenly slammed his hand on the table. Zhang Wushuang, pointing angrily at another, shouted, Zhang Zhizhi, you can't face me head on, so now you've learned to act from the shadows? Do you realize you've crossed a line? Zhang Wushuang continued accusingly, all this time, it was our second group responsible for letting the Great Flame Pigs out on the mountain number 5. Since we let them out, we should also be the ones to round them up. Why is your first group intervening? If you hadn't broken the rules, our second group would have been the winners this time. Zhang Zhizhi replied disdainfully, intervene? Don't forget, we are here to atone and reform. If your second group hadn't been so lazy, would our first group need to step in? You knew well that when the Great Flame Pigs are let out, it's their peak excretion time. Instead of immediately sending people to work, you took shifts for meals. Does your second group even deserve the task? Remember, if it doesn't kill you, work till you drop. You're just making excuses. Zhang Wushuang shot back. You're just worried that our second group will outshine your first group. Outshine? Zhang Wushuang, have some shame. You only won twice in the evaluations. Do you think our first group is scared of yours? Whether you're scared or not, you know very well. Di Xinlu was baffled. What exactly are their evaluation criteria? A martial arts contest? Why is there a connection with pigs? Long Chiu Dao explained, their evaluation is based on pig farming. Additional assessments include raising cattle, sheep, chickens, ducks, fish, and planting fruits and vegetables. There are also tasks like cleaning manure and maintaining the environment. Di Xinlu was stunned. So, all their fiery passion and readiness to fight is because the other group raised pigs better than them? Does this mean I'm not really bait? Did Xiao Tian genuinely want me to come here just to shovel dung? Long Chiu Dao gave him a puzzled look. Why are you crying? Trembling, Di Xinlu desperately wanted to escape but couldn't. At that moment, the quarreling Zhang Zhizhi and Zhang Wushuang noticed the two of them. Zhang Wushuang hurried over. Lord Dragon Mound, why are you here? Does Lord Xiao have any new instructions? 
instructions for us? Zhang Jiji, pushing Zhang Wushuang aside and greeting with a bow and a smile, said, Lord Dragon Mound, I apologize for the earlier quarrel you had to witness. Long Chiodao waved it off. It's alright. Both of your recent performances have been commendable, and Lord Xiao has noticed. Otherwise, he wouldn't have taught you the special martial art technique, Golden Turtle Shield. Zhang Jiji responded passionately, It's our honor to learn the Golden Turtle Shield. This is not only a sign of Lord Zhao's acknowledgement, but also a step forward on our path of atonement. By practicing this technique, our bodies become stronger, allowing us to serve you better. Not to be outdone, Zhang Wushuang pushed Zhang Jiji aside. Lord Dragon Mound, whether we practice martial arts or not isn't the main point. Throughout our atonement, we've realized our mistakes deep within our hearts. Simply exerting brute strength won't bring peace to those who died in battle. Zhang Jiji shook his head in disagreement. What nonsense. Without giving 200% effort, do you even have the right to call it atonement? Have you forgotten what Lord Xiao said? Cleanse the soul with sweat. Zhang Wushuang, fed up, retorted sarcastically, your so-called sweat probably just cools the hair on your body. It doesn't cleanse any soul. Zhang Jiji smirked slyly. Are you jealous of my thick hair because you're balding? Have you started to beat around the bush to attack others now? The two were clearly at odds with each other. Watching them confront each other, Long Chiodao stepped in. All right, all right. It's good to have competition. It means there's spirit, but let's not let it interfere with work. This, he said, pointing to Di Xin Lu, is the new guy. Although he's powerful, reaching the pinnacle of the 20th rank, he made a mistake and is here to be punished. He will be responsible for handling the manure from now on. You two will alternate guiding him each day. Make sure he quickly becomes proficient at this task. Understood? Both Zhang Wushuang and Zhang Zhizhi replied enthusiastically. Long Chiodao patted Di Xin Lu's shoulder approvingly. Work hard and reform yourself. The members of the Blood Rune clan cheered. Welcome our new partner to the Path of Atonement. We're glad to have another comrade join our mission of recognizing our mistakes and striving for righteousness. Let's applaud. Di Xin Lu was utterly dumbfounded. Is this really the Blood Rune clan, known for rising through the ranks by relentless fighting and battles? Moments later, Di Xin Lu was taken to a mountain where he saw piles of pig manure everywhere. Overwhelmed, he cried out, at least give me some clothes and tools for cleaning up poop. This is too much, giving me nothing at all. I've disgraced the noble ancient god tribe. I'm worthless. However, Zhang Wushuang and Zhang Zhizhi, observing from behind, mistook his reaction. Look at Di Xin Lu. He's already so immersed in his task, shedding tears of regret. He seems to have high realizations. Given his quick progress, the Great Flame Mountain might soon have a third team, and he'll definitely be a strong competitor. Elsewhere, at the residence of the Prime Minister, a feast was in full swing. The officials were engaged in jovial conversation when suddenly, with a whoosh, Xiao Tian appeared at the table. I've just arrived and already I smell the food. Perfect timing, Xiao Tian commented with a grin. Zhong Yang Ming, sitting beside him, blinked in surprise. Prince, you're back? Yes, I am. Took care of some business and also have a little surprise for our emperor. Soon, the spiritual energy across our domain will flow effortlessly. The vast lands of great flame will be so much more enjoyable, Xiao Tian beamed. He then noticed an elderly chubby man on the side who had been smiling at him. He leaned over and whispered to Zhong Yang Ming. Who is this gentleman? Is he a new official? Zhong Yang Ming candidly replied, that's the empress's grandfather. Xiao Tian almost spat out his drink in surprise. Shue Fugui, the elderly man, patted Xiao Tian's back. Take it slow, no need to rush. Xiao Tian looked at him in astonishment, only for Shue Fugui to continue with a smile. So you're the man I've heard so much about but never met. The son-in-law I've grown fonder of the more I hear about him. My dear boy, your reputation precedes you, supreme benevolent sugar baby deity. It's quite an endearing title. A metaphorical rock seemed to drop on Xiao Tian's head. Why is it still that title? It's supreme benevolent king of hell deity. The one you mentioned sounds anything but majestic. Xiao Tian tried to keep his composure. This is my wife's grandfather, so technically, he's mine too. Can't lose my temper. He's not teasing me. He just likes this old-fashioned title. That's it. Regaining his poise, Xiao Tian raised his glass. Cheers, grandfather. Shue Fugui did the same. Supreme benevolent king of hell deity. Xiao Tian was startled. How do you know that title? He cautiously inquired. By any chance, were you at the mysterious wealth mountain range at some point? Shue Fugui nodded. Yes, little Xiao. I was in the city of mysterious wealth mountain. Panic began to set in Xiao Tian's heart. I hope he's not the one I saved back then. He doesn't look like my wife or her grandfather. Even if we became sworn brothers, I should be fine, right? Tentatively, Xiao Tian probed. You came back alone, right? Just happened to pass by the mysterious wealth mountain range? Zhong Yang Ming was doing his utmost to contain his laughter at the awkward situation. I can't laugh. If I do, Xiao Tian will definitely kill me. I must not laugh. Shue Fugui replied with a grin. I didn't return alone. I came back with Zi Ruoyan's grandmother, as well as her parents. We didn't just happen to pass through the mysterious wealth mountain range. Xiao Tian felt a sinking feeling in his stomach, thinking, please, let it not be what I think it is. The man I rescued and swore brotherhood with can't be related to this. Shue Fugui continued, without your help, my son-in-law, your father-in-law wouldn't have been able to escape from the heavenly palace. Distraught,
thought, Xiao Tian mumbled. I remember saving someone named Zhou Shintong from the Heavenly Palace. Could it be that I didn't find my father-in-law after all? I'd rather believe I got the wrong person than accept that Zhou Shintong is indeed my father-in-law. Reality, however, can be cruel. With a playful smile, Shue Fugui said, Little Xiao, don't blame esteemed Purple Emperor. Back then, he was concerned about your intentions, fearing you might have ulterior motives. So, he used a secret technique to change his appearance and assumed the name Zhou Shintong. As the revelation dawned on Xiao Tian, a familiar tune echoed in his head, and he cried out in despair. No, this can't be happening. His mind was a complete mess. Shue Fugui laughed softly, trying to console him. Don't take it to heart, my boy. Your father-in-law is genuinely grateful to you. After all, you were the one who saved him. As for the misunderstandings, let bygones be bygones. Come on, don't just stand there in a daze. Eat up. You're young, and you need to nourish your body. Zhong, the prime minister, told me that you love the dishes he prepares. But Xiao Tian was barely listening. All he could think of was the realization that Zhou Shintong was the esteemed purple emperor and the fact that he had once again jovially bonded with his own father-in-law. Seeing him lost in his thoughts and even drooling a bit, Shue Fugui hurriedly called out, Little Xiao, snap out of it. Xiao Tian jolted back to reality, wondering why he thought once again. And then it struck him, he had another father-in-law. Overwhelmed, he slapped his forehead in despair. Seeing Xiao Tian's agony, Shue Fugui could barely contain his laughter. Indeed, the younger generation is fun to tease, especially when they are as formidable as this one. It's such a thrill. Behind him, Zhong Yang Ming was trying hard to hold back his laughter, constantly reminding himself not to chuckle. If he did, Xiao Tian would surely silence him for good. Breaking the awkward silence, Xiao Tian chimed in. Speaking of which, where is the empress? She must be thrilled to know her parents are back, right? Zhong Yang Ming quickly responded with a smile. Of course, the empress is overjoyed. However, she's not currently in the palace. She left with Empress Luo Feng Yuan. Mentioning Luo Feng Yuan, Zhong Yang Ming had to suppress his laughter, his face turning red. Taking a deep breath, Zhong Yang Ming continued, Right now, the Empress is heading to the Meteor Flame Battlefield with Empress Luo Feng Yuan, the former Emperor, the Empress's mother, and her grandmother, led by Dragon Mound. They're on a mission to rescue the Holy Demon Emperor, Luo Tao Yin. Upon mentioning Luo Tao Yin, Zhong Yang Ming couldn't hold back any longer and burst into laughter. Lord Xiao is truly remarkable. Not only did he save two fathers-in-law, but he also swore brotherhood with both of them. Ha ha ha. Xiao Tian glared at him. Did you just laugh? Zhong Yang Ming hastily tried to compose himself. Prince, I didn't. Cough, cough. Why are you coughing and furrowing your brow? I, I just felt a cold chill. Xiao Tian smirked. After all the martial training with me, you still feel a chill? When I leave, your martial training slackens, and your health declines? Grinding his teeth, Xiao Tian added. In that case, I'll personally train you later. We'll see if you're truly weak. Hearing this, Zhong Yang Ming figured he'd face intensive training regardless, so he laughed heartily, right in Xiao Tian's face. Xiao Tian's face twitched in annoyance. By the way, why didn't you mention that Empress Luo's father is out of danger? Didn't they just make an unnecessary trip? Still chuckling, Zhong Yang Ming responded, Prince, how can I dare to speak the truth if you don't say anything? Besides, with the undercurrents in the meteor flame battlefield and the continuous moves by the martial spirit army, we should reinforce our troops there anyway. Thinking of meeting both his father's-in-law, Xiao Tian felt like crying. Both were saved by him, both became his sworn brothers, and both knew him by his supreme benevolent king of hell deity title. It was like some legendary, awkward social event. Then, Zhong Yang Ming inquired, Lord, while reinforcing the meteor flame battlefield to save the holy demon emperor, could we also train our troops to familiarize them with the combat conditions and preparation for the great catastrophe? Do you think the so-called catastrophe might be a full-scale attack by the martial spirit army? Regaining his composure, Xiao Tian lifted his chopsticks. The martial spirit army is indeed a concern, but they aren't the great catastrophe. They're just cannon fodder. Just then, Long Chiodao appeared. Lord Xiao, everything is arranged. Xiao Tian nodded in acknowledgement. Long Chiodao stepped forward, pouring wine for Xiao Tian. He informed Zhong Yang Ming, the real enemy might be the puppet master behind the martial spirit army, manipulating all the tribes. Zhong Yang Ming blinked in astonishment. Such a formidable martial spirit army is just cannon fodder. Who told you that? Have you ever heard of the ancient god tribe? Zhong Yang Ming expressed surprise. Heard of them? Without hesitation, Long Chiodao replied, of course you haven't. This tribe? Wait, you've heard of them? I've lived so long and never heard of the ancient god tribe. Where did you learn of them? Zhong Yang Ming answered truthfully. I once came across it in the southern wilderness realm. Aren't there many ruins there? I have dug up some artifacts. Also, Lord Xiao, the legacy scriptures you once obtained, weren't they from the ancient god tribe? I remember ancient structures unearthed there, older than even the Great Flame Empire. The inscriptions on them mentioned eternal blessings and the words ancient gods. I believe those refer to the ancient god tribe. As he spoke, realization dawned on Zhong Yang Ming. You didn't encounter living members of the tribe, did you? Both men nodded, elaborating. They have golden horns on their heads with peculiar patterns. Their strength is immense, with golden hair and gold inscriptions on their skin. They are adept at various secret arts and can even absorb
absorb souls and manipulate the elements. At this, Shuefugui exclaimed in surprise, so they're from the ancient god tribe. My son-in-law was reigning peacefully as emperor of the Great Flame Dynasty when he suddenly clashed with the chief disciple of Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion. It seems the ancient god tribe was controlling the Eastern Flame Kingdom at that time. The chief disciple of Astral Pavilion secretly infiltrated the Great Flame Dynasty for unknown reasons, only to be discovered by my son-in-law. That led to them pursuing and attempting to kill him and Shuerian. After leaving the Shue family, we went straight to the Southern Wilderness Realm. We witnessed the barbarian, Jia Su, being killed by the skills of the ancient god tribe. It appears that after ambushing my daughter and son-in-law, they went to the barbarian territory. We're just not sure if the ancient god tribe member you encountered is the same one we know of. Hearing this, Long Chiodao pondered for a moment if it's the same person. Then after clashing with the former emperor in the Southern Wilderness Realm and infiltrating the barbarians to kill Jia Su, they would have seen Lord Zhao's feats of shattering the universal rules with a single punch and using a blade to cut through the southern wilderness realm. Did they then head to the Hundred Flower Domain? Thinking further, Long Chiodao informed Xiao Tian, Lord Xiao, I suspect that this Di Xinlu's trip to the Hundred Flower Domain was just a diversion. His true aim was to follow the Great Flame Dynasty that you had severed and taken with you. Xiao Tian smiled faintly. Things are starting to get interesting. Zhong Yangming seemed surprised. You went to the Hundred Flower Domain? We took a detour to the Hundred Flower Domain to resolve the issue with the Flower Head Tribe. In the process, we discovered that the Flower Head Tribe is actually the Flower God Tribe. We managed to free the Flower Divine Ancient Tree from its parasitic grip on the Flower Head Tribe. Shuefugue was utterly perplexed, it's really bizarre. By rights, the Hundred Flower Domain and the Southern Wilderness Realm are located on the fringes of the myriad worlds, remote places. How can there be so many valuable things here? There are relics of the Ancient God Tribe, the Flower God Tribe, and the Flower Divine Ancient Tree. It's truly strange, Xiao Tian proposed. Considering all these ancient entities, and even the long lived Long Chiodao didn't know about them, could there be a possibility that this seemingly remote place is actually the real core realm? Shuefugue quickly dismissed the idea. That's unlikely. If this were the core realm, it wouldn't have such sparse spiritual energy and scarce resources. Moreover, the meteor flame battlefield is located here. He glanced at Long Chiodao. Also, the fragments of the world around the core realm should be more numerous. Long Chiodao nodded in agreement. Indeed, and we can't communicate with the upper realms from here. It doesn't fit the characteristics of a core realm. Listening to their conversation, Zhong Yangming felt utterly lost. Can't we interrogate the captured member of the ancient god tribe? Long Chiodao immediately shook his head. It's not possible. His soul is sealed. He won't give us any answers. We've already sent him to the Great Flame Breeding Grounds. We've set up formations around him so that if any of his kin come to rescue him, we can trap them. Upon hearing this, Zhong Yangming quietly asked, Once at the Great Flame Breeding Grounds, what tasks are assigned to this member of the ancient god tribe? The flower divine ancient tree needs fertilization. Long Chiodao made a gesture of carrying a load on a shoulder pole. He's there to learn how to fertilize. Understanding dawned on Zhong Yangming. At that moment, Xiao Tian suddenly asked, Grandfather, what did the ancestor of the Shue family want with my father-in-law? It seems unnecessary if it was just for his bloodline. Could there be other hidden schemes? Both Zhong Yangming and Long Chiodao were instantly alarmed, thinking, here it comes, the paranoia. Both anxiously looked at Shue Fugue, hoping he would refute Xiao Tian's suspicions. Shue Fugue sighed and patiently explained, what the ancestor of the Shue family desired wasn't simply a bloodline. He was interested in the connections behind the emperor's bloodline. By controlling our family, he hoped to have the esteemed purple emperor, once grown, use the emperor's bloodline to reclaim his old followers. Xiao Tian, still suspicious, continued, was the ancestor of the Shue family really just targeting my father-in-law? Could he have intended something for the empress or even planned to use her to get to me? The latter part was only pondered silently in his heart. Shue Fugui refuted firmly, that's impossible. When he took your father-in-law, the ancestor didn't even know about Zi Ruan's existence. At that time, I believe her bloodline hadn't even awakened. Still on guard, Xiao Tian pressed. Could there be a possibility that such a formidable figure has the ability to foresee the future? Shue Fugui remained adamant. That's out of the question. Although the ancestor was powerful, he certainly didn't possess such capabilities. Xiao Tian finally breathed a sigh of relief, feeling somewhat disappointed inside. So, they weren't really after me? That's strange. I still find it hard to believe. Pondering on how to break this thought, Zhong Yangming and Long Chiodao behind him burst into laughter. The old man is amazing. It's the first time I've seen anyone halt Xiao Tian's paranoid train of thought. Shue Fugue felt nostalgic. After all this time, not only has Zi Ruoyan awakened the royal bloodline of the human race, but the intensity of her bloodline even surpasses that of her father, the esteemed Purple Emperor. Zhong Yangming nodded. Perhaps the Empress will indeed restore the glory of the Imperial Court. If the ancient Emperor's spirit is watching, he must be very pleased. Upon hearing this, Shue Fugue became agitated. What nonsense are you spouting about the Emperor having a spirit? The Emperor is still alive. Hearing this revelation, both Long 
Xiaodao and Zhong Yangming were struck dumb with astonishment. However, soon after, both Xiao Tian and Zhong Yangming turned their surprised gazes towards Long Chiodao. Why are you both looking at me like that? Long Chiodao asked defensively, you've been working closely with the emperor. Don't you know whether he's alive or not? Why do you seem more surprised about the news of the emperor being alive than we are? Long Chiodao waved his hands dismissively. I knew the emperor was alive. What surprised me was that the Shue family knew about it. He then sidled up to Xiao Tian, trying to ingratiate himself. Of course, compared to being by your side, the protection from the emperor seems insignificant. Xiao Tian gave him a disdainful look. If you knew, why didn't you mention it? You never asked. Long Chiodao replied defensively. Moreover, whether the emperor is alive or dead doesn't seem to affect you much. But Xiao Tian disagreed. He is the forefather of the empress. It's significant. Maybe the emperor used his prophetic abilities. No one now would come, making everyone believe he's dead, only to catch me off guard. Seeing the determined look on Xiao Tian's face, Long Chiodao became panicked. Sir Xiao, I assure you, the emperor has no ulterior motives. You have to believe me. He clasped Xiao Tian's hand with a sincere expression, hoping to dissuade any misguided thoughts. After all, you're much more powerful than the emperor. Please, spare him. Disgusted, Xiao Tian pulled his hand away. All right, all right, I won't jump to conclusions. But do you know where the emperor is now? Long Chiodao shook his head repeatedly. Sir Xiao, I've always been in the holy dragon relic, staying out of worldly affairs. I could only sense that the emperor is still alive. But where he went? Before he could finish, Shue Fugue interrupted. The emperor is in the upper realm. Both of them expressed surprise. Shue Fugue was equally amazed. This elder from the holy dragon clan is actually close to the emperor. How astonishing. But Xiao Tian was only concerned about the emperor. So the emperor is in the upper realm? Did he go there with his 3,000 wives? Shue Fugue was speechless. Is this child's imagination always this wild? Never mind about the wives. The emperor being in the upper realm means we can directly communicate with them. Once communication is established, the emperor can issue edicts. These edicts can unify the scattered imperial forces here. Unfortunately, our communication with the upper realm is currently limited. Otherwise, we could gather all the imperial forces to resist the impending disaster in the meteor flame battlefield. Shue Fugue sighed. It's such a pity. By the way, when Empress Z left, did she entrust you to look after the Great Flame Dynasty? Yes. Is there something you wish to instruct? Can you contact the Primordial Demon Kingdom? No problem. You're aware of Empress Luo's situation. The ties between the Primordial Demon Kingdom and us are close. Having heard this, Xiao Tian informed everyone, I've combined a mysterious wealth mountain range and the Hundred Flower Domain. It's now named the Empress United Domain, or Empress Domain. Later, I plan to move the Holy Demon Realm and merge it as well. The location for the second defensive line is pretty good, and not remote. Once the three domain worlds are combined, it will be an impressive sight. Hearing this, Zhong Yangming's eyes lit up with anticipation. Combining the three domain worlds, especially at the second defensive line, wouldn't that make the Empress Domain soar? Sir Xiao, you are truly. Xiao Tian continued, by then, we will undoubtedly have access to a plethora of unique and delicious ingredients. Zhong Yangming, with your culinary skills, you'll finally have a chance to showcase your talent. Zhong Yangming's emotions exploded. While I'm thinking about the powerful defensive line and how it can assist the meteor flame battlefield, all you're thinking about is food, isn't it? Hearing that Xiao Tian was planning to move the Holy Demon Realm to the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range, Zhong Yangming, who was already accustomed to such surprises, rubbed his forehead. I'll speak to the Primordial Demon Kingdom about this and make the necessary preparations for the fusion as soon as possible. Xiao Tian gave a thumbs up. I'll just push the Holy Demon Realm over there, make sure all the civilians stay in their homes and try not to come out. Zhong Yangming nodded. Don't worry, we have experience with this. I'll make sure everyone is informed. Shue Fugui was confused. What are you guys talking about? Am I too old to keep up? Wait a minute. What do you mean by merging domain worlds? Xiao Tian felt a bit awkward. Well, Grandpa, my bloodline is a bit special. I can drag entire domain worlds and fuse them together. Shue Fugui was astonished. Such talent. You need to keep this a secret. It could lead to your death. There's a race called the Psychic Clan, who can convert spiritual energy of heaven and earth into top-grade spirit stones. The Shue family and other clans have enslaved this race to produce spirit stones. Xiao Tian was infuriated. Grandpa, that's wrong. It's oppressive and extremely immoral. Shue Fugui shook his head helplessly. True, but there's nothing we can do. Escaping from the Shue family was already difficult enough. How can we bother with such trifles? Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian began calculating swiftly in his mind. If my in-laws are unhappy in the Shue family, then my empress wife will be unhappy. And if she's unhappy, my easy life is over. Suddenly, it became clear to Xiao Tian. So, the head of the Shue family is targeting me. He doesn't want me to have an easy life. Seeing Xiao Tian's expression of anger, Long Chiodao became anxious. Are we back to this again? Is Sir Zhao's paranoia never going to end? Zhong Yangming also realized that they couldn't continue like this. Empress Zi Ruoyan is leading troops to reinforce the meteor flame battlefield, and we need Sir Xiao here in the Holy Demon Realm. He can't just run off to the Shue family to argue morality. Both quickly intervened. Sir 
Xiao. Let's stay calm. We still don't know the full situation with the Shua family. Why not wait and see? Exactly, Sir Xiao. You should at least give them one more chance, don't you think? Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian relented. Fine, I'll give them another chance. Once I speak to my in-laws and find out more about the Shua family, we'll revisit this. Time will reveal the truth. Shua Fugui listened proudly. Little Xiao, you really have a way with words. Oh, it's nothing, Xiao Tian said, blushing slightly. However, Zhong Yang Ming suddenly asked, Sir, where are we going to make a move on the holy demon realm? What's going on? Because the holy demon emperor, Luo Taotian, has bound the holy demon realm to himself using the earthly sovereign technique. The sooner you fuse the holy demon realm with the empress domain, the sooner we can enhance the combat capabilities of the holy demon emperor. And naturally, also on the meteor flame battlefield, Zhong Yang Ming explained. All right, Xiao Tian yawned. I'll get to it once I've eaten well, had something to drink, and had a good sleep. You can start your preparations. Zhong Yang Ming quickly bowed. Of course, prince. This is my duty after all. Xiao Tian then turned to Long Chiu Dao, and as for the warships, make sure they're ready. We can't possibly expect me to fly there myself when we rush to the void battlefield, can we? Sir Xiao, it's almost ready. Don't worry, Long Chiu Dao assured. Noticing Shue Fugui's astonished face, Xiao Tian quickly gestured. Grandpa, please eat. Don't be shy. Shue Fugui felt his head buzzing. How many more surprises does my son-in-law have that I don't know about? Grandpa, you better eat before it gets cold. All right, all right. Shue Fugui quickly agreed, then thought of something. Little Xiao, why don't you just call me old Shui? Calling me grandpa when we've just met feels like I'm taking advantage of you. Xiao Tian looked puzzled. How is that taking advantage? Shui Fugui chuckled. If your own grandpa knew, he might get jealous. It doesn't matter. I don't even know who my biological grandfather is. Xiao Tian shrugged. Shui Fugui was momentarily stunned. How come? I was adopted. Before that, my parents had already been killed by my adoptive father. It seems they were thoroughly erased. Nothing could be found about them. I never had elders like you. Calling you grandpa is nice. At least now I have a grandpa grandfather, Xiao Tian said, smiling and showing his white teeth. How does he manage to say all this with such a calm demeanor? Shue Fugui thought. Getting up, he walked over to a jar of wine and placed it in front of Xiao Tian. This wine is excellent, the best in the Ring Mountain realm. Little Xiao, would you care to drink a few cups with your grandpa? Xiao Tian smiled. Sure, but you should know that the green flame wine is also pretty good. Shue Fugui stroked his beard. This wine is truly unparalleled. It's been difficult to find a jar like this since I've been in the holy demon realm. Xiao Tian looked at Shue Fugui. If you want some, just come to me. But you'll have to pay. You wouldn't want to take advantage of your junior, would you? Shue Fugui burst into laughter. Little Xiao, if there's one thing your grandpa has plenty of, it's money. On the other side, at the meteor flame battlefield, facing the direction of the defense line are numerous cities where the martial spirit army is stationed. In one of the core cities further back, a figure stands on the city wall, gazing into the distance, lost in thought. Suddenly, the sound of hurried footsteps can be heard. Someone rushes up to the city wall and approaches the figure. News has arrived. By Qing is leading an army on the way. The quality of the void warships is high. They'll arrive in two more days. The man on the wall is tall and robust. His skin is etched with both red and black markings. He belongs to the Blood Surge clan, an upper-level clan that possesses both the close combat capabilities of the Blood Rune clan and the curse abilities of the Blood Grudge clan, collectively known as the Three Bloodlines. They form a solid part of the Martial Spirit Army, even capable of spearheading many plans. Seems like the intelligence network we painstakingly set up is serving its purpose. The man muses. After the explosion in the Vanguard battlefield, Holy Demon Emperor Luo Taotian returned to the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes battlefield, having elevated his power to the 20th level. He's been hiding behind the defense lines, elusive and frustrating. Zhang Keiji clenches his fists and speaks in a low voice. Sir, considering our hidden capabilities, we could actually break through their defense lines in one fell swoop. Why are we not attacking? Shuo Rui, the strong warrior from the Blood Rune clan standing beside him, shakes his head. Be cautious. Have you forgotten who can constructed these battlefield defense lines in that era? Zhang Keiji's face tightens. Yes, they were built by a man who was frighteningly powerful and unpredictable, the human emperor Purple Extreme Invincible. Once, in another void battlefield, the Martial Spirit Army had successfully conquered numerous cities. Just as they were expanding their victories, they discovered that the subterranean areas of the captured cities constituted an array hub. It ignited the spiritual energy of heaven and earth, causing massive upheaval and devastation. This has made us nervous, wondering if this could be a hidden mechanism left by the human emperor. Now that we have intelligence, the initiative for this battlefield lies with us. Upon hearing this, Zhang Keiji instantly understands. Sir, do you already have a plan in mind? If the human emperor left any traps, it would certainly be in those defense line checkpoints. Our most secure strategy would be to lure Luo Taotian and his forces out from behind those walls, and then seize the area in one fell swoop. Shua Rui explains, gesturing slightly. Zhang Keiji frowns. Sir, tricking Luo Taotian out from behind the defenses might not be so easy anymore. Shuarui shakes his head gently. It's not that he won't come 
come out, it's that the temptation isn't great enough and the situation isn't chaotic enough, Shwarui says, his face revealing a mysterious smile. We'll first dispatch a portion of our forces, pretending they are the main army, to engage with Luo Tao Yan and a stalemate. Once Bai Qing and their reinforcements arrive, we'll feign a retreat. By then, Luo Tao Yan and his troops will be encouraged, seeing an opportunity to wipe out our main force. Would they resist such a temptation and continue to defend? Once they rush out and leave their defense lines, we can attack them without any reservation. This decision excites Zhang Keiji, who's standing beside him. Grinning, he clenches his fists. Finally, a full-scale attack. These scum have been arrogant for too long. It's time to show them the real gap between us. I can't wait to see their faces of despair. Now, the 3rd to the 10th armies will proceed to their designated locations according to the original plan, waiting for orders. Siege equipment is also prepared for transport to the battlefield. Shuarui continues, looking out at the horizon, where a dense mass of tents forms a sprawling camp. Zhang Keiji is also emotionally charged, his eyes red and muscles swelling. For Hidden Marshal, Hidden Marshal, beyond the city defense line in their massive camp, figures of the Marshal Spirit Army are densely packed, many of them raising their arms and roaring, seemingly eager to rush to the battlefield and engage in combat. Meanwhile, on the defense line of the Meteor Flame Battlefield, Holy Demon Emperor Luo Tao Yan ascends high into the sky. His spiritual energy circulates in his eyes as he gazes into the distance. He quickly spotted the enemy's hidden camp at a glance. Luo Tao Yan lands back on top of the city wall, his expression very solemn. What's wrong? If it weren't for my mysterious surge in strength, I would have already turned and run, says Luo Tao Yan, clenching his fists involuntarily. The danger of this fight far exceeds our limits. I just hope that Bai Qing's reinforcements can arrive soon. Until then, we cannot lose the defense line. Hearing her husband's tone, Wu Xingxu grits her teeth. If we're really outmatched, why not simply fall back to the second defense line? It's been well funded over the years, after all. But Luo Tao Yan cuts her off. No, if we retreat, the entire region between the Meteor Flame Battlefield and the second defense line will be devastated. Also, don't count on those useless people at the second defense line. With that, Luo Tao Yan leans on the city wall, staring into the distance. As an emperor, I will not let them advance a single step.